Web novel fanfiction TG the good. The latest of the latest. Chapter 1 You trash bastard. That was something Ju Hian had heard for close to ten years. Hyung. One the world is so shitty. His Dongsen would always say that and then sigh. Two of course, he knew the reason why. It was because of these damn tombs. These strange tombs suddenly started to appear in the world 15 years ago, starting in 2025. Mythology, great historical figures, legends, folk tales, and popular novels. They said something about how stories that people remember for a long time have power. These things all turned into tombs and started to appear in the world. The issue were these damn artifacts that came out of these tombs. The artifacts brought forth innovation and wealth, allowing anyone to increase their status. That was how the world changed. There were people who earned rank by being able to use the abilities of heroes through their artifacts. It was a world where dragons could rise from creeks. But it only lasted for a moment. It only lasted as long as good artifacts remained in the world. Fifteen years. Ju Hian was a young man who considered that time to be a nightmare more than anybody else. That was how the world had completely changed in just 15 years. The downfall of the middle class. The world was divided into two, the 1% and the 99%. This was the difference between the nobles who had artifacts and the peasants who did not. The monopolizers who monopolized the good artifacts became so wealthy that even the governments could not ignore them and change the social structure to benefit themselves. The ones who did not have them ended up becoming slaves suffering in poverty. The only way to get out of poverty was to work for a monopolizer. Ju Hian was one of these slaves. However, that would all end today. Fuck, that damn son of a bitch. Ju Hian coughed up blood while being angry from being betrayed. Yes, Ju Hian was dying right now. It was because of his boss, Chairman Kwan. Ju Hian who had been Chairman Kwan's right arm for ten years had been cut off like a lizard's tail. All for the stupid reason of getting rid of any potential future disasters. Ah, Kwan Tae Jun, you motherfucking old man. Chairman Kwan who possessed a divine grade artifact was one of those monopolizers. However, he wanted to become the only monopolizer by gathering all artifacts. That was why he got close to Ju Hian and Chairman Kwan, who had been envious of Ju Hian's talents, had made him an offer. He told Ju Hian he would pay him well to work for him. He had also said that he would use his divine grade artifact to cure Ju Hian and his family members from their illnesses. Ju Hian had literally done everything for that reason. Illegal smuggling, theft, spying. He had been Chairman Kwan's hands and feet to do all sorts of dirty deeds. He even did things that placed his own life in danger. He had no qualms about being Chairman Kwan's shield. That was the only way to survive in a society where the monopolizers had changed everything for their benefits. The thing that Ju Hian did the most was, illegal excavation. In other words, tomb raiding. Chairman Kwan often tasked Ju Hian to raid tombs. Raiding them gained them more than lawfully excavating them. The reason that was possible was because of Ju Hian's abilities. It must have been an anonymous archaeologist's artifact. The artifact that Ju Hian found while risking his life had given him advanced archaeology skills. Thanks to that, Ju Hian was able to become the ace of Chairman Kwan's illegal excavation team. He had spent many years doing that. Ju Hian plundered many artifacts and placed Chairman Kwan into a position of monarch. Ju Hian led his tomb raiding team to defeat Chairman Kwan's opponents with overwhelming strength. Other people just mocked Ju Hian for being a trashy slave bastard who is leeching off a wealthy man, but Ju Hian just took it all in and continued to work. He needed the money. Chairman Kwan was the only person who had the artifact that could heal his family and himself. That had been the reason Ju Hian trusted Chairman Kwan and had done everything he could. But for this to be the result, you son of a bitch. You became scared of us after we helped you rise to the top. There were large snakes squirming around aiming for Ju Hian's body. His precious subordinates had become food for these snakes long ago. He had no way of knowing whose tomb this was. Chairman Kwan had found this unconfirmed highest grade tomb. However, what he knew for sure was that this would become his grave as well. 
Juhian started to laugh like a madman after figuring that out. You damn bastards, see if I trust any bastard with artifacts from now on. Although he was saying that, he was extremely angry and hurting from betrayal and grudges. I'm going to become an evil spirit and haunt those bastards for the rest of their lives. Juhian heard an unexpected voice as his shrieks filled the labyrinth. You're so damn loud. Juhian scoffed at this sudden voice he heard. Sorry but I don't plan on dying quietly. Oh. You can hear my voice. The voice sounded intrigued. Juhian could not even laugh. It's not the first day I could hear a damn artifact's voice. How interesting that there was someone like you. Interesting my ass. I don't know which god's item you are, but let me out of here while I'm asking you nicely. You really think you can survive with your body in that condition? Juhian coughed up some blood at that moment. His face was completely pale. It was an obvious reaction. There was nothing under his torso right now. All he could see was his blood dripping down. It was shocking enough that he had not fainted from shock already. That voice started to mock Juhian as he was slowly fading away. Thief who was greedy for the treasures of gods and entered without fear. This is the end for a fool like you. Juhian knew that he was dying but the smile had not left his face. Shut up and let me out now. You show rare talent but it looks like you were not able to use them to their full potential and only suffered because you were placed in a terrible time. Juhian got emotional after that and started to sneer. You stupid item bastard you think I wanted to. He was trying to say that he did not want to live like this. However, he could not finish his sentence. It was because he became angry thinking about Chairman Kwan and the societal changes that forced him to live like this. Fuck damn Chairman Kwan. He was just lucky that he found a divine grade artifact early on. Ha! Huh. That item laughed again after hearing that. He sounded like a leery old man. It truly would be a waste for you to die like this. Juhian screamed at that moment. It was because a light suddenly flashed and everything had turned white. Juhian then saw something appear from the wall. It was something that even Juhian who had seen numerous artifacts had never seen before. Furthermore, it was something that would make anybody in the world extremely happy. A hero-grade artifact. A divine-grade artifact. No, it was neither. Then what could it be? Juhian saw the image of a crow in the flashing light at that moment. I will give you a chance. Try to take a monarch position for real. That was the last thing Juhian heard before he fainted. A monarch position my ass. Juhian mumbled to himself as he moved his legs. He knew that his legs were not there, but it was a reflexive response. However huh? They moved. He could even feel his legs that should not be there. A shocked Juhian jumped up from his seat. However, he could not help but be even more shocked after jumping up. There was a scary looking mister in front of him. Have you snapped out of it? Juhian simply blinked a few times and looked around instead of responding. He seemed to be in a police station. The other people who were being questioned in the station peeked at Juhian before lowering their heads again. Juhian stood there in confusion for a moment. Something seemed weird. The officer in front of him started to bang on the table in anger. Hey, I've been asking for your identity since earlier. Don't you have an ID? You haven't said a thing since you got here. Are you trying to plead the fifth? Do you think we have time for that? No, forget pleading the fifth or whatever. I need to know what the hell is going on in order to respond. He was in a tomb about to be fodder for snakes but how did he suddenly appear in a police station? Is that damn crow playing a trick on me? Juhian started to frown and sat back down. He started to think about that final labyrinth where he had been dying. What is he trying to do? give me a punishment for breaking into his tomb. The officer across from him started to grumble. Egu, we're annoyed that we have to do this on the first day of 2025 as well, okay? Can you give us your statement so we can all go home? Juhian could not help but question his ears after hearing that. It felt as if he heard something impossible. Hold on. Did he say 2025? He quickly looked around the room. That was exactly what he saw. 
The calendar on the wall was on a date from a long time ago. January 1, 2025 This was exactly 15 years ago when he was 23 years old. This was before tombs even started to appear. Juhian got the chills after figuring that out. He had not heard incorrectly. And if this was the actual date. Wow, that means all of the divine great artifacts are still in their tombs. Juhian's gaze turned greedy after realizing this fact. I can get all the artifacts if that is the case. He had the knowledge and experience in his mind to do that. Furthermore, he was not even sick at this point in his life. There was nothing tying him to Chairman Quan either. It meant that he could have a new start. However, that hope was soon destroyed. It was because of the absence of his abilities. It didn't matter if all of the artifacts were still at home. The tomb where he got the archaeologist's artifact would not appear for another five years. He was just a regular person right now. Even though I know a lot about artifacts, without that tomb raiding ability, Ju Hien sat down with an annoyed expression on his face after realizing that fact. Damn it, I got excited for nothing. It really must be that damn crow playing a trick on Ju Hien. He was a thief who knows where the treasures are but don't have a way to get them. It's totally a way to mock him. Does he want me to repeat my sorry life again? However, Ju Hien's eyes opened wide as he clicked his tongue. It was because he saw his reflection through the glass on the desk. He was focused on the unfamiliar text by his face. Tomb Raider Co Ju Hien. Ju Hien's eyes sparkled after confirming that. Oh, would you look at this? Chapter, 2. A Tomb Raider. Some holographic words were floating next to him. Ju Hien sighed after seeing that. He questioned why he could see something like this, but that was not important right now. Tomb Raider CO Juhian Level 1 A pathetic pickpocket who can't even use a shovel. There were some words that annoyed him, but Tomb Raider. A word that should have no relations to the world during this time had appeared. Did my eyes go crazy? However, he could not ignore this. He needed to confirm things since he could see something like this. He needed to see if he could use his abilities. That would determine whether his life changed from here on. This was a chance. That was why to start Juhian grabbed the slightly rusted chair and stealthily tried to use one of his abilities. Restore. Unfortunately, nothing happened to the chair. Juhian could only sigh. I guess it doesn't work without an artifact. The restoration ability was one of the abilities he had gained from the archaeologist's artifact. According to his memories, it should easily get rid of some rust on a chair. Is this really just an illusion? He saw a message pop up in front of him at that moment. Other skills are necessary in order to use the restoration skill. Please learn all four basic skills first. A higher tier skill. This window felt like a game interface. Ju Hien was confused but soon started to smile. An odd but familiar thing appeared in front of his eyes. Tomb Raider Basic Skills 14 Spy F Rank, search a 1 meter radius area around you. Juhian started to laugh out loud after seeing that explanation. That made the officers look toward Juhian in shock. Did this bastard suddenly go crazy? Hey, why are you suddenly laughing like that? However, Juhian didn't care and just continued to laugh. He was now certain. The name was different, but this was definitely the search ability that had been one of his abilities. But it changed to this. Did my original abilities turn into these game-like skills? That was why Ju Hien's eyes sparkled. If it was like this, he should be able to use his abilities even without the archaeologist's artifact. A message popped up as he was having that thought. Please awaken all four dormant skills in order to advance to a Tomb Raider. Mission, successfully awaken all four basic Tomb Raider skills. Oh. A quest window after a skill window. He naturally had no objections. Why would he have any issues with something that would allow him to use his abilities right now? But how do I awaken these skills? It happened as Ju Hien was thinking about this. Ah, uh, seriously, hey you. Hurry up and kneel and beg for forgiveness. Do you want to end up in jail? Ju Hien turned his head. Next to him was a high school student and a well-dressed madam. 
Hurry up and admit that you hit my son. We will settle for ten million one. You can go to jail if you don't want to do that. Juhian started to frown after hearing the woman's shout. Who are these bastards? But Juhian quickly figured things out. Juhian's memories were so good that he could even remember a phone number he received on the streets many years ago. That was why he could clearly remember what was going on right now. It happened on the streets around dinner time. I remember it was that bastard who provoked me after he had been drinking. As expected, the student was chuckling behind his mom. Oh, you're going to stare at me like that? So who told you to touch a student studying for their exams? He can't even use his hand because of you. They said it will take eight weeks for a full recovery. Are you going to take responsibility if my son fails to get into college because of you? Are you going to take responsibility for ruining my son's life? However, Juhian scoffed at the women. That injury taking eight weeks to heal. What a moron. The mother-son duo both dropped their jaws at this comment. This bastard who was just groveling and saying he didn't have even ten dollars on him just said what? Hey! Did you suddenly go crazy or something? However, Juhian could only laugh. There was only one thing for him to do now that he came back to the past. It was to take the artifacts inside the tombs before anybody else. He needed to awaken his skills to do that. Yet he was stuck here wasting time with these buffoons. I want to kick myself from fifteen years ago. But he could understand why his old self acted the way he did. This had been how he lived until he earned the archaeology ability. He had found it hard to get a job as a high school graduate and had been suffering under an evil boss. But I can't waste my time like that now. There was no time to deal with these kind of children. The mother-son duo became anxious after hearing Juhian start to laugh. Hey, did you go crazy, you retard? What's so funny? Huh? This good-for-nothing bastard will snap out of it after he gets a beating. The woman tried to slap Juhian. The officers tried to stop her in shock. Ah! A loud scream filled the station. The officers dropped their jaws in shock. The hand of the woman who tried to slap Juhian had been twisted in a weird direction. It had happened so fast. Hole! Ah! My arm, my arm! Juhian lightly laughed as he twisted her arm. Hey old lady, you need to know what you can hit and what you can't hit. M, mom. Are you okay? You bastard. The son tried to punch Juhian as well and got his arm twisted as well. Ah. Oh my, I thought you needed eight weeks for a full recovery. Your hand seems to be perfectly fine. Ah. Stop, stop. I'm sorry. The officers finally snapped out of it and stopped them. Hey, stop right now. Juhian let go without any hesitation and stood up. That's fine, where is the holding cell? Huh? Aren't you going to put me in the holding cell? I'm sleepy so I'm just going to go in and get some rest. Juhian then started to walk toward the holding cell. He looked as if he knew exactly where it was. TSK, look at that bastard. The officers chased after Juhian in confusion. The mother-son duo were holding hands in shock as they watched him. It looked like the son's hand was not as injured as they proclaimed Ow, that bastard. Is he crazy? Hurry up and stick him in the cell. Right away. I'm going to sue this bastard. They were huffing and puffing but did not realize something very important. They did not notice that their wallets had left their pockets without them knowing. Oh, these bastards were quite loaded. Juhian chuckled while looking at the stolen wallets. He had used his skills to swipe them. The original Juhian had worked for ten years with people calling him a rat bastard. It was nothing for him to steal people's attention away and swipe things. His skills were at the level of a street magician or an expert. Of course, he had usually only used it during work-related tasks, but he had done it as a warm-up since he returned to the past. And voila, it had succeeded. You damn bastards, it looks like there are some important stuff in here so have fun crying. He just needed to awaken these basic skills now. The problem was that he still didn't know how to do it. Just how do I go about awakening these skills? 
It would be great if he at least knew how to do that. It happened at that moment. Spy skill mastery level has increased. Your stealthy hands that even the devil would be shocked to see has helped you learn about the existence of the basic skill, dexterity. Oh. Ju Hian started to think after seeing that before he started to chuckle. Did this mean that he needed to do certain actions to awaken the skills? Ju Hian was about to thoroughly inspect the system window but quickly put away the stolen wallets first. It was because there was an officer heading toward him. Hey, you punk. I haven't even seen my wife's face in a month so do I really have to see you here? Ju Hian started to laugh. Kim Gun Woo. He was an investigator on the violent crimes unit who had been treating the orphan Ju Hian like his own brother since they were young. He had been Ju Hian's only family member until he eventually found some blood relatives. Anyway, don't worry because I took care of this. Those damn scammers were repeat offenders. We should be putting them in jail for their repeated reports for the same thing. Ju Hian smiled before seriously asking a question. Hyung, I have a question. A question? Ju Hian pointed to the TV instead of responding. The TV had a lot of news information quickly buzzing by. An unknown tomb appeared in Myeongdong at 3 p.m. today causing quite a disturbance. There are over 100 people reported to be missing Inspector Kim looked at the news before clicking his tongue. Even the police don't know why these tombs are suddenly appearing. We haven't found anything out in the past nine months. No, that wasn't very important. Ju Hian knew very well about these occurrences even without being told anything. Tomb appearance this was a disaster in the world caused by artifacts looking to find their masters. Zeus, Solomon, Socrates, Faust, Nostradamus, Chiyu the Chinese god of war, etc. Artifacts with the abilities of gods, heroes, and famous individuals were appearing in the world. Artifacts used different methods to select their masters, however, they all created tombs in the process. People saw the tombs as a signal and gathered over to them. Hell will be created once they start appearing more frequently. Artifacts definitely brought people benefits. However, if their goal was to destroy humanity, it could be called a great success. People started to kill each other for artifacts and the monopolizers changed the social structures. The only way to survive was to find a great artifact and became an artifact user. History will only repeat itself if I don't do that. This was the core part of his question. Hyung, have you seen any superhumans? What? Ah. I saw it a while ago, the movie that got over 10 million views. The heroine was so hot. Ju Hian started to smile at that response. Based on that response, tombs have not been cleared yet and artifact users have not appeared in the world. Tombs and artifacts were popping up here and there but it was still in the infancy stage. So there should not be any real competitors right now. However, he could not relax just yet. Why? Because of Chairman Kwan. Although he didn't know the exact time, Chairman Kwan was one of the early birds who got a divine grade artifact in the early stages. So I need to move faster than that bastard. The best scenario would be to take Chairman Kwan's artifact before he got it. Ju Hian started to grind his teeth after still feeling the pain from his limbs being cut apart from his body. Even without thinking about revenge, I need to hurry up in order to not have the same kind of life. Ju Hian firmly made his resolves before saying goodbye and heading out of the police station. There were too many things for him to do now that he had returned to the past. The first was Europe. The tombs that were profitable mainly appeared in Europe at first, so I need to go there. However, it was at that moment. Ju Hian suddenly stopped walking after realizing an important fact. It was something so shocking that he couldn't believe he forgot about it. Hold on. Wasn't I penniless at this point? That was the case. During this time, he had not even been able to pay his electricity or his water bills. So forget getting on a plane, he didn't even have money for daily necessities right now. Ju Hian could only sigh after remembering this fact. I should be able to pay my overdue cell phone bill with this stolen money. Based on the situation, it looked like the era of artifacts would officially start in about two months. But forget getting into the tombs, he was having trouble getting to those countries to start. Damn it, 
why did I erase those winning lottery numbers from my memories? Even his memory that was better than everybody else was useless right now. Hey! Seo Ju Hian. There was a group of people sharply calling for Ju Hian outside the police station. Ju Hian started to frown while looking at them. Those bastards are. They were his young nims at the company where he was being exploited during this time. They spit on the ground and motioned for Ju Hian to hurry over to them. Are they saying they will kill me if I don't come? He didn't know exactly what they wanted, but he knew it wasn't so they could hang out and have some fun together. However, Ju Hian started to smile as if he thought of something while looking at them. There are some useful punks right there. Chapter, 3 How perfect! Ju Hian started to smile while looking at them but Inspector Kim who noticed them opened his eyes wide in shock. Ha! Huh. Those bastards are! Wow, I caught them now! They ran away after using you as a human shield last time. Ju Hian stopped Inspector Kim who looked ready to take them down. Ah, uh, it's fine, Hyung. I'll take care of it. I happen to need something from them. What? You need something from them? Ah, uh, call an ambulance just in case. It'll be complicated if they end up dying. Inspector Kim doubted his ears after hearing that. What? Which side is going to die? Hold on. Hey. What the heck do you mean? Ju Hian. You don't know how to fight. Inspector Kim chased him for a moment but Ju Hian disappeared into an alley. The first thing Ju Hian needed to do now that he returned to the past was to settle some loose ends. Well, settling loose ends might be too nice of a way to classify this of course, the ones he was dealing with were the art brokers from the criminal organization. He had ended up working for them once in high school when he was desperate for money and ended up being forced to work for this gang since then. Ju Hian really worked his ass off like a slave under these bastards. If I remember correctly, I worked for them until my mid-twenties when I got my abilities. The Ju Hian of this time even had his money stolen by them and had to do things he didn't want to do. However, he had never thought about running away. Even with an inspector around him, he didn't know what kind of actions a gang would take. Ju Hian sighed as he remembered that fact better than anybody else. Anyway, they originally planned to make Ju Hian go deep in debt buying artwork before taking care of him, but continued to bother him after realizing that Ju Hian's memory was quite useful. That was the same right now. Fuck, our little Ju Hian. You poor orphan bastard. You should be greeting your Hyung Nims as soon as you see us. Work, it's time for work. There were four of them. Four bulky dudes were stretching in a small alley while blocking Ju Hian's way. One of them had a small wooden box with artwork in his shirt. They were probably looking for him because of this item. All right, let's hurry up. We are short on time, you bastard. But he's gotten much better. He sent the inspector off on his own. He finally knows who he should stick with. Who wouldn't want to live their life with their limbs intact? I mean, how sweet of a job is this? Right? Other people are desperately looking for jobs but we let him go home twice a month, pay him even though he is an intern, and teach him a lot of things. Shouldn't we be the ones being paid instead? Ju Hian scoffed, wondering if they truly believed what they were saying. They were making a grave mistake right now. The reason Ju Hian got away from Inspector Kim as if he was Lupin was not because of their threats or fear. One then why? There was a simple reason for it. Things would get complicated if an inspector saw what was about to happen. For example. Hurry up and follow us if you know Ugg. A scream suddenly filled the alley. There was a man who was sent flying with his teeth punched out. It had happened so quickly that nobody could figure out what actually happened. At least until Ju Hian started to laugh and make a comment. Morons. What? The reason I didn't want the inspector here was so that I don't get punished for excessive self-defense. T, T, this bastard. Hey. Co Ju Hian. You dare to touch our Hyung Nim. Ju Hian brushed his hand off and calmly started to speak after sending the man flying. I don't have a letter of resignation on me so inform the boss verbally. I'm done with you guys now. W, what did you say? 
the men started to wonder if Juhian had gone crazy. The bastard who used to grovel at their feet had turned weird. However, Juhian just cracked his knuckles and started to laugh viciously. Ah. One more thing before I resign. Do you guys have any money on you? I think I should get my overdue pay and compensation package right now. He had changed completely. Although the men were confused, Juhian was being serious. The era of artifacts would start in a few months. He didn't even have enough time to go into tombs right now and take the artifacts before other people did, let alone dealing with these bastards any longer. That was why he would take care of any annoying loose ends before he started going into the tombs. However, the men scoffed as if they could not understand Juhian's attitude at all. Huh, did he really go crazy? What? Hey. Compensation package. Wow, C.O. Juhian. It looks like we need to train him properly once again. Fuck, hey retard, a poor bastard who doesn't know how to fight should not bluff like that. These upset men started to scream as they charged toward Juhian. To them, Juhian was just a baby chick whose memory was useful. However, Juhian clicked his tongue while looking at them. He did expect that things would not end with just words. You give me no other choice. Juhian poked one of the men in a vital point of the clavicle. Ugh. He then lifted his elbow and slammed it into another man's neck. That was followed by grabbing a third man by the head and slamming it into his knee. Crack. Uff. The men could not even see all of Juhian's movements. Juhian did not give them any time as he attacked them in their temples. Every spot he had hit had been a vital point. Two men in the front ended up groaning as they fell over. Hayu, Hyung Nim. The other two were so shocked their jaws dropped as they looked at Ju Hien. See, crazy. Why, you didn't even know how to fight before. Ju Hien had originally just been an excavator with the archaeologist's abilities. It sounds like it has nothing to do with fighting, but how could a life related to artifacts be that simple? He even had a vicious love scene with a homicidal maniac like Jack the Ripper over an artifact. That was why fighting was essential. He had learned many different martial arts including Jeet Kune Do for self-defense but it was fine to take care of thugs like this. Pow! You bastard! Ugh! A man who took out a club went flying this time. Juhian laughed in a relaxed manner as he watched. Surprisingly, his body felt very light. His body had been a mess in his past life because of an illness he caught in a tomb. I'll have less problems like this. He had felt it earlier as the police station as well, but his senses had remained. His stamina and strength might not be the same but he should be able to use everything he learned to a high degree even with this 15 years younger body. The club went flying into the air as the man flew away, before landing in Juhian's hand. That bastard. The men started to glare but Juhian just laughed. A club-wielding Juhian was like a fish in water as he started to attack the other men. Crack, the sound of one of their chins breaking could be heard. You, ugh. Juhian aimed for the next one as that man stumbled in pain. He aimed for the legs next. The club struck right between the knee joint and the leg. That wasn't it. He broke the club in half and pointed a sharp point to the man's stomach. He then punched the man's face. Ah! My eye! Ah! Juhian had no problem causing a lot of damage with a single club. Once all three of them fell down, Park Kyung Tae, their leader, started to huff and puff with a flushed face. You disrespectful bastard! This is how you pay back our kindness for raising you. Looks like we need to kill you to teach you a lesson. However, Juhian just scoffed at Park Kyung Tae. The kindness for raising me. The difference between Park Kyung Tae and the other three were that this bastard really was a dumbass. Lo and behold, he took a fancy knife out of his chest pocket. Even if he calls himself an art broker, he was born a thug. These bastards didn't care for the methods. Of course, even gangsters didn't take knives out in most situations these days, but Park Kyung Tae was a thug who believed he needed to show his knife a taste of blood at least once. Looks like this damn art broker got another weird art piece. He probably sent his lackeys to go find a weird one again. 
the groaning lackeys looked anxious after seeing him take out the knife. Hyung Nim, using a knife near a police station is a bit. Shut up, how can we walk around if we are afraid of damn pigs? Knives only become real knives after they taste human blood at least once. Ju Hian started to laugh after seeing Park Kyung Tae point the knife at him. I just have to send the knife flying. It happened as Ju Hian was about to send the knife flying. Ju Hian's expression changed a bit as he looked at the knife. It was because of the aura he felt coming from this brass knife with a dog on it. That is. Other people would only see a fancy knife, but it could not trick Ju Hian's eyes. He was certain. This feeling. It was an artifact. Ju Hian started to laugh after figuring that out. Something is weird. Why does this bastard have that? This was not yet time for artifacts to float around in large numbers. However, Ju Hian soon accepted it after thinking about it for a moment. Artifacts had many different ways of looking for a master. There were some like this one who came out of their tombs and just hid amongst other items in the human world. One of the best hiding spots for artifacts was in between works of art. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. Artifacts won't be able to do anything in a normal person's hands. However, Park Kyung Tae still charged forward with the knife. You bastard. You'll need to find a grave in the hills today. His loud voice was quite entertaining. However. Ah. Forget swinging the knife, Park Kyung Tae could only sound like a pig as his arm was twisted behind him. Ugh, ugh, why, you bastard. On the other hand, Ju Hian smiled after picking up the knife. Park Kyung Tae's eyes opened wide as he saw Ju Hian with the knife. You bastard, put that down. That's not something for you to touch. Do you know how much that decorative item is worth? Ju Hian's sneer filled the area. Decorative item? Although none of them had been his, Ju Hian had touched many artifacts in his past life. He could not help but laugh at someone who was thinking an artifact was a decorative item. Even a regular person should be able to tell that this was not normal after holding it for a while. This bastard won't know the value of artifacts even in the future. Well, that was fine. This was the first artifact to land in his hands after returning 15 years into the past. He needed to see which bastard's artifact this was. Catch that bastard first. Ju Hian easily activated the artifact after hearing the thugs shout. Chapter, 4 Something odd happened at that moment. The knife became hot and the bodies of the people around him started to turn red. This was something only Ju Hian who was holding the knife could see. Ju Hian could instantly figure out what it was doing. It's letting me see the organs. He felt as if he could see the bones once he turned the knife a bit. That was the case. This was like seeing an x-ray in real time. Park Kyung Tae must have thought Ju Hian was playing around with the knife as he started to shout. Hey, you bastard. Put down that knife. He then picked up a brick from the ground and charged toward Ju Hian. You motherfucking bastard. It looks like you learned some martial arts or something. Although he had used the knife to look cool, Park Kyung Tae was known for his fighting abilities in the past. He had been a thug for a long time. In comparison, the young Ju Hian wasn't even a real thug. Even if he was holding a knife, he would not be able to handle a real fighter who also had something in his hand. Don't show off, you bastard. However. Ha. Huh. Something unexpected happened. Ju Hian's hand that seemed to be turning the knife disappeared. No, it looked like it disappeared. Once he realized that, Park Kyung Tae started to scream after feeling a terrible pain at his side. Ah! You bastard! Hyung Nim! It felt as if a hot iron had cut his side. Park Kyung Tae started to roll on the ground while holding his bleeding side. Ow! Fuck! However, Park Kyung Tae could not understand this situation. Ju Hian was weird just now. Learning a weird martial arts was one thing. It was something that was doable if he trained like hell in the short time they didn't see him. However, the way he used the knife right now was not at a regular person's skill level, it seemed more like a homicidal maniac. This bastard used to be scared of even seeing blood, so what? 
It even felt as if he was trying to cut off a piece of his flesh and not trying to stab him like a normal person. He started to think that this would be how a pig feels if they were butchered while still alive. Hyung Nim, are you okay? Hyung Nim. Ju Hien swung the knife around and approached them as they shouted. The men flinched as Ju Hien got closer. D, don't come any closer. Are you planning on killing the Hyung Nim? Ju Hien started to laugh. Stop exaggerating, I didn't even stab him that deep. F, fuck. Don't get any closer. They looked pale as they shouted and fell to the ground. They looked so scared that they might start peeing their pants soon. It made sense that they were scared. It was not normal to see this little kid whose only strength was using his brain suddenly became an expert at martial arts and using a knife. They could only come to a single conclusion. R. Right. He must be possessed. A ghost must have possessed him. A ghost? How else can you explain this? Juhian started to chuckle. No matter what, wasn't it too much to say he was possessed? The martial arts was one thing, but the knife was him just using the artifact. That was the case. These bastards might have used the knife thinking this decorative item is pretty and what not, but this was an artifact. It was a possession type artifact. Ju Hien had just used the internal force of this artifact. Based on the hieratratic text Egyptian priest text, it must be an Egyptian artifact. Although he didn't know for certain without appraising it, there was a high chance it was related to a high-ranking embalmer priest from ancient Egypt. They would cut through a corpse's body with precision to remove the organs. That was probably why he could see other people's organs and location of their bones when he activated this knife. Furthermore, possession-type artifacts allowed the user to use the original owner's abilities. In simple terms, even someone who does not know how to use a sword can become an expert using an artifact. But it is at max a consumable C-grade general-grade artifact. A C-grade artifact was something that was only at the level to surprise a regular person, and a consumable artifact will break after using it a few times. Of course, C-grade artifacts were low-grade artifacts during Juhian's past. It is probably quite precious right now. The laughing Juhian then started to walk toward Park Kyungte. Park Kyungte instantly fell on his ass like an animal about to be butchered. Damn it, T, T, this bastard, really. However, these thugs still had their pride as thugs, no, pride as men. This extremely young bastard. It felt unfair to lower their heads to this bastard who had never tried to fight them back as they beat him up. Lo and behold, Park Kyung Tae opened his eyes wide as he started to shout. Hey! Are you just going to watch this? Hurry up and take out any knives or weapons you got and kill him. Hurry up. Yes, yes. Hyung Nim. Ju Hee and clicked his tongue after hearing that. Looks like you idiots haven't been punished enough. And then Ju Hee and pointed the knife at Park Kyung Tae's neck as if he was annoyed. It was a simple threat, however, Park Kyung Tae forgot all about his pride as a man as the cold blade touched his skin. It really felt as if he would die if Ju Hee and pushed any farther. Egu, stop. Seo Ju Hien, you ungrateful bastard. Hayu, Hyung Nim. Park Kyung Tae looked ready to cry. Honestly speaking, the thugs these days were cowards who didn't really know how to fight. In comparison, Ju Hien had come from an era where people were used to killing one another for artifacts. Something like this was child's play. Of course, Park Kyung Tae, who had no way of knowing that, was shaking in fear. Shit. Did we stress this bastard to the point he went crazy or did he really get possessed by a ghost? Either way, they had touched someone they should not touch. But regret was useless at this point. The only thing he could do right now as he sat there in fear was this. I'm sorry sir. I'm sorry so please forgive me. I will get you your overdue pay and compensation package right away. His tone had even changed. Ju Hien happily pulled the knife back and responded. Good. Then I will be generous and give you thirty minutes so bring it now. However, Park Kyung Tae started to roll his eyes to come up with a plan even as he was groveling. He still could not accept just doing whatever this bastard told him to do. He needed to get away from this situation to find a chance to step on this bastard again. 
Park Kyung Tae gulped and started to speak after thinking of a plan. Um, you see, sir. Is there an issue? We can't pull funds from the company account without the boss' permission. But Ju Hien didn't care. Oh is that so? You need approval. Park Kyung Tae seemed to think that Ju Hien took the bait as he started to smile servilely. Yes sir. We will bring it in cash if you give us some more time. We will definitely convince the boss to. The lackeys who realized his plan tried to look as pitiful as possible. Yes sir, he's right. We can't do as we please with the company money. Hee <laughs> hee. This young bastard should say he'll give us more time now. Then we will go call for reinforcements. He should not be able to do anything if we take his friend hostage. They were laughing internally. However, the thugs heard a cold voice in their ears. Did these morons go crazy? They turned pale after making eye contact with Juhian. He was smiling mischievously but his gaze was very scary. And lo and behold. The smiling Juhian cracked his neck before lifting his fist. Pow! Juhian started to mercilessly beat the men up. He played around with them by only punching the same spots over and over. He was thinking that these thugs should be pretty tough, so it wouldn't work unless he punched them with the plan to break their bones. Pow! Pow! Fuck, stop, stoop. I'm sorry, so, ah. In the end, forget a man's pride or whatever, Park Kyung Tae started to cry. Damn it, damn it. It seems like you didn't understand. I never told you to take money from the company account. I will give you five minutes. Go bring me money. The men who realized their mistakes froze with pale expressions. But it seemed to be a bit too late. What did you say? He's going to stop working for us. That CEO Juhian said that. Park Kyung Tae clenched his eyes closed after hearing his sister, Park Kyung Ju's anger. Park Kyung Ju, who was living as a gold miss, was currently the head of a small art broker organization. One they had just come across another highly profitable deal that they were trying to take Ju Hien and go to work. So it was no wonder that she was angry because the bastards she sent to do the job were crying and calling her. You stupid idiots. You morons let CEO Ju Hien say that crap. No, you see. We could not touch him. He was a completely different person and was an expert at martial arts to the point that we almost died. Hey. Did you morons go crazy? How can you call yourself thugs after being scared by a damn baby? And, no, that's not the case. Enough. Park Kyung Ju did not seem to have the patience to listen to such nonsense any longer. Forget him for now and you guys go take care of business. It is an important deal as usual. You have the sample on you, right? Park Kyung Tae sighed knowing the worst part had finally arrived. The problem actually started from here. No, you see that. What is it? Did something happen? That, you see Ju Hien, that bastard took it with him. Took what? The art piece that he took. What? You really had that taken away? Yes yes ma'am. He took everything saying it was his overdue pay and compensation package. Park Kyung Tae said that and prepared himself for the worst. And lo and behold. Ow, you really. You morons. Don't you know what that Buddha statue is? The boss's anger shot through the sky. Do you know how much that is worth? That he also took all of our wallets. He then heard all sorts of swear words in Sadawari as well as about how she didn't care about their money. Two Park Kyung Ju could not help but go hysterical over the phone. Plus, Seo Ju Hien, that bastard is close to the cops. What if he notices the real identity of that Buddha statue? You're driving me nuts. And, no. It should be fine. Ju Hien no, that bastard should not notice anything about that statue. How would he figure out what is inside it? Ah, whatever. I don't care. Hurry up and get it back, now. Don't even think about coming home until you do. Click. She then hung up the phone. Egu, damn it. This is all because of Seo Juhian. Park Kyung Tae shook his head in frustration. Chapter, 
5. However, Ju Hian didn't care whether they stomped their feet or got frustrated. He was just sir. This is probably not worth any more than 50 001. One excuse me. You should just keep it at home. I don't think any fine arts dealer will buy something like this. Placed in a very awkward situation. Ho. They were acting like it was worth millions of won. Ju Hian who had come to an experienced fine arts dealer to appraise and sell the item started to frown. It was very weird and put him in a complicated situation. He had taken this Buddha statue and justified it by saying it was for his overdue pay and compensation package, but damn it, it is only worth 50 001. Park Kyung Tae had turned pale and tried to take it back vigorously that he thought it was worth a lot more. He wondered if the appraiser had lied, but he had seen people like this quite often. Forget showing no interest in the item at all, he seemed to treat Ju Hian like a peddler. That was why Ju Hian could only click his tongue after coming out of the shop. TSK. Did those morons get this appraised incorrectly to start? They were trying to be the middleman for something like this? He would not be able to get any money even if he sold this. He needed that money to go looking for artifacts. Of course, it was his fault that he did not thoroughly look at this statue before he took it. But his instincts had told him that this would be worth a lot. This is weird. Ju Hian had a sharp instinct especially when it came to money. He had gained an unbelievable instinct after touching so many artifacts with the archaeology ability. That instinct was telling him that this statue was worth a lot of money. Why? Why is my instinct telling me this cheap statue is worth a lot of money? Ju Hian thought about it for a while before deciding to let it be. Well, it's not even an artifact my instinct might not work on regular artwork. It happened as Ju Hian was about to go back in to at least get the 50 one for it. Ha! Huh. A weird message appeared in front of his eyes. Activate spy skill. A suspicious substance is being detected inside the Buddha statue. Oh, would you look at this? Ju Hian started to laugh at the completely unexpected message. A suspicious substance. Ju Hian's eyes curled up like a sly fox. It would not be wrong to say he also looked like an excited child. He believed this was a message from the spy skill, one of the basic Tomb Raider skills. It probably changed to be like a search skill in a video game. But there is something on the inside. There was no way something like a diamond Sarira was inside it. Tu Ju, Hian decided to take a closer look at the statue. He even tried to shake it but could not feel anything weird about it. Just what could be inside. Ju Hian had not cared about this item before but he was extremely focused on it because of the Tomb Raider skill. Park Kyung Tae had not been a broker for a day or two, so there was no way he was so antsy about him taking a 50 one statue away. That meant that their goal was not this outer shell but the item inside. They hid something inside the artwork. Something that would make them a ton of money. In simple terms, it could be laundered money cash to avoid taxes jewels, a lot of things came to mind but he didn't think any of them fit. Ju Hian thought about what else there could be before quickly realizing it. These bastards, are they really? The corners of his lips soon curled up slyly. Ju Hian who had rolled around in this business for a long time had figured it out. There was generally only one thing they would trade like this. But do they really have the balls to do this? As they say, seeing is believing. Ju Hian quickly took the artifact knife out. Once the artifact activated, the statue was sliced in half with godlike movement. The glue had been cut with the knife. A small liquid vial was located inside. Ju Hian started to chuckle after seeing it. As expected. The substance inside was a clear liquid. It was a drug. It looked like it could be confused with a saline solution, but it was a liquid drug called Tears of God TG, made with a synthesis of hemp and XLR-11. Instead of using needles, you dropped a few drops onto a cigarette to enjoy the high. And they had imported this to distribute inside artwork. Look at these brazen bastards. 100 milliliters of this would sell for quite the price. No wonder Park Kyung Tae had tried so hard to take it back. This was something he had not noticed when he was younger. Ju Hian then started to think while looking at the vial. 
Now that I think about it, these bastards had hundreds of artwork they dealt, right? If all of them had drugs inside. Juhian thought about this before putting on an evil smile and taking out his phone. He figured out a way to quickly generate his initial funds. With this method, he would not have to think about his tiny pay and his compensation package that would at max be a couple million wands. Of course, he was not interested in a dirty deeds like selling drugs. He just needed to oh, Hyung. It's me. Sorry for suddenly disappearing like that earlier. You're not busy right now, are you? He knew very well that the reward for helping to catch drug dealers was at max 100 million won. No, not at all. Chairman Nim. It is not that that goods are not ready. Yes, yes sir. As I mentioned earlier, we need to delay the deal for a bit because there are some eyes watching us yes sir. Yes sir. I understood. Ugh. 8 p.m. the next day. Park Kyung Ju received a lot of flack as the goods did not show up on time as they planned. The ones making the complaints were the people who had requested the stealthy deals. However, Seo Ju Hyun taking the statue with the hidden drugs was one thing, but the morons she tasked to get it back had not contacted her either. She needed to know it was taken care of so that she could make more deals in peace. It's been a whole day since then so what the hell are they doing? The office door burst open at that moment. Park Kyung Ju who thought it was her lackeys jumped up and started to speak in anger. Hey! Do you know what time it is? Do you really want to jump into the ocean in this weather? However, she heard an unexpected voice respond back. The ocean is too cold but how about a cell? I'll even add on a Sialiang Tang as a special service. Free gasp. The ones to burst in through the door were not her lackeys but the police. No, her lackeys were with them. They were just in handcuffs with the police. Park Kyung Tae who was caught by Inspector Kim was grumbling and sniffling. After being stabbed by Ju Hian, he was mercilessly beaten by Inspector Kim. Nunim, we're finished. Park Kyung Tae's sister Park Kyung Ju could not shut up after hearing his comment. W, what the hell? Who are you? We received a report of possession and sale of illegal drugs. Park Kyung Ju got angry after hearing that. Drugs? We are art dealers. What are you doing to an innocent citizen? Wow, all criminals always say the same thing before they're caught. Inspector Kim took the Buddha statue and the liquid drugs out of his pocket as he started to laugh. Your tail has been caught. We are currently searching through the reported gallery as well. Gee, gallery? Park Kyung Ju gulped after hearing the word, gallery. They did have a gallery where they kept the artwork. Of course, the artwork with the drugs were all inside storage room safes in the name of security. It's fine. They all have different passcodes so these idiots can't get in. Don't pester the innocent without any proof. Even the police can't just burst into someone's business. A voice could be heard coming from the walkie-talkie in Inspector Kim's pocket at that moment. It was the narcotic squad that came with him. We received assistance to check all 600 pieces of artwork in the gallery storage room. Drugs were found in every art piece. There seems to be a total of 800 milliliters smuggled in. This is probably worth about 800 million won on the market. Park Kyung Ju's face turned pale. This made no sense at all. Who opened the safe for them? Inspector Kim started to laugh as he took out a pair of handcuffs. Thankfully, we had assistance from one of your employees. However, Park Kyung Ju was going crazy for a different reason. Assistance was one thing, but each safe had different passcodes. There were so many that nobody would be able to open them without looking at the list of passcodes. Park Kyung Ju was the only one who had that list of passcodes. So who would have been able to tell them over 600 different safe passcodes? Inspector Kim who had picked up a call looked toward Park Kyung Ju. Ah, the person who helped us begged me to hand the phone to you. He then put his cell phone by Park Kyung Ju's ear. The mischievous voice coming through the phone was very familiar. Old lady. This is why you don't make people work for no pay. Park Kyung Ju's eyes almost rolled over in shock after hearing that voice. She finally realized who had provided the information. 
Park Kyung Joo started to shout into the phone. Seo Joo Hyun, you motherfucking bastard. You. You. Ah, uh, I was going to ask you something, but never mind, you probably don't know. Oh, by the way. You should really change your passcodes once every six months. Park Kyung Joo was going crazy from his cheeky comments. You pay back my benevolence with betrayal. Hey. Seo Joo Hyun. You stole the passcodes, you damn thief. No. I never stole it. I just used the ones I remembered to open it for them. Park Kyung Ju could not believe what she heard. What? Are you crazy? You really expect me to believe you remember over 600 passcodes? She received an unexpected response back. Are you an idiot? Why wouldn't you be able to remember that? What did he just say? Hey. Seo Ju Hyun. Park Kyung Ju started to jump up and down in anger with a flushed face. You bastard, you won't get away with this. You better stay there. I'm going to get there and... Inspector Kim didn't care as he smiled with pity. I'm sorry. You'll have to come with us first. The 100 million won reward will be sent to your account in a few weeks. Don't waste it all, make sure to save it. Don't put it in a regular savings account and tie it up as a certificate of deposit. Promise me. It was now 7 p.m. Ju Hian started to laugh while looking at Inspector Kim's concerned messages. Gun Wu Hyung always worries too much about me. The reward was at the max, probably because they were able to catch the dealers and the supplier. It's a good thing I didn't forget the location of the safes and the passcode patterns. Although it happened 15 years ago, Ju Hian was someone who did not forget most things he had seen at least once. That was how he was able to tell artifacts apart without looking through a list. The passcodes to the safes were pressed by the thugs each time but it was enough to have snuck glances at them. Of course, he was disappointed that he didn't remember any stock information or winning numbers for the lottery, but that could not be helped. Anyway, it looks like I don't need to worry about the initial funds anymore. Now that he thought about it, he should have done this in the past as well. He probably didn't because he was either scared or didn't know much about the world. Oh well, it didn't matter anymore. He found a useful artifact for now, his skills were slowly building, and everything was going according to plan. The only thing left was to find the location of tombs and grab them before Chairman Quan. Although there are probably some artifacts already floating around. That was why Ju Hian was planning on asking Park Kyung Ju if there were other suspicious artworks. It was because Park Kyung Tae had an artifact on him. However, he didn't think that that woman would know about artifacts. It's fine. Let's go home and start searching. He needed to plan for the future as well. It happened as Ju Hian was about to walk toward the villa complex where he lived. His spy skill sent another message that made him stop walking. The aura of a suspicious tomb is coming from nearby. Huh. An unexpected situation was visible in front of him. He could see lights from many residences and company buildings in front of him. They looked very pretty. Everything was fine, except what happened to my place. Ju Hian's jaw dropped in shock. His apartment that should be right here had disappeared. Chapter 6 Something was weird. The village complex that should be here was not visible. All Ju Hian could see was a large and round hill. It looked like an abnormally large tomb at first glance. Of course, it was not a hill that had gobbled up eight five-story villas. That's definitely a tomb. But a tomb appearance at his house. Ju Hian who tried to recall what was going on at this time realized something. He remembered something that had happened around this time. His roommate had called him while he could not go home because he was working under those damn thugs. His roommate had said that their apartment had disappeared. Ju Hian had not put much thought into it before. It was because the tomb disappeared soon enough. If a tomb disappeared, that meant that does that mean someone had cleared the tomb? Ju Hian determined that had to be the case as he started to walk again. He could not let this tomb that appeared be taken by someone else. However, Ju Hian could hear people arguing as he got closer to the villa complex. It's definitely around there. 
Once he got to the problem location, Juhian could see about 100 people fighting with each other. Who are you to ignore me? Huh? Are you some kind of money-making machine? Hey, you bastards! Are you looking down on us security guards? Who are you to fire us? Huh? Kaya? Where do you think you are touching? Let go of me! Hey bastard, I told you not to play your guitar at night. Who stole my backpack? Over a hundred residents, and even the cops and soldiers trying to stop them could not control their emotions and were going wild. There could be no greater chaos than this. Damn it! Hey bastards, I told you not to fight. What? You bastards who just eat on country dime just swore at me. Die, you bastard. People were responding more excessively than usual. They were showing extreme anger for even the slightest touch. This incomprehensible reaction was normal in places with tomb appearances. One of the effects of tomb appearances was to release control on human desire and emotions. These desires that they would normally suppress were exploding out at once. Juhian tried to find his roommate in the midst of all the irrational people. Did he get gobbled up by the tomb? Juhian heard a familiar voice in the chaos as he walked around while calling his roommate. I, fuck. Because of all of you. Because of all you bastards. P, please don't do this. Please put the gun away. The voice was coming from behind him. There was a man being threatened by a soldier. The young man looked ready to get beaten up even though he had a decent physique. Kim Dong Hyun. He didn't need to check to be certain. One of the people in the skirmish was definitely his roommate. Sai, he's never been able to live up to his physique. Ju Hian walked over to them without greeting Dong Hyun as it was not the time for greetings right now. Once the soldier started to point his rifle at his friend. Pow! Ah! Ju Hian's kick sent the soldier and the rifle flying. The upset soldier tried to grab another weapon but Ju Hian chopped his hand down at the soldier like an expert. Dong Hyun was extremely happy to see Ju Hian but seemed nervous about Ju Hian's fighting abilities. Ju, Ju Hian. On the other hand, Ju Hian was talking to the soldier he sent flying. Hey, snap out of it. You're supposed to be protecting the people, so what the hell are you doing, you bastard? You, ugh, I'm sorry. The man returned to his senses while coughing like he was about to die. S, suddenly, I could not hold back my anger and I didn't even realize. It looks like I went crazy for a moment. The reason for it was understandable. This guy just went crazy because of the tomb appearance as well. It got to the point where they called tomb appearances ill omens. But Ju Hian had no plans on treating them that way. If you know what you did wrong then hurry up and resolve this mess and tell me what orders you were given. What did your superiors tell you to do? E, excuse me. The soldier who seemed to be around Ju Hian's age looked flustered. His confused state made him look exactly like a private who just went in. Handling this chaotic situation was one thing, but a civilian wanted to know the orders from his superiors. However, there was a reason Ju Hian asked that question. The fact that the tomb here disappeared in the past meant that someone must have cleared the tomb. That meant that someone had taken the artifact from here in the past. Was it these bastards? He was planning on digging for information to see how much they knew about tombs. Although he didn't know what was inside, Ju Hian would not throw away this opportunity to gain an artifact. Are you guys planning on going in to search inside the tomb? I, I can't tell you. Ju Hian started to smile wickedly in response. I see. Then I guess I need to report you to the authorities. A soldier was planning on using violence against a civilian. The private who started to apologize again contemplated for a while before having no choice but to quietly whisper in Ju Hian's ear after seeing his gaze. He seemed to have determined that it was okay to give this much information. To be honest with you, we plan on blowing up the bomb to search through it soon. Blow it up. Tombs will not be destroyed with such actions. There was no way such an action would have cleared the tomb in the past. The private then said something unexpected. There are foreign experts here right now for that reason. Ju Hian who realized something started to laugh. Wow, foreign expert bastards, huh? 
weird tombs started to appear throughout the world. However, nobody could tell the identity of these tombs or the artifacts inside. Of course, it meant that the general population did not know about it. Certain people around the world started to catch on to the existence of artifacts. The Korean government still doesn't know about the tombs, right? Linda Walker, an American CIA agent, sent a text message. She received a simple response back. Y.S. Linda Walker started to smile after seeing the response. Linda Walker had entered into Korea as a geologist and not a CIA agent. There was a simple reason she came in hiding her identity. It was to go into the tombs. There are artifacts in tombs. That was the case. The people of the world thought tombs were simply weird geological phenomena, but some countries were already aware of what tombs really were. The United States US was one of the countries. It had already been nine months since tombs started to appear randomly in the world. Artifact users had appeared in some countries. Those were the people whom artifacts stealthily selected their masters. However, the countries who learned about artifacts did not announce the information to the public, covering them up in their investigations. Linda Walker was one of the agents sent to different countries under disguise for that reason. Our goal is to investigate tombs and grab the artifacts if possible. It was also top priority that the Korean government did not learn about artifacts. Korea, as well as a large number of other countries simply considered tombs to be disasters, giving her a chance to go in and swipe the artifact. The US needs to take the artifact to research on it. History books and the world could change with a single invention. So what would happen if they revealed the existence of these magical artifacts? The world would fall into extreme chaos. That was why the president wanted the CIA to gather information and send it to the US research team. Of course, she did feel iffy about stealing artifacts from other countries while keeping the information a secret. It feels like I've become a tomb raider. However, there were some people greedily and openly aiming for artifacts as well. Linda, we meet again. The smiling man was Abe Kyoshi from the Japan Self-Defense Forces JSDF. This man who seemed to be in his mid-thirties had hindered Linda many times. He looked like a damn chopstick but he was still someone from the investigation team sent by the Japanese government. The difference with the US would be that Japan was already stealthily creating artifact excavation teams Abe Kyoshi was in charge of that. Looks like the US is extremely greedy. We are a neighboring country but you flew 12 hours to get here. Ho. Why didn't you go somewhere like Alaska? I guess you have a lot of time on your hands. Linda Walker was about to respond before looking around. Abe started to laugh after seeing her reaction. You're so cautious. There's nobody around. We don't want the Koreans to know about artifacts either. Linda quickly chirped back. The US is trying to take artifacts as the global policeman. We are only focused on research and investigation in the name of peace. One ho, I won't believe such nonsense from a CIA agent who works for the benefit of the US. Let's be honest, you just know the value of artifacts and don't want them taken by others. That. What, am I wrong? Then will you give artifacts to another country if they want to research it too? See, I told you. Abe seemed satisfied as he finally started to console her. Let's not point the blade at fellow allied nations. Our enemy is China. Ah, uh, I still don't plan on giving you the artifacts because our prime minister is looking forward to them with anticipation. That's fine. Just don't flap your mouth too much so that the Koreans find out about artifacts. Ha <laughs> ha. There's no way you'll do that. Japan needs to take all of the artifacts from this tiny country. One could wonder how Abe could speak with such confidence, but Linda knew why Japan could be so confident. Japan had an artifact user who received the prophecy ability. The US was going crazy trying to determine whose artifact it was, but what they knew for certain was that Japan was artifact hunting based on information from that seer. But Linda wasn't planning on sitting back and letting Abe do whatever he wants. Korea does not have the abilities to take the artifact. We only need to be cautious of Japan in the east until China finds out. The two of them then quickly started to move. Neither of them knew that there was an unexpected rival in this location. 
Aha, I get it now. I know who took this artifact in the past. Ju Hien had snorted after finding Linda and Abe once the violence started to be suppressed. Ju Hien didn't know who they were, but he knew about their organizations. The sly CIA and the stupid JSDF excavation team. Even Ju Hien knew that there were countries that knew about artifacts and tombs during this time. The US had gained Medusa's artifact user during the Precursor era and Japan had Prince Shotoku's Future Diary, records of Japan's future artifact user. Honestly speaking, they were lucky to have artifacts that sought out their own owners rather than clearing tombs. But the Medusa artifact user is a little kid who can't use it properly and the Future Diaries artifact user Juhian chuckled after thinking about that person for a moment. There's no one stupider than that person. The countries that found out about artifacts first were looking for any and all opportunities to secretly raid the artifacts. They were trying to keep the information to themselves so that they could monopolize the artifacts. But it is all meaningless. This was all just the precursor. The Great Tomb Appearance incident that happens in a few months would inform the entire world about tombs and artifacts, creating an era of artifacts where even the civilians could use artifacts. Honestly speaking, Ju Hien didn't care who originally took the artifact from the tomb. The ones who took it first were the victors and took possession. But I still don't like the thought of those Japanese morons taking it. Not that he liked the US either. Ju Hien then quickly started to move. Chapter 7 Bang! A loud explosion could be heard through the darkness as the chaos died down. That was the sound of people trying to destroy the tomb. Oh! We made a hole. Won't we be able to enter if we blow it up a few more times? The civilians had evacuated long ago and the soldiers were focused solely on destroying the tomb. Things look fine, we will try it a few more times. They were using weaker explosives because they were in the middle of the city but it seemed to be working. We will carefully enter once we make a large hole. Roger. They believed that they would soon be able to enter. However, there were some anxious people among them. Damn it. They were Abe, the excavator from the JSDF and the CIA's Linda Walker. Abe was especially annoyed. Why is the entrance not appearing even as they blow it up? That was the case. You must use the entrance to enter into the tombs and Abe and Linda were looking for that entrance. It's already been 30 minutes. The seer with Prince Shotoku's artifact had said that the entrance would appear if they destroyed the tomb. In that case, the tomb entrance should have appeared by now. It should be about now according to the researcher's findings. Linda was also looking around nervously. She was looking for the entrance because the tomb entrances always appeared nearby whenever they found a tomb in the past. What is going on? However, there was someone sneering at them. You idiots. Try blowing it up for 100 days, see if you can get inside. That person was Ju Hien. Ju Hien knew why they were trying to destroy the tomb. It was basic belief to think that the entrance would appear if they started to destroy it. However, they were completely wrong. Tomb entrances did not reveal themselves because people did their best to destroy it. Why? Tomb entrances are always hidden. There were times the entrances appeared in visible places, but they were generally traps created by hostile artifacts. There were even artifacts that would open the entrance on purpose to swallow everyone who enters into the tomb. There were many foreign soldiers who had died because of such situations already. However, you needed to find the entrance and enter through it in order to acquire the artifact in the safest manner. But there was a problem with this. You definitely need that thing to find the entrance. It was at that moment. Ju Hien what have you been looking for this whole time? The pitiful young man who had almost been beaten up by a soldier, no, Ju Hien's roommate, found Ju Hien's actions to be odd. However, Ju Hien did not respond. There was nobody in this era who would know what he was looking for even if he told them. The world really must have gone crazy. Now weird things like that is popping up too. Ju Hien who detected something after hearing the people mumble quickly started to move. Did that come out? The place he was heading for was the complex's outdoor parking lot that was filled with both crying people and spectators. Just what is that? How unlucky. Egu, the prices of our homes are going to go down. 
Once Zhu Hian made it through the crowd, he could see an ominous graffiti. The parking lot's wall was filled with red demonic-looking text. It looked like ancient Chinese characters or even Egyptian hieroglyphics, but it could seem like graffiti to regular people. You sure someone didn't just do it as a prank? No. It just suddenly appeared. It's that thing that's been in the news these days. Never mind that. What are the soldiers doing not wiping away things like this? The housing prices will fall if there are things like this around the apartment complex. Hey old lady, did you go crazy? What nonsense are you spewing in such a situation? Please step away. It is dangerous. Please step away. The soldiers were there in case people started to riot. People started to get scared as the tech started to blink like a ticking time bomb. Kaya. What the hell? The text. Once the text flashed, the soldiers started to push the civilians away as they started to shout. Damn it, I told you to step back. It might really explode. Ah. It's going to explode. The scared people pushed each other as they started to run. Ju Hien was the only one smiling in this situation. It's not going to blow up, you idiots. The name of this text was Tumblif. One they could be considered tomb text of unknown origin that appeared with tombs. This had been what Ju Hien had been looking for this whole time. This was required to find the tomb's entrance. They are slowly appearing around the tombs as expected. These were things that told you information about the ruins. You would use this to find the entrance to the ruins. Of course, it was not something anybody could do. Ju Hien was probably the only one in the past and especially now who could decipher Tumblif. I have a pretty good idea where the entrance is located. It was the moment Ju Hien read the text. You received the talented decoder title and a skill has been revealed. Tomb Raider Basic Skill Linguistics F rank has been awakened. Linguistics Awakened Level F rank increases ability to learn, speak and understand all languages. Increases fluency in all languages. Can hear the voices of artifacts and discussion becomes possible. Control over Tumblef Ruin Text Increases. Tomb Raider Basic Skills 24, Spy F, Rank Linguistics F, Rank O. A new message appeared and a skill was revealed. Ju Hien was shocked after confirming the details. He had never received a title and learned a skill as a result. So, this is how I earn skills. If the spy skill was an active skill, linguistics should be a passive skill. Ju Hien smiled after confirming the details and moved away from the crowd. He had no reason to stay there now that he confirmed the details. Dong Hyun. You stay here. What? His roommate turned his head toward him in shock but Ju Hien was already gone. The place Ju Hien moved to after leaving the area was a nearby river without many people. There was a tall bridge that could cover the sky located in Durinchen that cut through Seoul's Guanic Gu. He could hear noises of cars every so often but it was mainly quiet around here. This was less than five minutes away than where he had been. Is it around here? The tumblif that Ju Hien read in the parking lot had been pointing to this river. There were many tumglyphs in the area, as if to confirm that this was an area of a tomb appearance. However, Ju Hien was looking for some specific words. I found it. He found a red U that resembled a union symbol. Ju Hien took out the Egyptian knife artifact after confirming it. This was necessary for what he was about to do. He was about to start the done sealing of the tomb. This process was necessary to open up a tomb that had been tightly sealed. That was why Ju Hien activated the knife artifact. And then. Slash. He slashed the knife toward the union symbol. A gust of wind appeared and the symbol was broken. Boom. There was an explosion and the ground started to shake. Ju Hien's body started to shake from the shock that felt like magma was exploding from the ground. Ah. He could hear screams from nearby at this sudden earthquake. It was at that moment. An urgent message appeared in front of Ju Hien who quickly found his balance. A strong force is exploding through the ground. However, the warning lasted only a short moment. It's coming. A bright light flashed as the ground cracked open. Of course, there was nothing to be shocked about. 
He had experienced this many times in the past. The opening of the tomb. During the era of artifacts, it didn't matter if it was day or night. This phenomenon happened all the time once people learned how to unseal a tomb. The red light shooting up to the sky announced the opening of the tomb. It was as if it was announcing that the tomb entrance was located here. Ju Hian didn't care as he jumped into the light. It would be too late by the time someone else saw this and came over. People screamed at the sudden explosion. They were all looking at the same spot. The red light shooting up from the river about 100 meters away seemed to reach the stratosphere. Now what? What is that light? The civilians grumbled wondering if someone was doing some type of laser show, but there were two people who recognized that light. They were naturally Abe and Linda. Is that perhaps? The entrance? They were certain. Although they weren't certain about this phenomenon, they were certain that it was related to the tomb. There was a high chance that the entrance was opened. Lo and behold, Linda and Abe started to receive messages from their subordinates. It looks like the entrance has been opened. Shall we go take a look? Both Linda and Abe started to run as soon as they saw the messages. Of course, they didn't forget to give orders to their subordinates. Tell the Bakachan to hold their position because there might be a strong aftershock. Two his true nature seemed to have come out because he was in a hurry. Linda sighed after hearing Abe shout into his cell phone. What? Dangers of an aftershock? You're doing a great job imitating a geologist. You should control your lies. However, Linda did not say anything about it. It was also disadvantageous for the US to have the Korean troops follow them now that the tomb entrance had appeared. The artifact will be ours. It happened as they both arrived at the location of the light with greedy hearts. There was a large sinkhole there, with an immense light energy shooting up into the sky. This sinkhole, that must be it. That's the entrance. Although they had not seen it many times, it matched what they had seen in documents. Linda threw a rock into the dark hole. Tap, tap. Splash. The rock eventually fell into water. Is the bottom water? Linda confirmed that and threw a rope down. However, Abe just jumped in without any fear. Hey! Linda shouted in shock but she heard a loud splash along with a shit. Cough, cough. Damn it. Cough. This water's rotten. Is this some shit water or something? The condition inside the tomb did not seem to be great. It was fine that Abe jumped in knowing there was water at the bottom, but he was actually making a terrible mistake. Rotten water was one thing, but Abe's annoyed voice echoed through the underground tunnel. Maybe that was the reason. Ju Hian who was already deep inside the cave could hear Abe's voice. The morons must have arrived. He knew they would come at some point. Of course, Ju Hian had no plans on doing a stupid race with them to get to the artifact first. That was why Ju Hian laughed as he touched the wall. Something happened after he made that suspicious motion on the wall. Chapter, 8 Boom! The underground passage started to shake after Ju Hian touched something in the darkness. The area around him started to shake at first before the shaking started to move down the corridor. Linda and Abe who just got in through the entrance could not help but be shocked. W, what is that noise? Linda seemed to have detected danger as she quickly turned on a flashlight. She could see a cave that looked like a large serpent had slithered through. There were many different paths as well. She was certain that these underground passages were created because of the tomb appearance. There were no stalactites as this was not a real cave Abe who was tense as he looked around started to laugh. Damn, the sound of water in the distance makes me think of a water park. However, Abe and Linda both started to frown at that point. Hold on. The sound of water. Kogugu. It was not just the sound of water. The sound that was quiet at first was sounding more like a roaring waterfall now. W, what the hell is this? Linda and Abe could not help but scream once the noise reached in front of them. A large tsunami-like wave was charging toward them. FCK. What is that? They started to run as fast as they could with pale expressions but there was no way humans could outrun nature. 
Their screams as they got swept up in the wave echoed through the cave aisle. Juhian started to laugh once the sound carried through the cave to where he was walking. He seemed to know what happened to them just by listening to the sound. Retards, who told you to follow behind me? Juhian chuckled as he continued to walk to the center of the tomb. He had not done much. All he did was activate one of the traps in the ruins. You may ask how he knows about traps that are in a tomb he's never entered before, but that was no issue for Juhian. He memorized pretty much all of the different types of traps inside the tombs, but even if he hadn't he would be able to tell as soon as he entered into one of these ruins. Why? Because there are tomb glyphs inside the tombs as well. The text revealed itself as Juhian pointed his lighter toward the wall. Juhian started to laugh as they looked like something you would find in an ancient ruin or inside the tomb within a pyramid. The tumblef reading comprehension speed has increased due to your linguistic skill. That was the reason. These texts gave brief descriptions about the tomb. It even provided useless information such as if the artifact in the tomb preferred men or women. Based on the text, it looks like it is that artifact I know about. Juhian continued to walk. The tomb did not look completely finished as it had not been long since it appeared, but it felt as if the smell of mold was getting worse as he got closer to the tomb's central region, the core of the tomb where the artifact was located. Tombs smell like shit no matter whose tomb it is. It happened as Juhian walked down a slope. Ah! He arrived at an open area with a transparent pond. It resembled a basin at the bottom of a waterfall, too small to be a lake and quite large for a pond. It was bright even though Juhian was in a dark cave because of the shining pond. Juhian smiled as he looked at the pond. I found it. He was certain. That artifact was here. Juhian held up his Egyptian knife artifact. He then did something that would make other people scream in shock. Splash! He threw that precious artifact into the pond. He had no hesitation as if he was throwing some food to some goldfish. People like Abe or Linda who knew about artifacts would probably faint in shock. However, something amazing started to happen. The ground started to shake again before a white monster jumped out from the pond. It looked large enough to swallow a person whole. Another poor soul seems to have dropped their item into the pond. What came out of the pond was a large white snake the size of a building. The completely white snake that showed up like a mountain spirit opened its mouth. Inside the scary-looking mouth were two artifacts that looked the same as the knife Juhian threw into the pond. The only difference was that one was gold while the other was silver. The snake looked at Juhian as if it was inspecting him before it started to smile. Tell me. Is the gold knife yours or is the silver knife yours? Juhian let out a loathing sigh as if he had been waiting for those words. It's here. This arrogant artifact bastard. Which of the two is mine? Juhian was snorting internally at the snake's question. It's asking such an obvious question. This tale was something any adult who knew traditional fairy tales had to know. The gold axe and the silver axe he was certain. The artifacts in this tomb were the gold axe and the silver axe. This current situation was a sort of test by that damn artifact bastard. You needed to successfully pass some sort of test like this to earn the artifacts inside the tombs. This was the only way for an artifact to accept you as its master. Juhian started to calculate the value of this artifact as he knew that was the case. There were many times he almost died a dog's death for an artifact that didn't benefit him much at all. Well, at least the gold axe and silver axe aren't total trash. If he remembered correctly, the gold axe and silver axe were B-grade rare grade. He should first take something at that level. The snake urged Juhian at that moment. So, which one is yours? Juhian's gaze moved to the items the gold axe and the silver axe, no, gold knife and the silver knife. They definitely looked valuable. However, it wasn't like Juhian didn't know the answer he needed to give. Neither of them are mine. The snake's eyes curled up like a crescent moon before taking out a familiar knife this time. Then, is this one yours? It was an iron knife. It was obviously his and anybody who knew about the tale of the gold axe and the silver axe would answer like this. You're right. That one is mine. 
then you would receive both the gold axe and silver axe for being honest. That was how you cleared this tomb. That was probably how those bastards from the US or Japan took this artifact in the past. The gold axe silver axe was based on a quite famous story called Hermes and the Honest Woodcutter from Aesop's Fables, with similar stories passed down in many countries. However, those morons would have just taken it without knowing anything. That was why Juhian asked the smiling snake a question. Can I confirm if it really is my knife? Of course. Juhian's gaze turned cold as soon as he received the knife. And then it happened in an instant. Puk. Quack. The snake started to scream as it coughed up blood. Juhian had stabbed the Egyptian priest's knife into the snake's body without even blinking his eyes. The knife that cut through the slippery scales cut through the snake's flesh as if he was slicing sashimi and cut through the organs. Thud. Juhian didn't care even as blood splattered and he felt some bones at the tip of his knife. Boom. Splash. In the end, the snake's bulky body slammed down on the ground. The bloodied snake was coughing up blood with eyes full of disgust. Just why? Why? Both the gold axe and the silver axe would have been yours if you just answered honestly. The mountain spirit sounded as if he was dying but Juhian who knew a lot about artifacts started to laugh with ridicule. Shut up. My philosophy is to not trust artifacts. What? Who knows if there is a curse on that artifact? The snake started to shake as if it felt guilty. The gold and silver artifacts could be seen in the snake's shaking eyes. Juhian sneered at the response as if he had expected this. Of course that's the case. That was the case. The gold axe and silver axe took over 10 zero, zero lives in the US in the past. Regular people turned into Jason and killed others with joy. That was all a terrible joke from the gold axe and the silver axe. They had sent cursed fake artifacts as presents to do such terrible things. It was the same with this bastard here. Who knows if I'll end up a crazed murderer if I take these presents from you. The snake's eyes opened wide as if Juhian's words stabbed him in the heart. Ugh. How does a mere human know about? How? The smiling Juhian held the Egyptian priest's knife as he walked toward the snake. Ah. He stabbed the snake's body once again. The snake who already had some of his flesh removed and now had another hole in his body started to shiver. Tools are made for humans to use. So, how would it make sense if a human could not read the tool's thoughts? Juhian who had experienced the future knew about the despicable true nature of these artifact bastards. People first thought artifacts were angels bringing wealth and luck, however, they eventually found that that was not the case. You can't open your hearts to these damn tools. Artifacts did give many abilities and wealth to people, however, their true nature was that of parasites. If the three greatest human desires were for food, sex, and sleep, these bastards' three greatest desires were to look down on humans, ridicule humans, and kill humans. It was a sort of pay the price for our abilities and the wealth we gave you. These tiny devils seduced humans with amazing abilities before crippling and trying to kill their so-called masters. That is why artifacts need to be taught a lesson. Humans started to suppress these arrogant bastards with a special ability that only humans possessed. They used something called, dominance. Hey artifact, be good and submit. Juhian twisted the knife in the snake's body as he said that. Ack. The white snake spurted blood as he flailed. He seemed to be in more pain because of Juhian's dominance than the pain from the knife. Boom boom. You human bastard. Dominance was an ability used to suppress artifacts, otherwise known as charisma. It was something every person had, but if their dominance was low, forget touching an artifact, they would only be a low-grade user who would be controlled by the artifacts. Well, the public announcement about dominance won't come for a few years. The snake that was in pain from the dominance flailed wildly as it shouted. You think you can earn me like this? Normally, you would need to pass the artifacts test to be accepted by them. You would become close to artifacts like that and have them approve of you. I can't become ill again trying to be accepted by these bastards. 
Artifacts stealthily released some poisonous energy into their masters to make them ill as they got closer to them. It was similar to slowly poisoning someone's food. Then they would try to control their masters once the person got weaker. By the time people had learned about the true nature of these artifacts, over two-thirds of the world was suffering from an incurable illness with a 90% fatality rate, with Zhu Hian choosing to serve Chairman Quan to get some healing artifacts for that same reason. That was why he was going to do it differently from the beginning. I have no desire to complete your test and laugh along and be friendly with you bastards. What did you say? The snake's eyes opened wide by Zhu Hian started to sneer. He just needed to loot the tomb's artifact using force. Useless things that can't do anything without humans should just shut up and be controlled. You. Don't submit if you don't want to. I have no problems destroying artifacts that won't listen to me. Those words made the snake extremely anxious. This artifact could not understand Zhu Hian at all. Based on his short observation of Zhu Hian, this human was someone who was extremely greedy for artifacts. He seemed to be greedier for artifacts than most humans. But such a human was talking about destroying artifacts. Was he crazy? You crazy bastard. However, Zhu Hian glared with a cold and domineering gaze. Shut up, you tool. It was at that moment. Ugh. It seemed to have submitted to the pressure or maybe it really thought Zhu Hian was a crazy bastard who would destroy it, but the snake and the pawn started to glow. Chapter, 9 Bang! A bright light flashed inside the cave the artifact had submitted after being unable to handle Zhu Hian's pressure. The snake and the pawn each started to change shapes and turned into familiar silhouettes. They were the real gold axe and silver axe. They came out. Zhu Hian who was filled with evil intentions grabbed onto the axe silhouettes as if he had been waiting for this. They then started to turn into shapes that were perfect for Zhu Hian. A message popped up at that moment. You have received the title of the someone who has experienced a tomb and a skill has been revealed. Tomb Raider Basic Skill Tomb Exploration F rank has been awakened. It was a familiar message. However, there was an unexpected message as well this time. You have received the title of, Cruel Artifact Intimidator and your dominance has increased while your affinity has decreased. Artifact Dominance, a Great Conqueror Artifact Affinity, D. Coercive Juhian scoffed as he read that message. It was weird to see dominance and affinity popping up as systems, but he didn't expect to receive such a title. It's good that my dominance has gone up but for my affinity to go down however, he was not concerned. His affinity had fallen, but Juhian actually thought this was better. Artifacts look down on you if you become close to them. That was why Juhian's experience told him dominance was more important than affinity. It should be the same for this bastard. Zhu Hian inspected the gold axe and silver axe in his hands. The axe was not in the shape of an ancient axe you would find in old stories. The gold axe looked more like a modern ice axe. The silver axe looked more like a shovel, but the blade was so sharp that it was closer to an axe. In essence, they looked like a pickaxe and a shovel. They were the most fitting forms for a tomb raider. That was why Zhu Hian started to laugh. I'll need to test them out to see how useful they are. It happened as Zhu Hian was preparing to leave damn it. Where is the artifact? Zhu Hian quickly hid after hearing a voice coming from the cave Abe and Linda walked in looking like wet rats. I found it. It's the pond. Abe ran toward the pond that looked like a basin at the bottom of a waterfall with a bright expression. He seemed to know the details of this tomb. That was obvious by how he threw a jar-shaped artifact into the pond without any hesitation. Splash! However, the gold axe and silver axe were already looted. There was nothing that happened. Maybe that was the reason, but Abe's face that was full of expectations turned shitty as he got angry. Why is nothing happening? The seer clearly told me to throw an artifact into the pond. However, there was nobody who would show him any sympathy. Even Linda who followed behind him looked confused. However, her ears perked up after hearing the word, seer. Seer. The Japanese artifact user said that. TSK. Just what kind of artifact is the Japanese seer using? You think I would tell you that? There's no reason not to tell me. 
Linda tried to gather any information she could get but Abe who seemed to have a loose lips didn't slip up. On the other hand, Ju Hian who could easily hear their argument clicked his tongue. He was hiding nearby. Looks like Japan's future diary user had a prophecy about this tomb. That should be how Abe knew the way to clear this tomb. The person using that artifact was a regular student, however, Prince Shotoku's future diary was an S-grade legendary hero-grade artifact. The higher-grade artifacts are all nuisances. Abe, who had been pestered by Linda for a while, started to get angry. Damn it! Stop asking about our seer. That's not important right now. This, and the fact that the tomb entrance suddenly opened means that someone could have beaten us to it. Linda used her flashlight to search the area. There are definitely signs that someone was here. Exactly. I knew there was someone who beat us here. Abe, who had only been looking at the ground started to look around the area as well. Juhian started to think. He needed to get past them to leave the cave of course, it wasn't important to Juhian whether he ran into them or not. The only thing would be that things might get a little more annoying with them remembering his face. Should I just get rid of both of them? Juhian had a cold gaze as he lifted the Egyptian priest's knife. Anybody he met in a tomb were enemies that were also aiming for the artifact. Betraying people inside tombs happened often, as well as killing people inside tombs. Abe was walking toward Juhian's hiding spot without knowing that Juhian had his knife in his hand. Damn it, see if there is anyone nearby. One step, two step. I need to at least drag the bastard who beat us to Japan with me. Juhian was showing murderous intent waiting for Abe to get closer. But as he pointed the knife and was about to activate it knife possessed by an Egyptian embalmer C-grade general grade, consumable artifact remaining uses 54100 some motion graphic text appeared above the knife. Juhian started to frown after seeing the message. It was because of the limited uses of the knife. He then looked at Abe and Linda before changing his plans. Yes. I can't waste two uses for something like this. Furthermore, causing such an incident in a peaceful era might get him wrapped up in something much worse than them seeing his face. He didn't even have enough time to go enter tombs, so he did not want to do anything that might drag him down. So, he picked up a rock. He then threw it toward the opposite direction. The rock landed inside a stone path and created noises inside the quiet cave tap, tap. Abe and Linda jerked their heads in shock. What is that noise? Over there. Juhian channeled his dominance into the axes in his hand once they turned. These axes were the ones to create this tomb, so there was something he could do with them. One of them was the following. Tomb close. Once Juhian gave the order, the axes flashed and the area started to shake as if there was an earthquake. Kogugo. W, what the? Abe and Linda started to scream as the tomb started to crumble along with the shaking ground. We need to hurry up and get out. But where is the exit? Let's at least run back the way we came. Juhian was running toward the exit alone while the two of them were shouting in fear. Maybe it was because it was a newly formed tomb, but the path to the exit did not have any traps and was not far. Over there. Boom. Juhian opened the lid to the place he saw glimpses of light. The exit to this tomb seemed to be connected to a manhole nearby. He didn't see many people around here in the nearby neighborhood shopping district. He heard the tomb crumbling once he made it completely out of the manhole. Boom. The suspicious tomb that had taken over the villa complex caused a dust storm as it disappeared into the ground. It looked as if it was being absorbed by the ground. The villas that had been buried by the tomb appearance started to reappear. Some of them were damaged but most of the buildings were fine because it was a low-grade tomb. The more dangerous tombs could reach the level of natural disasters. Juhian watched the villas reappear before checking the status of the axes he brought out of the tomb. They would need to be restored to use their full abilities because he just brought it out of the tomb, but they were still usable. He would need to check what they could do but his instincts were telling him it had to do with bringing wealth to him. Well, I guess you could call this a success. Juhian started to laugh. However, there was someone who was about to go crazy, unlike the laughing Juhian. What did you say? There was a prophecy about it. 
it said there was a Korean person who would beat us to the artifact. Abe who barely managed to escape the tomb was about to explode while taking a call. I followed the prophecy into the tomb but what? Hey! How can you tell me that now? How can you hold back the most important piece of information? The old man on the other side of the call responded as if it wasn't his fault. You know what kind of person the future diary artifact user is. The person couldn't read the kanji again. One exactly. Ow. Abe would have probably hung up on this expensive international call if he wasn't talking to a senior administrator. However, nothing would change even if he blamed the person. The problem was that bitch who uses Prince Shotoku's future diary. It's because it fell into the hands of such an airhead bitch. Prince Shotoku's future diary was the type of artifact that came out of the tomb on its own to find a master. However, the future diary picked a terrible master for some reason. It had chosen a female high school student who was a thug and forget ancient text, could not read kanji properly. She would sweat a lot when the kanji would get even slightly difficult and could not decipher the message especially because it was an ancient text. The problem was that the text inside the future diary was something only the master could read, driving the others around her crazy. We stuck a bunch of scholars next to her. We ordered her to copy it down and hand it to them if she couldn't read it. Well apparently the contents quickly change because the future is ever changing. Just tell her to shut up and write it all down. She wrote down everything she could but she missed the important part because she doesn't know which are the important prophecies damn it. Honestly speaking, the information about this tomb was something she barely found out as well. It was no wonder they couldn't say that Japan's seer was omnipotent. Anyway, there should be some good news because she is reading your future. Just keep up the good work like you have been doing. Keep the artifacts you took from the Korean safe until our research team comes over. Abe had no choice but to cool his boiling temper and hang up. He couldn't get on an airplane with the artifacts he got in Korea. Those stupid Koreans won't know if I stole the artifacts anyway. However, his superiors were telling him to be as cautious as possible. He mentioned about how the Koreans would annoy them by asking for an apology or not if he happened to get caught. Humph. These bastards say that we plundered the cultural items we won fairly in auction so I wouldn't be surprised. Abe was thinking that they threw a fit about some useless relics Japan took during the Japanese colonial era, so they would throw quite the fit for these artifacts that give people special abilities. Abe's superiors often had weird logic like this. Of course, Abe agreed with them as well. Anyway, the information he received was that the person who took the gold axe and the silver axe was a Korean person. In addition, that Korean knew a lot about tombs for some reason. She said he's a bastard who can gobble up our Japan. The future diary used poetic words to say the following. There is a great danger that can gobble up Japan, a great but rough star to rise in a neighboring nation. Abe repeated that to himself before starting to scoff. A star my ass. He's just a Josian bastard. Too well it was fine. If it is a bastard who knows about tombs, he would show up at the next one as well. I'll fuck him up and hand him over to Japan then. Abe started to laugh. Too bad he had no idea about the man who was his opponent. Chapter, 10 Hey Juhian, what are you doing? Research. Juhian casually responded back but his roommate who was cleaning up the mess inside the house could not hide his shock. It could not be helped. It was English earlier, then Arabic F, French this time. Dong Hyun could not close his dropped jaw at Ju Hian's weird actions. Ju Hian who was doing research on his laptop was reading news articles in five different languages. At first, Dong Hyun scoffed, thinking, why is he reading like he understand it? He sat down next to Ju Hian with plans to mock him. However, he gave up after getting a headache after looking at the article in English. In addition to the news, Ju Hian was reading articles from foreign technical magazines and dissertations, all things that would make people groan. The way he was scrolling would make people think he was reading some gossip news in Korean. That was why his roommate who liked to be nosy was so shocked he said the following. Hey, punk. Can you even read that? Ju Hian casually started to read out loud after hearing his friend's question. Don Lafayette ka elopose o FBI in the incident against the FBI. 
Hearing Zhu Hian fluently speaking foreign languages made Dong Hyun stand there with a blank expression. Wait, I knew he was smart but when did he learn five languages? However, Zhu Hian didn't care whether his friend was shocked or not as he calmly bookmarked different articles. Honestly speaking, languages were no issue to Zhu Hian. He needed to know languages that no longer existed in the world so these existing languages were nothing. Anyway, Dong Hyun. I will be out of the house a lot for a while so don't get worried if I don't respond. Ho, oh, did you seduce a rich nunim with that handsome face of yours? Won ha. Huh? Is she pretty? Ju Hian just laughed instead of responding. It would be nice if those artifact bastards were voluptuous nunims with long legs. Anyway, no big issues should happen while he collected artifacts for the time being. However. Chairman Quan is the issue. Forget the fact that Chairman Quan was his bitter enemy, he would be the greatest obstacle in Ju Hian's rise to the top. That bastard had one of the strongest factions among the monopolizers in the past. It would be easy to get in Chairman Quan's way if he knew the identity of Chairman Quan's artifacts, unfortunately, Ju Hian only had ideas about their abilities. All monopolizers hid the identities of their artifacts. The monopolizers that gathered artifacts and artifact users under them all had kept their own artifacts a secret. It was obvious as to why they would do that. The majority of the monopolizers were divine grade SS grade artifact users. Many divine grade artifacts were based on famous mythologies, which meant that their abilities and their weaknesses were well known. I'm certain this was about the time Chairman Quan got his artifact, he could have already gotten it or he could be right about to get it. It would be great if he could figure out Chairman Quan's current situation, but he had no way of approaching him at this time. What similarities would an intern at a small business have with the boss of a global corporation? However, Ju Hian's eyes opened wide as if he suddenly realized something. Wait, hold on. There was something. There was a way for him to figure out Chairman Quan's situation. You son of a bitch. I won't suffer in your hands this time. Ju Hian immediately called someone after having that thought. Ha, damn it, I'm about to go crazy. Oh Sun Wu let out a deep sigh. He was one of the subordinates who had worked for Park Kyung Ju and Park Kyung Tae, the art broker siblings. He was one of the lackeys who was beaten up by Ju Hian when they went to find him to take care of the Buddha statue. They had lost their jobs after Park Kyung Ju and Park Kyung Tae were arrested for smuggling and dealing drugs. Hyung, how are your injuries? Should we report that bastard? That's right. We need to get revenge for Nunim and the big Hyung Nim who went to jail. Oh Sung Woo clicked his tongue after hearing his Dong Seng's comments. People might look down on him if he didn't do anything about this situation. See oh Ju Hian that bastard, what the hell was up with him? Should we hire some people to teach him a lesson? That's more like it. Now you sound like our Hyung Nim. It happened as they chuckled and started to talk about how to trample over Ju Hian. BR. Someone was calling. Damn it, who is calling us when we are busy chatting gasp. Oh Sung Wu almost chucked his phone against the wall after seeing the number that popped up. Underling Seo Ju Hian Ah. Oh Sung Wu subconsciously plopped down on the ground. He was thinking about getting revenge on Ju Hian but unfortunately, the fear seemed to be cemented in his body. Just seeing the CEO in Ju Hian's name was giving him trauma after being beaten up like that. Hi, Hyung. What's wrong? Who is calling you? His Dong Seng started to wonder while seeing the cold sweat on Oh Sung Wu's forehead before looking at the screen and starting to curse. F, fuck. Why is this bastard calling you? Did he call the wrong number? They were talking like they wanted to pick up some bats and go fight him but their bodies was responding differently than their mouths. It was one thing if they were the ones going after him, but seeing him call them first made them scared. Hey, are you going to pick up? Damn it, I don't know. Should we tell this bastard to come here to fuck him up? Ah, at least pick up first. Oh Sung Wu hesitated before connecting the call at his Dong Seng's insistence. He didn't forget to put it on speaker phone so that all of them could hear. H, hello. However, the voice on the other side of the call was extremely vicious. What the hell were you doing that it took you so long to pick up? 
Oh Sung Woo's group started to shiver as it sounded like he would have killed them if they took even one second longer to pick up. What does he mean by so long? It has been less than 30 seconds. Oh Sung Woo started to shout as if to hide the fact that he was scared. You bastard who doesn't know anything about grace. You dare to send Hyung Nim and Nun Im to prison. You just wait and see if we let you Lee. Ah, enough. You guys are still in business, right? Oh Sung Woo's side started to grind their teeth at Ju Hian who cut him off as if his business was more important. This bastard. What did he say? Still in business. Is that something this bastard should be saying? Hey. You put Hyung Nim and Nun Im behind bars and dare to ask if we are still in business. They confiscated all of our artwork because of you. You bastard. They huffed and puffed but Ju Hian just said what he needed to say without caring. I don't give a shit about that. You didn't file for closure because your representative was arrested, right? What? Why are you suddenly asking about that? I will give you five seconds. Hurry up and tell me. Damn it. We haven't closed yet so what the fuck do you want? It sounded as if they could hear Ju Hian laughing. Ju Hian was indeed laughing. Good, how wonderful. You still have the qualifications to enter the world auction. Oh Sung Woo was shocked after hearing something completely unexpected. What? The world auction? Are you talking about, Midas? It was true that they had participated in the world's greatest Las Vegas underground auction nicknamed Midas as art brokers. There were many goods, national treasures and cultural assets stolen from many nations in the auction, and even some royalties and leaders of nations participated in the auction. It was an exclusive auction you needed to pay over 100 million won just to get a ticket. As for them, they were able to get connected with the auction thanks to Park Kyung Ju's abilities. But why does he suddenly want to know this? Ju Hian started to speak as they were getting more confused. I will keep this short. Go to the auction this month and acquire some specific items and find a person who goes by JK. Jack K. Man. Also figure out what that person is buying. Jack K. Man. Who is TH? Ju Hian cut him off before he could fully ask the question. If you don't see him then make sure to tell me that. However, if he was there and you lie to me, I will kill you. So tell me who Jack K. Man is. If you understood what you need to do, come to the Moonbucks Cafe in front of Yangdumpo Station. I will give you more information on the list of items you need to find. Damn it. Hey. Who the hell is Jack K. Man? No need for you to know. Hey. Of course, it is business from here on so I will pay you according to the quality of your information. Oh Sung Woo started to grind his teeth as if he could not hold it in any longer. You bastard, the more I hear you talk. Oh Sung Woo was not going to let a child treat him, a 30 years old man, like this. It already felt unfair that they had to be used by a bastard who beat them up without them being able to land a single punch. You bastard. You think we would work for you for money? That's right. Hyung. We don't need to listen to him. Hey. Seo Ju Hian, you wait right there. We are going to come kill you. Ju Hian's ridiculing laugh could be heard from the other side. Really? You don't want money? I was trying to create a mutually beneficial situation but it's fine if you don't want to do it. Ju Hian was not planning on letting these bastards be. Why would he let useful bastards sit around doing nothing? Ju Hian continued to speak in an annoyed voice. If you don't want business then I will use a different method. A.D., different method? It looks like you've already forgotten about what happened a few days ago. The color disappeared from Oh Sung Woo's group after hearing that one sentence. They would never forget how Ju Hian had beaten them up until their bones were broken and swung a knife at them. In the end, they responded this way in shock. Egu. It's not that we don't want business. Ah uh, shouldn't you at least give us something to put up for auction or some money? You should figure that out on your own. Click. The call ended abruptly. Oh Sung Woo stared at his phone screen while clicking his tongue. Why did he have this feeling that he was caught up in something he couldn't escape from? Ju Hian snorted after ending the call. 
He was at the nearby station to take care of some things. Who is Jack K. Man? Who else would it be? J.K. was one of Chairman Kwan's fake identities. There was no way Ju Hian would not remember that this was the name Chairman Kwan used since he was young whenever there was something he couldn't use his real name. He was certain that this was around when Chairman Kwan earned his artifacts. The chances of him getting these artifacts in tombs was the highest, however, aside from that, there were things like auction houses and museums he could personally check on tombs but he planned on leaving the other routes to these slackers. He needed to figure out how much power Chairman Kwan had right now. Good. This takes care of the Chairman Kwan business for now. He just needed to wait for news now. Ju Hian checked the portal news on his cell phone before going into a convenience store inside Yangdumpo Station. It was currently 8 p.m. It was fine that he came to Yangdumpo Station after seeing the emergency news, but he was hungry because he didn't get to finish his dinner. Approximately 7 p.m. today, 40 years old Mr. Joe M.O. failed in his attempt to commit suicide by burning himself in the Yangdumpo Station Times Square Live News was coming out of the station's news channel. The reason Ju Hian came to this place was because of that news. There are precursors of tomb appearances before any tomb is created. He had come here knowing that these type of unusual incidents usually served as precursors to tomb appearances. It was great that it was a nearby station as well. Well, it could be completely unrelated to tombs as well. Either that or this tomb was cleared extremely quickly that it was not in Ju Hian's memories. Which would it be? It happened as Ju Hian was about to take a bottle of water out of the store's fridge. Hey! Baka-chan! Did you pay rent for that spot? How long are you going to take to pick a drink? He heard someone behind him talking shit in Japanese. However, Ju Hian started to smirk as he turned around after hearing the familiar voice. The person standing behind him with an angry expression was Abe Kyoshi of the JSDF. It was the same idiot he met in the tomb earlier. What did you say, you damn nippo bastard? One he was here while thankfully giving off the scent of artifacts. Chapter, 11 Abe was shocked after hearing Ju Hian's comments. He was not very happy to be here in the first place because of a prophecy. The prophecies told to them by that stupid thug was annoying, he had no idea who the Korean person that took the gold axe silver axe was, and now there was an annoying Korean in front of him. Ju Hian just ended up the target as a result of all of those things. He said what was on his mind, thinking that there was no way a Korean person would understand Japanese. But what did this person say? N. Nippo. Furthermore, Ju Hian's Japanese was fluent. Listening to his enunciation would make people mistake him as a native. However, there were no Japanese people who would use such derogatory term toward their own. That was why Abe who had been confused for a moment said the following. Hold on. You're Korean, right? Ju Hian just scoffed at that question. Am I Korean? Can't you tell? Hey moron, are your eyes just for show? W, what? Ju Hian was speaking in Korean this time. Ju Hian grabbed a can of beer and passed it back and forth between his hands before heading to the register. You must be as blind as a bat. Ho. Abe let out a scoff. He was not used to the Korean words Ju Hian was using, but he could not believe it. It made sense. Although he could not understand completely, he could tell the following. This bastard is mocking me right now. Hey! Stop right there. Abe followed Ju Hian but Ju Hian pretended not to hear him. Honestly speaking, Ju Hian didn't have any negative feelings toward the Japanese people nor did he hate them. In fact, he had worked with a Japanese person before, and it was always just a small minority that caused the issues. It was always the stupid bastards like Abe here. That was why he would not care about a bastard like this who used derogatory terms at the level of chink or nippo toward Koreans if he was not part of the Japanese excavation team. However, the fact that this bastard is here means that a tomb will appear here. He probably came here after hearing a prophecy. This bastard wasn't the type to tour around for no reason. Ju Hian smiled after having that thought. This bastard helped him become certain about things he had not for sure. That wasn't the only thing. This stupid idiot. 
he's carrying artifacts around so openly. Ju Hien was laughing on the inside. Abe seemed to have hidden them as best as he could, but Ju Hien could feel the artifacts on him. It was because of the aura, energy that artifacts released. That was why Ju Hien could not help but find it to be funny. This idiot isn't even hiding the artifacts' auras. People with artifacts became targets. This was the reason all veterans knew they must dominate their artifacts and make them hide their aura. However, Abe had only physically hidden the items and left their aura as is. A good comparison to this would be walking around holding 10 million won in cash in front of a pickpocket. The only disappointing thing was that Ju Hien could not confirm what artifacts Abe had in his possession. I would be able to tell if I had an X-ray vision artifact. Ju Hien was shaking the can of beer he purchased as he left the convenience store. Abe who chased after Ju Hien did not know anything as he grabbed Ju Hien's shoulder. Hey! I told you to wait. Don't pretend like you didn't ugh. Abe ended up screaming because of the carbonated bubbles that landed in his eyes. Damn it! What the hell is this? What else would it be? It was the bubbles from the beer that Ju Hien vigorously shook. Abe took off his leather jacket to wipe the bubbles away. Damn it, you bastard, you really. Pay up so I can get it cleaned. However, Ju Hien just roughly patted Abe's jacket as he responded. It's not even real leather. You just have to wipe it off. What? Hey! Ju Hien was shaking an ID card as Abe was about to shout in anger. Anyway, you dropped this. The item in Ju Hien's hand was his JSDF identification card. Abe's expression changed while looking at that. Wait, how did something that was attached to my pocket fall off? Abe touched his empty pocket in reflex. Ju Hien was enjoying watching Abe looking for confused. There are at least two artifacts in his pocket. He didn't steal the artifacts because Abe would suspect him, but he was able to confirm the types of artifacts. There was one that was an accessory and one larger artifact. Abe, who didn't know that information about his artifacts were discovered swiped the ID card from Ju Hien's hand. You damn Korean. What the hell are you looking at? Abe thought it was a dangerous moment just now. That ID card has information about the excavation team. It would be bad for a Korean who had no idea about tombs to get information on his identity and the excavation team. Ju Hien had seen his ID but it had only been for a few seconds. It's fine. Nobody should be able to remember that. Abe let out a sigh of relief before shoving his ID into his pocket. It wasn't time to pay attention to this stupid Korean right now. The bastard who took the gold axe silver axe artifact will definitely come here. That bastard needed to be taken care of first. He could not let a bastard who could put Japan in danger live peacefully in Korea. There's always the method of shutting him up for good inside the tomb. Abe touched this hidden gun in his pocket. Unfortunately, as he stood there not realizing that the person he was looking for was right there boom. A sound that resembled an explosion filled the Times Square Plaza. The people who were shopping or on dates started to whisper. W, what was that noise? I, I'm sure someone just dropped something. People didn't make much of it. And as they were about to go back to minding their own business beep the microphone and speakers on the stage started to malfunction. People were first annoyed at the screeching noise before becoming scared as they saw the equipment on stage fall one by one. Damn it! What the hell is going on? Ack! My coffee! The nearby cafe was turning into chaos as well. The coffee mugs and tables were suddenly splitting into two. What the, what is going on? Abe and Ju Hien both responded at the same time. Abe's phone was going off while a message popped up in front of Ju Hien. Abe quickly picked up the phone. Hello. Ju Hien checked the message once Abe turned around. The message was simple. Spy skill activated. The aura of a violent tomb is coming from nearby. Ju Hien scoffed as he read that message. That weird phenomenon just now was not a natural occurrence. It is the result of a tomb appearance. It happened as Ju Hien looked around. Abe, who had been talking on the phone started to shout in anger. Excuse me. What do you mean? 
Abe was talking to his superior. The person was saying that Prince Shotoku's artifact user had read a new prophecy. However, the issue was the contents of that prophecy. Hold on. You're saying that Korean bastard is nearby? Are you sure it is the same bastard who took the gold axe silver axe artifact? Yes. And I don't know what this means, but she said you should be wary of alcohol. You might end up running into that Korean. Alcohol. Abe's gaze changed after he thought for a moment. The beer. He thought about the guy who sprayed him with beer. Abe quickly turned around after going crazy with that thought. Hey, you. However, Juhian was already gone by the time he turned around. Major. What is going on? Major. Abe clenched his phone so hard as he looked at the empty area that he almost broke it. I, fuck. In the end, Abe swore before running through the group of people in the Times Square Plaza. Major Abe. I believe I found that bastard. What? So please quickly decipher the next prophecy and send it over. I need to know where he went. However, Ju Hien who had moved away not caring whether Abe's eyes were on fire or not, was looking around. It was because of the odd aura around Times Square. The aura is more vicious than I expected. He could feel the chaotic energy artifacts always gave off in the tomb appearance areas. It was just that it was quite violent. It's definitely not a calm artifact. It was different than the gold axe silver axe artifact. That one was actually one of the calmer artifacts. It did gobble up some apartments, but that was just child's play. Everybody had been outside and nobody had been hurt. As for this bastard here Juhian noticed something at that moment. It was on the window of the cafe where everything had been sliced in half. Red bloody text was slowly appearing on the window. That was the tomb glyphs. It was the text used by ruins to provide information. Juhian's eyes focused after reading the information. Now I'm certain. The tomb appearance will happen around here. The size was an issue as well. This is an evacuation grade the sized tomb. There were disaster grades assigned to all tombs created by artifacts. In the future, the government would divide tombs into four levels based on size and potential damage, and the tomb that would appear here would fall under the evacuation grade which was on the third level. A tomb at this level would cause damage equivalent to at least a 6-0 magnitude earthquake plowing through. A tomb that dangerous would mean that the artifact inside was strong as well. It could be a violent B-grade rare-grade artifact, but it could also be an A-grade treasure-grade artifact as well. There were greater chances of a high-grade artifacts being inside disaster-creating tombs. But I don't know when the tomb appearance will happen. But at that moment zero, six minutes a blue hologram appeared on top of the plaza stage. It was a message from the spy skill. Juhian was a bit shocked. Six minutes. Is that perhaps? Juhian heard a familiar voice in the distance as he was about to walk that way. The speaker was surprisingly Abe who had been looking for Juhian. He put his hand on the gun inside his pocket as soon as he saw Juhian. Stand there and don't move while I'm being nice to you. However, Juhian just smirked while looking at him. Look at him walking over on his own accord with artifacts on him. And the moment the hologram changed to zero colon five minutes. The ground suddenly started to shake. Ah! An urgent message popped up in front of Juhian as well. A violent force is exploding through the ground. But the warning was only for a moment. Boom! A violent earthquake started to shake the ground without giving people any time to evacuate. The ground split open, buildings crumbled down, Many things that should not normally happen were starting to happen. Abe had not expected anything like this either. Sure, what the hell? Ah! Someone save me! Boom! Clang! The lights went out and it was chaotic, as if the world was ending and hell surfaced to the ground. However, there was one person who was calm unlike everyone else. It was Ju Hien. Ju Hien was calm while other people were screaming about how they were going to die. It's coming. A bright light flashed through the crack in the ground. And lo and behold. The people who got caught up in that light disappeared. Ju Hien was no exception. 
a too familiar sight appeared in front of Juhian. The dark and clammy feeling. The fishy smell of mold. The tomb with grey walls covered in rotten vines. He had been here before. Juhian knew very well about the artifact inside this tomb. Everything was the same as in his memories. Everything except one thing. Chapter 12 Yes, one thing was different than in his memories. Mommy. What is this place? What is going on? Let me out of here. It was the people who got caught up in the tomb with him. He had not paid much attention because he was looking around the tomb at first, but it was quite chaotic nearby. Get lost motherfuckers. Don't stand behind me. Who do you think you are to touch me? You're nothing. There were people crying on the ground, as well as people going wild and fighting each other like bulls. There were also debris from the Yangdungpo station shops probably because they were damaged by the evacuation grade tomb appearance. The sight of the mannequins looking like human corpses looked grotesque as well. Damn it, how the hell did I end up in here when I was just shopping for new clothes? Did we fall underground or something? Please get me out of here. There were about fifty people around him. They were crying that they suddenly ended up in a weird place, however, it was understandable. Tombs at the evacuation grade or higher had tendencies to gobble up people without dealing with an entrance. It was because those artifacts wanted to see as many people die as possible. It was one of their terrible hobbies. This tomb and the test by the artifact is at the level of the Saw movies. And lo and behold. A heinous aura has been detected. The artifact's malice toward rulers has been detected. Injury danger. The artifact's heinous aura is pricking at your body. You must protect your body. A warning message appeared in front of his eyes. Juhian laughed while looking at that. It's already started. Violent artifact bastards had a tendency to only attack rulers, aka artifact users. They had many different methods they used, but the most common of them was by causing illnesses. These damn artifacts seemed to understand that one of the things humans feared the most was being sick. Proof of that was how the people who had entered this tomb in the past had ended up with skin cancer. Not only that, it was a strand of skin cancer that could only be cured by healing artifacts. Lo and behold, Juhian also felt some prickling pain on his arm. Small cuts that resembled paper cuts started to appear and get infected on his arm. Juhian who saw that realized he forgot about something. I'll be in danger too if I take too long. Juhian who knew that was the case quickly started to look around. Time was of the essence in such tombs but there was nothing that should cause any problems he already knew about the artifact inside this tomb. The area was filled with weapons as Juhian expected. There were broken blades stabbed into the walls and old weapon handles scattered on the ground. Those blades were in many different shapes such as spears, daggers, etc but none of them looked to look created in the western style. Eastern style. The shape of the hilt and the design of the blades revealed they were Japanese. He was certain of it based on his experience. Muramesa. People may wonder why a Japanese artifact would show up in Korea, but it wasn't weird. Artifacts appeared around the world at random. That was why there were a lot of national disputes over the rights to different artifacts. One of the major ones had been it was quite the spectacle when an Islamic artifact appeared in the US. Some of the Sunnites talked about how they couldn't let some American dogs use their sacred Islamic artifact. It led to them killing the artifact user and committing terrorism in the US. That was just one example of how nationalism or religious belief could cause the world to go wild depending on the artifact. There was someone like that in this tomb as well. Don't move. A vicious voice ordered Juhian from behind. Juhian peeked back after hearing a familiar voice. Standing behind him was Abe who was swept up into the tomb after having chased after Juhian. It looked as if he had lived up to his status as a soldier and quietly snuck up behind Juhian. You bastard, I got you now. Juhian then felt something stiff on his back. Juhian thought he could tell what it was even though he couldn't see it. It was a gun. Abe looked at the backpack over one of Juhian's shoulders and started to speak. You, open your backpack. Abe was hoping for something. If this was the bastard who took the gold axe silver axe artifact, 
it was possible that he brought it with him into the tomb. Ju Hien's eyes curled up as he smiled. I guess that seer made him suspect me. Although it would not be weird for Ju Hien to run away having realized that fact, he seemed to have no issues showing Abe what was in his backpack. The contents were simple camping equipment. Abe was shocked at what he saw. The item he had expected to see in there was missing. I don't see the gold axe silver axe artifact. There was an axe knife and a shovel used for camping but those were general items that could be bought anywhere. Abe looked back and forth between Juhian's back and the backpack before getting anxious. The prophecy had said that he might be able to encounter the gold axe silver axe artifact again. Is it not this bastard? Abe clicked his tongue in the end. Enough. Slowly turn around because I have some questions to ask you. Juhian could see Abe pointing the gun at him as well as the civilians who ended up in the tomb as well. They were shaking after seeing the gun in Abe's hand. How could they not be scared when they ended up in a weird place and there was a monstrous man holding a gun? However, Abe found it more important to confirm this bastard's identity. I need to get rid of him if this bastard really is the tomb raider mentioned in the prophecy. Otherwise, he might even get the artifact from this tomb taken away. Abe already knew that the artifact in this tomb was Muramesa. It was thanks to the seer. The Japanese government also considered Muramesa as one of the representative blades of Japan and an item that was connected to the samurai mindset. Japan would be angry and find it shameful if a foreigner was to take such an artifact and use it. We can't lose it to any other country. If that were to happen, the Japanese prime minister and the executives would never forgive Abe. He had been selected as a member of the excavation team from the large number of JSDF soldiers because he was able to use artifacts. A lot of responsibilities came with such a position. That was why Abe bit down on his lips. Hey Korean, answer if you don't want to die. Answer what? Of course, unlike the serious Abe, Ju Hien looked very relaxed in picking his ear. Abe had to suppress his anger as he asked in Japanese. Where were you around 7 p.m. two nights ago? Ju Hien's scoff echoed inside the tomb. Are you a cop? What? Are you a cop? I don't think I have any reason to answer that question. Abe scoffed at Ju Hien's cheeky answer. This cheeky bastard. He pointed the gun at Ju Hien and opened his eyes wide. Hey! Can't you see this? I can. It's a gun. Ju Hien then started to laugh. There was no way someone would respond like this unless they had gone crazy. Answer me if you don't want your head blown off. Ju Hien who had been picking his ear snorted before responding like this. Oh is that so? You're going to fire the gun. Hey, Korean. Use your head. I just need to kill you and all of the witnesses inside the tomb. Mm, it probably won't work so you shouldn't fire it. What did you say? Is he really crazy? Abe who had veins popping out of his forehead started to laugh viciously. Fine, I guess a bastard like you needs to lose a leg to come to your senses. Abe could not hold his anger back anymore and caused an incident. He had pulled the trigger toward Juhian. Bang! The people around them screamed after hearing the gun go off. They were waiting for Juhian to start screaming as well. Why would anybody mess with someone holding a gun? However, something unexpected happened. Ah! The one to scream was Abe and not Juhian. The gun had exploded as soon as Abe pulled the trigger and injured his hand. Ugh. Abe clenched his bloodied hand before falling down. Ju Hien watched him fall to the ground and started to scoff. I told you not to fire it. You stupid idiot. You. Ju Hien peeked at Abe's hand and clicked his tongue. Well, you should feel lucky that it ended with just that even though you are inside a tomb. Ju Hien said that and then kicked Abe's but as if telling him to get out of the way. The reason Abe's gun exploded was simple. They were inside a tomb. No modern weapons would work inside a tomb. That wasn't the only thing. Artifacts were bastards who would destroy any item that might cause them harm, even if it was just a cell phone. That is why anybody who used a weapon inside a tomb controlled by an artifact would end up like Abe. This is the reason the only way to fight inside tombs is by using artifacts or martial arts. 
On the other hand, Abe who did not know about this could only shake as he held his hand. I guess this bastard really is the bastard from the prophecy. It would be weird if he didn't find Juhian to be suspicious especially after seeing how knowledgeable he was about tombs. Abe started to grind his teeth. Were you the one who took the gold axe silver axe artifact? Juhian patted Abe's shoulder and laughed. Yes, you idiot. How can you not realize it when it is right in front of you? Juhian took something out of his backpack. It was the camping axe that Abe had not paid any attention to. Abe was shocked after seeing it. That. Juhian used his dominance on the gold axe to activate it. This caused the generic looking axe to glow from end to end before it changed into a gold color. Abe could not close his mouth in shock as he watched. It was clearly a generic axe so how did that? Juhian scoffed after the gold axe regained its original appearance. What is it? I guess your talented seer Nim doesn't know how to disguise artifacts. Juhian then gave an order in a low voice. Find the treasures. Gold axe. Juhian smiled as the axe started to sparkle. The axe started to resonate with a single item in the mountain of weapons. I guess Muramesa is over there. Juhian started to run after realizing that fact. Abe who confirmed this was about to foam at the mouth. Damn it, that bastard. He could not let this bastard take Muramesa. I have no choice. Now that things were like this, Abe had no choice but to also use an artifact to track him down. He would get rid of the other people after that. Abe then clenched his injured hand and rummaged through his pockets. However, the artifacts that should be in his pocket were missing. Both of the artifacts he had stolen in Korea were gone. They were definitely there when he entered the tomb. Damn it, where did my artifacts go? His shout echoed throughout the tomb. Of course, there was no reason to find this to be odd. It was just that this soldier did not know about it. The Korean person inside the prophecy was someone with a wicked habit of stealing things. Chapter 13 Abe started to panic after realizing his artifacts were missing. He could not understand this situation at all. He had lost the Korean in the prophecy and his artifacts had disappeared. It made him want to commit seppuku. What is going on? Abe suddenly recalled the incident with Juhian at the convenience store. Juhian had picked up his ID at the time. He had thought it was weird that something that should not fall out had fallen out. Could it be that the bastard had stolen his ID instead of it falling out? Did that bastard take the artifacts too? Abe soon shook his head. No, what kind of crazy human being would have such skilled hands? Of course, there actually was someone like that. But regardless of what happened, Abe was in a difficult situation. The Japanese research team would soon fly over to investigate the artifacts he stole. So, what would happen if he was to tell them that he lost them? And Muramesa as well. The bigger issue was that the artifacts were not the only thing putting Abe in danger right now. It was because the civilians who had been listening to his conversation with Juhian were starting to get suspicious. Hold on. What do they mean by prophecy or artifacts? What was that talk about the gold axe earlier? Damn it! A few people who understood Japanese started to chatter away, causing Abe to have even more of a headache. The Japanese government wanted to hide information about the tombs and artifacts from the Korean government. But that bastard used an artifact in front of civilians. What could he be thinking? It was obvious that they would be in a difficult situation if this information ended up in the Korean government's ears. A major like himself could not look down on such diplomatic issues. Shit, what do I do? The original plan was to stealthily take the artifact before letting the civilians out with false information. If that didn't look like it would work, he would kill them all and say it was an accident, but he had lost his weapon as well. What to do? Abe's back was covered in cold sweat. He could not go back out of the tomb like this. Information would be revealed. While Abe was worried about that, Juhian didn't care at all. Why? It didn't matter to Juhian whether people learned about tombs and artifacts. The great tomb appearance that leads to everyone in the world learning about tombs and artifacts would happen soon. That was why hiding information about an artifact's abilities was one thing, 
but hiding the existence of tombs and artifacts was useless. Furthermore, Zhu Hian actually hoped that information about tombs and artifacts would get out. There was a simple reason for it. Artifacts and tombs were things that gained strength through stories, such as mythologies, legends, folk tales and popular novels. That might be the reason for it. Whether the discussion was good or bad, artifacts and tombs became more active when people were talking about them. That would lead to an increase in the number of tombs and in the speed of appearance, which would make it beneficial to gain more artifacts. So, it is better for me if I can get a few more artifacts before the great tomb appearance. That was the thought on Zhu Hian's mind as he inspected the artifacts he stole from Abe while he walked to his destination. One was a bracelet made from a rope while the other was a suspicious-looking Jiang Dang inside a square Wagashi box. One the so-called bracelet was just a rope tied in the shape of a bracelet and the green Jiang Dang looked like a round rice ball. Abe was probably the one to put it in the Wagashi box. Zhu Hian knew the identity of these artifacts. Does that Japanese bastard know about the Korean version of the sun and moon legend? The Korean version of the sun and moon legend. This was talking about the siblings who became the sun and the moon. This suspicious Jiang Dang was probably the rice cake the tiger begged the mom to give while this rope was probably the rope that descended from the sky. Neither of them were high in rank but they were both useful artifacts. That should mean that it was not easy to get them. But thanks to Abe, he was able to snatch useful artifacts and as a result, a familiar message window popped up in front of Zhu Hian's eyes. You received the cheap hand skills title and a skill has been revealed. Tomb Raider basic skill dexterity F rank has been awakened. Dexterity awakened level F rank quickly learn how to use any item even if it is your first time using it. Speed of consumption decreases ever so slightly when using consumable artifacts. Skillful in artifact maintenance and restoration. Chances of stealing artifacts from other people increases. Tomb Raider Basic Skills 44, Spy F, Rank Linguistics F, Rank Tomb Exploration F, Rank Dexterity F, Rank. The mission window popped up along with the message window. You have successfully awakened all four dormant skills and have awakened as a proper Tomb Raider. Mission completed. You will receive a reward after leaving the tomb. The mission that he had seen in the police station had been completed. Zhu Hian found this game reward-like system to be funny, but he was curious as to what the reward would be. It looks like I need to quickly gain Muramesa and leave Zhu Hian came out of a side route while thinking about that. He had used a longer but safer route as the path toward Muramesa was filled with traps. That Abe bastard was probably struggling with the traps as he wouldn't know about this secret route. The civilians will be able to leave once I clear the tomb. It happened at that moment. Zhu Hian heard some unexpected noises when he was almost at Muramesa's location. Ache. He heard a familiar scream coming from nearby. It was coming from the route filled with traps that Zhu Hian had avoided. He saw a terrible sight as he walked toward the source of the noise. Ah, save me. Please save me. The screams were coming from the ground around one of the alleyways. There was a giant sinkhole in the middle of the passage. It seemed to be about 7 m high. There were about 50 people screaming inside the pit that had knives on every side. They were the civilians who had been swept up by the tomb. It's the artifact's trap. Thankfully, nobody was dead yet. But Zhu Hian saw a red aura bridge over the pit. Zhu Hian instantly knew what it was after seeing the bridge. A sacrificial trap. That was the case. This was one of Muramesa's traps, the Bridge of Sacrifice. In simple terms, you needed to put other people into the pit as sacrifices to create the bridge. Then you could use the bridge to get to the other side. Lo and behold, it looked like someone had already walked across the bridge. The people who noticed Zhu Hian started to shout with urgency. P, please save us. Please. There was another reason they were shouting so desperately. One of the fifty people inside the pit had turned into a homicidal maniac. One of the female students had a dagger in her hand as she tried to kill the others. There were some people who were already stabbed by her. This was probably one of Muramesa's terrible pranks. The people who were stabbed by that dagger would also turn into homicidal maniacs. 
The bridge over the pit would also reset once everybody in the pit died. That was how this trap worked. Whenever the people inside the pit got close to the sides to climb up, they would run into the sharp blades. Juhian clicked his tongue while looking into the pit. Who threw you guys into the pit? Was it that Japanese guy? The people started to cry. Yes, he said to follow him because he knew where the exit was. But then something like this suddenly appeared. Then he said all of us needed to die for things to remain a secret. It was obvious what happened. Abe, Sabe, whatever his name was, that Japanese bastard was trying to shut the civilians up so they could not talk about the tomb. I thought that he wouldn't be able to do anything because he lost his weapon and I took his artifacts. That wasn't it. He also knew how to get past the trap. Looks like it's that Sears doing again. According to his memories, Prince Shotoku's artifact user should be an idiot who didn't know how to use the artifact properly. But based on how Abe had the sun and the moon artifact as well, she seemed to be using it better than Juhian expected. Juhian slowly started to despise that seer. Of course, Abe had been the one to throw the people into the trap, but the ones who ordered him to silence the civilians would have been his superiors. Did they think they were extremely important because they had Prince Shotoku's future diary? I was originally planning on leaving those bastards alone for now, but, it looked as if he couldn't let them be. He heard people start to scream again. The woman being controlled by the dagger was starting to move again. People did many different things, including swinging their clothes at the student to keep her away. Her movement was so skilled that even a bulky young man could not stop her. Ah! Don't come this way, don't come. Get lost. Ah! The moment Juhian looked inside the pit and heard the screams he jumped into the pit. He was sliding down along the side of the pit. The people started to shout in shock. T, that's dangerous. There are blades coming out of the sides. However, Juhian took a knife out as he slid down the side. It was the Egyptian priest's knife. All of the blades in Juhian's way broke apart with a light swipe. Ah! The people were shocked for a different reason. The female student being controlled by the dagger charged toward Juhian at that moment. She seemed to have selected Juhian as her next prey. Kaya. Watch out. Juhian moved his hand. Of course, Juhian had no interest in sending an innocent young girl being controlled by an artifact flying using Jeet Kune Do. What Juhian did was to take out the rope bracelet, one of the artifacts he stole from Abe. Rope from Heaven Sea Grade, General Grade Consumable Artifact Remaining Uses 940100Ju, he and channeled his dominance into the bracelet and gave an order. Bind. The artifact flashed and instantly became longer. Then it moved as if it was a living snake and charged toward the female student. Kaya. The female student being controlled screamed and fell to the ground once the rope tied her up. The rope seemed to be able to extend without a limit as it instantly wrapped the woman around like a mummy. The only thing still visible was the hand holding the dagger and her face. The people in the pit dropped their jaws at what they saw. Juhian walked toward the flailing female student. The woman being controlled by the dagger glared and growled at Juhian. Shu, sit still. Juhian gently tried to calm her down before instantly taking the dagger away. Unlike when he was dealing with a person, Juhian's hands were very stern and strong when handling artifacts. The heinous dagger started to throw a fuss once Juhian took it away. It seemed to be even more riled up after meeting up against Juhian's strong dominance. Kill. Kill humans. He could even hear the artifact's thoughts in his mind. However, Juhian just found it to be ridiculous. How dare a damn artifact try to order me around? Juhian then channeled his dominance into the dagger. Chapter, 14 Bang! Juhian's strong dominance suppressed the dagger. The dagger then screeched in pain. You human bastard! The artifact's voice that other people could not hear reached Juhian's ears. However, it was only for a moment before the artifact stopped bearing its fangs and submitted. The red aura that had surrounded it slowly disappeared as well. Before long, the dagger's movements that had been loudly roaring completely stopped. It stopped. 
information from the spy skill soon appeared above the dagger. Muramesa's slightly failed dagger C-grade general grade consumable artifact remaining uses 862100 Ju, Hien laughed as a read that. A pitiful C-grade artifact had tried to resist his dominance. Looks like this is one of the lower versions of Muramesa. Muramesa was originally like a brand name for blades. Naturally, that meant that there were many artifacts with the Muramesa name. According to his memories, there should be some C-grade general grade to A-grade legend grade Muramesas. There were many factors that determined an artifact's grade level, however, it would be easiest to consider this Muramesa as a lackey artifact to the one that created this tomb. That was why Juhian scrunched his eyes. I need to go in farther to find the boss artifact that created this tomb. It was at that moment. Kaya. The female student who had been controlled suddenly screamed. The student had returned to her senses after the artifact submitted to Juhian, however, a different issue had happened. It was because of the rope that had become excited about tying a person up. P, please save me. The rope. The female student was shaking as if a snake was crawling up her body. The rope that had been binding the student was moving and changing to a different shape. That shape was quite suspicious. Juhian had no choice but to click his tongue and grab the rope. It's too excited, way too excited. These damn artifacts always cause issues if you looked away from them. Return. The rope could not do anything and started to glow as Juhian ordered while channeling his dominance. The rope quickly shrunk in size before wrapping around Juhian's wrist once again. The artifact had changed appearance once the light disappeared. It didn't look as shabby as it did when Abe had it on him. It now looked like a fashionable copper-colored male braided bracelet. Ah! The people could only blankly look at it. This situation was one thing, but they were shocked to see a rope turning into a bracelet. The first to speak was the female student who had been controlled. Jay, just what happened? Juhian smiled after hearing that question. He had used his dominance to change the shape of the artifact. In simple terms, it was using camouflage. This was how he had camouflaged the gold axe silver axe artifact as well. Of course, this was not easy to do. Although Juhian didn't care about what the artifacts thought, he knew that they found it shameful to camouflage themselves like modern items I don't know whether they have pride in their original appearances or are angry at having to submit to a human. Forget changing their appearance, artifacts would try to gobble up any master without significant dominance who tried to make them do something like this. Juhian started to walk while smiling. He needed to take care of that Japanese bastard now. I really must be a genius. Ha ha ha. Abe was laughing out loud. Abe had arrived at the room with Muramesa after tricking the civilians into the trap. This tomb was a cave-style tomb, and the dirt ground was filled with weapon debris. Abe was planning on finding Muramesa here before killing all witnesses. It's a perfect crime if they all die inside the tomb. The stupid Korean government will treat it as an accident if they all die in here. The only thing important to him was Japan's benefit. Japan can become the greatest as long as we have Prince Shotoku's future diary the US was nothing. China was nothing. Multiple large earthquakes, economic recession his home that had been the son of Asia at one point was slowly turning into a nation where the sun was setting as well. In that aspect, artifacts were a chance. For Abe who grew up listening to the heroic tales of the Japanese people found his work to be a cornerstone of such heroic deeds in present times. That was why he was going crazy about the current situation. Fuck, where the hell is Muramesa hiding? Clang, clang. Clang. Abe was handling the weapons in a rough way and throwing them to the side. That thug better have told me the right thing. Abe was trying to find Muramesa according to the prophecy. The fourth room after passing through the tomb's trap. She had said Muramesa would be in that room. However, he could not find it no matter how hard he tried. But at that moment you damn bastard, we got you now. Abe started to scream as a horde of people charged into the room. W, what the hell, you bastards. You son of a bitch, you dare to trick us. You tried to kill us all. The angry mob tried to kill Abe as soon as they saw him. In the end, Abe fell on his ass. 
he was certain. These were the civilians he had pushed into the trap. How did these bastards get out? The people who got out of the trap thanks to Juhian grabbed onto Abe as soon as they found him, although it was not certain whether Juhian had asked them to do that or they were doing it of their own volition. We need to inform the whole world and get this bastard buried. Even though Abe was a soldier, there was no way he could deal with such large numbers without a weapon. Damn it! Abe who was captured by them was angry. How did these bastards get out of the trap? He had confirmed that the trap was something they could not get out of without an artifact. How else would they have gotten out? Abe gasped and turned his head after hearing a familiar voice. The shocked Abe could see a familiar young man sitting on top of a pile of swords. It was Ju Hian. Abe's eyes opened wide after seeing Ju Hian. You! Ju Hian smiled and waved the artifacts he stole from Abe. Thanks for these, JSDF Army Major Abe Kyoshi. One was the rice cake while the other was the rope. Abe almost foamed at the mouth after seeing that. It was not important that the bastard knew his name. That bastard really did steal them. Hey! Put them down right now. Why should I? Abe glared at Ju Hian after hearing that response. That bastard. There was only one method left now that things were like this. You just wait until I find Muramesa. You'll be the first one I slash in half. It was to find Muramesa that was somewhere in this room. He didn't know where it was just yet, but if he found it. However, Ju Hian suddenly started to laugh after hearing Abe's threat. Abe became anxious. What the, what's so funny? Ju Hian's laugh echoed inside the tomb. What, you're telling me you still haven't found it even with a seer on your side? You didn't find it even though it was right in front of you. W, what? Abe couldn't help but be shocked. It was because Ju Hian sounded as if he had already found it. And he was saying it was right in front of him. Unbelievable. Muramesa is not here. The prophecy had said that Muramesa was a Kodachi with a clear blade. However, he had not seen anything here that resembled that. All he saw were broken blades. The only weapons intact were spears, daggers, or padeos. Ju Hian then approached Abe as he smiled like a teacher instructing a student. Hey idiot, it's right here. He then grabbed an old sword. It didn't even look to be in good condition. The blade was broken and even the remaining bit was so dull that it couldn't even cut a tree. That was why Abe could not help but be shocked. Muramesa looked completely different than the pristine Kodachi he was expecting. Ho! You're saying that is Muramesa? Yes, you moron. Ju Hian then channeled his dominance into the sword. The Kodachi that had been cosplaying as an old sword changed and started to let out a heinous aura. You somehow managed to find me, you stupid human. The sword started to yap on as if he had been struggling to hold back this whole time. Human who needs power. Fill me with the blood of ten people if you wish to leave my physical body will only be restored by drinking human blood. The people started to shiver after hearing that. They could not understand this situation or the things that weapon was saying. What is that saying? The only thing they were certain about was that ten people would die. How could they not be scared when their lives were in danger in this unknown situation? That was the case. The test for this artifact was simple slaughter. This artifact's terrible hobby was to become rejuvenated, no, have the blade be restored with human blood. That was why it had dragged a large number of people into the tomb in the first place. However, this was not just the case for Muramesa, most of the Japanese blades had similar tests to obtain. They required the user to slaughter or to show an expert's mindset. Majority of the famous weapons had received their fame through war, making their internal force stink of blood as well. This is why I don't like the blade-type artifacts very much. He was planning on selling Muramesa off after the Great Tomb appearance. There was someone who would pay a lot of money for Muramesa's true abilities. Muramesa seemed to be annoyed with Ju Hian who had not started to slaughter as it urged him on. Hey human, hurry up and kill the others. Don't you want to take me? Just what are you do will you shut the hell up? You stupid blade. W, what? Ju Hian had no plans on doing as this artifact asked. 
The majority of the people in here were innocent civilians. He would need to be crazy to do things as the artifact wanted him to do. He was someone who knew how to restore Muramesa without killing people. The problem was this bastard's resistance. Well, I can handle up to a B-grade rare-grade artifact. Juhian tightly clashed his hand around Muramesa's old hilt. And then you're being too loud so shut up for now. He channeled a lot of dominance into it. Boom. The tomb started to violently shake as Juhian's dominance and Muramesa's aura clashed. People were screaming and lying down on the ground or running out of the room. Muramesa started to run wild at the same time. Ack. You arrogant human. You dare. Boom. Boom. The aura was much more violent than the low-grade Muramesa dagger from earlier. However, Juhian did not budge and continued to suppress Muramesa. Muramesa soon started to wail in pain. Human. The battle of wills between the two of them did not last long before Juhian sternly gave it an order. Absorb all of your other bodies. Muramesa. A bright light flashed along with a scream. Something amazing then started to happen. All of the blades scattered around the tomb as well as the one stabbed into the walls turned into dust and gathered toward Muramesa. Then, a blade started to appear on Muramesa's body contrary to his statement about not being able to do so without human blood. A fully restored Kodachi appeared as the light subsided. Juhian shouted as soon as it appeared in his hand. Close. The tomb started to shake and light started to enter through the ceiling. The tomb was crumbling and a path to the exit had appeared. Juhian activated the rope artifact and shouted toward the civilians. Grab onto the rope. It will take you outside. The civilians seemed to snap out of their shocks as they all ran forward and grabbed onto the rope. The rope that had been floating around looking like a cobra slowly started to rise. Once the rope ascended into the sky, only Juhian and Abe were left in the tomb. Abe peeked toward Juhian before trying to grab onto the rope. Pow! Juhian kicked him so he fell off. You, Ugh. And where do you think you are going? Ugh. You bastard. Juhian started to chuckle. What is it? Were you planning on doing something to the people who left first? Abe felt guilty after hearing Juhian call him out and desperately turned around. Boom! The tomb was crumbling from the back. The ceiling was the only way out. He started to shout with urgency after determining there was only one way out. Chapter 15 Abe started to shout with urgency. Please let me out. I'll recommend you to the Japanese government if you let me out. What? That was the case. It wasn't important whether he liked this guy or not. He needed to find a way to save himself first. Furthermore, this bastard was someone the future diary warned them about. How amazing would such a person be? They needed to get rid of him. But this modern man was no idiot. He knew that phrases like the prophecy said he was a bad omen so get rid of him. We're old-fashioned. So what if he's dangerous? Then it's best if we make him one of our allies. Actually, he needed to make that happen. Only then would he be able to cover up the fact that this bastard stole his artifacts and Muramesa. His superiors were smart enough to show such leniency. So 100 million yen. I lose. You're a really amazing Korean person. If you will use your wisdom for our Japanese excavation team, 100 million yen, no, we can promise you a yearly salary of 1 billion won. Ho, 1 billion won. Juhian seemed interested in Abe's offer. However, that made Abe's expression turn cold. He really is a normal person. Are you interested? Exactly what is it that I'll need to do? Just excavating artifacts from tombs. We'll even let you use the future diary if you want. Juhian started to frown at that offer. You'll let me use the future diary. I thought that artifact was something only its master could use. That is true but there is a company that can help us resolve that issue. Anyway, I won't hold anything back to push you forward. The only condition is that you don't tell other countries about tombs and artifacts. Oh ho. Juhian was quite amused. So, you are saying you'll treat me well so team up with the Japanese. 
However, please don't tell Korea about the artifacts in the process. Exactly. That made Ju Hian who was hanging on the rope start to laugh. It's not a bad offer. Let me hear more information. Ju Hian unexpectedly offering his hand made Abe subconsciously start to smile. I can get out of here. Abe who was floating up by holding Ju Hian's hand started to speak with excitement. I was wrong about you, you're a Korean who has some sense. I'll introduce you to Colonel Muri as soon as we get out. You're making the right decision. Ah, uh, one thing before that. What is the name of the company that is helping the Japanese excavation team? I don't want to get tangled up with a weird company. That was indeed the case. Getting in without knowing anything could make him get tangled up with multi-level organization. Abe seemed to have noticed as he let out a chuckle. Ah, uh, you don't need to worry about that. It is the TKBM group. Is that so? It happened as soon as he said that. Ha. Huh. Ju Hian had let go of Abe's hand without any hesitation. Hole. Abe looked toward Ju Hian in shock. However, Abe instantly fell from the air to the ground. Boom. Abe who fell into the crumbling tomb started to scream. Ah, my legs. He had fallen at least six meters. The shock from the impact felt as if he had been beaten by a hammer. Damn it, this stupid bastard. Hey. What are you doing, you accidentally let go of me. How can a guy be so weak huh? However, Abe could not help but shake as he looked at the disappearing Juhian's gaze. The way Juhian was glaring at Abe was quite serious. He had not accidentally let go. He had let go on purpose. The proof of that came from the fact that Juhian started to speak while smiling like a sly fox. You moron. Abe's jaws dropped. T, this son of a bitch. Lo and behold, Ju Hian started to laugh out loud as if this was his plan from the beginning. You idiot. Thanks for providing me with useful information. Best of luck getting out on your own. Abe who understood the meaning behind those words turned pale. The pain from his broken bones was nothing compared to this shock. You, you, what the hell? Weren't you going to partner with us? We will give you 100 million yen. However, Ju Hian started to scoff. Just 100 million yen. His smile was extremely cold. Do you want to die? Who is only worth 100 million yen? Hey, but you. Earlier, you. I was never going to join you guys. You are just bastards who are willing to kill people to keep them quiet. You guys are animals that are even worse than the artifacts. Hey! The tomb crumbled at that moment. Abe who realized everything started to dodge the falling stones as he continued to shout. W, wait! Are you really going to do this? Are you planning on burying someone alive? All he heard back was a sneering shout who was the one that first talking about killing the rest of us. T, that. Muri or Magi or whatever his name is, I'll make sure to let your superior know. Abe Kyoshi was rushing things in Korea relying just on the seer and ended up dying. Hey, don't be like this, I'm sore ah. That damn bastard. Once Juhian completely disappeared in a moment, Abe's screaming echoed along with the crumbling tomb. Damn it, to die such a dog's death, fuck. He even teared up as he regretted his actions from today. Why had he entered into a tomb alone without any fear? Why had he tried to take care of that bastard relying on the future diary alone? He even wondered if things would have been different if he never tried to harm the civilians and had been nicer to that bastard. He would go back in time by just a few hours if that was possible. Well, this is probably why it is called regret, as things cannot be reversed. The tomb underground became completely sealed. Ju Hian had been able to climb out the hole that was the exit after sending Abe off for good. Abe would probably never see the light of day ever again. And then where is the exit this time? He soon saw a male urinal. Ju Hian started to laugh after realizing where this exit was connected. This time the exit is in a restroom. First it was a manhole and now it was a restroom. Ju Hian sighed thinking that he could smell the stench now that he knew where he was. These were the times that made him despise going into the tombs every so often. 
It was the best when the exit was connected to the women's bath. Of course he had cried because only the elderly were there at the time. It happened at that moment. Please let us in. We want to confirm that it is an exit connected to a tomb. No. This is a restricted area. Ah, please. Let us in. Juhian realized it was quite loud outside as he was about to exit out of the restroom. We are here from KBN. We are here from YTM. Juhian sighed after hearing those noises. Ah, they came as expected. There were tons of reporters outside the restroom. It would be weirder if reporters did not gather at the scene of an accident. Well, they can't get in because the tomb is already sealed. Juhian debated whether he should use mass communication to reveal the existence of tombs and artifacts for a moment before deciding to hold back. It was good to spread the information but not at the price of revealing his face. I have no choice. He was going to quietly climb out through one of the windows. However, it was at that moment. Boom boom boom. Muramesa that was in his backpack suddenly started to go wild. Muramesa started to scream as if it was a maiden in distress being kidnapped by a villain. Juhian was slightly flustered. This bastard. Muramesa must have found it extremely shameful to submit to a bastard who had not passed its test. It flailed so much that it started to hit the stuff around it. The reporters outside heard the noises. Don't you hear something coming from the restroom? Damn this bastard. Juhian grinded his teeth as he glared at the backpack. However, Muramesa started to flail even more after hearing the people outside, as if he was trying to pull a prank on Juhian. Boom boom. Head inside. Who is in there? TSK. The door soon opened and Juhian quickly covered his face with his hood. He then ran out of the restroom. Hey, you. Please wait. Hey. Juhian did not even look back. This damn troublemaker. Juhian clicked his tongue after hiding in an empty restroom. Muramesa was rambling on in some alien language inside the backpack. He could not understand him, but it was probably protesting about how Juhian had placed it in a backpack. Juhian covered one of his ears at the constant rambling. Of course, other people would not be able to hear this artifact's rambling. Honestly speaking, there was only one chance for a person to hear the voice of an artifact. It was when the artifact was giving its test. Just like the mountain spirit snake from last time or Muramesa this time, people could only talk to artifacts when they were trying to complete its test. However, it really is annoying to be able to hear artifacts. Whether it was because of Juhian's archaeology ability from the past or the Tomb Raider skill in the present, he could hear the artifacts. I'm sure I will understand more of what they are saying once my linguistic skills goes up in rank. Well, I don't need this useless ability, I wish all artifacts to just shut up. That was Juhian's thought on this ability. Juhian seemed to be annoyed at the constant rambling as he took Muramesa out of the backpack and shoved it inside a toilet and flushed. Muramesa started to scream. Although he didn't get flushed, the taste of the toilet shower must have been terrible. Juhian sighed as if he was a bit tired after Muramesa finally quieted down a bit. It's only this much because it is a B-grade rare-grade artifact, an A-grade or higher would probably not even listen to me. Of course, it would work out if he increased his dominance. The problem was these damn bastards are the reason I have no uninjured spot on my body. Juhian pulled up his sleeve to reveal his arm that was covered in an injury that resembled a burn. The cost of forcefully dominating an artifact is quite painful. The test needed to be passed in order to earn an artifact. However, Juhian had completely ignored the test and forced it into submission using his dominance. It was because he knew he would die an unnatural death if he showed any openings to an artifact. Sadly, the cost of such actions was the injury. Juhian started to frown. Forcefully dominating artifacts was a must because he knew the future. However, it will be problematic if it was like this in the future. Do I just handle the pain and continue to forcefully dominate the artifacts? That was honestly not possible. He was already in quite a lot of pain. It would be fine as long as I can get my hands on a healing artifact, but it is too early for any healing artifacts to show up. 
It must be related to the fact that all artifacts were evil because the necessary healing artifacts all showed up too late. They only showed up after people were already sick. Anyway, Ju Hian was not confident that he could continue to pay the price to forcefully dominate an artifact. He would probably die from a different illness at this rate. TSK, I don't want to submit to the artifacts though. It was at that moment. An unexpected message appeared in front of the contemplating Ju Hian. You have made it out of the tomb. The delayed reward for completing the Tomb Raider basic skill awakening quest is being distributed. It was as if someone had expected this situation. Chapter, 16 Ju Hian was slightly shocked. He recalled reading about the mission's reward. There had been a message about saying the reward would be distributed after he left the tomb. However, Ju Hian was confused because he was not familiar with this. Did the mission's reward mean that he would get an item, experience, or money like in a game? Another message popped up as Ju Hian questioned what might happen. Before the reward is distributed, please take some time to seriously make a decision. The decided path, path of domination, path of affinity, it was an odd message. However, Ju Hian started to frown. There was no way the intelligent Ju Hian would not notice what this message was trying to say. This was asking about dominance and affinity. That was why Ju Hian more annoyed than shocked. He was thinking it was very odd timing. It happened just as he was debating between dominance and affinity. It's not like someone is testing me. He felt as if someone was making a fool of him. It was probably nothing, but he felt like the times when he was being made fun of by artifacts in the past. However, he wouldn't get an answer even if he contemplated it for days. No matter how it was asked, Ju Hian's decision was already made. He made his decision. The path of domination. He would not submit to an artifact even if it meant he would die. He would not get an incurable illness from these bastards again. The next message window popped up as if it registered his decision. The mission's reward has been distributed. Ju Hian started to laugh after seeing that message. It made it sound like something would happen but nothing seemed to have happened. If this so-called reward is something useless, one second, two seconds, three seconds, five minutes later. Ju Hian who had been sitting on the toilet with his legs crossed started to shout in anger. Why is nothing coming out? He even checked his belongings just in case but there was nothing new in there. It wasn't like he expected an item that would fall with some sound effect like in a game. However, shouldn't it at least give him an idea about what the reward is? It was at that moment. It happened as Ju Hian rummaged through his pants pockets saying this was the last place he would check. Ha! Huh. He felt something small at his fingertip. It was so small that he might have thought it was sand and just dusted off his pocket. But it felt different. It was soft and round. Ju Hian started to laugh after he took it out. The small pebble in his hand was none other than an undan. A silver-coated granule made from several kinds of herbs, used to be believed to cure many ailments but mainly used as a breath refresher now. Is this the reward? The chances of that being the case was high. The Ju Hian of this time would be far from having an undan. He had run an errand to get an undan for Chairman Quan many years later, but he had never taken one himself. The spy skill activated and information popped up as Ju Hian stared at the Undan. Grade, consumable artifact instant food it did seem to be an artifact. He was certain because this information only popped up when he was looking at an artifact. However, the fact that it could not determine what it was probably meant that the spy skill was too low in level or it was an artifact it could not determine. The only thing I can tell is that it is for eating. He could not let his guard down because it was an artifact. It looked like an undan, but it could be filled with pesticide or be a drug that makes him hallucinate. To eat it or not to eat it? Ju Hian soon made a decision after debating it for a bit. Yeah, such is my luck if I end up dying. He couldn't be too scared to use this thing. If he ended up dying because of a damn artifact, well, then that was it. That meant that he didn't have what it took to be an artifact user. Ju Hian put the undan in his mouth and crunched on it. It let out a strong scent of herbal medicine. It tasted like a normal undan until here, but the issue came afterward. Ugh. His whole body suddenly started to heat up. 
Ju Hian started to grind his teeth as he started to feel pain as well. Damn it! Did I just eat some poison? However, at that moment something amazing started to happen. Something happened to the large burns that had been eating away on Ju Hian's arm. His skin started to boil from the inside and squirm before it restored itself. Boil boil. The burns were gone by the time the pain subsided. Ju Hian laughed as he looked at his arm. The injuries he received because of the artifact's resistance had completely disappeared. This level of healing was impossible for any regular medicine. Now I'm certain. He had taken a healing artifact. It was one of those healing artifacts that were rare to find and low in number. Based on the effectiveness, it is at least a C-grade general grade artifact. However, that was not the end of his reward. An unexpected message popped up after his injuries from the artifact had been healed. You have successfully survived the artifact's venomous aura and healed yourself. You have learned about the existence of tolerance immunity. Ho! Ju Hian who had gotten on a train was shocked. The precious healing artifact was one thing, but most importantly tolerance. Ju Hian was shocked because tolerance was an ability he had never seen before. There's something called tolerance in addition to dominance and affinity? He had never heard about it. It was probably something that was created just for him. That was why Ju Hian started to smile. If this is tolerance to an artifact's venomous aura, then the playing field has completely changed from here. That was the case. The thing that most artifact users feared was illness. They feared the venous aura from the artifacts destroying their body and making them sick. This was why healing artifacts were necessary for survival. This was also why the monopolizers monopolized the healing artifacts in the past. But tolerance? People wouldn't have had to beg for healing artifacts if something like that existed. Ju Hian started to laugh out loud as if he had gone crazy from that thought. I can do it. He would not need to care about affinity if he could develop tolerance. He would also not need to waste time and money or have someone restrict him or hold a healing artifact against him to do something. In simple terms, it was like not needing to buy HP potions in a game. This was an amazing advantage. He had an advantage over everyone else. That was why he started to laugh at this absurd situation. It looked as if someone had decided to help him out. Returning him to the past, giving him the Tomb Raider skills, and even this odd system. Is this all that damn crow artifact's doing? He thought about that artifact from the ruins where he had died. It seemed as if that artifact had sent him to the past and given him some special services with it. Why did it do it? Ju Hian had no idea. Maybe it was bored rotting around in the ruins alone. Maybe it was planning on eating him up later. He had no way of knowing what the artifact was thinking. He didn't even know that artifact's grade or identity. What he was certain about was that the bastard has given him a chance along with some extra bonuses. Ju Hian was not an idiot who would not use this chance properly. It happened at that moment. His phone started to ring. The caller was the Oh Sung Woo group he had ordered to go to the Las Vegas underground auction house and find out JK, Chairman Kwan's whereabouts. Ju Hian picked up and said just one thing in a cold voice. What is it? It's not time for the auction yet. Ah, uh, you picked up. I called you because we had something to show you. The O oh Sum Wu group had brought back some tempting information. I do not know what to say. Muri Hiroyuki, Colonel Muri, was shaking as if there was a sword at his neck. Some generals from the JSDF as well as the Prime Minister was in front of him. Just how? One of them started to speak. How the hell are you doing things? My apologies. Colonel Muri who was responsible for the artifacts and the excavation team this time was about to go crazy. He had left Abe in charge of excavating the artifacts in Korea. He had thought it was weird that he couldn't contact Abe anymore, but the future diary user had informed him about Abe's whereabouts. Abe Kyoshi was killed by that Korean tomb raider. She had even said that the artifacts, including Mura Mesa, were all taken by that Korean. You told me you would take care of things. Of all things to lose, you had to lose one of Japan's symbolic items. You dare to lose Muramesa. They were angry. How could they lose a Japanese artifact to Korea? 
this was extremely shameful to them who claimed to carry on the samurai mindset. However, it was obvious that they would continue to be angry. Lo and behold, one of the generals turned on a monitor. The hottest topics in the world news started to flow out. The unknown tomb appearances, there are possessed artifacts inside them. Abe Kyoshi, JSDF Sant Rakusa Major tried to bury 50 Korean citizens alive in the tomb appearance region. The survivors claim, Japan tried to shut us up to take the treasure for themselves. Japan knew about these unverified tombs. China, Japan is very disrespectful. A warning about Japan. US, the tombs are a worldwide problem. Disappointed in Japan for hiding the solution. That was the case. Once Korea broadcasted it as breaking news, other countries started to send it out as breaking news as well. These mysterious tombs were a worldwide issue already. It would be weird if other countries did not focus on them as well. That was why they were going crazy. The existences of these tombs and artifacts that they tried so hard to keep a secret to other countries had been leaked. And those damn Americans are feigning ignorance. I, I have no excuses, sir. This is all because of that Korean who was mentioned in the future diary. You were the ones who said you would take care of that Korean. That. Muri really wanted to die as his superiors started to shout so much their veins were showing. Although the rank of colonel was not low, he might need to commit seppuku to make up for this mistake. Damn it Abe, you useless bastard. Furthermore, the entire world was saying that Japan was a disgrace. They didn't seem to have fully learned about tombs and artifacts, but the other countries now knew that there was something inside them. Damn it! Our plan for Japan to monopolize the artifacts is ruined. Muri urgently shouted after hearing their frustration. Sir, it should be fine. We have already ordered the future diary user. We told her to track down that Korean. Is it reliable? Yes sir. We are also getting help from the TKBM group group so that the scholars can use the future diary as well, so we should be able to read more prophecies than before. TKBM's Chairman Kwon Tae Jun. Yes sir. I understand. Make sure to capture that Korean with the future diary. We will make sure he regrets turning things like this. Yes sir, I will make sure to do so. Muri bowed and started to grind his teeth. At around the same time, Ju Hian was laughing while hearing Oh Sung Woo's unexpected pieces of information. I see. So there are a total of three people listed as JK on the auction house attendees list. Yes. Ow. Do you know how hard we had to work to confirm the attendees list that's none of my concern. What? You really? Anyway, I'll go to check that list right now, so. You have been marked by an S-grade artifact. Your future is being read. Ju Hian started to frown at the sudden spy message. This was the first time it had popped up like this, but he had a good idea as to what might be going on. He was certain. It must be the future diary. It might be because he had met with Abe who was influenced by the future diary. The future diary had marked him and started to read his information. This would make the future diary tell them all of his future actions. Oh Sung Woo's group who became scared that Ju Hian suddenly stopped talking cautiously asked. Ju, Ju Hian. Did we do something wrong again? Why aren't you saying anything? Are you coming to check the list? Or are you not coming? No, I'll be there. Ju Hian then took Muramesa out and started to laugh violently. Of course, he would take care of these people with the annoying prophecies first. Chapter, 17 There are different types of artifacts. Most of them are helpful to humans, but there is probably no ability people desire more than the ability to prophesize the future. This was the reason anybody who used an artifact with the prophecy ability had received great treatment. The future diary is one of those artifacts. However, the future diary user could not get in the good graces of the monopolizers. Why? Because the future diary user was an idiot. In addition, the future diary that was a S-grade hero-grade artifact had a critical weakness. Maybe that was the reason. It was true that Japan benefited greatly from the future diary at first, but the future diary user was assassinated by a different seer in the future. 
that seer would go on to become a monopolizer and make his name as the monarch of fate. One that was why he had not paid much attention to her. She would end up dying anyway. However, things are different if the situation is going to be like this. It didn't matter whatever that idiot did, but it was a problem if he ended up being negatively impacted because of her. It was quite a terrible feeling to have someone read your every action and movement. Because of that let's take care of the future diary now. There was no reason not to take care of something that was getting in your way. There was also another reason he needed to take care of her now. Chairman Kwan is tied to the future diary. According to the information from Abe, the TKBM group was involved in the future diary research. That was Chairman Kwan's company. Of course, it wasn't weird that Chairman Kwan was working with Japan. The Chairman Kwan in the past had been close with Japan as well. However, Ju Hian did not know that he had been connected to the future diary early on. This was because Ju Hian had not gotten involved with Chairman Kwan until he was already a monopolizer. You son of a bitch. You must have used the future diary to gather up a bunch of artifacts early on. So, this would be great. He would hinder Chairman Kwan's path. Ju Hian packed his bag and headed out to the living room. It was a 20 Piang small villa. Two the digital clock on the wall said it was 9 a.m. Clunk. His roommate Kim Dong Hyun came out yawning from the other room as Ju Hian opened the front door. Where are you going so early in the morning when you said you quit your job? Ah, uh, I have something I need to do. Are you going to eat dinner at home? Yeah, I'll be home by dinner. I guess you have lunch plans. Is it a woman? Where are you eating? Hmm, Japan. Shinjuku has a killer lunch menu. Ah, uh, yeah, Japan Shinjuku is great enjoy your meal. However, his friend questioned what he heard a moment later. Wait a minute, Japan. Shinjuku. The country next to ours. He completely woke up from the shock. Hey. You are going to get on a plane to go eat lunch. Unfortunately, Ju Hian was already gone. Kaya. Sasaki Yuka, the future diary user. Sasaki who was in her third year of middle school this year almost fainted and died from shock while reading the old book. It was because of what she read in this old book that smelled of mold. I, damn it, what the hell. Words continued to appear on the old book she threw in shock. She didn't know the contents. The words appearing in the book were an old hanja that was not used much anymore, and even the writing style was different than modern text. There was no way that someone like Sasaki who preferred to write even her own name in katakana rather than hanja would be able to read such ancient text. But I can still tell what it said this time that was the case. No matter how stupid she was, there was no way she wouldn't know the character. Furthermore, how could she not be scared when that phrase appeared over and over on that page and the pages after it? Sasaki is going to die. 3 What the hell is this? Sasaki started to cry. At this point, it seemed more like a curse letter than a prophecy. This started to happen after those old men made me do something weird. Sasaki was bawling now. Her bed in this luxurious mansion that was over hundreds of payang in size was filled with beauty magazines, fashion magazines, and celebrity gossip magazines she enjoyed. There was also a hanja dictionary and texts to help her decipher ancient texts, but she didn't care for those. There were traces of her trying to copy ancient texts on a notepad, but it was in the trash can as if she got tired after trying for a few pages. She turned toward the large picture of a handsome male idol on the wall and started to sniffle. I wouldn't listen to those old men if it wasn't for our handsome Sosuke. She had received the future diary on her way home from school. This all started because she kicked the dirty book she saw on the ground. That weird book seemed to be trying to say something like how she had been the first woman to kick it and started to follow Sasaki everywhere. It would go into her backpack, follow her into convenience stores, and even to the restroom. The book followed Sasaki no matter if she ripped it, burned it or threw it away. The Prime Minister and some soldiers had come to pick her up when she went to the psychiatric hospital thinking she was going crazy. They said something about how they heard about artifacts and the future diary from TKBM's Chairman Kwan, but Sasaki didn't care about that. Wa, Sosuke. Sosuke, save me. 
Of course, she was not complaining about her current life. She got to live in a huge house she could only dream of, her family didn't have to work so hard anymore, and she could do whatever she wanted to do. Furthermore, she was now chatting with her idol, Nakamura Sosuke. Sasaki thought that he was the most handsome man in the world. That was why she was happy. She couldn't go to school or see her friends. Other than that and the fact that these scary-looking old men kept an eye on her and made her study ancient texts, everything was great. But she had ended up like this after starting to trace a Korean tomb raider or whatever at those old men's request. Wah, even Mr. Abe ended up that way. Sasaki was scared thinking that the same thing would happen to her. The ugly old men from the government were saying that she was the great priestess who would save Japan, but Sasaki didn't give two shits about the country. Mommy, the Korean is coming to kill me, he's coming to kill me. Her friends had told her that Korean men were handsome, tall, and had good manners, but he was coming as an assassin. The most important things to her right now were her life and Sosuke, the most handsome man in the world. No. I can't die like this. Sasaki gulped after opening the old book again. Sushi at its birthplace really is delicious. Shinjuku. There was a famous high-class sushi restaurant here that people would wait hours in line to try. Of course, Juhian was able to enjoy the delicious taste without waiting as it won't get famous for a couple more years. Juhian really was eating lunch in Shinjuku. Juhian knew about a lot of delicious places because he had to travel the world for artifacts. The only difference was that he used to fly everywhere with a private jet he received from Chairman Kwan for his excavation team to use. Ju Hien looked at the time visible on his cell phone as he sat in his private room and put another piece of fatty tuna in his mouth. It had been about one hour since he came into this sushi restaurant. It's about time they showed up. Ju Hien smiled as he looked inside his backpack. There was a note filled with messages about killing Sasaki Yuka in his backpack. It was because Ju Hien knew the traits of the S-grade legendary hero-grade future diary. The future diary definitely read people's futures. The effects were greater when it involved a Japanese person or Japan, with the future being written in the book in real time. However, all artifacts have weaknesses and the future diary has a critical weakness. She could only read the future of people she saw with her own eyes. She had to see the person face to face to be able to mark them and read their future. That is why the chances of being placed in danger are high. This was the reason she was instantly killed by the future monarch of fate in the past. Of course, the fact that Ju Hien's future was being read right now was being done in a slightly different way. Although he had not been marked, he was being influenced by the fact that he had been next to Abe who was marked. That would be why a bit of Ju Hien's future had been read, but she would not be able to read anything in detail. She should come out to mark me properly. That was why Ju Hien had written many pages of curses toward Sasaki. She was the master of the future diary. There was no way the future diary would not tell her about such malice toward its master. Ju Hien believed that Sasaki and the Japanese bastards would approach him on their own volition after knowing his location. Then Ju Hien would take care of her with Muramesa. And lo and behold. It is confirmed. It is definitely the Muramesa Kodachi. There was a tale observing Ju Hien. The one who said that was the expert. Who was stealthily handling sushi in the kitchen. It does seem to be that Korean tomb raider. His real identity was a member of the JSDF excavation team pretending to be an employee. There were at least five people like that. They were disguised as employees or customers after hearing Sasaki's story and stealthily coming here to capture Ju Hien. They did not want to cause a commotion. The enemy was a Korean person and they didn't want to tell the world details about artifacts. Colonel Muri who heard the reports from the JSDF members responded. Good. Tell Sasaki to mark him. Remind her to do it stealthily. Yes sir. They looked toward Sasaki after hearing Colonel Muri's response. Sasaki, are you ready? Sasaki started to pout. She was disguised as an employee as well. She did it so that she could mark Ju Hien. Do I really have to go? You'll be fine since we are right here. You need to look into the person's eyes to mark them anyway. But what if I get caught? 
That bastard does not know your face. You'll be fine. The soldiers who were disguised as sushi chefs handed Sasaki a beautifully plated sushi dish. Make sure you succeed. TSK. Sasaki started to walk toward Juhian's room. However, Sasaki was frowning. It'd be one thing if this was something Sosuke wanted me to do, but why do I have to listen to these ugly old men? However, she quickly put on a smile as she did not want to die. Screech. The door opened um, I have the extra dish you ordered. Juhian and Sasaki made eye contact. Juhian and Sasaki's expressions changed for different reasons. She's here. Juhian was smiling with murderous intent. Eek, unbelievable. He's more handsome than Sosuke. Sasaki's heart was thumping in shock. Chapter, 18. She was a third-year middle school student this year. Sasaki who was at that age where she could get a heart attack by just looking at men was really shocked after looking at Juhian. He seemed to be in his early twenties. Although he was sitting down, she could tell that he was tall, and he was neither too skinny like an anchovy or fat. Of course, he had a simple dandy cut and was just wearing a black turtleneck shirt and jeans. He was dressed like a regular person compared to her favorite idol, Sosuke. However Kia. He's perfect. Ike men. One he's so handsome. Rather than the clothes making the person, the person was making the clothes look good in this situation. His facial features gave him a manly look while giving off the vibe that would look great on TV. Kia. He's the best. He gives off the wealthy young master vibe. He's a total prince charming. Of course, this was all just Sasaki's imagination. Forget a prince, this tomb raider was someone who wouldn't even go easy on women if they were his enemy. Although it was true that Juhian was quite handsome, the problem was that although the outside was perfect, the inside was not the ideal man Sasaki was looking for. And lo and behold. Juhian was smiling with murderous intent as he looked at Sasaki. The future diary is here. She seemed to have tried her best to disguise herself as an employee, but Juhian was familiar with Sasaki's face. Of course, this was the first time he had seen her up close and Sasaki was actually quite a cute girl. Well at least she would be if she didn't use so much makeup. She wasn't at the level of a gyru, but she definitely looked like a troublemaker. Her hair that was loosely tied on both sides was dyed bright while her accessories and makeup looked like something straight out of a fashion magazine for teens. He had no idea why she was so greedy with the amount of eyeliner she used and put fake lashes that were thicker than her hair when her face wasn't bad to start. Well, her appearance isn't important. He was planning on getting rid of her anyway. He preferred not to kill for no reason, but Sasaki was Juhian's enemy because of the future diary. It'd be one thing if she handed the future diary to him, but there was no way a Japanese informant would do that. That was why he would get rid of her with Muramesa. Juhian placed his hand on Muramesa. A JSDF soldier who noticed that quickly put his hand on his gun inside his pocket. Did Sasaki somehow get found out? He didn't plan on killing a foreigner in the middle of the city, but it was different if he picked up the sword first. However, Juhian was smiling. Let's see how you act. He already knew that JSDF soldiers were disguised as employees. They seemed to have tried hard to disguise themselves, but it was useless. It's obvious, you idiots. There was no way someone like Juhian who was familiar with places where people died would be unable to tell the difference between the soldiers who had murderous intent and regular civilians. I already checked all of them earlier. That was why Juhian had already done something in preparation. And then, as Juhian was about to take Muramesa out Onyai-san, can I be your fan? An unexpected situation happened. Silence filled the room for a moment. Both Juhian and the JSDF soldiers outside flinched at Sasaki's unexpected comment. They all questioned their ears for a moment. Then they started to think. What could this be? Is this the JSDF bastard's plan? That was what Juhian was thinking as he started to frown. What? Did Colonel Muri give her a separate order? What the hell is going on? Is this part of the plan? Did the future diary tell her to do this? The JSDF soldiers were in a state of chaos. 
The first person to speak was Ju Hian. What did you just say? He sounded slightly annoyed. That made Sasaki start to speak again as if she realized what she said was not right either. No, that's not it. Sasaki peeked around for a moment before closing the sliding door. The soldiers hiding outside were shocked at this action. Sasaki, what are you doing? Why did you close the door? We can't see anything. They were all looking from the kitchen, among the tables, different areas around the restaurant. They could only chat amongst themselves now that they couldn't see anything. What is going on? Have you heard anything about this, sir? Do you think it is Colonel Murray's orders? Shall we barge in? They all debated for a moment before coming to a decision. Let's wait and see. It could be a plan to seduce that Korean. Sasaki is a proud Japanese citizen after all. I'm sure she is thinking about the country. She must be doing this because she knows that there will be a lot of damage if we cause a scene here. I, I guess Sasaki is indeed the saintess who will save our country. Yes. No matter how she looked, she was the future diary artifact user who was representing the country. They should trust her. Unfortunately, they were making a terrible mistake. Forget making a plan to save the country Sasaki just wanted to get Juhian's number. The reason she closed the door was because the soldiers would get in her way. Can you please give me your number? Sasaki handed Juhian her phone with sparkling eyes once they were alone. Juhian was about to pick up Muramesa because he was annoyed before flinching at what he saw on Sasaki's screen. All sorts of images Juhian could never expect was on there. TT Kia, handsome Oniai san. Fell for you at first sight. I am the future diary user. Dash, I want to get to know you better. Do you have a girlfriend? The text had no kanji and was full of emoticons and shortened phrases mainly used by girls as they text. Ju Hian started to contemplate hard. He was thinking that nobody could be this stupid. He had met all sorts of Japanese people while exploring tombs but he had never met someone like this before. What the hell could she be thinking? She even revealed her true identity to him. Was it an act? Could that be it? Was she going to pretend to be friendly before stabbing him in the back? Or was there a different future? Ju Hian knew a lot about the future diary. The things it said should be similar to what he imagined. Sasaki started to get nervous as Ju Hian just stared at her. She seemed to have realized something because she started to type on her phone again. She then handed it to Ju Hian. I fall in love. I future see. You and I friend. A you okay? And Gliss friend I are you? She seemed to have thought she was using English because she realized Ju Hian was a foreigner. But it just gave Ju Hian a headache. Ju Hian wanted to rip the text apart and give her English composition lessons but it was fine. He understood what she wanted. That was why Ju Hian took the phone and wrote something before showing it to Sasaki. Sasaki's face lit up after seeing the response. Something happened at that moment. Clang. Bang. Kaya. Why did the table suddenly? The loud noise distracted the JSDF soldiers outside. They turned their heads to see customers who were shocked that their table suddenly flipped over. It happened at that moment. Ah. Sasaki. They saw Juhian and Sasaki. Juhian and Sasaki had run away from the restaurant during the chaos. That made the soldiers drop their jaws in shock. T, those punks. Chase them right now. You can kill the male. Yes sir. However, it was at that moment. Ju Hian who seemed to be smiling at the soldiers mumbled something. The soldiers suddenly screamed as they fell. Boom. Something tripped the soldiers before starting to bind them. Ah. What is this? That was the rope that Ju Hian had stealthily released in the restaurant. The rope that had been slithering around the restaurant like a snake had flipped the table over earlier before getting excited and tying the soldiers up. It was moving extremely fast. The soldiers who were tied up around their chest and legs as if they were enjoying some BDSM rope harness started to scream. What is this? Damn it, let go of me. Let me go. Chase them. 
We're all dead if we let them escape. But. T, this weird rope. Damn it, Sasaki I. L, locate them first. We have a tracker on her. But I can't use my H, hand because I am tied up. This is bad. We can't even cut this with the sashimi knife. Then contact headquarters first. Give them information on the mail. I unders M, MMPH. Damn it, this damn rope bastard is covering his mouth. Cut this first. Hurry MMPH. However, the rope who was given orders by Juhi and tied the male soldiers up even tighter as they flailed around. I caught a big fish, I caught a big fish. The only thing the soldiers could do was scream after being tied up by the excited sun and moon rope. They ended up becoming the entertainment for people who stopped by and took pictures. It would not be long before these pictures went viral on the internet. Sasaki was extremely happy. Then do you want to flee with this Oni-san for a bit in the name of love? She never expected to get such a response. Sasaki started to blush after seeing Juhi and lead her to an alley without many people. Weren't they moving too fast to come to such a secluded place to start? Hee <laughs> hee, I don't know. I finally got to come out so I'll just play around until the old misters show up and then go home. When else would she get a chance like this? And then I have the advantage because I already marked him. She had a wicked smile on her face. Juhian also seemed to have artifacts on him but they wouldn't be able to affect her future diary. If all else fails, she could use the future diary to make a deal with him or escape. This Oni-san would probably give her everything she wanted for the future diary just like Sosuke and the Japanese government had done. However, she needed to quickly realize something. She needed to understand that the person in front of her was not an easy prey. I'm, Oni-san. What is your name? How old are you? Do you know who Nakamura Sosuke is? What is your favorite food Kia? Sasaki screamed. Crack. It was because her cell phone that was in Juhian's hand broke. Kaya. My phone. Juhian ruthlessly destroyed Sasaki's phone. It was because he needed to destroy the tracker and the GPS on the phone. However, Sasaki started to cry as she had no way of knowing that was his reason. Wow. Why did you do that? That phone had a voicemail from Sosuke saved on it. Negotiate right now. The JSDF misters will follow the tracker here and will make you negotiate right away. She cried and started to complain but she could not help but shut up. Gasp. A sharp blade was touching her neck. It was Muramesa. Sasaki plopped down on the ground and Juhian smiled as he started to speak. You mean compensate, not negotiate. You idiot. Sasaki flinched in shock before keeping her mouth shut. The way Juhian was smiling made her feel like she would die if she even said the C in compensate. A, hey, aren't we going on a date? Juhian smiled brightly at that question. We're already on a date. Eek. T, this is a date. Juhian smiled without caring about the fact that Sasaki's mind was in a state of chaos. All right, now that this Oni-san went on a date with you, why don't we talk some business? He was smiling but Sasaki's instincts were telling her something. She might be young and stupid, but even she could tell this part. M, mommy. He's not a prince. The person in front of her was not a prince on a white horse but an evil demon king. However, it was too late to realize that. This was just the start of a time of fear for her. Chapter, 19 Well mommy, I must have been crazy. Totally crazy. Sasaki almost started to cry tears of blood at her stupid actions. What was she thinking, asking this person for his number? What was she thinking, following this man here? Where had she gotten the confidence that this man would not kill her? The only thing she knew was that the person she angered was this demon king. Sub, mommy, daddy, I'm sorry. I should have listened to you when you said a man's face isn't everything. Unfortunately, there was nobody here to help her even if she cried. She could only do as Juhian ordered her to do. First, turn around. Sasaki sniffled and did as she was told after hearing Juhian speak in a low voice. Raise your arms. Sob. 
Ju Hien lightly patted her upper and lower body. He didn't know because she was wearing a loose uniform, but Sasaki's waist was narrow and she was more voluptuous than she looked. Of course, none of this was important to Ju Hien. The girl in front of him was a minor. The thing that he cared about right now was whether there was another tracker on her. Nothing that stands out. The only thing he could consider to be a tracker was the ribbon hairpin. But he took that and stomped on it so that it was destroyed. Now they should have no way of tracking her. However, Sasaki became completely scared after seeing what Juhian just did. Juhian didn't care as he peeked at the time and started to speak to Sasaki. Then how about you go to a great place with this Oni-san now? His smile was extremely ominous. The place Juhian took Sasaki was a room cafe. Sasaki became hopeful that they were having a date but Juhian got a room assigned before saying something as soon as they entered the room. Bind. Kaya. He had used the rope artifact that had returned at some point. The rope that had been in the shape of a bracelet started to bind Sasaki as soon as Juhian gave the order. Naturally, it was in the shape of a BDSM rope harness. The rope crawled all over Sasaki's body and quickly tied her chest, stomach, between her legs and her arms Sasaki who was tied up could only cry as she looked toward Juhian. M. 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 P. H. What is this? I'm going to scream and call someone over. Juhian let out a quiet sigh. He didn't know whether to praise or scold this rope. He had no way of knowing if this was this artifact's personal preferences or if it thought Juhian would like it if it bound people up like this. He had her bound because he didn't want her to say she was going to the restroom and run away, but Sasaki would definitely scream if things continued like this and he could end up being arrested for kidnapping. There was nothing worse than to convince someone who was resisting you. That was why Juhian came to a conclusion. I hope you can be understanding that this date is a little rough. This is this Oni-san style. That made Sasaki who trusted people too easily gasp before stopping her flailing. D date? Her face then turned completely red. Is that why he brought me to a room cafe? Of course, Sasaki had never even held hands with a man before, but she had heard some stories about room cafes from her friends. They said it was a decently private place where they could show affection to each other without being seen. She then thought that Juhian would have taken her to a storage facility or something instead of a place like this if Juhian really was a bad person. Although nobody knows what Sasaki was imagining, she looked embarrassed as she looked toward Juhian. But still, doing something like this from our F, first meeting. Juhian didn't even pretend to listen. He was just trying not to be mistaken for a criminal. Nobody would be able to say anything if he answered that they were on a date later. That was why he went and picked up the notepad inside the room. And then bang. He slammed it down in front of Sasaki who was having some wild thoughts. Sasaki who seemed to have been expecting something looked toward Juhian in shock. Forget sweet displays of affection, the only things in front of her were a notepad and a pen. Sasaki started to sweat after realizing this too familiar situation. And, no way. Lo and behold, Juhian smiled wickedly as he started to speak. Take out the future diary. Write down everything you see. I will slice your neck if you get even a single character wrong. That was clearly what Juhian's sharp glare was telling her. Write down everything on the future diary. Sasaki became anxious after hearing Juhian's request. It was because she didn't have the future diary on her. T. The future diary is at home. That was why the JSDF let Sasaki out as well. The JSDF was always guarding the future diary. They would never allow her to leave the house with the future diary. Juhian started to laugh at that response. It doesn't matter. Excuse me. Juhian then grabbed Sasaki's arm in a slightly rough way. There was a mysterious tattoo on Sasaki's arm. It was Tumblif. Juhian snorted after seeing the tattoo. This tattoo, it appeared after you started using the future diary, am I right? T, that is true. Then touch this tattoo and call for the future diary. You will be able to call it here. But. I can force you to call it if you don't want to do it. N, not at all. F, future diary. 
the tattoo flashed and an old book appeared on the table. The shocked Sasaki was wondering what was going on, but Juhian did not seem shocked at all. It was an obvious reaction. This was one of the ways of controlling an artifact. W, what happened? I'll free your hand for now so shut up and write down everything that appears on the future diary. I'll kill you if you miss anything. Eek. That was how Sasaki ended up Juhian's prisoner and had to write down all the information that popped up in the future diary. There's still a lot of time before I need to return home. He could take care of the future diary with Muramesa. However, wouldn't it be a waste to just destroy the future diary and go home since things were like this? This was especially true because he now knew that Chairman Quan was related to the future diary. What did that mean? Zhu Hian started to laugh. Chairman Quan's future will be in here too. That was the case. Zhu Hian was aiming for information on Chairman Quan. Chairman Quan was helping the Japanese government. He would have definitely had Sasaki look into his own future. In that case, the future diary should show that bastard's future as well. This was a chance. It's annoying to deal with an S-grade legendary hero-grade artifact anyway. Rather than working hard to dominate the future diary himself, it was faster to have Sasaki read the information and then getting rid of it. He could currently easily dominate any artifact up to the B-grade rare-grade artifacts, but anything from the A-grade treasure-grade artifacts and up would require some difficult fighting of will to eventually dominate it. That was why he would lose to anything S-grade or higher right now. Actually, Ju Hian had to firm his resolve because anything above an A-grade artifact was worlds apart than those under it. Well, I'm sure Sasaki's one of the people with a high affinity rather than dominance. She had been selected by the artifact after all. However, it was not good to just have high affinity. Having high affinity meant that it was easy for that person to handle artifacts, but it also meant that they looked down on the person. They are basically a sitting duck. Sasaki would end up being poisoned by the artifact and die within one or two years if she continued to use the future diary with affinity alone. Anyway, make sure you get nothing wrong as you write things down. I'll kill you if you write anything weird. Sasaki flinched and quickly looked down at the notepad after seeing Juhian slightly take Muramesa out of its scabbard. Her face was full of tears and snot, but she frantically started to write because she was afraid Juhian would kill her if she stopped to wipe them away. Once about four hours had passed Sasaki had written a shocking amount of information on the notepad compared to her usual self. She had filled up the entire notepad. Of course, Sasaki had no choice but to do so. She had asked if she could rest for a bit, only to be told, do you want me to help you rest forever? When she said that her hand hurt, she had been told, I'm sure it would hurt more if you lost your hand. Even when she asked him if she could go to the restroom, he just told her, take care of it here. So what would happen if she stopped writing things down? Sasaki handed the notepad back to Juhian as she sniffled. Sob, sob, I'm sorry. I did it because I just wanted to chat with you, Onyai-san. Sob. Sosuke, I'm sorry for looking at someone else. I was told Korean men were gentle, nice, and considerate. Juhian who had been looking through the notepad let out a snort. Who told you that? M, my friends. Based on what? Korean dramas. Those damn dramas. They were always the reason children had weird fantasies. Ju Hian clicked his tongue and flipped the page on the notepad. Sasaki had no idea what she wrote down, but it was easy for Ju Hian who could even read ancient texts easily. Information on the JSDF, artifacts Japan will get in the future, locations of tombs, trends in Japan, etc. Unfortunately, the information Ju Hian wanted the most was not there. Is there nothing about Chairman Kwan? However, it was at that moment. An unexpected prophecy was written on the next page. It looked like a code but it was definitely information on Chairman Kwan. That was why Ju Hian started to smile. I found it. He was lucky. However, good things always comes with some bad things. Sir, what seems to be the case? Sir. We are conducting an investigation. Ju Hian started to listen to the loud noises outside the room. Sasaki turned her head after hearing a familiar voice. Onyai-san, 
it's Colonel Muri. Those bastards seem to have tracked Sasaki down. Although he had destroyed all of the tracking devices, it was not weird that they found them. There were many methods of finding them, such as checking the footages on the CCTVs throughout the area. He had expected them to show up sooner or later. It was actually quite slow that they took four hours to get here. The room Juhian was in was surrounded by the JSDF. Don't move. Bang. The room door was slammed open. There were about ten soldiers from the JSDF standing there. Colonel Muri who was too high in rank to normally personally be on site was grinding his teeth as he looked at Juhian. Where is the future diary that disappeared? Juhian smiled as he leisurely waved the book around. Are you looking for this? Colonel Muri's face flushed with anger after seeing it in Juhian's hand. You! You damn bastard, it really was you who took the future diary. On the other hand, Sasaki looked toward Juhian with a pale expression. It looked like Juhian was going to die. However, she was even more scared at the fact that Juhian didn't even flinch at the situation. What could he be thinking? The JSDF shouted even louder at that moment. Hey Korean! Put down the future diary. And if I don't want to? Ho, oh, you don't seem to understand the current situation. Do you think you can escape from here? Juhian snorted at them. You morons are the ones who don't understand the situation. You dare to show up to an artifact user without any artifacts. Juhian who had his other hand in his pocket channeled his dominance into an artifact to activate it. A bright light flashed in the room. It was the sun and moon Tiak that Juhian had taken from Abe along with the rope. Delicious Tiak sold by a Madam C grade general grade, consumable artifact, instant food single-use Juhian used the moment to ruthlessly stab the future diary with Miramesa. There was another shriek before another light flashed in the room. Chapter 20 Juhian could hear the future diary scream as the light flashed. It should be quite painful. It was none other than Muramesa that pierced through the future diary. It wasn't just because it was sharp or because it was a whitey. One Muramesa. There were folk tales about this whitey Muramesa that often showed up in video games that said it cursed the Tokugawa household, the rulers of Edo at the time. Of course, it wasn't actually cursed, but the fact that three generations of Tokugawa men ended up having terrible situations related to the sword made them dispose of the sword, making people believe it to be a cursed katana. Anyway, this was an artifact born with such a tale as its background. Thanks to that, the true abilities of this blade was curses and destruction. The curses and destruction would become stronger when it went up against stronger artifacts and even stronger artifact users. So it should be quite painful even if it's from a B-grade artifact. Lo and behold, the future diary was in pain because Juhian ruthlessly stabbed it with the sword. Juhian could hear it as well. He couldn't fully understand it, but it was probably something like, you insolent human bastard. It was most likely swearing him out. That wasn't it. Not only did Juhian stab it with the sword, he twisted the blade when it was inside, making it reasonable for the future diary to want to curse Juhian to death as well. Unfortunately, it didn't seem to be able to handle the attack as the future diary started to leak a black liquid that could be either blood or ink. A message popped up in front of Juhian once the artifact started to be destroyed. You have received the title of a violent artifact destroyer and your dominance has increased while your affinity has decreased. Attack-based artifacts will show stronger powers when in use. Artifact detection has increased. The spy skill has risen to E rank. You have learned about the existence of a Colossus Hunter by destroying an artifact higher in rank than you. The building they were in started to shake after many messages flashed in front of him. It was the shock from the future diary being destroyed. Boom! Ah! The building was shaking and the JSDF soldiers fell into a state of panic without thinking about leaving. It was because they saw the burning future diary once the flash of light disappeared. T. The future diary. That wasn't it. They could also see Sasaki who fainted in pain next to the future diary. C, Colonel. W, what do we do? The F, future diary, and Sasaki are. Damn it. What is going on? 
They tried to put the fire out with their clothes but the future diary slowly turned into ashes. Ah, damn it, I'm about to go crazy. They knew that this was not normal even though they knew nothing about artifacts. D, damn it. What do we do about this? What else can we do? FCK that Korean up immediately huh? They were then shocked for a different reason. Ju Hian who had been sitting in front of them until now had disappeared. What the hell? Where did he go? They urgently looked around but there were no traces of anybody leaving. They felt as if they had been possessed by a ghost. W, what happened? We were blocking the entrance. Where the hell could he have gone? It was as if he had teleported away. In his place was a suspicious food item. T, Tiak. The gazes in their eyes instantly changed after they smelled the Tiak. The activated Tiak was giving off an intense scent that made the soldiers' minds go blank. The sweet scent that struck their olfactory cells, the saltiness that got them drooling as if a devil was digging a well, and this intense aroma that made them think it would be full of flavor if they put it in their mouth. How could there be such a delicious aroma in the world? It did not seem to be from this world. Maybe that was the reason. The soldiers started to drool. At the same time the JSDF soldiers ran toward the Tiak like crazed tigers. Tiak. Hand it over. My Tiak. No, it's my Tiak. The JSDF soldiers who had instantly become crazed for the Tiak started to point their guns at each other and fight. Die. Hand over the Tiak. It's my Tiak. Bang. Ugh. Ah. This Tiak was something that let the user escape in a dangerous situation. The effects of the madam's Tiak was amazing. Hugh, nobody should be chasing me now. Juhian chuckled as he got on the plane home. Delicious Tiak sold by a madam, this was the Tiak that the tiger begged for in the Sun and Moon sibling story. The effects of that artifact was simple. Using the Tiak allowed the user to teleport away from danger. It was similar to how the madam had thrown the Tiak at the tiger and escaped danger. Of course, the distance of the teleportation was only 50m at once because it was a C-grade general grade artifact. You could teleport as many times as you want until someone eats the Tiak that was left behind. Normally, they would eat the Tiak and snap out of it to start chasing after Juhian again. However, the soldiers were fighting so much over the Tiak that Juhian was about to get two kilometers away. He then hailed a cab and easily got to the airport. Those retards. In simple terms, it was an artifact to escape from danger. This artifact was the reason he had even thought about coming to Japan. Abe seemed to have just stored it in the Wagashi case because he had no idea what it would do. Anyway, I got rid of the future diary. The only thing left should be the copy of the future diary in his possession. Of course, he did not kill Sasaki. Why? His enemy was not that young girl. There would be no benefit to get placed on the Interpol's international most wanted list already. There were already enough people like Jack the Ripper who enjoyed committing murder. It was just that the pain caused by Muramesa was transferred to Sasaki as well. The curse she received would make it hard for her body to use any artifacts in the future. Well, I guess it is better for her than to be used by the artifacts and the JDSF until she died. She could just chase after that Sosuke or whatever now. Juhian sat down on his seat and leisurely opened the notepad. The future diary was gone, but the prophecies were in his hands alone. This could be considered his precious loot from Japan. Now both Japan and Chairman Kwan who were probably running wild while relying on the future diary would end up in a state of chaos. There are about five prophecies regarding Chairman Kwan. Juhian started to frown after reading the notes. There was a prophecy on there that even shocked Juhian. I, I don't know what to say, sir. The future diary has been completely destroyed. S. Sasaki also does not seem to be able to use any artifacts anymore. The army general from the JSDF who was kneeling could not raise his head. The prime minister and the others around him who heard this information became angry. You don't know what to say. Hey! Do you even know what you all just did? They pounded their chests in anger that their dreams were gone now that they lost the future diary. The future diary. 
that was something that would have allowed them to bring all artifacts in the world to Japan. However, a single Korean person made Japan lose its direction and momentum. They had lost the strong weapon that they had been relying on. What about the excavation team that went to capture that Korean? T. That. Colonel Murray and the entire team were affected by a mysterious artifact and are currently in recovery from severe injuries. It was to the point that the excavation team was in danger of being disbanded as well. A mysterious artifact. What was it? I, I am not so sure. All of them were shouting, Tiak, so I could also assume that it had to do with a Tiak. That made them shout. Tiak. Is he messing with us? How can the entire team of JSDF soldiers lose to a damn Tiak? M, my apologies, sir. There was a woman in her twenties who slipped out of the room after hearing this conversation. Her long hair was well-groomed and her semi-formal attire looked as if she would not allow a single speck of dust to land on it. Who could this beauty be calling? A few seconds later. The woman started to speak as soon as the call went through. Department Head Nim. As mentioned previously, the future diary is confirmed to be destroyed. The JSDF soldiers seem to all have been defeated by an artifact. The person on the other side of the call scoffed. What did you say? It really did happen. The future diary is really gone. It made sense that they would be shocked as well. TKBM, more specifically, Chairman Kwan's excavation team. They were the ones who were researching the future diary and had not held back their monetary support for it. But that future diary was destroyed. It was destroyed by a single person. Ah, this is driving me nuts. I don't know who this mother of king bastard is, but why did he have to hit the future diary? The man did not seem to be able to control his anger based on his voice. What should we do? Find him and make him pay. You want to get rid of that Korean? Are we just going to let him be? We invested so much money into the future diary. There is also the idea of cooperating with the US to find him. That made the man on the other side of the call, Yun Shir Wu start to laugh. He was someone who had been Ju Hian's teammate on Chairman Kwan's excavation team in the past. Well, he was closer to an enemy than a teammate. He was the unlucky soul who had an easy life and had a fast track on the elite course before he was pushed aside by Ju Hian. Yun Shir Wu who was currently serving as Kwan Tae Jun's right-hand man since Ju Hian was not there was quite interested in this situation. Isn't it a waste? What is? The fact that he destroyed the future diary means that he is someone who is skilled enough to do that. Ho. Are you suggesting we pull him into the excavation team? Yes. Department Head Nim. Are you out of your mind? That bastard could also destroy the artifacts in the chairman's possession. He can do the same thing he did to the future diary. This was someone who ruthlessly destroyed the future diary that could prophesize the future. Who could say for sure that Chairman Kwan would be safe? However, the man started to laugh. What bullshit are you talking about? Even a bastard like that will end up your subordinate if you give them enough money. Department Head Nim. Ah, uh, enough. I need to escort Chairman Kwan to the Las Vegas underground auction in a few days. Find that Korean Tomb Raider and scout him. The chairman seems interested in him as well. Yun Shir Wu who was born with a golden spoon did not care much about this Korean guy mentioned in the prophecies. They just needed to have any of these useful individuals working for them. That was what they had done until now and that was what they would continue to do in the future. Everybody went crazy for money anyway, right? He could easily imagine what would happen in the near future. Artifacts appearing in the world. There would be quite the scramble for them. Yun Shir Wu had no doubt that Chairman Kwan would be the final victor of that scramble. At least he did until now. At a similar time. Ju Hian was finding one of the prophecies about Chairman Kwan to be quite concerning. Go to the underground arena of greed in the first month of the year. That is where the great evil, the ill omen will start. Ju Hian scrunched his face after reading that. This was a prophecy about the great tomb appearance. The same great tomb appearance that will lead the entire world to know about artifacts and tombs. 
The location in the prophecy was probably talking about Midas, the Las Vegas underground auction that he ordered Oh Sung Woo's group to attend. However, Ju Hian found that to be odd. Did the Great Tomb appearance happen this early? However, the more shocking thing was the next prophecy. A god who knows about your greed quite well will wish to go with you at that location. He was certain. A divine grade artifact would appear in that underground auction house. And although he wasn't sure, that divine grade artifact could be the pivotal artifact that helped Chairman Quan become one of the monopolizers. Now I get it. Chairman Quan must have earned something important in the Las Vegas underground auction house after seeing this prophecy from the future diary. If Oh Sung Woo gave me the right information, the January auction is in a few days. That was why Ju Hian started to smile. This was a chance. It was a chance to steal that bastard's golden wings. That day quickly arrived. Chapter, 21 This place is always so loud. Ju Hian was drinking a gin and tonic as he looked at the brightly lit night sky. It was already 8 p.m. It was also January, the middle of winter. However, this damn Las Vegas was loud without ever getting exhausted. Red light, blue light, lights flashing in all sorts of colors as well as golden colored buildings, solicitors, and tourists. This western US tourist and gambling city was the same as it was in the past. Other than the fact that it is a bit smaller. During Juhian's times, Las Vegas had grown a lot as one of the greatest auction houses for artifacts. That was why Juhian was very familiar with this desert city. The World Auction the secret underground auction nicknamed, Midas that started here. Ju Hian was waiting in the lobby of the auction house for Oh Sung Woo's group to arrive. Most people might think this was a regular restaurant, but the people with inside information knew this was the auction house's lobby. Why are these bastards not here yet? Midas was a five-day long auction. Right now, most of the items going through this secret auction house would be brand items, famous art pieces and stolen goods. It was just a place for rich people to have some fun, but it would become an artifact auction house in the future where CEOs of international corporations, the wealthy, royalty, celebrities and even political figures attended on a regular basis. Ju Hian had also frequented Midas as Chairman Quan's right-hand man. There were some celebrities, CEOs, and royalty that he got to know there as well. Although they probably saw me as thorns in their eyes. Ju Hian's infamy was extremely high because Chairman Quan used his wealth to sweep away the artifacts put up for auction. But this infamy went beyond the auction house. Chairman Quan was one of the monopolizers and his excavation team at the time had both the highest status and the highest infamy. Ju Hian was the captain of that excavation team. Of course, Ju Hian's excavation team was closer to an illegal tomb raiding team than an excavation team at the time. None of the monopolizers were able to do anything in front of Ju Hian's tomb raiding team. I wonder what the other punks are doing right about now. The teammates from his tomb raiding team as well as the monopolizers whom he had negative relationships with. All of them were talented rulers who possessed artifacts. I'm sure they are all still regular people at this point. It was at that moment. Huff, huff. We found you. C.O. Ju Hian. Ju Hian turned his head after hearing a familiar voice. He could see Oh Sung Woo's group who were wearing terribly fitting suits. Ju Hian cracked his knuckles as he welcomed them. Thirty minutes over. Oh Sung Woo's group started to shake in fear after hearing his cold tone. Ju Hian looked like a gentleman in his suit but they knew too well about this so-called gentleman's vicious nature. W, wait. H, hold on. There's a reason. What? What kind of reason? Ju Hian started to frown. However, the scared Oh Sung Woo's group pounded their chests as if something was unfair. It was hard to get in here without Kyung Ju Nunim. Listen. Damn it, why were they trying to kick us out? They sounded as if they faced some unfair treatment but Ju Hian laughed while looking at them. They would be able to tell if they looked in a mirror. That was the case. Their faces were one thing, but their outfits were more the reason. They seemed to have dressed up as Midas's dress code required formal attire, but their shirts were the problem. 
They were wearing some old-fashioned flower pattern typical thug shirts that were in style probably 20 or 30 years ago. In addition, who knows what they did with their ties as they did not have any ties on them. TSK, anyway, what are we going to do? None of US can speak English. You need to say some weird things when you place the order to enter the auction house. Juhian tilted his head. We just need to do it. Oh Sung Woo's group pounded their chests in frustration after hearing his calm response. Like I was saying, Nunim usually did that. You should be in the dark as much as we are. Juhian chuckled and raised his hand. A waiter who seemed to have been trained well soon arrived and warmly asked. Are you ready to order, sir? Oh Sung Woo's group who seemed to have insecurities about their English quickly looked away. How can you suddenly call him over? My mind is not ready yet. However, Juhian casually looked over the menu and started to order something. Ha, ha. He sounded skilled at this. Oh Sung Woo's group's expressions slowly changed after Juhian started to say something about the auction. They went, ha. Huh? At first before their expressions reached the level of astonishment. What the hell is going on? When did this bastard learn English? Juhian's English sounded as if he was a native speaker. That wasn't the only thing. He seemed to have also joked with the waiter in the process, as they were both laughing as they chatted. The waiter and Ju Hian even looked toward Oh Sung Woo's group as they laughed. Oh Sung Woo could not help but start to shout out of frustration. Hey! What the hell are you saying right now? Are you talking shit about us? Ju Hian just scoffed at them. No. He said they were going to kick you guys out because they thought you were black consumers so I was resolving the misunderstanding. By the way, I ordered everything from top to bottom. You guys pay the bill for my helping you resolve this misunderstanding. What? Hey, hey. Ah. I also told him you guys will take care of the tip as well. The bill was already their responsibility. Either way, once that short commotion was over, Juhian was able to receive an auction catalog from the employee. Information about the items that would show up in the auction were listed in this 200-page book that was the size of one hand. There were large images of the item as well as an English descriptions of them. Ju Hian looked through each page wondering if any artifacts ended up mixed in with the items Oh Sung Woo's group whispered to each other while looking at Ju Hian. This bastard do you think he's actually reading everything? B, but more importantly, Hyung Nim, is it really okay for us to help this bastard? Shouldn't we make him pay for putting Kyung Ju Nunim and Kyung Tae Hyung Nim behind bars? That's right. We came out here with extraterritoriality, so why don't we take care of him here? Oh Sung Woo stepped on his lackey's foot and glared at him when he tried to get up. Are you confident you can beat him right now? They all became quiet. It was definitely not possible. How could they take down this monster-like bastard? They might end up getting shot to death trying to take care of this bastard in the US. If you think about it, what good will it do us to be loyal to people who went to prison for smuggling drugs? But. Did you already forget how the Park siblings treated us as underlings? But what? Oh Sung Woo then started to think. They were forced by Ju Hian to work right now, but he didn't know whether he could trust this young bastard who claimed they would be well compensated based on how well they did. Shit, what do I do? You said there are three JKs. Oh Sung Woo's group flinched at Ju Hian's question and quickly handed him a document. Uh, uh. Yeah. It's these guys. They must have some connections with an auction house employee as they were able to gather information on JK. Ju Hian looked at this well-compiled document and started to smile. These kind of bastards are useful too. There was a limit to getting this kind of information from the auction house for his current self. He needed Park Kyung Ju's company to qualify to get into the auction house this time as well. That was why it should be useful to boss these bastards around until he didn't need them anymore. Of course, there were ways for him to get this information if he really wanted to do so, but he had too much to do to pay attention to such trivial things. Although it looks like I need to train them some more since they seem to be getting some funny ideas. Oh Sung Woo who had no way of knowing about Ju Hian's dark thoughts started to sweat bullets as he explained the situation to Ju Hian. There are three JKs. 
but all of them have different nationalities and occupations, so. R. Right. I heard one of them is a woman, a Hollywood actress. The other is a man who seems to be a rich golden spoon artist. The third is a writer. They all seem to be using fake names so I can't really tell, is the person you are looking for among those three? It happened as the Oh Sung Woo group clicked their tongues thinking it could have all been for nothing. They saw that Ju Hian was smiling as he looked at the document. No, the person is in here. They were shocked. What? Who is it? I, is it the A, actress? Ju Hian just smiled while looking at the document of participants they brought over. Actress my ass. Ju Hian's eyes started to glare at one of the three people on the list. I knew you would come. Chairman Kwan. He was certain. The fact that the bastard was here meant that the chances of artifacts appearing in this auction house was high. Maybe he was born with an innate sense of detecting artifacts or something, but there were always artifacts wherever that man went. That was why Ju Hian's hands became busy looking through the catalog. And lo and behold. There are some. Ju Hian's hand stopped moving. Ju Hian found multiple artifacts in the catalog. The Code of Hammurabi. Shakespeare's pen. There were some other ones as well. A bracelet, a toy, a cigarette, they were all in different forms, but their cores remained intact for Ju Hian to be able to tell. I don't see any divine grade artifacts, what could be going on? The prophecy mentioned a divine grade artifact at the auction. Did I miss it? Oh Sung Wu tilted his head in confusion as he watched Ju Hian. There were limited edition 20th century luxury bags, a Van Gogh painting and even wine that could sell for billions of dollars on the catalog. It was fine to pass those items because they couldn't afford them, but why was Ju Hian marking such weird items? However, they couldn't help but scream after looking at an item Ju Hian selected. Starting bid of $2 billion. They thought it wasn't much, but some of them were extremely expensive. However, what shocked them more was what Ju Hian said next. There are a few items I need to win. Oh Sung Wu foamed at the mouth after hearing that. Hey. A, are you saying you are going to win all of those items you checked? Is there an issue? Hey. The fact that you want to win something at Midas makes no sense at all. There are CEOs of large corporations bidding for these items. Even Park Kyung Ju had only come to the Midas auction to build connections and watch, not to bid. How was he planning to do anything in this battlefield of giants? Hey! Let's say that the items you picked are not popular. But they are all in the hundred millions dollars range to start. Where are you going to get that money? However, Ju Hian just smiled at him. We just need to earn some money. W. What? Did you forget that we are in the city of gambling? The Oh Sung Wu group were shocked after understanding the meaning behind Ju Hian's words. G. Gambling. Are you thinking about hitting a jackpot or something? You think that is possible? What if it is? What? Ju Hian then took out a gold knife from his pocket. It was the gold axe from the gold axe silver axe pair. He had disguised it as a knife to make it easy to carry around. You bought a map of the area right? Take it out. Why, you punk, I have no idea what you are thinking. Oh Sung Woo sounded shocked but still took out the tourist map of Las Vegas from his pocket. Ju Hian did not care what they were thinking. He could increase his wealth. He just needed to find the ideal spot to increase his wealth. This gold axe would help him do that. Gold Axe Silver Axe, Gold Axe B-Grade, Rare Grade Consumable Artifact Remaining Uses 941100 Similar to how the Gold Axe Silver Axe brought wealth for the honest woodcutter, this artifact was one that helped bring wealth to its master. The Gold Axe's ability was to pinpoint places that gave off the scent of money, riches, or treasures. In simple terms, it could locate places that would make the user rich. Okay then, pinpoint the place where a jackpot will happen today. Go, gold axe. Ju Hian activated the artifact and threw the knife into the air. And then stab. The knife shined with a gold light before stabbing into a spot on the map. Ju Hian started to smile as he looked at the map. Alright then, shall I go hit a jackpot? Chapter, 22. 
Clang, clang, clang. The Oh Sum Wu group could only watch what was going on with their jaws dropped. The sound of chips being piled, the sound of marbles spinning, and even the clanking sound of the slot machines running. There were even crazy gamblers who were betting their wives and children in front of them. Ho! We're here. They had ended up in this place. This was the goodbye world the casino in Las Vegas with the highest stakes. The Oh Sung Wu group knew too well about the horror stories of this place. This was a cursed place that anybody who came to Las Vegas knew about. There was supposedly nobody who left this place without being ruined. However, jackpots that transcended any and all imaginations also happened here because of all the money and luck that others lost. There were examples of people who hit a jackpot in this place and became a top-tier Hollywood actor, a president who was praised as being the greatest president in history, a doctor who was described as having godly medical skills, etc. Was that the reason? Many Hollywood actors and political figures came to this place, superstitious of the luck that they could also receive. But there are many more people who leave bankrupt. That might be the reason for it. Ju Hian looked at the gold axe thinking that it picked quite a devilish place to start. How fitting for these damn artifact bastards. Did it want to see him fall to ruin? However, it wasn't as if the effects of the artifact would disappear because it wanted him to fail. What he was certain of was that a jackpot would happen here today. Artifacts always tried to take advantage of humans but their abilities did not lie. That was why how you train and use an artifact could turn it into an angel or a devil. Work a little more. Go, gold axe. Juhian smiled as he started to walk around while holding the knife. He picked a slot machine instead of a table. The knife's blade was folded in and it was only the size of his palm, making it so others could not see it. After he walked around holding that knife for a long time he started to get a reaction from one of the slot machines against the wall. The gold axe started to faintly glow blue. Then the blue light started to flicker as if it was breathing. Juhian started to smile while looking at it. Good. This will be round one. He sat down at the slot machine in the corner. He put six into the machine and pulled the lever. Clunk. The slot machine's reel gently started to roll. That was how the story of the legendary man who would end up on the blacklist in the gambling city of Las Vegas got started. Bombarabam. People could not hide their shock. They were wondering if what they were looking at was real. The numerous guests in the casino as well as the casino dealers and employees all questioned their eyes. No, this was not at the level of just questioning their eyes. What was going on was something that went against all sense of rationality in the human mind. T, that is the devil. The other observers agreed with that sentiment that someone shared. The devil? They were looking at pulled the lever again. The slot machine started to move again and an image appeared on the screen. The first column was a 7. The second column a few seconds later was a 7. And the final one. The observers gulped and focused on the final column. Their eyes were all focused on the reel and not willing to move. CH. The reel finally started to slow down and passed an orange, a watermelon, a plum, and cherry, and then bambararabam. 77 The perfect line of numbers was completed. All observers' jaws dropped as they watched. It had happened. He had hit the jackpot again. The winning amount for the jackpot this time was 500, 000, 000 approximately 500 million one. This is crazy. This made the tourists who came over and lost their entire fortune in the casino start to pull at their hair. They had lost so much money until now and this guy was easily making hundreds of thousands of dollars. Oh my god. It's a jackpot. Asians, Americans, absolutely everybody could not hide their shock as they looked at Juhian. They would not have been this shocked to see someone become the lucky recipient of a jackpot. I saw it. That Asian man has hit the jackpot tens of times already. He's earned 10 million 10 billion one already. What? 10 million dollars. Is this a scam? He won 2 million at once at Goodbye World. That's crazy. The Goodbye World that's known for how hard it is to win there. Of course, Ju Hian had not hit the jackpot right now. 
He was winning a lot but only enough money that would still be considered a low amount. However, he started to hit the jackpot at some point and won 2 million with the first jackpot followed by hitting jackpots multiple times in other casinos for a total of 10 million 10 billion won. That wasn't the only thing. He swept pretty much everything away from the casinos if you include his lower winnings as well. It was to the point that an employee showed up and said, something must be wrong with the machine and checked it out. They even checked Juhian to see if he had any suspicious devices on him. However, they could check for a hundred days and still find nothing. Juhian's only crime was putting money into the machine normally and pulling the lever. If they wanted to call it a scam, they would need to ask the normal looking tourist souvenir knife he had on him. Furthermore, nobody would believe the story if they were told that all of this had happened in a span of one hour. This was the reason Oh Sung Woo could not close his mouth either. T, T, this bastard. H, he's crazy. He's really crazy. I thought it was weird from the moment he won two million from Goodbye World. They wondered if this was a dream. However, Ju Hien just chuckled at their response. They were causing such a fuss for just 500, 000, 500 million one to 10 million 10 billion one. It won't be fun if they are like this already. The gambling is just getting started. Ju Hien then laughed at the message that appeared in front of his eyes. You forced even the machines to admire you and spit money out. Using your bizarre hand trick increased the mastery level of your dexterity skill. The dexterity skills level has increased. The dexterity skill has risen to E rank. Dominance and affinity has both increased slightly, allowing you to handle artifacts a little better. It looked as if his dexterity had been accepted as playing a role for his great gambling. Dealers wearing red clothes approached Ju Hien as he got up. There was even a beautiful Korean dealer they brought over on purpose knowing that Ju Hien was Korean. Esteemed guest, may we ask which hotel you are staying in right now? Are you staying in this hotel? Ah. Other people would not want to miss out on the chance to stay in one of the most luxurious hotels, but unfortunately, Ju Hien had been asked this question at five other hotels as well. That was why he handed his passport and repeated his answer. I have no plans on staying in this hotel. I am not changing them for chips either. I will head to the counter and redeem all of it for cash. The employee seemed shocked after hearing Ju Hien's practiced answer. Uh, uh, please wait a moment. I will escort you to the VIP room. However, Ju Hien just walked past her. I will not be going. I don't have much time. Just bring the report form to the counter. The others in my group should be chatting with them by now. Yes, yes sir. Please wait a moment. Ju Hien used that opening to move to a different casino. It was in a hotel that was only 30m away from the casino he was just at. Clang, clang. Ju Hien smiled while looking at the gold axe that was shining in excitement. Looks like I'll make quite a lot of money in this hotel. The image of hundreds of people screaming in shock. He could see people who were so addicted to gambling that they were leading themselves to ruin all around him. A message popped up at the same time. You arrived somewhere that an artifact would enjoy very much. Your affinity to artifacts has increased. The spy skills mastery has increased. Ju Hien started to laugh. The casino dealer who was warmly welcoming customers flinched as Ju Hien entered. A tall Asian man in a navy-colored suit, is, is that person perhaps? Her face turned pale before she started to run toward his manager. They too had heard about the monstrous rumor that was currently spreading throughout Las Vegas. A customer hitting one jackpot would have been enough for the news to spread, so it was no wonder that such a scary story of the same customer hitting jackpot after jackpot like a scammer would spread quickly. Information about his appearance was quickly spreading to the other casinos. And lo and behold. H, H, he's here. The money-eating hippo is here. The casino dealer gagged as she shouted, as if she had almost bitten her tongue. The manager and the dealers were astonished after hearing her shout. What did you say? The money-eating hippo. That money-sucking devil barged in here. They started to tap their feet in nervousness. It would be fine and serve as good PR if Juhian just hit the jackpot a few times and left, 
but the issue was that his actions went beyond human understanding. They had received warning to stay alert as he might actually be a scammer. Unfortunately, he was not a scammer but an extremely lucky devil. It was fine if people hit the jackpot, but it had to be within reason. Leaving a black consumer like this alone would lead to their becoming an eyesore in the future. However, they couldn't help but become even more shocked after seeing where Ju Hian was headed. W, wait, that is. Ju Hian was about to sit down in the mega jackpot box corner. He was in front of the Wheel of Fortune slot machine that was a combined jackpot between 13 states including Nevada. The prize money for this machine exponentially rose the longer it went without someone hitting the jackpot. The jackpot amount right now should be 10 million approximately 12 billion won. One they had not had a winner for a while. The administrators all gulped as they looked at Ju Hian. There was no way he would hit the jackpot here too, right? Ju Hian put his money in and started to bet as they shared those thoughts. Ch. Tick, tick, tick. His first spin was a dud. The administrators let out a sigh of relief after seeing that. There was indeed no human who could continue to hit jackpot after jackpot. Someone like that wouldn't be human. However. The second spin. The machine started to make a noise after seeing that the winner images lined up. Oh. He seems to have won something. The customers nearby cheered while the employees started to stiffen up. Ju Hian calmly looked at the screen. You have won 10, 0, 0, 10 million won. You can play the bonus games to exponentially increase your winnings. However, losing the bonus game will result in your winnings decreasing by 50%. Would you like to make the bet? There was something written in Chinese, but there was no way Ju Hian could not read that. There was naturally only one answer. Go. Push. The screen started to spin before the images started to appear in each column. People started to gather around as the machine continued to make weird noises. People started to cheer as the winning Bomberabam noise appeared. He pressed go again. He pressed it one more time. The casino employees were screaming internally as they watched. The betting amount continued to rise as the bonus betting games commenced one after another. And finally the mega jackpot box was hit. M, my goodness. He had put in 10 to hit a 10 million approximately 12 billion one jackpot at once. The administrators screamed before plopping on the ground. See, crazy, he's not human. However, Ju Hian leisurely got up and sat down at a different machine. The casino workers quickly snapped out of it and started to scream after sensing an ominous feeling. No. No more. Their voices sounded desperate. Chapter 23 Wow, is this real money or fake money? The Oh Sun Wu group looked out of it as they stared at the pile of money in front of Ju Hian. Ju Hian had won a total of 59,805,040. This was about 70,839,069,881. One ah, is it a total of 79 billion one if I add the money I started with? W, we're rich. Rich. Jackpot. I've never seen such money in my life. Isn't this enough to live luxuriously for the rest of our lives? Ju Hian started to smile after hearing their shouts. He did have a pile of money now. It does feel great. Most of the money went into his bank account, but there were 300, 000, 300 million won in cash. It was for the auction house entrance fee. The Oh Sun Wu group started to shout in joy at that moment. Awesome. Our life is a success now. Ju Hian scoffed at Oh Sung Wu who seemed extremely happy. You seem to have the wrong idea since earlier. This isn't your money. The Oh Sung Wu group whimpered after seeing his gaze. Oh, of course we know that. Good. But for them to shake in joy after seeing 300 million won. Ju Hian who had touched many artifacts that were worth over 100 billions one chuckled after seeing them going crazy over this low amount. But he understood how they were feeling. I used to be the same way. It must have been when he first went to work for Chairman Quan. He would be lying if he said his eyes didn't roll after seeing a large amount of money in front of him. 
The reason Ju Hien became unresponsive to large amounts of money was because he got used to it, but also because he realized that none of it was his. Even as the captain of the tomb raiding team, I only took home about one million one a month. It was close to being paid nothing now that he thought about it. Especially when you considered the large amounts of benefits Ju Hien brought to Chairman Quan while working with no weekends or holidays and putting his life on the line every time. That was during a time when even a rookie employee of a large corporation would earn at least 5 million won to start. Well, it was because I received healing artifacts in place of money. However, they were all one-time use healing artifacts that temporarily reduced the pain instead of fixing the issue. That was how Chairman Quan used people as his slaves. Ju Hien clicked his tongue thinking about that time. If that bastard didn't monopolize all the healing artifacts in the beginning and abused the system. Ju Hien clicked his tongue. The casino employee who was putting the 300 into a 007-style briefcase peeked toward Ju Hien. He was probably looking at Ju Hien as if he was a monster because of his scam-like luck. That was why Ju Hien started to smile. He could have looted them completely, but he was controlling himself. Ju Hien was someone who had that much conscience. Well, the real reason was that he didn't really want to end up on the blacklist. Even the godly Las Vegas would be wary of someone who went against human logic and he couldn't let them go bankrupt when he needed to take more money from them in the future. There is an auction every month. That was why Ju Hien had an evil smile on his face. He would be nice and hit jackpots only every so often. Furthermore there's no need to increase my affinity with a damn artifact for no reason. Places such as battlefields or casinos where humans suffered and fell to ruin were places artifacts loved so much that they would shake in joy. His affinity would go up similar to Chairman Quan's had done the more he bothered other people. Ju Hien didn't want to do anything these damn artifacts would like. However. It should be okay to win a bit more, right? And lo and behold. Ju Hien looked at his watch as if he was thinking about something. It was currently 7 p.m. There was about an hour left before the start of the auction at 8 p.m. He wasn't that hungry. That was why Ju Hien started to mumble to himself. I have some time left, should I go for another round? The casino employee's faces instantly turned pale. W, what did he say? What, he's not satisfied with this amount? What is this devil scammer thinking about doing now? That was what their faces seemed to be saying, but Ju Hien did not notice this as he got up from his seat. I have some time so why not? No, don't do that. The casino employees wanted to shriek. Maybe that ominous feeling from earlier was correct. Ju Hien seemed to come loot Las Vegas whenever he had time in the future. This was why they should have put him on the blacklist earlier. He might win enough to put us in financial trouble. It was fine until now, but if this weird man stuck around Las Vegas 365 days a year. Their bodies started to shiver in fear. Just thinking about it is terrible. It would be impossible within human logic, but Ju Hien was a lucky man who transcended that logic. Jackpot winners were usually useful for the casino's publicity, but this person was such a scam that people might think the casinos were working together to trick the public. So please don't come back, you monster. They were crying internally. Some of them started to shout once Ju Hien casually disappeared. I, is it okay to let him be? He might really end up sending a portion of Las Vegas to ruin in a few years. That could happen if Ju Hien chose to act with malice. However, the employees started to laugh as if something like that could not happen. You're exaggerating too much. Something like that won't happen. On the other hand, some of the employees had serious expressions on their faces. This is no laughing matter. Did you already forget about, that woman, from a few months ago? The employees started to shake after hearing a familiar term. There was another woman who was a candidate to be on the blacklist for a different reason than Ju Hien. T, that woman. It happened about three months ago. There was a guest who brought the rain to this desert city where it did not rain much. The woman had struck without warning similar to how Ju Hien had done. Terrible news had come with her. There was that incident where the shocked casino operators finally decided to put that woman on the blacklist. If the same thing happens like when that woman was here. 
It happened at that moment. W, W, we have a situation. A female employee ran in as if she had seen a ghost. What is it, what's wrong? T, that woman is here. That crazy woman on the blacklist. What did you say? However, there was something that was even more shocking. And that woman is at the goodbye world. Agu, why did she have to go to Las Vegas's number one casino looks like that owner is ruined. They were already praying for that owner for some reason. However, the female employee who said that suddenly shouted as if she realized something. Ha. Huh. Hold on. That guest who left just now was heading there too. She looked toward the direction Juhian left. Juhian left the 300 with the auction house before arriving at Goodbye World where he hit the first jackpot. He wasn't planning on staying here long because the auction would start in an hour. It wouldn't hurt to have some extra money in case I need to bet against Chairman Kwan. He didn't know whether Chairman Kwan would already recognize artifacts and try to win the ones that showed up in the auction, but it would not be bad to prepare. However, it was at that moment. Ack. I was doing so well but I lost everything. W, what the hell? Someone came from behind to beat me. Damn it. The money on the counter disappeared. The customers at the table games, slot machines and even the employees who were working all started to scream. Ju Hien looked around after noticing this odd situation. It felt a bit chaotic inside the casino. It happened as he was thinking that something bad was about to happen. Flash. There was a change to the gold axe silver axe knife Ju Hien had in his pocket. This? The gold axe that had been shining brightly became faint before it disappeared and an excited silver axe appeared in its place. Gold axe silver axe, silver axe B-grade, rare grade consumable artifact remaining uses 939100 The gold axe was one that pinpointed places to bring wealth for the user while the silver axe was the opposite. The silver axe pinpointed enemies who threatened its master's wealth to help the master avoid those situations. In simple terms, it was a detector that would warn the master of anyone aiming for their master's wealth. Why is the silver axe reacting? It could seem like a good artifact that helps the user at first glance, but the silver axe was still an evil artifact. Humans were creatures who hated to lose their things. How many people would be nice to enemies who came aiming for their wealth? Stab the enemies that are aiming for your wealth to death. That was what the silver axe was aiming for. But for it to respond like this Juhian quickly looked around. The situation was getting worse. Almost everybody in the casino started to scream or cry. Some of them lost money, some got caught up in a fight, some had their stuff stolen, some lost a game they were seconds away from winning, and there were dealers who kept making mistakes as well. There was even a situation of someone getting injured because a machine toppled over. There were many different issues and reactions. The aftershock of that was about to reach Juhian as well. Kaya. Sir. Someone shouted urgently but Juhian didn't even look back before swinging his fist at the person behind him. The dealer who was trying to attack Juhian couldn't do anything as he fainted with a bloody nose. Yes, the person who tried to attack Juhian was a casino dealer. Juhian clicked his tongue while looking at them. Where in the world would it make sense for a casino employee to attack a customer? That was why this was an extremely odd situation. However, this type of weird reaction was different than the reaction caused by a tomb appearance. Juhian headed toward a direction he found suspicious. There were no signs of any precursors for a tomb appearance nearby. As expected. He smelled the scent of a familiar artifact nearby. It was coming from a woman who seemed to be the only one not affected by all the bad luck in the casino. That was the case. There was an extremely beautiful woman standing at the corner of the casino roulette. That Caucasian woman was a perfect ten with long blonde hair. Both her skinny yet voluptuous body underneath the red evening dress she was wearing as well as the sculpture-like face was so perfect that it looked as if the goddess of beauty had taken human form. The Oh Sung Woo group who were following Juhian blanked out after seeing the blonde woman. W, W, who is that goddess? Are they filming a movie here or something? It was to the point that everyone's eyes were opening wide after looking at her. 
People seemed to be bewitched by her beauty or something as they stopped what they were doing and started to walk toward her. There was only one person who was not acting that way. Ju Hien was the only one who was different. In fact, Ju Hien's face stiffened a bit as soon he saw her, as if he had seen some scary shit. Why? It was because Ju Hien knew her quite well. That was why he said the following. We are heading toward the auction house right away. His voice was stiff and urgent unlike his usual self. That was why the Oh Sung Woo group became shocked. W, what? I thought you said you were going to win some more money. Ah, uh, no, cancel that plan. Ju Hien's attitude quickly changed as if he had never said that in the first place. He just coolly turned away from this heavenly beauty who looked like a gift from the gods. He was actually frowning a bit. I need to quickly get out of here. He was walking quicker than before as well. He was certain. That woman was one of the monopolizers Ju Hien knew about. Monopolizers. This term did not reference only the greedy bastards who gathered as many artifacts as possible. This was the term used for anyone who possessed a divine grade artifact, the elite whose dominance and affinity levels were higher than regular people. The monopolizers were majesties who stood above all artifact users, receiving titles such as the Monarch of Fate, Monarch of Calamity, Monarch of Conquest, Monarch of War, Monarch of Fraud, Monarch of Abundance, etc. They received the titles of a monarch of underscore underscore based on the effects of their artifacts since they would not share the identities of their artifacts. This woman was someone that all artifact users would scream and run away from in the past as well. Parties that just started and even international competitions would become cancelled as soon as she arrived. No matter how strong, influential, or powerful someone was, they would scurry away like a scared little mice whenever she appeared. This was the same for Ju Hien. Of course, it wasn't that Ju Hien was avoiding her because he lacked abilities. In fact, the main reason he needed to avoid her was because of his abilities. She was a nice person who was intelligent and extremely beautiful with a voluptuous body, but she had no friends around her. The name of this beautiful goddess was Irene Holton. Just being around her would make anyone, it didn't matter whether they were male or female, young or old, fall to bankruptcy, disaster, or ruin. Even the mighty chairman Quan had a change in his expression whenever she appeared. She was a cursed goddess who took the luck away from everyone around her and drove them to ruin. That was the case. She was the one who was called the monarch of destitution. Chapter 24 Son of A Ju Hien started to swear as he tried to escape from the casino. Why did it have to be that woman? Ju Hien knew that woman very well. Forget no well, she made him want to grind his teeth. The monopolizers in Ju Hien's past were more famous than most presidents and had high levels of infamy, but there was no one as famous and disliked as much as Irene. Ju Hien didn't like Irene either. There was no way he could like her. Anyone around her would become unlucky and quickly head for bankruptcy. I almost went crazy when I suffered a loss because of that woman. He couldn't even count on his fingers the number of times he suffered a loss because of her. The price of an artifact he worked hard to raise would become worth shit because of Irene and his stock portfolio would sink just by being in the same area as her. That wasn't the only thing. There were even some nations that suffered from financial difficulties and disappeared from maps because of her. She was someone who brought misfortune with her and made it even worse. Her hobbies were personal bankruptcy and corporate default. Her specialty was global economic crisis. That was why she was the monarch of destitution. Ju Hien had no idea of knowing what artifact she had. He could only suspect that it was a divine artifact related to misfortune. That was why a rare stiff expression was on Ju Hien's face as he tried to leave the casino. Ha! Huh. Unfortunately, the monarch of destitution, no, Irene, happened to notice Ju Hien at that moment. Excuse me. Ju Hien flinched out of reflex. Why is she calling out to me? Ju Hien pretended to not hear her and started to walk. This was an automatic reaction based on his body's experiences. However. Please wait. Something terrible started to happen as she called out to Ju Hien. He tried to ignore this gorgeous woman no matter what she shouted, however, something odd happened to the door he was trying to exit. 
a strong evil presence can be felt coming from the door. The artifacts in your possession may receive terrible injuries. Warning. The remaining use's durability is starting to be affected. Juhian urgently moved away from the door after seeing that message. Juhian sighed in relief after confirming the artifacts in his possession. That could have been dangerous. He then turned his head. This damn monarch of destitution. His artifacts were almost destroyed because of the monarch of destitution's misfortune. Artifacts could be impacted by the monarch of destitution's influence as well because they were considered as part of your wealth. Ju Hien then quickly looked around to see if there were any other exits. He was ready to even jump out a restroom window if he had to do so. He would not even be as desperate to run away even if erectile dysfunction came knocking at his door. However, she approached Ju Hien at a scary speed and grabbed him as he looked for an exit. Pat! She had grabbed his arm. Ju Hien's body started to shiver in reflex after she touched him. The terrible disaster started to increase exponentially once she grabbed him. You have been captured by an evil presence. The artifacts have been critically injured by the evil presence and are weakening. Warning. The remaining use's durability is starting to fall. Your luck has been cast under a shadow and you will only roll losses. Everything you do will start to be less effective. Damn it. Ju Hien quickly slapped her arm away. Thankfully, he received a message that the artifact's durability in his luck had returned, probably because he moved her hand away immediately. However are you perhaps the person who was rumored to have hit jackpots throughout Las Vegas? Irene's gaze was firmly locked on Ju Hien. She seemed to be about Ju Hien's age if not a bit younger. The way she spoke made it easy to imagine her high level of education. Even her voice was beautiful as if a goldfinch was singing. Was she a person or a mannequin made with perfect proportions? She was so beautiful that people would blank out at a distance but seeing her up close made her beauty seem even more out of this world. Her expression reminded him of a cute puppy. Her white skin looked flawless and soft while the bridge of her nose and the lines on her face that were shining under the spotlight made her seem like a sculpture that had warmth. This was clearly evident in the Oh Sung Woo group who had blanked out and lost their senses of rationality long ago. T, this beauty is just. S, should I try talking to her? However, the one Irene was interested in was not the Oh Sung Woo group around Ju Hien but only Ju Hien. I was looking for you. He didn't know why she was looking for him, but this was the monarch of destitution. You might have a reason to see me, but I have no reasons to see you. That was why Ju Hien turned around without any hesitation. You found the wrong person. However, there were some tactless thugs who stopped him. Why, why, you, I'm so envy no, you idiot. Why are you kicking away a treasure that has rolled over to you? I, I know that woman. She's the celebrity from the Holton household. A rich noble family in the US. She's the heiress. Isn't she interested in you if she is talking to you? That's right. How can you ever get a girlfriend if you reject such a gorgeous woman? This is pretty much asking you for a date. These immature males had their noses flaring up as they stuck to Ju Hien. They then looked shocked as if they realized something. Are you maybe embarrassed? What did you say? And, now that I think about it, this punk said he's never had a girlfriend. They looked at Ju Hien with shocked expressions. All right. Just wait. These youngs of yours will help set you up. No, wait. I've had a girlfriend now no, that's not it, don't approach that woman. However, the Oh Sung Woo group approached Irene without any fear. It looked as if it was their own dirty thoughts that was pushing them forward, but it was a useless favor for Ju Hien. Those idiots, if they approach that woman like that, and lo and behold. The Oh Sung Woo group suddenly clutched their stomachs and fell to the ground. Ah! My stomach! That was not the end. You, Ugg. J, Jun Tae. Weird things started to happen, with one of the idiots approaching the monarch of destitution suddenly started to vomit and seize. Kaya. Call 911. What is suddenly going on? People around them screamed and quickly started to call 911. Jun Tae, what happened to you, Jun Tae? 
Ju Hian could only stand there while sweating bullets. There were many ways to lead someone to destitution. One of them was leading them to bankruptcy due to having unbearably high hospital fees. That was why extraordinarily rare illnesses were included in the monarch of destitution's disasters. Those idiots. It started to influence Ju Hian as well. The dangers of your skin rotting from the influence of the heinous artifact is increasing. Warning. An unidentified virus is trying to enter your body. However, the goddess of disaster did not stop there and tried to approach them. Are you okay? There's no way he's okay. That was why Ju Hian approached the fallen Oh Sung Wu group and quietly whispered. It's fine so grab him and follow me. What? Isn't it better not to move him until 911 shows up? Shut up and listen to me if you don't want to die. TSK. They quickly rushed over to the stairs to run away. They ignored the shouts of the monarch of destitution asking them to wait. Sub, Jun Tae. Jun Tae. Don't die. Once they got outside, the Oh Sung Woo group grabbed their Dong Sung who fainted after vomiting. Agu, when is 911 going to get here? Hey, Ju Hian. You said to come outside. Ju Hian scoffed and started to speak. You don't need 911. Feed him a digest ant if you are worried. They questioned their ears. W, what? A digest ant? He would not have vomited and seized if it was something that could be healed with a digest ant. But you are saying he'll get better with a digest ant? Well, you can take him to the ER if you're really worried. I'll be heading out first. Ju Hian then coolly started to walk toward the auction house. The Oh Sum Wu group shouted toward Ju Hian saying, You cruel bastard who has no blood or tears. However, they soon gasped after seeing their fallen Dong Sun. Jun Tae. Their Dong Sun was blinking his eyes and looking around. Huh. I'm not in pain anymore. Was this really the guy who looked as if he was about to leave this world just now? W, what is going on? You were vomiting blood just now. They were confused but Ju Hian just scoffed at them. It had stopped at a stomachache and had not turned into a rare illness because they had quickly moved away from the monarch of destitution. It was clearly visible through the spy skills message as well. Ju Hian was facing the same situation. The presence of the evil artifact has disappeared, making the unidentified viruses trying to infiltrate your body disappear. Ju Hian let out a sigh. The monarch of destitution is as amazing as ever. He and that young 25-year-old over there almost died just now. It really is best to avoid the weird monopolizers. People who ruled over S-grade legendary hero artifacts were still considered human, but the SS-grade divine grade were treated as demigods. It was the right choice to force their way out at all costs. It was almost a miracle that it ended at this much after meeting the monarch of destitution. I have no idea why that woman would be looking for me. He was a bit curious, but decided not to pay any attention. It was best to not get involved with that woman. It was at that moment. The current time was 6.30 p.m. Ju Hian heard a familiar voice when he walked through the auction house entrance. Hey, don't stand there blocking the way. The voice came from right behind him. Ju Hian who had a good memory started to glare as soon as he heard that voice. And lo and behold when he turned his head Yun Shir Wu. The young man with the well-groomed appearance and glasses was indeed Yun Shir Wu, his former tomb raiding team member and Chairman Quan's right-hand man. He's younger than my memories but it is him. He had been Chairman Quan's right-hand man until Ju Hian joined the company, however, this bastard became angry that he was always compared to Ju Hian once Ju Hian joined the tomb raiding team and became the captain. That was why he always hated the talented Ju Hian and tried to fight against him but never managed to win. And currently Yun Shir Wu started to frown while looking at Ju Hian who was staring at him. What the hell, why are you staring at me when I told you to move? Ju Hian scoffed thinking that this bastard was the same as before. There was a reason Yun Shir Wu was looking down on Ju Hian right now. It was because the number on Ju Hian's ticket showed that he was not a VIP. The auction participants were naturally divided into grades and their seats were divided by grades as well. The number in Ju Hian's hand was bronze. 
In simple terms, he was a normal grade participant. The number in Yun Shir Wu's hand was gold. He was a premium grade participant. It's obvious if his number is bronze. He was not someone a large corporation like TKBM had to worry about. What is going on? Zhu Hian started to frown after hearing the voice of a man who was approaching Yun Shir Wu. Chairman Quan. He seemed to be in his late fifties or early sixties. He was still pretty young. Furthermore, Chairman Quan should not know much about tombs and artifacts just yet. Yun Shir Wu looked at him and started to laugh. I, it's nothing, sir. Please come this way, Chairman Nim. It looked as if Zhu Hian and Chairman Quan made eye contact for a moment, but it wasn't long. The corners of Zhu Hian's lips then curled up in a vicious manner. He couldn't help but sigh, as seeing Chairman Quan reminded him of having his lower body being ripped off at that final tomb. This is the beginning. He would steal all the artifacts that should have gone to Chairman Quan during this auction. He would destroy them if he could not steal them. He would be the victor this time. Well, he's too big of an opponent to face head on right now. However, it was at that moment. Ha! Huh. He thought he saw an ominous shadow in the auction house. Ju Hian looked as if he had stepped on shit as soon as he saw someone's face in the crowd. The person Ju Hian saw was Irene Holton, the monarch of destitution from earlier. Ju Hian started to grind his teeth. Was that woman planning on participating in the auction? Damn it, nothing good will happen if I'm in the same place as that woman. As Ju Hian expected, odd things started to happen in the auction house as soon as she entered. What? You lost the money we were going to exchange for the number. What the hell are you talking about? Kaya. What the hell? Why are my stocks suddenly falling? The people waiting in line all started to scream. Ju Hian pressed his temple as he watched as if he was getting a headache. She really is a useless woman. This would mean that all the Colossus here will be heading toward bankruptcy and he would be impacted as well. TSK, I can't let myself be impacted as well. I guess I'm not going to the auction. However, as Ju Hian was about to leave the tolerance has been awakened after being openly vulnerable to the critical presence of a divine grade artifact once again. Tolerance has increased after being attacked by an artifact. The effects of the opponent's artifact has decreased due to tolerance. You have started to become resistant to the effects of the seduction of destitution. An unexpected cheat message had popped up. Chapter 25 This was quite an unexpected message. He had never expected such a message to pop up with this timing. I remembered tolerance is Ju Hian recalled the reward from the previous mission. He had learned about the existence of intolerance after using the healing artifact he received as a reward to heal the injuries he received from Miramesa. You have successfully survived the artifact's venomous aura and healed yourself. You have learned about the existence of intolerance immunity. It said something like that. That tolerance had become awakened after receiving the monarch of destitution's attacks. It had awakened at the perfect time when he was thinking about how he could awaken his tolerance skill. This is an extremely useful ability. On the other hand, the surrounding area was totally chaotic because of the monarch of destitution. W, where did my wallet go? W, wake up. Someone's fainted here. Call 911. Ack. Someone scratched my car. Kaya. My dress ripped. Ju Hian was probably the only one who could not frown in such a situation. Everybody else was suffering drastically from being around the monarch of destitution's area of influence. That was why Ju Hian quickly looked toward Chairman Quan. He was curious if Chairman Quan would also be impacted by the monarch of destitution. The Chairman Quan of old would immediately try to leave this place or defend somehow, however there's no way he knows about the monarch of destitution yet. And lo and behold. W. What is going on? T. The company stock. Ju Hian's suspicions had been correct. Yun Shir Wu was the first to scream. A secretary whispered something in Yun Shir Wu's ear before he urgently checked something on his phone and started to scream. W, what the hell? This is an unbelievable level. He adjusted his glasses as if it was unbelievable before checking and checking again. 
However, the stocks he owned were sinking at unbelievable rates no matter how many times he looked. Damn it! What is going on? Yun Shir Wu anxiously put his phone away after hearing Chairman Quan's question. N, nothing, Chairman Nim. There was just a problem with one of the companies I've been helping recently ha ha ha. Nothing for you to worry about, sir. However, something that Chairman Quan needed to get anxious about happened this time. Chairman Nim. We have a situation. The secretary who had been checking on things urgently started to speak to Chairman Quan and Yun Shir Wu. The secretary was wary of their gazes as she started to speak. There was a sudden fire in the Chinese factory so all of the T-line materials that were set to be exported we will not be able to export them on time like this. Furthermore, the damage is greater than expected. What did you say? They could not hide their astonishment at this sudden bomb. Chairman Quan had a rare look of anxiousness on his face. His face that had been full of joy had instantly stiffened up. Zhu Hian started to smile after confirming Chairman Quan's expression. As expected. Chairman Quan had no idea about the monarch of destitution right now. That was why he was anxious. And Yun Shir Wu who had been observing Chairman Quan's expression by the millimeter also turned pale. He made his move before Chairman Quan exploded. Damn it, hey! How the hell are they running things over there? Do those Zangus want to get fired? One how can a fire just randomly start? Yun Shir Wu was Chairman Quan's youngest daughter's potential future husband. As one of the many potential husband candidates, Yun Shir Wu could not help but be wary about keeping his potential father-in-law happy. The secretary who became anxious after hearing Yun Shir Wu shout lowered her head as she responded. That, they don't know if there was any issues with how they were storing things, they said something just unluckily caught fire they are currently investigating the causes. Yun Shir Wu who had been peeking to see Chairman Quan's reaction turned red. The incident had happened in a factory under his jurisdiction. Why did it have to happen on this trip when he needed to make Chairman Quan happy and earn some points? Damn it! Why did it have to blow up now? Why else would it happen now? Who told you to be in the same place as the monarch of destitution? Zhu Hian started to chuckle. He could hear Yun Shir Wu loudly because they were close by. It had been a while since he saw Yun Shir Wu shouting in anger like this. You deserve this. He never expected that the monarch of destitution who brought disasters would be this helpful. Of course, many people knew about the monarch of destitution's usefulness in the past as well. She was the goddess of disaster who could get rid of a rival company or another country that was a thorn to their eyes. The problem was that even the person who commissioned her would suffer losses as a result, making them have to be ready for damage to get what they wanted. That was why everybody was busy running away from the monarch of destitution whenever they saw her. However, tolerance has increased after being attacked by an artifact. The effects of the opponent's artifact has decreased due to tolerance. Zhu Hian saw his tolerance go up by simply standing next to the monarch of destitution. Thanks to that, Zhu Hian could not help but smile. Good, good job. Keep on rising. Rise some more. People were screaming with misfortune around him, but the damage to Zhu Hian was slowly going down probably because of the effects of tolerance. Wasn't this a great advantage then? He was just disappointed that it was not rising faster. That was why Zhu Hian became a bit greedier after seeing his tolerance. I need to raise my tolerance more. It should not be hard to achieve. Toughness was something you developed by getting beat up over and over, so wouldn't his tolerance go up if he faced a bunch of attacks like an idiot? Zhu Hian's eyes sparkled as he smiled. The monarch of destitution. He had thought she was a goddess of disaster he should avoid at all costs, however, she seemed to be a monster who would bring benefits to Zhu Hian. Good. It looks like it would benefit me to stay in the same place as the monarch of destitution like this. At least one person had no reason to escape from the auction house now. Fifty people. The numbers have gone down a lot. Zhu Hian chuckled as he sat inside the auction house. The seating that resembled the inside of an opera house had about two-thirds of the seats empty. Some of them were transported to the hospital after receiving the monarch of destitution's attacks, others ran to their companies or elsewhere to deal with the misfortune they faced. 
now there are only a third of the people to bid against. It was better to have less competition to guarantee that he would get the artifacts that come up. Those people would find their issues resolved once they move away from the monarch of destitution, however, the auction house doors would already be closed by then. Chairman Quan side is still here. Zhu Hien started to frown. It looked as if Chairman Quan was planning on still participating in the auction. The reason he would stay here even when there were issues with the company it must be for the artifacts. Those bastards must already know about artifacts. I guess that is necessary for them to monopolize the artifacts during the beginning stages. I may end up fighting with Chairman Quan for the artifacts. Zhu Hien frowned as he was a bit worried since he knew his opponent's financial power. He had earned a lot of money in the casinos but it was nothing compared to the chairman of a world-renowned company. And at that moment bang! We will now start the 74th auction. The lighting in the seats went out and a spotlight focused on the stage to get the auction started. Some well-trained employees soon brought out an item inside a wooden box, with the large electronic display showing the first auction item. Okay then. This is the first item. Wine ordered by the last Russian royalty of the 20th century. Do you remember how they recovered this sunken item in 1997? That item has reappeared in the world today. The 1907 Heidseek. The starting bid will be 500,000,000 million one. People started to raise their hands to increase the bid as soon as he finished speaking. Yes, 50500. However, Juhian paid no attention to the wine. The rich Colossus might be interested in wine that costs hundreds of millions of won, but Juhian did not care. I guess there are a lot of useless collectibles for the rich because the Great Tomb appearance hasn't happened yet. The artifacts were scheduled to show up near the end of the 40 auctions items Juhian expected that some of the artifacts would be pretty popular. They were disguised as items that would make humans go wild. Chairman Quan is one thing, but I have to defeat the other Colossus in this auction house. If things continued like this, it would be difficult for him to defeat all the rich people here to easily take the artifacts. So, it would be great if there was a way to get rid of the competitors. But how? It was at that moment. Excuse me. Zhu Hien heard a familiar voice next to him. Zhu Hien felt his heart thump at that moment. The monarch of destitution, no, Irene was approaching the empty seat next to him. Zhu Hien's body shook for a moment out of reflex as if a vicious predator was approaching him. Zhu Hien was anxious because he had thought that he should be in the same place as her, but had never expected her to sit right next to him. Why is this woman here? Zhu Hien's artifacts that started to lose durability once again because of the monarch of destitution's artifact started to scream loudly. He couldn't understand what they were saying, but they were most likely saying something like, What are you doing? You damn bastard of a master. Hurry up and move, you bastard master. Of course, Zhu Hien would have normally started to escape but his thoughts were different now. The speed of his artifacts losing durability had decreased as his tolerance increased. Furthermore, having her next to her made his tolerance level increase as a scary rate. In that case, was there a need for him to dodge her? The only thing that could bother him was that his artifacts would be in pain. Who cares about whether the artifacts are in pain? It's fine as long as I don't die. This was the attitude of this so-called artifact master. The artifacts would go, this damn bastard of a master. In response, but Zhu Hien was being serious. Good. I might as well increase my tolerance next to her. Of course, this was a gamble. Being next to the monarch of destitution could be dangerous. However, being next to this woman would allow him to increase his tolerance. It definitely is a gamble. However, he would not be able to go into places like tombs if he didn't have this much guts. That was why Zhu Hien confirmed the speed of the artifact's durability decreasing through his spy skill as he looked toward Irene. Did you need something from me? You are the lucky man who hit a ton of jackpots in Las Vegas, right? Yes. Irene smiled brightly as if she was relieved to finally have found him. However, something weird happened at that moment. The strength of the other party's artifact is increasing based on her emotions. The other party's artifact strength is increasing at an explosive rate. 
Ju Hian's eyes opened wide at this unexpected situation. Hold on. The strength of her disasters went up because she's happy. What the hell? The after storm then hit the auction house. The presence of a strong artifact can be felt in one kilometer radius. A serious case of misfortune is exploding. The artifacts in your possession are experiencing serious damage. Warning. All artifacts in your possession may be destroyed in a single moment. Boom. An explosion shook the auction house at the same time. The earthquake was so strong that it was making their chairs shake. People started to scream in fear. The gold axe silver axe and the rope were screaming in pain as well. Ju Hian also felt as if he was getting a stomach ache again. Ju Hian had to bite down on his lips because of the pain. TSK, I guess being around this woman really was a gamble. Had he looked down on this future monarch of destitution too much? He couldn't let this continue. He needed to leave as this would be dangerous. However, shocking messages bombarded him the moment Ju Hian was about to leave your tolerance is increasing at an abnormal rate. You have gathered enough experience and your tolerance skill has increased to E-rank. Tolerance awakened level E-rank, your tolerance toward the venomous aura coming from artifacts has increased slightly. Your tolerance toward attacks from artifacts has increased slightly. Your tolerance toward the venomous aura coming from tombs has increased slightly. Effects of E-rank, your tolerance toward illnesses have increased significantly. Your tolerance skill has increased to E-rank and rescued you from the dangers of illnesses. The increasing speed of your tolerance has increased a notch due to the increase to E-rank. Ju Hian subconsciously dropped his jaws. The reward of his gamble was sweet honey. Chapter 26 The tolerance skills level has increased. Maybe that was the reason, but Ju Hian's stomach pain had subsided as well. The durability is decreasing slower now too. The durability was still going down, but it seemed to be going down slower than before. That was why Ju Hian looked toward Irene as if he had decided on something. Good, let's keep sticking to her like this to raise my tolerance more. However, there was something Ju Hian did not understand as well. Although he didn't know the identity of the Monarch of Destitution's artifact, he knew that it was an artifact related to disasters. That was why it would make sense to cause worse disasters based on negative emotions. But the strength of the disasters went up when she was happy. But it was understandable. The woman in Ju Hian's memories was someone who laughed as she took people to bankruptcy and destroyed nations. That was why the monarch of destitution's power of misfortune became stronger the happier this woman became. This thought was the reason Ju Hian was looking at her with a mean gaze. I guess this woman was a total psychopath who could not be changed. It was at that moment. Irene's emotions seemed to have changed as he received a different message. The other party's emotions have changed and her artifact's attack strength has returned to normal. She must have calmed down. Either way, the scary attack had instantly disappeared once her feeling of joy subsided. Irene then asked with sparkling eyes. Um, if you truly are that person, I have a request for you. What is it? Please sell me that luck. Ju Hian started to frown at the same time. It fit her name of monarch of destitution who enjoyed other people's misfortunes to not be able to stand someone being lucky. However, Irene said the following that destroyed Ju Hian's hypothesis. You might not believe me, but anybody around me becomes unlucky. Excuse me? That is why I want to buy strong luck like the one you have then the people around me might be able to be happy as well. Irene looked desperate. However, Ju Hian tilted his head in confusion. How could he not? According to his memories, she was the goddess of disaster who enjoyed bringing misfortune to others. The proof of that was that she would happily take jobs to bring misfortune to people and even caused multiple nations' economies to crumble. Maybe that was the reason. Ju Hian could not understand this situation at all. Is this woman putting on a despicable act right now? Of course, Ju Hian would have continued to believe that. At least he would have if Irene's had not frantically grabbed his arm. Please sell me your luck. I know it might be important to you, but I beg you. Please. I'll give you as much money as you want. Ju Hian scrunched his eyes. Does this woman not know about artifacts yet? 
That was indeed possible. Chairman Kwan seemed to know about artifacts already somehow, however, most of the world did not know about artifacts yet. It was possible that Irene was using an artifact without knowing she was using an artifact. Divine grade artifacts were bastards who could easily use their masters for their benefits. That was why Ju Hian started to smile in an evil way. A monopolizer doesn't know about artifacts, and I might be able to use this to my benefit. Then first, the auctioneer's voice filled the auction house at that moment. There seemed to have been an earthquake but everything seems fine. Then, the 1907 hide-seek. We were currently at 707,000,830 million one. Does anybody have any other bids? The surrounding area became quiet. Are there really no more bids? The auctioneer smiled and picked up his auction gavel. Ju Hian looked back and forth at Irene and the people inside the auction house at that moment. Then Ju Hian, for some reason, quickly said the following to Irene. My luck. Well, I suppose there's nothing preventing me from selling it to you. Irene smiled brightly as if she was genuinely happy. Will you really sell it to me? Then a message popped up. The strength of the other party's artifact is increasing based on her emotions. The other party's artifact strength is increasing at an explosive rate. Your tolerance is increasing at an abnormal rate. Irene's innocent smile and Ju Hian's evil smile were exchanged along with the message. Things started to happen as Ju Hian expected at that moment. Then the first item, the 1907 hide seek will be sold at 707,000,830 million one. 10 million dollars. 10 billion one. Someone shouted out loud. Of course, it was normal for a new bid to come in before the item was sold. However, the auctioneer could not help but be shocked. It suddenly jumped from the hundred thousands to ten millions. That was why the quiet auctioneer cautiously asked. Uh did you really mean ten million ten billion one? The auctioneer soon looked at the bidder's face and nodded his head. T, then, the 1907 hide-seek will be sold at ten million. However, the auction house turned into chaos at that moment as if a dam had broken. $12 million. $13 million. $15 million. $20 million. E, excuse me. The auctioneer became anxious after suddenly hearing voices around him. However, Ju Hian didn't care whether the auctioneer was flustered as he continued to egg Irene on. I'm certain that terrible things would stop happening behind you if I gave you the item in my possession. Then. That's right. After hearing your situation, I suppose I could sell it. Irene smiled brightly at this and her artifact started to become stronger as Juhian planned. This made the people go crazy for a simple bottle of wine. Damn it, thirty million dollars. W, wait. Ah. Whatever. Get rid of my stocks. Pull money from the company funds. Thirty-five million dollars. Thirty-six million. The auctioneer shouted with anxiety after seeing it going so crazy like this. P, patrons. Please calm down. The auctioneer tried to push the brakes but the colossus looked ready to pay whatever was necessary even if it meant going into debt. And then fifty million dollars. Even Yun Shi Wu who was standing next to Chairman Quan jumped up and shouted. The way his eyes looked made it obvious that he was under the monarch of destitution's area of influence as well. 50 million. Don't worry, Chairman Nim. I will definitely win that precious wine even if I need to sell TKBM to do it. Chairman Quan had no choice but to look at this potential son-in-law as if he was crazy. Who was this fool to sell his company as he pleased? Thanks to that, Ju Hian who was watching was almost dying from holding back his laughter. He would have laughed out loud if nobody was around him. The auction house turned into chaos as Ju Hian expected. As expected of the monarch of destitution. Everybody is starting to go crazy for the item. Honestly speaking, they were excessively excited rather than being mind controlled. Their brains were getting excited to the point they became dumb. It was similar to becoming drunk. The people whose dominance was weaker than the monarch of destitutions ended up being easily influenced by the artifact's power and ended up in this state. Ah! 
Hand over my money. I'm going to buy that. You let go of my money, you bastard. Swipe my card. Whatever. Swipe everything. The wine ended up being sold at a historic price while Ju Hian who created this situation was the only one who was laughing. He had riled up the monarch of destitution on purpose to cause chaos in the auction house. Why? He needed to get rid of the useless competition in order to make sure he won the artifacts that would show up later in the auction. The method was simple. The monarch of destitution's artifact released an exponentially stronger power when she became happy. So Ju Hian just needed to play with this pure woman's emotions. Something like that was not difficult for Ju Hian to do. It's still a long way until the artifacts show up. So he would send the others out of the competition before that point. Unfortunately, Irene who had no idea about this scam was shaking Ju Hian in desperation. E, excuse me. We were in the middle of our discus. Ah, we were talking about selling my luck, right? Ju Hian smiled warmly for Irene to become happy. There were still tens of thorns to get rid of standing in front of him. The 1907 Hideseek is sold. Yes sir. The 2003 limited edition Prada UOZ Sapphire Blue Handbag has been sold. The ancient Egyptian wall art has been sold. The rare Beatles t-shirt has been sold. CEO Bill Gates' idea doll has been sold. Oprah Winfrey's homemade candy has been sold. Sold, sold, sold. Tens of colossus started to buy items at excessive costs without thinking about the items that would show up later in the auction. It was to the point many of them would not be able to do anything about the artifacts that showed up. The monarch of destitution's abilities truly are amazing. Juhian started to chuckle. Most of the strong competitors were now gone. The only ones remaining were the ones who failed to win any of the items there was also Chairman Quan. TSK, that old man sure is lucky. However, it didn't matter. He had already achieved his goal for coming to this auction house. That was the case. The artifacts Ju Hian had been waiting for started to appear near the second half of the auction. Ju Hian had managed to win every item he wanted to win, while he unnecessarily raised the price for the useless ones before purposely losing the bids to Chairman Quan. One such item was the butcher's knife. Idiot. You bought a C-grade trash that curses the user for two million dollars. Ju Hian was chuckling. Ju Hian had won a total of three artifacts. The Code of Hammurabi, Shakespeare's pen, and Marie Antoinette's necklace. Chairman Quan thought these were junk like an idiot, but they were all A-grade treasure-grade artifacts that he would be able to use effectively. He now had about 50 billion one of the original 70 billion one remaining. I got almost all the artifacts I needed. Thanks to Irene taking out most of the competition, he had more money left than expected as well. Ju Hian prepared to leave now that he won all the items he had aimed to win. However, Irene's face next to him was not very good. Um. It was an obvious reaction. Ju Hian made it sound like he would sell her his luck before ignoring her over and over how would anyone feel good after being jerked around like that. Of course, it was true that Ju Hian had used Irene. There was only one final thing he needed from her now. Everything would be perfect if I could steal the Monarch of Destitution's artifact. Let's move to a quiet location because our conversation might be long. Ah, uh, yes. Irene quickly started to pick up her bag. Ju Hian chuckled while looking at Irene hurry. I think I have a good idea on how to control the Monarch of Destitution now. However, there was something that concerned him. The divine grade artifact in the prophecy ended up not being one of the auction items he was thinking about the divine grade artifact mentioned in a future diary. The prophecy made it sound as if it would appear in the auction house and fall into Chairman Quan's hands. Will divine grade artifacts only show up after the tomb appearance? It happened at that moment. All right. Then I will show you our surprise event auction item of the day. Ju Hian turned his head with a confused gaze. A surprise event auction item? It's probably something useless however, Ju Hian's face instantly stiffened after seeing the item that appeared on the stage. He was certain. That was an artifact. Furthermore, it was no general grade artifact. SS grade divine grade. 
The auctioneer soon started to explain about the item. All right, the last item of the day. This item is. However, both Ju Hian and Chairman Quan raised their hands at the same time before the explanation even ended. Chapter 27 Ju Hian and Chairman Quan had raised their hands at the same time. Ju Hian glared at Chairman Quan. TSK, does he know about this item? The item that appeared was a tree seedling. However, this item was definitely an artifact. In fact, it was an SS grade divine grade artifact. Qin Shi Huang's Herb of Eternal Youth. It was the healing artifact that Chairman Quan possessed in the past. The Herb of Eternal Youth on the stage was crying about how the spotlight was too hot and what not but Ju Hian did not care. This was one of the main reasons too many individuals signed slave contracts to work under Chairman Quan. It was one of the important artifacts that helped Chairman Quan increase his power. So I need to make sure to get my hands on this one. Getting this would completely change the future. The auctioneer started to auction quite happily, probably because this was an event auction item. This is an extremely rare item that has even been discussed in the press. The auctioneer was excitedly chatting away but Ju Hian's insides were boiling. Enough. Enough explaining and take my bid. However, the auctioneer mischievously smiled and shouted at that moment. Can you believe it? This almond fruit hanging on this seedling is supposedly great for a man's vigor. The press was quite descriptive of different Hollywood stars and their sexcapades. Everyone looked toward Ju Hian and Chairman Quan at that moment. S. Sexual Enhancer Ju Hian felt embarrassed at everyone looking at him but it did not matter. That is an artifact. That is an artifact. The auctioneer finally said what Ju Hian was waiting for as he stood there awkwardly with his hand up. We will start the bidding for this plant of passion at 200,000,000 million one. Ju Hian quickly shouted at that moment. Chairman Quan shouted as well. However, other people started to get interested and raised the prices as well. Ju Hian soon started to smile. It's fine. I have enough money to win this bid. He had $50 million left 50 billion won. Most event auctions ended at $3 million 3, 3 billion won at max. One cheapskate chairman Quan would never invest more than that amount. However $10 million. Chairman Quan had significantly raised the price. Ju Hian flinched before peeking toward Chairman Quan. That bastard is planning on taking that at all costs. Of course, Ju Hian had no way of knowing if Chairman Quan knew the true identity of the Herb of Eternal Youth. However, Ju Hian had no intentions of giving up either. He managed to win other artifacts before they ended up in Chairman Quan's hands but then lose out on this Herb of Eternal Youth, a divine grade artifact. How stupid would that be? That was why Ju Hian quickly raised the price again. Twelve million dollars. Other competitors soon joined Chairman Quan and Ju Hian. The bidding turned oddly fervent with people believing that this was an extremely effective sexual enhancer because of Chairman Quan and Ju Hian's bidding. We must earn that, thirteen million dollars. Fourteen million. Eighteen million. Nineteen million. However, Chairman Quan significantly raised the price once more at this moment. Forty million dollars. People flinched. An event auction item ended up reaching this high in price. People became interested and the auctioneer seemed extremely happy. On the other hand, Ju Hian started to frown. Forty million dollars, Ju Hian thought for a moment before whispering something to Irene. Irene looked toward Ju Hian in shock after hearing what he had to say. But Ju Hian soon raised his hand again. Forty-one million. Chairman Quan started to frown and continued to shout as Ju Hian persistently kept up with him. 42 million. 43 million. 44 million. 45 million. The others who felt burdened by the high amount slowly grumbled and fell off. Ju Hian and Chairman Quan were the only ones remaining. 47 million. 48 million. The fierce bidding battle continued until it reached $50 million. $50 million was Ju Hian's total wealth. Yes sir, we are currently at $50 million. Is there anyone who would like to make another bid? 
Chairman Quan, who was annoyed at Zhu Hian's persistence, shouted a large number once again. One hundred million dollars. People started to whisper after hearing the price jump once again. One, one hundred million dollars. Is he crazy? However, Zhu Hian who could no longer outbid him was laughing as if it was funny. For that cheapskate to reach the hundred million level again. He had to accept the truth right now. Zhu Hian and Chairman Quan had a significant difference in wealth right now. TKBM was not some local mom and pop type of company. It was one of the top companies for computers, cell phones and other IT technology, a global company that has its hand in a plethora of different fields. Since he was not just a figurehead CEO of such a company, it was only natural that he had more money than Zhu Hian to spend. Was that the reason? He shouldn't be able to even dream about winning this bid anymore. Chairman Quan and Yun Shi Wu sneered at Zhu Hian after seeing him not place any more bids. This is why a crotit shouldn't try to keep up with a stork. Two, it was his fault that someone in the normal seats were bidding against them. I will take that artifact. It happened as Chairman Quan had that thought and sneered Zhu Hian. Okay, if there are no more bids, we will. Ha! Huh. Someone raised their hand. One hundred and fifty million dollars. That person raised the price higher than Chairman Quan as if it was nothing. Thanks to that, Chairman Quan and Yun Shi Wu could not help but become anxious. W. What? However, Zhu Hian was not the one to bid this time. The one to bid was Irene, the person sitting next to Zhu Hian. Yun Shi Wu glared at Irene who poured ashes on their finished meal. Damn it, what the hell is wrong with that woman? What's wrong with her? She's my black knight, no, my black rose. Zhu Hian started to smile. He had already talked to Irene once the bid went past $40 million. It had been obvious he would lose if it continued at that pace. Zhu Hian had quickly whispered to her as he knew that would be the case. I will sell you my luck. That was what he told her. However, he had added on a condition. However, I will only trade you for it. I will give you my luck so please give me that item. Did she understand what Zhu Hian was trying to say? She had attacked Chairman Quan at the perfect time. Ah, uh, then we will continue the bidding. One hundred and fifty million dollars. Do we have any other bids? Chairman Quan and Yun Shi Wu flinched after hearing this price. One hundred and fifty million dollars. Ugh. Zhu Hian smiled wickedly while looking at them. You get it now. No matter how great you think you are, you're shit compared to the Holton family. Chairman Quan was quite anxious right now. One hundred and sixty million dollars. Two hundred million dollars. It was because there was a woman who persistently continued to bid on the item he was about to purchase. She seemed to be on Zhu Hian's side. However, this woman was easily suppressing Chairman Quan's bids as if they were prices of gum when others were busy getting out of the bidding war as he raised the price. And once again two twenty million dollars. Three hundred million dollars. The woman's loud voice echoed through the auction house. People started to whisper after hearing the exorbitant bid. My goodness, three hundred million dollars. Chairman Quan looked toward the woman in shock as well. Holy hell, is that woman crazy? Yun Shi Wu's jaws dropped. What kind of crazy woman calls out three hundred million dollars for a stupid tree? He seems to have forgotten about how he tried to sell TKBM off for a stupid bottle of wine as he shouted in anger for someone to bring him some binoculars. She was definitely Zhu Hian's ally as they seemed to be discussing something. That bastard. Just when he thought this bug stopped being persistent and backed off what kind of bitch did he drag into this. However, his expression turned pale after confirming the woman's face with the binoculars. T, that woman is. On the other hand, Chairman Quan was checking his free cash flow as he gave his secretary an order. I can't give up like this. Try pulling about five zero zero more. Ah yes, yes sir. However, at that moment see, Chairman Nim. Yun Shi Wu called out to Chairman Quan in a stiff voice. Um. I, I think it is best that you give up. What? Chairman Quan became angry but Yun Shi Wu was serious. 
He would usually not say anything about Chairman Kwan's actions, but this situation was different. That if I'm not mistaken, she is the youngest daughter of the Holton household from the United States. Yun Shir Wu knew what they were up against. He knew how much wealth Irene, the youngest daughter of the Holton household had, as well as how crazy the Holton household who were said to be as rich as some royal families were said to be. Even the chairman Nim cannot defeat that family's wealth. The Holton household was a noble household who had originated in England and crossed over to the US in the past. Their wealth was built on finance but their reach extended to other businesses as well. As for Irene Holton. According to rumors, the entire family loved Irene so much that they would chase anybody who harmed Irene in any way to the ends of the earth to destroy them. It's better not to get tangled up with that woman. It didn't matter what kind of relationship Ju Hian had with that woman. See, Chairman Nim, why don't you just give up on that? Even Chairman Kwan had a limit to how much money he could spend at once. He was already reaching a dangerous level. However, Chairman Kwan raised his number again. $320 million. See, Chairman Nim. Chairman Kwan knew he needed to win this almost seedling no matter what anybody said. That's an artifact I must have however, Yun Shir Wu who had no idea what Chairman Kwan was thinking couldn't help but become anxious. How could he bid over $300 million for a sexual enhancer? Did the chairman want another heir that badly? See, Chairman Nim. Please stop. Will you shut the hell up? However, it was at that moment. Irene landed a heavy blow, as if she was telling them to get lost. $500 million. That's crazy. Silence soon filled the auction house. However, Ju Hian and Irene who called out that price were smiling. All right, be a good boy and stop bidding. Chairman Kwan. Ju Hian was able to estimate how much money Chairman Kwan was able to use right now. You guys can't beat the Holton household right now even if all of you gathered your money together. Did he manage to read Ju Hian's smile? Chairman Kwan glared at them before throwing his number to the ground. Damn it. And then, after that tea, then this sexual in hand no, no, this rare almond tree seedling has been sold for $500 million. Everybody in the auction house shouted in shock at that moment. Ju Hian was shocked as well. $500 million were approximately 500 billion won. That was why Ju Hian had to ask a question to confirm even though he was happy to have won the item. $500 million, isn't that too excessive? However, Irene's response was quite clear. It's fine. The random stuff I put on the market recently sold for $600 million a few days ago. In addition. She continued to speak. You are going to sell me your luck. That is more important to me than any amount of money. Money wasn't important to her at all. She just wanted to stop bringing misfortune to her loving family. That was why Irene happily paid such a large amount for this. Ju Hian started to smile at that response. Irene Holton. She's definitely a woman who can help me. He was extremely happy that he was able to see such an expression on Chairman Kwan's face as well. Now please give me your luck. Is it some kind of Asian talisman or something like a rabbit's foot? Ju Hian laughed before responding to that question. Chapter 28 Ju Hian said that before going to receive the items they won in the auction. He then took Irene to the auction house's cocktail bar. Now I just need to take the Monarch of Destitution's artifact. The artifacts continued to complain but that was none of Ju Hian's business. Your tolerance is increasing. The results were great for him. The people around the bar all stared at them once Ju Hian and Irene sat down. It was only natural since Irene's beauty stood out no matter where she went. That made people interested in Ju Hian who was with her as well, but Irene was the monarch of destitution. Maybe that was the reason, but Ju Hian who had no desire to prolong the conversation got right to the point. I will be honest with you. Excuse me. You said you want to buy my luck, but I have no plans on selling my luck to you. E, excuse me. No, I think it is more accurate to say that I don't have the item you are looking for. That was the truth. Irene's destitution ability was not something a lucky artifact would be able to handle. He could give the gold axe to her, 
but it was only a B-grade artifact. It would be sad to hand over an artifact, but the more important point was that the gold axe would be destroyed in front of the monarch of destitution's artifact. That was why his answer was simple. I have nothing to give you. Irene was shocked at Ju Hian's brazen attitude. She had purchased the herb of eternal youth because she trusted him but what was he saying? Saying that you have nothing to give me then did you scam me? No. Ju Hian was smiling. There is definitely a way for you to get your luck back. It will be resolved if you hand something in your possession over to me. That was the case. Irene was unlucky because of the artifact of destitution. Then there was a simple solution. She just had to hand over her artifact. Then it's a win-win for both of us. Don't tell me you don't have it. I'm sure there is a suspicious item that is following you around. Please give me that item. Then your misfortunes will disappear. The artifact of destitution that scared even the monopolizers was quite tempting. Irene would be out of her misery and I would earn an artifact. Ju Hian's gaze looked greedy. However, Irene gave an unexpected response. I wish I could give it to you, but there are no suspicious items following me around. Ju Hian clicked his tongue as if he was annoyed. Then get rid of everything around you. There's going to be something that keeps popping up even if you throw everything away. I already tried doing that. But the misfortunes keep continuing. Ju Hian started to frown. There's no item following her. What could be going on? There was no way that was the case. Ju Hian debated for a moment before saying something. Take off your clothes. Irene blankly stared at Ju Hian for a moment. Take off the rags you're wearing. Irene peeked down at her clothes. All Irene was wearing right now was a low-cut evening dress that barely covered her body. Calling this fancy dress a rag was one thing, but telling her to take it off Irene would basically be naked without this dress. She looked toward Ju Hian in shock. You, um, wait. Ju Hian went, ah, and added on in a tired voice. I'm not interested in your body so stop making weird assumptions. Ju Hian was not interested in Irene's body at all. He was interested in a woman's body, but he was selective about his partner. I've seen too many guys who fell for the monarch of destitution and ended up in ruins. Ju Hian knew this well, which was why he explained himself. I'm sure it's somewhere on your body. There's a tattoo that appeared along with the misfortune. Tattoo. The suspicious tattoo had been on Sasaki's arm as well. Artifacts are divided into the possession and the consumable, with the tattoos being unique to the possession artifacts. They didn't have durability like the consumable artifacts, but they were items that could only be used by the contracted user. Ju Hian knew that most monopolizers had possession type artifacts. Ju Hian started to frown after seeing Irene hesitate after hearing the word, tattoo. Why? Do you not have one? N, no. I do. It's by my breasts. She lowered her voice and took out her phone. She hesitated for a moment but soon shook her head. Mr. Ju Hian is the only one I can rely on now. She showed him a picture of her naked body that she had only shown female doctors before. Unfortunately, her breasts were not clearly visible, but it was there. The tumblif that nobody else could read was under her breast. However, Ju Hian started to grind his teeth after he decoded the tumblif. Damn it! No wonder there's no item following her around. That was the case. Irene's artifact was a parasite-type artifact that lived inside the body. An example of the parasite-type artifact would be the clairvoyance artifact that takes control of your eye. It was an extremely rare type of artifact. I didn't expect there to be another one other than Chairman Kwan's. Ju Hian clicked his tongue as if he did not expect this. What a mess. You can't easily remove the parasitic artifacts. Why? He would need to cut through Irene's body to take out a parasitic artifact. In simple terms, it was not something she could destroy her contract and hand over to him easily. He had no plans on taking it, but there was no sane person who would let someone else cut through their body. Then I need to change my plan. Ju Hian had thought the artifact of destitution would be something like Eris's golden apple. 
but it was a parasitic artifact related to wealth. Ju Hien's eyes sparkled with anticipation. Is it perhaps the hand of Midas? It was the hand from Greek mythology where everything Midas touched turned to gold. He had no way to be certain. If that was the truth, this woman should be called the monarch of wealth instead of the monarch of destitution. However, this was a big deal if he was correct. The hand of Midas that was said to turn everything it touched into gold. It was an ability that represented significant wealth and luck. The only thing I'm certain of right now is that it would be a shame to end our meeting here. After thinking about it, partnering with Irene was better than taking the artifact from her. Since it is parasitic, she may be able to draw out its strengths better than I can. Irene's artifact had the con of putting everyone around her into misfortune and he also had no certainty that he could dominate a divine-grade artifact with his current strength. Irene became desperate seeing Ju Hien deep in thought as she had no idea what he was thinking. Um, is it very difficult? You don't need to return the almond tree to me. Please help me. Irene grabbed Ju Hien's hand in desperation and Ju Hien started to smile as if he came up with a good idea. Yes. It's better to have some super rich people owe me a favor. That would be beneficial to Ju Hien in many ways in the future. That was why he shamelessly started to trick Irene. Please don't worry. I'm an archaeologist who collects and researches those artifacts. I will contact you when I find a way to cure you. R, really? Ju Hien handed her his number and smiled. I don't tell lies. Irene Holton. This woman was someone who would be extremely helpful as Ju Hien became one of the new monopolizers. I'm now connected to the monarch of destitution. He never expected to become connected to the goddess of disaster whom even the monopolizers feared like this. Ju Hien was smiling internally as he said goodbye to Irene and headed back to the auction house. Now that I have everything I need, let's leave the Oh Sung Wu group was smiling as they came over toward Ju Hien at that moment. Ju Hien. Tada. Look at this. We brought a ton of them because they said it was a souvenir. They had six bottles of one million dollar whiskey that the auction house was giving out as souvenirs in their inner pocket. They said it's free. They told us to take all of it. An auction for the wealthy is really different. They were smiling giddily while saying that they grabbed some for Ju Hien as well. However, Ju Hien didn't care and clicked his tongue. Shut up and let's go. There's no benefit to staying here any longer. He actually had an ominous feeling. The way that he was feeling a prickling aura made him feel as if he might get dragged into a tomb appearance at any moment. However, the Oh Sung Woo group who had no way of knowing that were shocked. What? Why? Why are we already leaving when they are having an after party after this? They said there will be beauties there. They grumbled but Ju Hien who did not want to explain was stern. We didn't come here to enjoy a party. Do as you're told. Damn it. I don't want to. Come on Ju Hien, don't be like that, let's stay a little longer. Please. These bastards truly are problems the problem was that they were trying to be at the same level as him. He was temporarily bossing them around because it was annoying to find new people and they were useful in different ways, but if it is going to be like this it'll get even more annoying later if I don't thoroughly show them who is the boss right now. Of course, he was not someone who liked the old-fashioned style of hierarchy or authoritarianism, but he could not forget that he was in a world where he could lose his life at any moment. An uncertain superior-subordinate relationship in such a dangerous world would only bring forth dangerous results. So he needed to do something about it. Proper discipline training. Either that, or a test. Ju Hien smirked while looking at the time. I have some time. Was it because he had such a thought? Ju Hien handed them the key to his item locker. You guys. Go get my stuff as well while you're at it. When you say your stuff do you mean the 200 million you left with the front desk? Correct. Ju Hien had given the entrance fee of 100 million and left the 200 million in reserve with Midas. That would be the disciplinary training and a good test for them. Come back quickly. Ju Hien said that before slipping the bracelet-shaped rope artifact into Oh Sung Woo's suit pocket. His hands moved as if it was a ghost's hand that the clueless Oh Sung Woo group did not notice it. Damn it, Ju Hien that damn bastard. 
The Oh Sung Woo group were making duck faces right now. They did get Juhi and stuff like he told them to, but are we his servants or something? That damn child doesn't know what a social hierarchy is. We're at max at the same level as each other if anything. The Oh Sung Woo group had picked on Juhian but never hated him. The one who hated Juhian was Park Kyung Tae and they just did as their Hyung Nim and Nunim told them to do. But for some reason, they were grinding their teeth toward Juhian right now. It was because of the rope artifact in his pocket. The aura coming out of artifacts always touched human nature for destruction and people like them whose dominance level was weak could not help but easily be twisted because of it. Ow. So annoying. Damn it, how to make him eat shit. How can we do that? The three of us together still can't take him down. It was at that moment. It's easy, just take his money and run. Human, show your true instincts now. Hurry. I will help you. The rope artifact got excited and started to tempt the Oh Sun Wu group as soon as Juhian disappeared. It was even saying it would help them. This was not normal. And lo and behold. Oh Sung Wu's Dong Sang's eyes changed for a moment after being affected by the artifact's aura. Hai Yu, Hyung Nim. Hmm. There were 200 million in this bag, right? Why, yes. How much is it per person if we divide the 200 million into three? Probably a little less than 70 million one each. Isn't that enough to live a good life? W, what? They gulped at that moment. For people like them who barely earned 800, 000, 000, 001 a month, millions of one was a significantly large amount. Won't this be enough to at least open a small franchise cafe? Their hands started to shake. Hai Yu, Hyung. Then Oh Sun Wu whose eyes looked dazed started to smile. S, should we make a run for it? B, but. Hai Yu, Hyung. Do you think we can run away from Ju Hian? The rope that was slowly climbing out of Oh Sung Wu's suit pocket excitedly started to send signals to them. Yes human. Run. That guy only has two legs too. They started to speak as if they were influenced by the artifact. That's right. He's only human and has two feet. He'll be slower than us if we run for our lives. However, at that moment then do you guys have four legs or something? They heard a chilling laughter. The voice seemed to have expected this situation. They, as well as the rope that had been tempting the humans fell to the ground in shock. Standing behind them was Ju Hian who was smiling cruelly as if he found this situation to be entertaining. What are you guys doing without me? Chapter, 29 You guys look like you're having so much fun. The Oh Sung Wu group who heard that voice screamed as if they saw a ghost before kneeling down on the ground. Ju, Ju Hian. That wasn't it. Even the rope who tried to tempt the Oh Sung Wu group without Ju Hian's knowledge started to shake in fear. What's up with this human? What the hell? It was because it felt fear from Ju Hian's dominance that had come out for a moment. Ju Hian didn't care as he started to speak to the Oh Sung Wu group. Enough. Were you guys trying to run off with my money? The Oh Sung Wu group fell on their asses after seeing Ju Hian smile viciously. Ju, Ju Hian. It's not like that. W, we tried to do something terrible. Ju Hian immediately started to speak without paying any attention to their excuses. Bind. The rope then shamelessly started to bind the Oh Sung Wu group as if it had never tried to tempt them in the first place. Who told you to try to run with his money? Who told you to run? Ah. What the hell is this? Ugh. S, save us. Ah. Ju Hian then chuckled while looking at the trio who tried to run with his money. Artifacts truly are great for confirming the worst in people. This was a method Ju Hian had used many times in the past. Just being around artifacts brought out the savagery and the worst in people. But he never expected them to want to run with a mere 200 million one. That wasn't it the fact that the rope tried to tempt them means that they are pushovers no, that their affinity levels are high. Of course, they still seem to be idiots even when their savagery was pulled out. How did he know? What could three people do by splitting 200 million one? You morons. 
you should have tried to kill me and take all 500 million one. How can you call yourself men without even having the guts to try that? They felt as if they were getting in trouble for not committing murder and theft but none of it mattered. Sorry. We were wrong. No, we were wrong, sir. We weren't trying to do that. The three of them were crying as they kowtowed in front of Juhian. They were sniffling and crying as they begged. It was not something guys like them who were normally putting on a tough act even as a bluff would do. This would be impossible if the artifact was not dragging out their true intentions. Artifacts generally pull out a person's true intentions so that they can draw out the person's violent tendencies. However, there were many types of true intentions. Violent tendencies were not the only things hidden inside a person's true intentions. Sub. My mind suddenly became weird, sir. Damn it, to become greedy for your stuff, we were completely in the wrong, sir. We won't ever do it again, sir. We committed a grave sin, sir. To be honest with you, with Hyun Nim and Nun Im behind bars, we thought we were finally free but Ju Hien, seeing you acting like the boss made me so angry. Egu, Ju Hien. They shared their honest feelings. Ju Hien then laughed at their statements. It was because it was cute seeing guys like this after seeing shameless and dirty bastards for most of his past life. These guys were simpler and more innocent than he had expected. Most people would have tried to kill me and take the rest of the money as well. That was why Ju Hien smacked the Oh Sun Wu group on the head as he started to speak. So who told you to run with the money? Egu. We were wrong. We thought we might be able to open a franchise cafe at a decent place with that money. Something like Paris Baguette or Moonbucks. Then we could send some allowance to our mother as well. Juhian chuckled at them as they were talking about how they committed a grave sin again. A stupid franchise like that? If you do what I tell you to, I. LL make it so you can open hundreds of those stupid franchises. W, what? Then you can gift your mom a few stores instead of just sending her some allowance. Juhian started to smile. If their true natures that came out because of the artifacts were anything like his own, he would have killed them on the spot for the benefit of society. And these bastards have high affinity levels. Their affinity levels were the opposite of his high dominance. They may be treated as pushovers by artifacts but they could still be extremely beneficial for Juhian. Why? They could do thing that he was unable to do. For example, they could grovel and please artifacts with terrible personalities. I can't do that even if I died. No, I refuse to do that. That was why he might be able to use them to fill that need. Ju Hien also remembered their mother as well. He still remembered how she had fed him and apologized for her son's actions when he told her he was their subordinate employee even though she had no idea what her sons did for a living. Ju Hien was a man who would not forget someone's generous actions. However, the Oh Sun Wu group's eyes opened wide. Hundreds of franchises? Really? Is that really possible? Yes. Franchises were nothing. A person can easily become a billionaire if they gathered a bunch of artifacts. However, they didn't seem to believe him Juhian made it easy for them to understand as they sat there in disbelief. Did you already forget how I made a ton of money in Las Vegas? No, we remember it clearly. Then I think I showed you enough proof. Mmm, -hmm, that is true. They might not know what was going on, but there were weird things happening with the tombs and Juhian was a man who knew how to use them effectively. The Oh Sung Wu group had no choice but to nod their heads as they were not stupid enough to pick up on that, and Juhian continued to speak. Then I will set a condition for you guys. A condition? It's nothing much. Juhian chuckled as he took something out of his bag. Uh isn't that the pumice stone you just won at the auction? The artifact would probably die in shock if it heard them calling it a pumice stone. It did look like something that someone would use to scrub their foot, but this was an artifact. And this artifact was something that would allow him to put a tight collar around the Oh Sung Wu group's necks. Babylonia's Code of Hammurabi A-Grade, Treasure Grade Possession Artifact, Fatigue Level 70% The artifact activated and the pumice stone turned into a black slate board and landed in Juhian's hand. Juhian shouted at the same time. Eye for an eye, 
tooth for a tooth. Betrayal will be met with betrayal. Ah! Flash! Small letters started to appear on the slate board. The letters appeared to be burning like magma. A bright light surrounded the Oh Sung Wu group's bodies once the letters were completely written, leaving them in confusion. W, what just happened? Ju Hian answered as if it was nothing. Nothing much. Nothing will happen if you guys don't do anything to betray me. However, you shouldn't test it out since having the wrong idea will break your bodies into pieces. Don't say I didn't warn you. This was an artifact created from the famous phrase, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, from the Code of Hammurabi. In simple terms, Ju Hian would betray them as well if the Oh Sung Wu group betrayed him. The Oh Sung Wu group's bodies would be punished for their betrayal. This was a counter-type artifact that returns the thing the other person did back to them. Ju Hian was relieved after testing the Code of Hammurabi like this. It looks like there are no issues using it. He had questioned whether he could properly dominate an A-grade artifact. The collar was properly placed and the still confused Oh Sung Wu group asked the question. Uh we said we will do whatever you tell us to do, so what do you need us to do from now? Ju Hian smiled at the question. First. W, what is this? Ju Hian. This. The Oh Sung Wu group could not help but open their eyes wide after seeing the items in front of them. They were in a suite of one of Las Vegas's best hotels. It was fine that he told them to show up for work at 9 a.m. They felt small getting on the elevator of this luxurious hotel but seeing Ju Hian using this multiple Pyong suite by himself and dropping their jaws in shock was fine as well. Dirt? But what they saw was quite odd. They didn't know whether Ju Hian went to buy it or he ordered it up here, but there were fertilizers, shovels, dirt, pots and all sorts of garden supplies lying around. Oh Sung Wu finally decided to ask about these things. Uh, hey Ju Hian, what are these things? What are they? Things for your new job. Ju Hian who didn't seem to have slept properly was wearing a robe and yawning while making a cup of coffee as he pointed to a table. You see that whining almond tree over there? Yes. They could see an almond tree, no, the herb of eternal youth that was rolling around on top of dirt. The herb of eternal youth was screaming in anger. How dare you treat me like this, you damn human bastard. That was probably what it was screaming. That noise was similar to the screaming Mandragora Juhian had seen in a movie. That was why Juhian covered one ear and told them to quickly take care of it. Anyway, your task is to grow this almond tree and propagate it. What? That was the case. Qin Shi Huang's herb of eternal youth was something you needed to farm, well, grow to earn its fruit. Those fruits were the healing artifacts. The seedling would continue to grow as long as you didn't accidentally kill it while growing it. However, Qin Shi Huang's herb of eternal youth scared easily, cried a lot, and was extremely sensitive. It takes long to grow, you need to keep it happy, and you need to watch over it at all times. Basically, it required significant manual labor. He didn't have the time nor patience to do that. It would bring in loads of money in the future for sure, but why did he have to grovel to an artifact like that? So take good care of it and make sure it doesn't die. Take a picture once a day to send to me to report its condition. Of course, it would be impossible for these punks to try to run away with the herb of eternal youth. The influence of the code of Hammurabi was one thing, but growing it and picking the fruit had two very different methods. That's good enough for now. Just put it in a pot to start. Well, horticulture really isn't our. If you do a good job of growing it, I will give each of you 500 million won as an incentive. Just tell us whatever you need us to do. Hyung Nim. We will do our best. Humans truly became honest in the face of money. The Oh Sung Wu group whose demeanor instantly changed started to walk toward the herb of eternal youth with serious expressions. Who cared about Park Kyung Tae and Park Kyung Ju anymore? They were drug dealing criminals. Oh Sung Wu who had instantly become the herb of eternal youth's foster parent picked up to herb of eternal youth which immediately stopped screaming as if it was a baby who was just given a bottle. Ju Hian who finally got his piece back sighed while looking at the herb of eternal youth. Their high affinity helps in situations like this. 
The O Sung Woo group who were starting to plant the herb of eternal youth noticed something at that moment and asked. Uh, doesn't this look like a scar on the tree's body? They had become anxious after seeing the marks on the tree's body that seemed to have come from a sword. They got angry thinking that the auction house's employees handled their product without care. Those bastard, why I ought to. They dare to sell such a thing to our Hyung Nim. We'll go make a complaint right now. Ju Hien stopped them at that moment. Ah. That's normal so don't do that. The tumblef on the tree's body was a tattoo of possession that it was Ju Hien's possession. Others would see it as weird text but it clearly said Seo Ju Hien on it. The fruit from Yichin Shi Huang's herb of eternal youth was a consumable healing artifact, but the seedling itself was a possession artifact. In simple terms, it was writing his name on it to claim that it was his. Chairman Quan cherished this to the point he grew it in his bedroom garden. It was at that moment. BR. Ju Hien got a call on his cell phone. The number that popped up was not a number he had on his contact list. The Oh Sung Woo group looked toward Ju Hien in confusion after seeing him ignore the call. Who is calling you? Isn't it a number you don't know if the name isn't popping up? However, Ju Hien was looking at it as if it was annoying. It was because Ju Hien remembered that number. That number was Chairman Kwan's number. Chapter, 30 Who is calling you? Isn't it a number you don't know if the name isn't popping up? However, Ju Hien was looking at it as if it was annoying. Why? It was because Ju Hien remembered that number. That was the case. That number was Chairman Kwan's number. Furthermore, it was his personal number and not his business number. There was no way Ju Hien who had a great memory would forget a number that had not changed for tens of years. But I guess he was feeling quite rushed to call with his personal number. It was pretty obvious why Chairman Kwan would be calling him. That was why Ju Hien answered without any hesitation. Hello. He started the call calmly. The person on the other side started to speak. This was Chairman Kwan, the person who betrayed Ju Hien like a lizard getting rid of its tail when Ju Hien had been completely loyal to him. Are you CEO Ju Hien? It sounded like a sincere and relaxed voice of a gentleman. It was the perfect voice for a businessman trying to get what he wanted. Yes, I am CEO Ju Hien. Who is calling? I am TKBM's Kwan Tae Jun. Most people would say don't exaggerate when trying to commit phone fraud. It would be like getting a random call from someone claiming to be Microsoft's Bill Gates. It might be different overseas, but TKBM and Kwan Tae Jun were two names that were at that level in Korea. However, Ju Hien lightly smiled and responded instead of hanging up. Yes, Mr. Kwan Tae Jun. What can I do for you? He was smiling but his tone was quite cold. Chairman Kwan started to laugh. Young man, we met at Midas yesterday, didn't we? I'm not sure. My memory is not very good. Really? But your tone sounds quite rude for someone you're calling for the first time. I'm going to hang up if there's nothing to discuss. Ju Hien heard Quan Tae Jun's voice as he was about to hang up. I'll get right to the point. I heard that you took the tree that Irene Holton won at the action. It was a relaxed yet sharp voice. Ju Hien could tell because he had watched Chairman Quan for a long time. The fact that he was doing this meant that he was desiring the herb of eternal youth quite a bit. If it is okay, I would like to talk about however, Ju Hien coldly smiled and responded. I'm going to hang up now because I am busy. Mr. Quan Tae Jun of TKBM. Click. Ju Hien threw his phone on the table as soon as he hung up the call. It was an extremely unbelievable attitude. The ones to scream in shock were the Oh Sung Woo group. Ha. Huh. Hold on. T, TKBM. Quan Tae Jun, that Quan Tae Jun I know about. That rich man called you. The name Quan Tae Jun seemed to be familiar to them as well. Seeing Irene Holton was enough to shock them, but now Ju Hien was on the phone with the most famous businessman in Korea. This truly is Las Vegas, the city of luck. Ju Hien had no idea what Las Vegas had to do with anything, but the clueless fool seemed excited. They were connected to someone who they would normally never interact with, and although it would normally not be believable, they were at the auction house yesterday as well. 
It was a place wealthy Colossus visited and it was decently believable because Ju Hien had won some items at the auction yesterday. Why did he call you? Why else would it have been? It was obvious he called after burning the candle at both ends in anger about the herb of eternal youth. Irene had won the auction, but it was easy to find out that he was the one to pick up the item after doing some research. It wouldn't be weird for Chairman Quan to connect with a Midas employee and have them give him my number. That wasn't it. He probably did some research on the size of this company as well. After learning about the company Ju Hien came associated with, he was able to call saying he wanted to discuss a deal for the Herb of Eternal Youth. There was no need for TKBM to be afraid of a tiny hole in the wall store. However, it was very much like the greedy Chairman Quan to personally call about making a deal for an artifact. Did he want it that badly? The Herb of Eternal Youth did have that much value. However, nothing could be done. The Herb of Eternal Youth was already his possession and he had no desire to hand it over. Damn it! Chairman Quan was grinding his teeth as he slammed the chair. The whiskey glass that Yun Shi Wu had just brought over fell to the auction house floor. See, Chairman Nim. The secretary and Yun Shi Wu could only look dejectedly at their chairman. Did the conversation not go well? Chairman Quan continued to grind his teeth after hearing Yun Shi Wu's question. Chairman Quan and Yun Shi Wu had both heard about the herb of eternal youth's whereabouts from the secretary. Irene had won the auction, but the person who took the herb of eternal youth was someone from a tiny company called Xiang Gallery. They had no idea how bastards like that had a connection with someone like Irene Holton, but the important thing was that they were the ones to take the herb of eternal youth. That was why they were trying to make a deal for the herb of eternal youth, but it had ended up like this. Um, see, Chairman Nim. He hung up. Excuse me. Yun Shi Wu turned pale after seeing Chairman Quan's eyebrows twitch furiously. He had offered to make the call but Chairman Quan had said he would make the call himself. That showed how much he desired that item. But what happened? They hung up. Art broker thugs who don't even know the basics dared to hang up on Chairman Quan. No wonder Chairman Quan did not seem happy. Damn it, that Seo Ju Hian bastard, who the hell is that bastard? He wanted to swear out loud and ask why the hell he needed to make Chairman Quan angry while he was by his side, but Yun Shi Wu did his best to smile. Ha <laughs> ha. I'm sure it's nothing. He probably hung up thinking it was a spam call. However, Yun Shi Wu realized he must have said something wrong. It was because Chairman Quan's expression changed to a different yet still angry expression. Yun Shi Wu who ended up saying nothing useful clenched his eyes closed and swore internally. Damn it. I need to hand that herb of eternal youth over to the chairman Nim at all costs. He had a reason to do that. Today was the second day of the Midas auction. Chairman Quan had participated since the morning, but there was no item that caught his attention. The items that would catch his attention were artifacts, but there were none visible today. None at all. Of course, it was not that Chairman Quan was recognizing artifacts as Ju Hian had done. However, maybe the best term for it would be intuition, but there were items that left longing impressions on him. It was like walking down a street and finding an item that continues to catch your attention. That was how Chairman Quan selected his items, and those items were likely to be artifacts. It was all thanks to the intuition that the artifacts in Chairman Quan's possession had brought him. The almond tree he fervently bid against Ju Hian yesterday had tugged strongly at his intuition. FCK. That was why Chairman Quan was feeling extremely angry. He had lost the herb of eternal youth that had given off the strongest vibes yesterday to Irene Holton. Yun Shi Wu had no choice but to be wary of Chairman Quan's mood and bit down on his lips. He was someone who had been kicked out of his family because of acting like trash until Chairman Quan helped him make a comeback. I need to win some points with Chairman Quan. However the sword he won yesterday for $200 million was a useless sword. Yun Shi Wu had strongly urged him to win this butcher's knife. However, it was just a cursed sword after trying it out. It was the same as paying $200 million to purchase shit. Thinking about that made Yun Shi Wu recall yesterday's competitor. The butcher's knife was an item that bastard raised the price before quitting at the last minute. 
Yun Shir Wu had no way of knowing whether 200 million was that bastard's limit or if he was a thug who thoughtlessly raised the price on purpose without having any intentions of purchasing the item. Seo Ju Hian, Seo Ju Hian. Seo Ju Hian was probably the bastard who was next to Irene yesterday. It was because the auction house employee remembered exactly what he looked like because he was her type. He didn't know for sure, but he looked like a pretty face with no future. He was quite noticeable that he could easily tell who the auction house employee was talking about. Yun Shir Wu started to frown while thinking about that guy. Is that bastard perhaps an artifact user? The chances were high. He had won the almond tree chairman Quan had been aiming for as well. However, Yun Shir Wu soon shook his head. No. Irene might be an artifact user, but that bastard was probably not. He even won that pumice stone used by a Hollywood actor. He was probably some pervert with weird kinks. Chairman Quan had not tried hard to win that item. Yun Shi Wu who had no way of knowing that was the code of Hammurabi, one of the four major codes of law artifacts, quickly started to speak to Chairman Quan. Chairman Nim. I guess you still have regrets over that almond tree from yesterday. That tree gave off as strong of a feel as my artifact. Yun Shir Wu was shocked after hearing Chairman Quan's annoyed response. Chairman Quan was already in possession of a divine grade artifact. There must be a condition to use it or something as he had not used it very well yet, but Chairman Quan had been moving around gathering artifacts once he learned of their existence. But to be at that level. It was an artifact we couldn't miss. Damn it, it wasn't some sexual enhancer artifact. The fact that Irene handed such an item made it seem as if she was stupid or not an artifact user. Even those who are publicly amazing are regular people in front of artifact users. Even without that, Yun Shi Wu had seen the powers of Chairman Quan's artifact. That was why he was certain that there was nobody who could defeat his future father-in-law right now. That was how artifacts made humans arrogant. Yun Shi Wu's expression changed as if he had made up his mind about something. Chairman Nim. I will take responsibility and go get that tree for you. I will use my artifact if I have to. Yun Shi Wu's gaze was full of anger as he started to leave the room. Damn bastard. I'll teach a lesson to that thug who doesn't even know the basics. Of course, Yun Shi Wu was already drinking water in the process of finding Ju Hian. One this damn bastard. Yun Shi Wu was currently huffing and puffing as he walked back the way he came. He had used his connections to locate Ju Hian. However, maybe it was to screw him over, but Ju Hian only appeared at places he had already visited. Damn it, there's no reason he needs to stay in one spot I guess. Thanks to that, Yun Shi Wu had to suffer more than he's ever suffered before. And he finally found him. He saw the damn bastard leisurely drinking a whiskey at the bar. Excuse me. Are you Mr. Seo Ju Hian? The bar was away from the tourist locations that it was quiet and did not have many customers. Ju Hian was leisurely drinking whiskey in front of the bartender while reading through articles on his laptop. Yun Shi Wu started to frown. This bastard dared to make the chairman him drink water. This young bastard. However, Ju Hian only peeked at him after hearing Yun Shi Wu ask him a question. Yun Shi Wu became upset as that stoic expression had a gaze that seemed to be looking down on him. On the other hand, Ju Hian was laughing internally unlike his outward expression. It looks like he's had to visit quite a lot of places to find me. He could easily see that Yun Shi Wu was annoyed and angry. He's still the same. This bastard had huffed and puffed about how he had been pushed aside by Ju Hian and became nothing. Of course, he had moved around on purpose to treat Yun Shi Wu like a stray dog. Most importantly, there was a reason Ju Hian had made him angry. Yun Shi Wu glared at Ju Hian at that moment. Hey, can't you hear me? Shouldn't you respond when someone asks you a question? Yun Shi Wu then shouted toward the bartender. Water. Give me some water. And I don't care what kind of alcohol, just give me a cold one. He then tried to sit next to Ju Hian. As for you, you twerp. We need to chat. He had no intentions of having a nice conversation with Ju Hian from the beginning. He just needed to take care of him with his artifact. It was at that moment. For some reason, 
Ju Hian kicked Yun Shir Wu and knocked him off the chair. Ugh. S, sir. The bartender stopped making the drink in shock and rushed over. Yun Shir Wu who fell over all of a sudden glared at Ju Hian in shock. Hey bastard, are you crazy? However, Ju Hian who had his chin in his hands was as calm as could be. Sure, we can chat. But isn't this our first time meeting each other? W, what? Ju Hian said that before smiling viciously. Then why don't you start by fixing that rotten tone of yours? Yun Shir Wu's expression looked perfect to make the cover of a newspaper. Chapter, 31 What did he just say? Rotten tone. Yun Shir Wu could not even laugh in disbelief. What was this young bastard saying to him right now? Yun Shir Wu had no plans to chat nicely with Ju Hian who had ridiculed Chairman Quan. He was planning on taking care of Ju Hian and stealing the almond tree as he had done until now. His artifact was a curse type artifact that could easily take care of people. Furthermore, this was the United States. Why would a foreign nature put any effort into what happened to an Asian foreigner? However, he had been kicked by that opponent he had been looking down on. Hey! Are you crazy? How dare you hit me? Ju Hian just casually smiled without caring whether Yun Shir Wu was screaming or not. Weren't you the one who came to see me? You bastard. Then fix your tone and sit straight. Then I will listen to what you have to say. Is he really crazy? Yun Shir Wu continued to frown at this indignity but Ju Hian was sneering internally. He probably came here thinking that he would kill me and take the herb of eternal youth. The Yun Shir Wu he knew was that kind of bastard. Furthermore, it was obvious Yun Shir Wu was mistaking him as a regular person. It made sense why he would make that mistake and this was the time when only people like Chairman Quan were monopolizing artifacts. It was also the time this bastard started to get stuck up. Artifacts tended to make people arrogant as well. However he's still a useless fool who complained about being inferior to me. Yun Shir Wu, age 29 years old. He was someone who tried to bring Ju Hian down with everything he had and made things entertaining for Ju Hian. In that regard, for Ju Hian who was the captain of the tomb raiding team, he was a subordinate who hated him. That was why Ju Hian started to smile while thinking about the past. How great! Let's teach this bastard a lesson like I used to. Ju Hian was riling this bastard up on purpose. Why? Making people feel shamed was a way to weaken their dominance, allowing Ju Hian to steal his weapon. Those with more pride are bound to feel more shame. However, Yun Shir Wu did not know this as he started to grind his teeth before responding. We met at the auction house, right? I came to see you for that reason. I don't recall. Stop joking. We definitely saw each other. Ju Hian then chuckled. Ah, the useless guy hanging on to that old man. It was at that moment. A message window popped up in front of Ju Hian's eyes. The other party has lost his cool and his dominance is temporarily weakening. Ju Hian chuckled as he read that. This truly was Yun Shir Wu's weakness. He was the young master of a large corporation who was stripped of his successor title after causing an incident. He narrowly escaped his terrible fate by being a special admit into TKBM's excavation team but he continued to feel shame at the fact that he had to suck up to Chairman Quan. Ju Hian squinted knowing that was the case. Now that I think about it, I did get a call from Chairman Quan Tae Jun. I guess he really needs that sexual enhancer. Does he have a new mistress or something? Yun Shir Wu questioned if he heard correctly before getting angry. This rude bastard. Of course, he wasn't angry because Ju Hian was talking shit about someone who was like a father to him, it was the result of the Pavlovian conditioning that he needed to look good for Chairman Quan. However, Ju Hian didn't stop there. It looks like you came all this way to deliver that tree to Chairman Quan. What a good loyal dog. Yun Shir Wu glared and put his hand in his pocket. Do I get rid of him right now with this? His hand touched his artifact. It was the artifact he brought with him to take care of Ju Hian. However, Yun Shir Wu ground his teeth and shook his head. There are still people watching. There was also something he wanted to confirm as well. I will get right to the point. 
What is your relationship with Irene Holton? Ju Hian just laughed loudly instead of responding. Hey useless. Didn't I tell you to fix your tone first? Ugh. Yun Shi Wu's eyes opened wide. This damn thug should be feeling thankful that he was even willing to talk to him. Ju Hian looked at him and smiled again. I will say this again but you are the one who came here to see me, I have no reason to listen. Why don't you think things through properly? Ugh. Well, I might just hand that tree over to you depending on how you act. I just received it as a gift as well. Yun Shi Wu's gaze changed at this unexpected offer. Using an artifact with limited use to forcibly take it or to get it for free. Even children would know which was the better option. Yun Shi Wu thought for a moment before thinking he could swallow his pride a bit for that. My deepest apologies. Mr. Seo Juhian. I will rephrase my question. Uh, I wish to ask about your relationship with Irene Holton. It should be fine now, right? However, Ju Hian was not one who would give the answer Yun Shi Wu was seeking that easily. Your tone sounds much better. But you are still lacking common sense. Shouldn't you introduce yourself first? Or hand over a business card or something? Damn it, this bastard. Yun Shi Wu crunched his teeth as he handed a business card over. This is all for the chairman Nim. I am this kind of person. However, Ju Hian just laughed without receiving the business card. Put it away. I don't need it. Yun Shi Wu almost swore after hearing Ju Hian laugh. Then why the hell did you ask for it? Ju Hian then laughed and answered Yun Shi Wu's question in a way that seemed as if he was praising a subordinate. It might have been an old habit. I met Irene Holton for the first time in the auction house. She kept following me around after I told her she was pretty. Then what about that tree? I got annoyed with her following me so I said I'll give her my number if she buys that for me. It wasn't the truth but he wasn't going to sell them any information about Irene. However, Yun Shi Wu who had no way of knowing that was extremely shocked. She paid $500 million for the tree for that reason. It could be shocking, but the fact that it was announced in the past that Irene liked Asian men and that Ju Hian was handsome made it sound believable. Why else would a celebrity like that hang around a thug like this? That resolved most of his curiosity. I guess I don't need to pay much attention to it. They had the secretary do a good amount of investigation into Ju Hian already, but he had thought Ju Hian might have a connection with a celebrity because he was hanging out with Irene. Yun Shi Wu sighed in relief as he continued to speak. Then are you willing to hand that tree over, sir? Are you crazy? Excuse me? But you said earlier that you would hand the tree over. Hey idiot, did you really believe that? Yun Shi Wu instantly started to frown. The other party's cool has been severely shaken. The other party's dominance has temporarily fallen from A grade to D grade antique grade. The artifact that has been repressed is starting to rampage. Yun Shi Wu couldn't hold back anymore and took out his artifact. He couldn't deal with it anymore. You motherfucking bastard. Good, I should have done this from the beginning. I'll use it to turn you into a slave and make you die a dog's death, you bastard. Ju Hian who had his arms crossed tilted his head and laughed. It's probably best you stop. You son of a bitch. Yun Shi Wu then activated the artifact in his hand. Ha! Huh. Yun Shi Wu instantly started to frown. It was because the artifact he used showed no reaction. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Yun Shi Wu became anxious. He definitely used his dominance but the artifact did not activate. W, what is going on? Yun Shi Wu had taken out a glass bottle. The item inside the cosmetic bottle looked like women's powder or flour. However, this was a curse type artifact. Why isn't it activating? However, at that moment Yun Shi Wu's head was forcibly grabbed and he fell toward the table. Boom! Yun Shi Wu could not help but scream as his head was slammed on the table and his arm was twisted back. Ache! Ju Hian was pushing down on Yun Shi Wu's head like a cop arresting a thief. Hey bastard, that hurts. Ah! Let go! However, Ju Hian just smiled at him. That's why I asked if you were crazy. You moron. 
how can you use an artifact when your dominance has fallen? Yun Shi Wu questioned his ears for a moment. Artifact? Did this bastard just say artifact? You bastard. So you do know about artif. Yun Shi Wu flailed and tried to use his artifact. However, the artifact still did not activate. Ju Hian used that opening to easily take the bottle away from Yun Shi Wu's hand. Hey! Ju Hian then easily channeled his dominance into the bottle. Obey my orders. The powder inside the cosmetic bottle slowly started to move and Yun Shi Wu turned pale after seeing what was going on. FCK, why is that listening to that bastard? That was the case. The item that Yun Shi Wu had taken out was a powder type curse artifact. It was not a consumable artifact but a possession artifact contracted to an owner. Voodoo Priest Zombie Powder A Great Treasure Grade, Possession Artifact The Voodoo Belief That Originated From The Black Slaves Of Africa They were said to use this zombie powder to turn believers into zombies to punish them. This artifact was born from those rumors that had filled the media and solidified itself in people's minds. In simple terms, if you touch the powder or swallow it, an evil spirit possesses your body and you become a zombie slave with no rationality. But you need enough dominance to use a good artifact. Dominance was related to a person's mental strength, so people like Yun Shi Wu who could not control their minds often saw their dominance dagger. That was why even a possession artifact like this instantly betrayed its master. Ju Hian smiled brightly. That's why I always told you not to be useless and feel inferior. Yun Shi Wu who was pinned down by Ju Hian ground his teeth. He thought Ju Hian was mocking him. You son of a bitch, what bullshit are you saying now? I'm going to kill you. Ju Hian smiled with his eyes before tipping the bottle. I guess you haven't learned your lesson yet. The powder that seemed to be alive charged toward Yun Shi Wu and covered him. A desperate screech echoed from this corner bar. That idiot. Chairman Quan's hands were shaking as he could not control his anger. How did the punk who arrogantly said he would go get the artifact yesterday return in such a mess? And lo and behold. In front his eyes was a naked Yun Shi Wu flailing around in a cell. Are you his guardian? Chairman Quan had shown up to the police station after receiving a call. Yun Shi Wu had supposedly walked around Las Vegas naked chasing after women and sexually harassing them. Pictures were already being printed in articles. It was extremely shameful as the Korean news was reporting that he was TKBM's Chairman Kwan's future son-in-law. How would he deal with this mess? However, Yun Shi Wu seemed to be seeing an illusion and unable to realize what was going on. He was just groaning like a zombie even while being in solitary confinement. The cops were just treating him as a junkie. However, the secretary peeked toward Chairman Kwan in shock after taking a look at Yun Shi Wu's condition. Um, see, Chairman Nim. This seems to be. Chairman Quan touched his forehead as if he had a headache. I'm certain of it. This is the effect of this bastard's artifact. This stupid bastard. He had a headache because of this son-in-law who was causing him all sorts of embarrassment. Chairman Quan did not have a left arm or right arm person during this time. He would have pushed Yun Shi Wu to the curb if he didn't have a useful level of dominance. See, Chairman Nim. What do we do? Leave the punk here but go recover the artifact he had on him. The secretary looked scared after hearing that question. That, you see. Now what? That he had nothing on him when they found him. Chairman Nim, your artifacts that he took with him are all missing as well. Chairman Quan frowned before his eyes opened wide in shock. What? Chapter, 32 what? Chairman Quan questioned his ears after hearing the secretary's response. The artifacts are all gone. All of the ones I let Yun Shi Wu borrow. Yes, yes sir. We searched through Yun Shi Wu department head Nim's personal belongings but they're all. Chairman Quan felt as if someone had punched him in the head. See, Chairman Nim. What do we do? Yun Shi Wu supposedly had nothing on him when they found him. He wasn't robbed, he supposedly took his own clothes off in the middle of Las Vegas and started to throw money everywhere. Based on how all the artifacts he had on him were gone, he probably chucked the artifacts when he stripped and went crazy. 
That thought made Chairman Quan touch his forehead. He even felt his temples getting tight as his blood pressure went up. Chairman Quan was upset because they were all useful artifacts. He was keeping Yun Shi Wu around because he was one of the few artifact users with high dominance and had let him borrow the artifacts he had gathered. This was because Chairman Quan was more familiar with using people than doing things himself. But they disappeared. This stupid bastard. Chairman Quan's anger pierced through the sky. The secretary whose eyes were moving as she warily observed the chairman said something to help him calm down. We've sent people to inspect the places the department head nim had been. We might be able to find the artifacts soon. However, Chairman Quan who was massaging his tight temples had a different thought. No. That's probably useless. Excuse me. Do you really think Yun Shi Wu went crazy and threw away the artifacts? T. That. It's more likely that the bastard who turned him like this stole the artifacts. That was the case. They had to determine why Yun Shi Wu turned into this stupid zombie in the first place. Yun Shi Wu wasn't an idiot who would have used the zombie powder artifact on himself. Someone had turned him like this and gave the order to perform the strip show after stealing his belongings. The secretary who thought artifact users were special became shocked. Then just who did this to the department head Nim? Who else would it be? It must be Seo Juhian. It wasn't like this bastard Yun Shi Wu would have stopped to do something else after saying he would go get the tree. He was probably stupidly defeated by an artifact because it was an isolated area. However, the secretary became even more shocked after hearing Chairman Quan's response. T, then isn't it even more of an issue? There are no legal ways to deal with artifacts. The world did not know about artifacts yet. Chairman Quan had no thoughts about letting others know because he was greedy and wanted to monopolize them for himself. So, it wasn't like he could reveal the existence of artifacts to file a police report that they were stolen. This was why he was going crazy. First, send someone to see if that Seo Juhian bastard is at the airport. How should we deal with him? Chairman Quan debated for a moment before scrunching his face. They could not use artifacts. It would become a major headache if the major communication companies learned about artifacts. Send the lawyer, Li Jin A. Tell her to take care of it quietly. Seo Juhian. He was just a spirited thug in his early twenties who didn't know how the world operated. This wasn't the first time he saw a bastard like that. He just needed to give a decently sweet candy or suppress them. At least that was what Chairman Quan thought. Stupid Yun Shi Wu. Las Vegas McCarran International Airport. Ju Hian who was waiting for a flight to Korea was laughing while looking at foreign and Korean articles on his phone. TKBM's Chairman Kwan's son-in-law's strip show in broad daylight. Was he on drugs or is he nuts? Chairman Kwan's underling Yun Shi Wu attempted sexual harassment while naked. TKBM Chairman Kwan's spokesperson claims they are looking into the incident. Chairman Kwan's face should be burning up right now. Ju Hian knew better than anybody that a prideful old man like him would hate something like this quite a bit. Yun Shi Wu truly isn't useful. It needed to at least be Chairman Quan's left-hand man for Ju Hian to admit they were good. That bastard possessed Juga Kongming's artifact, a divine-grade artifact which was said to be difficult to handle. One although Ju Hian and he were Chairman Quan's left arm and right arm, they were not very close because of their different personalities. There are a few people including him that I need to steal. However, those people would not appear yet. So, there was nothing he could do about it. He would steal Chairman Quan's weapons first. That was the reason he stole those artifacts from Yun Shi Wu. And lo and behold, the Oh Sung Wu group who were next to Ju Hian were confused while looking at the new items next to them. Um, Hyun Nim. What? That I'm sure there are reasons for everything you do, Hyun Nim. Stop beating around the bush and say what's on your mind. The Oh Sung Wu group flinched at Ju Hian's annoyed gaze and quickly asked. Then I will ask the question. Um can we ask why are carrying millet around in a bottle like that? They gulped as they asked the question because they thought they might get beaten up if they asked the question but they were too curious not to ask. Ju Hian's gaze headed for his phone. There was a small bottle accessory the length of two fingers dangling on his phone. 
Inside that bottle was one grain of millet. It was understandable why they would find this to be odd. Juhian started to laugh. I bought it as a souvenir. It's a Las Vegas talisman, a talisman. A.T., talisman. A talisman my ass, this is an artifact. This was the grain of millet artifact from the young man who ended up getting married because of a grain of millet story. It was a wonderful wealth-related artifact. The three artifacts he had taken from Yun Shir Wu were the zombie powder, the millet, and Homer's eye patch. All three were items Chairman Quan would be upset to have lost. Not only was Chairman Quan greedy for artifacts, the zombie powder was a good curse-type artifact to deal with people, the millet helped to bring in wealth and Homer's eye patch was a S-grade legendary hero artifact. He was probably seriously upset that he might need to take some pills. I'm sure that old bastard would come to retrieve his items there was something he was disappointed about. The artifacts he took from Yun Shir Wu were good but they were still second-rate artifacts. Yun Shir Wu did not have any of the important first-rate artifacts on him. Of course, Chairman Quan was not an idiot who would let others borrow his first-rate artifacts. That's why I need to steal that bastard's first-rate artifacts as well. The Chairman Quan he knew would come at him with the first-rate artifacts to take them back. That was what Ju Hian was aiming for. It was at that moment. Are you perhaps Mr. Seo Ju Hian? A woman approached Ju Hian who was sitting on a bench. She looked to be a fashionable career woman in her neat semi-formal outfit. She looked pretty but also looked like a difficult person who didn't smile much. She was frowning while looking at the picture the auction house employee had of Ju Hian and comparing to the real person. However, Ju Hian recognized her and started to smile. Chairman Quan's lackey is here. My name is Li Jine and I am TKBM's lawyer. The woman who introduced herself as Li Jine was sitting across Ju Hian in a cafe. Of course, he expected someone from Chairman Quan's side to show up. It wouldn't be fun if they didn't take the bait when I purposely sent Yun Shir Wu back like that. That was also why he let the artifacts release their aura so that it would be easy to find him. Li Jine continued to speak as Ju Hian squinted. I will get right to the point and ask. You're the person who took Mr. Yun Shir Wu's belongings, aren't you? Ju Hian smirked. And if I am? Li Jine smiled as if Ju Hian was wary of her and continued to speak. Please don't get the wrong idea. Yun Shir Wu is someone who has already smudged the Chairman Nim's face so I am here to make you a great offer. The Chairman Nim believes you are a talented individual. Ju Hian scoffed at her comments. Offer? What kind of offer did that old grouch make? Li Jine didn't seem to like what Ju Hian was saying as she could not help but frown. Mr. Co Ju Hian. Please let me first give you some life advice as someone who has lived longer than you. It is best to watch what you say when you are around others. I understand you may be lacking societal experiences. Who knows? It looks like you are the one who is lacking societal experiences. Li Jine asked in anger but Ju Hian just smiled. Li Jine felt upset that he was ignoring her but chose to hold back her anger as she continued to speak. The offer isn't anything big. We won't even ask you to return the items you are free to continue using those items but you will need to sign a contract with our TKBM excavation team. Ju Hian started to smile. He had wondered how they would come at him but it was this type of plan. Are you telling me to sign a slave contract? No, that is not our intention at all. The Chairman Nim knows the future value of these artifacts and thinks highly of people who can use these artifacts. Then. We will pay you $100 million in advance. It is something we do when we try to recruit a talented individual with high potential onto our team. You don't need to show us any results and we won't interfere in your life at all. We will have you sign a proper contract and pay you a salary and give you some employee benefits as well. All you have to do is be a part of the TKBM team. And if I say no? Li Jine was shocked after seeing Ju Hian's cold smile. It was hard for her to imagine anyone rejecting this offer without even hearing all of it. Was this a young guy's foolishness? Excuse me. You seem to think that you are something. Mr. Co Ju Hian. Things would get complicated for you if Chairman Quan files a police report for theft. And? 
Can't you see that we are trying to let bygones be bygones in a way that benefits both sides since we can't reveal these artifacts to others? Does this guy not understand the situation since I'm being nice? A small store like the Xiang Gallery can easily be closed if the chairman Nim wishes for it with all involved parties suddenly dying from unknown illnesses. You are no exception. Have you ever thought that the person spewing such nonsense might be in danger? Li Jine calmly smiled as if telling him to do it if he could. This is an airport full of people. Then you should not be able to use any artifacts either. Do you want others to know about artifacts? Zhu Hian chuckled at that question. It seemed that this woman was thinking she was safe because they were in a crowded area. The artifact users of this time were trying their best to hide information about artifacts so that they could monopolize them. It was understandable. That was why Zhu Hian answered in a relaxed manner. Let me give you a warning. It's best for you to get lost while I'm asking nicely. Ho. Let me be blunt about it since you seem like someone who will not understand if I beat around the bush. The conditions we are offering are not bad at all. She handed a contract to him. I'm sorry but please excuse the fact that I investigated you a bit. You are a high school graduate, have no backing, and to be honest with you, I don't see your future being in a company with those thugs. You'll probably lose all your money because you won't know how to manage the money you earn with your artifacts. Didn't you buy a useless Hollywood actor's pumice stone at the auction house? Your future is obvious. We're saying we will take care of everything for you. That's not it. The chairman Nim has made a secret deal with the other colossus of the world. Are you deaf? I told you to get lost. Zhu Hian's words sounded cold but the stupid Li Jine laughed in disbelief. This damn young high school graduate thinks he can cut me off. Then let's do it the legal way. Unfortunately, the bartender confirmed that you were with Mr. Yun Shir Wu. I heard you tried to pour some weird powder on him. I don't know how long you will last going up against TKBM, but... Hey, Miss Lawyer. Remember what I told you earlier? I said you seem to lack societal experiences. Yes excuse me. Ju Hian's eyes sparkled at that moment. Li Jin could not help but gulp. She felt something suddenly choking her neck. This is the zombie powder. Ju Hian who was sitting with his arms crossed was smiling viciously. Anybody with a lot of societal experiences would have realized it right away. They would be able to tell if the person in front of them was a dog who could be controlled with a bone and whip method. If not, they would be able to tell if the person is a wild animal they should tuck their tails and run away from. Li Jine looked around and shouted as she noticed the rising powder. H, hold. There's a lot of people here. It won't do you any good if people learn about artifacts. It happened at that moment. Miss Lawyer. You seem to have understood something completely wrong since earlier. Ju Hian used his vicious dominance to activate the zombie powder. Unlike Chairman Quan, I don't care to keep artifacts a secret. Then there was a large explosion at the airport. Chapter, 33 The incident quietly but quickly became a big issue. And it happened in the way Chairman Quan least wanted. Bang! Ah! The explosion had happened in the cafe of a second-floor lounge of McCarran Airport. A strong gust of wind blew out with the explosion and the small self-serve coffee cafe inside the lounge disappeared without a trace from the violent explosion. These were all the powers of the artifact Juhian took out. However, people who had no way of knowing this thought it was a terrorist attack and fell into chaos as they started to run. What the hell, is it a terrorist attack? Kaya. It exploded up there. Run. Of course, there was nobody in the lounge and the explosion wasn't as serious as it sounded so no civilians were injured, but there was one casualty. It was Li Jine. S. Save me. Please save me. Please. Li Jine shamelessly started to crawl while looking at the powder threatening her. The powder that was moving as if it was a swarm of bugs was trying to charge at her. The people underneath became shocked as they saw this. Holy crap, what is that? What is that thing that is moving? Are they bugs? People who could not see Ju Hian or Li Jine could not tell what was going on. 
However, there was a group of people moving up to the second floor while everybody else was escaping in fear. They were the Oh Sung Woo group. Ju, Ju Hien. What just happened? Are you okay? The Oh Sung Woo group seemed to have forgotten to call him Hyung Nim because they were quite concerned as they ran up the stairs. However, the place they arrived at was already reduced to rubble. The tables, chairs, everything in a portion of the lounge had been blasted away. The only thing they saw was the crying woman and Ju Hien who was staring at her like a mass murderer. Ju Hien. Ju Hien told them things were fine and to wait there after hearing them call out to him. It'll be over soon. Stand guard over there for a bit if you have nothing to do. Lee Jin A's body started to shake after hearing that. A, hey, are you really going to be like this? Hey, do you know what the hell you just did? Using an artifact in the middle of the airport, are you fucking crazy? Who is the idiot who didn't even realize the crazy bastard she was trying to mess with? Lee Jin A flinched after making eye contact with Ju Hien for a moment. Lee Jin A became certain after seeing that gaze. I really messed with the wrong person. This bastard was a crazy bastard. He really doesn't care if people find out about artifacts. How could he be like this? Li Jin A then turned pale thinking that Chairman Quan would be angry. It was because she would be finished if Chairman Quan found out about this. No, this was not just a problem for Chairman Quan. The many leaders of different nations and the Colossus who were partnering with him would be angry as well. The civilians know about artifacts now. Damn it, you bastard. Wasn't it a rule among artifact users to keep them a secret? Are you crazy? Ju Hien's scoff could probably be heard from the sky. Rule? Who decided on such a shitty rule? W, what? Let me give you a warning for my little junior lady. I've seen quite a lot of artifact users until now. Ju Hien soon had a mischievous yet cold smile. The people who try to force those who knows where the hell they came from rules are always the first to die. You know what I mean right? That was what Ju Hien's annoyed smile seemed to be saying as he channeled his dominance and summoned two artifacts. Boom! They were the code of Hammurabi and the Silver Axe. However, they looked different than usual. The code of Hammurabi was not its usual pumice stone size or even the slate board the size of an iPad while the silver axe no longer looked like a knife or a camping axe. That was indeed the case. There was a 2.25m tall large slate board behind Juhian. Not only that, there was a heinous silver axe that looked as if it could easily butcher a woman in two. These were the appearances of the artifacts threatening Li Jine. They were also giving off vicious auras that could not be compared to before. These were the artifact's true appearances. These were the artifact's ultimate forms that were at the opposite end of the spectrum from their camouflage forms, and was something people could not call forth without having skills. That was why Li Jin A could not help but shake in fear. I, impossible. This is something only the Chairman Nim could do. She could not help but gasp again after seeing the large slate board summoned behind Juhian. The Code of Hammurabi. It had disappeared from the Louvre Museum a few months ago but this was the same appearance she had seen in pictures. Chairman Kwan was looking for the Code of Hammurabi because it is one of the four major codes of law artifacts. But this bastard had it on him. Juhian soon approached Li Jinae. The scared Li Jin A must have thought she was really going to die as she used her artifact. Forget the senior's mood or order, this bastard was about to kill her. The item she took out was a water bottle. Water shot out toward Ju Hien once she activated the artifact. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. The water returned to Li Jin A once Ju Hien quietly recited the phrase. Ah! The pressure had also changed to something that resembled a water cannon. Li Jin A who now looked like a drenched rat started to cough. T, this bastard. Ju Hien smiled with his eyes as if he was complimenting her. He was amazed that she did not easily turn into a zombie as Yun Shi Wu had done even after touching the zombie powder. I guess your dominance is pretty high to last so long. Ju Hien then raised the heinous looking silver axe. Li Jin A was shaking as she started to shout. S, stoop. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
please don't kill me. However, it was useless. Ju Hian was not the type to go easy on his enemies even if they were women. Go, Silver Axe. Rip apart the enemy who tried to take my stuff. The Silver Axe coldly flashed in the air, making Li Jinae curl up in fear and scream. S, save me. Both the sound of Ju Hian's Silver Axe striking down and the woman's desperate scream could be heard. However, something shocking happened. A noise that was too light to be the sound of bones breaking echoed in the area. Rip. Ha. Huh. Li Jinae now gasped for a different reason. The fancy suit that Li Jinae had been wearing had been ripped into pieces. It was not just her suit. Her fancy underwear, her expensive purse, cell phone, accessories, every material item she owned was destroyed. Rip. 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 Li Jinae screamed. Kaya. What the hell is this? What else would it be? It was the Silver Axe power. That was the case. The Silver Axe power was to take care of anyone aiming for its master's belongings. As a wealth type artifact, it could destroy the enemy's belongings. And clothes are also belongings humans pay money to purchase. That was why even the clothes on her back were destroyed by the Silver Axe. The effect became even stronger with the more expensive items. In simple terms, it's for creating eye candy, no, no, disarming the enemy. Ju Hian then chuckled. Li Jinae could only cover her large breasts and curl up her white body and cry. One she unfortunately ended up as the second strip show after Yun Shi Wu. However, Ju Hian was giving a thumbs up internally without any malice. Nice body. A message popped up in front of Ju Hian at the same time. The other party's dominance is drastically falling after experiencing severe indignity. The other party's dominance has temporarily fallen from A grade to D grade. Ju Hian lightly motioned with his hands as if he had been waiting for this. The zombie powder covered her body in excitement. The zombie powder worked properly now that her dominance had weakened. Li Jinae became a zombie slave similar to how Yun Shi Wu had ended up and started to aimlessly move around naked like a drug addict. Ju Hian sneered as he watched. Good luck finding an exorcism artifact to return these bastards to normal, Quan Tae Jun. Ju Hian then picked up an artifact among the items Li Jinae had dropped. It looked like an ink bottle used with a fountain pen. Ink belonging to an artist on Paris's Montmartre Hill B grade rare grade, consumable artifact remaining uses 50100 the durability seemed to have lowered because of his belonging destroying silver axe. Well, it doesn't matter. Ju Hian didn't really need art type artifacts. He still put it in his pocket as he thought he might find some uses for it. It was at that moment. I heard that possessed items were coming out of tombs and roaming around. Those rumors were true. The one making the comment was one of the Oh Sung Wu group who had fallen over in shock. Ju Hian chuckled. Now that you got a good view of it, prepare to write a thorough eyewitness account on SNS. X, excuse me. Is that okay? Ju Hian smiled and looked toward the Oh Sung Wu group. He did not seem to be too concerned about this situation. Ju Hian had done plenty of illegal things against pretty much the entire world as he led his tomb raiding team. They came in and swept things up and slithered away like eels to escape. Ju Hian was that kind of person. There was a reason people called Ju Hian a ghost, the leader of the world's most evil tomb raiding team who appeared and disappeared without a trace. So, something like this was child's play. Is that really okay? It doesn't matter. The one who will get upset about this news spreading is some old man and not me. But the level of damage. Hyung Nim, aren't they going to arrest you? Ju Hian then smiled like a fox. Do you think I'll get caught that easily? No, definitely not. The Oh Sung Woo group instinctively gulped. It may sound as if he was speaking without thinking, but Ju Hian knew something they didn't. They knew the cops could not arrest him right now. Why? Chairman Kwan will try to minimize this incident as much as possible. Chairman Kwan was the one who would end up in a terrible situation if Ju Hian was arrested. Chairman Kwan should know for sure now that he gave a blatant warning. He should now know that I have no desire to keep the artifacts a secret. 
That was why the situation Chairman Quan least wanted to happen would occur if Zhu Hian was arrested. Zhu Hian might reveal the artifacts to the police if he was getting questioned. That was why Chairman Quan who wants to keep the artifacts a secret would take care of things on Zhu Hian's behalf and do his best to protect Zhu Hian even if he hated the fact that he needed to do so. Zhu Hian knew Chairman Quan's personality well. Chairman Quan was someone who would definitely do that. But he's already late. News about artifacts would slowly spread out to the world through word of mouth. Zhu Hian actually looked down on people who wanted to keep artifacts a secret. Zhu Hian didn't care whether people benefited from artifacts or even scammed others to take artifacts from others. He just felt it was disgusting and petty to keep the information to themselves so that they could monopolize all artifacts. Zhu Hian's belief was that even if you scam others to get it, let's do it on a fair playing field where everyone knows the rules of the game. On the other hand, Chairman Quan's method was to scam someone who didn't even know the rules of the game. Chairman Quan's methods would lead to more clueless people dying because of artifacts, and large numbers of people dying was something only the artifacts would enjoy. Zhu Hian did not want to see Chairman Quan laughing or the artifact bastards enjoying something. That was all he wanted. So eat shit, old man. Anyway, let's head to North Las Vegas airport. This woman and Chairman Quan Tae Jun who should be nearby will take care of things here. Ha. Huh. Ha. Huh. Quan Tae Jun. That person is nearby. How do you know that? How do I know? Although Zhu Hian didn't know the identity of Chairman Quan's artifact, he clearly remembered the aura of that bastard's artifact. Maybe he couldn't hide the aura because he was flustered, but Zhu Hian could feel that evil artifact bastard's aura in the distance. Anyway, let's go before people come to see what happened. It happened as Zhu Hian tried to walk outside. You're here, the human who has the qualifications to possess me. Zhu Hian jerked his head after hearing a spooky voice echoing through the airport. The aura he felt meant it was at minimum a divine grade artifact. However, it was much more heinous and violent than the likes of the Herb of Eternal Youth. On the other hand, the Oh Sum Wu group found Zhu Hian's expression to be odd. What's wrong? Nothing. Am I the only one who can hear it? However, Zhu Hian was anxious for a different reason. This voice was the crow's voice he had heard before. Chapter 34 It was a voice he had heard before. The day he had been betrayed by Chairman Quan had he not heard this voice inside that tomb. The voice echoed out again. The human who has the qualifications to possess me. Danger will soon strike. Zhu Hian looked around after hearing the voice again. He was certain. It was the voice of the bastard who sent him back to the past and gave him a new opportunity. But why is that bastard speaking to me now? He then heard the voice again. Human, hurry over this way. Zhu Hian then started to frown. Go that way. Does he think I'm crazy enough to do that? This bastard was the owner of the unclearable tomb that forced his greatest tomb raiding team in the world to die without being able to put up much fight. It was not something he could dominate right now. I don't know why it is calling me over, but he was thankful that it sent him to the past but Zhu Hian was not interested in this crow bastard at all. Of course, he needed strong divine grade artifacts. Chairman Quan had one and he needed at least one divine grade artifact to become a monopolizer. However, the crow was an artifact even Zhu Hian didn't know about. The fact that I have no information is too dangerous. However, the crow continued to be persistent. Hurry over to me. Danger will soon strike this place. Zhu Hian found it a bit odd that it sounded as if it was giving him a warning, but he soon shook his head thinking that was not possible. He knew better than anybody else that there were no artifacts that cared about humans. It's all just part of an artifact's ploy. It happened as Zhu Hian tried to walk outside after having that thought. Look at the mess you caused. Zhu Hian smirked as he turned around after hearing the familiar voice. He's here. And lo and behold, an angry Chairman Quan was standing there. Zhu Hian had a twisted smile on his face as he looked at the tall middle-aged man. The person in front of him was none other than Quan Tae Jun, chairman of TKBM. He was in his mid-fifties but looked quite fit for a middle-aged man. And although he was old, the charisma flowing out of his gaze was oppressive and cold, 
fitting his title as a monopolizer. However, Zhu Hian was laughing internally while looking at him. This was because he could tell that Chairman Quan was angry even though he had a gentleman's smile on the outside. Nice to meet you, Mr. Quan Te Jun. Chairman Quan scoffed after hearing Zhu Hian mock him. He had expected it, but Zhu Hian was even more disrespectful than he expected. You must be CO Zhu Hian. And if I am? Unlike the Kam Zhu Hian, the O Sung Wu group were wary of Chairman Quan. Hyung Nim, are you sure it is okay? That big boobed woman who was doing a strip show no, no, that lawyer, wasn't he the one who sent her? Chairman Quan turned toward the O Sung Wu group and greeted them as well. Friends, it's my first time meeting all of you. My name is Quan Tae Jun. Ah yes, yes sir. However, the O Sung Wu group started to sweat the moment they made eye contact with Quan Tae Jun. It was because they had this weird feeling that they should be bowing 90 degrees toward him. That was extremely weird. Ju Hian who saw this clicked his tongue and started to frown. That damn old bastard. Ju Hian took a sword out of his pocket. He then quickly moved and appeared behind Chairman Quan before turning his head and pointing the knife at Chairman Quan's neck. It was an extremely crisp movement thanks to the combination of a possession type artifact and a pro's abilities. Chairman Quan's eyes opened wide in shock. The knife Zhu Hian was using was the Egyptian priest's knife. Zhu Hian could clearly see the location of Chairman Quan's organs once he held the knife in his hand. Zhu Hian who confirmed this then put on a cold smile as if he would really dig those organs out. Chairman Nim. Pull back your powers if you don't want to die. He seemed to have done this quite a few times. Of course, Zhu Hian was smarter than to kill a large corporation's boss out here when they were not even inside a tomb. However, the situation was quite bad right now. This old bastard is trying to make us submit. That was the case. Chairman Quan was using his dominance that should be used to make artifacts submit on them, and the O oh Sung Wu group had been suppressed by Chairman Quan's dominance. Dominance was something that could be used on both artifacts and humans. Those with a strong will could suppress those with weaker wills. It wasn't as if dominance could be used to mind control people, but it was enough to make the weaker people feel fear and intimidation. That was why Zhu Hian was using the knife to threaten Chairman Quan's life. I told you to pull your power back because it is unpleasant. It didn't affect him much but it did feel unpleasant and Zhu Hian was someone who took good care of people who he took in as his subordinates. Chairman Quan started to laugh. I knew there was a reason Yun Shi Wu and Lawyer Li couldn't take care of you. The O oh Sung Wu group fell over and started to breathe heavily once Chairman Quan withdrew his dominance. I, I'm alive. The three who felt as if they were going to die were looking at Zhu Hian as if he was a monster. How is Zhu Hian fine through all this? They didn't know what it was, but they were unable to bear it because Chairman Quan had seemed extremely scary. However, Chairman Quan had realized something shocking because of this. CO Zhu Hian is stronger than I expected. Maybe that was the reason. Chairman Quan's instincts were telling him that Zhu Hian was dangerous. Chairman Quan came to a single conclusion after having that thought. I think it will be best to get rid of people like you who know about artifacts. The O oh Sung Wu group became shocked after seeing his frightening gaze. They had seen how Li Jinae had turned into a zombie slave just now. However, Zhu Hian was calm unlike his scared subordinates. Chairman Quan who was thinking that Zhu Hian was extremely confident started to laugh. There's been a prophecy too. It said that the whole world would learn about artifacts once something called the Great Tomb Appearance occurred. He was clearly talking about the future diary. And Zhu Hian who remembered the future diary's copy version word for word started to laugh. And. It said I needed to get rid of as many people who know about artifacts as possible if I want to prevent that Great Tomb Appearance. So I'm going to need all of you to disappear. However, Zhu Hian who had the knife at Chairman Quan's neck started to sneer. Do you think you'll be faster or I'll be faster? Chairman Quan still looked relaxed as if he was using a defensive artifact. Do it if you can do it in a place like this with CCTVs all around us. It doesn't look like you have any great artifacts anyways. Hayu, Hyung Nim. Watch out. Chairman Quan then said something and activated one of his artifacts. 
Kamikakushi Mysterious Disappearance. All of you, become a god slaves. The O Sum Wu group started to scream and fell to the ground as soon as he finished speaking. They weren't certain but it looked as if they might end up like Li Jin A. However huh? Nothing was happening. Nothing happened for a long time after he finished speaking. The O Sum Wu group finally decided to open one eye and peek. They could see Chairman Quan who seemed to be as shocked as they were. And lo and behold, he started to shout. Kamikakushi. A shocked Chairman Quan then put his hand in his pocket. He then became extremely anxious. Ju Hian started to laugh while standing behind Chairman Quan at that moment. Are you looking for this? Ju Hian was opening something and shaking it around as if to provoke Chairman Quan. He was shaking Chairman Quan's wallet. There was something that looked like a train ticket inside the black men's wallet. People who had no idea would think it was a train ticket, but this was an artifact. A Lonely God's Invitation SS Grade, Divine Grade Consumable Artifact Remaining Uses 4350 The effects of this artifact were as the name Kamikakushi mentioned, mysteriously disappearing from this world after being captured by a god. This was one of Chairman Quan's first-rate artifacts. Did you think I wouldn't know you would use this? That was why Ju Hian had used the knife to pretend to threaten Chairman Quan in order to draw his focus to the knife before he moved his hands. On the other hand, Chairman Quan seemed to be extremely shocked after seeing Ju Hian's ghost-like dexterity for the first time. Ju Hian smiled after seeing that reaction. It's the skill you complimented the most, you old bastard. It was at that moment. The dexterity skill has risen to D rank. You have received the title of the dexterity that shocked even the gods and the user's level information has changed. Tomb Raider CO Juhian Level 2 A tomb raider who doesn't raid any tombs and only increases his thieving skills you have learned the skill, Hand of a Thief. Juhian laughed in shock but it didn't matter much. He wouldn't be able to use it right away because it was a divine grade artifact, but he had managed to steal one of Chairman Quan's first rate artifacts. I didn't manage to steal his armor artifact or his conquest artifact. However, he didn't care much about it. No matter how great Ju Hian's dexterity was for his scam-like pickpocket skills, he couldn't steal something a person was wearing underneath or something he had no idea about its appearance. Chairman Quan wouldn't try to use his conquest artifact right now anyway. It had a significant penalty and using that would turn this area into ashes. It would be the artifact Chairman Quan wanted to avoid using the most right now because he didn't want others to find out about artifacts. It happened at that moment. You're looking down on me too much. He had decided that it was better to get rid of this bastard now even if this would turn into a big deal if he was going to lose his artifact. I will definitely make you pay for your foolishness. Chairman Quan just needed to make sure that great tomb appearance didn't happen. Everything else could be covered up. The moment he made that decision and was about to activate his artifact that bastard appeared. He showed up with black feather falling off him like snow and looking down with a domineering gaze at the humans. The human over there. Immediately retract your conquest artifact. Otherwise, an evil jackal that wishes to harm humans will awaken. A haggard crow landed on a high spot at the airport. The crow who finished warning Chairman Quan then seemed to make eye contact with Ju Hian. On the other hand, Chairman Quan who noticed that the crow was an artifact was quite shocked. It's not a normal artifact. He could tell at first glance. It seemed to be stronger than the regular divine grade artifacts. That was why Chairman Quan's eyes filled with greed. He looked as crazed as a person who found a piece of bread right before they died of starvation. This was an artifact that was giving off so much magical aura that it caused anybody who looked at it to fill with greed. It was to the point that even the Oh Sung Wu group who did not know much about artifacts became bewitched. However, Ju Hian alone remained calm and focused on what the crow just said. A jackal? Is he talking about the god of death Anubis's artifact? Was that bastard's tomb resting inside the airport? That bastard was definitely one of the strongest and most useful divine grade artifacts. That was why Ju Hian's eyes sparkled. However, Chairman Quan's hands started to shake as he looked at the crow while Ju Hian was having those thoughts. I need to make that mine. Chairman Quan who became greedy for the crow started to laugh with confidence. 
How perfect. I will take care of you guys and take that for myself as well. The conquest artifact was able to force other artifacts to submit. Chairman Quan soon activated the conquest artifact at the behest of the crow's warning and the crow started to coldly glare at him with a condemning gaze. How foolish. It was at that moment. A terrible aura blasted out of the airport. At the same time warning. A serious Egyptian virus is trying to enter your body. Warning. Your artifacts are starting to be destroyed by very strong death attribute artifacts. Very strong artifacts with murderous intent are headed this way. Very strong artifacts that can call forth great disasters are headed this way. Please prepare an artifact or a plan to deal with them. There are no artifacts or humans who could handle these artifacts with their bodies alone. A bright light that transcended all expectations blasted out of the airport and a large tomb appearance happened in Las Vegas. Go to the underground arena of greed in the first month of the year. That is where the great evil, the ill omen will start. It was as the future diary described. This was the great tomb appearance, the thing that Chairman Kwan wanted to make sure didn't happen. In the end, Chairman Kwan had made a stupid mistake to make it happen. Of course, there did seem to be someone here who seemed to benefit from his mistake. Tolerance has increased after being attacked by a violent artifact. The tolerance skills level has increased. You are now able to bravely stand in front of divine grade artifacts. It was an extremely great benefit. Chapter, 35 January 26, 2025 A terrible disaster appeared in the world. That was similar to seeing the end of the world. An 8-9 magnitude earthquake ripped apart the world and destroyed the civilization that humans had created. That was how Juhian remembered the beginning of the great tomb appearance. Magma and fire that should not be there shot out of the cracks in the ground and black smoke had shot up into the air along with the fire. The smoke itself was not normal either. The smoke that silently spread out caused people to become ill and people had to deal with this unknown source of pain as they fell down on the streets. People had described it as the ground cracking and hell opening on earth. Of course, it was true that hell was opening. The Egyptian disaster artifact had created the gates of hell in the world. That was why Juhian clicked his tongue in disbelief. For Chairman Kwan to be the one to pull the trigger for that. He idiotically pulled the trigger himself after trying to avoid the great tomb appearance. He'll probably faint when he realizes this later. No, there was no need to save it for later. Unlike the relaxed Ju Hian, Chairman Kwan's expression was already clearly different than before. Chairman Kwan was feeling as if blood was draining out of his body. Damn it, what the hell is going on? The first thing he saw was a black and red sky as if there was a war going on. It was not just that. The airport they were in was being destroyed by the earthquake while ancient Egyptian buildings were appearing through the cracks in the ground. The damage was so severe that it was like looking at a destroyed airport after World War I. This was clearly the result of a tomb appearance. An above-ground type tomb. Tombs were divided into above-ground and underground types, but Ju Hian had only been in underground types until now. He was able to come out through the manhole after finding the gold axe silver axe in an underground pond, and he had escaped from Uramesa's tomb by using the rope and coming above ground to exit through the restroom. But above ground types are different. An easy way to describe it would be the buildings or a set area turning into a tomb. To put it bluntly, it would be like the White House turning into a tomb for Loki's artifact or the entire Haho folk village turning into a tomb for Jamung's artifact. Naturally, the above-ground type artifacts caused the most damage. FCK However, Chairman Kwan was angry for a different reason. He couldn't tell the size yet, but his conquest artifact was telling him something. It was saying this was not a regular tomb appearance. The artifact wasn't actually talking, but the conquest artifact came with a strong area scanning ability. No monarch of conquest in the history of the world would jump into the battlefield without knowing about their enemies. As a result, the conquest artifact gave a similar ability to its user. That was how he could tell. The tomb appearance is much larger than I expected. It was not just covering Las Vegas. The tomb appearance expanded much wider than that. 
FCK, if it is this large, the entire world will found out about tomb appearances. Chairman Kwan's face was slowly turning paler as if he realized that he made a serious mistake that was bigger than he had expected. Ju Hien's eyes opened thinly as he watched that. Chairman Kwan's suspicions were correct. A heinous Egyptian artifact has created a tomb appearance that is larger than any other tomb appearances. Heinous Egyptian tombs have manifested throughout the world. A terrible disaster has spread throughout the world. Ju Hien smiled bitterly as he read those messages. The great tomb appearance was not something he could have avoided in the first place. Furthermore, there was a reason the great tomb appearance was the reason the entire world found out about artifacts. The scale was larger than one region or one building turning into a tomb. This tomb appearance ranged throughout the entire world. In simple terms, it was as if the entire earth had turned into a large dungeon. This was why it was called the Great Tomb Appearance. The disaster grade for these tombs were the worst of the four possible grades at the disaster grade, fitting of tombs created by divine grade artifacts. It's going to be a strong artifact with a terrible personality since it is strong enough to create this Great Tomb Appearance. Either way, the world has probably turned into pandemonium thanks to this artifact. This incident had caused history's largest casualty count in the past that was so bad that no future wars ever surpassed that casualty count. That was the reason people were calling it a disaster in the world and that the world was going to end. He had felt the same way when he had experienced the great tomb appearance as well. However this tomb appearance will disappear if I take the artifact. Then things should be able to recover as well. There was also a reason there was so much damage. It had taken three months in the past to clear the great tomb appearance. It meant that the entire world was stuck inside a tomb for three months. Furthermore, the future might have changed as it was not an Egyptian artifact that had caused the great tomb appearance in the past. It was an Indian artifact in the past, and the person who took the Indian divine grade artifact was probably the monarch of Ashura. I wonder how long it will take this time. Ju Hien looked at his watch instead of his phone that was going crazy to check the time. It had been approximately 30 minutes since the tomb appearance manifested. It was better to clear it as quickly as possible. I need to make it have the least amount of casualties as possible. However, Chairman Quan who realized his mistake opened his eyes wide. I need to quickly take care of this bastard and cover up the situation. Unfortunately, he didn't know the size of this to know if it could be covered up or not. But Chairman Quan, who had no way of knowing that started to use the conquest artifact on Ju Hien. Didn't I tell you not to use the conquest artifact? You old bastard. Ju Hien coldly glared at Chairman Quan. Chairman Quan, who had used the conquest artifact looked at Ju Hien in disbelief after hearing that. Obedience doesn't work on him. That was the case. The conquest artifact turned people in a set vicinity to be his captives. Conquest. As the name mentioned, it was used to subjugate them and make them obey. However, Ju Hien did not look to be obeying him at all. What is going on? Chairman Quan decided to try again as the conquest artifact still had a high rate of failure. However, there were some disrespectful individuals who got in the way of the anxious Chairman Quan. The jackal bastard was right. Those lowly humans are able to dominate us. A foreign voice started to speak at that moment. The voice was coming from the ceiling of the almost destroyed Las Vegas airport. There was a muscular black greyhound glaring at them. Warning! Your internal organs are receiving minor damages after being attacked by a violent artifact and your artifacts are getting damaged. Tolerance has increased after being attacked by a violent artifact. The rate of damage to your internal organs is decreasing proportionally to the increasing tolerance. It was an extremely scary aura. A scary aura that was unpleasant and suffocating surrounded Ju Hien and Chairman Quan. Thanks to that, all of Ju Hien's artifacts started to shake in fear. Ju Hien had never seen them react like this before. As expected of a divine grade artifact. It was very different than the Herb of Eternal Youth which was also a divine grade artifact but not something that could be used as an offensive artifact. These bastards were strong divine grade artifacts that could turn someone into a monopolizer. However, they were more vicious and violent than he had expected. Hearing Jackal made him think of Anubis, the god of death, however, 
seeing the greyhound made Juhian start to frown. Why? It was because Juhian had faced this bastard in the past before. That damn greyhound. That's the god Set's artifact. Set, the god of destruction and evil's artifact was not something he could handle. This was not because it was difficult to control but because it had a terrible personality. Juhian had ended up destroying it and the artifact user in the past. That was why Juhian was frowning. The one to cause the great tomb appearance was Set's artifact and not Anubis's artifact. Anubis would have been quite useful for him. However, it was at that moment. Let's get rid of them right now, sir. Juhian turned his head. There's another one. A black jackal jumped off from the opposite side of the ceiling. This jackal that looked similar to a black doberman had a golden Egyptian necklace. That was not the end. There was one more voice. Good job finding them. I don't want to work with that classless bastard but I suppose I'll let it go as our goals are the same. The third voice was coming from the jackal's necklace. Of course, there was no way Chairman Quan could hear their conversation. Only Juhian who could hear them started to frown. Their conversation allowed Juhian to notice that there were three artifacts. Damn it, three divine grade artifacts in one tomb. There was usually one artifact per tomb. It was rare to find other artifacts inside one tomb unless they were somehow attached to each other. However, it was understandable as this was the great tomb appearance. Juhian was also able to tell the identity of these three artifacts as well. It was not very difficult after taking a look at their appearances and listening to their conversation. The greyhound that was violently baring its teeth was Set, the god of destruction and evil's artifact. The black jackal that was using a respectful tone was Anubis, the god of death's artifact. The one who appeared as Anubis's necklace was probably Osiris's artifact, and he was known for having a bad relationship with Set. Of course, he didn't care about the issues between artifacts. I have no interest in that. The important thing was three balls of disasters have appeared. These balls of disasters treated humans as trash, enjoyed watching them die, and tried to kill all humans. The divine grade artifacts were at the zenith of trying to destroy mankind. One divine grade artifact is fine but three of them was it doable. Juhian had faced two divine grade artifacts at once before but never three. They started to speak. Two humans. Anubis. Wasn't there a human bitch who uses the destitution artifact as well? Sir, let's take care of these human bastards and then take care of her. Then what test do you think we need to give to enjoy watching them die? It was at that moment. You sons of bitches, why give a test? Let's just quickly take care of them. I'm annoyed just being in the same place as human bastards. The angry one was Set's artifact. Humans are like flies. We can easily kill them by sending out our aura. Once one bastard launched the attack, the other artifacts started to attack Juhian and Chairman Quan as if they didn't want to lose. Heinous auras that looked like black smoke started to surround them. Chairman Quan started to frown as he watched this happen. I'll make them submit before they get me. However, Chairman Quan who tried to use the conquest artifact coughed up blood and kneeled. The airport was already a part of the manifested tomb. It was only natural that he would suffer from the illness you receive while inside the tombs. Damn it! The illness created by three divine grade artifacts related to death was worse than anybody could expect. However, Chairman Quan was grinding his teeth while looking at Ju Hian. Why is that bastard? He was coughing up blood but Ju Hian was fine. Of course, he was frowning because of the terrible aura but that was it. And lo and behold, the artifacts looked toward Juhian and started to laugh. That bastard is lasting quite well. Is it because that bastard is young? I didn't use too much of my power so I guess it was too weak. Are you not going to do it properly? An urgent message popped up at the same time. The artifacts are terrified and being destroyed by the strong artifacts powers. A serious Egyptian virus is trying to enter your body. The enemy artifacts are openly revealing their murderous intent. The might of the attack is slightly decreased based on your tolerance level. It seemed bearable. 
Juhian continued to resist and the trio of artifacts started to become confused. Hold on. What is up with this bastard? Why is he not fainting? What the hell is going on? Hold on, that bastard doesn't he smell like that motherfucking crow bastard? The artifacts urgently started to shout. Try it again. However, Juhian called forth one of his artifacts and started to smile. I got you now. You arrogant artifact bastards. Chapter, 36 The artifacts were anxious. Why was he fine when they clearly sent out their powers? Normally, humans would instantly cough up blood and be in terrible pain because their organs would be failing. So, why was this bastard perfectly fine? They had never seen something like this before. No, this was something that should not happen. Thanks to that, the shocked artifacts could not help but scream. What the hell is going on? Use your full strength. However, Juhian did not fall no matter how much power they channeled. At this point, it would not be weird if they thought Juhian was some type of weird alien from outer space. W, what is going on? However, Juhian smiled and summoned an artifact regardless of whether they were anxious or not. Come out, enforcement of law Hammurabi. A bright light flashed behind Juhian and a 225M black slate board shot out with a weird noise. Kagegung. The code of Hammurabi revealed itself with that weird noise. This was a very fitting artifact for these bastards who were running wild thinking they were the shits. However, the artifact scoffed after seeing the artifact Juhian summoned. An A-grade artifact was like a squishy toy hammer for SS-grade divine-grade artifacts like them. It was only natural for them to laugh. How dare this bastard shove something like this in our faces? Human. Die along with that artifact that challenges us without knowing its place. And lo and behold, the bastards who became cocky again after seeing the code of Hammurabi sent out their vicious auras. However, Juhian smiled and channeled a lot of his dominance as if he had been waiting for this. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Have a taste of your medicine. A bright light flashed and the code of Hammurabi responded to Juhian's orders. The divine grade artifacts ended up being hit by their attacks once the bright light flashed. Boom! The divine grade artifacts screamed as if they were in serious pain after being hit by their own attacks. Set's artifact that had cast out the strongest attack was slammed against a wall and started to curse. FCK. What the hell is up with this human bastard? Anubis's artifact was also having trouble supporting itself after being hit by its attack. The fact that they lashed out at full strength because they were angry ended up making it worse for them. T, this human bastard. Juhian laughed as if they deserved it. Retards. What? The code of Hammurabi was definitely an A-grade artifact. However, it was different than regular artifacts. Codes of law were the things with the strongest levels of control and suppression among things created by humans. Thanks to that, codes of law artifacts meshed well with a human who was trying to control something. In simple terms, meshing well with humans meant it fit terribly with other artifacts. Furthermore, the code of Hammurabi was one of the four major codes of law artifacts, making its strength incomparable to regular artifacts. Juhian soon started to smile viciously as he started to speak. You guys might be divine-grade artifacts, but really, tool scraps like you guys dare to crawl up here. You bastard. Boom. His dominance threatened the artifacts. Submit, damn artifacts. This arrogant bastard. How dare a punk with such low dominance try to order us. The artifacts were shouting like that but it was clear that they were anxious. How could they not be? Their aura didn't work on this crazy bastard and the code of Hammurabi was trying to rip them into pieces. Sir, let's take care of him using a different method. Set became annoyed as Anubis shouted while glaring at Juhian. You do it if you want. I'm not going to do it. The other method they were talking about was using their respective abilities rather than sending out their auras. However, Osiris did not like Anubis's suggestion either. We will cut down our body's durability if we use our abilities. That was indeed the case. It was fine to use their aura, but using their artifact abilities would decrease their durabilities. 
they could not cut down their own bodies to defeat this human bastard. However, Ju Hian continued to approach them as they talked. All right, submit. You damn tools. The artifacts flinched. Of course, Ju Hian knew that he could not make divine grade artifacts submit. However, this was a battle of will. It could even be called reckless courage. A person needed to be shameless to win against artifacts and survive. Ju Hian's bluff must have worked as the artifacts lost their cool and started to shake as if they were seizing. This arrogant bastard is spewing nonsense. They seem to have lost some of their courage after losing their cool. Someone like you is a piece of meat that is even lower than a damn fly in our eyes. Kill him. Ju Hian laughed after hearing their comments. Oh, then why don't you try attacking me again? Ugh. These artifacts had already been hurt by the code of Hammurabi. Thanks to that, it was no wonder they would hesitate to attack again. That was why Ju Hian shamelessly laughed again. Why don't you come at me? Ju Hian's sparkling eyes looked strong and extremely brave his dominance was not something even divine grade artifacts could dare to trample on. This bastard, he really. Damn it. I don't want to use any more abilities than I already have this is driving me crazy. Why the hell does our aura not work on him? Set's artifact that was thoroughly observing Ju Hian started to swear. I knew it, I smell that motherfucking crow bastard on him. Crow. Osiris's artifact sounded shocked. We already sealed that traitor bastard who sided with that human bastard. Are you sure your nose hasn't gone crazy? What do you expect me to do when I smell it? Just shut the hell up if you don't know anything. Why don't you shut up, you bastard? I get so angry just hearing about that damn bastard. That bastard had no damn pride while being at the top as a divine grade artifact. It was at that moment. The two of them started to fight against each other while talking about the crow. However, the anxious Anubis's artifact quickly started to speak as Juhian continued to approach them. Sirs, this is not the time to fight amongst yourselves. However, Set and Osiris's artifacts continued to roar and point their blades at each other, forcing Anubis's artifact to click its tongue. The Anubis's artifact seemed to be the only clear-headed one in this situation. I have no choice. I was going to do it slowly but I will create the tomb's test right away. Anubis's tomb test was impregnable. There's no way a puny human will be able to survive my test. Since their auras were not working, the only way to kill this human bastard was by using their test. So, I will kill this bastard with the tomb's test. Anubis's artifact had no idea that doing so would increase its chances of being gobbled up by Juhian and glared at him as it started to shout. Fine. Human. Survive if you can do so. Chairman Quan had heard the voice this time as well. Chairman Quan who heard the artifact's voice was confused but Juhian started to smirk. I might be able to capture Anubis if things go well. He couldn't force it to submit but he could earn the artifact by clearing the tomb. The black jackal revealed its teeth and released a strong power. The ground underneath Juhian's feet disappeared and he started to fall underground. However, that did not last very long either. He soon fell onto a large disc. No, it was not a disc. This is. It was a scale. Ju Hian had fallen onto a scale. Chairman Quan probably fell to a different spot as well. On the other side of the scale was a tiny feather. He was certain. That was the feather of truth. And this was the judgment of the dead, also known as the judgment of one's heart. In simple terms, it was the judgment to determine whether this person was a good person or a bad person. In Egyptian history, the person's heart would be placed on one side with the feather of truth on the other side, and the person would be considered a good person if the two sides were balanced. They would then be able to safely enter the afterlife. However, if their heart weighed more than the feather because of the weight of their sins, their heart would be eaten by a monster and they would roam through hell forever. Anubis was the one responsible for weighing the hearts. The mission for this tomb should be similar. I can make that bastard mine if I just pass this. The artifacts test soon started. Anubis and 42 jury members he summoned surrounded Chairman Quan and Juhian. Anubis started to speak at that moment. 
The judgment will now begin. You will now be given 42 questions. You will pass the test if you are able to answer yes to all 42 questions. However, if you lied during the process, your lies will be revealed and you will be eaten by an animal. Juhian started to laugh. Everything is as I heard so far. Juhian had met the Anubis's artifact user in the past. He had gone to see the person to recruit them into his tomb raiding team and had heard about how he had cleared the tomb at that time. The Anubis artifact user was a child so he didn't remember the questions clearly, but that child had definitely said the following. They were questions that anybody could say yes to. Thanks to that, the child was able to answer yes to all 42 questions and earn Anubis. This is the first question. Juhian started to smile. He said the questions themselves weren't much. I'm sure it's something I could say yes to as well. However did you never steal anything? Juhian instantly started to frown. Damn it. Unfortunately, Juhian was a terrible adult who could not say yes to even the first question. Juhian had a headache right now. It was because of the question that they were asking. He had. He had stolen quite a bit. Did you never lie? He had lied quite a bit. He had lied as he scammed people. Did you never commit murder? He did do that. Of course, it was not at the level of Jack the Ripper. Did you never hit anyone? He had hit someone. He did it to make them listen to him. Did you never destroy other people's belongings? He had done that a lot if destroying artifacts were considered a part of their belongings. Did you never lust? Damn it, what kind of human has no lust? The questions were all like that. As for Juhian he amazingly was the worst type of person who could not say yes to any of the 42 questions. Actually, anybody who has lived a regular life would stumble at one of the first few questions. Anubis started to laugh and shout as if he had expected this. As expected, a human bastard is a human bastard. Your heart is heavier than steel. Fall into hell for all eternity. An overwhelming power of hell tried to pull Juhian down. That heinous power was trying to eat Juhian's body and turn him into a mummy. Juhian clicked his tongue at that moment. However, someone's power is temporarily increasing your tolerance level at an explosive rate. Your body is being protected. He thought he had heard the crow's voice at that moment. You seem to be in quite a difficult situation. You foolish human. That stalker bastard he had forgotten about had appeared again. Chapter 37 You seem to be in quite a difficult situation. You foolish human. Juhian frowned after hearing the familiar voice. He couldn't see anything because of the black smoke, but he could clearly hear that voice. And that voice definitely was that crow from that time. It seemed that only Juhian could hear the crow's voice. The proof of that was the fact that the Egyptian artifacts had not noticed the crow's existence yet. They were just busy laughing at Juhian who was caught within the powers of hell. Fall into hell. You human bastard. There's no way for the living to defeat the dead. However, a different message was popping up in front of Juhian's eyes. The crow's blessing has temporarily increased your tolerance from D rank to A rank. Your temporarily explosive increase in tolerance has completely healed the continuous damage that had not been visible. Your flesh that has been rotting because of the dead has temporarily stopped. It was clear that someone had temporarily messed with Juhian's tolerance. But who could it have been? The crow started to speak again as if to answer Juhian's question. We meet again, you lowly human. The voice itself was overbearing no matter how many times he heard it. However, it was slightly different than the other artifacts. Maybe it was showing goodwill to Juhian, but it didn't seem to treat humans like insects like the other artifacts. However, something like that was not important to Juhian at all. It is still one of the artifact bastards. Artifacts were enemies to humans whether they whispered sweet words to him or shouted arrogantly at him. That was why the rational Juhian only paid attention to what the crow was saying. We meet again. That was the case. The crow was speaking as if they had met before. Of course, he remembered that bastard. However, this was not the past. That bastard should not know who he is. 
The crow lightly laughed as if it was reading Juhian's mind. There's no need to wonder about how I can recognize you. I am one no matter what era we are in. It sounded like a riddle, but the smart Juhian immediately understood what he meant. It probably means that this bastard is connected whether it is the past or future. However, that only lasted for a moment as the crow continued to speak as if this was not the time to have such a leisure conversation. I will stop them for a moment. A bright light flashed at the same time. That forced the dead holding on to him to scream and try to escape underground. Thanks to that, the three artifacts could not help but be shocked. W, what is going on? What else could it be? The three animals turned to look at a single spot after hearing that familiar voice. They saw a crow sitting on the Egyptian architecture. The animals started to frown after seeing the crow sitting above them and laughing. It was because seeing this crow made them angry. And lo and behold. Why is that mother of King Crow here? Where does he think this is? The artifact's responses were explosive. We clearly sealed him in that tomb. How was that bastard able to get out here? Set growled viciously and Anubis quickly started to speak. Please calm down for now, sir. Let's first take care of that human bastard however, the viciously smiling crow released its powers as Anubis tried to make a move. Anubis coughed up blood and fell over after being hit by a strong attack. The 42 jury members and the judge that Anubis had called forth disappeared as a result. His ability had been cancelled. That was why Anubis could only grind his teeth. That bastard. However, the crow didn't care that Anubis was grinding his teeth and glared at him as he gave a warning. Stay still if you do not wish to get hurt any more than that. You guide dog of the underworld. That made Anubis start to shake as he continued to grind his teeth. Who the hell is a guide dog? However, the three Egyptian artifacts who were hit by the crow's attacks could only shake. Why? It was because the power the crow just used was the power of the sun god R.A., the greatest Egyptian god. He was a god that stood above minor gods such as Anubis, Osiris, and Set. That was why the artifacts could only curse the crow that was using that power. That damn thieving crow bastard. He dares to use that power he shamelessly stole again. They were grinding their teeth even as their bodies were shaking. It was because they were afraid. Of course, that crow had been a regular divine grade artifact like them in the past. However, it seemed to have gone crazy one day as it started to destroy other artifacts and gobble up their powers. Thanks to that, this crow bastard ended up something that a few divine grade artifacts could handle on their own. But the artifacts were even angrier at the fact that he had done it for the damn humans. But that traitor bastard appeared again. Set started to shout as he could not hold it in anymore. Enough. We need to let the others know about this. We need to tell them that the damn artifact predator bastard has reappeared. They didn't need to think long about it. Anubis was defeated, there was a crazy human bastard who wasn't affected by their attacks, and this damn crow had appeared as well. There was no reason to stay here anymore. Set soon used his abilities without caring about his body being cut away. It was the same for Osiris as well this time. Boom. The disaster created from the combination of Set and Osiris's power started to head out to the world with Las Vegas at the center. Earthquakes started to destroy places again and the dead from hell in the form of mummies started to rise from the cracked ground. They then shouted toward Juhian as if they were mocking him. You stupid human bastard, we don't have time to deal with you anymore. Try to survive until the end, you damn insect. Something amazing then started to happen. The greyhound, the black dog, and the necklace-shaped artifacts all disappeared as if they had been mirages. Juhian clicked his tongue as he watched. They ran away. He had expected it, but those three had not been their main bodies. That was why it was the same as what happened with the gold axe silver axe. No matter how great they claimed to be, they were still artifacts, inanimate objects. Unless they were creature-type artifacts, they were just useless junk that could not move without humans. That was why they needed bodies they could move freely, making them create clones of themselves. It could be considered forms to contact humans. 
It was similar to how the Snake Mountain spirit had come out and threatened him with the Gold Axe and Silver Axe. That snake was a clone of the Gold Axe and Silver Axe. Similarly, those bastards were hiding somewhere while sending their clones here. The crow was looking at Juhi and once they disappeared, as if they could finally chat. It looks like you are using the present I gave you to good use. He then squinted his eyes but Juhi and cut him off. Shut up, crow. I don't have time to chat with you. It was as he mentioned. He didn't have time to deal with this crow bastard right now. The shit that the trio of Egyptian artifacts left behind was gathering around him. Male, female, young, and old, all sorts of mummies were starting to walk aiming for the lives of the living. Damn, it's like a zombie city here. The crow that was cut off commented out of spite for being cut off or to mock Juhian. Human. You have already failed the tomb's test and they have escaped. There is no way for you to escape this great tomb appearance they created now. You will die here in the end as well. However, Ju Hien was not someone who would fall for such provocation. Who says there is no way? Ju Hien stretched while looking at the slowly approaching mummies. Find the true bodies. Clones could not be far from the artifacts' true bodies. That was why those trio of arrogant artifacts must be hiding somewhere around here as well. They must be hiding around here controlling the mummies. It was simple what he would do once he found them. I'll have to force those bastards to listen to me. Juhian knew how to do that very well. The crow chuckled and gave him a hint. Those bastards are hiding among those mummies. Oh ho. But how would a lowly human find where the artifacts are hiding? Juhian scoffed in response to the crow mocking him. I don't want to lecture to an item but I will tell you something. Juhian took out the Egyptian priest's knife from his pocket as he smirked. Don't look down on the humans who uses your tools. The crow laughed with satisfaction and Juhian was able to look inside the mummies thanks to the activated artifact. This is driving me crazy. Why did that crow suddenly appear? Who cares? We need to first restore some of our strength and let the others know about this. On the other hand, the three artifacts who were recovering while hiding inside a mummy were angry. Did that thieving crow perhaps pick that human? It was not abnormal for that crow who ate other artifacts for humans in the past and stole their powers to help humans out once again. Co Juhian, does that young human have that much value? What are you talking about? If you consider just their dominance, that old bastard next to him had a much higher level of dominance. Why would he pick someone like that? However, they decided to stop thinking about it. They had been injured by Juhian's code of Hammurabi and then by the crow so they needed to focus on recovering their strengths. There's no way a human can find us anyway. How would anybody be able to find their hiding spot when there were so many mummies here? Anubis had that thought as he picked a dark corner and tried to fall asleep. However ah. He heard Set scream from a nearby distance. Anubis woke right up in shock. He wondered what was going on but Anubis could not help but be startled after looking outside the mummy's body. Set's artifact that had been far away from him was now nearby, being stabbed by a Japanese blade and getting destroyed. That Japanese blade was Muramesa. It was a thug of an artifact that released a curse that became stronger depending on the strength of the enemy and increased its destructive power. And that was not it. Juhian who took care of Set then headed toward Osiris next with a horrifying gaze on his face. He didn't pay any attention to the other mummies. It was as if Juhian knew exactly where Set and Osiris had been hiding. The artifacts could only scream in shock as a result. T, that human. How does he know where we are? However, they didn't question it for long. It was because of the other knife in Juhian's hand. It was a double-bladed knife with Egyptian text on it and a black jackal symbolizing Anubis at the hilt. That is. Anubis almost fainted in shock after seeing the knife in Juhian's hand. That is. That's a blade that has my blessing. That was an Egyptian embalmer's knife and Anubis was the god of funerals and mummies. In simple terms, this embalmer's knife became stronger because of Anubis' power that was nearby. The embalmer's knife that was stronger than ever thanks to Anubis's blessing was slashing away at the mummies with excitement. All of you, die. Die. 
mummies were humans in the end. It was normal for it to be excited at killing humans, but the problem was that these humans were summoned by some Egyptian god artifacts. In simple terms, it was excitedly destroying things created by its superiors. Thanks to that, it was no wonder Set was cursing. Damn it. Hey. That's one of your subordinates. What the hell are you doing? Stop it. However, Anubis's artifact had no idea about the identity of that artifact. Juhian was hiding the artifact's aura like a ghost and he couldn't feel the presence of that artifact at all. And in that slight moment, he heard Osiris's scream behind him this time. Ah! The second artifact was destroyed by Muramesa. Of course, Set and Osiris could not be completely destroyed as it was going up against divine grade artifacts. It was better to say they were being cursed and destroyed just to the brink of death. Basically, they were in serious pain. T, that human bastard. There was only one left now. Juhian seemed to be treating the mummies charging toward him as if they were Dr. Fish coming for the dead skin on his feet as he moved forward without any fear. Set shouted desperately from a distance. Stop him. However, Anubis had already lost a lot of strength already. Forget blocking the embalmer's knife, he could barely focus on restoring his powers. He had no choice but to hand over his neck to the viciously charging wild animal. Thud. Ugh. An Egyptian-style golden bracelet flew up into the air once Juhian slashed a mummy. Juhian did not miss it and used Muramesa to slash Anubis. Bang! Anubis felt a terrible pain at that moment and his mind started to falter. T, this bastard. The bracelet that was broken into two soon fell to the ground. Anubis was in pain, but Juhian was not someone who would go easy because of that. Crack. Juhian stepped on the broken pieces of the golden bracelet as he started to speak. You're a divine grade artifact, I know you're not destroyed yet. All right then, shall we restart the test? What? Juhian squinted his eyes as if he was planning on making sure to leave with Anubis's artifact. I'm saying start those damn 42 questions again. I'll answer yes as many times as you want. Juhian was holding Muramesa and smiled as if he was threatening Anubis. But you will change the questions to the ones I tell you to ask if you do not want to be in pain. Got it? He would just change the test if he couldn't pass the original one. Chapter 38 Anubis was about to go crazy right now. It was because of this crazy human in front of him. All right, hurry up and ask me the 42 questions again. Little black doggo. That was indeed the case. Juhian was using Muramesa to threaten Anubis. Give me the test again because I will make you mine. That was what he was saying. Of course, Anubis had no thoughts whatsoever about submitting to such a human. Furthermore, Tombs never gave a test to the same human twice. No artifacts were generous enough to test a human who failed their test once already. In simple terms, the bus had already passed by. But this bastard wasn't satisfied with pulling the bus back, he was basically saying he didn't like the bus and would change how it looked as well. So, it would be weird if he wasn't shocked. You deplorable human bastard. You dare. I dare. That's right. Asking me to test you again, do you not know that there is a rule that doesn't allow us to test the same human twice? However, Anubis had to feel a terrible pain and scream as soon as he said that. It was because Juhian started to scratch Anubis's bracelet with Muramesa as soon as he finished speaking. Pain is the artifact's weaknesses. Although artifacts were sadists who enjoyed causing pain to humans, they could not handle much pain themselves. This was one of the artifact's weaknesses that Juhian knew about. Other people couldn't hear the artifact's voices and would not know about this weakness because they cherished artifacts. That was why Juhian did not go easy as he scratched the artifacts. Screech, screech. Juhian's hand was moving like a craftsman cutting down gold or a fisherman slicing fish. Anubis's bracelet would not be cut because it was not made of wood, but it was extremely painful for the artifact. It probably felt like his body was being sliced with a saw. As expected, once the metal, no, 99% pure gold dust started to scrape off the bracelet, Anubis screamed and started to cry. 
Osiris and Set who had been injured by Juhian already shouted in shock as well. Human. Please stop. They were also crying as if they were experiencing this unbearable pain for a man together. FCK, human. I told you to stop, you crazy bastard. Don't you feel sorry for him? Sorry my ass. Ha <laughs> ha. I'll make a good amount of money gathering and selling these gold dust. Juhian purposely started to saw away at Anubis's body even more cruelly. He would not do something like this normally, but you had to make do with your gums if you had no teeth. He couldn't forcefully dominate a divine grade artifact and he needed a test to earn the artifact. I will not stop until he gives me the test again. Set found it extremely difficult to hear as the sound turned similar to someone scratching a chalkboard. Ah! Stoop! Do you want to receive divine punishment, you human bastard? Egu, that bastard will really die. He's going to die. His body is going to get fully cut away. It was to the point where it would probably be better to submit to the human. Of course, Osiris seemed to be avoiding the truth or fainted in shock as he was silent. However, Anubis was quite persistent unlike the other two. Ugh. You think I would submit to a human with just this? Well, he probably could say such things because he knew Juhian could not really destroy him. These damn greedy humans cannot destroy artifacts. It was similar to how someone who was greedy for money could not throw it away or burn it. However, Anubis was completely wrong about this. I see. Then die. Screech. Anubis started to scream. I'm really going to die like this. How could there be such a human? That was indeed the case. Most humans would never do something like this to artifacts. The greedier the human, the more they would cherish the higher grade artifacts so that they could use the artifacts powers at least one more time. In the end, Anubis quickly asked for a time out. H, hold on. Wait. Juhian who was sawing away with the sword finally stopped moving his hands. Sure. Did you decide to give me the test again? He would have threatened the artifact to stop this damn mutiny if the weapon in the human's hand was an Egyptian weapon. Although it didn't have a 100% chance of success, divine grade artifacts were able to talk to most artifacts from the same cultural area and influence them. However, Juhian's Muramesa was a Japanese artifact. It had never seen or heard about an Egyptian god. That was why Anubis only had one option here. Fine. I will make a special exception and allow for a retest. A bright light flashed and the golden presiding judge appeared again. The scale of justice and the 42 jury members were the same as earlier as well. The only thing different was the situation the two of them were in. Anubis soon started to speak. The judgment will now begin. You will now be given 42 questions. If you can answer yes to all of those case ugh. Anubis felt another terrible pain and started to grind his teeth. However, Juhian started to speak with an annoyed expression. You talk too much. Hurry up and move to the next part. This bastard. T, then here is the first question. Did you never steal any ugh? I said to move to the next part but not for you to ask as you please, you bastard. Damn it, this human bastard hit me with intentions of killing me just now. However, Juhian just smiled and sternly started to speak. Hey, item. You shut up and ask the questions as I tell you. First question. Did you ever steal anything? You bastard. Anubis could not handle this indignity anymore. The retest itself was unbelievable but now he wanted to change it to whatever he pleased. Anubis started to shout as he could not hold back anymore. I cannot accept such a cheating meth ugh. Screech. Ugh. I don't like repeating myself. Repeat after me if you don't want to die. Okay, did you ever steal anything? Ugh. D, did you ever steal anything? However, Juhian did not seem pleased as he lifted Muramesa in the air and started to frown. Your voice is too quiet. FCK, did you ever steal anything? Juhian raised Muramesa again and started to shout. Get rid of the swearing and speak respectfully. Have respect for humans. I will definitely kill this human. 
However, Anubis whose body was shabby because of Muramasa's curse could only do the following. S. Sir, have you ever committed theft? Juhian finally had a satisfied smile on his face as if this was the 100-point answer. Yes, I have. A message window popped up in front of Juhian's eyes. The artifact has felt severe indignity and its will has been broken. The chances of the artifact resisting has decreased due to the broken will. Of course, Anubis who had instantly submitted to a human was about to cry. However, this artifact had only gotten past the first hill. Why? Anubis still had 41 questions to ask. Speak. The 38th question. Co Juhian Nim, have you ever stolen someone's money? S. Co Juhian Nim, have you ever stolen someone's money? Of course. You moron. Okay, next question. Senior Co Juhian, have you ever hit someone back in anger after they hit you? Senior Co Juhian, have you ever hit someone back in anger after they hit you? Of course, why would I just sit back and let them hit me? Okay, next question. The world's most talented Co Juhian Nim, have you ever ogled a woman who was passing by? T. The world's most talented Co Juhian Nim, have you ever ogled a woman who was passing by? Are you even a man if you don't look? Okay, last question. You figure out the title on your own. T. The world's most talented and most handsome Co Juhian Nim, have you ever lusted? Juhian chuckled and responded. Of course, it is natural for humans. If you understand, never ask those kind of questions ever again. Juhian said that and kicked Anubis in the air as Anubis's bracelet started to shine. The tomb's test had been completely cleared after passing all 42 questions. A message popped up in front of Juhian at the same time. You have successfully completed the tomb's test in a magnificent way. One of the three artifacts that manifested the great tomb appearance has completely submitted. You have perfectly cleared the Anubis's artifact's tomb. The message windows disappeared and Juhian grabbed Anubis's artifact from inside the shining light. It now looked like an ankh, a cross with a dome-shaped top. It was the item Anubis was always holding in the Egyptian wall arts. A different message window soon popped up. Your dominance over Egyptian artifacts has increased after successfully making an Egyptian divine-grade artifact submit. Your tolerance toward death attribute artifacts has increased thanks to Anubis's artifact. The tolerance skill has increased to C-rank. You have received the title of a great tomb appearance explorer and your tomb exploration skill has increased to E-rank. Your understanding of tombs, traps, and missions have increased. You have received the title of a dishonest excavator and your affinity with artifacts has slightly decreased while your attributes as a tomb raider has increased. Many messages passed by and Juhian shouted with Anubis's artifact in his hand. Close. Light flashed and a message related to the tomb appeared. A portion of the great tomb appearance that has covered the world is starting to be destroyed. The other two artifacts that helped manifest the great tomb appearance have received severe damage as well. This has resulted in their inability to maintain the tombs and the great tomb appearance will soon completely disappear from the world. The Egyptian architecture slowly started to crumble. Most turned into dust and flew away or became absorbed into the ground. Juhian grabbed the ragged set and Osiris's artifacts as that happened. I wonder if I can head out now. The crow had long disappeared from the tomb. He was concerned about the artifacts discussions from earlier, but Juhian decided not to think much about it. The important thing was that the crow had helped him this time and that it had some type of special power. You get whipped around by artifacts if you pay attention to what they say. Furthermore, he needed to focus on the bastard in front of him right now. And lo and behold. You should have something to say to me. You old bastard. The person who crawled out in front of Juhian was Chairman Quan. Of course, he could only suck on his thumb and do nothing this whole time because he was stupidly being held captive by a mummy. However, Chairman Quan had clearly seen it. He had seen Juhian clear this tomb and take three divine grade artifacts. There was no way Chairman Quan would not be greedy for them. I need to take those away. However, Chairman Quan's greedy gaze was unexpected not on the artifacts but on Juhian. Artifacts are one thing, 
but this bastard is a talent that goes beyond my wildest imaginations. Ju Hian had knowledge about artifacts that others did not have not only that, he had the sense and skill to handle artifacts well enough to use lower grade artifacts to take on higher grade artifacts and the dexterity to pickpocket and steal artifacts. Furthermore, Ju Hian also had something that allowed him to be fine even against his conquest artifact. I need to grab him. Such a talented individual. That was what Chairman Quan's conquest artifact was telling him. This bastard would allow me to easily gather artifacts. Yun Shir Wu and lawyer Li Jin A were nothing in comparison. This was because he had seen some of Ju Hian's abilities, but also based on his strong instincts. That was why he pompously started to shout. Young man, is there nothing you want? Ju Hian tilted his head wondering what this bastard was saying, but Chairman Quan's eyes started to sparkle as he continued to speak. As TKBM's chairman, I will give you whatever you want. A high salary, status, talented subordinates, power, I can give you everything you want. I can even let you borrow my precious artifacts. I am also working with the government of many different nations and multiple colossus throughout the world. That will allow you to enter the tombs more easily. Chairman Quan knew how it was. He knew what kind of terrible thoughts, what kind of greed filled the minds of the artifact users right now. He had gathered people using all sorts of methods. That was why he could confidently say the following. Artifacts will change the paradigm of the world. You are not someone who should be rotting alone like this. You should play in bigger waters. I want to help you grow. So, come work for me. Let's sweep artifacts together and become leaders of the new world. This was the chairman of a global IT technology company praising and reaching his hand out toward a simple thug. Chairman Quan who was thinking that was the case thought that he was making an amazing offer. However, Ju Hian just scoffed at him. What nonsense from a stupid phone salesman. Chairman Quan's reaction was quite the view. Chapter, 39 What? Chairman Quan could not help but question his ears. W, what did you just say? I said shut up, you stupid phone salesman. He had not heard wrong. That was why Chairman Quan's expression was quite entertaining to look at. Was he shocked and in disbelief or was he baffled? Ju Hian's gaze was also saying the following. Get lost, I have no business left with you. You old bastard. Ju Hian was saying that with his whole body. I praised him so much and even sucked up to him a bit. But he instantly rejected me. Chairman Quan felt awkward and embarrassed, but he held himself back. It was because he knew Ju Hian was a rare artifact user. Don't be like that and think about it. You are the type of genius who can rule the world. You are different from the others. I will take care of everything if you come work for me. Did you happen to get sick after going into a tomb? If you need a healing artifact to heal yourself. Ju Hian's eyes sparkled the moment Chairman Quan said that. Something unbelievable then happened. Ju Hian had quickly charged in and slashed Chairman Quan's neck. Puk. It happened in an instant. Chairman Quan soon bled out and fell in this isolated corner of the airport. Ju Hian had slashed Chairman Quan's carotid artery without any hesitation. You, ugh. Chairman Quan twitched on the ground in a puddle of blood. However, Ju Hian did not even blink as he watched and coldly responded. Don't you dare bring up healing artifacts in front of me with that dirty mouth of yours ever again. The bleeding Chairman Quan who raised his head could not help but shiver. Ju Hian was smiling but he seemed so scary that it gave him the chills. That made Chairman Quan feel anxious. I am feeling pressure from another artifact user. However, Ju Hian just laughed as if he didn't care how Chairman Quan was feeling. The healing artifact had been as important to Ju Hian as food and water in the past. I wouldn't have given this bastard my youth and efforts if it wasn't for that. Ju Hian was someone with the talents to be a monarch but ended up being unable to spread his wings and just had to help Chairman Quan benefit because of those healing artifacts. That was indeed the case. Chairman Quan was someone who was talented enough to be a monarch, but based on the specs, he was not someone who could reach the top of the monarchs. 
he had the capital, connections, as well as luck and good timing to help him become the overlord. I kept my end of the bargain and turned him into the king of the monopolizer. In return, he had gotten them killed without even giving the possession-type healing artifact he promised to give them. Even his precious sibling had died of illness during the process. That was why Ju Hian had a loathing smile on his face as he leisurely continued to speak. How about you stop acting and get the hell up? You're not someone who would die with something like that. You. It was as Ju Hian mentioned. Chairman Quan had not died even with his carotid artery being cut. In fact, the blood squirmed as if it was alive before returning to Chairman Quan's neck. That wasn't the only thing. Once the blood completely returned to Chairman Quan's neck, the cut on the neck healed itself as if nothing had happened. However, Ju Hian did not become anxious at all. Why? This was something he already knew about. He knew that Chairman Quan's undershirt, no, the defensive artifact made it impossible to kill him. He had just slashed him to check if that was still the case. Now I know the identity of the artifact on his body. Aculus Armor S grade, legendary hero grade possession artifact its abilities were simple. Immortality and defense. He could not die as long as he was wearing that armor, and although you could harm him, you couldn't cut through his flesh. Of course, it would not come off even if you tried to take it off. It looks like I need to find a weapon that is strong enough to destroy Achilles's armor. The overconfident chairman Quan clicked his tongue and started to speak at that moment. I'm warning you Ugh. However, Ju Hian stabbed Chairman Quan again. Chairman Quan who was suddenly attacked felt dizzy. He knows it's useless. Is this bastard stabbing me on purpose? He wouldn't die because of Achilles' armor and the pain and injuries would heal quickly, but he could not prevent the mental damage. You. Do you think you'll be fine after doing this? However, Ju Hian who knew Chairman Quan's personality and acting patterns well sharply smiled. Why? Are you going to report me to the cops? Once we get out of here, you. Do it. There won't be any evidence. Ju Hian snickered as he said that. That was indeed the case. Chairman Quan didn't have the injury on his neck anymore and there were no witnesses in this empty airport. That wasn't the only thing. The CCTV had already turned into junk long ago because of the tomb appearance. In fact, it could be said that it was actually beneficial for Ju Hian that Chairman Quan had the immortality artifact. The shocked Chairman Quan scoffed as if it was funny. You don't know how easy it is to turn someone into a retard. Ju Hian did not back down. You don't know how easy it is to get rid of a stupid phone company like yours. What? Ju Hian calmly took out his phone and threatened Chairman Quan. I warned you. It probably won't even take an hour. Chairman Quan looked toward Ju Hian and became wary. Even someone like him with the conquest artifact could not read Ju Hian's thoughts at all. That was how confident Ju Hian was, and his gaze was different than other people. Does he perhaps have some kind of curse type artifact that can destroy the company? The chances of that being the case were high. This was someone who could see through his artifact and knowledgeable enough to take down a higher grade artifact with a lower grade artifact. So, rashly provoking him might make Chairman Quan be hit by an artifact he didn't know much about. Provoking him might end up with me being harmed. Of course, this was just a giant bluff by Ju Hian. However, Chairman Quan who had no information about Ju Hian's artifacts could not do anything. This, and the fact that he seemed to have some kind of relationship with that almost untouchable Irene Holton was giving him a headache. Damn it. It was the people who had more things to lose who would be more cautious and thorough. Chairman Quan was also such a person. Ju Hian approached him at that moment. Now then, should I give a thank you gift to the Chairman Nim who tried to scout me? Chairman Quan flinched in reflex. It was because he was dealing with Ju Hian. You. What are you thinking? Ah, uh, don't worry. I don't plan on killing you just yet. Well, it would be more accurate to say he couldn't kill Chairman Quan because Chairman Quan was stronger than him right now, but there was no need to be honest. TKBM will end up becoming an important company so I will thoroughly use them for my benefit. Ju Hian's gaze turned cold as he had that thought. This bastard is someone I need to make experience the worst before I kill him. 
That was what Zhu Hian had decided the moment he had returned to the past. A shoddy method would not resolve Zhu Hian's grudge. He would show this bastard hell once he was no longer weaker in dominance level or financial power and was leveled with this bastard in society. So, just wait. I will stomp on you from a monopolizer position. I will thoroughly use you until then. However, he wasn't planning on just letting him go because he was keeping him alive. And lo and behold. Mura Mesa, draw out everything you have. Mura Mesa started to scream and cast a violent aura. Mura Mesa was in intense pain as if it was cutting its own body. It was an obvious reaction. It was like forcefully whipping someone who could only release an energy level of 10 to make them release an energy level of 100. It allows it to release power at a couple grades higher than normal, but the artifact would end up breaking in the process. It was close to a suicide attack. Maybe that was the reason. The conquest artifact sent a signal as if it was obvious that being stabbed by the attack would hurt. Use your power of conquest. It was because the parasitic conquest artifact would be impacted as well if Chairman Quan was stabbed. However, Chairman Quan had no plan on using his power of conquest. That bastard has the code of Hammurabi. Using it would just harm him from the counterattack. Damn it. He had lost all other artifacts he brought with him, and it wouldn't be easy to escape from such a young bastard. However, Chairman Quan started to smile. No, it's fine. His subordinates would soon come looking for him. Then he could use other artifacts to steal this bastard's artifacts. I just need to last until then. He wouldn't die because of Achilles' armor anyway. The pain would be reduced by the armor and the injury would quickly heal if he waited a bit. So, let's see what you got. However, the confident chairman Quan ended up becoming anxious. Once Muramesa slashed at him with this suicidal attack ugh. Chairman Quan almost lost consciousness because of the unbearable pain. It was a terribly severe pain. Forget the injury recovering, he felt as if he would die from the pain. Chairman Quan instantly became anxious. Unbelievable, why did the armor not function properly? However, he soon figured out the reason. It was because Muramesa's curse had temporarily paralyzed Achilles's armor. Shit! As the conquest artifact that sensed danger activated itself eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, Juhian activated the code of Hammurabi as if he had been waiting for this and a bright light flashed. Bong! The airport instantly exploded as if to destroy all of the evidence. I thought I was going to die. Mummy suddenly started to appear and something was saying it was an Egyptian god and talked about a test or what not. There really were items possessed by ghosts. There must be artifacts inside these tombs. Some people were using items that were able to do marvelous things. The world was in chaos. The sudden large earthquakes, the great tomb appearance, and artifacts. People who witnessed them started to talk about their experiences. The world was in a state of panic. However, the people of the world who were stuck inside these tombs had learned about tombs and artifacts. The TV finally came back on after a few days after probably being down because of the worldwide disaster and Juhian was watching the news while smiling. Looks like the secret is gone from the world. They deserve it. Juhian was in a hotel at a nearby city that had not been destroyed as much. He had needed a temporary place to stay because the airport was destroyed. It was at that moment. Oh Sung Wu who had been watching the news with him asked cautiously. By the way, what happened to Chairman Quan? Was he not with you until the end, sir? We had fainted so. Why, are you worried about that old bastard? Of course not. I'm just worried something might happen to you, Hyung Nim, or us. Don't worry. That guy won't be able to move for a while. Ju Hian thought about Chairman Quan and started to smirk. He had left because there were people approaching where they were at the airport, but Chairman Quan should be suffering from Muramesa's curse right now. He might not die but he can't avoid the pain. The biggest gain was the following. Achilles's artifact has received 30% damage. The conquest artifact has received serious damage and 90% of its body has been destroyed. That was what the message windows had said. The code of Hammurabi truly was amazing. 
That old bastard should not be able to do much for a while. Chairman Quan should be hospitalized because of the damage from Muramesa and his cherished artifacts were damaged by the code of Hammurabi, so he should be quite angry right now. Ju Hien who had gifted Chairman Quan such wonderful presents started to smile. However am, um, but Hyung Nim. Are those items called artifacts okay? Oh Sung Wu was worried while looking at the damaged artifacts lying around. He had left them on the bed to rest, but they were all on the brink of destruction. It was an obvious reaction. They were harmed by the monarch of destitution after coming to Las Vegas, and then harmed by the Egyptian divine grade artifacts. It was hell for the artifacts. The artifacts were probably cussing Juhian out right now. Even the other consumable artifacts will be destroyed after using them once or twice. That wasn't it. The Egyptian artifacts that were harmed by Muramesa were like corpses and Muramesa had broken in two as well. Oh Sung Wu who was looking toward the artifacts that were slowly turning into dust with concern started to speak. These things called artifacts they seem to be in terrible condition is there no way to fix them? You can't fix artifacts. They get destroyed if the durability reaches zero or they receive serious damage. Then do we just let these things break? What a waste. However, Juhian started to chuckle. Other bastards would let them break. I have a method. What method? Juhian took out his phone and called someone instead of responding. Hello. Juhian started to laugh and scam the person who picked up the call. Irene. I know it's not a good time to call, but I called you because I was so happy. I found a way to find a way to resolve your curse. Excuse me. Really? Yes. I think your curse can be resolved if we find someone. There was a reason he had handled the artifacts terribly without worrying about durability or destruction until now. He had a decently useful level of the restore ability, but it was because there was a restoration expert, an artist who could even restore completely destroyed artifacts, restore artifacts durability and make the artifacts like new. That bastard is an important worker I definitely need. Ju Hien who decided to use Irene to find that reserve slave started to smile wickedly. He's probably going around scamming the rich right now, the monarch of fraud. Alright then, shall I go reel him in now? Chapter, 40 Ju Hien chuckled. The monarch of fraud. I must find that bastard. Artifacts were not permanent. That was obvious for the consumable artifacts with limited amounts of uses, but even possession artifacts that didn't have such limits would be destroyed if a person abused them or they received significant damage. That was why it was only natural for there to be artifact restorers similar to art restorers in the world. They were people who restored artifacts using other artifacts. But restorers are rare because it is difficult to handle restoration artifacts. Of course, not all of those restorers were at the same level. Even good restorers could not restore completely consumed durability or revive completely destroyed artifacts. Even high-grade restorers can only patch up or put an oxygen mask on them. However, there was a restorer who was at the level of performing miracles like some religious leaders and could completely restore artifacts and make them new. That bastard was someone who was more talented than the personal restorers of monopolizers. Ju Hien had the restore ability provided by his archaeologist's artifact but it was only at the level of regular emergency care. Furthermore, the restore ability had not been awakened yet in this life. Furthermore I hate the archetype artifacts used in restoration. Why? Archetype artifacts or other artifacts of the arts that were mainly used for restoration required significant affinity levels. Not anybody could use them because someone who forcefully dominated an artifact could not understand the artistic mindset. It was some nonsense like that, but that was why Juhian didn't mesh well with them. Furthermore, you needed art and chemistry knowledge to restore artifacts. I'd rather go find another artifact than become friendly with a restoration artifact or study. That was why he needed to find Ujeha. He should be about 26 years old at this time. That punk was also one of Juhian's tomb raiding team members. He used to be one of the monopolizers until he was absorbed into Chairman Kwan's team. That bastard was responsible for all of Chairman Quan's artifacts, and his scam-like restoration abilities helped to raise Chairman Quan to the highest spot. 
I need to either take away his artifact or make him my slave Yu Jeha. See what happens if I catch you. Ju Hian then smiled wickedly as he set a location to meet with Irene. Everyone, please do not be shocked. There are items with magical powers in this world. These items are so magical that it is unbelievable they exist in this world. It has been determined that the phenomenon that struck the entire world recently was similar to the odd tombs that have randomly appeared in the world before that. Will this resolve the nine-month-long mystery of the tombs that we have not been able to solve until now? Scholars have started to actively research this phenomenon damn it. Chairman Kwan was grinding his teeth while listening to the information coming out of the TV. The man who was resting while wrapped up like a mummy at the hospital was boiling inside. Isn't it obvious why? The information about the artifacts that he had tried so hard to keep a secret had been revealed to the world. This was such a big issue that marketing around this could have landed someone in the Guinness Book of Records. Next to him was another old man laughing and mocking Chairman Kwan. What happened to you? It was an old man named Edward who had come to visit the healing Chairman Kwan. You're a total mess, Chairman Kwan. This English old man, aged 67 years old, who was laughing so loudly was a world-renowned weapons and information merchant. This old man who used to be a secret agent but disappeared into the underworld after racking up infamy was Chairman Kwan's middleman. He was the person responsible for selling the artifacts Chairman Kwan gathered to other nations' governments or colossus for a hefty sum. However, Chairman Kwan didn't care whether Edward was a colossus of the underworld or not as he continued to grind his teeth while looking at Edward. You're laughing at it because it's someone else's business. Edward started laughing slower as if telling him not to be like that. Congratulations. All of the clients were angry after hearing that you were the person responsible for this great tomb appearance. They want to know why you are going around causing trouble. Chairman Kwan felt his blood pressure rise and almost went crazy. Was this old bastard crazy? Why would you tell them that? Of course, Chairman Kwan had explained the situation to this old bastard when he woke up in the hospital yesterday. It was because he thought that Edward might know something about the crow that he saw. But why the hell did you have to spread the news about the great tomb appearance as well? Damn it, my credibility. However, Edward continued to laugh as if he was trying to add illness as a result of anger to Chairman Kwan's list of issues. The person who was the most upset about the fact that Chairman Kwan's mistake led to the Great Tomb appearance and revealed the existence of artifacts was none other than Edward. The blue ocean that I managed to find has turned into a mud puddle. Well, it didn't really matter to him. He had already solidified his footing. However it's rare to find someone like Chairman Kwan who can procure good artifacts. But Chairman Kwan was in this state right now. It was a pity, Edward found this to be such a pity. Where could he find someone even better than Chairman Kwan? Did he say it was someone named Seo Ju Hian who had made him like this? Edward started to smile as if he was greedy for Ju Hian. Wouldn't he be an even better partner than Chairman Kwan? It'll take Chairman Kwan a while to get discharged anyway. It doesn't look like Li Jin A or Yun Shir Wu who work for you can do anything right now either. I'll be on my way then. The secretary became anxious after seeing him get up as if he had no business here. It was because she knew very well that he was Chairman Kwan's business partner and the person helping Chairman Kwan increase his artifact business. One moment please. Chairman Nim. However, Edward smiled as he responded. Ah, don't worry. I'll come to visit again soon. Why don't you find him a good healing artifact for the time being? Ah right. Get that fancy conquest artifact restored as well. What? Restored? Yes, there are artifacts that can restore other artifacts. Well, they are hard to handle so there are only a few people who can use them though. Chairman Kwan's expression immediately changed. Can you introduce me to someone? Hmm, unfortunately, I knew just one person but I've lost contact with him. All I have is his name. What is his name? Yu Jeha. Edward said that before leaving Chairman Kwan's hospital room. Chairman Kwan's gaze changed after hearing about that. He then urgently started to speak to his secretary. Find that Yu Jeha no matter what it takes. Search the whole world if you have to do so. Damn, is it really okay to meet Irene like this, 
Hyung Nim. Oh Sung Woo was looking at Ju Hien as if he could not understand him. They were in Henderson, a city in Nevada around Las Vegas. They were supposed to meet Irene here. However, Ju Hien laughed while looking at the concerned Oh Sung Woo group. What's the problem? We're just meeting a woman. The Oh Sung Woo group started to shake in fear. S, she's not just any woman. She's a celebrity, a mesmerizing beauty, and... She was a woman that made them ill whenever they were around her. The Oh Sung Woo group seemed to be unable to forget that pain as they shook in fear, but Ju Hien just calmly smiled. You punks are the ones who are in harm's way by being around her. Ju Hien had the tolerance skill so he wouldn't be impacted as much as the guys. Of course, his tolerance skill was not that high in level, so he did receive some damage but it was minor and recovered after resting for a bit. But Hyung Nim, according to what you said, that woman is someone who walks around causing disasters. Won't being close to her just destroy Yoru artifacts even more. Just who is this Yu Jeha bastard? The Oh Sung Woo group had heard some information about artifacts from Ju Hien as Ju Hien believed the time was right. Although they didn't understand well, they at least understood that artifacts were items that were helpful to Ju Hien. That was why they thought it would be best to go grab more artifacts as quickly as possible. But he was going to go meet with Irene. Ju Hien who knew what the Oh Sung Woo group was worried about started to laugh. That is why I left the consumable artifacts in the safe deposit box. They won't break that way. And then Yu Jeha and that woman have some connection as well. Excuse me. We need that bastard to tell her how to get rid of her curse. It's killing two birds with one stone. Is it impossible to tell her without that bastard? I can tell her, but... But? I'm terrible at explanations. That was indeed the case. Of course, Ju Hien wasn't planning on ignoring Irene as he had received the Herb of Eternal Youth. He obviously had a decent idea about how to get rid of her curse. However, that method might be a bit painful for Irene, and chances were high that she wouldn't understand even if Ju Hien explained it to her. It would be like handing down the know-how to her. Well, might as well take everything I can hear and there before telling her. It happened at that moment. Damn it, why is that woman still not here? As the men started to grumble Ju Hien and Oh Sung Woo heard a loud noise above their heads. Do 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 do. The Oh Sung Woo group who looked up dropped their jaws in shock. There was a helicopter above their heads. She had said she'll come right over as she was in a nearby city, but they had never expected her to come on a personal helicopter. Irene who soon got off on the nearby helipad ran over with a bright smile on her face. I'm sorry for making you wait. Um, this isn't much but please take it as a thank you gift for quickly figure out a method. Irene who ran over handed over a paper bag. The Oh Sung Woo group who saw the paper bag gasped. It was a shopping bag from a luxury goods store. She was talking quickly in English so they couldn't understand her, but it seemed as if Irene had brought a gift to thank Ju Hien. It was bound to be some expensive male luxury item. The Oh Sung Woo group's eyes flipped over temporarily as Ju Hien declined the gift and started to speak. Please keep that for me. May I ask something first? E, excuse me. Is there anybody around you who is interested in purchasing art? Ah, there is someone. My older brother. Perfect. I am looking for someone. This is what he looks like, could you ask your brother? Ju Hien handed a picture he seemed to have downloaded from the internet. It seemed like a picture from a graduation exhibition, and although the person's face was small, it was enough to tell his appearance. I don't know if your brother might know him, but... It was at that moment. Ha! Huh. This person. Surprisingly, Irene seemed to notice the person. However, Irene's expression as she looked at Yujeha's face was odd. Chapter, 41 However, Irene's expression as she looked at Yujeha's face was odd. Is it really this person? Ju Hien started to frown after hearing Irene's question. Irene had a serious look on her face. Yes. What is it? Do you know him? Irene then responded as if not knowing him would be weird. Of course I know him. He's the person who scammed my older brother one month ago. 
Ju Hian almost laughed after hearing that. That damn Yu Jeha. He had thought that the damn monarch of fraud would not be still, but for him to already have scammed the Holton household. He's leaving his prince behind for me. Scam. Was your older brother scammed? Well, you see he bought an expensive painting but it ended up being a counterfeit. Irene lowered her head as she said that. She seemed to be embarrassed just to say it. She was even more embarrassed after seeing Ju Hian holding back his laughter. You must be thinking that he was stupid to be scammed. Of course that was the case. It was extremely comedic for a family that was as rich as some royal families to be scammed by a counterfeit. Lo and behold, Ju Hian started to laugh. Did you properly hire an appraiser to look it over? Yes, the appraisers employed by the Holton household thoroughly confirmed it. However, it ended up being a counterfeit and they were scammed. My older brother bought the painting but it just happened to be the same picture that a family friend's mother had purchased. That was when they had realized it was a counterfeit. There was no way two exact same masterpieces would exist in the world. They were arguing saying that they each had the real painting until three, four, five twenty people who had the same painting showed up, making all of them faint on the spot. They were going crazy because all of that had happened in a span of three days. Furthermore, the reason this news was spread so slowly was because they had all tried to purchase a painting that had been stolen. In a sense, their carefulness led to their problem. Ju Hian chuckled at that comment. And the person who sold the painting to your brother is this man in the picture? Yes, there was a guest at home when I went back for the first time in a month and it was this person. His face is memorable so I remember it well. It seemed as if Irene was living alone away from home because she caused misfortune to those around her. She also changed hotels on a weekly basis because staying at any one hotel for a long time would send them to bankruptcy. Anyway, Irene cautiously asked a question. Um, but why are you looking for this person? She was giving a gaze that seemed to be asking if Ju Hian had been scammed as well. Ju Hian smiled brightly. No, I was not scammed. Forget being scammed, he was planning on scamming this bastard from here on. An acquaintance of mine was scammed so I am looking for him. Irene had an awkward expression as she started to speak. She had a grim look on her face. Ah, uh, but you won't be able to find him anymore. Excuse me. That person fell off a cliff in a car accident. He was caught trying to scam one of my brother's friends so the two of them were chasing him and saw it with their own eyes. They don't know if there was an issue with his brakes or if the speed was the issue, but he crashed through the guard rail and fell. The cops pronounced him dead. Ju Hian started to laugh as if it was unbelievable. You're saying that bastard is dead? Reing. In a white workroom with a good amount of sunlight. This was a secret room on the third floor of a gallery in the corner of Los Angeles. The young man who was painting a picture picked up the phone. Oh, old man Edward. Long time no chat. Egu, I can finally contact you. What have you been up to so that I couldn't contact you? The young man who was chatting through a headset started to laugh. What else would I be doing, I'm pretending to be dead. The old man on the other side of the call started to laugh. Ho, oh, you faked your alma mater last time. You then put a mole on your face and pretended to be someone else. Now, you have nothing better to do than to pretend to be a corpse. I didn't expect you to go that far. Ha ha ha. I had no choice. I almost ate shit messing with the Holton household. It must have been a huge scam for you to be pretending to be a corpse. What will you do if you are caught? It's fine. I just have to lay low for a few months before reappearing. They're all idiots so they won't be able to find me. Yu Jeha. The 26 years old young artist was hiding in his secret workroom burning up his artist's soul, no, his scammer's soul as he was putting oil paint on the canvas. Something peculiar was that he had an autograph paper the size of an origami paper in his mouth as he was drawing. The painting he was drawing right now was the image of people trying to survive a roaring sea. This was Rembrandt's The Storm on the Sea of Galilee that was stolen from Boston's Gardner Museum in 1990. It was one of the masterpieces that was stolen from the incident that was called the biggest art theft in U.S. history. However, this was obviously a counterfeit. 
Of course, he was not just looking at a picture and copying it. The secret sign of the counterfeit who shocked the world B-grade, rare-grade possession artifact that was indeed the case. The autograph paper in his mouth was an artifact. Yu Jiha was using that artifact to create counterfeits that could even trick the best appraisers in the world. The pieces he created using this artifact were perfect replicas to give the appraisers headaches. Furthermore, paintings were not the only things he could forge. Edward started to speak again. Anyway, the fact that you picked up my call must mean that you ran out of money again. Well, I spent a lot of money to pretend to be a corpse. Damn it, my car was destroyed, I had to pay my damn assistant to keep her mouth shut, I can't leave this secret room on the third floor, I feel like I'm going to die. I'm a total old boy right now, an old boy. Perfect. Do you want me to introduce you to a job that could make you some money? What kind of job is it? Artifact restoration. Yu Jiha clicked his tongue as if he didn't like it. He didn't like restoring artifacts because it quickly exhausted him. No choice since I don't have any money. Who is the client? You know about TKBM's chairman Quan Taejun. Yu Jiha stopped painting after hearing that. He started to frown as he asked back. What the, that large corporation's chairman? That person is the client? Really? Why, are you interested? It's urgent. Of course. Didn't you say that person has a ton of artifacts? I used up all my artifacts to survive falling off a cliff. Yu Jiha was greedy for artifacts but could not go into tombs because he was afraid. Naturally, this news made him very happy. That was why he quickly started to call somewhere. Yu Min He. Yu Jiha's college hubby and assistant twisted her lips. One she had graduated from an art college and set up a gallery, but there were no peaceful days because of her boss who went around scamming people. Now what? Pretending to be dead after messing with the Holton household. She would not be his assistant if that person wasn't a talented artist and didn't have the restoration ability. Yu Jiha was once labeled as a genius new artist with high expectations, but one day, he started to scam people left and right. He casually sold forgeries and he wasn't satisfied with selling his paintings or sculptures as his professor's new works he even sold one of the professor's used tissues as a new art piece. He always said the same thing after each time. Art is a scam. Furthermore, it was as if he had grown wings with his scamming ability after getting an artifact a few months ago. Did he get a taste of money or something? Of course, she wasn't complaining because his acting like a corpse got her over $100 million to keep her mouth shut. And I'll let him off because he seems to now be connected to TKBM. This was a chance. It was a major corporation. When would a nameless artist work with a major corporation like that? The right connections could get her a forever career and earn her a lot of money. Furthermore, Chairman Kwan has a lot of artifacts. If we can get even a few of them, they would make a ton of money. It was at that moment. Anybody here? The gallery door opened and some unfamiliar men entered. There were two men. One was an average Asian while the other was quite handsome. He was also young. He seemed to be in his early twenties. What can I do for you? I came because I heard that Yu Jiha is here. Ju Hien was the one who said that. Yun Min He smiled bitterly after hearing Yu Jiha's name. Ah. Is this one of the idiots who was scammed by Sunbei? They had come to Yu Jiha's gallery after Irene told them about the location. Of course, Yu Jiha was hiding in the third floor secret workroom right now. However, Yun Min He calmly started to speak as she had been paid to keep her mouth shut. I apologize. Unfortunately, the director Nim is not here right now. Furthermore, she had no time to waste with these idiots when they had a meeting with TKBM tomorrow. Unfortunately, it is time for the gallery to close now. Bang! Mommy! Are you sure he's not here? Huh? Are you sure he's not pretending to be dead? Oh Sung Wu was the one who shouted. He was pretty good at acting like this after working under gangsters for many years. However, Yun Min He who had been paid did not back down either. The D, Director Nim passed away recently from a car accident. Please don't make things complica. Kaya. 
Zhu Hian placed a heavy backpack on the table. He calmly smiled after hearing Yu Jeha was dead as he started to speak. It's fine if it is you even if Yu Jeha is not here. I just wanted to hire him to do something. H, hire. Before that, do you perhaps know what is inside this backpack? Excuse me. What did you bring with you that you're causing such a ruckus? However, Yun Min he had to question her eyes after opening the backpack. Uh, uh. My goodness. Artifacts. There were over ten artifacts in the backpack. Ju Hian smiled after hearing her say artifacts as if he had been waiting for that. You do recognize them. You are Yu Jeha's assistant right? Then do you know how to restore them? It doesn't matter to me who it is as long as they know how to restore the artifacts. Yun Min he quickly responded to that question. I, I know how to restore them. Honestly speaking, she didn't. However, Yun Min he quickly got up. Please excuse me for a moment while I go to the restroom. She ran to the restroom and started to shout in a quiet voice. Director Nim. Something big has happened. Artifacts. Artifacts. Over ten of them. Are you sure they're really artifacts? Do you not trust my eyes? You were the one who taught me about artifacts. Yun Min he was urgently shouting to Yu Jeha on the phone. It's a jackpot. I can tell they're going to sell at high prices. I don't know for sure, but they are all destroyed and there was even an Egyptian artifact that seemed to be a higher grade than your artifact. Yun Min he was a smart employee. Seeing her going nuts like this made Yu Jeha click his tongue. Then what is the problem? Isn't the answer obvious? Then. Yu Jeha started to chuckle. If you understood what I meant, do exactly as I say. What do you need me to do? Put them in the restoration room saying you'll restore them. I'll stealthily head over. Make sure to keep them distracted. And then. I can make perfect fakes in ten minutes. Switch them with those. I'll sell it to Chairman Quan I'm meeting with tomorrow if they aren't useful to me. But Director Nim. Won't we get caught? Are you joking? Anybody not at Chairman Quan's level are idiots. We'll switch them out and swindle them off to Chairman Quan or use them ourselves. But what if we get caught? Damn it, who do you think is going to make the fakes? We won't get caught. Yu Jeha didn't know much about anything else, but he was a genius artist. The counterfeit artifact was able to use more strength than normal in his hands. It allowed him to create fake artifacts as well. The fakes did not only look similar, they even had the same abilities. Of course, they disappeared quickly and the strength was clearly different from the original, but anyway, quickly get started if you understood. Why, yes sir. The only one confused that she suddenly disappeared to the restroom was Oh Sung Woo. Why is she suddenly acting like this? However, Ju Hian who came to this gallery with all of his artifacts just smiled. Will he slowly come out now? That damn scamming Rapunzel bastard. Chapter, 42 There was no way that Yu Jeha was dead. That was the thought in Ju Hian's mind from the beginning. He apparently fell off a cliff in a car accident, but that bastard can survive falling off a plane so no way he died in a car. The scale was too small. That was the case. Ju Hian knew that Yu Jeha was scamming again. His pretending to be dead was too obvious of a scam. In simple terms, Yu Jeha was an amazing liar. It was obvious he was hiding in this gallery. Originally, he would meet Yu Jeha five years later after he was already working for Chairman Quan. That was why this was his first time at this gallery, but Ju Hian's instincts were spot on. I can smell the scent of an artifact coming from above. It was probably an artifact related to counterfeiting or copying since he was going around selling counterfeits. Ju Hian who realized that Yu Jeha was hiding decided to fish him out. He was going to use a large bait to do that. The bait was simple. Yu Jeha is extremely greedy for artifacts. He was too scared to go into tombs but he was extremely greedy for artifacts. That was why he used his mouth and talents to do all kinds of different scams to steal, swindle, and receive artifacts before running away. He was a different kind of thief than Ju Hian who openly stole things. 
That was why he considered them to be similar types, but maybe that was the reason he could read the bastard's thoughts even more. This was the reason Zhu Hian had prepared a fishing rod with artifacts as the amazing bait. Yun Min he was the first to bite. Yun Min he is greedy as well. Which of the people close to artifacts were not materialistic? And lo and behold. Um, can I first check the conditions of the artifacts? Yun Min he who returned from the restroom smiled and picked up the backpack with the artifacts. I need to thoroughly inspect with a machine so I will need to go to the restoration room for a moment. Could you please look over this estimates sheet and the contract while I do that? Sure. Yun Min he looked at Ju Hian after seeing him let her go so easily. It looks like he's not suspicious about anything. Suspicious people would say they would follow her to the restoration room or tell them to do the inspection here, etc. That was why Yun Min he lightly smiled. This should be easy to swindle. People who didn't make things difficult were pushover customers for the Yun Min he crew. Yun Min he then took Ju Hian's artifacts to the first floor restoration room Yu Jeha mentioned. Ju Hian and Oh Sung Woo were looking through the contract and estimate sheet as she did that. Oh Sung Woo could not close his jaw after looking at the estimate sheet. The estimate sheet even had images, explaining things in detail so that customers would be able to make an educated guess on how much it would cost. That was very good, but the problem was the price Oh Sung Woo's hands were shaking as he held the estimate sheet. Hyu, Hyung Nim. Is our restoration really this expensive? Oh Sung Woo wondered if he had counted the zeros wrong. However, the number didn't change even after he rubbed his eyes. 10 million won per damage. And then an extra 50 million won based on the size of the damage it'll cost over 100 billion won at this rate. Even if artifact restoration was expensive, this was a total scam. It was an unbelievable price. However, Ju Hian didn't pay much attention to it. Why? An estimate sheet like this is useless. That was why Ju Hian started to smile. Yun Min He who entered the restoration room at that moment quickly locked the door. She then immediately called out to someone in a quiet voice. Director Nim, Director Nim. I brought them. And then, clunk, a chair in the corner moved. It was Yu Jeha who had stealthily hidden in the first floor restoration room after coming down from the third floor. The man who had been hiding like a rat looked toward the backpack Yun Min he brought with a bright smile. Is that it? Yes, please take a look. And hurry. Yun Min he quickly handed the black sports backpack to Yu Jeha, worried that Ju Hian would find out. Yu Jeha dropped his jaws after quickly looking through the backpack. There were definitely more than 10 artifacts in the backpack. Most were seriously damaged, but they were all real without any fakes. And although Yu Jeha didn't know much about artifact grades yet, he could clearly tell. These are definitely above average items gold axe silver axe, the rope from heaven, Anubis's ankh, Osiris's hourglass, Set's war scepter, Shakespeare's pen, etc., they were all artifacts Yu Jeha had never seen before. They looked like regular items at first glance, but the aura they gave off in his hand was different. That was why Yu Jeha gulped. He desired them. He desired them way too much. He wanted to quickly use them. Stand guard for just ten minutes. Why, yes sir. Once Yun Min he stepped out of the restoration room, Yu Jeha brought out some scrap metal, plastic, wood, plaster, and other materials. He then bit down on the white autograph paper again and grabbed an artifact in one hand. The first one he touched was the gold knife that was the gold axe. He then thoroughly observed the gold axe and started to touch it everywhere. Something amazing then started to happen. Boom! Once Yu Jeha, who touched the artifact, touched a piece of regular scrap metal, that slowly started to turn into the gold axe knife. It was a perfect counterfeit without any flaws. It was giving off a similar aura and the ability was the same as well. Even the destroyed areas were the same. This was only possible because of Yu Jeha's genius sense of observation. Of course, it was still a fake so it wasn't as strong as the real deal and would disappear without a trace in half a day. But it didn't matter to Yu Jeha. I would have escaped by the time he realizes it is a fake. That poor idiot. 
Yu Jiehe started to laugh while thinking that Zhu Hian shouldn't hold it against him too much. Art is a scam and life is a scam as well. Yu Jiehe had been a new artist who was being watched by many, but he had given up honestly painting anything anymore. Why? It was because he felt it to the bones that living an honest life would only put you at a disadvantage. One way to put it would be that he was stabbed in the back. The bastard of a professor who stole the style of painting that Yu Jiehe barely managed to develop after many years was the representative of such a cruel world. He claimed my painting was terrible and then went on to steal it. That wasn't the only thing. Yu Jiehe's style of painting that his professor had stolen was revered by many to the point that it would go down in art history, raising his professor to Picasso's level of fame. However, no matter how many times Yu Jiehe drew new paintings and put them on display, they all just called him a copycat. The world who didn't care about the truth buried the original creator while the famous bastard continued to profit. That was why Yu Jiehe was just doing the same thing. He was stealing and selling other people's work. What was the problem when everybody else was doing it too? Ha, huh, the ones who get tricked are the retards. Yu Jiehe who now had such a twisted mindset had committed many scams, and the counterfeit artifact had reacted and approached him. The artifact had placed wings on Yu Jiehe's back. And even now, thinking about screwing Zhu Hian over was making his lips twitch in joy. There are ten artifacts so selling just a third of them to Chairman Quan should give me enough to fool around with women for many years. He finished copying all of the artifacts at that moment. Now all that was left to do was to run away. Yu Jiehe started to chuckle. I apologize. It does not seem possible. Yun Min he who brought the fakes back in Zhu Hian's backpack had a disappointed expression on her face. The artifacts are destroyed too much so I cannot restore them with my artifact. She then proceeded to lie with a straight face. Oh Sung Wu sighed in disappointment. It looks like we didn't manage to restore them in the end. Hyung Nim, what do we do now since that Yu Jiehe person is supposedly dead? Ju Hian just casually looked through the artifacts. The item he picked up was Anubis's ankh. Yun Min he seemed to feel sorry for Ju Hian as she put on a bitter smile. I'm sorry. We tried to do whatever we could but these artifacts are on the brink of destruction. Of course, this was the truth. The artifacts Ju Hian brought would be destroyed with a single hit. But Jeha Sunbei should be able to restore them like new. She would take a cut of the profits. It wasn't like Ju Hian would realize that they were fake. Yun Min he had compared the fake ones with the real ones just in case, but even she who was a qualified appraiser could not determine which was which. Although she didn't want to admit it, Yu Jiehe truly was talented. All right then, now to brush things off and get ready to run. Once Yun Min he sneer and Ju Hian's gaze crossed each other crack. Ju Hian ruthlessly threw Anubis's ankh. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. That wasn't it. Ju Hian kicked the table over. Bong. The inside of the gallery quickly turned into pandemonium. W, what are you doing? Hayu, Hyung Nim. Ju Hian then started to smile. You're asking me what I'm doing. That's the question I want to ask you. E, excuse me. What the FCK do you think you are trying to do? Yun Min He's heart almost sank after hearing Ju Hian's vicious tone. N, no way. Did he find out? However, Yun Min he started to shake as she feigned ignorance. That, um, I really don't know why you are doing tea. Did you think I wouldn't realize it if you switched them to others that looked the same? Yun Min he's body started to tremble after hearing that. H, he found out. Ju Hian then took a knife out of his pocket. Yun Min he shrieked once she saw the knife. Hold don't come near Kaya. She tried to call the cops but Ju Hian had kicked her phone out of her hand. Why, you crazy? She then screamed as she ran away toward the door. But it only lasted for a moment. Boom! Ju Hian slammed the door shut with his foot. These damn bastards only learned the bad things. Yun Min he subconsciously plopped down on the ground because his gaze was so scary. His gaze looked like he could have already killed many people. Oh Sung Wu grabbed Yun Min He so she could not run away. She started to shout now that she could not run away. I, I'm sorry. 
The real ones are in the next room. Please don't kill me. This was the truth. She felt like Ju Hien would really kill her if she tried to scam him again. Ju Hien then started to smirk. Oh, is that so? Ju Hien then headed toward the restoration room where Yu Jeha was hiding. I got you now, Yu Jeha. He had caught a giant fish with a simple paste bait. And at the same time Yu Jeha who was listening from the restoration room almost fainted in shock. He had put his ear against the wall after finishing his preparations to run out of curiosity damn it, that crazy bastard. He fell over on the chair after being shocked by the unexpected chaos. He didn't know for sure, but he felt something was clear. I'm dead if I get caught. However, Yu Jeha still could not understand it. Damn it, that's so weird. How did he realize it? Of course, Yu Jeha's fakes were perfect. He was that talented of an artifact user. However, he just chose the wrong person to try to trick. Damn it. Yu Jeha then jumped up from the ground. Running away was the best course of action right now. Even with a genius restoration ability, he was a weak young man who didn't even know how to fight properly. However, something terrible happened at that moment as the door was destroyed. Chapter 43 the door was easily destroyed by the kick. Ah! Yu Jeha screamed after seeing the intruder. The person who entered was a handsomely tall man. He looked like a real cool and handsome dude, but he definitely did not look like a good person. He had a knife in one hand and his smile looked like the smile of a mass murderer. Ju He inside as he was both happy to see Yu Jeha and disgusted at what he had tried to do. I got you now, you bastard. He was younger than in his memories, but this was definitely Yu Jeha. Ju Hien was very happy to see Yu Jeha. It was the feeling of seeing an annoying but still lovable disciple or friend. Yu Jeha had meshed well with Ju Hien and a talented friend and subordinate, but he annoyed the hell out of Ju Hien quite often because he would run like a bat whenever he seemed to be in a bad situation. However, Yu Jeha was still one of the chiefs he definitely needed to obtain. Restorers were necessary subordinates for monopolizers and Yu Jeha was a restorer with unmatched abilities. However, unlike the happy Ju Hien, Yu Jeha could only plop down on the ground as his legs grew weak. You, um. Ju Hien then asked a question like a jaguar looking at a deer. Where are my items? Excuse me. Where are they? Yu Jeha gasped and quickly pointed to the safe after seeing Ju Hien point the knife at him. Oh, over there. He seemed to have been afraid of the knife. Ju Hien looked toward where Yu Jeha was pointing. He could see an iron safe nearby. He was probably on his way to take it and escape by car. And the passcode? Yu Jeha rolled his eyes for a moment before answering. Ju Hien headed toward the safe without any hesitation. Yu Jeha scoffed internally as he watched Ju Hien. You stupid retard, do you think that is the right passcode? It happened as Yu Jeha looked for an opening to crawl toward the exit. Beep. The safe has been unlocked. Yu Jeha questioned his ears at that moment. W, what? The safe has been unlocked. What the hell? Ju Hien who casually unlocked the safe was smirking. 7407 my ass. Your passcode has always been 1028. Apparently it was the birthday of an AV actress he had a huge crush on when he was younger. You stupid idiot. Ju Hien had assumed he would be using the same code 15 years prior to that conversation. Ju Hien was never planning on trusting Yu Jeha's words anyway. Ju Hien's artifacts were present once he opened the safe. Thankfully, they seemed to be the real ones this time. Real or not, the person who was about to go crazy right now was none other than Yu Jeha. And lo and behold. Damn it, hey. How the hell do you know my passcode? His shocked beyond belief appearance was quite entertaining to watch. On the other hand, Ju Hien started to smile. How do I know? You blurted it out every time you got drunk, you bastard. Yu Jeha became extremely flustered. W, what? Why, you know me? Damn it, did I make another mistake? Who knows? Yu Jeha stepped back after seeing Ju Hien walk toward him with the knife up. Eek, don't come near me. 
Yu Jiha then tried to call the cops with his cell phone. However, Ju Hian sent it flying with a kick before saying something to someone. What are you waiting for? The rope artifact burst out of the safe in response. The rope quickly flew through the air and bound Yu Jiha. Yu Jiha, who was now dangling in the air, could only scream. What the hell is this? Damn it! Whether it was disappointed it wasn't a woman or excited because it was a hot guy, this rope artifact whose gender was impossible to determine was tightly binding Yu Jiha. Play with me, human. Play with me, human. However, Yu Jiha was about to suffocate to death. Hey, let go of me. Hey. Ugh. The rope artifact then bound Yu Jiha's mouth as well as if it was saying he was being too loud. I'm Moon Ph. Son by let MMPH O. Son of a bitch, let me go. However, Ju Hian debated for a moment while looking at Yu Jiha who had turned into a dried yellow corvina. It was because he knew it would not be enough to just make this bastard his work slave why. Because Yu Jiha was like a bat. He would wag his tail and go over to the other monopolizers if they promised him more money, and would sell Ju Hian off as Judas had done if he found himself in any danger. In the past, he listened to Ju Hian who was Chairman Quan's right-hand man because Chairman Quan had Yu Jiha's weakness. Well, I just need to use the code of Hammurabi. However, there was something Ju Hian had realized while fighting over artifacts in the past. It was that money, power, and weaknesses could not buy a person's heart to completely win them over. That wasn't the only thing. Yu Jiha was a divine-grade artifact user. He didn't manage to get a divine grade artifact yet, but he could easily escape if he ever found a good artifact. That is why I can't use force to make him submit. He was not someone that Ju Hian was planning on throwing away after using once trust was extremely necessary as he would leave his precious artifacts with this bastard. However, it was impossible to teach this bastard a sense of loyalty. Maybe it was because Yu Jiha was stabbed in the back by someone he trusted, but he had ended up a twisted person who didn't trust anybody. So, how could he make such a bastard follow him? I've never tried it, but do I need to be gentle with him and care for him? It happened as Ju Hian seriously thought about something that the normal him would never care about. You, FCK, let me go. What did I do wrong? It's the fault of the people who are tricked. You bastard, turn into a damn eunuch. You retarded psychopathic bastard. His swearing that flew out like a waterfall made Ju Hian smile brightly. People really can't try to do things they don't normally do. My troublemaking subordinate bastard, I was trying to treat you well this time, but. Ha, huh, what fking non? The former devil captain flicked his finger. The rope handed a fountain pen to Ju Hian like an obedient child. It was Shakespeare's fountain pen. Shakespeare's pen A grade, treasure grade consumable artifact, however. Yu Jiha who didn't know what artifact it was started to scoff. Ho! What, are you going to stab my eye with a pen or something? Ju Hian started to write in beautiful cursive English on the canvas. It was as if he was writing an act in a play. And then poor Yu Jiha 26 years old who is dangling in the air will suffer intense pain as if he was dying. Boom! Yu Jiha instantly turned pale. An unbearable pain had struck between his legs. It only took a moment for what sounded like a dying pig to fill the gallery. Yu Jiha could not breathe properly after a pain starting from the top of his head made his entire body feel paralyzed. Damn FCK. Damn, ow, ah. The way he was groaning made it seem extremely painful. It was obvious that Shakespeare's pen was impacting Yu Jiha. Yu Jiha had turned into the main character of a tragedy thanks to Shakespeare's pen. However, Ju Hian who was calm throughout all this started to speak. All right, one more time with something else. This devil bastard. The only thing that Yu Jiha knew for certain was that he did not have the upper hand. He didn't know what artifact Ju Hian would use next. Damn it, I don't think I can run away because of the pain. Yu Jiha who hated pain could only beg for survival. Damn it. Sir, I won't charge you for the restoration. I'm sorry for tricking you. I, I'll do whatever you want so please don't kill me. Apparently he was in enough pain to beg for his life. Yu Jiha who grabbed between his legs gave up before Ju Hian could do anything else. 
please. Juhian then started to scoff. It's only natural that you won't charge for the restoration. Go bring a contract. E, excuse me. An exclusivity contract. Of course, it would be called an exclusivity contract but be written like a slave contract. Yu Jeha who was still holding between his legs as if there was still the aftershock from earlier was shaking. The reason for it was simple. It was because of the contract he just signed. Of course, it was fine to sign a contract. He liked making money. Furthermore, the fact that this guy talked about an exclusivity contract must mean that he had no plans to harm him. So, it was fine to sign a contract as long as he wasn't in any more pain, but what kind of slave contract is this? Ju Hien calmly chuckled at Yu Jeha's desperate shout. What is it? What's wrong with it? Yu Jeha held back his tears as he looked at the contract. It was an eight-page contract, but to summarize, four. Can only take restoration jobs for the promisee CEO Ju Hien. We'll do whatever the promisee tells you to do and will not complain about promisee's actions regarding all things related to the contract. The promisee and the promiser will both sincerely abide by the contents of this contract and will be punished by the Code of Hammurabi should they break the contract. Such were the contents of the contract. Do as he says. What is this, some modern-day slave contract? Ujeha started to shout as if he could not hold it in anymore. Hey! Do you think this contract is normal? Juhian scoffed at him. What is it? You were the one who signed it. Did you not read it first? That almost made you Jeha go crazy. How could he thoroughly read through it when he was in so much pain? He signed it because he was told to sign if he wanted his son to be safe. But the contents. Nope, this won't work. It looks like I need to report this bastard. Juhian chuckled as if he knew what you Jeha was trying to do. You're free to call the cops, but you know you are at a disadvantage, right? Yu Jeha started to grind his teeth. He didn't know what it was, but there was this thing called the Code of Hammurabi. Although he didn't know what it could do, but the contract said that he would be punished if he breaks the contract. Yu Jeha could only continue to think about what he could do. Damn it, why is the thing that disappeared from the Louvre Museum with this bastard? Ju Hien started to speak as Yu Jeha continued to grind his teeth. Think carefully as not everything in there is terrible for you. There were some parts of the contract that were indeed tempting for Yu Jeha. The promisee will provide the promiser an annual salary of 50 should the promiser dutifully abide by the contract. A bonus will be paid for every artifact restored 7. During the duration of the contract, the promisee will be responsible for the promiser's necessities of life, safety, and health from illnesses. However, Yu Jeha was still pulling his hair out. It was tempting, but Yu Jeha was not dumb enough to stick to this bastard whom he had just met. In addition damn it, how can I trust such a young bastard? Chairman Quan is a million times better. How could a weird thug compare to the chairman of a global company? It was obvious sticking with Chairman Quan would be a more reliable option. He could extend his network and get anything he needed to succeed. But he ended up getting dragged by such a weird bastard. Damn it, I was going to partner with Chairman Quan. He had played hard to get to raise his worth. However, his eyes sparkled at that moment. Right. Chairman Quan Taejun might be able to take care of this bastard for me. It happened at that moment. Reing. Yu Jeha received a call. He became shocked after seeing the caller. His gaze then changed and he asked Ju Hien a question. Can I go take a call? Do whatever you want. Ju Hien who let him go without any issues was tapping on the table as if he was deep in thought. In order to capture this bastard's heart, it wasn't like there was no method. But would it work? However, Ju Hien who came up with a method started to smile as if there was no need to worry about it. He would only know if he tried it out. On the other hand, Yu Jeha who had no idea what Ju Hien was thinking snuck out to pick up the call. It was none other than Chairman Quan who was calling him. Chairman Quan was personally calling him because he had been playing hard to get. However Yu Jeha started to shout as soon as the call connected. Chairman Nim. I'll restore it for you. I'll do whatever you want. Chairman Quan who had made the call became anxious. 
he wondered if this was the same guy who had played so hard to get just a few hours ago. However, Yu Jaiha was desperate. He felt as if everything would be resolved as long as he could escape from Ju Hian. What made you change your mind? Yu Jaiha started to run as Ju Hian might hear as he asked for help. I'll do it, I'll do whatever you want Chairman Nim, so please save me. I'll restore every artifact you want. Save you? What do you mean? Some crazy bastard appeared. Who is it that is making you who else would it be? It's me. Yu Jaiha gasped. Ju Hian was standing there with his phone and a smirk on his face. Chapter, 44 Yu Jaiha almost fainted. Ju Hian was glaring at Yu Jaiha with a, would you look at this bastard, type of gaze. Yu Jaiha turned pale. This bastard. When did he? However, Ju Hian didn't care whether Yu Jaiha was shocked or not as he started to speak to the person on the phone. Egu, look who it is. Did the chairman him call to get his artifacts restored? He already seemed to know who Yu Jaiha was talking to. It wasn't very difficult to figure out. Chairman Quan was the only person Yu Jaiha would call Chairman Nim and say that he would restore artifacts for him. Was it because he heard Ju Hian's shameless voice? Chairman Quan couldn't speak as if he had received a great shock. This voice is definitely Chairman Quan felt as if he was hit on the head after realizing that the voice was familiar. Why is this bastard over there? However, Ju Hian laughed wickedly and continued to speak without any care for Chairman Quan who was at a loss for words. Oh my, I'm really sorry. Yu Jaiha has already become my exclusive restorer. Both of them were shocked but Yu Jaiha was foaming at the mouth. Who became your exclusive restorer MMPH? Ju Hian covered his mouth and hammered the nail in. Let me deliver Yu Jaiha's message for him. He said to go find yourself another restorer, you retard. Click. Yu Jaiha looked ready to cry as he grabbed Ju Hian's collar after seeing him end the call. Hey! You crazy bastard! When did I say something like that? You are about to say it right now. What did you say? Damn it! Yu Jaiha tried to quickly call Chairman Quan back to explain the situation. However, Ju Hian who hung up the phone then erased Chairman Quan's number as well. Ju Hian looked at Yu Jaiha who looked ready to cry and said something. It's best to not mistake which rope you should grab. What? I'll have you know that Chairman Quan's is a rotten rope. I am the rope you should grab. Yu Jaiha became flabbergasted after hearing that comment. Who is this bastard to say Chairman Quan is a rotten rope? However, Ju Hian was being serious. He was planning on turning Chairman Quan into a rotten rope from here. You are the first card to do that. Yu Jaiha. Ju Hian who had prepared a carrot for this bastard started to chuckle. However, Yu Jaiha was not the only one who was going crazy right now. It was the same for Chairman Quan who had a restorer swiped from under his nose. Do, do, do. Chairman Quan couldn't close his mouth while looking at the hung up phone. He already took Yu Jaiha. Chairman Quan felt pain at the back of his head as he thought about that. But I need my artifacts restored right now. Most importantly, Edward had told him that a useful tomb seemed to have appeared in China. China who learned about the existence of artifacts had put out an announcement that they were recruiting for an excavation team who would be rewarded handsomely. Based on the reward, the five artifact users Edward warned me about would move as well. That was why he needed to restore his conquest artifact right away to enter the tomb. But that bastard Seo Juhian was hindering his progress. This damn thorn in the ass type of bastard. Anyway, he had no time to find a different restorer and he couldn't give up on Yu Jaiha like this. Although Ju Hian had just hindered him it's not hard to employ an artist with no backing. He didn't know what Ju Hian would offer, but there was no way that bastard could offer better terms than the chairman of a major company. That was why Chairman Quan had his secretary send a message to Yu Jaiha. Gather as much money as possible for Yu Jaiha. Don't hold anything back. He then laughed. Money was what moved the world. Does he think he is some kind of golden spoon? As Chairman Quan expected, Yu Jaiha was pouting as he looked at Ju Hian. No matter what you offer, Chairman Quan is the answer. He could not paint his own paintings anymore. 
he was already buried with the false reputation as a copycat. All that was left for him was counterfeits and restorations that could potentially end up making him money in the future. He would be able to have a decent level of support and money even without painting if he worked for Chairman Kwan. But Yu Jiehua decided to listen to what Zhu Hian had to say first. What do I need to do if I work for you? First, stop the painting's counterfeiting and restore artifacts for me. Yu Jiehua started to frown. I was wondering what this bastard was going to say. You speak more bullshit the more I listen to you. It's not that I don't like restoring artifacts, but who are you to tell me not to paint? Are such stupid counterfeits still considered paintings? Yu Jiehua instantly turned angry. Hey! Watch your mouth! Stupid counterfeits! Counterfeits are still works of art. They are still the results of hard work. Zhu Hian smirked as if he found Yu Jiehua's response to be stupid. I guess you still have your pride as an artist even though you scam people with other people's paintings. What? Well, it's not that you aren't talented. Why don't you stop the counterfeiting and draw your own paintings? This bastard. Yu Jiehua clenched his fists. However, unlike how he had retorted everything until now, Yu Jiehua just stood there without being able to say anything this time. Zhu Hian chuckled. As expected. Zhu Hian seemed to have thought about something as he handed a mini sketchbook the size of his palm in the air. Yu Jiehua's eyes turned wide after seeing it. That his was drawing note that he had not shown anybody else. Who gave you permission? Sorry, but I took a look. Well, it does seem like your style of painting is the same as Jean Richards that sells the best right now. Hand it over. Yu Jiehua who forced the sketchbook out of his hand ripped it up and threw it into the trash can. He then continued to shout toward Zhu Hian. Get lost before I get angry. However, Zhu Hian just disrespectfully continued. Do you want to be Jean Richards' ghost painter or something? How useless. Yu Jiehua became angry and started to grind his teeth. Ghost painter. He was the one who stole my painting. Zhu Hian started to smile as if he got him. Yu Jiehua. He didn't ask in details when they worked together under Chairman Quan, but Zhu Hian had some ideas about it. He knew how Jiehua was stabbed in the back by a professor he trusted, buried from the art world and how desperately this bastard wanted to paint. But he turned into a scammer after throwing away everything including his creed when he became broken. That was why Zhu Hian knew what this bastard wanted more than anything else. Was that the reason? Zhu Hian who provoked him on purpose slowly asked. Stole. Yu Jiehua shut his mouth as if he said something he shouldn't have said, but Zhu Hian smiled wickedly. Are you saying Jean Richard stole your painting? Yu Jiehua bit down on his lips so much that they might start to bleed at any moment. Nobody believed him and he had been blackmailed that his parents would not be safe if he publicized the issue. Furthermore, his fame had been tarnished and he had already been buried and banished from the art world. However, Zhu Hian sneered at him. I don't know much about it, but I guess art is something that can so easily be copied. Then I guess your art was nothing much either. Yu Jiehua exploded at Zhu Hian's intentional provocation. Even a gentle and rational person had that reverse scale. Zhu Hian knew this bastard's reverse scale very well. And lo and behold. Hey! Shut the hell up if you don't know anything. You're just a layman. Art is made of the artist's techniques, values, and principles. Oh, really? Yu Jiehua was huffing and puffing as he seemed to recall the past events. That was why I also thought he won't be able to go far with a copy. But for some reason, that bastard was able to draw the things that I had only thought about. It was as if he could read my mind. Yu Jiehua sighed after saying that. FCK, there's no way that's possible. No, it is possible. Zhu Hian's gaze turned serious as he smiled. There was more. Zhu Hian got to the point as if he had been waiting for Jiehua to get angry. Jean Richard, the professor who stole your painting is an artifact user. Yu Jiehua was shocked at what he had just heard. W, what did you say? He is able to completely transform into the person of his choosing. He is able to perfectly copy the person's knowledge and skills. Jean Richard. There was no way Zhu Hian wouldn't know about him. 
Why? He was the bastard with Vidic's artifact, the Vidic's mirror mask. Vidic was the real person who Lupin was based on. Chairman Quan was the one who had won the War of Artifacts thanks to Juhian's tomb raiding team, but there were other artifact users that caused quite the headache. One of them was Jean Richard. He was called the Transformation Expert. The title of expert were given to monarch candidates who used unique artifacts. Anyway, he used the artifact to perfectly copy Ujeha. Ujeha was a talented but nameless newbie. Whether it was a thesis or art, no matter what the truth was, the famous bastard would usually win and the poor weak soul would get buried. Juhian soon started to speak. You want to draw, right? Ujeha flinched at that question. Juhian continued to smile as he watched Jeha's reaction. This bastard should be quite riled up by now. That was why Juhian showed a ray of hope to this thirsty artist. I will get that stolen painting back for you from Jean Richard. Ujeha questioned his ears at this statement. It made his heart beat faster, but Ujeha was not an innocent child who would so easily nod his head. Do you think that is possible? Ujeha sighed as if he didn't believe Juhian but Juhian could clearly see it. Ujeha's gaze was telling him he was intrigued. He could also tell that Jeha was being tempted even if his mind was telling him it was impossible. It really was this. That was indeed the case. Juhian wanted Ujeha's loyalty. He needed this bastard to use his scamming skills for his benefit. However, he didn't need a scammer who was ready to betray him at any moment. This was especially true because Ju Hien had tasted the bitter taste of betrayal once already. Submission through force always brings forth evil intentions and betrayal. Then what could he do? There was no need to worry about it too much. He just needed to make the person fall for him and drag them until the end. This was something that Chairman Quan who treated artifact users as tools would never understand even after death. That was why Juhian stabbed the nail into Ujeha's mind with a stern gaze. You will be able to get your painting back if you follow me. This scammer named Ujeha seemed to be moved by money, but he was actually a genius artist. He liked art so much that he would paint these counterfeits as it was the only thing he could do right now. That was the one method to convince Ujeha. And lo and behold, Ujeha started to bite Juhian's bait. Can you really make that happen? You. Yes. Before all of that, you you believe that I had my style of painting stolen. I trust you. Yu Jeha's gaze vividly shook at that response. Nobody had believed him when he told the truth and had treated him as a criminal. But why would this bastard is he pretending to trust me? However, Ju Hien's gaze was firm and seemed to be sincere. That was why Yu Jeha started to speak. I don't know why you are doing all of this, but I am just a civilian. I am not a great individual for you to desire. Don't worry about that. I'm trying to buy the future you and not the present you. He then continued to speak. Jean Richard is well connected with the upper echelon of society so people like Chairman Quan who are wary of them cannot do it. But it is possible for me. I need to take care of Jean Richard anyway. That was for Ju Hien's benefit, but Ju Hien somewhat wanted this bastard to achieve his dreams in this life as well. He was an annoying bastard who always caused trouble, but he was still one of his subordinates. Ju Hien also trusted this bastard's pride as an artist. Yu Jeha blanked out after hearing this unexpected part. This bastard, just who? He could not figure out Ju Hien's identity at all. Yu Jeha had received a text message at that moment. It was from Chairman Quan. I am sending this message because I can't seem to reach you. I want to personally chat with you regarding our support fund for you. I await your response. Yu Jeha read the message with shaking eyes. He then looked toward Ju Hien. It was now time to decide. He then started to draft a response. Chapter 45 The message was simple. Eat shit. Find someone else. That was the message that Yu Jeha wrote. Honestly speaking, Yu Jeha's heart was beating wildly. Having the truth revealed and getting back his name and painting as an artist? Yu Jeha thought about that future for a moment. 
Thinking about that future gave him the chills as he saw a future where he was so happy he could die without any regrets. It was to the point that even the non-religious Ujeha was willing to stupidly choose Juhian. However, at that moment oops. He quickly snapped out of it and erased the message. Please let me know the time and place. There is something I must propose first. That was indeed the case. Good. Did he say his name was Seo Juhian? There's no reason to completely trust this bastard. Yu Jeha barely managed to be rational. Furthermore, there was always the possibility. If it was possible for Ju Hien to return his painting to him, Chairman Quan might be able to do so as well. So, I will keep it a secret from this bastard first, and then, however, Ju Hien chuckled at that moment. Are you done responding to Chairman Quan? Gasp. Yu Jeha's heart almost jumped out. He hid his cell phone behind him on reflex. R. Responding to Chairman Quan. What do you mean? I responded to my Dongsen. However what bullshit. Ju Hien's hand moved at the speed of light. He then started to laugh in front of Yu Jeha. See, you did send it to Chairman Quan. Yu Jeha gasped. It was because Ju Hien was looking at his phone while laughing. Crazy, when did he? Hey. Give it back. Yu Jeha then thought that his plan was ruined. Based on this bastard's attitude, he might stab him with the knife right away after seeing the message. However, Ju Hien who saw the message was laughing too calmly. A proposal for Chairman Quan. You're going to ask him to take care of Jean Richard and reveal the truth or something? Ugh. Ju Hien laughed toward the anxious Yu Jeha. Do whatever you want. You can do that if you want. What is this bastard planning? Ju Hien then threw something toward Yu Jeha. Marie Antoinette's necklace B-grade, rare great consumable artifact remaining uses 110 huh? It looked like a simple silver necklace. However, this was an artifact. That was why Yu Jeha looked toward Ju Hien as if he didn't understand. Ju Hien just waved at him. By the way, that is a small gift from me. Use it if Chairman Quan makes you angry when you meet. Damn it. There was no way he could like this bastard who was acting like he knew everything but Yu Jeha grabbed the mysterious necklace and turned around. You. Don't regret this. However, Ju Hien didn't hold him back. Why? It was because Ju Hien knew Yu Jeha and Chairman Quan all too well. He could already tell what was going to happen. Welcome. The Chairman Nim has been looking forward to meeting you. A meeting room somewhere in the middle of L.A. Chairman Quan who had rented out an entire seminar room was waiting for Yu Jeha. Yu Jeha clenched onto the artifact Ju Hien had given him before entering the room. I don't know what artifact this is, but I probably won't need to use it. He then walked into the seminar room to see Chairman Quan greeting him. Welcome. I've been waiting for you. Yu Jeha hesitated before starting to speak. I will keep it short and get right to the point. Huh. Just what is it you are going to ask for that your shoulders are so stiff? Ask away. I will get you whatever you want. Yu Jeha continued to swear internally. I must totally be crazy, fkin crazy. Honestly speaking, he didn't know if he was doing the right thing right now. However, he saw a small ray of hope. Even if it was just a lie to convince himself, Yu Jeha's actions were set now that his heart was already beating quickly. That was how thirsty Yu Jeha was already. He was not at the point where he was willing to throw away his dream sir, you are familiar with Jean Richard. Jean Richard? Are you talking about the professor at Yale University? That genius artist? Yu Jeha started to grind his teeth. However, Chairman Quan started to laugh without knowing what was on his mind. I know him well. He is a world-renowned painter. His unique style of painting he revealed not too long ago has given him the title of genius painter. They said he was the second coming of Picasso. The second coming of Picasso my ass. Huh, sure. I heard that he was a respected mentor for all art students. Now that I think about it, you went to Yale for art too right? Was he one of your professors? Yu Jeha started to frown and got to the point. Please don't say something like that. That person stole my style of painting. What? 
he's a thief who stole my work. The seminar room turned cold after that remark. Chairman Kwan had a terrible expression on his face while wondering what this punk was saying. Now that I think about it, Richard's style of painting had changed too quickly. I remember he said he was going to test out an artifact Chairman Kwan and Jean Richard had known each other in secret for a long time. That wasn't the only thing. Richard was one of Chairman Kwan's very important business partners. He was one of the core individuals of the business Chairman Kwan has been developing in secret. He was one of the core individuals for its Pandora. It would not be wrong to say that the foundation of that business would falter if Richard was not there. That was why Chairman Kwan had paid special attention to get rid of any rumors surrounding Richard. However, Yu Jaiha who had no way of knowing that continued to speak. Please reveal that man's wrongdoings. Then I will sign an exclusive contract with you. Chairman Kwan started to laugh as if it was unbelievable. What did he just say? Reveal Jean Richard's wrongdoings. Is he telling me to ruin my business with my own hands? That was why the truth subconsciously came out. Are you crazy? He might have been honest because he had heard something so shocking. So you are insisting that Jean Richard is a plagiarist? I am not insisting on anything, that is the truth and he is a plagiarist. I truly had my painting stolen. Ho! This crazy bastard. Chairman Kwan could not speak anymore. It was difficult to find a restorer so he was going to take this punk in because he happened to be one. He never expected this punk to be a complete nut job and a headache. However, Chairman Kwan started to laugh as he responded. I understand. I don't know the situation but I will thoroughly look into it. So please restore the artifacts first. No. My conditions are that I will restore your artifacts once the truth has been revealed. Yu Jaiha was not an idiot. He needed to make the conditions clear if he did not want to be used. Chairman Kwan sighed and sent the secretary out before calling someone. Who is he calling? However, Yu Jaiha could not help but gasp after hearing the words that came out of Chairman Kwan's mouth. Ah. Richard? Do you know someone named Yu Jaiha? There's something I want to ask you. That was indeed the case. He was talking to Jean Richard. This bastard. Chairman Kwan chatted with Jean Richard in French before putting the phone on speaker phone. Yu Jaiha then started to hear him mock him in English. Yu Jaiha, you retard. You should at least be smart if you have nothing. Didn't I tell you last time? You might die without anybody knowing if you keep running your mouth. I told you to live like a damn rat if you don't want to die. Are you really that dumb? I guess being buried in the art community wasn't enough to make you come to your senses. Yu Jaiha's fists started to shake after hearing Jean Richard's comments. This motherfucking bastard. Chairman Kwan then hung up the phone and started to speak as if he had made up his mind about something. I tried to help you out but I guess it won't work. You just speak nonsense and talk back to me. Whether the plagiarism was real or not, Richard would be buried if this information leaked. Any bad press could ruin his business. I can't let anything about this leak out. He had no way of knowing what would happen if he let this bastard go. It was better to get rid of any potential dangers completely. Furthermore, it was obvious who he would choose if he had to choose between Yu Jaiha who could somewhat handle a restoration artifact or Jean Richard, his friend. It'll be bad if Richard later found out that I hid something like this from him too. That was why Chairman Kwan's plan was simple. It was submission. He had found Yu Jaiha's attitude that seemed to be testing the waters to be annoying anyway. Furthermore, the other person he was with before was Seo Juhian. Chairman Kwan started to grind his teeth. I think giving you a choice was the problem. Youngsters these days always do this when someone is nice to them. They try to be smart and take advantage of every situation. Such wicked bastards. Yu Jaiha looked toward Chairman Kwan in disbelief. However, Chairman Kwan who could change attitudes quickly coldly continued to speak. All right, take your pick. Shut up and become my restorer, or be sued by a world-renowned artist and become completely buried. Yu Jaiha looked at him as if he was ruined. However, Yu Jaiha wasn't very anxious. 
the witty bastard had been recording everything on his phone from the moment he came to meet with Chairman Kwan. It'll be bad for TKBM if I leak this recording. However, Chairman Kwan started to laugh after seeing him being quiet. Do you think you're special because you are an artifact user? The guards that the secretary called over soon entered the room. The guards instantly suppressed Yu Jeha and took away his phone that was recording the conversation. Hey! Let go of me! A stupid dime a dozen artist dares to go against me. Yu Jeha became upset. What did you say? You stupid phone salesman bastard. Ha ha. Sounds like something I've heard before. Lock him up and start with the mental training. Or we can shut you up here if you don't want to do that. Yu Jeha started to scream as soon as he saw Chairman Quan take out an artifact. He didn't know what it was, but it seemed extremely dangerous. FCK. I might really die like this. Yu Jeha flailed as the guards slammed him down, but he could not overcome them. It was at that moment. By the way, that is a small gift from me. Use it if Chairman Quan makes you angry when you meet. He suddenly recalled Ju Hian's words. Yu Jeha then used the artifact Ju Hian gave him. Damn it, why is nothing happening? Did that bastard scam him? This bastard, did he give me a useless item as a gift? Yu Jeha grinded his teeth as they captured him. Damn it, you motherfucking bastard. Dream, my ass. He had thought he was worth something because of that bastard. He should have just lowered his head and thought about ways to make money as he had done in the past. It wasn't like he didn't know who he could press and who he couldn't press. Yu Jeha started to cry in fear. Egu. People really can't to do things they don't normally do. But there are things that can change because of that as well. Bang! The seminar room's door was slammed open. Both Yu Jeha and Chairman Quan became shocked after seeing who ran into the seminar room. The person who appeared like a savior was Ju Hian. Chairman Quan gasped in shock as soon as he saw Ju Hian's face. How did this bastard? There should be guards outside to prevent Yu Jeha from running away. However, Ju Hian, who had knocked all of them out on his way here, was sneering at him. Yu Jeha started to shout as soon as he saw Ju Hian. You! Ju Hian, who looked at Yu Jeha and Chairman Quan, started to laugh as if he knew it would go down like this. Ju Hian then calmly asked his former subordinate whom he cherished. All right then, really make your decision now. Will you be that bastard slave forever or will you become my subordinate, restore your name, and get out of here? Yu Jeha closed his eyes as if he was both relieved and angry. This bastard really was the devil. The answer is obvious. He didn't know what this bastard was planning to do from here on, but he wasn't going to waste his time plotting things anymore. He was the only person who was willing to help him get his painting back in the first place. That fact alone made him very happy. Furthermore, he had no choice but to trust him in the current situation. Fine. You, I choose you. I'll be your exclusive subordinate. Take my kidney, my gallbladder, take everything, you bastard. Ju Hian started to smile wickedly at that response. Punk. You should have said that from the start. Took you long enough to listen. That was how Yu Jeha became a restoration slave, no, no, once again became a member of Ju Hian's tomb raiding team. Ju Hian activated an artifact at the same time. Chapter, 46. The artifact that Ju Hian had activated was the Silver Axe. The Silver Axe that had returned to its original appearance roared in excitement that it would rip everything up. Human, hand over a woman. Hand over a woman. I don't need men. That was what it was saying in words Ju Hian could not understand, but Ju Hian just channeled a lot of dominance into it. Shut up and work. Silver Axe. Once the dominance was channeled into it, Chairman Quan's suit instantly turned into rags and the artifact in his hand was destroyed and sent flying. Ju Hian's speed at using artifacts was extremely quick. Ugh. Of course, he had not ended up naked even though his clothes had turned to rags. Achilles's armor that Chairman Quan was wearing, to be more specific, the black long johns were still there. Well, it looked more like a skin-tight pair of tights more than long johns. 
That was why Yu Jeha made a comment as he looked. Damn it, my eyes are rotting. Chairman Quan started to shout at the same time. Get him. What the hell are you doing? Get that bastard. The guards who had been taken down by Ju Hian started to block the exit. Ju Hian started to scoff as he saw them move. Egu, did I go too easy on them because they were civilians? Oh well. I won't kill you guys because we are not in a tomb. Ju Hian casually took out Shakespeare's pen. Yu Jeha turned pale as he watched Ju Hian. He could not help but grab between his legs in reflex. Is this bastard perhaps? And lo and behold. Ju Hian who was moving the fountain pen around gave them something that was even worse than death. The guards aiming for Seo Ju Hian and Yu Jeha will suffer in pain as if they were right about to die. Flash. The guards who were the best that money could buy screamed and fell to the ground while holding the spot between their legs. Egu, Egu. Oh, ow, son of A. This was a terrible pain. Ju Hian laughed with satisfaction after seeing that the path was clear. Perfect, it's clear now. Cruel bastard. Ju Hian made sure to take care of Yu Jeha regardless of what he was saying. Slave number one. Hurry up and get up. Otherwise I am leaving without you. Yu Jeha's eyes turned wide at that comment. W, what? Slave number one. Ah, uh, my mistake. Subordinate number one. The escape wasn't difficult. The guards had been down long ago and Yu Jeha just had to chase after Ju Hian and get on a cab. Yu Jeha who had escaped to a restaurant caught his breath as he asked a question. Hey you. I have a question. Ju Hian started to frown as if he didn't like his tone. You. Are you going to call your employer, you, like that? What's wrong? You're three years younger than me. You still want me to call you President Nim or something? Yu Jeha grumbled as he opened the menu. He said he'll buy me a meal to celebrate my hiring but he's acting all pompous calling himself the employer for a cheap meal. However, Yu Jeha's face stiffened after looking at the menu. It was because the prices for the meat on the menu went beyond his wildest imaginations. It could not be helped. A fist-sized steak is one million one. FCK, did they cover the meat with gold or something? It was not just that. The wines were all 100 million won or higher and the cake for dessert cost hundreds of thousands of won for a single slice. I, impossible. He had touched some money recently from the scams he pulled, but it was not too long ago that Yu Jeha had to beg for a hamburger because he couldn't even pay his rent. It was no wonder these prices were so shocking. The teary Yu Jeha could not help but ask this question. S, sir, you're not going to order these and then make a run for it by saying you need to go to the restroom or something, right? Am I you? Yu Jeha cried internally after hearing Ju Hian scoff. It was because he knew about Ju Hian's intentions. How much work is this bastard planning to slam on me? That was indeed the case. Nobody was nice for no reason Yu Jeha knew there was a reason Ju Hian was feeding him this expensive meal. That was why Yu Jeha looked toward Ju Hian with despair. I'm um, sir. In terms of the workload. Ju Hian chuckled after seeing his title change almost instantly. Don't worry, I will make sure you have a set time to come and leave work. I'm someone who believes that employees need their free time. So eat whatever you want. Yu Jeha sighed in relief and started to smile brightly. Please let me know whatever you need. I will do anything. Ju Hian just smiled wickedly at him. Punk, that's more like it. Ju Hian was indeed planning on paying him handsomely and give him set hours and free time. However your work hours end when you are finished with your work. As for free time restoration itself is free time for you. That was indeed the case. Ju Hian was an evil employer who believed that artists' free time was drawing and a restorer's free time was restoring artifacts. So I'll let you touch artifacts all you want until you grow tired of it. Most importantly, Yu Jeha did not have a divine grade restoration skill right now. That was why his only choice was to quickly help him grow. The only way to get used to restoration was to restore as many artifacts as possible. So eat a ton while you can. 
Ju Hian smiled wickedly while looking at Yu Jeha who was happily looking through the menu. People really were not nice for no reason. Yu Jeha then took a destroyed necklace out of his pocket and asked. Ah, by the way, this thing. What does this artifact do? Ah, uh, that? It's nothing much. Ju Hian chuckled as he showed him the mobile news on his phone. TKBM Embezzlement of Corporate Funds Chairman Quan Tae Jun Secret Mistress Chairman Quan Tae Jun Sugar Baby Chairman Quan Tae Jun Sexually Assaults an Office Employee. Nothing much. Chairman Quan who was being impacted by Marie Antoinette's artifact was about to faint in shock. First CEO Ju Hian and now Yu Jeha. Edward and Jean Richard who were watching the live internet news were laughing. Edward. Is this really that artifact's power? The first to speak was Jean Richard. He was a bald French man with a gentle smile. He was the artist who was respected as the father of modern art, a politician, and a famous broadcaster. He had flown from Yale in the U.S. East Coast to L.A. because of Ujeha. The informer and artifact dealer Edward responded to him. You said that Jeha had something that looked like a necklace. Chairman Kwan started to frown. Yes. It was a silver necklace I saw at the auction house. I didn't buy it because I didn't get much of a feel from it. Then I should be right. It should be Marie Antoinette's necklace. I remember hearing that it was sold at the Midas auction this time. It looks like that CEO Juhian bastard handed Jeha that item. Chairman Kwan sighed in response. For that artifact to have such abilities why had he not realized it back then? Marie Antoinette's necklace that Yu Jeha activated was a disaster-type artifact that spreads malicious rumors. It was an artifact that placed false charges on a person. The reason such ability came to be was simple. Marie Antoinette's diamond necklace incident. Supposedly, the Queen of France tried to buy this extravagant highest-class diamond necklace when the rest of France was suffering. The truth was that the queen was falsely charged. Without any regard for the truth, the queen became an icon of extravagance because of it, and that incident made the citizens angry that the malicious rumor about the queen had spread. That was the reason the necklace had such an ability. Creates rumors to cut down a despised subject's reputation. The only catch was that the person had to be visible to the user. Ju Hian who had tailed Yu Jeha had appeared as soon as he felt the artifact being used. It was great proof that Yu Jeha was angry at Chairman Kwan. In some ways, it was as if Yu Jeha had summoned Ju Hian. Well, it was a gift if the plan was to make Chairman Kwan suffer. It was also a wicked bait to prevent Yu Jeha from having any second thoughts. Any smart person would not want to serve a chairman with such rumors. In the end, Yu Jeha had cut his own connections with Chairman Kwan because of Ju Hian, but who could he blame? He could only blame himself for using the artifact. Richard started to console Chairman Kwan. It'll be revealed soon enough that they are all rumors. You'll take a bit of hit though. Rather, Richard was more concerned about Yu Jeha and CEO Ju Hian. I guess I really should have killed that Yu Jeha bastard. And then, CEO Ju Hian who took such a bastard and I need to get rid of him and that CEO Ju Hian bastard before they give us any more headaches. Chairman Kwan would suffer a bit but it didn't matter. Those bastards won't be able to use artifacts once Pandora is completed anyway. Even talented bastards would be no more than regular people if they could not use artifacts. Anyway, don't worry. I'll take care of that retard you Jeha so you don't need to worry about that. Ah, uh, and I will restore your artifacts for you. Is that possible? What about work for Pandora? It's fine. As for the restoration, I'll do it for you if you bring me a restoration artifact. Do you think I can't do something that that retard Yu Jeha can do? He was confident that he could do it better than Yu Jeha. Probably. Wow, sir, you're so thorough. Working for that bastard seems terrible because of Queen Marie's artifact. You don't want to work for a chairman who is being accused of having a secret mistress. Ho ho. Yu Jeha started to laugh. Was he wrong to think that he was playing on top of this man's palm? Ju Hian then continued to speak. Anyway, now that you work for me, Jean Richard will probably become Chairman Kwan's restorer. Yu Jeha almost spit out the mojito he had been drinking. H, hold on. What did you say? 
Ju Hien who was eating dessert nonchalantly responded. He was someone who knew about Chairman Kwan and Richard's relationship. That was how he knew that Chairman Kwan would reject whatever Yu Jeha asked for. Why? Because Jean Richard is an invaluable partner for Chairman Kwan. Even if he pretended to accept Yu Jeha's request, he would not have wanted to do anything to get on Richard's nerves. Anyway, Richard will be Chairman Kwan's restorer so keep that in mind. Of course, he had not been a restorer in the past as Yu Jeha was Chairman Kwan's restorer. He was curious how the future would change. However, Yu Jeha's eyes shook for a moment. Yu Jeha seemed to be a bit afraid as he had been trampled on by Jean Richard once already. However, he convinced himself internally. No. Things are different now. He would definitely take Jean Richard down and retrieve his painting. That was why he decided to work with Ju Hien. Ju Hien who read his gaze smiled and started to cheer him up. Don't worry. That bastard Richard is someone I need to take care of as well. Richard is a thorn in my eyes as well. Why? Reasons. Mainly because of the business those bastards are planning. That bastard's Pandora plan was the problem. In short, that business would only allow people close to them to use artifacts. It was naturally something Ju Hien needed to avoid. Richard who was a central figure for that business was naturally a thorn in his eyes. Yu Jeha asked a question since Richard was brought up. Um, sir, how do you plan on taking on Richard? He's at a different level. Ju Hien got to the point now that Yu Jeha took the bait. It's simple. You just need to satisfy someone. You just need to do as I tell you to do. Well, that person will definitely be helpful. Who is this person? It's about time they showed up. Ju Hien who checked the time looked toward the door. And lo and behold, there was a woman heading over with a smile on her face. However, Yu Jeha turned pale after seeing her. It was because there was no way he didn't know who she was. Because I, Irene Holton. That woman was the younger sister of George Holton, the man he scammed for a large sum of money. The family that he had to fake his own death to run away from. Yu Jeha who knew what he had done turned away in reflex. I need to run away. He was probably dead meat if he was caught by that family. However, Ju Hien grabbed Yu Jeha who tried to run away and smiled wickedly. I thought you wanted to get your painting back. Damn it. Chapter, 47. Damn it, why did it have to? Yu Jeha almost instantly regretted deciding to work for Ju Hien. It made sense since this was Irene Holton. He was already on the run from that household, so just what? Yu Jeha who became anxious could not help himself as he started to shout and spit. Hey! I mean, President Nim. How are you, I mean, sir, how are you connected to the Holton household? He was so shocked that he could not speak properly. However, Ju Hien just snorted while looking at Irene. How do I know her? That woman chased me down. What? Why would that woman who is not lacking anything? Why would she want a thug like you? Yu Jeha who could not say that out loud could only sigh. Technically, what Yu Jeha could not understand was not a lie. She chased him down saying she wanted to get rid of her curse. Ju Hien's strong arm did not let go of Yu Jeha's collar as he needed Jeha to do just that. Yu Jeha who could not run away because he was much weaker than Ju Hien could only go crazy. The fact that Irene was there meant that they might know that he was alive. That was why Yu Jeha's ass was on fire as he thought about George Holton, the person he scammed. Damn it, that man might hire a hitman to kill me if he finds out. He would not show such a reaction if the Holton household was a regular wealthy household. But what kind of family were they? They loved their youngest daughter, Irene Holton so much to the point that they would hire a hitman or use their influence to destroy someone for three generations and follow them to the end of the earth if they harmed her even ever so slightly. It was bound to be exaggerated as it was a rumor, but it was obvious what kind of family they were. He had only considered scamming them because of the power of his artifact. Damn it, I barely managed to create a corpse with the artifact to trick them. That was not the only problem. Yu Jeha suddenly started to get a stomachache as Irene got closer. 
Of course, there were people nearby saying things like, huh. My wallet. But Ju Hien did not care at all. He just calmly continued to think. Yu Jaeha is a future monarch as well so he shouldn't die while being next to the monarch of destitution. Well, any stocks this punk has bought might all sink but he did not care about that. Furthermore, even if artifacts became destroyed, this punk would just restore them. Yu Jaeha started to go wild as Irene got closer. President Nim, let me go. Please let me go. Why should I? Yu Jaeha pinched Ju Hian's hand that was holding him but it was useless as Irene was now right in front of Yu Jaeha. The future monarch of fraud and the monarch of destitution had met. Ju Hian who saw Irene greeted her. You're here. Yes, I came because you said you can get rid of my curse. She seemed extremely happy. Her eyes that curled up like a crescent moon were so beautiful that people couldn't help but fall for her, but Yu Jaeha just saw her as a potential goddess of disaster. However, Yu Jaeha who was flailing suddenly remembered something. No, wait. The person I scammed was George Holton. It wasn't this woman. Although he had scammed her family, he had not seen this woman. If I'm lucky, she might not know who I am. Just like how Asians were bad at telling white people apart, white people thought all Asians looked similar. She might not recognize him. That was why Yu Jaeha shamelessly put his hand forward with high expectations. Ah, nice to meet you. My name is Leonardo Kong. However, this was how Irene responded to him. Ah. That scammer. Damn it. It truly seemed as if it would not be possible to trick her. Yu Jaeha had his head down. He had a terrible stomachache and headache, but he held it in. He could only keep his head down as if he was asking her to let him live. He had a single request. Please keep it a secret with your brother. Ju Hian started to laugh at that request. This stupid idiot. That's why you shouldn't have scammed them. Just how much did you scam them for? Seventy million dollars eighty billion won. It was a lot of money. Then you should be fine if you return the money you took. Yu Jaeha clenched his eyes. I wouldn't be doing this if I had any of that money left. Ju Hian scoffed at Jaeha who could not respond. He could bet all of his money on the fact that Jaeha probably lost it all while gambling. How much do you have left? Ju Hian started to laugh as if Jaeha was a good boy. Fifty billion. Oh, you still have a lot more than I expected. No, fifty million won. As I expected. This wonderful subordinate of his had lived up to his expectations. He just didn't know what kind of magic turned eighty billion to fifty million won. One it's understandable. This punk has no luck with gambling. Yu Jaeha sniffled without being able to raise his head. Please don't kill me. The future monarch of fraud was kneeling in front of the monarch of destitution with his head down. That was so funny Ju Hian was laughing internally. But Irene smiled bitterly while looking at Yu Jaeha. Irene had heard what was going on from Ju Hian. She had also heard that Yu Jaeha would help her get rid of her curse. That was why Irene had no plans on harming Yu Jaeha. It was bad that he scammed her brother, but she could consider $80 billion as payment for getting rid of her curse. He also looks like he's become Mr. Ju Hian's employee now. He might be trustworthy now. Her brother George Holton would probably let things go if he helped her get rid of her curse as well. That was how hard he had been trying to get rid of his younger sister's curse. Of course, he would probably chase after Yu Jaeha to blow his head off right now if he knew that he was alive. That was why Irene was about to tell him to raise his head. Um. However, Ju Hian stopped her at that moment. Ju Hian raised his finger to his mouth to tell her to be quiet as Irene looked toward him in confusion. He knew what she was going to say. I'm sure she's going to say she'll forgive him because he'll help her with her curse. But Ju Hian thought this was a great whip to educate Yu Jaeha. Jaeha wasn't that much of a sincere person, so Ju Hian had no way of knowing whether he would work efficiently even if he put him to work. Jaeha was someone who might slack off so much to the point of taking over a year to restore a single artifact even if Ju Hian imprisoned him and forced him to work. Irene was a great whip. That was why Ju Hian whispered something to Irene. 
Irene nodded her head in agreement and started to speak to Ujeha. Um, Mr. Ujeha, you probably would not be safe if I told my brother about this. Egu, yes I know. I know very well. Mr. Ujeha, I will keep the fact that you are alive a secret from my brother. In return. I, in return. You have to agree to my request. A request. Irene looked toward Juhian and continued to speak. This sir is my important business partner. There's something I commissioned him to do, and he needs his artifacts restored quickly to take care of my request. She was saying don't slack off and quickly restore the artifacts. I will give you three days for the ten artifacts. E, excuse me. Three days for ten artifacts. Is she crazy? This was not possible. Artifact restoration took a lot of time. It took a lot of finesse. Buildings such as the Sungniman took years to restore. Of course, artifact restoration could not be compared to buildings and each artifact was different, but it still took at least a week to restore an artifact even if he gave it everything he had. But she was giving him three days for all ten artifacts. It was like asking him to develop an MMORPG game in three days. Yu Jaiha teared up and started to beg to Juhian. President Nim. Three days is not possible. I need at least one week per each one. Then was he asking for around two months for ten of them? Juhian scoffed at his comments. Fine, I'll go easy on you. One week for all ten of them. I can't give you any longer than that. Yu Jaiha clenched his eyes shut. I told you I need at least a week per artifact, not a week for ten. Damn it, I said I need a week per artifact. Furthermore, the President Nim. Captain instead of President. Captain. He didn't know why Juhian wanted to be addressed that way, but Yu Jaiha started to speak again. Anyway, the artifacts the Captain Nim brought are all artifacts on the brink of destruction. It might even take a few weeks for each one. Yu Jaiha started to pound his chest as if he was about to die from frustration. He could only sigh as he could not say that this was why experts like him could not speak to lay people like them. This is why the people who know nothing are the problem. Excuse me. Captain Nim. I understand you might not know much about the restoration work, but ten in one week really is not possible. Who doesn't know about restoration? Zhu Hian had the ancient art, physics, and chemistry knowledge required for restoration. That was how he had used the restore ability given by his archaeologist's artifact to restore artifacts in the past. My knowledge of artifact restoration is a level above yours. You idiot. One week is plenty to restore ten artifacts. Yu Jaiha whose pride was hurt glared at Zhu Hian. Your artifact restoration knowledge is a level above mine. Unfortunately, that was the truth. Yu Jaiha was extremely talented, but he was still just a baby chick. That was why it was obvious that Zhu Hian who had a lot of knowledge about artifacts would be a level higher. However, Yu Jaiha who had no way of knowing that pounded his chest as if he was eating dry food without any water. Egu, anybody can say that they can restore artifacts. Yu Jaiha then shouted in anger. Then Captain Nim. Please explain the process of restoration to me if you are that confident. Let me at least hear how much you know. Juhian started to smile wickedly in response. Fine, however, if you agree that I know more about it than you do, I will decrease the time from one week to one day. You have no complaints, right? Yu Jaiha flinched at the possibility of falling into hell if he lost but confidently accepted the condition. There was no way a layperson could explain it in a way that he would accept. Yes sir. Whatever you want. Juhian smiled at his response. Yu Jaiha, you witty bastard. You're dead. Chapter, 48 Yu Jaiha was thinking that Juhian was showing off when he didn't know anything. I am the pro. You think you are the pro? No matter how quickly you do it, it's at least a week per artifact, at least a week. Yu Jaiha smirked while having that thought. It was because he was confident that there were no restorers who were at his level right now. That was why he said the following. All right, why don't you give a demonstration while telling us how it is done? Anybody can say they are an artist, the top student, 
a maestro, or have an annual salary of 100 million won. I won't believe it unless I see it with my own eyes. Look at this punk, he wants a demonstration. Yu Jeha then provoked him further. But I'll bet my salary that you can't do it. Ju Hian chuckled at that statement. He's going to bet his salary. He shouldn't say something like that without thinking. Really? Yes sir. Captain Nim, if you can show me a demonstration, I will restore those ten artifacts in a single day. I also won't receive a salary. But if I win. If you win. I will take a month to restore every artifact as you have touched my pride as a restorer. I want to relax as I work. Is that so? Juhian smirked for some reason. However, Yu Jeha who did not know the meaning of the smirk was sneering internally. He seems to have some artifact restoration knowledge, but I will burn my own hand if he can really do it. I'll burn my own damn hand. One restoration artifacts are not things that just anybody can handle. However he heard an unexpected response. A demonstration? Sure, why not? Yu Jeha questioned his ears before his expression stiffened. Excuse me? You, um, what did you say? Ju Hian just motioned with his finger as if telling him to hand something over. I'll show you. Hand over your restoration artifact. Yu Jeha could not help but become anxious. W, wait, what did you say? I told you to hand it over. Is he being serious? Yu Jeha finally realized that something was wrong. About 30 minutes later this really makes no sense. Yu Jeha could not help but have cold sweats all over his body. He couldn't help it because this situation was unbelievable. That was indeed the case. It was crazy. His employer must be crazy. What the hell, something like that is possible. Flash. Another bright light flashed outside the cafe. In a narrow alley with nobody else Ju Hian who had asked Irene for a moment and walked out of the cafe to restore an artifact was moving his hand quickly. Ju Hian had a brush pen you would find at a stationary store in his hand, and his hand was moving so quickly as if he was a video being fast forwarded. Thanks to that, Yu Jeha could not help but stand there with his jaw dropped. Even a restorer would not be able to restore such a critical injury so cleanly in such a short amount of time. However, Ju Hian just calmly started to speak without paying any regards to what Yu Jeha was thinking. There. Isn't it easy? That statement made Yu Jeha almost say the F word. This bastard, easy my ass. Ju Hian looked like a certain mister who was holding a brush, smiling, and saying, wasn't that easy? Ju Hian picked up the brush from the Josian Palace Flower Garden, B-grade consumable artifact and started restoring an artifact as if he was used to it. But what the hell? Ah, this is driving me nuts, I bet my salary on it. Yu Jeha was crying internally. He had considered himself to be talented in restoration, but he just looked like someone who was trying to teach a fish how to swim. Furthermore, Ju Hian's knowledge of restoration that he was spewing out as if he was a professor, was not at an amateur's level. Shit, how is this possible? It was as if he was an elementary school student while Ju Hian was a university professor. That was why Yu Jeha was going crazy as he felt shame, but also admiration for Ju Hian's sense of restoration. Damn it, I might fall for him. No, this bastard is definitely a bad bastard. Although Ju Hian was a shitty superior, Yu Jeha the genius artist could not do anything about it. He could not help but respect someone who could create wonderful works of art. That was why Yu Jeha shouted in pain. Damn it, Captain Nim. You're even more talented at it than I am. Why are you making me restore artifacts? Why? Because it's annoying. Yu Jeha almost fainted after hearing that. However, Ju Hian just chuckled while looking at Yu Jeha. It took a lot of focus and energy to use restoration artifacts. That wasn't the only thing. Also, my using restoration artifacts would destroy them too quickly. They can't tolerate me. It'll be like using something that could be used 100 times just once and throwing it away. R, really? That was the truth. Restoration artifacts focused on affinity, but Ju Hian's affinity was so low that the restoration artifact would try to commit self-harm. 
Honestly speaking, he had forced the brush to activate just now to the point that the artifact tried to reject Ju Hian and its durability significantly went down. In simple terms, they were not a good fit for him. But most importantly my skills are only at the level of regular restorers. He was just someone who could patch things up. That's how restoration worked. Restoring artifacts was similar to restoring ancient cultural items where the restorer patched things up to look normal. There was no way to completely restore something that was damaged. Of course, that meant that it was impossible to restore something that was broken into pieces or to return the durability to normal. However, Yu Jeha was different. Don't look so down. You have a much higher level of fit than I do. Fit was something that existed separately from dominance and affinity. Basically, fit represented natural talent to handle specific artifacts based on heritage or abilities. For example, a talented mathematician would have a high chance of handling math-related artifacts very well. Other examples would be musicians with music-based artifacts or Jews with historical Jewish artifacts. And this punk has a scary level of fit with art-type artifacts. Normally, a person would be able to pull out close to 100% of an artifact's abilities with their dominance or affinity and there was no way to get past that. However, the people with extremely high levels of fit were able to pull out the hidden abilities that went above 100%. It was very rare, but Yu Jeha was able to do such a thing with art-type artifacts. He was able to completely revive artifacts with artifact revival and artifact regression. He was able to revive an artifact that was destroyed into pieces back to normal and regress an artifact that had lost all durability back to full durability. It could be considered an upgraded restoration skill. That is why you are going to become an elite restorer that nobody can match in a little bit. You little punk. Ju Hian started to laugh wickedly as he was the only one to know that fact. Your annual salary. You said you will give it up, right? Damn it. He then smiled without caring for Yu Jeha's grumbling as he had this unmatched elite working for him for free. Alright, get started right away since I showed you a demonstration. You have exactly 24 hours from right now. Finish restoring all 10 artifacts. Yu Jeha wanted to jump up and down in anger after hearing that. Why does this person have to even be good at restoring artifacts? Why? It was because he had to hand over all good artifacts to Chairman Quan and had to develop his other abilities if he wanted to survive. The restore skill that he had used for emergency situations inside tombs had increased Ju Hian's rate of survival. Shut up and get started. Ah, uh, by the way, I will decrease the time to 10 hours if you fail this time. No eating or leaving work until you are done. Hey! You devil! Ju Hian chuckled. Grow quickly if you hate it that much, Yu Jeha. It might sound like an impossible task, but Ju Hian knew this punk's extremely competitive nature. He was the type to get fired up when he saw someone who was better than him at something. And lo and behold, Yu Jeha who had seen Ju Hian's abilities was burning up with the thought of catching up to Ju Hian as quickly as possible. It was at that moment. The dexterity skill has risen to C rank. Quickly learn how to use any item artifact even if it is your first time using it. Speed of consumption decreases significantly when using consumable artifacts. Quite skillful in artifact maintenance and restoration. Chances of stealing artifacts from other people increases significantly. You have received the title of a superhuman restoration expert and have learned about the existence of a new skill. Tomb Restoration F rank skill has been awakened. Ju Hian was shocked after seeing the sudden messages. Ha! Huh. He was fine with the sudden messages by now. The crow seemed to awaken some weird things here and there. Not regular restoration but tomb restoration. What kind of skill is this? Ju Hian only had an artifact restoration skill in the past. However, he seemed to have gotten a special restoration skill different than the artifact restoration skill he used in the past. Ju Hian decided to test out the skill. This skill cannot be used unless you are inside a tomb or near a tomb. Ju Hian decided to ignore it for now since he would eventually learn about its uses. Now that he taught this punk Yu Jeha a lesson, he needed to handle Irene now. And lo and behold, Irene was looking at Ju Hian with anticipation when he returned to the cafe. Ju Hian smiled while looking at her. 
It's time to remove your curse now. Irene's face brightened after hearing his comment. Finally. Do you think it is possible? Possible my ass. The person who responded was not Ju Hian but Yu Jaeha who was next to him. He plopped down on the ground and started to sniffle. Egu. I'm done for. I hope the earth blows up tomorrow. Ju Hian just chuckled while looking at Yu Jaeha. He probably thought that he was ruined because he would need to work without pay for the rest of his life. Don't worry. I'll add your salary on to the bonuses. Of course, Ju Hian had no plans on telling him about this right now. Why? Yu Jaeha was fired up for something else because he had lost his salary. Damn it, if it is like this, I might as well work hard at restoring artifacts to earn a lot of bonuses. The unreliable restorer had become extremely inspired. Ju Hian who was easily handling his subordinate like this started to speak. You don't need to worry about this punk. It's time for us to have our conversation. Okay. How will you do it? It was fine until that point. Irene was feeling positive as well. The method is simple. However. However. You have to give them to me. Your time and your body. He said something that might give people the wrong idea as if it was nothing. Chapter, 49 Lo and behold, Irene's heart was beating wildly in shock. T, time and body. There was no way it was what she was thinking, right? However, Ju Hian made them even more shocked. I won't make it hurt so you don't need to worry about that. Please come to the office tell I rented for now. E, excuse me. Yu Jaeha who was listening gasped and looked toward him. Ju Hian had told him about breaking Irene's curse, but time and body. Even if Irene's face and body was top-notch, how dare he use the curse as an excuse. Damn this bastard, I'm jealous but this is terrible. There were still things you could do and things you shouldn't do. Hey no, Captain Nim. Please chat with me for a moment. However, Ju Hian said something unexpected as Yu Jaeha tried to grab his collar. Please come to my office tell and get some training with this punk on how to use artifacts. Huh. Excuse me. Both of their eyes turned wide after hearing that comment. The first to speak was the confused Yu Jaeha. T, training. Ju Hian then glared at Yu Jaeha in confusion. Yes. It'll be a bit loud because of some talkative farmers, but it shouldn't matter. Ah. Both them smiled in embarrassment after realizing they had the wrong idea. Captain Nim, please don't use words that are easy to misunderstand. Irene cautiously asked at that moment. Um, but when you say how to artifacts the reason I cause disasters is because of that artifact, right? Ju Hian nodded his head and Irene who wanted to move as far away from the artifact as possible quickly asked. Then wouldn't the issue be resolved if the artifact is destroyed? Even without learning how to use it as long as it is destroyed. However, Ju Hian sternly cut her off. That's not possible. It would be easy if Irene's artifact was an item. He could destroy it as she mentioned or take it from her. However, it was a parasitic artifact. I don't like beating around the bush so I will tell it to you straight. There is no way to remove a parasitic artifact until you die. So, please just accept the artifact. Is there no way to destroy it? Maybe if you gouge it out. I'm happy to do so if you are fine losing your arm and your breast. Irene who realized what he meant started to shake. I, is there really no other way? Her fear was understandable. However, Ju Hian was cold. There is no other way. However, please don't worry. If you learn how to use it like I tell you to do, your family will be able to get out of the disaster. Only my family. Only them for now. The artifact is too strong. You'll be able to prevent it from harming anybody in about five years. Anyway, I will take responsibility and train you properly as I have received an item worth $500 million from you. However, Irene's face turned dark. Um, then can you just destroy the artifact? Ju he inside as if he was annoyed at this repeated question. Please feel free to do so if you want to live handicapped for the rest of your life. I won't do it. Then is there no way to coerce the artifact to leave on its own? 
I saw the news yesterday there seemed to be people who could talk to artifacts and force them out. Juhian started to frown. She seemed to have seen something weird on TV. However, did she really have nothing to compare him to that she was comparing him to such quacks and scammers? I've been telling you since earlier that there is no other way. I guess you don't trust me at all. Excuse me? N, no, that's not the case. It's just that the method you told me is not something I. Ju Hien who was thinking about something got up without any hesitation. I understand. Excuse me? Ah, uh, then. Please go look for those people if you don't like my methods. I will make sure to return the five hundred million dollars within a week. Uh, excuse me? Irene was shocked. However, Ju Hien who had made up his mind was firm. There was no reason for them to be together if she didn't like his methods. Ju Hien did need a financial backer, but he wasn't going to suck up to a monopolizer he despised in the past to hang on to her. I hope you are able to find someone who can give you a better solution than I could. Irene became anxious and teared up a bit after seeing Ju Hien stand up and start to leave the cafe. Ah, hold on. To be honest, Ju Hien was the only person she could trust. The shocked Yu Jeha started to shout. Hey, you terrible Captain Nim. That's too cruel. How can you think about breaking the contract without even negotiating it at all? Ju Hien looked at both Jeha and Irene in disbelief. Negotiate? I gave her the best option I had for her but she didn't like it so I'm helping her out by destroying the contract. What's wrong with that? T, that is true, but. Then don't hold me back. Irene who was holding back her tears desperately started to shout as Ju Hien tried to leave him, I'm sorry if I upset you. I'm really sorry. That wasn't my intentions at all, it's not that I don't trust you, Mr. Ju Hien. No. I'll just do as you said. Ju Hien who stopped walking smiled as if he had never been upset from the start. Good. That's it. I was waiting for those words. Honestly speaking, Ju Hien had no intentions of leaving. However, it would be difficult for him to train her in the future if she had useless thoughts on her mind. Irene needs to follow me in order for the entire Holton household to follow me. That was why he had scared her a bit, but she had become extremely apologetic. Ju Hien then acted as if he was doing something he didn't want to do as he asked. There is something I can't understand. Why are you so focused on getting rid of the artifact? Why? I just don't like the fact that it'll be harming people for at least five more years even if I learn how to use it. I thought that it would be better to harm myself a bit to destroy the artifact right now than to do that. It was a reasonable question, but Ju Hien was shocked at the unexpected response. It could not be helped. Is this really that monarch of destitution? She was too different. She was too different than the monarch of destitution he knew. Was this really the monarch of destitution who didn't care if innocent people committed suicide and caused the IMF and the fall of the world economy without any scruples? He had felt that something had been off since the beginning, but it looked like something must have happened in the past prior to her becoming the monarch of destitution. Mm, I do remember seeing an article about how her family had died, was that perhaps the reason she changed so much in the future? In that case, Ju Hien who came up with a good idea responded in a refreshing manner. I understand. It might be a bit difficult, but let's look for a way to make it take less than five years. E excuse me. Really? Irene looked toward Ju Hien in shock. She was even more shocked because Ju Hien had seemed like he would not look back once he made his mind up about something. That was why her tears subconsciously started to flow out from feeling relieved. That was how desperate she had been. Thank you very much. And I'm really sorry. I feel like I was being stubborn when you were telling me a method to get rid of it, Mr. Ju Hien. I will do my best to learn whatever you teach me. I can even come to work every day. He was planning on helping her even if she didn't do that, but he smiled thinking that she was commendable. After dealing with terrible artifact users in the past, he didn't mind an idiot like this. He would teach Irene. He would get the Holton household to owe him one in the process. Let's teach her properly to turn the entire Holton household to be on my side. You could not avoid the power of the wealthy in this capitalistic society. That was why he said the following. 
However, your artifact is extremely strong. In order to completely submit such an artifact, we need to find an artifact that is its natural enemy or something else. Like what? That is why I need to take another look at your tattoo before we look for it. I couldn't see it clearly through the picture. Irene tried to take her clothes off right away. Then I will show it to you right now. The two males became shocked after seeing her covered white skin start to reveal itself. Ujeha's eyes turned wide after thinking that he saw her slender waistline. Her waistline, then above that is her BR. However, Juhian quickly grabbed Irene's thin arms and stopped her. I understand you are desperate, but we are outside. Please show it to me in private later. Oh my, ah uh, yes. I'm sorry. Irene who snapped back to her senses was extremely embarrassed, but Yu Jeha who was next to Ju Hien started to frown. Why did he have to do something so useless? However, Ju Hien didn't care about Yu Jeha's reaction as he started to think while looking at Irene. The monarch of destitution's artifact was probably the hand of Midas. That was the most likely case. It would bring the user significant amount of wealth but cause others misfortune. In the end, that might cause misfortune for the user as well. Even King Midas who had helped out Dionysus and earned the touch of gold had gained a lot of wealth but faced misfortune in the end when he turned his own daughter into gold. In the end, the myth says that the curse left him when he washed his body in the river Pactolus and filled the river with nuggets of gold. Because of that it should be resolved if we go into the tomb of the Midas artifact and she goes into the river. However, this was the first issue. Since the Midas artifact is out in the world, that tomb should have already collapsed. However, this wasn't too bad. There might still be traces of it that allowed them to still go inside. However, there was a second issue. Even I don't remember where the Midas tomb is located that was indeed the case. The tomb with the hand of Midas had not appeared in the world. That was why he had no way of knowing where it was located. Of course, there was still a way to find it. I need a map-type artifact in a situation like this, he needed a map-type artifact such as Columbus or Magellan's sailing log, the Hereford Mappa Mundi, or the Donald Gangni Yakti Gukto Ji Du. One but Juhian could only sigh. Why? It was because of the bastards who had the map-type artifacts. The monarch of war should have monopolized all of them by now. That was indeed the case. The monarch of war. She was one of the four emperors who were difficult for Juhian to handle. These four who were called the Four Pillars were the ones with the strongest factions among the fifteen monarchs. Chairman Quan was able to join that top four thanks to Juhian's help. The monarch of war was the face of the U.S. government, a female general in the U.S. army who was extremely hostile and strong. Furthermore, the strategic U.S. had used those map-type artifacts during this time to figure out where tombs would appear. They used them to secretly enter into tombs without other nations knowing about it. That was why he would need to run into the monarch of war in order to get a map-type artifact. This was something that even Juhian who was arrogant around Chairman Quan did not want to do. Damn it. I barely killed her in the past. Honestly speaking, it had been about 90% luck and quick thinking that allowed Juhian to kill that woman in the past. But to deal with that woman again I'd rather go back to the army ten times. He was planning on meeting her as late as possible. What should I do? Is there no easy way to swindle a map-type artifact? It happened as Ju Hien was deep in thought. Ah! What happened to my stocks? FCK, they all drastically fell. Yu Jeha who was checking his stocks was foaming at the mouth. That stupid idiot. He seemed to have only just confirmed the monarch of destitution's curse. He did seem to deserve his title as a monarch candidate as he just got a stomachache and didn't faint, but Yu Jeha was about to go crazy after seeing his fallen stocks. Ju Hien looked toward him and chuckled. Sorry, but I'm the only one who can avoid the monarch of destitution's disaster, you little punk. Yu Jeha was screaming when someone called him on his phone. But the problem came after that. Ha! Huh. Ju Hien. You want to talk to the Captain Im? An unexpected individual had contacted Ju Hien. Chapter, 50. Ah, uh, the Captain Im is here, but. Yu Jeha peeked toward Ju Hien. 
Irene and Ju Hian were both looking at Yu Jeha. Who was the person on the phone? However, Yu Jeha seemed to hesitate as he asked the person a question. Why are you looking for the Captain Nim? You don't have another evil plot, do you? The person was probably not Korean as he was speaking in English. It was at that moment. Ju Hian who had no patience had reached his hand out toward Yu Jeha. Hand it over. Ha. Huh. But. They're looking for me. It's fine, so hand it over. Yu Jeha had no choice but to hand Ju Hian the phone. Ju Hian greeted the person in English as soon as he received the phone. I heard you are looking for me. Who are you? The silent person on the other side of the phone started to laugh. He seemed to have been frustrated as he wanted to chat with Ju Hian, but Yu Jeha that bastard was not handing the phone over. Are you CEO Ju Hian? The old man's voice sounded cheery but not insincere. Ju Hian who was familiar with the voice was able to instantly tell who it was. Oh, it's old man Edward. He was certain. This was the wealthy former weapon merchant from the past who roamed around the monopolizers and traded artifacts and information. Edward was shocked after hearing Ju Hian's response. You know who I am. I know who you are very well. You're the old bastard who would do anything for money. This punk. Ju Hian smirked without caring whether the old man was shocked or not. I didn't expect this bastard to come looking for me first. It saves me the trouble of tracking him down. Edward was an investor who would be called the monarch of wealth in the future and a major player in controlling the economy of the artifact market. He was also a middleman who connected artifact users with each other, so he was planning on searching for him anyway. There were no better informants than him when it came to information about other artifact user situations and artifacts. However naive idiots will just be this bastard's prey. Edward definitely came with important information, but there were many users who would see blood after being swept up by the information. It was similar to how someone would lose a lot of money if they bit onto the wrong investing information. That was why he was the subject of anger for some people but you can make a shit ton of money if you use Edward properly. Although idiots would fall victim to him, Ju Hian was confident that he could suck out benefits without ending up as Edward's prey. He knew a lot about Edward because Edward was one of Chairman Kwan's important partners. He's probably working with Chairman Kwan and Richard anyway. But such a person was contacting Ju Hian. It's obvious why he's calling. Ju Hian knew the bastard's plan all too well, but decided to feign ignorance. I already know about you so there is no need for an introduction. So, get to the point and tell me why you were looking for me. Ho! Edward who was thinking that Ju Hian's tone was arrogant started to laugh. I guess this will go quickly if you know about it. It's nothing much. I was just curious because I heard that you were the expert who was making Chairman Quan eat shit. As I expected. Ju Hian started to smile. Edward knew how to smell where he could make money and was extremely observant. He was the type to reach out early to these trees that he thought might make it big. He also brought those trees a job that could make them a lot of money. And lo and behold. What do you say, how about we have lunch together? However, Ju Hian just sneered at Edward. Hey Edward. We're both busy people. So, stop with the nonsense and get to the point. What? Didn't you call me to hire me for a job? For example, asking if I want to go into a tomb that China has put a reward to clear. Edward could not help but be shocked. It was because Ju Hian said exactly what he had been planning. Ju Hian smiled toward Edward who could not respond. What is it? Am I wrong? No, Ju Hian was correct. Edward who had learned about Ju Hian wanted him to do a job for him. That job did indeed have to do with the tomb that China put a reward to clear. Multiple nations throughout the world had been looking for artifact users ever since the Great Tomb appearance, and China was one country that was offering 10 for anybody who worked with their nation's excavation team. Of course, the artifact users would only get the money and the artifact would belong to China. Edward who had been hesitant after hearing Ju Hian's tone had no choice but to agree. Yes. It looks like you already know about the Chinese tomb. Then first you want me to join that excavation team as a mercenary? Ha! Huh. 
Uh. Uh, yes. And then, after you join them swindle the tomb's artifact without the Chinese realizing it and sell it to you? Damn it. Is this punk reading my mind or something? The shocked Edward asked in response. Did you hear something from Chairman Kwan or Jaha? No. But you are that type of person. Edward then started to laugh before answering in a refreshing manner as if he was admitting defeat. Yes. You are right, you are totally right. I thought there was nobody else who could do this job after hearing that you stole Chairman Kwan's artifacts. You were said to be like a ghost. I want you to use your genius level talents to swindle the Chinese tomb's artifact. I'll give you a good price for it. The pay? Twenty million dollars. Twenty million dollars was about twenty billion won. It wasn't a low amount of pay. That was why Edward continued in confidence as he thought it was a good offer as well. You won't be able to get a good price if you swindle it and try to sell it on the black market because China will put a bounty out for it. But you can get their pay for joining the excavation team and then sell it without any issues to me to get paid again. Edward laughed while stating that something like this would be as easy as taking a walk for Ju Hian. I also have thoughts about considering you as a VIP client if you accept this commission. It was a decent commission. It was also something that was not very difficult for Ju Hian. It looks like you are looking down on me quite a bit. You're going to buy it from me for $20 million and then sell it to the US for $100 million. W, what? I know that middlemen tend to inflate the price when they resell items, but that's just too much. Even the sly Edward lost his cool at that statement. He had not told anybody about it, but Ju Hian knew who he would sell it to and even the exact price. W, what is going on? That was indeed the case. Everything Ju Hian said was correct. Edward was dealing with the US government and had received this commission from the future monarch of war. The US had always been wary of China, but they had especially not liked how China had tried to create an excavation team since the Great Tomb appearance. Why? China rejected joining Pandora. The Pandora business was something that different governments and wealthy individuals were stealthily creating in secret. That business would not allow regular people to use artifacts and would push for shared ownership of artifacts among its members. In simple terms, all tombs and artifacts would be restricted to those members. China chose to create their own excavation team and earn artifacts as they had a vast amount of land where tombs could appear. Either way, that was why the monarch of war was using Edward here and there to get information on the Chinese tombs and commission him to swindle those artifacts. But that was something only Edward knew about. It was not something Ju Hian should know. But how? Thanks to that, the extremely shocked Edward asked back, wondering if information had leaked. Who told you such things? Ju Hian snorted in disdain. Are you ignoring me? Hey Edward. I don't care who you deal with or how much you sell it for. But if you have any thoughts about dealing with me in the future, you need to remember something. I'm not a worker and you suck money out of, I am your partner. Got it? I can bring the artifacts you want out of the tombs and are skilled enough to grow your business. You know what I mean, right? Of course he did. Don't do anything to get on his nerves, don't hide anything and share all information. Edward started to laugh out loud. He had called because he wondered what kind of bastard managed to suppress Chairman Kwan and steal Yu Jaha away. It's not just luck, he's not an easy opponent. He couldn't tell for sure because he couldn't see Ju Hian's face, but he could understand why Chairman Kwan struggled so much. He might even have a prophetic artifact or a sensing artifact that can discover information about people. I can't use him as I please. He was trying to use Ju Hian as he seemed skilled like Yu Jaha. I haven't seen his face yet, but this bastard might be someone who becomes bigger than Chairman Kwan or any other artifact users. Edward who had a great sense in investing became extremely interested in Ju Hian. That was why he said the following. I understand, I will share the information I know. The US has a female general named Kira Clark who is collecting map-type artifacts. I suspect that the artifact in the Chinese tomb is a map-type artifact. A map-type? Ju Hian started to smile at the unexpected news. 
Zhu Hian had not known the details as the information about Chinese tombs during this time in the past were quite restricted. But for it to be a map-type artifact the timing is great. Anyway, the US wants it because they are wary of China, but also because they are collecting map-type artifacts. Zhu Hian then chuckled. Fine, I will join the Chinese excavation team and swindle the artifact. Really? However, I'll sell it to you for $80 million. You're going to sell it for $100 million anyway. You. Raising it from $20 million to $80 million like that, I won't profit at all. $30 million. Stop acting like I'm robbing you. Fine, I'll go easy on you. $70 million. Damn it, $40 million. $60 million for doing the dangerous role. I won't take any less than that. What do you mean, the dangerous role? What is it? Think about it. The Chinese bastards might execute me if I get caught swindling the artifact. Are you not going to pay me extra when you are sending me to do a dangerous crime? Edward thought for a moment before groaning and agreeing. He needed to maintain the US's trust and this job and needed to succeed for that to happen. I understand. I pray for your success. Good, see you in a week. The call ended once he responded. Irene and Yujeha who had been listening were blankly staring at him. They had heard everything as Edward's voice was quite loud. That was why the two of them were looking at Zhu Hian as if he was crazy. There's no way China would sit still and let you take the artifact. That's right. They will send you to the firing squad if you get caught. Zhu Hian just smiled instead of responding. We need the map-type artifact from that tomb to cure your curse anyway. Yu Jeha who realized something shouted in shock. Ha! Huh. Hold on. You're going to cure Irene's curse with it. But didn't you agree to sell that artifact to Edward? I thought Edward was going to sell it to the US. That is the case, but slave, I mean subordinate number one. Let me confirm something before that. Excuse me. Does Edward know that you can make fake artifacts? Uh no. He only knows about counterfeiting regular items I thought it'd get complicated if he knew I could make counterfeit artifacts. Well, Ujeha actually kept it a secret to scam Edward in the future. However, Juhian's eyes sparkled after hearing that. Really? He doesn't know. Ujeha started to sweat as he got an ominous feeling after seeing that gaze. You, um, Captain Nim. There's no way, right? Zhu Hian was smiling. Keep your hands loose. You'll struggle a bit to make a fake. T, this bastard. Chapter, 51. T, this bastard. Yu Jeha was at a loss for words after hearing Zhu Hian saying such things so casually. So, this Captain Bastard is saying we should sell a fake. He wants to do that to the US government. There was only one thing Yu Jeha could say right now. Captain Nim, are you crazy? His true thoughts may have flowed out at that moment. However, Zhu Hian just laughed at Yu Jeha's expression. What's wrong? I'm being serious. Yu Jeha really wanted to cry after hearing Zhu Hian's response. It's even more of an issue if you are being serious. You're trying to scam a country. A country? What nonsense are you spewing? The one being tricked is Edward. Yu Jeha screamed in response. Either way, the one who will get blamed is me. Captain Nim, do it alone if you want to do that. I don't want to be marked by the US. Do you want to end up on the Interpol's wanted list? Zhu Hian pointed at Irene and smiled. Why are you freaking out like that? The Interpol's wanted list. I can easily see you on that if I tell George Holton that you are still alive. Damn it. Was he really going to be like this? Okay, honestly speaking, let's say that we can trick Edward. But what about after he sells the artifact to the US? Ah, uh, I'm going crazy here. Yu Jeha was in pain thinking that his life became even more difficult since he met Zhu Hian, but he decided not to worry about it for now. Why? Even if he needed to forge a fake artifact, that was for later. It was only possible if Zhu Hian managed to swindle the artifact. That's why, I hope you get caught by the Chinese. 
He accidentally said that out loud and ended up getting punched by Ju Hian. Wow, we're really here. Yu Jae-ha pulled at his hair while looking at the site in front of him. The hot sunlight of the afternoon, the buildings and the cities that looked like an ant's nest people speaking Cantonese all around them the view of Macau from the observation deck of the 58-story tower was amazing. That was indeed the case. They were currently in China, well, in Macau, located in the outskirts of Hong Kong. I'm going to go crazy. They had gotten on a plane as soon as that call with Edward ended. Forget their belongings, eating, or anything, they left LA right away. Macau didn't even require a visa, so they just got on the flight with their passports. That wasn't the only thing. They were told that there were only first-class tickets left at such notice, and this young 23 years old handed his credit card over as if it was nothing. Well, he realized this guy wasn't normal as soon as he saw him rent a 10 billion one penthouse as if it was nothing, but that punk is treating taking a plane as if it was taking a bus. Planes are not public transportation. Yu Jae-ha got to ride first class for the first time in his life, but he felt like dying the whole time. He was dragged here and had to restore artifacts on the plane and could not get any sleep because Ju Hian told him they'll be heading right into a tomb. I still have seven left, damn it. Right after the restoration would come the reproduction. Damn it, when the hell can I get some sleep? However, Ju Hian who was energetic as he got some sleep was talking to someone on the phone. Excuse me? You're in Macau. Right now? Yes. He was talking to the Oh Sung Woo group who were farming, no, raising the herb of eternal youth in the LA penthouse. Wait, what do you mean? We thought you might have had a satisfying night with Miss Irene since you never came back all night. We thought you might come back today but what did you say, sir? You went to Macau with you Jeha. Is there an issue? Quite a lot of issues. The Oh Sung Woo group on the other side of the call were in despair as they stood there with dirty hands. They had prepared a lot of food and were waiting for Ju Hian to come back with Irene. Egu. We were so happy here thinking that we were getting a sister-in-law. They had thought that he was using these artifact teaching lessons as an excuse to go on a date with Irene since Ju Hian said he would bring her home. That was why they thought they were being smart by creating this event for them, but what the hell. Hyung Nim, you're too mean. We were growing this sexual enhancer for you with everything we had because you said Miss Irene was coming. That's right. It has a flower and is even about to grow a fruit now. We worked so hard to make it for you. But you don't even come home and you are in Macau with another dude instead of being with sister-in-law. They sounded as if they were ready to cry. Ju Hian scoffed after hearing that the herb of eternal youth already had a flower. It was already blooming when it hasn't even been that long. These punks, I guess they did give it their best. However but they seem to have the wrong idea about its effects. The herb of eternal youth was a healing artifact and not a sexual enhancer. Well, I guess it is just a sexual enhancer if I don't awaken it with another item. Either way, you really must have worked hard for it to already have a flower. You did a good job, a very good job. Yes sir. We did it thinking we were meeting our sister-in-law. Ugh. Good. I will make you guys my slaw no, no, subordinate number two from now on. Sob, thank you very much. But when will sister-in-law come back Ju Hian was in disbelief after hearing them get upset again. But you guys seem to have the wrong idea by calling her sister-in-law since earlier. Wrong idea? Do you know how rare a chance like this is for someone like you who has been single your whole life, Hyung Nim? We know what it is like to be forever alone. I'm sure you don't know what to do when you are alone with a woman. That was why we were going to thoroughly support you. Hearing that made Ju Hian press his temples as if he was tired. These punks, I told them I had a girlfriend before. Enough, just keep doing a good job growing that tree. If Chairman Kwan calls, tell him to get lost because you won't hand the phone to me. Ugh, I understand sir. The call then ended. Looks like there's no issues with the herb of eternal youth for now. Ju Hian looked out at the scenery once the call ended. It was very odd seeing a young man wearing sunglasses and posing like a model eating cotton candy, but it didn't matter. The important thing right now was his prey that had gobbled up Macau. 
it looks like two-thirds of Macau has ended up in the tomb appearance. Macau was only as big as Seoul's Zhangyogu. However, having two-thirds of that turning into a tomb meant it was a large tomb. The only places left safe in Macau was Macau Tower that Juhian was on right now and the nearby streets. People were calling it a disaster and shaking in fear, but Juhian just scoffed. It makes sense for China to step forward for such a large tomb. They said they were gathering an excavation team, but how would it go? Most of them wouldn't know how to even use artifacts properly right now. It's fine to go into most tombs alone, but Zhu Hien took another look at the tomb with the binoculars on the observation deck just in case. He couldn't see too well because of the fog, but it was an above-ground tomb. He could see the tomb glyphs around the tomb once he focused the binoculars some more. Zhu Hien deciphered them for a bit before starting to smirk. As expected, the entrance conditions make it so you cannot enter alone. He had expected it, but they needed at least 30 people. Then I guess I have no choice but to join the Chinese excavation team at least to get inside. After that was Zhu Hien's specialty. Zhu Hien who finished checking the tomb out was about to move to participate in the excavation team when something odd started to happen. Ack. My item. Huh. What happened to my artifact? People started screaming at the tower's observation deck. Hmm. What's going on? Zhu Hien looked around after noticing this odd situation. Many people had gathered on this observation deck to enter the tomb. There were civilians who were here for the reward while there were some rare artifact users as well. The number of people with weaker artifacts had exponentially increased since the Great Tomb appearance. Thanks to that, there were many people who wanted to enter the Macau tomb. But some of those people were flailing around and checking their belongings. The number started at 1, then 2 until it quickly reached 10 people. W, what is going on? An ominous feeling struck Zhu Hien's group as well. It started with Yu Jeha. Ha! Huh. My artifact! Yu Jeha quickly started to rummage through his pocket after feeling the aura of his artifact suddenly disappear. However, he couldn't find his restoration artifact no matter how hard he looked. What is it? N, no. My artifact. Yu Jeha's face turned pale. His artifact had instantly disappeared. Next was Zhu Hien's turn. A shocking artifact's aura had brushed past Zhu Hien's side. However, Zhu Hien could feel the hand headed toward him unlike this other's. This is. A message popped up as if to confirm Zhu Hien's thoughts. A cunning thief's artifact is aiming for your artifact. Ha, as I expected. He had lost three items it had really happened in an instant. However, Yu Jeha immediately started to ask with an anxious expression as if to fan the flame. Captain Nim. Did you not lose anything? Zhu Hien just snorted unlike the desperate Yu Jeha. Someone stole the artifacts. Yu Jeha gasped after hearing Zhu Hien's casual response. How can you be so calm? Isn't that really bad? And lo and behold. People who had their artifacts stolen were grumbling everywhere. Someone who knew numerous artifact users would gather here seemed to have planned this theft. Thanks to that, the tower turned into chaos. You bastard. Who is it? Did you take it? Hand it over. You bastard. Cantonese, English, Portuguese, multiple languages mixed together to cause chaos on the observation deck. However, Zhu Hien didn't care about the shouting and quietly focused before heading in a direction. Captain Nim. Shu. Just follow me. Zhu Hien waded through the people before unexpectedly heading to the restroom. However, Yu Jeha gasped after seeing where Zhu Hien was trying to go. H, hold on. That's the women's restroom. Yu Jeha asked Zhu Hien who had no issues walking into the women's restroom if he was crazy but he still followed him. They then heard two voices in the empty restroom. M, 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 P, H. M, M, P, H. It was the mischievous voice of an artifact and a person in pain. Yu Jeha became shocked while listening to the voices. Someone must be inside, right? Why don't you take a look? The moment they opened the door to the stall with the voices, they saw something unexpected. 
There was a young blonde child tied up and dangling in the air with the artifacts she stole on the floor. Amun Ph. The child flailed around as if telling the rope to let her go as she glared at Ju Hian. On the other hand, the rope was going, Master, over here, over here. It was dancing around as if asking Ju Hian to praise it. Anyway, Yu Jeha had no choice but to get anxious after seeing this child. Who is this child? Ju Hian scoffed after hearing the question. Who else could it be? An artifact thief sent by the US government. Chapter 52 What? A thief sent by the US government? Yu Jeha looked at the little girl in disbelief. This little kid did seem to be the thief. This was 100% the case as his restoration artifact was among the artifacts on the floor. But the US government? She looks like an elementary student. Yu Jeha looked toward the child in shock. Does the US government employ children like her as well? Yu Jeha then shouted for a different reason after seeing the little girl start to flail. Captain Nim. Everything else is fine but please release her. They might really put us behind bars like this. Well, I guess I don't want to be mistaken as a child abuser. However, the rope who didn't seem to know what they were thinking was still shaking around while seeming to say, Master, I did well right, did I do well? It seemed to be waiting to be praised. Ju Hian gave the rope an order. Put her down for now. The rope sulked after hearing his stern tone but immediately followed the order. The rope still seemed to be saying, Master, did I not do well? Didn't I do a good job? Its body was still twitching in anticipation. However, Ju Hian didn't care whether the rope was waiting for praise or not and approached the child. The child who looked as beautiful as a child actress was glaring at Ju Hian with her blue eyes. MMPH. MMPH. Are you the master of this perverted rope? The child looked ready to rip apart the rope in her mouth with her teeth when Yu Jeha asked a question. What is she saying? Who knows? I'm certain she's not saying that she is hungry though. Ah, that does make sense. Ju Hian then waved his hand and the rope freed the child's mouth. The girl started to shout in American English with a teary voice. Wait until I get out of here. She looked like a calm and elegant girl but her demeanor was quite fierce. Ju Hian chuckled after confirming what she had to say. Enough. Cover her mouth again. You damn MMPH. The child whose mouth was covered again was Vivian Lucy, a 13 years old girl. She was the damn little punk who uses the Medusa artifact. Vivian was one of the US government's affiliated artifact users. As the infamous Medusa artifacts user, she was not someone to be looked down on. And lo and behold. These kind of punks. Her long hair soon started to move as if they were alive, shocking Yu Jeha. Ha. Huh. What the hell, what is up with her hair? It was a chilling sight that he could not understand. He didn't understand what was going on, but it felt like a scene in a horror movie. It was an odd sight as if she was possessed by a ghost that was moving her hair. However, Vivian could not help but scream as her hair started to braid together. Amun Ph. It was because Ju Hian ruthlessly pulled her hair out. Vivian could not help but cry. Mm, what we were, what we were, what are you wanting? Let me go, let me go. What are you doing? It was extremely painful. Vivian was huffing as she looked toward Ju Hian. However, Ju Hian who was holding on to her long hair just scoffed at her. Do you want to die? You really think I'll let you activate your artifact? Yu Jeha and Vivian were shocked for different reasons. When you say artifact, you mean her hair. Just what kind of artifact is it? What artifact is it? Medusa. Yu Jeha cawed like a crow before covering his eyes. It was because even kids knew about the myth regarding turning to stone if you looked into Medusa's eyes. That was why he urgently shouted. Captain Nim. What are you doing? Hurry up and close your eyes. Ju Hian just scoffed at him. You won't turn to stone, you idiot. Excuse me. Yu Jeha peeked toward Ju Hian with one eye as if he was asking if that really was the case. Ju Hian just smiled instead of responding. That was indeed the case. 
Vivian did use Medusa's artifact, but unfortunately, she could not use it very well. Why? There was a simple reason for it. She was too young. Medusa was said to be a beautiful woman with gorgeous hair. She had an affair with Poseidon in Athena's temple and Athena cursed her. That was why this child was too young to fit Medusa's beauty. An adult woman was necessary to properly use Medusa's artifact. However, Vivian was a little kid. That is why this punk's artifact is not very scary. Of course, similar to Medusa's power of turning people into stone, she could make people stiffen up mentally, hardening their thoughts, turning their head into stone idiot, and things of that nature, but she's still just a kid. Vivian soon frowned and tried to use her artifact. If she could not use Medusa's artifact, she would use the artifact for stealing to take this artifact. However who do you think you are trying to steal from? M.M.P.H. Juhian waved an artifact in the air as if he found her pitiful. It looked like a simple doll keychain. However, this was the thief artifact that had looted everywhere in this area. I lost this one too. Juhian was smirking. You're a thousand years too early to steal from a senior in the same field. Juhian pointed a knife at Vivian's neck as she ground her teeth and tried to scream. It was the Egyptian priest's knife. Amun Ph. The child freaked out seeing the cold blue blade touch her neck, but Juhian started to laugh. You see, this bro treats children well but artifact users are the exception. I won't let you off if you have any stupid thoughts. This crazy bastard. Juhian then continued to speak. I'm sure you've never dated at your age and there are a lot of things you've never done yet, so, you don't want to end up as a news article about a body they found, right? Oh my, look at the way he's talking to a child. Yu Jeha who was keeping watch clicked his tongue, but he didn't try to stop him. Looking down on an artifact user because they were old or young would make them suffer. Seeing the scared Vivian nodding her head, Ju Hien told her she was a good girl and freed her mouth. You just need to honestly answer my questions. Got it? Nod nod. First question. Did the US government order you to steal the artifacts? Second question. Did they order you to go into the Chinese tomb? Good. Good girl. Then, the final question. Tell me every artifact the US owns right now. The other questions were fine, but this information was something only the US and their allies knew about it. It was not something she could easily answer because he asked. I already told you, right? I won't go easy on artifact users even if they are children. Ju Hien's gaze turned cold as he smiled. Vivian started to shake because she knew the meaning behind his words. Damn it, I'm really going to be killed by this bastard at this rate. The scared Vivian had no choice but to list the artifacts one by one. She was too young to scheme in such a situation and did not have the mental fortitude to resist against such a demon king. Juhian smiled once he heard the information. She did not seem to be lying as they mostly matched the information he remembered from the past. But there was one difference. The future did change a bit since they have an artifact another bastard is supposed to have there was an artifact that Juhian was looking for that was already in the US government's possession. Yu Jeha who was looking outside urgently shouted at that moment. Captain Nim. Someone is headed toward the restroom. Juhian then started to finish up as if he understood. Good, then how about we wrap things up? That made Vivian scared that she was going to get murdered while Yu Jeha who understood Ju Hien's intentions quickly shouted. Captain Nim, I know you want to take care of things, but that one is not done being restored yet. You have to be gentle with it. I know that, you idiot. Ju Hien clicked his tongue. That was indeed the case. Yu Jeha was talking about the Code of Hammurabi. He knew Ju Hien would use that now. However, the artifact's damage and fatigue levels were so high that it couldn't place a heavy or strong restriction. Artifacts could not perform at 100% when they were damaged and weak. Of course, Ju Hien wasn't planning on putting a serious or large restriction. There is a way since she is a child. Ju Hien activated the code of Hammurabi. A small slate board the size of an iPad appeared in Ju Hien's hand. Vivian's eyes opened wide as she watched. What is that artifact? 
Juhian shook the code of Hammurabi as he threatened her. Do you understand? You'll feel a pain even worse than death if you talk about me or that punk over there. The slate board responded to Juhian's words and flashed. However, nothing seemed to have changed. Of course, Vivian could only shake in fear as she had no idea about the artifact's powers. The only thing she was certain about was that talking about this bastard would cause her pain worse than death. It soon finished and Juhian walked out of the restroom while gently waving at her. But I should compliment you. You did a good job gathering the artifacts for me. You're such a good kid. The shocked Vivian looked around but the artifacts she had stolen were all gone. The rope artifact had wrapped them up as it followed behind Juhian. This made Vivian extremely angry. Damn it, why did he have to steal that? What did you say? Someone stole all of your artifacts. Thomas could not close his jaw as he was shocked to hear Vivian's story. Linda who was next to him was shocked as well. Yes, this was the same Linda Walker who had been in the Gold Axe Silver Axe tomb with Abe. Thomas was Linda's colleague from the CIA who was in charge of the artifact excavation. He had received orders to go into Macau's tomb and steal the artifact. That was why he had sent Vivian to steal the artifacts. But someone took all those artifacts as well as her thief's artifact. What the hell were you doing? You little punk. Linda calmed Thomas down. Nothing will pop up even if you shout, Thomas. She asked Vivian a question. Do you really remember nothing about the person? Yeah, nothing. Vivian said that before biting down on her lips. She told them the truth about having the artifact stolen, but she had said that she didn't remember the thieves' faces because she had fainted right away. She did not dare to tell them even if she wanted to, because she didn't know what Juhian had done with the artifact. Vivian knew how the artifact-wielding world worked. Do you understand? The only reason you are able to keep your life even though you can't even use the Medusa artifact properly is because of General Kira's grace. You would have been killed long ago for us to take the artifact out of your head if it wasn't for her. Thomas, don't talk like that. However, Vivian clenched her eyes shut. Vivian believed that the monarch of war, no, that Kira had helped her out. That was why she had volunteered to steal the artifacts. That was why Vivian made up her mind. I really have to tell them about those people. Wait. However, the moment she tried to say something. A pain worse than death struck Vivian. Ah, ah ha ha ha. Ah ha, ah ha ha ha. A tickling sensation that was more painful than death had struck Vivian. Ah ha, ah ha 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 ha. Thomas turned red and started to shout thinking that Vivian who was rolling on the floor laughing was treating him like an idiot. Hey! Vivian! Do you think this is funny? No, T, that's not, ahaha, 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 ahaha. He said it was a pain worse than death. Damn it, that bastard. However, Juhian was leisurely headed toward the Chinese tomb without caring about whether she was going crazy or not. Chapter 53. It's a total jackpot. There's a total of 20 artifacts, 20. Juhian chuckled while looking at Yujeha who was jumping up and down in joy. He seemed to be the one who was more excited even though he was saying how can an adult steal from a child, just moments ago. Juhian asked him a question. What about the artifacts conditions? Yujeha seemed to think the artifacts were extremely cute as he smiled widely and responded. I think they used it roughly so they require some restoration but they are still usable. Good. Then we can just leave a few of them and sell the rest to Edward. Eek, you're going to sell them. All of them except one or two are useless. That made you Jeha look at Juhian in shock. It made sense since Juhian had only glanced at the artifacts that the rope had gathered and brought over. That was why you Jeha gave him a suspicious look. Captain Nim, it's not that I'm suspicious or anything, but can you really say that? Say what? You haven't even used them. How can you say that they are useless? I don't need to use such crap to know. Huh, what? What did he just say? Ujeha scoffed and picked up an artifact. Then what does this one do? Venus's clam. It bubbles a lot so it is good for doing laundry. Then this one. 
Brother Sweet Potato. Fabulous for chronic constipation. Uh-huh. T, then this one. A Chinese queen's flower petal. It turns an ugly girl into a beautiful girl. This one. The water of youth. One gulp turns you one hour younger and one bottle turns you about five years younger. Then this one. Great for getting rid of bad breath. Damn it. Yu Jeha was truly shocked. He didn't know if this man was making things up as he went or if he really knew about all these artifacts. He must be an excellent scammer if it was the former and he must be following a monster if it was the latter. However, this was not difficult for Ju Hian to do. He was happy to see these items that he had seen on the artifact trade market in the past. Anyway, I'll get a decent amount of money for them if I sell them to Edward. Yu Jeha gave up on asking Ju Hian and just decided to accept it as is. It was true that Ju Hian's knowledge of artifacts was high anyway. However is it really going to be okay? It's fine that we took the artifacts but that child was hired by the US government. Isn't this like provoking the US? Ju Hian chuckled after hearing what this punk had to say. Who knows? To be precise, it was self-defense. They were the ones who stole my artifacts first. In addition. In addition. They're just CIA chumps anyway. Ju Hian started to laugh. That was indeed the case. Ju Hian had led the greatest and most infamous tomb raiding team among the numerous excavation teams the CIA had realized the dangers Ju Hian's tomb raiding team brought and had tried many things to disband his team. However, it was all for naught. Ju Hian had been someone with the skills to be a monarch but could not extend his wings because Chairman Quan was using his weakness against him. It was impossible for something like the CIA to destroy his tomb raiding team. Although the monarch of war is a bit cumbersome. The monarch of war was a strong individual who caused all sorts of currency wars, wars of religion, biological warfare, and war crimes with her artifacts. One thing he was certain about was that she, as well as Chairman Quan and the other monopolizers, caused the inequalities and the discord in the world. Furthermore, the artifacts in the world were screaming in joy once World War II started as well. It gave the artifacts strength and they spread the terrible diseases to destroy human population and rule over humans. The monopolizers then used that to their advantage. That was how many people ended up being sacrificed. This was the case for people Ju Hian loved as well. Damn bastards. But it was impossible to get rid of all artifacts and their users. He had no plans on doing that either. That was why he needed to take the position of overlord and prevent the artifacts from trying to rule over humans. It was great to take a monarch position but it was meaningless if humanity was destroyed. Then those people should be able to live happy lives this time too. His blood relatives who should be living in the US right now without knowing about Ju Hian's existence as well as Inspector Kim's family who had looked after him since he was young. Ju Hian was planning on finding his own happiness outside of Chairman Quan's oppression, but he wanted his loved ones and benefactors to be happy as well. This war of artifacts was for that. Artifacts were useful tools that could be disastrous or prosperous depending on how they were used. It was at that moment. Ah, uh, Captain Nim. Over there. Yu Jeha pointed to an area covered in fog. The fog made it difficult to see even though it was the middle of the day. I think we're almost there. That was indeed the case. They were currently on a large ship with other people and headed toward Taipa Island. Why? The Macau tomb's entrance was on this island. They would usually be able to get here by bridge, but the tomb appearance made it so that they could only cross by ship. The tomb appearance turned this entire area into water. In simple terms, this above-ground tomb was not reachable by land. The land was split and only ships could cross through there. China had tried to enter a few times but had gathered this excavation team because everybody they sent in went missing. Yu Jeha who had been looking at the island through binoculars started to shout. Wow, jackpot. Look at all the snakes and insects on the ground. They look like monsters from a RPG game. Will we die if they bite us? Ju Hian chuckled as he listened to him. I guess this map type artifact is related to the age of discovery. That was why the tomb looked like this. 
The conditions to go in was to have sixty ships go in at once. But he was certain about one thing. It's not Columbus. That was supposedly in the monarch of war's hands already. A message popped up as they entered the area around the entrance. Warning. Creatures with critical poison are threatening you and the others. The artifact is trying to mess with you. The ship started to shake and the people on board started to scream. Boom. The people quickly fell into chaos as this was happening out on the water where they could not see anything. Ack. What, what is going on? Ah. A snake flew on board. Shoot it. Shoot it to death. Tang tang. Ah. My gun exploded. The ship instantly turned into pandemonium. This seemed to be the case not just on Juhian's ship but all other ships as well. Kill them. Kill them now. The people who were bitten by the white snakes lost consciousness and fell or became violent and started to attack the others. Ah. There were armed Chinese soldiers inside the ship as well. Thanks to that, guns were fired and led to some terrible accidents in the process. That danger soon reached Ju Hian's group as well. Hand over your artifacts. Ah. Yu Jeha was the first to scream. Ju Hian kicked the soldier as if he was annoyed as Yu Jeha was being threatened with a knife. A white snake soon slid out of the fallen soldier's body. Yu Jeha screamed again as the snake came toward him. Captain Nim. Snake, a snake. Don't be such a wuss. Ju Hian stomped the snake to death before starting to frown. This damn artifact. The artifact's attacks were not done with that. Die, die, all human bastards must die. Kill all human bastards. Kakik. Tang tang tang. Ships full of hypnotized idiots had appeared. These ships consisted 80% of Chinese soldiers who came here to excavate the tomb. Yu Jeha screamed and started to tear up as the soldiers on the ship started to fire. Weapons usually could not be used in tombs but this artifact bastard seemed to have created this situation on purpose. Yu Jeha then started to shout. Damn it, Captain Nim. Damn it. There were so many of them probably because they were Chinese. Ju Hian had no choice but to reach his hand out. Number 1. Hand over the pen. Excuse me. That's still being restored. Shut up and hand it over. Yes sir. Ju Hian who received Shakespeare's pen from Yu Jeha started to write on the ship's floor. The idiots being controlled by the artifact will all lament their stupidity and slam their heads. A bright light flashed and they started to hear people banging their heads from all around them. Surprisingly, they did not hear anybody's voice anymore. All of them had fainted. Ju Hian clicked his tongue after realizing what happened. They were all idiots. You're not bad, human bastard. Ju Hian turned his head after suddenly hearing a voice inside the fog while Yu Jeha became shocked again. Damn it, what the hell is it now? This might have been his first time hearing the voice of an artifact as he had never been inside a tomb before. The artifact continued to speak. But a mere human shut up. How dare a damn item try to talk. The owner of the tomb seemed to be shocked to hear that. He enjoyed seeing how most human bastards freaked out and screamed about how he was a ghost. But Ju Hian was not interested in what an artifact had to say. He had never been interested in what they had to say. You truly seem like the bastard the crow bastard is trying to choose. This time was an exception. Crow. Ju Hian started to frown. Ju Hian had been curious about the story of the crow he heard during the Great Tomb appearance. It would be a lie to say he was not interested at all in the crow since that bastard was the one to bring him back in time and give him the Tomb Raider abilities. He was just trying not to care about it. However, there was something else that caught Ju Hian's attention. How does he know about the crow even though he isn't one of the Egyptian artifacts from that time? The Egyptian artifact trio that had caused the great tomb appearance had personally seen the crow. However, the bastard in this tomb should not have any relations to that incident. That was why the concerned Ju Hian asked a question. Hey, how do you know about the crow? However, the artifact just laughed as if he had been waiting for this. Human. 
You finally seem interested in what I have to say. Shut up and answer my question. Ha! Huh. Rumors about you have already spread among the artifacts. Rumors about me have spread? That's right. We all heard that Mother of King Crow has started to move and that you are the bastard that the crow has chosen. Oh ho! Something seemed to have happened among the artifacts since the great tomb appearance. Lo and behold, that artifact continued to laugh as he shouted. That is why all artifacts are looking for you. You'll soon be gobbled up by artifacts. Why don't you beg for your life with that cute face of yours, you arrogant human? The artifact laughed out loud as if telling Juhian to be afraid, but forget being afraid, Juhian was smiling. And? What? Tell me more. W, what? Is there a problem? The artifact was flabbergasted. W, wait, why are you not afraid? They're looking for you. They're trying to eat you. They want to get rid of potential danger early Yu Jeha who had been listening sighed. He didn't know what the crow was or what not, but what this artifact was saying was isn't it saying the artifacts are going to come rolling over to you on their own? Yes. Exactly that. The artifact was so shocked as if someone had smacked it from behind that it could not keep talking. It might be something that none of them had considered. That wasn't all. Juhian started to chuckle. Are you all idiots? You should stealthily attack me if you are aiming for me, not blab about your plans like that. I know, right? They're so nice to warn you in advance. The artifact fell into a state of panic and could not say anything. Ju Hien who wouldn't be nice to any artifact started to smile as if it was his turn now. Now then, you artifact with loose lips. There's something else I want you to tell me since you've said so much already. He started to squint as he asked. Tell me the true identity of that crow. Chapter, 54. Tell me the true identity of that crow. That was what Ju Hien asked. Originally, he wasn't planning on having any interest in what the artifacts did. Getting deeply involved with an artifact situation is what makes people get swept up in the chaos. However, it was a bit different now. Other artifacts might be different, but he needed to know about the crow. Even if he put aside the fact that it restored his life for him, artifacts were aiming for him now as well. That was why he asked the question. Who the hell is that bastard? The tomb's owner started to laugh as if he had been waiting for this. Do you think I would tell a stupid human about that? Ah ha ha Think hard about it on your own. Human. Oh. However, the artifact sounded triumphant. It seemed to think that it could finally get revenge on the human that trifled with it. I have nothing to tell a human about the existence of us noble artifacts, ah ha ha. Its laughter sounded so annoying that Ujeha started to cuss while looking at the empty air. Wow, this idiotic bastard that was blabbing on until now is acting like he's the shit. However, unlike the provoked Ujeha, Juhian started to smirk. He was not someone to fall for such cheap provocation. Oh, really? That's disappointing. I thought artifacts were smarter than humans but I guess you can't remember it. What? The artifact became anxious for a moment after hearing that. Human. What did you just say? What's wrong? I thought artifacts were the shit. But you can't even remember what happened in the past. I thought artifacts were things that deserved human respect but I guess not. Juhian sighing as he said that made the artifact anxious. W, what? We are definitely greater than humans. But you can't even remember something from the past. I, I remember it. What are you talking about? You can't tell me because you don't remember. This tomb's owner could not hold back anymore after hearing that provocation. There was only so much he could take from a mere human looking down on artifacts. The artifact shouted in anger. I'll prove it to you since you are saying that. I'll let you know that we are much greater than you humans. Really? Then tell me and I'll admit that artifacts are greater than humans. Really? The artifact seemed to hesitate for a moment before it firmed its resolve. These human bastards won't know what I'm talking about even if I tell them a bit. Then I will tell you. That crow preyed on its fellow artifacts I already know that. Move on. 
The artifact became nervous after hearing Zhu Hian be selective about the information but it soon chose something else to say. Then what about this? That artifact is an artifact with the abilities of a predator. That bastard used to be at the respected divine grade level but it signed a contract with a human bastard and then went crazy and started to eat other artifacts. It signed a contract with a human. Tell me more. Sure. That bastard preyed on its fellow artifacts for a mere human. Oh. For a human. That's right. I don't know if it had a grudge against other artifacts or fell in love with the human it contracted, but anyway, thanks to that, many of our friends forcibly ended up in that human's hands. Even some divine grade seniors. And. We couldn't let it continue so our friends sealed that bastard deep underground. Some of our friends are guarding that bastard and attacking it to keep it from recovering. Zhu Hian thought that this bastard was talkative as he recalled the tomb he died in. According to this bastard, that tomb was the tomb that ferocious evil spirit was sealed in. No wonder it didn't seem like a regular tomb. That ferocious evil spirit and the guards guarding it must be why he couldn't figure out the pattern at all. The snake that gobbled him and his friends up must have been one of the guard artifacts guarding the crow. This is all because that bastard Chairman Quan shoved us in there. Zhu Hian got riled up thinking about that but he calmed himself and asked. There was something he could not understand. But how can you seal such a monster in a tomb? Didn't you say it preyed on divine grade artifacts as well? The artifact proudly shouted as if to show off as Zhu Hian asked to dig some information to see if the crow had any weaknesses. How, you ask? The other artifacts won over the crow's contractor. Won him over. That's right. You human bastards are simple. He happily threw the crow away when they offered him something better. Of course, we killed that human bastard as well after we sealed the crow. Ha ha ha. The artifact laughed loudly saying humans truly were low in class. Anyway, you are a bastard that the crow chose as well. But do you think we would let you contract the crow and let our friends be used again? You will be eaten up by the artifacts like the last human. Alright then, admit that artifacts are greater than humans now that I told you. The artifact shouted as if telling Zhu Hian to keep his promise, but Zhu Hian just started to laugh. Ha ha ha. I see, so that's how it is. The artifact looked baffled seeing Zhu Hian laughing refreshingly like this. It didn't know why this human bastard was laughing. Huh. H, hey, you human bastard. Hurry up and admit that artifacts are great. Be afraid. Did you listen to anything I just said? He shouldn't react like this if he heard correctly. However, Zhu Hian just smiled viciously. Yes, you idiot. I heard you blab very well. So, you're saying I will gain power that even divine grade artifacts fear if I form a contract with that crow bastard? It seemed as if the artifact had helped Zhu Hian realized something different than it had intended. Lo and behold, Zhu Hian started to laugh. And I also know that as long as I don't betray the crow, you guys have no way of handling that artifact. The artifact started to foam at the mouth. D, damn it. It's not like that. This isn't what I intended. The artifact realized that things were not going as it had intended. However, Zhu Hian was laughing as if everything was moving properly. Zhu Hian was the only human who could chat with artifacts after all. Thanks to that, he could determine an artifact's type and personality and easily trick artifacts that were not knowledge-based. So, thanks for the info. Now I want to form a contract with the crow. He was planning on ignoring the artifacts but Zhu Hian now became interested in the crow. On the other hand, the artifact was anxious. It seemed as if it had done something he shouldn't have done. That was why it urgently started to shout. And, no matter what you say, you won't be able to learn about that artifact with the information I told you. No matter how much you want to contract that crow, you don't know what artifact it is or where it is located so how can you form a contract? Zhu Hian's sneer filled the area. No, you told me plenty. That's enough information. What? That was enough. That was indeed the case. It truly was enough. First of all, he knew very well where the crow's tomb was located. As for the crow's identity? 
This bastard had given him all the hints he needed. There are only a few divine grade artifacts that deserve to be called a crow. And based on its predatory behavior the three-legged crow, the bird that is said to prey on dragons. However, there was another possibility based on its ferociousness, ability to gain other abilities transform, and that the crow fell in love with a human. Morrigan, the goddess of destruction. Both were credible options because Juhian had never seen either artifact before. Either way, the reason it was able to use the sun god Ra's power was probably because it ate Ra and absorbed Ra's powers. Regardless of which one it was, it would be quite useful to him because it seemed to have the attribute of a thief. Anyway, thanks for telling me such useful information, you artifact bastard with loose lips. The artifact must have realized its mistake as it fell into a state of panic. But what could it do? It had already made the mistake. It was at that moment. You deplorable bastard. I will represent all artifacts and not let you out of here. Die. Juhian seemed to have provoked it so much that the artifact went berserk. Boom. White water snakes popped out of the water but Juhian just laughed. Why? The way to clear this tomb was probably by finding the hidden artifact map while sailing across. But that stupid artifact went berserk and released its aura. This stupid bastard. He's so nice to tell me his location. Other people might not be able to discover it, but a veteran with Juhian's level of intuition could easily figure out the direction. The rest was easy if he knew where it was located. That was why Juhian smirked and took out the Egyptian priest's knife. Hey number one. There's a motorboat in the back of the ship. Go turn it on. Excuse me? Ah, uh, yes huh? Wait, Captain Nim. Behind you. Behind you. A snake. Who cares? These snakes are nothing as long as you have an artifa. However, it happened as Juhian leisurely swung the priest's knife. Crack. Something unexpected had happened. Ha. Huh. It sounded like a stone breaking. The priest's knife that Juhian confidently swung had broken. Both Juhian and Yujeha flinched as they saw that. The destruction of an artifact. Anybody would be able to tell that the artifact turned into stone. Yujeha who went to find the motorboat screamed after seeing that. Ah. The artifact I restored. He wondered how carelessly Juhian used it to destroy an artifact he restored in half a day, but it wasn't the time to discuss that right now. Captain Nim. Your side. Your side. Juhian clicked his tongue and used a junk hammer to slam the snake's head. Pow! His skills were so efficient and slick that it deserved admiration, but it definitely wasn't as strong as an artifact. The snakes that were killed with one hit now took hundreds of attacks as if he was cracking a coconut to die. That was why Juhian quickly threw the priest's knife to Yujeha. I will turn the boat on. See if you can restore that. W, will we be okay? The snakes climbing onto the ship looked vicious. They were surrounding Yujeha and Juhian without paying any attention to the people who fainted earlier. TSK, I can tell where the artifact is but the situation is now troublesome. He had no artifacts right now he could use to fight. The one he had used a lot had been the Egyptian priest's knife. Shakespeare's pen had a lot of restrictions and it was difficult to use the code of Hammurabi against these snakes as well. Juhian's pupils quickly started to move. Does anybody have any useful battle-type artifacts? Battle-type artifacts, battle-type artifacts. Something happened as Juhian adapted to his circumstances and just did what he could and stomped on the snakes. Everyone on the ships have fainted. He heard some voices through the fog. They should be the last group of people on the ships. They seemed anxious that every ship they passed by was full of unconscious people. They must not have been close enough to hear what the tomb's owner had to say as they found this situation to be odd. However, they noticed Juhian and Yujeha as they passed by their ship. Ha! Huh. There are awake people here. They were moving so slowly that it wasn't difficult to spot them but that wasn't the important thing. Juhian noticed three of the people. Those bastards are. They were none other than the CIA and Vivian. There was Linda whom he had seen with Abe in the past along with Vivian he met in the tower. 
And lo and behold! Ah, that damn thief! Vivian shouted as soon as they made eye contact. Thomas and Linda who were next to her looked confused. Thief! Vivian seemed to have realized her mistake as she covered her mouth. She then shook her head as if it was nothing. However, it was easy for a child's lie to be noticed so the sharp and hostile Thomas instantly realized what was up. Thomas then started to glare. Hey! Vivian! When you say thief, do you mean the bastard who took your artifacts? N, no, no. Not at all. However, Thomas told them to move their ship toward Juhian's and glared at both Juhian and Yujeha. Thomas's gaze became vicious as he observed them. Thomas's sharp eyes were able to tell something about them. They really are artifact users. They have multiple artifacts on them as well. Thomas who realized that shouted with certainty. Vivian. It really were these bastards, wasn't it? The ones who took your artifact. What? N, no, that's not the case. Not the case my ass. Thomas grinded his teeth before taking a weapon out of his long bag. It looked like a pipe at first glance but it was a blade-shaped battle-type artifact. I got you now. You damn thief bastards. However, Juhian was actually smiling as if things were great. His gaze was only on the pipe that Thomas pulled out. He was finding it difficult to go find the artifact because he didn't have any battle-type artifacts. But that seemed like a high-grade battle-type artifact. That was why Juhian started to smile. There's a great item right there. Chapter, 55 A good one showed up right on time. Juhian smiled while focusing on the pipe in Thomas's hand. However, Thomas raised his voice and shouted toward Juhian without caring about what Juhian might be thinking. Hey! Are you the damn thief who stole Vivian's artifacts? Well, it's true that I took them. Juhian chuckled. Thomas approached Juhian as if he was annoyed by that chuckle. He looked different based on the items on his shoulder. Unlike the soldiers who brought useless weapons into the tomb, Thomas had a flashlight, a blade, and a rope, typical excavation equipment. As expected, he has an artifact on him as well. Thomas shouted again at that moment. Hey, don't you understand English? Answer my damn question while I'm asking nicely. You yellow monkey. He was intentionally provoking Juhian. Usually, Juhian would have ignored Thomas. But it was different this time. Hey you. That thing looks nice. What? Thomas was shocked for a moment after hearing Juhian's fluent English, but he scoffed after realizing that Juhian was talking about his pipe. You're able to tell that this is a good item. It is a good item because it has a unique ability no, this isn't important right now you are the thief. Juhian smiled and shamelessly asked at that moment. Why don't you give it to me? W, what? I happen to need that right now. Thomas questioned if he had heard correctly. What did you just say? Are you deaf? Hand it over because I need it. Thomas scoffed in disbelief. Is this bastard crazy? It happened as Linda and Vivian both realized he looked angry and tried to stop him. However, Thomas exploded in anger before they could stop him. I see, you're not a damn thief, you're a highway robber. Thomas activated his pipe and charged toward Juhian. It would be different if Juhian was a civilian, but Juhian was the one who stole Vivian's artifacts. Hand over the artifacts you stole first. A suspicious red makeup appeared on Thomas's face once he activated the pipe and the pipe's surface turned as sharp as a blade. The pipe that now looked as if it could cut someone's arm off aimed for Juhian but Juhian easily dodged it. There was more. He didn't seem to realize that he was in a dangerous situation as he calmly assessed the pipe. Lucky. It looks like an A-grade artifact. This should be completely different than his C-grade knife. This would allow him to easily take the artifact from this tomb and get out. Ju Hien who seemed to have gone crazy at that thought kicked Thomas's chest as his eyes sparkled. Pow! Ugh! Thomas clutched his chest and fell over. His physique and muscles were much smaller than Thomas's, but his attack was vicious. You bastard! Thomas! 
It happened as Thomas properly clenched the sword deciding not to go easy on Juhian for being a civilian. See, Captain Nim. Yu Jeha stopped heading toward the boat and shouted as if he was worried about Ju Hien, but Ju Hien just motioned for him to hurry up and prepare the boat. The sharp Yu Jeha then started to move like a rat while Thomas shouted toward Linda. Linda! What the hell are you doing? Chase him! He's with this bastard! Linda nodded her head and quickly chased after Yu Jeha. Yu Jeha shrieked and ran toward the boat saying he liked a woman chasing her but not like this. Thomas used that moment to run toward Juhian again. I won't go easy on you for being a civilian. You damn thief. Okay then, give it a go. Thomas was an agent who had trained in martial arts. It was only natural that his physique and martial arts skill were different than regular civilians. Using an artifact on top of that made his strength exponentially stronger than normal. And lo and behold, the way Thomas was swinging the sword sounded as if his strength transcended common sense. However there's plenty of bastards like you in tombs. And lo and behold. Crack. Juhian's kick landed right on Thomas's shin and his cheap hands poked Thomas's eyes. Thomas could only groan from the burning pain in his eyes. Why, you bastard. Juhian did not miss that opening, took out the silver axe and struck down toward Thomas. Rip him to shreds. Go Silver Axe. The Silver Axe responded loudly to Juhian's shout. Ruer. You damn human, I told you to hand me some women. It seemed to have a lot of complaints, but it did not matter. A large amount of energy struck Thomas and sent him flying. It was impossible to fully disarm Chairman Quan because of his Achilles' armor, but Thomas did not have such an armor. It was as if he was clothed in newspapers in front of the silver shield. Bang! You, ugh! Thomas became naked after everything he had been wearing was ripped up. Jewelry, outerwear, underwear, and artifacts, anything that could be traded for money and is considered property was destroyed. For some reason, Thomas became extremely anxious and grabbed the spot between his legs at that moment. Juhian didn't care as to why he did that. The sword had ended up in Juhian's hand in the process anyway. Juhian smiled after seeing the pipe in his hand. Valiant Silla Warang's sword received from the King A grade, treasure grade, consumable artifact remaining uses 2594500 it looked like a steel pipe on the outside, but based on the Chinese characters on it, it was Warang's sword as he remembered. It looked like this right now because it was not in its original form. However, based on his spy skill, it didn't seem one of the better known Warang member swords. If it belonged to people like Jim Yu Sin, Sadaham, or Jim Won So, it would definitely be an S grade artifact. Well, it'd be useless since I can't handle S grade artifacts yet. He then heard his talented subordinate's voice with perfect timing Captain Nim. Get on. Oh, what great timing. Boom, a small motorboat was heading toward him and the engine noise started to wake the people on the ship one by one. However, Yu Jeha seemed anxious for some reason. Ju Hien wondered why but it was because Linda was on the boat as well to hinder Yu Jeha who was driving. Ju Hien let out a sigh. That idiot. Linda put a headlock on Yu Jeha while asking where he thinks he's running. Stop now. There are many things I want to ask. Juhian quickly called out the rope. The bracelet on Juhian's wrist flashed before quickly turning into the rope and binding Linda. Ugh. This thing. The rope that was excitedly binding Linda seemed to be saying, Human. Are you going to mess with my hot appa? Are you? It seemed to be baring its fangs as it said that. Juhian tried to leisurely escape the ship and get on the boat. Thomas who was busy covering the spot between his legs started to shout. Hey! Linda! What are you doing? Turn the boat! Now! Linda gasped after getting closer and seeing Thomas. My goodness, why the hell are you doing a strip show? Did you get raped or something? Ah, uh, but the size why? Will you shut the hell up? These bastards are thieves. They are not regular citizens. Stab if him you need to but stop the boat. Stab. Who does he think he is to stab my subordinate? Juhian coldly said something in response. 
I guess I don't need to give you a warning if you can spew such nonsense. You might die because the ship is about to flip over. Juhian jumped off the ship as he said that and the ship started to sink. Boom. It had happened in the blink of an eye. The tomb's owner that was aiming for humans used the snakes to sink the ship. Ah. The people on the ship screamed as they fell into the ocean. Most were trained soldiers so they didn't die that easily, but it was still nonetheless a big disaster for them. Gasp. What the, what the hell is this? Thomas was also a mess from this sudden barrage of water. However, Juhian was able to not get a single drop of water on him. The rope had stretched its body out to become a bar for Juhian to hold to float in the air. People were screaming all around him. There were fish with sharp teeth charging toward the people in the ocean. The fish were charging as if they were craving living human flesh. The people swam toward the lifeboats and urgently shouted. Ah! Get on quickly! Hurry up! Damn it! The tomb's owner seemed to want to drown all humans here. It could be even angrier after being tricked by Juhian, but Juhian did not care. He knew they would not die from just this. Yu Jeha who was driving pointed to his side and asked as Juhian easily landed on to motorboat. What about this woman? Should we return her to the other guy? No, we don't have time for that. Then are you planning on throwing her into the water? Yu Jeha gasped as he asked but Juhian pointed somewhere and gave an order. You just steer over there. You see the tree on top of the land. That is the map type artifact located here. T, that tree. Yes. Juhian then looked toward Linda who was groaning while bound by the rope. Linda was glaring at Juhian to untie her. M, 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 P, H. M, M, P, H. Release me. You pervert. However, Juhian just caressed her body thoroughly and casually stole her artifacts. He then threw her to the back of the boat once he was done with her. He was throwing her as if she was a bag. Anmun Ph. Juhian spoke seriously while Linda was in pain. Stay there quietly unless you want to see blood gushing out of your neck. She was the victim to the rope's perverted nature, but what could she do? This was her fate. Yu Jeha started to chuckle with an expression that seemed shocked at this development. Are you going easy on her because she is a woman? No. Ju Hien then leisurely sat down next to Linda and looked behind him. It's about time they showed up. Boom, there was another motorboat chasing after Ju Hien. An angry Thomas and Vivian were coming for Linda and Ju Hien. Hey, you thieving bastards! Vivian was tightly hugging a pole on the boat as she was afraid that she might fall off the speeding boat while Thomas was wearing a Chinese soldier's uniform. He must have stolen it from someone. The boat fervently followed behind them showing their intentions of catching these thieving bastards. Linda. Just wait a bit. I'll save you. Juhian then smirked as if he had been waiting for his. Time to throw the bait now that the fish are here. Juhian then slung Linda over his shoulder as if she was a bag of rice. Linda gasped and started to turn pale. T, there's no way this bastard is planning to. Juhian then lifted the bound Linda high into the air. Linda could not help but scream. Amun Ph. Amun Ph. Linda flailed above Juhian but Juhian ruthlessly threw Linda off the boat. Take your belonging back. You stupid muscle head. Splash. Amun Ph. L. Linda. T. That crazy bastard. Thomas and Vivian gasped before heading toward where Linda was drowning. How could she not drown when she was thrown overboard while bound like that? An anxious Thomas quickly jumped in and swam toward Linda. Thomas pulled on the rope binding Linda and tried to pull her toward a land mass, but the rope got in his way. This motherfucking rope. Ugh. The rope that was excitedly bothering the two of them slithered back to its master as if it was a water snake after a bit. Thomas quickly gave Linda CPR and she miraculously survived. The revived Linda shouted toward Thomas. Cough, cough. I'm fine so quickly chase after them. TSK. They quickly returned to the motorboat but it was already too late. Juhian's motorboat was already disappearing at the distance. 
Zhu Hien who watched all this from the distance started to chuckle. Well, it's complicated if they die now since they are the monarch of war's lackeys, but I guess they survived. There were things those bastards needed to still do for him. Captain Nim. We're almost there. It's that area over there. Yes, keep steering. I'm going to slash it while we're moving. Huh. Slash it? What are you going to slash? Wait, you're going to slash that thing? The broadleaf tree that seemed to have been here for hundreds of years was as large as most buildings and looked difficult to cut through. How is going to slash that tree? Zhu Hien didn't care whether Yu Jiha gasped or not as he channeled a large amount of dominance into the pipe he stole from Thomas. The shabby pipe flashed before turning into a Wanda Dito from the Silla dynasty. One red marking appeared around Zhu Hien's eyes and the artifact started to screech as Zhu Hien started to pull the sword out. He soon had the entire Wandadito drawn. Here, there is your prey. As the boat passed by the tree, the tree where the map-type artifact was hiding was ruthlessly slashed. Chapter, 56 Bong The large broadleaf tree was split into two along with the Wandadito's fierce screech. The tree was so thick that thirty adults stretching their arms out would not be enough to surround it. It seemed unbelievable that such a tree was split into two by a blade that was only as long as Juhian's forearm, but it was possible because this was an A-grade artifact. The tree that was split along with the screech started to scream. Well, it was not the tree that was screaming. It was the artifact that had been hiding behind the tree that was screaming. You mother of King Human! As a paper-based artifact, the artifact must have been connected to the tree as it was in a lot of pain. How can you be so violent while looking for an item? Zhu Hien just had a twisted smile on his face. Why? Is there a problem? The only rule was that I needed to find you. Even if that is the case. Don't come any closer. Human. I cannot accept this as passing the trial. Normally, you would need to sincerely pray in front of me, but to be so merciless. Pray my ass. Zhu Hien didn't care whether the artifact was grumbling or not as he told Jeha to stop the boat and headed toward the tree. The scared artifact started to shout as Zhu Hien got closer. Egu, you tricked me earlier and now you're trying to rape me. Ho, rape? Zhu Hien pointed the Wandadito at the artifact and snorted. Don't say such things that might cause misunderstandings. I'm not interested in screwing an artifact. Then be more gentle with me, you human bastard. Zhu Hien then started to scoff. This is already being gentle based on my standards. You are a precious artifact I need to use for business reasons. That was the truth. Zhu Hien would forcibly make it submit or teach it a lesson as he did to the Egyptian trio if he was going to use it for himself. Anyway, I met the conditions because I found you. Why don't you be good and become mine? Damn it! you violent human bastard. You just wait. Blocks of wood that were scattered around started to flash. No matter how violent he had been, the artifact seemed to be quietly submitting to Juhian and returning to its original form as Juhian had met the conditions. Yu Jeha let out a sigh of relief. Then will it turn into its artifact form now? However, both Yu Jeha and Juhian's expressions soon changed once the artifact appeared. Why? What appeared in front of them was a parchment map, no, maps. It was fine until there, but this punk. Could you believe it, there was more than one map. Every block of wood that was scattered around had turned into maps. Yu Jeha could only scoff in disbelief. Um. There's no chance there are twenty identical maps right? Of course not. Zhu Hien started to smile viciously. That was indeed the case. This was the artifact messing with them. In simple terms, it was messing with Zhu Hien by telling him to find its true body among these clones. It seemed to be rebelling because it did not want to go with Zhu Hien. The artifact started to laugh as if this was all going according to plan. Now then, find me if you can. I will follow you if you find me but you will need to kneel in front of me and praise my name if you can't. Zhu Hien sighed. I was planning on being nice because I needed to use it for the monarch of destitution situation, but, it was asking for a beating. 
Yu Jeha was about to get off the boat as if there was nothing else they could do about it. I will gather every piece. Why don't we leave with all of them since there are only about twenty of them? No, we can't leave with all of them. The exit will only open if we find the real one and clear the tomb. Then should we appraise them one by one? No. We don't have the time. Then how? There is a way. Excuse me. Ju Hian did something completely beyond anyone's imagination at that moment. Rip. Ju Hian was ruthlessly ripping the different maps on the grounds. Yu Jeha screamed in response. Ah. What are you doing? What am I doing? Ripping things. The slightly annoyed Ju Hian calmly ripped the artifact then ripped another, and another, and another. Rip, rip, rip. Ah. How can he destroy an artifact in front of a restorer? However, the real one did not seem to be there as the fake ones turned into light and disappeared as soon as he ripped them. This was probably how he planned on finding the real one. But Yu Jeha was pulling at his hair as he watched. It was true that this method would leave only one in the end, but Egu. What are you planning to do? What if you destroy the artifact in the process? No idea. Fixing it is your job. What did you say? This punk is treating artifacts like recycled goods because he has a restorer with him. It's true I can restore most of it if it is not completely destroyed, but. That's hard as hell to do even though he was saying that, Ju Hian was starting to get a feel for it. It was hard at first, but he could tell which was real as he picked up one after another. Ju Hian smiled once there were only a few maps left. It's this one. That was why Ju Hian gave his restorer some hope. Don't worry. It looks like you won't need to slave away to fix it. Yu Jeha's face lit up after hearing that comment. Huh. Is it that one? Is that the real artifact? Yes, even I wouldn't handle an artifact that is related to Irene's artifact harsh. But it was at that moment. You damn human bastard who deserves to be cursed for life. You will die a terrible death in the end. I hope you get sick and die. Sick, that word seemed to touch Ju Hian's reverse scale as he started to smile viciously. Like hell I won't handle it harshly. You really do need to make artifacts suffer. At the same time rip. That heart-piercing noise echoed in the air. The artifact felt like dying as its body ripped apart. Both the artifact and Yu Jeha started to cry. The tomb started to shake violently as the artifact was in pain while Yu Jeha gasped and shouted toward Ju Hian. I can't believe it. You really destroyed it. Whatever. Fix it. Two thirds of it is still fine. They even let you trade your dollar bills into new ones as long as half of it is fine. Yu Jeha almost vomited blood after hearing that logic. Are dollar bills and artifacts the same? You motherfucking captain. I really won't let you get away with this. However, Ju Hian was smiling. Maybe he was thinking that things were easy having a talented restorer by his side. It happened at that moment. The artifact that was in pain flashed before it returned to its true artifact appearance. Zheng He's Pearl of the West ship for collecting the treasures of the West Navigation Map A grade, treasure grade consumable artifact remaining use is 2500 it looked like a carpet with a map on it. Zheng He's Map he had expected after seeing the conditions to get inside the tomb, but it really seemed to be the artifact of Zheng He, the man known as the Eastern Columbus. Unlike Columbus who headed out with only three ships, Zheng He was the famous Chinese explorer who led 20 crew members and 60 large ships. Unfortunately, he is not talked about much in history because China halted all oceanic exploration for a while and world history tended to favor the West and drown him out for the European explorers. Either way, Ju Hian was quite curious about this artifact. China had kept it tightly guarded in his past life that even he did not know about its abilities or how to use it. It was able to help China revive in the past so it shouldn't be a simple artifact. I think China used this to locate the western artifacts in the past. Different map type artifacts showed locations of tombs, inheritance, soldiers, lucky and unlucky areas, and even the distribution of beauties and hunks. I'll need to use it to understand what kind of map type artifact this is. He started to hear boats at the distance at that moment. 
Yu Jaha shouted in shock. Are they the Yankee bastards from earlier? No, I think the brothers of the continent are here too. And lo and behold, the CIA and the Chinese soldiers were charging toward Zhu Hian's location on boats. Tens of motorboats cutting through the water looked like a great spectacle, but the situation was different. Yu Jaha started to shake. We'll end up having to hand the artifact over to the Chinese excavation team like this. What do you plan on doing? Zhu Hian shook the remaining clone artifacts and smirked instead of responding. You idiots! The CIA agents flinched after hearing their supervisor's loud voice. That was indeed the case. They were currently being scolded in a hotel nearby the Macau tomb after managing to get out. Honestly speaking, it was not difficult to get out of the tomb. The tomb was cleared as soon as someone got their hands on the artifact and the fog covering Macau Island disappeared. The traffic outside returned to normal as well. Macau regained its peace after the tomb's domination was over, but the problem was forget the tomb disappearing or not, we did not manage to get the important artifact. And lo and behold. We sent the two of you but you came back empty-handed. I, I'm sorry. Thomas and Linda lowered their heads after hearing their supervisor's thundering voice. Morgan, their supervisor, pushed on his temples as if he had a headache. General Kira had high expectations for all of you. We are ashamed. However, there was an unexpected artifact user. That's why you had your artifact stolen. Just who the hell is that unexpected artifact user? Ugh. That. That is a problem too, but do you two have any thoughts in your damn heads to allow China to get their hands on a map type artifact? I'm sorry, sir. It was at that moment. It's fine about the map. Edward said he procured it. They heard a voice from a phone. It was an overbearing young woman's voice. This woman was none other than the monarch of war Kira Clark, the U.S. general who sent the artifact excavation team this time. Her voice was very young but the people listening to her voice knew that her young sounding voice had nothing to do with her real age. Morgan looked confused at the unexpected statement. Um, did you say Edward procured the map? He really managed to procure it. Thomas and Linda shouted in disbelief. I thought China already took it. Apparently Edward's person swiped the artifact before that. We are going to make the deal today. Edward's person, just who? You two should know him very well. I'm sure it's the person who took your artifacts. Thomas and Linda almost foamed at the mouth in response. There's no way it was that Asian guy, right? That punk was Edward's person. Wait, hold on. That punk. He seems to be quite the talented artifact user if he can steal the artifacts from the two of you. I'm quite interested now. Thomas and Linda's jaws dropped after hearing that. Interested? Why him? Regardless of what they were thinking, there was another person who was shaking in fear. It was none other than the restorer, no, the scammer artist who was the core player in this crime. Captain Nim. Is this really going to be okay? Yes. Why wouldn't it? They had given China one of the artifact's clones and had received the monetary reward. That was fine, but the problem was. You're going to give Edward a counterfeit. Am I really going to be okay? You're not going to give me up like a lizard getting rid of its tail, are you? Zhu Hian started to laugh at that question. Zhu Hian had Yu Jaha give Edward Zheng He's map. Of course, it was an identical counterfeit. Yu Jaha had used his skills to create that perfect replica. That was why Yu Jaha could not help but sigh even though he was the one to make the fake in the first place. He wondered if it would really happen, but how could he know Zhu Hian would really do it? Edward and General Kira should be completing their deal right now. What is he thinking? Zhu Hian just responded as if it was nothing. I have a plan so just shut up and follow me. Yu Jaha just decided to let it be and nodded his head. He just looked toward Irene who flew all the way to Macau because she was worried about them with concern. Will you really be okay? Zhu Hian just chuckled. Don't worry. I will keep my promise with you. No, that's not the issue, Captain. Zhu Hian just looked at his phone as if he was waiting for a call. He should be calling around now. 
Edward should call soon. Soon, there was an urgent call from Edward as he predicted. Chapter, 57 He could hear Edward's happy voice as soon as he picked up. You are the best. His voice was so loud that even Yejeha and Irene who were next to him could hear Edward's voice. That was why Juhian sneered as he responded. I guess the deal went well based on your voice. There was no way he would sound so excited if it had not gone well. As expected, Edward shouted with joy. Listen. The US gave $300 million extra. They also agreed to make a large investment in the artifact business I am creating in the Middle East. The president guaranteed it. What? $300 million. Really? That's right. General Kira said this was the best map type artifact she has. She was extremely happy. So, I will pay you extra too. Juhian quietly chuckled after hearing that. These idiots. That's a fake. However, Juhian could not say that so his head was down and his body was shaking. He was trying his best to hold back his laughter. On the other hand, Yujeha's face was slowly turning pale. They had given $300 million extra and will invest in his business for a fake. He said the president got involved as well. Yujeha was getting afraid as the scale was getting larger than he expected. Yujeha thought about Interpol's most wanted list before he tried to take the phone from Juhian with fear. Wouldn't he be safe if he recalled it before it was revealed to be a fake? However, such methods did not work toward his wicked boss. Juhian kicked Yujeha away and responded like this. Old man. Don't forget that you told me you'll pay me extra. You said it yourself. Of course. Just trust me. Egu, you poor old man. That's a fake. Yujeha could only sniffle as he could not say that out loud. I'll bring a nice bottle of alcohol next time. Forget the alcohol, Edward came looking for this scammer with a gun a few days later. Jeha, where is your captain? What the hell did he sell to me? Tell him to get his ass out here. And, no, you see. They were in a hotel in Macau. Edward who came to the location Juhian gave him was running wild. He clearly was a weapons merchant as he looked ready to use the rifle in his hand. Edward exploded once Jeha guided him to Juhian's room. C.O. Juhian. You scammer. His voice was so loud that Yu Jeha gasped and wanted to say, Egu, I did nothing wrong. I just did as I was told. Before running away to hide in the next room with Irene. However, Juhian calmly greeted Edward once the door was opened. Edward, this is our first time meeting face to face. Forget greeting, Edward looked ready to shoot him. However, he could not do so because he was shocked after seeing Juhian's face. Is this punk Seo Juhian? He was shocked because Juhian was much younger than he had expected. He had thought that Juhian sounded like a young businessman based on his voice and expected him to be in his early thirties. But he never expected it to be such a greenhorn. Hold on. Jeha. Is this youngster Seo Juhian? Yes. Why? My goodness. Is this why Chairman Kwan had been so angry? Jeha did tell him that his captain was younger than him. But he was shocked because forget being a greenhorn, this guy seemed like he was a little boy. I relied on a child to do that job. The fact that Juhian probably looked like a high schooler to westerners probably played a part. Edward soon shook his head. No, that's not important right now. I asked you what you sold me. Juhian leisurely smiled after seeing the veins in Edward's neck sticking out. What did I sell you? The map artifact from the Chinese tomb as you asked. Map artifact my ass. Did you scam me? Did you just figure that out? However, Juhian just smiled at him. Relax. There's no way I would scam my future partner. What happened? What happened? The artifact you gave me disappeared. The U.S. sued me for fraud. Juhian feigned ignorance as he asked. What do you mean? Fraud? Are you sure they didn't destroy the artifact because they used it wrong? Ah, this is so frustrating. They claimed that the artifact that was working fine suddenly disappeared. 
I might have to be on the run because I instantly went up on the wanted list worldwide. I came here because you might know something about it. Ah. You want me to teach you how to run? Hey. I'm joking. Ju Hian calmly smiled. This was all going according to Ju Hian's plan anyway. Edward. Don't worry. I'll personally go tell them myself. I'll tell them there was nothing wrong with the item. What? You'll personally tell General Kira. Yu Jaiha, who was next to Edward, and Irene, who was hiding in the other room, were both shocked to hear that. However, Ju Hian continued to speak as if this was his goal. Yes. I will personally meet that person and tell her. Edward seemed shocked to hear that. Ah, uh, General Kira only meets with a select few people. I barely managed to build a relationship I don't know if she'll be willing to meet you. Honestly speaking, it meant that he didn't want to introduce Ju Hian to General Kira. He was a middleman and wanted all artifact users to trade artifacts through him if possible. His role would disappear if artifact users met with each other and traded directly. Ju Hian chuckled after seeing Edward be so petty. Then I guess just be convicted of fraud and be arrested. Why don't you consider your current situation a bit more? The extremely desperate Edward almost pulled all of his hair out. Damn it. Fine. I'll call her so you tell her yourself. Tell her there was nothing wrong with the item. Tell her you will take full responsibility. I told you, don't worry. But the question is whether that difficult General Kira would be willing to meet you. General Kira truly was a difficult person and very selective about who she met. She was not someone that Ju Hian would normally be able to meet. But the situation was different this time. The US spent a ton of money to purchase this artifact, I'm sure they'll need someone to complain to. That wasn't the only thing. Ju Hian had sent the CIA members back alive on purpose to have them spread information about him. There was no way the monarch of war would not bite on that bait. Kira who liked strong individuals would have no choice but to be interested in him. Edward said fine and then left. I'll set up a meeting for tomorrow. Yu Jaiha and Irene looked toward Ju Hian as if they didn't understand what he was doing. It was an obvious reaction. He shamelessly scammed them but was willing to meet with the victim face to face. Most people would be running away right now. Captain Nim, you haven't gone crazy, right? No. I'm not crazy. Yu Jaiha was about to go crazy hearing his boss's calm response. Why are you meeting General Kira if you are not crazy? You're going to explain it yourself. You're not going to tell her, I sold you a fake. You're not going to confess, are you? Ju Hian laughed out loud after hearing that question. Of course not. I just have a reason to meet the Mon No, Kira Clark. That was indeed the case. That was the reason Ju Hian had planned this scam in the first place. The monarch of war is not someone you can easily meet. But I need to meet that woman. Excuse me? Why? Ju Hian looked toward Irene after hearing that question. Because of you. Excuse me? Because of me? How come? Irene became shocked at this unexpected response, but Ju Hian just patted Zheng He's artifact they were sitting on. Zheng He's artifact was mumbling something as if it was upset that it had instantly ended up as a rug. They weren't in a tomb and his linguistic skill was still ranked low so all he could hear was mumbling, but he was certain it was complaining. Ju Hian then put his cigarette out on the carpet as if he was telling the artifact to shut up. Hey artifact, shut the hell up. The artifact cried and Yu Jaiha who would need to restore the artifact cried even worse. Anyway, I told you I found Midas's tomb with this artifact, right? Irene nodded her head. But you see, Midas's tomb is located in a complicated location. What do you mean by complicated? It is located somewhere the monarch of war has eyes. Somewhere she has eyes. It was located near the Syrian border in the Middle East. But that was one of the locations that Monarch of War had used an artifact to mark. She marked the spot using Columbus's map artifact that works like a radar. One of the artifacts that woman has. Columbus's map gives her live updates on tombs or artifacts that appear in the locations she has marked. Giving live updates on tombs and artifacts makes it sound like some sort of radar. 
Yes. She then sends the CIA or the US excavation team to the spots that pop up on the map. Then if we go near one of those marked areas. The artifacts in our possession will pop up on Kira's map as well. There's no way Kira who is aiming for good artifacts would let us be. Kira had marked multiple places around the world. However, just as how Columbus had found new land, she was limited to marking deserts, oceans, mountains, etc. instead of cities, places where people would not normally reach. Either way, Juhian who had to stealthily infiltrate a base in the past to kill the monarch of war knew every area that Kira had marked. Juhian looked toward Irene. She won't really aim for any of the artifacts we have they won't be good enough for her. But you are different. That general would desire your artifact quite a bit. That was the truth. The monarch of war had been the one who had used the monarch of destitution the most in the past. There was even a time in the past when she used Irene to cause a large-scale currency war. The monarch of war did not seem to have noticed the monarch of destitution's artifact yet, but she would definitely be interested once her map tells her about the artifact. But as I told you in the past your artifact is a parasitic artifact so others cannot take it. She would need to cut open your body or kill you in order to take it. Then you are saying. That's right. That general will try to kill you or force you to join the US excavation team. She probably won't kill you easily because you are from the Holton family, but she would probably find a way to use your artifact to her advantage even if it means doing whatever it takes to find your weakness. Irene's face turned pale after hearing Juhian's blunt analysis. However don't worry. I have no plans on handing you over to that general. I won't let you get hurt either. My goal is to let you live a happy and peaceful life with your family. That was obvious. The monarch of destitution's artifact is mine. There's no way I would hand it over to the monarch of war. That wasn't the only thing. The Holton family's wealth is mine too. Juhian's gaze turned vicious, no, cunning, as he thought about that. As long as he could lessen the aura of the artifact, he would be able to use Irene's wealth ability and destitution ability as well as the Holton household's wealth for his benefit. Then Chairman Kwan's company would really become like a stupid phone salesman company. However, Irene must have understood Juhian's words differently as she looked toward Juhian with an extremely relieved expression. Yu Jeha soon asked the question. Doesn't that mean we can't go to Midas's tomb? I thought you said Irene must go there with us. No. She can go. That is why I'm trying to meet with General Kira. Excuse me. It's simple. I just need to destroy that woman's map type artifact. Irene and Yu Jeha were shocked by that statement. What did he just say? Honestly speaking, this was not just for Irene. Zhu Hian was finding the Monarch of War's map-type artifact to be annoying. Why? It was because map-type artifacts were too effective at monopolizing artifacts. They were artifacts that told the user the location of tombs and other artifacts. How useful! Only I deserve to know which tombs are where and what artifacts are inside. He regressed to the past with information about tombs so how could he allow others to use map-type artifacts to easily find that information out? That was unacceptable. He wouldn't let them do that. That is why I need to destroy all of the Monarch of War's map-type artifacts. Juhian started to smile wickedly as he thought about that. He needed to meet with the Monarch of War to destroy those artifacts and had used Edward to meet with someone who was difficult to meet. Chapter, 58 A suite on the 20th floor of a business hotel in Macau. Juhian and Yu Jeha had arrived at the meeting location. Even the great and mighty Edward apparently did not want to be arrested for fraud as he quickly arranged a meeting with the monarch of war. They were supposed to meet her at this business hotel. Juhian chuckled while looking forward to seeing Kira's face. Edward is quite useful. I didn't really think he'd arrange this meeting. It was at that moment. Yu Jeha who was looking at the news on his phone started to shout. Captain Nim, big news. Big news. Apparently the English Prime Minister who came to Macau went missing. So what? Huh? What do you mean, so what? This is extremely big news. Who cares? He supposedly came on vacation. 
I'm not interested. He probably got swept up in the tomb. People disappearing was quite common in the era of artifacts. What was important right now was not something like that but destroying the Monarch of War's artifact. There's no way that woman would move around without her map-type artifact so I'm certain she will have it on her. Juhian smiled quite viciously. However, Yu Jaha continued to ramble about random things next to him. Wow, jackpot. Macau ordered a search as well. We might run into the search team on our way back to our hotel later. Juhian started to frown. Hey. Are you still looking at that? Turn it off. Why? We might end up getting dragged into it because it is happening where we are. Why is he interested in such useless things? It happened at that moment. You, how dare you shamelessly come here? There was a shadow charging toward Juhian as he heard the familiar voice. The nimble fist tried to strike Juhian's back but Juhian easily dodged. That wasn't the only thing. Juhian grabbed the arm and pulled the person toward him, punching the person's chin as soon as the person lost his balance. Pow! It sounded as if a bone was broken as the person started to groan. Ugh, you bastard. Juhian did not stop there and tripped the man before elbowing the person's solar plexus. The fallen person foamed at the mouth after feeling intense pain. Ugh. Uff. Thomas. Linda approached the man in shock. The person was Thomas as Juhian expected. He wondered why the CIA showed up instead of Edward who said he would be here, but it wasn't weird. The CIA excavation team was pretty much Kira's subordinates. However, Thomas who was crushed by Juhian in the past didn't seem to want to settle things with words. You, you shameless bastard. Juhian just sneered at Thomas who was on the floor clutching his chest. Let me give you a warning. Don't try to ambush me from behind. I might accidentally end up killing you. What? It could be seen as if Juhian was bluffing, but it was the truth. He could control his strength right now because they were not inside a tomb, but Juhian was quite sensitive about ambushes after living a life in the tombs. If this was a tomb where his senses would have been fully alert, he could really kill the person. But Thomas who thought he was being mocked shouted in anger. You bastard. You were the one who scammed us with the artifact. You steal, rob, and now scam. Juhian didn't even pretend to listen. I have nothing to say to you. Where is Kira Clark? Juhian didn't care for lackeys like the CIA excavation team. The reason he was here was to meet Kira to destroy the map-type artifact. Didn't you say that Kira Clark would be here as well? Something unexpected happened at that moment. Are you looking for me? He heard a voice. However, the voice was coming from the phone in Linda's hand. Let me see what kind of pathetic excuse you came up with. Shit. Juhian scrunched his eyes at this unexpected situation. That was indeed the case. Kira had not come in person but was talking to Juhian over the phone. Juhian who realized the situation smiled viciously. Edward, that damn old man. I was wondering why he hadn't shown up. Edward seemed to have failed to schedule an in-person meeting with Kira, as he claimed. That must be why he ran away. He would return this one hundred folds later. Putting Edward aside, Juhian did not like this current situation. I didn't expect to meet her so easily, but this will cause some issues. He could not destroy someone's artifact over the phone. However, Juhian did not reveal his inner thoughts on his face as he started to speak. This is different than I heard. I heard you would be here in person. He might have sounded a bit sarcastic. Thomas started to scoff. The General Nim has no time to meet with a bastard like you. You fool. I didn't ask you. You stupid musclehead. In some aspects, Thomas could be right. But Juhian was thinking differently. The Kira that he knew would definitely show up here in person. Kira liked strong artifact users and wanted to confirm their strength with her own eyes before trying to recruit them. That was why after hearing the CIA member stories, she should have appeared in front of him. But why did she not come? Did she not come to Macau from the US? No, that wasn't it. Edward claimed to have handed her the artifact in Macau. 
She was definitely here. So why? Did something big come up that she doesn't even have the time to come meet with me? He then noticed Yu Jae Ha fidgeting with his phone on the side. Ju Hien then suddenly thought about something. Perhaps. Ju Hien pretended to check his phone as he looked through the current top searches. And lo and behold, a couple articles caught Ju Hien's attention. English Prime Minister Albert missing during a secret meeting with an American general. U.S., he suddenly disappeared while we left the room for a moment. Avoiding responsibility, denying abducting the Prime Minister. Not willing to share details of top secret conversation. Egu. This seemed to be the reason Kira was not here in person. This was the general scenario in Ju Hien's mind. The US and the English Prime Minister were meeting to have England join Pandora when the English Prime Minister suddenly disappeared. That must have put the US in quite the difficult situation. Ju Hien could only frown once he realized that fact. This became quite complicated. There will be no future chances to meet with Kira if the U.S. is in this kind of mess. The chances of getting close to her map-type artifact were disappearing. What should I do? Kira started to speak in an overbearing tone like that of a queen at that moment. Seo Juhian is your name, right? Let me ask you a question. Go ahead. Did you by chance duplicate an artifact then hand it over to us? The one who felt his heart sink after hearing that was Yu Jeha, the counterfeiter. But Ju Hien just shamelessly smiled. Duplicate an artifact. Is something like that even possible? It is possible you punk. Yu Jeha gulped. Ju Hien continued to speak. I guess it must be possible to duplicate artifacts if you are saying it, General Nim. But wouldn't it be a total scam if artifacts could be duplicated? Wow. This shameless bastard. It happened as Yu Jeha clicked his tongue. Kira laughed viciously and threatened Ju Hien. You will die if you lie. Tell me the truth. What did you do to the artifact? The general seemed set on killing Ju Hien depending on his response. Ju Hien squinted after hearing that. Something seemed weird. If the situation was like this, Kira shouldn't have come to meet him. It made sense to focus on the English Prime Minister who disappeared while meeting with her. But she came to meet him during this time and was focusing on the fake artifact. Her priorities were completely wrong if that was the case. But the US was not stupid. Ju Hien had an idea about what was going on and started to smile. These fools, maybe, however, they wouldn't answer his question just because he asked it. Ju Hien noticed a child at that moment. It was a little kid who was peeking at them from the other room in the suite. It was none other than Vivian, the Medusa artifact user. Vivian jumped in shock and started to hide as soon as they made eye contact. Ju Hien who saw her started to smile as if he caught on to their plan. Wah! What kind of grudge does he have against me? Vivian was quietly crying in the next room. It was because of the crazy bastard who had just sent her a text message. Vivian had received a message from an unknown number. Vivian tried to ignore it at first but could not because of the message. Anonymous, I'm going to tell them everything if you ignore me. I'll tell them you sold the information about the artifacts the US has to me. That was the threatening message Vivian had received. Vivian immediately realized that this was Ju Hien's number. However, Vivian fell into a state of panic at the same time. How does this bastard know my phone number? Another text message came through as if he had read Vivian's mind. It's not important how I know your number. Damn it. Another message arrived as Vivian looked at her phone with shaking hands. Be honest. The English Prime Minister disappeared while using the artifact, didn't he? BB, I don't know. I'm going to tell the general everything. Vivian hesitated before clenching her eyes and responding. It's all your fault. The English Prime Minister disappeared because you sold us something weird. Ju Hien started to laugh after seeing the message. He was casually checking his messages while talking to Kira saying that he needed to respond to some business matters. This was what had happened. The US tried to get England involved with Pandora. It was fine that the English Prime Minister who was coming to Macau to take a look at the Chinese tomb met with the monarch of war in secret. But the misfortune had started there. 
The problem seemed to be that the general showed the artifact she purchased from Edward to the Prime Minister and offered him to try it out. The Prime Minister suddenly disappeared after touching it. But the map-type artifact that made the Prime Minister disappear went missing too. How are you going to resolve this? We can only save the Prime Minister if we have the map-type artifact. The general name might be falsely accused of murder. Zhu Hian laughed internally after seeing the message while thinking that this had turned into a masterpiece. He never expected that the fake he sold would do so much for him. Even if it was a masterpiece created by Yu Jeha slaving away although it was a fake with half the original's power, that fake seemed to have created quite the accident. Of course, it was because the English Prime Minister used Cheng He's artifact carelessly without knowing how to use it properly. Why? Others did not know about it, but Cheng He's artifact came with high risk. It showed very useful information fitting an A-grade map-type artifact, but it was an artifact that should never be used by someone with low dominance. This was because this scary age of discovery artifact would teleport the person to a random location if it deemed the user to not have the qualifications to use it. It could send the person to a desert, an ocean, or even to another tomb. Only Zheng He's artifact would be able to locate the person who was teleported away. But it disappeared because it was a copy, leaving them no means to locate the teleported prime minister. The Americans' asses were probably on fire. Lo and behold, Zhu Hian smiled as he asked them a question. Did the English prime minister disappear while using the map-type artifact by chance? Both CIA members as well as Kira were shocked by that comment. You, how did you? That's not important. Anyway, General Nim. Can you tell me whether that is true or not? Kira smiled viciously at Zhu Hian's shameless tone. What do you plan on saying if I say that was the case? Zhu Hian smiled thinking that it really must be an emergency situation for the careful monarch of war to respond like this. I got her. Zhu Hian thought this was his opportunity. Originally, he was going to use violent means to destroy her map-type artifacts. But he just came up with an easier way to destroy the maps. That was why he calmly started to sell this medicine. If the Prime Minister truly disappeared because of that, I will feel a sense of responsibility and offer you a deal. A deal? I will find the English Prime Minister for you. All of them were shocked and Kira asked with suspicion. You can help us find the English Prime Minister. Then you really must have the real Zheng He's art if no. It's a different method. A different method my ass. We've already tried Everett. A different method? Is there another way? Yes ma'am. I'm embarrassed to say this, but I am better than most people when it comes to using artifacts. I apologize, but I am better than you as well. Ho. Keep talking. You can kill me if I fail. However, I must put a condition in finding the Prime Minister. A condition? I should be able to find the Prime Minister if I use a map-type artifact. I don't have any but I heard that you have one. Will you let me use your map-type artifact for a moment? Zhu Hian was smiling. Chapter, 59 The CIA agents and Yu Jeha's faces looked astonished for different reasons as Zhu Hian smiled. However, Zhu Hian wasn't phased at all by their reactions and asked once more to confirm. Please let me use your map-type artifact. You. Thomas tried to say something but the monarch of war was laughing on the other side of the call. Her laughter sounded as if she didn't know whether to call Juhian shameless or ridiculous. You want me to let you use my map type artifact? Then you'll be able to find the PM. Yes ma'am. The monarch of war played along as if she found his confident attitude to be cute. Fine, let's say I let you do that. But you see. How do you know that I have a map type artifact? She sounded as if she was laughing but anger was clearly present underneath the laughter. However, Zhu Hian just chuckled at her question. It was something the entire world would know in the future, but it was not that time yet. That was why he calmly sold someone out. How else would I know? Edward blabbed all about it. Hey! Yu Jeha looked toward his boss in shock. Can you really tell her that so easily? Edward probably told Zhu Hian this secret information because he trusted Zhu Hian. In addition, the one that told him that Kira had a map-type artifact was not Edward but Vivian. 
wouldn't it be better to sell out that little girl? Yu Jaiha thought that it should be that little Medusa punk Ju Hian sold out instead of Edward because he was close to Edward. But Ju Hian had a different thought. Why? That old bastard. He ran away after arrogantly saying that he could schedule a meeting with Kira. His sin was being too arrogant. The old man who did not even show his face here deserved to eat shit. That wasn't the only thing. He was also trying to make Edward's relationship with the US bad so that he would have no choice but to take Ju Hian as his only business partner. Things seemed to go according to plan as the CIA agents became angry after hearing Ju Hian's response. That old bastard with such loose lips, why I'm going to dash. Edward seemed to have instantly become a victim, but Ju Hian did not care. The important thing was whether Kira accepted his offer or not. Kira laughed out loud at Ju Hian's statement. Fine, I'll trust you. But you are being ridiculous. Save the PM with my artifact. Why don't you be honest? Aren't you just trying to take my artifact? Ju Hian chuckled. I guess it really won't be that easy. The monarch of war was one of the future four emperors. She would not have been able to rise to that position if she would be tricked by his words and the US would not have given full command over any artifact-related issues to Kira. She definitely was not someone to take lightly. And lo and behold, Kira sounded almost as if she was threatening him as she continued to speak. I will also consider you as an enemy of the US and put you on the national wanted list if you say any more nonsense. She sounded overbearing and threatening. However, Ju Hian was not the type to lower his tail at such threats. It's fine if you don't want to do so. It has nothing to do with me wherever the English PM ends up dying. Ho. It has nothing to do with you. Does it? The press won't leave you alone if we announce that you put some weird device on the artifact before you sold it. What total bullshit. Feel free to do so if you have any proof. Ju Hian scoffed before continuing to speak. I'll be blunt. I have no issues going back like this. I'm not the one who sold the item to you. Edward was the one who sold it and I have no involvement with it whatsoever. Furthermore, I would not have come here if I really sold you a fake. That was true. Edward was the one to make the deal with the US and there was no proof that he sold a fake. You're just trying to make us the scapegoat when you made a mistake while using the artifact. Ju Hian said that before he chuckled. No. I guess you want to push the blame for doing that to the English PM to someone you despise. Can I take that as you trying to provoke me? It doesn't matter. You should know who is the one in a more urgent situation right now. I told you I'll rescue the PM if you do as I say. He really was good with his words. Ju Hian's attitude made even Yu Jaiha who was a professional scammer gasp in shock. It was at that moment. An unexpected message appeared as if it was impressed with Ju Hian's shameless ways. You have received the title of a scammer who cannot be stopped and the user's level information has changed. Tomb Raider CO Ju Hian Level 3 A Tomb Raider who is now improving even his scamming skills without digging through tombs. What the hell? Ju Hian laughed in disbelief at this message that only he could see. But there were pros and cons because of this as well. Your infamy has increased as a result of receiving a dishonorable title of scammer. Your affinity has decreased a bit. The artifacts may have more hostility toward you, but the charm of a bad boy might appeal to the artifacts as well. Artifacts C grade and under will be easily tricked by your words. The chances of artifacts being trucked by you have increased. Wait, what the hell would I use the charm of a bad boy to appeal to artifacts for? He was shocked but it was fine. This was time to finish this battle with Kira right now. The Tomb Raider, no, scammer Seo Ju Hian, ruthlessly landed another punch. It doesn't matter to me whether the English PM disappears, but it's different for you. I'm sure I don't need to tell you what decision you need to make. Ju Hian knew Kira well. She was a female general with extremely high pride who did not do anything that might put the US in difficult situations. That is why she'll choose to save the English PM. That's the kind of woman she is. Based on the information he got from Vivian about this woman's artifacts, she had no way of finding the English PM. She would want to find any traces she could. 
A few minutes later she finally responded. Fine. Give it a go if you think you're the shit. The CIA agents threw a fit about it. General Nim. How can you say that? This bastard is a thief. He's a damn robber who stole our artifacts too. It's obvious he is aiming for your artifact as well. Thomas was the most riled up. He was ready to drag this bastard to the US if General Kira had not said they should hear him out first. His crime would have been stealing their artifacts. However, ownership of tombs and artifacts was quite awkward right now because the Pandora had yet to be created, so he could not legally punish Juhian. They had swiped the artifact from another country's tomb in the first place and the world had not decided whether these mysterious artifacts were considered private property or not yet. But what? General Nim. That's like leaving a fish with a cat. That's right. How can you let him use your artifact? Ju Hian then started to laugh as if he had expected this. You guys can observe me like a hawk in a place of your choosing if you can't trust me. You can even have all of my artifacts during that time. What? The CIA agents and Yu Jeha were shocked by that statement. They were thinking Ju Hian was going to trick his way to steal that artifact. That was why Yu Jeha was even more shocked. What the hell is he planning on doing? What was he going to do? Proceed according to plan. Ju Hian had that thought as he and Yu Jeha went to meet the monarch of war. It was at a hotel right next to the one they were just in. It was a similar suite but the difference would be that there were scary looking soldiers whose gaze alone made it feel difficult to breathe. There were about 20 of them. They were probably a special operations forces team like the Green Berets. They were probably the special forces team working for Kira as the tomb excavation team. Their physique and presence could not compare to the average Juhian or Ujeha, making Ujeha feel small. Damn it, it's not like we came here as prisoners or something. They might end up kidnapped without even the rats or birds knowing at this rate. That wasn't the only thing. They couldn't even plan an escape route because they had never been here before. That was why Ujeha pulled at his hair as they were getting patted down. Wait, why am I the one worrying when this reckless captain is the one causing all the issues? It happened as Ujeha grudgingly glared at Juhian. It looks like you really didn't bring any artifacts with you. Yes, I left them with someone I can trust. Juhian chuckled and turned toward the source of the voice. There was a tall and skinny woman in uniform standing in front of them. This woman with the overbearing smile was Kira Clark. She was one of the four emperors of the past, the monarch of war who the entire world feared as much as they feared Hitler. However, Yu Jeha was anxious for a different reason. W, wait, Captain Nim. It's not my eyes that are weird, right? Yu Jeha seemed to be really shocked as he mumbled in Korean. Of course, it was obvious why he was acting like this. And lo and behold. I thought you said Kira Clark is a US general. Is she a proxy? No, that is her. She looked the same as the Kira in his memories. However, Yu Jeha asked if he could not believe it. It could not be helped. Then how is she so young? Furthermore she's a tall and busted nunim she's totally my type no, no, that's not the issue can she even earn a star at her age? That was indeed the case. The woman in front of them was a young woman who was at most in her late twenties or early thirties. She had a refreshing appearance with black hair and blue eyes. She had the image of a commander who would kill you if you said something wrong, but she would probably be a total babe in civilian clothes. Either way, it would be one thing if the US was in a time of war or was a newly industrialized country, but she seemed too young. She seemed too young for the US president to give full control over anything related to artifacts. However, Ju Hian was not very shocked. Artifacts are powerful. And even if she was a beauty she's still someone who would launch a bazooka at someone's house while they are sleeping. He still got the chills thinking about when she had ambushed him while he was sleeping. He had lost his house that he barely managed to buy by getting a loan. It was a terrible thing for Ju Hian who was the captain of the world's greatest tomb raiding team but earned a rat's tail of a salary. All of that had happened in the past, but he was interested in something else right now. That was why he asked the following. And the artifact? 
How rude. It is over here. The general quickly walked into the next room. There were familiar artifacts on the table inside the room. Barbarossa's pirate map B grade, rare grade, consumable artifact A copy of Philosopher Anaximander's world map C grade, general grade, consumable artifact Columbus's age of discovery map A grade, treasure grade, possession artifact all sorts of map type artifacts were gathered here. The monarch of war soon sat down and crossed her legs while telling Juhian let's see what he can do. All right, go ahead. Just know that we will kill you if you acted like a hotshot but can't get it done. The U.S. soldiers pointed their guns that had been hidden until now once the monarch of war motioned with her hand. Yu Jiha gasped and raised both hands. However, Ju Hien just laughed. The monarch of war sure did love to threaten people. Don't worry, ma'am. As I've mentioned before, I am much better at handling artifacts than you are. It's easy to locate the PM. But before that, Ju Hien asked for a pen. The monarch of war found this to be odd but had her subordinate give him a pen. She didn't know what he planned on doing, but she knew that regular items could not affect artifacts in any way. Ju Hien who received a blunt color pencil smiled and tried to write something on the map. One of the special forces member pointed his gun as soon as he saw what Ju Hien was trying to do. What are you doing? Please move your gun away. This is an incantation to use an artifact more effectively. The monarch of war frowned before telling the soldier to let Ju Hien do it. One was a possession type artifact and she knew that he could not do anything to the other two with a simple color pencil. I'm sure it won't work, but just know that a bullet will go through your head if you do anything suspicious. Why don't you think about how much you will give me as a reward for finding the PM instead? Ju Hien then looked at the three artifacts. He then started to draw something on all three artifacts with the pencil. At first glance, they resembled hieroglyphics. There was no way that other people would know that these were tumglyphs, the text of the tombs. This was the first step to destroy the artifacts. Juhian channeled a significant amount of dominance into the maps once he finished writing on them. The artifacts then started to scream. What the hell, who the hell are you, human? Who do you think you are trying to dominate? The artifacts that seemed to have been jolted awake started to get angry at Ju Hien and told him to get lost. This was the start of Ju Hien's scam. I figured it out. I know where the Prime Minister is located. W. What? Chapter, 60. You located the Prime Minister. The soldiers who were watching Ju Hien were shocked at his bright shout. Actually, Kira and the CIA agents were shocked as well. He found the Prime Minister. This bastard did something even I couldn't do. Kira had tried everything she could to locate the Prime Minister. But he managed to do it in a few minutes. Not only that, he did it with these map-type artifacts that had been no help to her. Did you really find him? Yes ma'am. I found the Prime Minister using these artifacts that you failed with. Juhian casually commented like that. Kira then pointed a gun to Juhian's head and started to laugh. I guess you really must have found him if you can talk shit like that. Then tell me with that damn mouth of yours if you really found him. Where is the Prime Minister right now? The atmosphere made it sound like Ju Hien's head would be blown into pieces if he said he lied, but Ju Hien answered without even blinking. Then give me any piece of paper. I will write the location for you. Who do you think you are trying to fool? Just say it. Ju Hien just laughed in response. It doesn't matter to me. But it's kind of long so I don't know if you guys are smart enough to remember all of it. This bastard, he really. Kira thought for a moment before grudgingly telling a soldier to hand him a piece of paper. However, Yu Jiha who was in danger of being killed along with Ju Hien was crying internally. Stop provoking her so much. I'm definitely going to ask for compensation for emotional distress later. Ju Hien just calmly wrote something on the paper without caring about how his employee was timidly complaining. They looked like numbers. Here you go. Kira confirmed the information after receiving the paper and started to frown. There were latitude and longitude coordinates on the paper. Are you saying the Prime Minister is here? Exactly. The CIA agents started to shout in response. 
he just wrote down whatever came to his mind. Enough. First figure out what is located at this coordinate. Kira's subordinates were angry but started to determine the coordinates. It was easy for them to find the spot because the latitude and longitude were written down to the decimal points. The Sahara Desert No, it is a desert by the Egyptian border. Juhian started to laugh after hearing that. Egu, looks like you'll need to hurry if it is the desert. One of Kira's subordinates shouted in anger. How can we trust this information? But Juhian wasn't the type to cower at this. It's fine if you don't want to trust it. Just know that the poor prime minister will be suffering in the desert while you stupidly waste time like this. It's probably best for you to quickly move. It'll be difficult to search once the sun goes down and you don't know how the desert's weather will change at night. Kira debated for a moment before shouting in a sharp voice. It is as he said. Search first. But. Shut up. Tell the excavation team we sent to the Middle East to search the area. Tell them I will temporarily allow them to use the long-distance search artifact. Hurry up. Yes ma'am. Juhian laughed saying his job was done while Ujeha awkwardly smiled and scratched his head as the soldiers ran out. Um, then can we go home now? I hope you can remove that false accusation of fraud too. It was at that moment. Tang. Wah. A bullet brushed past right next to Ujeha. Ujeha started to shake as the bullet brushed past his face and Juhian looked at Kira disapprovingly. Kira was looking at the two of them and smiling. Where do you think you're going? You bastards have to stay here until we find the Prime Minister. Damn it, why do we have to do that? Ujeha became annoyed while Juhian laughed. And if you can't find him, I'll at least let you leave behind a will. Kira was glaring at them as they waited to see what happened. But forget writing a will, Juhian was released after a few hours. During the few hours they had sat in surveillance the excavation teams in the Middle East and Egypt had sent urgent information back to Kira. We found Prime Minister Albert. Everybody cheered after hearing that message. It was because this situation could have put the entire US in a complicated mess. Kira had a rare smile on her face as well. Is the Prime Minister safe? Yes ma'am. He seems to be extremely fatigued but he is fine. The English Prime Minister had been found in the middle of the desert. He was able to survive because he had been missing for less than a day, but he probably wondered why he ended up in such a mess after just coming for a meeting. Furthermore, an old man close to seventy probably felt like he was in hell being thrown into a desert like this. Juhian smiled after hearing that the Prime Minister had been located. Do you trust me now? Kira clicked her tongue and looked toward Juhian. Explain how you found the Prime Minister. Why should I? What? I'm sorry but I can't tell you because it is a business secret. Then I'll put a bullet through your head right now. Ujeha shook in fear but still said what he needed to say. Damn it, you thugs. We even helped you find the Prime Minister. Are you really going to act like this? But Kira just laughed as if she found it to be ridiculous. Shut your mouth. You scammers. In the end, the Prime Minister was sent flying to the desert because of you guys. Yu Jeha was flabbergasted at this unbelievable stubbornness. Wow, this is driving me nuts. Hey lady. The one who sent the Prime Minister flying to the sand dunes was you guys. Why is that our fault? But the gun just stayed up. In fact, Kira started to smile arrogantly. Honestly speaking, she knew that she was responsible for this as well. Although it was an unforeseen accident, she still did put a nation's prime minister in danger. But things would get complicated if they accepted that this was their fault. Forget adding England to Pandora, it would cause diplomatic issues. That was why she needed a scapegoat to bear responsibility instead of the US. I need to do whatever is necessary to make these two bastards the criminals. It didn't matter whether the two of them scammed them or not. What was important was that they just needed to announce that these two had sold a suspicious artifact that made the Prime Minister disappear. However, if there was something that bothered her tell me before you die. How did you find the Prime Minister? Was the fact that Ju Hien had found the Prime Minister. 
but Zhu Hian sneered without any fear even in front of the gun. Our U.S. General Nim seems to have a memory of a goldfish. I told you earlier. The things I wrote with the color pencil. I told you that is an incantation to use an artifact more effectively. I used that to channel more of the artifact's abilities. Now that she thought about it, Zhu Hian did write some weird text on the maps earlier. That was why Kira was quickly interested. Tell me in detail. Zhu Hian smirked and described more of his medicine. It's simple. You can listen to the artifacts if you write that text down. The artifact just told me those coordinates. However, Kira and the CIA agents were shocked to hear that. Even his subordinate bastard who was being threatened with him was shocked. What? Artifacts can talk. They started to laugh. Are you saying that this map type artifact told you the location of the Prime Minister? And you heard it? Yes. Don't try to be funny. That's not possible. That could not happen. Artifacts can only talk inside tombs. How dare you so shamelessly try to scam us? Juhian's scoff could probably be heard from the sky. But I'm not lying. That's called artifact text and can be used to talk to artifacts. The artifacts are talking as we speak. Listen closely. What? Of course, the artifacts were talking as Juhian mentioned. The problem was that he couldn't understand them. But other people couldn't even hear that alien language. The few people who were gullible enough to listen closely turned red after a few minutes. We can't hear anything. Ju Hien then shamelessly chuckled. Then I guess only good people can hear it or something. What? As the soldiers tried to grab Ju Hien in anger that they were tricked. Hold on. General Nim. We just need to test whether this bastard is telling the truth. Unfortunately, the monarch of war had fallen for it. And lo and behold, Juhian smiled as if he had caught the big fish. What will you test? It's simple. There is a special forces team TSOF that we sent to excavate a tomb. Tell me their current location. Yu Jaha cursed internally after hearing that. How the hell would civilians like us know such top secret military information? Kira and the US soldiers were triumphantly smirking as well. There's no way he would know that. Columbus's map was a possession type artifact so Juhian wouldn't be able to use it, and the other two artifacts could not be used to determine that information. One was a map for finding resources in the ocean while the other was a map for searching the abyss where they could not enter. Juhian soon laughed as if it was nothing. Something like that is easy. What? Really? Juhian reached his hand out and channeled his dominance as soon as he finished speaking. The artifacts started to scream again. Of course, they were not responding to the question and just saying things like, You human bastard, stop. Let us sleep. They were just grumbling in anger. But Ju Hian just shamelessly smiled and answered like this. Ah, the artifacts are telling me. They're telling me the location of your excavation team. First one. Ju Hian then mentioned multiple locations. Kira and the U.S. soldiers, to be more specific, the TSOF soldiers, were astonished. Juhian easily shared accurate information. Unbelievable. This bastard figured out information that civilians would have no way of finding out. This was almost impossible unless it was the artifacts. Actually, it would be a terrible leak of top-secret information if it was not the artifacts that told him this information. That was why Kira asked with an anxious gaze that was uncharacteristic for her. Can you really hear the artifacts? That's what I said. Ah, then we will be on our way now because it is time for dinner. A total hottie is waiting for me. Kira urgently shouted at that moment. Get them. This was no longer an issue of just putting the blame on them. If this bastard really could hear the artifacts, it was a serious issue if he could get information about other artifacts through the ones he had. Furthermore, if this bastard was the only one who could listen to the artifacts. The $300 million isn't the problem. Falsely accusing him instead of making him pay for his scam was one thing, but she needed to capture this bastard and take him to the US first. Kira ordered her subordinates to capture them after having that thought. 
but the writing in color pencil on the maps flashed and caused an incident. Bang! There was suddenly an explosion at the hotel. What is going on? The door to the room they were in blasted open as Kira shouted with urgency. They couldn't help but scream. The explosion caused the hotel sprinklers to go off and it was hard to see through the smoke and fire. Is it a terrorist incident? Kira who was already making a lot of enemies due to their aggressive tomb excavation shouted with urgency. Protect the artifacts and assess the situation. However, something even more astonishing happened at that moment. The map is on fire. This damn cursed map. The soldiers who were urgently trying to gather the map-type artifacts started to riot for some reason. They ruthlessly ripped the artifacts. The artifacts who were instantly ripped for no reason could only scream. Agu you damn humans, what the hell did we ever do to you? Agu, we're dying. Dying. The soldiers who couldn't hear anything continued to rip the artifacts regardless of whether they screamed or not. They were acting as if they were getting rid of the devil. Everything had happened almost instantly that Kira could not stop them. She was probably shocked as well because they were all her trusted subordinates. However, she quickly realized the situation and fired her gun. Did you all go crazy? Tang! Tang Tang! The soldiers clenched their legs and snapped out of it once Kira fired her gun. However, the artifacts were already half dead and groaning in pain. Kira urgently started to look for Juhian and Yujeha. Where the hell are the bastards? Did they get swept up in the explosion? However, she could not find them no matter how many times she looked. They seemed to have used the chaos to almost instantly disappear. Kira finally realized that he had pulled one over them and her eyes turned red in anger. Those bastards. Chapter, 61. Wow, we really almost died in there. Yujeha took a deep breath while looking at the hotel where the explosion had happened. They were currently 300 m away drenched inside the Senado Square Fountain. They were able to escape from the hotel thanks to the power of the ink belonging to an artist on Paris's Montmartre Hill. Ink belonging to an artist on Paris's Montmartre Hill B-grade, rare-grade consumable artifact remaining uses 53100 It was the artifact he stole from Chairman Quan's personal lawyer, Li Jin A, in the past. The effects were simple. It is said that talented artists' paintings have a way of drawing people in. That is why if you draw something with it, you get drawn into that item. Then, you can escape at the location where that drawn item exists. In simple terms, it could warp a person if the conditions were met. Ju Hian had used the chaos to use the ink he had secretly hidden away and drawn an image on the floor. He had drawn this fountain that was the landmark of Senado Square. The two of them were instantly dragged into the picture and warped to this fountain to escape from the hotel. Of course, the condition is that it needs to be an actual object within 500 m. If there were no corresponding objects within the distance range, forget being warped, the user would end up being captured inside the image. It carried a scary risk of never being able to come back into the real world ever again. That was why anybody who used this artifact needed to be wary of the items around them, the distance to them and use it with extreme caution. However wow, Captain Nim, you really suck at drawing. Was that thing you drew back there supposed to be this fountain? It's a miracle we managed to come out here. Yu Jeha was starting to make fun of Ju Hian without any fear. I thought you drew a hamburger or some old. Oh yes, you're a genius artist. Ju Hian was pulling Yu Jeha's ear so hard as if he was torturing him. You can go back to the hotel if you have any complaints. Have fun letting Kira blow your head out. Ah, my ear. Egu, I'm sorry. It was a joke, a joke. I was thanking you for saving me. Did you just scream? N, no sir. Of course not. How can I scream to you, my heavenly Captain Nim? I respect you. Good. That's how it should be. This punk was talented but always asking for a beating. Soon, after Ju Hian's mental training, Yu Jeha sniffled as he asked. But how did you have an artifact on you? Didn't you say you left all artifacts behind? He asked because there was nobody around them. Ju Hian started to laugh. Are you an idiot? 
Going to meet an artifact user while really leaving all artifacts behind is asking to die. That was true. The rule was that artifact users had to keep their artifacts on them no matter what they needed to do. Otherwise, it was like a soldier going to the battlefield without his weapon. But Yu Jeha was shocked. Ha. Huh. Ha. Huh. Then did you really bring all of the artifacts with you? That's weird, I don't even feel any of their auras. You're lying. TSK. Ju Hian clicked his tongue and took the artifacts out from his pocket. They all looked like glasses, glasses case, pens, etc. However, Yu Jeha could not help but drop his jaws in shock while looking at them. That's crazy, you're saying these are all artifacts. I can't feel any aura coming from them though. That was how Kira had been tricked as well. Ju Hian just chuckled. It's called the camouflage, you idiot. Artifacts could transform into three appearances. The first level was the basic appearance antique form. The second level was the camouflage appearance forced disguise. The third level was the original appearance ultimate form. It was only possible to turn them into the second or third levels using strong levels of dominance. In the camouflage a state where the artifact can change appearance as the user desires, it is possible to hide its aura based on the user's abilities. Although it was currently impossible for the other users of this era, it was not difficult for Ju Hian. The quick-witted Yu Jeha seemed to have realized something as he asked a question. Then the red color pencil you received from the soldier earlier was also. Ju Hian took a red color pencil out of his pocket instead of responding. However, he then showed a second one. One was the regular red color pencil the soldier handed him. As for the other it's Shakespeare's pen. Ju Hian then turned the artifact back to its original form. One of the color pencils turned into the fountain pen that Yu Jeha was familiar with. Yu Jeha almost fainted while looking at that. It was shocking that artifacts could be camouflaged into different appearances, but most importantly wow, you total scammer. You changed it with the regular color pencil in that instant. Basically, this person received a color pencil from the soldier but had used Shakespeare's pen on the map type artifacts. Yu Jeha quickly asked another question. Then is that pen the reason for the explosion and the soldiers ripping the artifacts up? Oh, you're quite sharp. That's correct. Then, what did you write? You wrote it in something other people wouldn't be able to read on purpose. Is that really the artifact's language? Or maybe it is a weird ancient language? Blah, whatever, just tell me what you wrote. Ju Hian started to laugh. Business secrets. You idiot. Actually, he had not written much. Macau Hotel employee Jamie Young decided to commit terrorism due to extreme levels of stress. She chose to detonate a bomb in room 2002. Soft's John Smith and Jamie Evans saw terrible demons coming out of the map type artifacts. They looked so terrible that they felt General Kira's life would be in danger if they did not rip them up. It was something like that. Shakespeare's pen had a lot of restrictions, but it was an artifact for bewilderment and hypnosis. It was limited to affecting humans but could turn people with low levels of dominance within a 50m radius into the main characters of a play. It was quite effective. He had used it to assassinate some high-ranking people in the past as well. The issue is that you need to know the target's face and cannot use it on the same person more than once. Anyway, Ju Hian had just used Tumglyphs so that nobody else could read it. It was because he was certain that he was the only one who could decode that language. Anyway, our goal has been achieved. We can head toward Midas's tomb now. The concerns about Irene being tracked inside Midas's tomb has been resolved. It shouldn't be easy to restore the Columbus artifact either. At least 90% of it should be destroyed, so it was close to fully being destroyed. So, it would be difficult for anyone not at Ujeha's level to restore it. Ujeha started to speak with a disappointed tone at that moment. Ah, but it's disappointing that we just left after destroying the artifacts. I don't know about Columbus's artifact, but we might have been able to use the others in the future if we restored them. Ju Hian started to smile wickedly as if he had been waiting for that statement. I brought you a present expecting you would say that. Uh what? W, what did you say? A present? 
Yu Jiehe had a feeling it wouldn't be a real present, but he still asked what it was. Zhu Hien then calmly waved a piece of paper in the air. It was a portion of the ripped maps. He had a large amount of the pieces of Kira's consumable map-type artifacts. He didn't have every piece, but he had at least two-thirds of them. I brought it because it seemed terrible to leave them there. Try to restore these if you can. Well, I guess there's nothing I can do about it if you can't. This employee almost fainted while grabbing the back of his neck after seeing these pieces of papers. When did he manage to steal those? Egu, you're going to even steal Kira's panties in the future. You've suffered greatly. General Kira. Richard, the professor who stole Ujeha's art, didn't know what to say while looking at the upset monarch of war. Kira was one of the important figures for Pandora that Richard and Chairman Kwan were creating. They were able to get many other countries to join because a major nation like the US was involved with it. Egu, is it General Kira this time after Chairman Kwan last time? He needed to really consider whether this CEO Juhian bastard had some terrible fate with them at this point. Why did he have to take down these important partners one by one? Richard who was wary of Kira's emotional state cautiously asked. Did the map-type artifacts end up useless? Can't you tell? Kira glared at Richard as if telling him to get lost if he was going to ask such stupid question. Richard looked at the corpse-like artifacts and decided not to talk. I might die if I say the wrong thing. Getting burnt was one thing, but these artifacts that had lost pieces of their bodies looked hopeless. The consumable artifacts weren't even responding no matter how much dominance was channeled. Kira who was sitting with her legs crossed glared at Richard with an annoyed expression. Why do you think I came to see you? You want me to restore them? Yes. I came because I heard that you became Chairman Kwan's restorer. Can you do it? He felt as if she would shoot him if he said he couldn't. Richard could only awkwardly smile at Kira's request. Um, I apologize but I need at least two-thirds of the pieces to even try something. Where did the rest of them disappear? Of course, Ju Hien had taken them. However, Kira who had no way of knowing that just frowned and motioned with her hand. I don't know. That's none of my business. Just shut up and restore them. I don't care as much about the others, but you must at least restore Columbus's map. How can she so openly say that she doesn't know? But it was understandable why she was like this. You said you'll give them to England, right? Three of the US's important artifacts. They decided to drop any charges about the incident with the Prime Minister in return. Kira's eyebrows shot up in anger. Hurry up and restore them if you know the situation. I need to use Columbus's map to gather more artifacts to make up for this loss. Kira ground her teeth while looking at Columbus's map that was ripped in half. The artifact must have gone nuts from the shock of having its body split in half as it was running wild saying it needed to find some weird things like Sky Island or Atlantis. I'm certain that Seo Juhian was the one who made it like this. Grind. The US had suffered quite a bit because of him. She continued to grind her teeth as she started to speak. Anyway, that bastard Seo Juhian is dangerous. We need to take care of him or somehow drag him into the US excavation team. Personally, I want to make him my no, the US's slave. Richard chuckled at that statement. Do not worry. I will do as you ask. He's still a civilian no matter how much of a ruckus he causes. He's just a weak little punk once we take away his artifacts. What? Take them away. Then, perhaps. Yes ma'am. Pandora will soon be revealed. A law that prohibits civilians from using or owning artifacts will soon be spread throughout the world. Even Seo Juhian and Yu Jeha will end up having their artifacts forcibly taken away. It won't be a problem executing or turning these little boys without any backing into slaves at that point. Richard then started to laugh. I need to use this opportunity to turn Seo Juhian into Pandora's slave and get rid of that bastard Yujeha. You just wait, you damn thorns in our eyes. Juhian calmly started to speak to Yujeha without caring about what Richard was thinking. That Richard bastard is probably going to try to take our artifacts away. They're going to use legal means to do it. Just keep that in mind. 
Yu Jiehua almost spit up his bulgogi hot dog after hearing Zhu Hian say such things so calmly. What did you say? That bald bastard. They were at Macau Airport to head to Midas's tomb. Yu Jiehua became angry just hearing Richard's name, but what bullshit was this? What do you mean they are going to take our artifacts away legally? Hmm. I already told you about Pandora. There's soon going to be a law preventing civilians from possessing artifacts. We will naturally be the example case to punish. Yu Jiehua's jaw dropped in shock. W, wait, how can you say that so casually? It's not like I asked you what you ate this morning. That's dangerous. Zhu Hian just chuckled as if Jaiha was overreacting. Don't worry. I'll make it so they can't do as they please. How? Shu. Sure. These are the times to use to wealthy people. Zhu Hian raised his index finger to tell Jaiha to be quiet as someone from the Holton household headed over. He seemed to be the Holton family's butler as the gentle looking old man, probably in his sixties, led the two of them to a section of the airport. Sirs, the young lady is waiting for you. They were not getting on a regular airplane but the Holton family's private plane. However, they were shocked once they arrived at the plane. Chapter, 62 They couldn't help but be shocked. There were five naked voluptuous beauties welcoming Ju Hian and Yu Jiehua into the plane. Actually, they weren't completely naked, but the see-through clothes they were wearing made the women's voluptuous bodies almost completely visible. Their thin waists, peach-like butts, and even their perky nipples. Some beautiful works of art were standing in front of them. Ah! The first to scream was Yu Jiehua. It was only natural to become anxious when almost naked beauties came charging toward you. That was why the still pure Yu Jiehua gasped and screamed. Thank you very. And, no, I'm sorry. We got on the wrong plane. It happened as Yu Jiehua tried to turn around. Huh? No. You came to the right place. This is the plane. They heard a woman urgently shout from farther inside the plane. Over here, here. Irene who ran out like an anxious hamster was wearing a regular one-piece outfit. Of course, Irene looked beautiful no matter what she was wearing, but the boys couldn't help but be a bit disappointed. Ah, I'm sorry. I brought the plane without my father knowing. Your father. My brother's plane and my plane are currently in repair. This unexpected situation must have happened because it was not Irene's plane. She then started to whisper so that the servants could not hear. To be honest with you, the servants think that Mr. Ju Hian, you and Mr. Jaiha are my brother's friends. That's what I told them. That's why the servants chose to prepare like this on their own. In simple terms, the servants were doing what they normally did. Irene's brother, George Holton, always took these beauties with him whenever he used his private plane with his friends. It was a beautiful view to see, but the concerned Yu Jaiha asked in a very quiet voice. Will it be okay? If they find out we are not your brother's friends. Forget being her brother's friends, this guy was someone who had scammed that brother. Wouldn't he be killed if they got caught? Irene just smiled bitterly. It's fine, ITLL be fine. Anyway, please get a massage and enjoy a relaxing flight since they are here anyway. Lo and behold, the Russian beauties were brushing their hands off as if to show that they will show the two men their skills. Ah, I'm so happy. Yu Jaiha was smiling like a fool once they arrived in Turkey ten hours later. They had enjoyed quite the time on the Holton private plane. They played games they wanted to play, ate luxurious meals prepared by a chef, took a dip in the spa facilities, washed their faces with water from a golden faucet. Where else would they get to experience such things? And most importantly the beautiful Nunims were so good at giving massages too. Although no perverted situations took place, the important fact was that the beauties helped release the fatigue in their bodies. Yu Jaiha still could not forget the touch of the Russian model Nunims who smiled affably at him. The Nunims had swiftly come over, put a towel over him, and started to gently rub him with oil once he laid down after taking his top off. The way their gentle hands brushed through his shoulders, arms, legs, back, and all over his body was almost dangerously pleasurable. Maybe that was why, but Yu Jaiha felt embarrassed. Ah, to be honest with you, I got a bit ha. 
no wonder you took so long to stand up. Ju Hian clicked his tongue next to him. Yu Jaiha started to pout. As if I was the only one to enjoy it. You liked it too, Captain Nim. Yes, they truly were pros. Thanks to them, all of my knots are gone. Ju Hian had been struggling with sore muscles after returning fifteen years into the past. It was obvious that he would be sore after using Jeet Kune Do with a regular office worker's body, doing manual labor going into tombs, and using muscles the past him would have never used before. None of my muscles are sore anymore. I'll need to ask them for another one next time. Seeing Ju Hian sounding so wholesome made Yu Jaiha who felt as if he was the only trash in the room start to shout. Ah, come on. You enjoyed it too, Captain Nim. Be honest. I'm not the only one who had lewd thoughts. Right? Who, who said anything about it? What's wrong with the proof that you are healthy? Damn it. Yu Jaiha who felt upset for some reason shouted like a child. Captain Nim, it's not like you could take your gaze away from the Nunim's big boobs. Honestly speaking, Yu Jaiha thought that Ju Hian was a serious workaholic, a stone Buddha who could not be tempted even by a woman's naked body. However, he felt a sense of kinship as fellow men after seeing Ju Hian being unable to take his gaze off the massaging Nunim's why don't you be honest? You like the boobs. But Ju Hian answered calmly asking if that was what Jaiha was talking about. Ah. They were great. But I was too distracted by that woman's necklace. Excuse me. That's an artifact. Excuse me. I was looking to see what abilities it had. But in the end, it wasn't a very useful one. It seems like an artifact camouflaged itself and came in with the artwork that George Holton collects. Yu Jaiha could not hold back anymore and shouted. Hey, you damn artifact file. How can you focus on an artifact with that heavenly body in front of you? Give me your face if you're going to use it like that. Ju Hian took out a Chanel lipstick and a notebook regardless of what his subordinate was shouting. Shut up for a bit since I need to check again to see if the monarch of war is chasing us. They didn't have to deal with a prohibition of departure thanks to Irene's personal plane, but he needed to be sure. Something amazing started to happen once Ju Hian placed the lipstick on top of the notebook. The lipstick was being absorbed by the notebook as if it was melting. The notebook was Zhen He's artifact in its camouflaged state while the Chanel lipstick was Kira's personal property that Ju Hian had swiped. Ju Hian chuckled and channeled his dominance. All right artifact, spit out Kira's location if you enjoyed your meal. I don't want to, I don't want to listen to you, you bastard. You ripped my body up and threatened me to find that English old man too. Zheng He's artifact screamed as if it did not want to work, but it had no choice but to submit probably because of Ju Hian's strong dominance. Something started to appear on the empty page. What appeared was a map of Kira's current location as well as the location's longitude and latitude. Ju Hian laughed after looking at it. I guess Kira is still stuck in Macau. That was indeed the case. This was how to use Zheng He's artifact. You had to give it that person's item to find a person and give it a similar type of artifact if you want to find an artifact or a tomb. It would read information from the item and find the location. The information it finds will stay visible for 24 hours. This was how they had found Midas's tomb as well. Anyway it doesn't look like Kira will chase us yet. Yu Jaiha sighed in relief in response. I was scared she was going to chase us. We should have gotten away for good, right? Ju Hian scoffed at that question. What are you talking about? She'll come chasing us sooner or later. Excuse me. She's going to chase us. Ju Hian started to laugh. Remember one of the artifacts Vivian told us about? The stalker artifact. Egu, how would I know what kind of abilities it has? That artifact carries a strong risk so I'll praise her quite a bit if that woman really uses that artifact on me. What is the risk? Why don't you confirm it yourself later if you are curious? Ju Hian then said they should quickly move. Ju Hian had a lot of enemies in the past so he was not afraid of being chased, but he wanted to avoid it for a while if possible. At least until we get out of Midas's tomb. That was why Ju Hian wanted to hurry before their chasers arrived. 
the issue will be settled as long as we get to where Midas's tomb is located. But forget being settled, there was a small problem here. Wow, isn't this an unexpected development? Yu Jeha who was looking at a direction through binoculars started to shout. They were currently in Cappadocia, one of Turkey's three famous touristic attractions. It was a place full of rock formations that had thrilling boulder cliffs included in every vacation package. However, that tourist attraction had turned into a dangerous region right now. TSK, I didn't expect it to have turned into such an appearance. They were currently on a tower observation deck where Cappadocia was visible. They were many kilometers away, but they could tell the situation by using binoculars. Irene who was prepared to do whatever it took asked with concern after seeing Ju Hian and Yu Jeha click their tongues. What is it? Is there some kind of problem? Ju Hian peeked down at Irene who was shorter than him and put the binoculars over her eyes. Please take a look. However, all Irene could see were some weird piles of rocks. Ah, uh, um, I see a pigeon. Ju Hian sighed as if he was annoyed before personally moving the binoculars to the correct stop. But his movements were gentle. Can you see it now? Ah, uh, yes. Thank you very uh. That is. Irene was happy that she saw what Ju Hian and Yu Jeha saw as well, but the problem was the contents of what she saw. Midas's tomb. It was fine for the tomb appearance to happen in a bouldery plateau, but the problem was that there were soldiers surrounding that area. Of course, it wasn't weird for soldiers to be present around a tomb appearance. There will be many excavation teams around the tombs in the future, but there were only soldiers now because this was not the era of excavation teams that wasn't the only thing. I'm Captain Nim. That purple beret that crest as well, aren't they the TSOF bastards who were with Kira? Looks like Kira's lackeys are investigating the tomb. That was indeed the case. Midas's tomb had not been destroyed. It was fine even though the tomb's owner had escaped and stuck itself to Irene. However, it wasn't in perfect condition. The best way to describe it would be that it was not completely destroyed and about 50% of it still remained. It looked like a ruin that was abandoned in the wilderness. That was why Ju Hian could not help but frown. Something is weird. Why is the tomb still standing even though the artifact left? He had never experienced something like this before. But the fact that he didn't remember it must mean that it would not last long. Anyway, the tomb was not destroyed and the tomb maintained its appearance, so it was perfect for curious people to investigate. The entrance was wide open so there were no issues getting inside either. Yu Jeha soon sighed. Wow, those bastards are tightly guarding the entrance and the surrounding area. Not even an ant would be able to get past them. That was the problem. It seemed as if the Turkish soldiers and the TSOF were working together as hundreds of soldiers were guarding everywhere within one kilometer of the tomb. That was why they would end up full of bullet holes if they got close. Realistically speaking, civilians would not be able to make it any closer than three kilometers because of the tight surveillance. Irene looked toward Juhian with a pale expression. Then is there nothing we can do? I guess so. There's no way they would let civilians inside. Yu Jeha answered that way and shrugged his shoulders. Furthermore, there was the news a few days ago. The country where the tomb opens has first rights to excavation and investigation and anybody who enters without getting permission from the country will be tried for tomb raiding and illegal entry. The US TSOF also was involved with Pandora. Those bastards who were trying to monopolize artifacts and tombs would definitely not allow civilians to enter. Now that I think about it, Turkey was one of the original members of Pandora. Yu Jeha started to speak as Ju Hian had that thought. I wonder if the Holton household has some personal connections we could use. Ju Hian scoffed at that comment. Are you joking? Even the mighty Holton household is just wealthy and not the head of a state. How would they be able to tell those armed soldiers to get lost? Then what can we do? We can't do anything. Ju Hian started to laugh at that moment. Who says there is no way? Oh right, you've been wondering about something since a while ago. You asked me why I am calling it a tomb raiding team while everybody else is calling it excavation teams. Ah. He had asked that question. But why was Juhian mentioning that now? Juhian chuckled. 
Then I will now show you a Tomb Raider's methods. Chapter, 63 You're going to show me how to raid a tomb. Yu Jaha looked toward Ju Hian in shock. Is that possible? Yu Jaha questioned Ju Hian. He was someone who had an extremely twisted and negative personality because of Richard. He was much brighter than before now, probably because his original personality was coming out after finding his dream again, but old habits die hard in situations like this. How the hell can you get past that field of bullets? Ju Hian started to laugh. A field of bullets? He had seen plenty of those in the past while going around to tombs. Bullets were actually easy to deal with. He had to handle mines, bioterrorism, and more. Ju Hian who was quite infamous had even had someone try to assassinate him while he was sleeping. While these all seem like made-up stories, they were true. That was how fierce the battle for the tombs would end up becoming. Every damn excavation team in the world tried to get me. The reason Ju Hian was still able to collect so many artifacts was because his team was a tomb raiding team and not an excavation team. There were people who considered tombs to be places of trials and sincerely tried to complete the tests the artifacts gave them, but those fools were the first to die. Tombs are no places of trials. Tombs were just the stage that artifacts created to have fun tormenting and killing humans. Ju Hian did not waste time in the tombs because he had realized that. Staying inside the tombs longer and being dragged around by the artifacts was what those bastards wanted. That was why he thoroughly figured out a tomb's terrain, got rid of competitors, and even tricked people at times to swindle artifacts out of tombs. Of course, all of that was only possible because of the archaeologist's artifacts abilities. But he did not have that archaeologist's artifact now. However, he had the tomb raider system that the crow had given him to make up for it. Now then, I guess it's time to do some stretching for the first time in a long while. The wicked tomb raider started to smile. Um, Captain Nim. May I ask what you are doing right now? Yu Jaha could not close his mouth in astonishment. It made sense as Ju Hian didn't seem like he was planning on coming out of the restroom. Furthermore, it was the women's restroom. This person, he worked in the women's restroom last time with Vivian too. Thankfully, there was nobody else nearby. But Yu Jaha kept peeking outside as he had no idea when someone might show up. He didn't want to get arrested because they thought he was installing hidden cameras in the women's restroom or something. Ju Hian didn't care what Yu Jaha had to say as he continued to decipher the tomb glyphs on the restroom wall. That wasn't the only thing. He was also tapping on the wall or touching it as if he was confirming something. Yu Jaha could not hold back anymore and started to shout. Excuse me. Can't you see Irene looks anxious too? But Irene responded at that moment. Excuse me. No. I'm not very anxious. Excuse me. Even while looking at that. Em, I'm sure Mr. Ju Hian has a plan. Irene seemed to trust Ju Hian quite a bit that Jaha felt embarrassed about shouting. Ju Hian didn't look like a person who deserved anybody's trust, so she might just be an innocent girl who trusts people easily. Ju Hian chuckled at Yu Jaha and responded. Just shut up and watch if you don't know what I am doing. Ju Hian was not trying to do something perverted in the women's restroom. He was just looking for the spot where the aura was the weakest. Why? He was going to create an opening to infiltrate the tomb. I call it the back door. Back door. People were bound to gather at a tomb's entrance. It was because the entrance was the only way into the tombs. However, there would only be blood in a spot where people gathered like ants. Why would he want to join in the bloody chaos? He just had to leisurely walk in through a back way and swipe the artifact. That was why Ju Hian started to smile. Tomb appearances always have a shabby blind spot where the aura cannot reach. The places where tombs appear were always discovered by other artifacts because of the aura barrier it casts. However, there was a spot that even the artifact that created the barrier would not be able to notice. That is why we will break through there and sneak in. Yu Jaha was shocked. He didn't know jack shit about tombs but it sounded as if Ju Hian was saying they should go digging. But why would the soldiers just be sitting on their asses and sucking their thumbs if it was that easy? Are you crazy? Is that really possible? 
Of course, it required a lot of physical strength and artifacts needed to be sacrificed. That was why Zhu Hian made the decision based on the type of artifact and the number of competitors every time. In the past, Pandora had created all sorts of unbelievable regulations for ownership of tombs and rights of excavation. But Zhu Hian just casually committed illegal acts as if telling those laws to eat shit. His team ended up being called a tomb raiding team because he ignored the laws Pandora created and raided artifacts as he pleased. Anyway, this restroom is the blind spot where the aura does not reach. Right around here. Zhu Hian tapped on the wall. I thought the tomb was a dead tomb because the owner had left but surprisingly the tumblif and the aura are alive. That means. That the tomb is still functional. It is 50% destroyed but the other 50% is alive. He didn't know the reason behind it, but that meant that the tomb's traps were still active. It wouldn't hurt to be cautious. Anyway, step back a bit. You might get hurt. Hurt. Ju Hian checked his skill window instead of responding. It was because he needed artifacts and his skill to create this back door. Tomb excavation awakened level E rank, knowledge of spatial perception and terrain of tombs have increased, can dig, pierce, or destroy tomb related terrain's power increased by 20%. Ju Hian chuckled in satisfaction as he read that. This truly was identical to the excavation ability he had received through the archaeologist's artifact in the past. That crow bastard. Zhu Hian then took an artifact out of his pocket. It was a low-rank artifact he had stolen from Vivian. This should be enough for a tomb like this. He had taken out a D-grade artifact from a folktale known as Brother's Sweet Potato. Whoever ate it would fart well, but its abilities didn't matter right now. He was going to destroy this artifact anyway. It would serve as a detonator for a low-level explosive. And lo and behold. Juhi and clenched the sweet potato artifact. Cover your ears. Yu Jeha and Irene quickly covered their ears as soon as Juhi and shouted. Juhi and then channeled a lot of dominance into the artifact. It was the most overbearing and violent dominance channeling he had done until now. It was as if he was a tyrant creating a hit list. The artifact started to curse in serious pain. What the hell are you doing, you motherfucking human? The artifact who felt as if it was beaten up for no reason, no, as if it was stabbed while sleeping, started to curse Jackal. However, Ju Hian didn't care and firmed his resolve to clench the artifact as tightly as possible. It was because he was about to give such a scary command that going easy on it might end up with the artifact counterattacking and harming him instead. That command was hey, artifact bastard. Self-destruct. What? Are you fucking crazy? The artifact naturally resisted. However artifact, self-destruct. This human gave an unbelievable command. A significant amount of aura is released the moment an artifact self-destructs. Ju Hian was trying to use that energy. Self-destruct. Wah, wow, why are you doing this to me? The pained artifact could not defeat Ju Hian's dominance and released a large amount of aura. A D-grade artifact had no chance of resisting against Ju Hian's dominance. Ju Hian activated his skill as soon as the artifact released a strong light. He activated Tomb Excavation, one of his Tomb Raider skills. The aura that was strong enough to make the artifact self-destruct combined with Ju Hian's skill to create a violent tomb-destroying bomb. Ju Hian then slammed that sweet potato bomb against the wall. A large explosion soon occurred. Bang! Kaya. A large explosion happened in the women's restroom. People might confuse it for a terrorist incident, but it was completely different than most terrorist incidents. Most terrorist incidents would destroy nearby buildings or objects. However, surprisingly, there was a large pit in front of them but everything around it was fine. The coward Ujeha whose heart was beating wildly and Irene had plopped down on the ground. W, what is this? What else? This is tomb destruction, no, tomb excavation. Ju Hian's tomb excavation skill was something that allowed him to dig, cut, or destroy a tomb. But its unique trait was that it only responded to aura, so he could only use it in a tomb appearance region and could not damage any modern buildings. 
That was why the restroom was fine and only the underground area that was part of the tomb appearance as well as the surface connected to the underground area had a giant hole. Of course, the sweet potato artifact that had helped make this happen had followed its fate and exploded. But Ju Hian didn't care whether an artifact suffered or not and calmly looked inside the diagonal pit and started to smile. Looks like the hole was created properly. The hole was heading in the direction of Midas's tomb. It seemed to be at least hundreds of meters long. It wasn't as long as he had expected, but it was understandable. The tomb excavation skill was for excavation, so the destructive power was low and he had only used a degrade artifact for it as well. But the shocked Yu Jeha grabbed his wildly beating heart and started to scream. He was a young boy who could not even watch horror movies because they were too scary. Please tell me in advance. And what if people come this way? His words seemed to have planted the seed as they started to hear mumbling in the distance. Some of the voices sounded like men who were part of the Turkish military or the USTSOF. Irene looked outside and urgently started to shout. Mr. Ju Hian, people are heading over. Looks like we need to hurry. Ju Hian told them to quickly follow him and entered into the tunnel. An anxious Yu Jeha and Irene had to quickly follow behind him. The tunnel was quite uneven and rough so Yu Jeha ended up falling on his way in. As for Irene, Ju Hian was taking care of her and even holding her hand. They started to run as soon as they entered the tunnel. Hurry! I used an artifact to cover the entrance for now but the TSOF are Kira's lackeys so I'm sure they have some artifacts on them. That was why it would be broken quickly even if he was using an artifact. But they were stopped by a wall after a few hundred meters. Damn it, it's blocked. They became anxious but Ju Hian chuckled. He had expected this. It's because it was a weak artifact. The aura energy it had is low so this much destructive power is its limit. Then what are we going to do? What's the issue? Ju Hian chuckled and took another degrade artifact out of his pocket. We have so many artifacts. Yu Jeha foamed at the mouth after seeing what Ju Hian was doing. He automatically started to swear. Stop destroying artifacts in front of a restorer. You damn Captain Bastard. However, Yu Jeha became anxious after hearing soldiers approaching from the distance. Hurry up and destroy it. Hurry up. Ju Hian chuckled and channeled his dominance into the artifact. Another artifact started to scream inside the tunnel. But thanks to that artifact's noble sacrifice, they were getting closer and closer to Midas's artifact. Chapter, 64 The artifact screamed and screamed some more. They probably never expected this. They considered humans to be a lesser race. How would they have ever expected to face such humiliation from a mere human? Egu, Egu. Someone please teach this arrogant human a lesson. Please show him the greatness of artifacts. The D-grade artifacts prayed to the high-grade artifacts as they screamed in pain. Honestly speaking, they could not understand this at all. Why was this human bastard handling them so roughly? Human bastards should treasure them a lot or run away in fear. Why were they being handled like this instead of being respected? The artifacts were screaming. But Ju Hian continued to self-destruct them one after another regardless of their screaming until they made it inside the tomb. He finally stopped his mercilessness once the tunnel was connected to the tomb. We finally made it out. They were inside a tomb and not actually outside, but anyway, they could go into the tomb now. The tomb was an underground type. It was not a boulder cave but looked more like ant tunnels. Based on how sunlight was visible in certain spots, there had to be a spot connected above ground as well. I don't see those bastards. The TSOF and the Turkish soldiers should be running around here as they pleased right now, but he did not see any of them. That was why Ju Hian motioned for the other two to get inside. Come in. There's nobody here. A relieved Irene cautiously followed Ju Hian. However, Yu Jeha was pouting as he entered. Damn it, how can you mercilessly make the artifacts self-destruct like that? It might have been too much for a restorer to handle. It felt as if Ju Hian was melting gold and sending it down the sewers to Yu Jeha. That was why he continued to grumble. Why didn't you detonate the copies if you needed to detonate them? What a waste! 
Juhian scoffed at that comment. Hey idiot. You can't make the copies self-destruct. They need to have a conscience to self-destruct or do anything. TSK. Yu Jaiha just stiffed and decided that he would just try hard to restore the scraps he had collected on their way. He was acting like a bag carrier who was restoring artifacts in real time because of this damn man who carelessly used his artifacts. It wouldn't make much difference to add a few more to that list. However, it was at that moment. Something long wrapped around Juhian's arm like a koala. It was the rope artifact he had ordered to block the tunnel entrance. It seemed as if the rope had taken care of all soldiers who tried to follow them as he had ordered. However underscore email protected. Master, I'm in pain. I'm in pain. It had dutifully completed its mission, but its condition was not good. The soldier bastards must have had some artifact weapons as the rope was ripping in many locations. They must have used their artifact swords to saw away at the rope that was binding them. The rope artifact whimpered as it stuck to Juhian's arm. Juhian got annoyed and said something. Don't stick to me, ask that haughty appa over there to heal you. The rope artifact started to place Yu Jaiha in a BDSM rope harness as soon as Juhian said that and started to shout. Human. Hurry up and heal me. Heal me. Of course, Yu Jaiha who instantly felt as if he was being choked by a snake was dying. Kek, kek, kek. Let go of me. You little punk. Why do you act all cute around the captain in but treat me like this? The rope wondered if there was even a need to explain why. To repeat myself, don't try to waste your time getting friendly with any artifact. No matter what happens, only focus on dominating the artifact. Irene nodded her head at Ju Hian repeating his warning. Her gaze looked as if she was a student full of desire to learn. That was why Ju Hian smiled with his eyes. Good, you're a good student. Irene started to smile. It was because she thought that Ju Hian seemed like a rough person but he wasn't as scary as she thought he was. She thought his lessons would be scary when he said that he would teach her how to use artifacts, but he was surprisingly gentle and delicate. Irene was about to say something in response when Juhian stopped her. Mr. Juhian. Shu. Juhian shoved his hand over Irene's mouth as if he was telling her to shut up. And lo and behold. They're not here. Damn it, we got a report that they found an underground tunnel. They said it was headed toward the tomb. Search thoroughly. The information must have spread as the soldiers were thoroughly searching the inside of the tomb. They were certain that the tunnel was revealed because of the noise of the explosion. The hiding Juhian finally started to speak once they disappeared. TSK, I should make them self-destruct a little quieter next time. Yu Jaiha pounded his chest in frustration after hearing his captain say that so calmly. No, you shouldn't make them self-destruct in the first place. However, it wasn't an issue even if they were discovered. This wouldn't be the first time something like that has happened. Of course, they still had to be wary as this was a divine grade tomb even if 50% of it was not working properly. The system message warned him as well. The tomb's chaotic aura has been detected. It is faint but present all around. Juhian scrunched his face after reading that. I need to hurry up and find the river Pactolus in here. Irene's eyes started to sparkle as they heard some soldiers getting close to interrupt them again. Should I make all of them suddenly have diarrhea? Juhian quickly stopped her from using her destitution artifact as if it would be terrible. That would help but don't do it. I don't want to be the victim of a stink terror in this small area. Ah. Don't worry about it, I just need both of you to look for something that looks like hieroglyphics on the wall. Hieroglyphics? Yu Jaiha suddenly recalled something. You're talking about the tumglyphs, right? I think I saw it over there earlier on the ceiling. The moment Yu Jaiha tried to take a step. That idiot. The sensitive Juhian seemed to have felt something as he quickly kicked Yu Jaiha. Pow. Ah. Yu Jaiha screamed and went flying as if he was an empty can on the street. Boom. Something shining that had detected Yu Jaiha flashed before light shone down from the ceiling. It seemed to be gold in color. The golden light instantly turned everything it touched into gold, including living insects. 
Yu Jiha, who was on the floor dropped his jaws after seeing what happened. G. Gold. Ju Hian who was looking at the ceiling where the light was coming from started to chuckle. I found it. The thing that had released the golden light was none other than the tomb glyphs on the ceiling. This really must be Midas's tomb. He wasn't sure even after they came inside, but now he was sure. This should most certainly be Midas's hand of gold tomb. It was the same tomb that turned the hand of gold into the cursed hands. Ju Hian looked around before smiling after finding something on the ceiling. It was the specific part of the tumblyphs he had been looking for. You still did a good job, number one. I was able to find the location of the river thanks to you. X, excuse me. The location of the river. Irene and Yu Jaha also looked up at the ceiling. It definitely looked like something was written there, but how do you have to read that thing to know it was talking about a river? That wasn't the only thing. Ju Hian chuckled as if he was able to figure out most of this tomb from the tumblyphs. But the soldiers must have heard Yu Jaha's scream as they could hear them running over toward them. Are they over here? Intruders. The Turkish soldiers and the TSOF had appeared. They attacked Ju Hian's group with modern weapons without any fear. Tang Tang Tang. Their weapons were fine inside the tomb probably because the tomb could not function properly. That must be why their weapons and their communication devices were all working. And lo and behold, they found Ju Hian's group and quickly reported through the walkie-talkie. Intruders located. They are suspected to be civilians. Located. The General Nim said it was fine to kill any intruders. Fire. Yu Jaha urgently shouted as they pointed their guns. Captain Nim. Ju Hian started to frown with annoyance. Ah, these annoying little bugs. I was trying to take care of things quietly for once. Hey punks. Did you all get permission from the owner of this tomb to come inside? What is that Asian guy saying? Ju Hian grabbed Irene's right hand instead of responding. Irene was shocked to feel Ju Hian tightly grabbing her hand, but Ju Hian just grabbed her hand and put it against the wall. Ju Hian's eyes then glared viciously before he mumbled something in a language she could not understand. Gold brings forth destruction. He sounded as if he was playing some percussion instruments. What Ju Hian was speaking was none other than Tumblef, the language of the artifacts. It was an odd language that only Ju Hian should be able to read right now. Something amazing then started to happen. Shining tumglyphs started to float out from the wall with the location that Irene's hand touched at the center. Gold lights started to shoot out from the ground and ceiling, causing the soldiers to panic. What is this? What is going on? What else would it be? The true owner of the tomb has arrived. Please become rich, everyone. People started to scream as Juhian smiled. G. General Nim. We received an emergency SOS from the tomb in Turkey. What? Kira's eyes flashed after receiving the report in Macau. It was so scary that one of the soldiers next to her flinched. The female soldier who brought the message over urgently shouted. We suddenly lost contact with some of them and the message received didn't sound good either. T, the message said. Speak. The female soldier gulped after hearing Kira's cold voice before continuing to speak. As suspicious people have infiltrated the tomb. Do you think a nation that is not part of Pandora is trying to steal the tomb? Kira started to frown. The people we dispatched to Turkey it must be that tomb in Cappadocia. She had dispatched people to investigate as it was a large tomb with the entrance open. They had a large number of people search seven times but they had not found any artifacts, so she had withdrawn the troops little by little and only left a few to look for any secrets about the tomb. But someone is trying to infiltrate that tomb. Are they maybe the radical Islamic Sunni militants? The subordinate shared more information. The intruders are supposedly two men and one woman. Two men. Kira started to frown again. Perhaps. Now that she thought about it, there was that incident when she tried to ask the Macau government for help and sealed the airport. There was a private plane that had still left as if it was sneering at her. She had heard that it was headed for Turkey after digging up some information. A vicious smile appeared on Kira's face after putting two and two together. Seo Juhian. Excuse me. 
Kira then slammed her hand on the table. Seo Juhian, I'm sure it's that bastard. Excuse me. Tell them to wait. Tell them I am headed over. Excuse me. But it'll take at least ten hours to get to Turkey from here. Kira clicked her tongue. They're bound to be gone by the time I get there. Um, um. Should we leave it to the soldiers there for now? Kira snorted and took the communication device from her subordinate. Hand it over. I will lead them myself. However, the people who should be receiving her command were dying inside the tomb. Ugh, that damn yellow monkey. Ugh. Puk. They were ruthlessly being defeated by Juhian. The USTSOF were attacking Juhian with weapons but they were the ones spurting blood and falling down. Juhian was ruthlessly stabbing their necks with the Wandadido. The sword that was running wild inside the tomb was attacking the enemy's vital points with each attack. It would be one thing if they were outside the tomb, but Juhian was not the type to be nice to people aiming for his life inside tombs. Yu Jeha who was peeking at this while hiding poked his head out after the last one fell to the ground. Um, Captain Nim, is it okay now? Yes, I pretty much took care of them. You can come out. Yu Jeha looked relieved as he came out with Irene. Yu Jeha had gulped after seeing Juhian's freakishly strong movements. I better not act foolish in front of the Captain Nim anymore. He knew that Juhian was skilled but had not expected him to be this skilled. Of course, he was using a possession-type artifact that helped him fight, but those could only be used if the person's basic foundations could support it. I wouldn't be able to do that. They then arrived at a small pond, no, an underground lake that was slightly too large to be called a pond. It was surrounded by boulders and looked like a waterfall that had been created underground. This was the place to remove Irene's curse. This was the river Pactolus. Juhian put his hand in the lake to confirm there were no issues before starting to speak. It should be fine since there are no traps. Then, what do you need me to do? First. Juhian recalled the myth before looking at Irene and continuing to speak. I need you to strip naked. Chapter, 65. I need you to strip naked. Both Irene and Yujeha could not help but gasp after hearing Juhian calmly say that. Wait, what did he just say? Captain Nim, are you crazy? Juhian glared at Yujeha and asked what the issue was. Why? What's the problem? Asking her to strip naked, what are you trying to make her do here? Irene who was thinking about something nodded her head as if she understood. Ah, you mean take off my outer layers, right? But Juhian completely destroyed that thought. No. Everything. Including your underwear. Irene and Yujeha both shouted at the same time. Wow, Captain Nim, I didn't think you were like that. What's wrong? She said she would do as I told her to do. You're asking to be cuffed. What nonsense are you spewing? I'm telling her to wash herself. W, wash herself? Juhian nodded his head. As I mentioned before, I believe your artifact is Midas's artifact. In order to wash the curse away, you probably need to bathe in the river as King Midas had done. Yu Jeha then sighed as if he was asking Juhian to stop this habit of saying things in ways that could be misunderstood. Irene was still shocked and asked Juhian a question. Um, then wouldn't it be okay to go in with my clothes on? Taking everything off including my underwear is a bit. Yu Jeha pervertedly laughed at that moment. She's right. It would be fine to go in with her clothes even if they got wet. Are you trying to get a nice view in the process or something, Captain Nim? He pretended not to be interested in the busted Nunims on the plane but he was aiming for more. Yu Jeha snickered as if Juhian couldn't call him out for how he acted earlier. Why didn't you prepare a swimsuit for her? Juhian started to click its tongue in annoyance. A swimsuit? You idiot. You'll land yourself in big trouble if you say things like that without knowing what you are saying. Excuse me. Juhian put his hand into the lake instead of responding. Something amazing then started to happen. Cecil. His sleeve started to melt away as if it was a piece of meat that was placed on top of fire. In fact, 
the clothes caught on fire that both Yu Jiha and Irene started to shout. M, Mr. Ju Hian. Your clothes. Captain Nim. Fire, fire. You'll get burnt. Your hand, your hand. While they were overreacting, Ju Hian just casually took his hand out and put the fire out. The fire went out but a bit of Ju Hian's black jacket sleeve had burnt away. Why your clothes? Yu Jiha who had made fun of Ju Hian earlier seemed to be extremely shocked as he could not close his mouth. Ju Hian asked if this was enough to answer their questions. This is what happens if you go in with your clothes on. Got it? The two of them nodded their heads without being able to say anything. Of course, Ju Hian had not expected all of this. He knew she would have to bathe, but he didn't expect the water to burn all material items away. He had learned this from the Tumglyphs once they entered the tomb as well. This lake considers everything tied to clothes as sources of greed. That was why it would melt everything away. Wealth-related artifacts such as the silver axe were all like this. That is why you will be safe if you go inside in your natural body, your birthday suit. That is what the text inside the tomb said. Irene and Yujeha were both at a loss for words. Can he really read that nonsensical chicken scratch? However, the thoughts of Ju Hian trying to rape her were gone after he explained like that. Of course, it was difficult to imagine Ju Hian asking for something that might get him arrested in the first place. Why? The Captain Nim is an artifact file. However, Ju Hian seemed to have suddenly realized something and looked toward Irene with a serious expression. Ah. Hold on a minute. E, excuse me. I'm sorry, but are your boobs real? Yu Jiha almost choked after hearing that unexpected question while an embarrassed Irene looked down at her breasts and found it awkward to respond. Ha, huh, T, that. Ah. Ju Hian seemed to have figured it out based on Irene's response and clicked his tongue. He then raised his hand and said she didn't need to say anything. Ah. That's okay. I understand. But if that is the case, they will melt in there so I will need to come up with a different method. Ju Hian became serious. This was unexpected. She would end up in a terrible mess if she went into the water with silicone. As Ju Hian started to think Irene who realized there was a grave misunderstanding urgently started to shout. N, no. T, they're natural. There's no way they will melt. Ah. Is that so? I'm relieved. Yu Jiha didn't know what he was relieved about, but he still face bombed. However, Ju Hian was serious. He was worried that something he did not expect would be the reason they made it all the way here for no reason. Then please strip down and take a bath. We will look as least as possible. Irene nodded her head and it didn't take long for her to strip down and enter the lake. A few minutes later it was fine that Irene went into the lake but Yu Jiha was judgingly looking at Ju Hian. It could not be helped. Excuse me. Captain Nim, why are you so openly looking while not letting me look? That was indeed the case. Ju Hian was sitting on a boulder and shamelessly watching Irene bathe. This was after he kicked Jiha as soon as he turned his head as well. So, what is this? You shouldn't be looking either, Captain Nim. Ju Hian calmly responded as if he was confused. I need to be ready in case something happens. Is this guy doing this on purpose? It happened as Irene started to wash her body. Kaya. Irene suddenly screamed. What's wrong? Irene urgently shouted after hearing Ju Hian's voice. My arms and legs. Surprisingly, Irene's body that was inside the water was slowly starting to turn into gold from the legs up. Something shocking happened at that moment. A bright light flashed in the lake before they started to hear a weird voice. My other half, you are here. A message window popped up in front of Ju Hian's eyes at the same time. The artifact that had been sleeping inside the lake has awakened. The artifact of gold is releasing a chaotic aura. Warning. Great fortune is headed away. Extremely strong luck can actually bring danger. Ju Hian became anxious after reading those messages. There's another hidden artifact in a tomb without an owner. However, Ju Hian and Yu Jiha had no choice but to scream at that moment. 
The water Irene was in was turning into gold and turning everything around it into gold as well. Captain Nim. Juhian became desperate. Come out of the lake right now. You'll die if you stay there. But I can't move because my body has turned stiff MMPH. The gold that had risen to her neck was trying to cover Irene's mouth. Irene's entire body would soon turn into gold and kill her. That was why he ground his teeth and quickly ran toward the lake. This is not a trap. This was the work of an artifact hiding inside the lake. The odd artifact hiding inside the lake was trying to gobble Irene up. However, there was something weird about this. Logically speaking, there was always one artifact inside a tomb. It was a different story in a great tomb appearance involving multiple tombs, but the artifact from this tomb was already in Irene's hands. So why is there another artifact in here? It was weird that the tomb was still alive even after its owner left and that it did not disappear. Juhian soon jumped into the golden water. Juhian's clothes started to melt and his body started to turn into gold like Irene starting with his hands. Ujeha turned pale after seeing that. An anxious Ujeha tried to jump in as well, but Juhian sternly shouted. It's fine. Don't move. You'll get swept up in it as well. But. Ujeha could only stomp his foot from the outside. Juhian started to frown while heading toward Irene. Think, CO Juhian. Think about how this could have happened. A tomb that had not disappeared and an unknown artifact that was charging toward Irene. And then, the attribute of the hand of Midas. Why were all these things happening? He needed to know the cause to find a solution. However, Juhian soon clicked his tongue after realizing something thanks to his vast experience and quick thinking. Damn it, I see. Midas's artifact has split into two. The hand of Midas was originally a hand of gold that brought forth wealth, but that ability ended up turning it into cursed hands. It meant that the monarch of destitution's artifact was an artifact with two abilities, wealth and destitution. He didn't know what happened here, but the monarch of destitution's artifact had become unstable and split into two with the disaster-related portion getting stuck to Irene. That was why she could only cause disasters even though she had the hand of gold. She could also not control the artifact as she pleased because it was not complete. Juhian then started to smile. At this point, there's no need to remove the curse or anything. All he had to do was make Irene dominate the artifact and fuse it to become whole again. Then she would be able to dominate over a land of gold and a land of destitution as she pleased. Then we can use Irene's powers right away without taking any big risks. Juhian grabbed Irene's arm and channeled a lot of dominance into it. Boom! That made the artifact that was hiding inside the lake scream in anger. You arrogant bastard! The artifact resisted, but Juhian seemed to have given it a strong enough blow as the speed of things turning into gold seemed to have slowed down. However, the artifact's rank seemed to be quite high as he could not make it fully submit with his dominance alone. That was why Juhian started to speak to Irene who was in pain. Suppress the artifact. This artifact is looking down on you right now. She should have enough dominance to control this SS grade artifact. She should be able to dominate it and make it fuse with the parasitic artifact inside Irene's arm. I taught you how to use your dominance. Do as I taught you. Juhian had definitely told her. He said he said do it as if I was smacking a mosquito that was bothering me from sleeping. Irene who had slowly been losing consciousness opened her eyes wide. What happened to those bastards? Kira was giving orders to her subordinates in Turkey over the phone. However, the information they gave was only enough to make her angry. We have determined that those bastards are still inside the tomb. However, we have lost all contact with the others inside the tomb. That made Kira start to grind her teeth. She wondered if it meant that all of her subordinates inside the tomb were dead. However, Kira could not lose these bastards again. Kira debated for a while before giving an order to the TSOF who seemed to be stationed outside the tomb. Evacuate everyone. I am going to use my artifact. The TSOF members all gasped. Excuse me. General Nim, your artifact. He froze as if he just heard that someone was going to launch a nuclear weapon. 
But Kira just started to smile wickedly. Yes. I am going to use my artifact. Kira picked up a world map as soon as she said that. She had not used this artifact because the risk was quite high, but this would make those bastards into rats stuck in a jar. I succeeded. Irene's excited voice echoed out of the Golden Lake. She must have successfully suppressed the artifact with her dominance as her body that had turned into gold returned to its original clear color. She looked toward Juhian with an extremely happy expression. Does that mean I have dominated the artifact now? Well, I believe so. I can't feel the aura of the artifact that was here anymore, so the chances it fused with your body is high. In simple terms, you can get rid of disasters based on your will now ug. Irene who was extremely happy to hear that tightly hugged Juhian. Of course, that made Irene's soft and supple skin touch Juhian's chest. They felt nice against his body. The sensation was amplified because both of their clothes had started to melt away so there were multiple spots where they were touching skin to skin. Ju Hien became anxious and pushed Irene away. Let's head out first. More soldiers will come to chase us. It was as he said. They got rid of the ones who had chased them earlier, but it was obvious the enemies would send more soldiers knowing they were still inside the tomb. However something unexpected happened. See, Captain Nim. The tomb suddenly shook violently and started to crumble. Is the tomb crumbling because Irene absorbed the artifact? No, that wasn't it. Irene would need to use the artifact and shout, close, for that to happen. That meant that someone did something from the outside. A message popped up in front of Juhian. A violent goddess of destruction slaughter is attacking the tomb. All entrances and exits for the tomb have been destroyed by the goddess's power. The violent goddess's curse is starting to seep into the tomb. Warning. You are in danger of being buried alive once the tomb becomes completely destroyed. A defensive artifact is necessary. Juhian clicked his tongue after seeing the message. The monarch of war did this. It was obvious. The monarch of war's artifact was focused on destruction and slaughter. The scary part was that she could use her powers remotely. But I didn't expect her to brave the risk and use her artifact. Yu Jaiha urgently shouted at that moment as particles were falling from the ceiling that was breaking. The entrance and our tunnel are both blocked. All exits were blocked. What could they do? Ju Hien debated for a moment before checking his skills. There was one skill inside the skill window that caught his attention. It was the tomb restoration skill. Chapter 66 Those bastards will die inside there now. Kira started to laugh. Tell the team to go in when it's over. Steal their artifacts if they are dead and bind them if they are alive as they won't be okay mentally. I understand. The subordinates nodded their heads while worrying about Kira. I'm sure they were buried alive, but was there a need to use your artifact, ma'am? The risk is too. Kira laughed out loud. Although I suffered heavy losses, it is fine as long as we manage to bury them alive. Do you think it worked? She sneered as if to say how dare he question her abilities. Just trust me. I make sure to destroy everything without even leaving a small hole for a rat to crawl through. He truly is a cockroach if he manages to survive in there. Ju Hien who had almost instantly fallen to the level of a cockroach was deep in thought while looking at his skill window. Tomb restoration this was the new skill he had received while demonstrating how to restore artifacts to Yu Jeha. There was only one reason such a thing was catching his attention during this dangerous time. I might be able to reopen the blocked exit if I use this. He must have been right as the following information popped up as he thought about the tomb restoration skill. Here is the list of things that can be restored with the current tomb restoration Iranka skill. Tomb decoration restoration dexterity D rank or higher, tomb path restoration radius 2 meters dexterity C rank or higher Juhian soon started to smile. However, there was someone screaming next to Juhian. Egu, are we all going to die like this? Egu, Egu. That was Yu Jaiha who was trying to dig the blocked wall with his hands. They could only move a few steps because the tomb had crumbled. We will suffocate to death in a few minutes. They became desperate because it was already difficult to breathe. 
Damn it, I haven't found myself a rabbit-like wife and have a daughter. Damn it, I can't die at the young age of 26. Mr. Ju Hien, are we going to die like this? It was normal for people to be afraid in such a situation, but Ju Hien responded as if he found them annoying. It's fine, so both of you stop whining. Both of them became shocked after hearing that. Whining? How can you be so calm even in such a situation? Ju Hien then clicked his tongue as if to tell him to shut up for a bit. Yu Jeha. You signed the contract I gave you, right? Excuse me? It said that, during the duration of the contract, the promisee will be responsible for the promiser's necessities of life, safety, and health from illnesses. I know it said that, but... He wondered if even Ju Hien could keep such a promise in this situation. But Ju Hien calmly smiled and looked at the two of them. I won't let any punks I make into my subordinates die. No, I guess it is more accurate to say, I won't let you all die again. Ju Hien was still pained about what happened in that final tomb. I won't let my client die either. Those words made Irene who had been shaking like a hamster and Yu Jeha both look at him with teary eyes. Then we can get out of here. Really? Ju Hien started to stretch his hands. I would have died a long time ago if I would let a trick like this bury me alive. He had made up his mind to blow up even his important artifacts to get out of here. But there was something that was worth testing before resorting to that. That was why Ju Hien put his hand on the ground. Tomb Restoration It wasn't hard to use. This skill was similar to the ability he had received through the archaeologist's artifact in the past. And lo and behold! Something amazing started to happen once Ju Hien focused his attention on his fingertips. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Ju Hien's hand seemed to flash before the spot his hand was touching started to change. W, what is going on? The path? That was indeed the case. The crumbled wall returned to its original spot as if it was going back in time. The path that had been completely destroyed slowly reappeared as well. The area around them instantly became a bit wider. Irene and Yujeha screamed in joy after seeing that. The path appeared. That was amazing. However, Ju Hien did not seem to be satisfied. This is not enough. Only about 30 centimeters of the path had been restored. However, the information said that the radius was 2 meters. Please. Ju Hien frowned and focused once more, and a bright light flashed and something even bigger than last time happened. The distance of the restoration was getting wider. It seemed to be about 2 m wide. Ju Hien finally smiled with satisfaction. I did it. We should be able to make it out on time like this. Ju Hien recalled the direction of the exit and continued to use the skill over and over. It was still too low in rank to restore the entire tomb at once, but this was enough for now. How is it? You still haven't found those bastards. About three or four hours had passed since the tomb had crumbled. Kira rushed her subordinates with an anxious heart. She thought that Ju Hien should have suffocated to death or be on the brink of death because of oxygen deficiency by now. Hurry up and find them, hurry. It would have been a waste if she used her artifact braving the risk if those bastards managed to escape. Kira then looked at the clock. There's less than 30 minutes left before the rebound from using the artifact happens. So hurry up and find them. They have artifacts on them. You should be able to quickly locate them if you use a search artifact. Roger. We have split up into teams to focus on different areas. The TSOF were using search artifacts to look for Ju Hien's group who should have been buried alive. These artifacts were similar to mine detectors. They were walking around the outside of the destroyed tomb and digging anywhere they got a reaction. A destroyed tomb was just debris, so it was possible to drill through with modern weapons to get inside. They quickly came back with good news. Reporting in. Team 1 has got a reaction. Kira was happy. However M. Kira started to frown as something seemed wrong. What is it? Hurry up and tell me. The soldier on the other end seemed anxious even after hearing Kira's question. Kira's insides were burning the longer the silence continued. What is going on? Hurry up and report. No, that you see. 
Do you want me to decapitate all of you? I asked you what is going on. An anxious voice responded as if there really was a sword up against his neck. Apparently there is a path inside the tomb. What? A path? Yes ma'am. Everywhere else is destroyed but there is only one area with an undamaged path. It is not an underground tunnel. Apparently it looks as if only that path was not damaged at all. What bullshit was this? Kira was extremely shocked. I destroyed everything so that there wasn't even a tiny hole, so why is there still a path? However, the general then heard something even more shocking that made it feel as if someone had smacked her on the back of her head. Reporting in. That path we mentioned seems to be connected to a village one kilometer away. Kira felt dizzy at this point. What are you talking about? I thought there was a reaction to an artifact. What about that? That is something that we presume to be a piece of a sweet potato. We have no other reactions other than that. The other team only found corpses of our fellow soldiers. I believe the chances that they escaped through this path. Kira dropped the coffee mug in her hand. How the hell could this happen? What else could it be? Yu Jeha who managed to escape thanks to Juhian's tomb restoration skill shouted in joy. Wow, our Captain Nim is the best. You're so amazing. Yu Jeha was busy praising Juhian while being full of loyalty toward Juhian. I will follow you for the rest of my life, Captain Nim. They were currently getting on the Holton family private plane. It had been three hours since they first became stuck inside the tomb. It was plenty of time to escape from the tomb and head to the airport. They were currently getting ready to depart. Actually, they had managed to get out of the cave and get to the airport in two hours. That was why Ju Hian was leisurely bathing while Yu Jeha was laughing as he watched something on his tablet. The TSOF bastards are busy shoveling. Yu Jeha seemed to be watching a Turkish news broadcast. There were intruders to Cappadocia's tomb appearance. We are currently searching for the intruders but there are no signs of them. The search team has found a path inside the tomb and is extending the search radius to the nearby village. Ju Hian snorted from inside the bathtub after hearing the news. What's the point of searching the nearby village? We'll be in the air. Ha! Huh. Yu Jeha looked toward the bathroom in shock after hearing Ju Hian's comment. It could not be helped because he was reading the English subtitles. But Ju Hian who was taking a bath should not be able to see that. What the, Captain Nim, you know Turkish too. Why? Is it weird if I do? Damn it, Captain Nim, how many languages can you speak? Furthermore, the announcer was talking very quickly, so it was obvious that Ju Hian was not a beginner. Ju Hian just chuckled regardless of whether Yu Jeha was shocked or not. It was at that moment. The only item we found that could potentially belong to the intruders is a piece of sweet potato. That is why the search team will do their best to investigate this piece huh? A piece of sweet potato? It wasn't translated in the subtitles, but the piece of information he just heard was odd. Hey! Number 1. You gathered every piece of the self-destructed artifacts, right? Excuse me? Ah, uh, yes. What about it? I wanted to try to restore them because it was such a waste. But you left the sweet potato artifacts pieces behind? Yu Jeha started to laugh. Ah! That thing? I threw it away because it stunk so bad. Why? Did something happen? No, it's fine. Might as well let them take it to Kira to waste their time investigating. Anyway, we achieved our goal. Juhian started to smile. Irene should be able to control her artifact as she pleases now. Furthermore, Juhian should be able to use the power of gold and the power of destitution as he pleased as well. Juhian had now gained the hand of gold. Now I just need to wrap my hand around the Holton household as well. The Holton family should reach out to him since he managed to successfully complete their beloved youngest daughter's request. As expected, Irene quickly rushed in with some news. Mr. Juhian. Mr. Ju Hian. She was smiling brightly as she looked around for Ju Hian. She found Yu Jeha lounging around, but she didn't seem to care for him at all. 
Irene wasn't thinking straight and walked into the bathroom where Juhian was taking a bath before she screamed. Kaya. I, I'm sorry. No, you see, that. She must have never seen a man's naked body before as she plopped down and covered her flushed face as she apologized. The Holton household was a strict Catholic household, so it was understandable that she had no experience with a man's naked body. Ju Hien's clothes had not completely melted away when they were inside the tomb. But Ju Hien didn't care whether Irene was flustered or not and calmly responded. It's fine. What's all the fuss about? Ah that. I chatted with my family and my parents and my brother want to meet with you. Yu Jeha started to shake in fear after hearing that while Ju Hien smiled wickedly as if things were going according to his plan. That's perfect. There was something I wanted to meet them and tell them about as well. Chapter, 67 You want to meet with them to tell them something? Yu Jeha frowned after hearing Ju Hien say that. You're not planning to ask them for their precious daughter, right? Excuse me. Irene was the one who was shocked after hearing that. But Yu Jeha just started to whistle and set the mood. Wow, you're going to have such a beauty as your wife. I'm so jealous, ah. As your first employee, I get special perks in not having to give you a monetary gift to celebrate. W, wait a minute. Excuse me. Ju Hien started to mess with Irene more after seeing her being flustered. Why are you so embarrassed? You hugged me with your naked body not too long ago. Irene, who recalled what happened at the tomb, seemed to have lost her mind. I, I'm sorry if you found it to be unpleasant. I wasn't thinking straight when I did that. Why would it have been unpleasant? Honestly speaking, someone at Irene's level was difficult to handle for even an artifact file like Juhian. It would be one thing if he was in his sick 38 years old body, but he was currently a very healthy 23 years old man. Juhian chuckled. I'm joking. Please don't be so gullible. It'll lead you to a lot of trouble in the future. Irene blanked out for a moment after hearing that he was joking. In fact, she felt a bit disappointed. She couldn't tell why she felt that way. Ju Hien received a text at that moment. Hey, you dull pumpkin. You're not supposed to say that it is a joke at that moment. Yu Jeha must have been so frustrated to the point that he sent Ju Hien an angry text. Ju Hien started to frown. I'm not supposed to say it's a joke. Then you want me to seduce her on purpose? Yu Jeha seemed nervous after seeing that response. Ha. Huh. You're not interested in Irene. She is pretty. It seemed as if his subordinate wanted to swear after hearing that. Damn it, you damn artifact file. Seduce her even if you don't like her. What are you going to do with that handsome face of yours? Let's just gobble up the Holton family's wealth. Ju Hien just scoffed. Damn it, you damn wedding scammer bastard. Enough. I've almost lost my life about twenty times doing things like that. What? What the FCK are you going around doing? What am I doing? I just scammed some people back in the days. He had approached women on purpose to take their artifacts. There were professors, wealthy heiresses, Hollywood actresses, and even princesses on that list. Although it was terrible, what could he do? It was Chairman Kwan's orders and his job. However, they say that the problems from foolish infatuations are the dirtiest in the world. That was why Ju Hien had faced all sorts of terrible things as revenge. Because of that I won't make any women problems anymore. I won't tie myself to the Holton family like that either. The Holton household was quite amazing and Inspector Kim who has been asking him for a niece or nephew would be very happy, but Ju Hien had no plans on dating or getting married. He didn't even have enough time to gather all the artifacts he wanted and firm his foundation. A business relationship with the Holton household is good enough. That was why Ju Hien said the following to Irene. Then please don't hug just anyone while you are naked from now on. That can be dangerous. That seemed to have made Irene recall that moment as she quietly squealed. I'm sorry. And please keep that story a secret to my family. Excuse me. Irene put her hand over her face. She was certain that her religious parents would come charging in with a marriage license if they learned about that. 
that was why Irene was in despair. Oh no, I might end up causing Mr. Juhian harm. However, the plane was flying toward New York regardless of how Irene was feeling. Ho, oh, now what is this? Richard gasped in disbelief while on the video call. It was because there was something weird going on on the other side of the screen. Kira should have been on the screen. Yes, he checked and it was supposed to be that way. Why is there an infant? Richard could not ask the question in shock. However, the clothes the baby was wearing was Kira's military uniform. Of course, it was too big so it could not really be called clothes for the baby. Um, are you really General Kira? Wah. Um, General Nim. Wah. There's no way we can talk like this. Richard sighed and tried to hang up. He didn't know what was going on, but it looked as if Kira's artifact's risk had activated again. I think General Kira said she had Sekhmet's artifact. The Egyptian Sekhmet was a goddess of destruction who was sent to the world to punish people. She was the transformed appearance of Hathor, the goddess of love and beauty. Maybe that was the reason. General Kira's risk was said to be a transformation. The shape of her body would change. It was fine up to that point, but the scary part was that even she did not know what she would transform into. He's heard that she's transformed into animals, inanimate objects such as trees, furniture, dolls, and even underwear and a worm. The time it took to return to her original appearance was different each time as well. She would remain in that appearance for months if it was serious. That was why this was quite a difficult artifact to handle. However this is driving me crazy. She turned into a baby this time, Richard sighed. I understand. I don't think we can communicate right now so I will call again next time. The baby on the other side of the screen started to slam down on the table in response. Wah! 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 The baby seemed quite angry. But it only put Richard in an awkward situation. Damn it, so what if you are angry? We can't discuss anything if we can't understand each other. A frustrated Kira huffed before sending a message through her cell phone. He could tell how angry she was based on the message. Are you looking down on me because I'm a baby? I may be a Bwabi, but I Quan still communicate. Richard sighed while looking at the typo-filled message. Could this really be called communicating? Okay fine. But it's not like you can go outside looking like that. That was indeed the case. Although Richard coincidentally saw her like this, only a few people knew about Kira's risk. Kira who made it so even most of her subordinates could not see her right now was shaking. Damn it. I can't let people know about this risk. But it should be okay. Only people she could trust knew about this risk and none of the enemies knew. Anyway, we are investigating the sweet potato we formed. Analysis used will find out everything. You can look forward to it. Anyway, we are investigating the sweet potato we found. We are using the analysis type artifacts so we should be able to get some information on that bastard. You can look forward to it. It was still a messy combination of letters, but Richard laughed as he understood what she was trying to say. Oh, that's one of the few good news I've heard lately. Kira's personal secretary came into the room as if to respond to that statement. General Nim. Something bad has happened. Wah. What is it? Um, we urgently analyzed the sweet potato artifact as you ordered. Wah. Wah. Good. What are the results? Kira looked toward her subordinate with anticipation. She had thought that they would be able to use a reverse tracking artifact to gather information on Juhian. That my apologies. The entire investigation team ended up fainting because of an unknown deadly gas. I'm sorry but I don't think it is possible to analyze it. Wah. Richard put his hand on his forehead as he listened. Egu. Is it really okay to work together with this woman? Based on the file you gave me, it looks as if the Holton household is involved in this situation. They had naturally found out the Holton household's involvement after investigating the airport. Juhian had expected as much, as they would have found out about it as long as they were not idiots. The Holton household seems to be colluding with CO Juhian. Do you think the Holtons may be his sponsor? 
They had learned that Seo Juhian was the one who had been in the tomb and that he was with some woman. It was that way at the auction house as well. It's likely that he was with Irene Holton, but however, it made no sense that the Holtons were working with Juhian. There was a simple reason for it. The Holtons are Catholic and treat artifacts as the devil. They had tried to get the Holtons to join Pandora many times, but they were shut down each time. Kira responded by text. No chwants they are his sponsor. But based on what I've heard, only Bois dings happen to those around the Holton Wayman. No chance they are his sponsor. But based on what I've heard, only bad things happen to those around the Holton woman. Do you think it is the power of an artifact? The chances are high but I want it if it is an artifact that can spread daster. The chances are high. But I want it if it is an artifact that can spread disaster. Richard chuckled at her statement. I told you to leave them to me. Today happens to be that day. NWO that I tink abu at it, yesterday was D-Day. Will it boo okay? Now that I think about it, yesterday was D-Day. Will it be okay? Yes ma'am. No matter how they try to fly or crawl, they are simple civilians in the face of power. Richard started to smile. He had a certain way to tie Ju Hian's hands and feet. As expected, Ju Hian's group was frowning once they arrived at the airport. This is an investigation. Nobody can leave the airport until the search is completed. They were currently at John F. Kennedy International Airport in New York. It was because the Holton private plane was a giant jet and not a small plane, so the plane was maintained at the airport. That much was fine. We found an artifact user. Get them. Let go of me. You bastard. They saw some pests that had shut down the airport and were using search type artifacts. They were using artifacts to search long distances at once. Anyone in possession of artifacts who were noticed by those artifacts were dragged away. Most of the soldiers were TSOF while there were people wearing uniforms they had never seen before going around the airport as well. They seemed to be Pandora soldiers. Of course, the news was saying the following about this situation. There was a joint declaration for Pandora at the G20 summit meeting in Paris yesterday. Artifacts are a social evil at the level of nuclear weapons, a Pandora's box that will bring chaos into the world. That is why we are forbidding civilians from approaching tombs or owning or selling artifacts. All tombs and artifacts will now be handled by Pandora, the International Tomb Administration Organization, and anyone in possession of artifacts will be arrested without exception and the artifacts will be confiscated immediately anyone who opposes will be labeled a terrorist. Regardless of their nationality, they will be punished in the country where the incident has happened. In short, there were now restrictions and suppression of artifact ownership throughout the world. Many artifact users were discovered and ruthlessly arrested as if the soldiers had been waiting for this moment. Ju Hian also received the following message. The eyes of the wide area search have discovered your artifacts. Artifact users are rushing over. Damn it, even though I have been hiding the artifacts auras. The fact that they were discovered probably meant that they were using a high-grade search type artifact. The news on Ujeha's tablet continued as that happened. Tombs and artifacts will be safely investigated by the best excavation team that Pandora will create Pandora will use the artifacts for the safety of the people. These new regulations are being enforced worldwide since the joint declaration for Pandora, so we ask for everyone's cooperation. Ujeha shouted after seeing people being dragged out of the airport. What do we do? They're going to take all of our artifacts and treat us as terrorists at this rate. Ju Hian then started to scoff. These bastards had come earlier than he had expected, but they really were annoying. Based on this broadcast, nobody other than people Pandora dictates could even touch an artifact or go into a tomb. It didn't matter in the past since I was under Chairman Quan who was part of Pandora, but Yu Jeha looked around and started to grind his teeth. Damn it, what do we do? If it is like this. Ju Hian sighed at that moment. I have no choice if it is like this. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. We can't just sit back and let them do as they please. Both Yu Jeha and Irene gasped. Excuse me. But how can a person go up against an organization made up of multiple countries? 
Ju Hian smiled and grabbed Irene's hand instead of responding. Shouldn't we properly test out the precious artifact we just gained? It was time to test the Monarch of Destitution's artifact as Ju Hian mentioned. Chapter, 68 Test Irene's Artifact The sharp Yu Jeha seemed to have realized what Ju Hian was trying to do. You're not talking about using the destitution ability to FCK them up, are you? Yes. You're absolutely right. Yu Jeha could not close his mouth after seeing Ju Hian smile. Although he was saying that, Ju Hian actually believed there should be an artifact administration organization. There needed to be an organization that could take care of artifact dealing, ranking, user handling, civilian protecting, and artifact related laws, things that a country could not do on their own. However the current Pandora can't be that organization. Its members were a serious problem. It was also an issue that a terrible law was issued because of them, not allowing him to use artifacts. I need your cooperation for that reason, is that okay? Irene nodded her head at Ju Hian's question. She was happy to cooperate as much as he wanted. Ju Hian was her savior, and based on the broadcast, she would end up as a terrorist like this as well. That was enough reason to cooperate, but but Mr. Ju Hian. I'm not very good at using artifacts yet. Ju Hian started to smile. That's okay. Just do as I tell you. Of course, it would not be easy to handle a SS grade artifact. However, the basic methods were the same regardless of whether they were low or high grade artifacts. Ju Hian then calmly started to speak. There are dominance, affinity, and fit when it comes to handling an artifact, but fit is useless and you should just feed affinity to your dog. So, just follow after me. You will be using your dominance. Ju Hian grabbed Irene's left hand and interlocked their fingers. It was so that he could suppress Midas's artifact if it went berserk. However, his hand movement felt very practiced and somewhat erotic that Irene became nervous and flinched. Ah, uh, wait. Ju Hian ignored her response, smiled, and started to speak. Okay, shout after me. Ah, uh, yes. Ju Hian smiled as if he was satisfied with that response. Okay. First, how dare a damn artifact. H, how dare a damn artifact. Louder. Your voice is still too quiet. Good. Next. Artifact, submit to me. A, artifact, submit to me. Yu Jeha had a suspicious expression on his face as he watched. Is it just me or does this feel like he's scamming her? We captured a total of 14 artifact users at the airport. Reporting in. The artifact users resisted, but we were able to successfully suppress them. Pandora's Colonel Morgan smiled after hearing the reports coming in. Good. We were able to protect the citizens from the dangers of terrorism thanks to your acts. The people who had taken over the airport had received the important first mission of announcing Pandora's beginning. They were to confiscate artifacts from civilians and punish the artifact users. There was a simple reason for it. They were using them as examples. Humans needed to be dominated with fear, so they were severely punishing artifact users to make everyone else not even think about owning an artifact. Furthermore, they were instilling the thought that artifacts were things they should fear and stay away from. This should make it smooth sailing for Pandora. Pandora's influence would be embedded deep into the world. They were trying to scare people into thinking artifacts were disasters instead of tools to desire. Their plan was to make people support Pandora overseeing the artifacts without any question. As for the part where they were supposedly doing this for the citizens? They can eat shit. The artifacts they legally confiscated would be handed to Pandora's members, sponsors, and member countries in the name of protection. People associated with Pandora will use artifacts and receive significantly high annual salaries as well. That was why they were shouting with all their might as they roamed around the airport. Artifacts are disasters that threaten humans, anybody using them are all future terrorists. Please cooperate as we confiscate all artifacts. All you have to do is stand still. Pandora will take care of everything. They received a new piece of information through their wireless communicator. Reporting in. We have located an artifact not too far away. There are three people. 
They were using long-distance search artifacts to investigate. Although there were many different search type artifacts, they were mainly using inspector-related artifacts. Police notepad belonging to Javert who could not catch Jean Valjean B-grade, rare-grade, consumable artifact Scotland Yard's Inspector Lestrade's inspection log A-grade, treasure-grade, consumable artifact the sharp eyes of the woodcutter looking for the bathing fairy B-grade, rare-grade, consumable artifact of course, the investigation team had over ten other artifacts in addition to those. Morgan who had easily arrested those other artifact users talked as if he found this to be ridiculous. There truly are many people who were hiding artifacts. Things could have been terrible without our Pandora. That's right. We must protect the citizens from the terrorists. Of course, they were more interested in benefiting from the artifacts than the safety of the citizens. It was at that moment. Reporting in. One of the artifacts detected on the three people seemed serious. What? One person has an art type restoration artifact, another person has miscellaneous artifacts and a sword type artifact, but the last person seems to have an artifact related to wealth. Morgan started to smile after hearing that. He didn't pay attention to anything else. He was thinking artifacts related to wealth are especially desired. Pandora had artifacts that they gave a high amount of points for bringing in. Naturally, artifacts that would benefit countries and the Colossus would get high points, and artifacts related to wealth were one of them. Morgan was someone who had risen to Colonel because of his pretty high artifact dominance. As someone who was greedy to get an even higher position, he was overjoyed that he could earn some points with this. We will get rid of them and steal the artifact. Where are they located? They are near Gate 4. Morgan moved the soldiers after hearing the location on the wireless communicator. This is an issue that can get me promoted. They quickly moved until they located three youngsters. The brown-haired boy who seemed to be around mid-170 cms in height seemed innocent but the boy who was around low-180 cms in height looked like someone who would punch you if you said the wrong thing. Then the skinny girl was so beautiful that his jaws dropped. Morgan started to frown while looking at them. The only thing that is certain is that one of them has the wealth-related artifact. They confidently pointed their swords and surrounded Juhian's group. They were all people who had received hellish training to deal with artifact users. They were all artifact users who had enough physical strength to suppress other artifact users. Every artifact user inside the airport had been suppressed by them. Don't move. The civilians screamed and moved away after seeing around fifty soldiers pointing their guns. Yu Jeha also raised both hands while shaking. Ju Hien was the only one not shaking during that situation. In fact, Ju Hien looked as if he was looking down on them. What is it? You're going to try to catch us. Pandora's soldiers started to frown. Hand over your artifacts without resistance. Otherwise, you will be considered as terrorists and killed. Ju Hien just scoffed. Under what authority? This bastard must not understand his situation. This is based on international law. This is all legal. Are you planning on turning the entire world against you? The items in your hands are dangerous items similar to nuclear weapons. Hand them over right now. This is all for the citizens. We will question the three of you after that. Yu Jeha who had been holding back sneered as if he needed to say what he needed to say. Hey moron I mean, hey mister. I get everything you are saying, okay? I get that you are working hard for the citizens, but this lady's artifact is stuck to her body so she can't put it down, okay? What are you asking her to drop? He said that thinking it was a way out, but the Pandora people did not budge. In that situation, we will move you to Pandora's isolation facility. Based on the inspection results, you will either be completely isolated or learn how to use the artifact properly within Pandora's facility. Everything is for the safety of the citizens. Although he was using so many words to say it, they would be forcibly moved to Pandora's facility either way. Irene would have to use her powers for Pandora if she ended up being dragged to the facility. There was no way the three of them could feel good knowing the true intentions behind these bastards' actions. However, the Pandora soldiers triumphantly smiled. Now then, the woman can follow us while the other two can hand. Juhian snorted at that moment. Get lost. 
The soldiers questioned what they just heard. What did you just say? I told you to get lost. Unless you wish to die. Hey bastard, how dare you say such bullshit. We're past the warning phase. Fire. They started to shoot once the command was given. However, something shocking happened at that moment. Bang. 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 Ah. The area was suddenly full of screaming. The weapons they tried to fire had exploded and injured the soldiers. They couldn't help but become anxious. Why did our weapon suddenly? However, Morgan who realized the situation quickly started to shout. This is not something we can take care of with weapons. Quickly proceed to phase two. They quickly took out numerous artifacts Pandora had assigned them. They were consumable artifacts that were only to be used if they could not suppress the users with weapons. Who did you say you were trying to capture? Juhian laughed as if they were ridiculous. Pandora soldiers definitely were all talented artifact users. Many artifact users were captured by them in the past. Quite a few were captured by them now as well. However, Juhian was an infamous artifact user among all those artifact users. It was normal for him to be chased and threatened as if he was on the international wanted list. He did not live such a soft life to be captured by these bastards. It's obvious Richard, Kira, or one of those bastards plotted to steal my artifacts. Juhian threatened them instead. Let me give you a warning. Put your artifacts away instead of wasting their limited uses. Otherwise, you will get hurt. Don't pay him any attention. Use them. The different artifacts started to roar and show their abilities after the colonel shouted. They were all strong artifacts as they were assigned to handle artifact users. I see humans, kill them. How exciting. Let's kill. Let's kill. Don't say I didn't warn you. Juhian then peeked toward Irene. Irene quickly activated the strong hand of Midas after receiving Juhian's signal. She was not using Midas's golden field but the destitution field. A bright light soon flashed before the ill omen of disaster descended upon the airport. Bang! And that might have been the day all those artifacts died. Chapter, 69 Boom! An aura of disaster that transcended all imagination started to spread throughout the airport. Now that it was dominated properly, the power of the artifact was much stronger and scarier than before. Of course, the ones that received the most damage were naturally Pandora's artifacts. Wah, wah. I finally came out after a long time to show off my powers, but what the hell is this? A message popped up in front of Juhian as if to show him the pain the artifacts were going through. The savage hand of destitution has descended on the entire airport. An area with a radius of one kilometer has forcibly turned into a destitution field. An unfavorable situation will befall all wealth-related issues. The strong aura of ill omen is making the enemy artifacts suffer significant pain. There are probably no artifacts that could survive this disaster. Something happened to the artifacts in Pandora soldiers' hands as soon as that message popped up. Crack, crack. The artifacts that could not overcome the aura of disaster started to crack. And then bang. 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 Artifacts after artifacts started to break one after another. It looked as if light bulbs were exploding all around them. This made the Pandora soldiers start to scream. T, the artifacts. Our artifacts. They became anxious while looking at the artifacts that had turned to powder. How could these artifacts that wouldn't even get a scratch on them when they tried to destroy them end up like this? Juhian shamelessly snickered as if they had it coming. See, I warned you. I told you to put your artifacts away. You. You guys are amazing but you picked the wrong person to mess with. You bastard. The soldiers who had instantly lost their artifacts all glared at Juhian. However, Juhian viciously smiled and walked toward them. All of their artifacts were probably marked by a divine grade artifact called the E-Pandora system so their locations were being tracked. That was why the right choice was to destroy all of them instead of stealing them. Some of the soldiers fell on their asses as Juhian got closer. These were the young soldiers. 
They had received a lot of artifact training until now, but this was something they could not have ever imagined. I don't know what it is, but he has a suspicious artifact. There was a saying that said an unidentified enemy was the scariest in the world. It would be weird if they weren't scared of Juhian after losing their weapons and their artifacts. D, don't come any closer. Colonel Morgan shouted viciously after hearing one of his subordinates shout like that. That stupid idiot. How dare he show such a reaction to a damn terrorist. However, Colonel Morgan could not finish his sentence. It was because Juhian got close and roughly grabbed his collar. Ugh. Juhian smirked and started to frown. Terrorist. You should keep your fking bullshit straight. What? If we are terrorists for having artifacts, doesn't that make you guys terrorists as well? Morgan shouted in anger. Don't treat us the same as you bastards. We are users who have received permission ugh. However, Morgan coughed up blood mid-sentence. It was the same for the other Pandora soldiers as well. However, Juhian's group and the regular civilians were fine for some reason. They did not know why they had coughed up blood. However, Juhian's eyes flashed as he started to speak again. Go back to Pandora and tell them this. Get rid of that nonsense of a law if they don't want to die. You, ugh. I got it, so. Well, it's not like you guys will listen even if I tell you like this. The corners of Juhian's lips started to go up as he continued. People who don't understand with words seem to understand after suffering a bit themselves. And voila, the artifacts that had not yet cracked started to heat up as soon as Juhian said that. Ow, so hot. The soldiers dropped the artifacts that were heating up too much. A message popped up at the same time. The artifacts that were unable to stand the strong power of destitution are destroying themselves. You have learned about the existence of the artifact slaughterer title. Your dominance has increased exponentially. Bong. Even the high-grade artifacts self-destructed without fail. It was just extra that the airport was destroyed as well. There was an explosion at John F. Kennedy International Airport on March 12 at 2 p.m. The airport was destroyed as a result of this incident and although no civilians were harmed in the incident, the civic groups and foreign press have proclaimed that Pandora will not be able to avoid responsibility for this. This is really driving me nuts. A meeting at the Pandora headquarters in Paris. Richard, one of Pandora's leaders, had a headache because of this incident. This was an important time where Pandora needed to receive favorable opinion from the public to spread its wings. But what? We destroyed an airport. Make the reporters shut their mouths. C.O. Juhi and that bastard was the one who destroyed the airport. However, it did not seem that way to the civilians at all. What they saw was that Pandora had not maintained their artifacts properly, leading to their explosion and the resulting damage. However, these were the articles being posted regardless of whether it was true, driving Pandora's leaders crazy. U.S. Civic Group, if they want to create an international artifact administration organization, they should be adept at handling artifacts. China, it was illogical to leave artifacts to Pandora without having any proof they could handle it. They should stop pushing countries to become members. If it is like this, they should get rid of any thoughts about receiving support people were concerned. That was obvious. Pandora who was supposed to protect the civilians destroyed an airport because they could not handle their artifacts properly. There are many organizations being created that are aggressively pushing for Pandora to be disbanded. They are saying Pandora is using a weird law to unfairly profit. We must reveal the truth to restore Pandora's reputation. We need to first capture that Seo Juhian bastard. We must figure out why the artifacts were destroyed. We have almost no information on him. Honestly speaking, this situation was what Juhian wanted to happen. If he could not destroy Pandora yet, he could start by shaking different parts of its foundation one by one. They would lose power if Pandora did not receive support and he could get rid of that shitty law where civilians could not be in possession of artifacts. And he managed to destroy Pandora's image to a degree. Richard was grinding his teeth as a result. They had finally prepared this law to easily gather artifacts but it was already in such peril. Damn it. It looks like the divine-grade artifact users will need to deal with Seo Juhian. 
As interim director, Richard banged on the table as the members started to argue and fight. Fine. We will postpone Pandora personally capturing artifact users. We will leave that to each country. We will also put Seo Juhian, Yu Jaeha, and Irene Holton on the wanted list and name them as dangerous individuals throughout the world. Many of the members flinched after hearing that. Wait, hold on. When you say Irene Holton is she not from that Holton household? Are you sure it is okay to mess with them? That's right. It looks like that Seo Juhian person has some connections to the Holton household. Wouldn't it be better to make a backdoor deal than to put them on the wanted list? However, the people who said that ended up being treated as idiots. Please stay quiet if you don't know anything. Do you think we have just been sucking on our thumbs? We contacted the Holton household right away. We mentioned his sister and CEO Juhian. Do you know what George Holton said? What did he say? He told us to get lost if we don't want to end up being destroyed along with these satanic artifacts. He treated us as fools. They could not say anything after hearing that. Oh my that guy is still the same. What about the parents? We cannot contact them. I'm sure they are ignoring our calls. That is why we plan on making examples out of all three of them. That will make it easier to draw in the other artifact users. That's right. The Holton family just considers artifacts to be the devil. Their thought process has not evolved since that of the Middle Ages. There seemed to be members who had a bad relationship with the Holtons as more people chimed in. Then they all started to laugh. They had no idea that their action would end up waking up a wild beast. Aegu, we're dead now. Yu Jaeha lamented as if the world was ending as he read a news article. They were currently in a luxurious and spacious bends while heading to one of the Holton family's ten estates. They successfully cut Pandora's image down, but the problem was the article that came up after the airport incident. Airport terrorist incident trio set to have the highest bounty. Bounty, a bounty? They put a ten million dollar ten billion one bounty on our heads. Agu, the world's worst criminals have an average of five million dollar bounties but look at this. It made sense that Yujeha who didn't want to be arrested by Interpol would shriek. However, Juhian didn't even snort while looking at the article. Is this how they want to play? In fact, Juhian looked annoyed. It was one thing to have a bounty on his head, but only ten million dollars. Are they looking down on me? The bounty on his head as the captain of the tomb raiding team in the past was $70 million so it was normal that $10 million seemed quite low. Furthermore, your bounty was higher than mine, you damn monarch of fraud. The impact that the monarchs had on the world could not be described with words. Of course, Ujeha's bounty was the lowest among the monarchs as his level of danger was quite low compared to the others. There was also another reason Juhian didn't care much about this bounty. There were bounties on all artifact users in his past world and the bounties ended up being considered an artifact user's level of worth. There were times they would end up being scouted because of how high their bounty was. That wasn't the only thing. He had successfully landed the first blow on Pandora and managed to check the impact of the artifact of destitution, so he benefited in the end. But it would be annoying to already have a bounty on his head. Well, I guess the only way is to be friendly with the Holtons and have them handle it. That was why Juhian was looking at the monarch of destitution with a focused gaze. Irene was his important cornerstone. Everything is perfect if I can make the Holtons mine. In that sense, Irene was the medium to grab the entire Holton family. It would be bad if something happened to her. Juhian asked a question after having that thought. Is there anywhere that hurts or anything that seems odd? Huh? No. Not at all. Why? Irene looked toward Juhian but Juhian just coolly turned his head. That's good. Just let me know if anything changes in your body. Yu Jaeha, who saw Irene's expression, clicked his tongue toward Juhian. Sigh, that damn artifact file. Did he need to help him? But Juhian was interested in something else. He was thinking about the risk. Consumable artifacts that made up about 80% of all artifacts usually did not have risks. Why? Artifacts were bastards who enjoyed seeing people fighting, harming, and killing each other. 
Their goal was to make it easy for anyone to use them to kill as many people. But people would hesitate if there was a risk to use them. They would lower the walls as much as possible to make it easy for more people to use them. Artifacts wanted to see as many people in pain even at the cost of cutting away at themselves. That was why although there was a limit to how many times consumable artifacts could be used, there were no risks. However, possession-type artifacts were different. Possession-type artifacts could only have one master. In that case, where would these bastards find joy? The answer was obvious. They bother their master. This was why possession-type artifacts always carried a risk that bothered the user. Of course, artifacts and their risks were all over the place that some people might not even find the risk to be a risk while others would consider it to be like hell. Because of that I'm sure Irene has a risk as well. The higher grade possession type artifacts came with more difficult risks. However, even a beating hurts less if you get it earlier as the saying goes, it was important to make her use her artifact to figure out that risk. Juhian could plan around it once he knew. Well, I will need to figure it out before we properly attack Pandora. It happened at that moment. The moment the car entered the Holton parking lot. Kaya. Irene who was sitting next to him suddenly screamed. Juhian and Yujeha quickly looked toward her in shock. What's going on? It was because Irene's body started to glow as a weird change started to happen. Juhian could not help but anxiously jump up. Is her risk finally starting? Chapter, 70 Juhian who had jumped up approached Irene. Irene had her hand over her chest and her head was down as if she was in pain. Are you okay? Hey. He had expected there to be a risk as Irene was using an SS grade possession type artifact. However, Ju Hien had not been very worried. Why? There were many extraordinary risks and the monarch of destitution in the past did not hesitate to use her powers. That was why he did not expect it to be a risk that burdened her body. But had it changed to a different risk after the artifact became whole? Was it now a risk that gave her pain? Actually, all of that didn't matter right now. Ju Hien clicked his tongue and grabbed Irene's thin arm. I have no choice. I have to suppress it with dominance for now. He would end up being attacked if he did that, but it didn't matter. He could resist because of his tolerance, but Irene could not. Irene is not someone who is used to being attacked by artifacts either. Artifacts were important, but the client's safety came first. It happened at that moment. Irene who seemed to be in pain raised her head as if nothing was wrong. However, the problem started from there. Ha! Huh. Ju Hien and Yu Jeha both gasped at the same time once she raised her head. It was because Irene was starting to strip. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. The way she was doing it was so sexy that it was giving off a charm that could bewitch any man. H, hold on. Yu Jeha became flustered and looked around. However, Irene did not stop. As she stripped off layer by layer and her cleavage became visible boom. Yu Jeha dropped the tablet in his hand and screamed. It was because Irene looked even more beautiful than usual. Of course, he couldn't tell whether she really became more beautiful because of the artifact or if it was his brain playing a trick. However, there was some type of seductive aura that would make 200 out of 100 men and even women lose their rationalities and fall for her. But at that moment, Irene, who had stripped down about halfway, pushed Ju Hien down. Even an artifact file like Ju Hien was about to lose his mind. That reached the peak when she sensually started to climb on top of Ju Hien. The way her hand caressed his chest, her light physique that he could easily sweep up with one hand, and her womanly fragrance that seemed to paralyze his thoughts. Irene's long blonde hair swept down on top of Ju Hien's face as well. Hee hee, Mr. Ju Hien. Irene was smiling lewdly as she slowly leaned her body on Ju Hien's body. Her seductive gaze that was looking at Ju Hien seemed full of desire and allure. But her expression seemed innocent, as if she was questioning if she was doing this right. Ju Hien wondered if he should just stop thinking as her face got so close that he could feel her breath on his lips. He was about to lose all rationality even as a message like this had popped up. Warning. The hand of greed is desiring your body. He was certain. 
this was a risk. He was certain it would be harmful as it was an artifact's risk, but Ju Hian found it dangerous once Irene's chest touched his body. And the moment her sweet lips were right about to touch his own. Plop. Irene fainted and landed on Ju Hian's chest. Ju Hian could not help but look at her with a flustered expression after what just happened. However, Irene was sniffing Ju Hian's body odor as she fell asleep holding onto him as if he was a giant teddy bear. Thanks to that, Ju Hian was at a loss for words as he looked at Irene. Her face looked refreshed, as if she was satisfied. Yu Jaiha who snapped out of it managed to say something. W, what happened just now? I don't know. Don't ask me. Ju Hian pressed his temples. Ju Hian needed to think about this one as well. He was certain it was an artifact's risk, but he couldn't tell what kind of risk it was. Was it just pushing a man down? Was it giving off a charm to seduce others? He didn't know what it was, but he did hear Yu Jaiha grumbling. I wish we could trade spots. Are you crazy? However, Irene who had fainted for a moment opened her eyes. She did not seem to remember anything. However, Irene screamed after realizing that she was tightly hugging Ju Hian. Ah! She quickly moved away from Ju Hian. I, I'm sorry. She then teared up as she apologized. I did something like this again. She wanted to die from embarrassment. It was even worse because he had told her not too long ago not to randomly hug men. Irene sniffled while thinking to herself that she did something Ju Hian didn't like again. However, Ju Hian just scoffed while looking at her reaction. What the hell is this risk that she is reacting like this? A message popped up at that moment. The decreed a portion of the hand of gold and destitution's risk that you enjoyed so much has been satisfied. Oh, look at this guy. However, he brushed aside the fact that the system was making fun of him. It was because information about Irene's risk that Ju Hian wanted to know had popped up. The user becomes greedy after using the artifact of gold. They then strongly desire something they've wanted for a while. However, it is unpredictable what the user will do to obtain that item. This time, the user desired your body odor. Ju Hian gasped internally. Ah, so it works like that. In simple terms, it brought our Irene's desires. It made her seek out something she had been thinking about. However, it made her do whatever it took to get what she wanted. It was almost as much of a headache as Kira's risk as it could make the user do things like BDSM or commit a crime. Of course, it was still a question as to why hugging him satisfied the requirements for the risk. Furthermore my body odor. How was he supposed to take this? Excuse me. Why, yes. Irene sounded shocked as she responded to Ju Hian, but Ju Hian was frowning as he asked. Do you like the smell of men's sweat or something? Excuse me? Irene was in disbelief. Why are you asking such a random? Never mind. Please ignore it. I asked a weird question. However, Ju Hian glared at Yu Jaiha as he tilted his head in confusion. That's weird. I should be cleaner than him. Irene was sitting there with her head down in embarrassment as he thought that. Ju Hian seemed to have gotten the wrong idea after she just hugged him. She just thought he smelled nice. Anyway, they soon entered the parking lot after that short incident. Damn it, it is driving me crazy just thinking about it. Yu Jaiha put his hand on his forehead as if he suddenly recalled something. Ju Hian asked why he was throwing a fuss. What are you talking about? Don't you remember? There's no picture of you, but my face is on the newspapers. Ho. Oh. But it's not like it was a picture for your bounty, it was just a small picture in a crowd of people. But Yu Jaiha was saying that's not it. But I'm supposed to be dead. What if George Holton saw the article and comes looking for me? I only came because she said George Holton wasn't at home, but if he saw that and is home right now. He felt as if he was walking into his tomb with his own feet by going to the Holton residence. Ah, uh, I really can't do it. Open the door. I'm getting off. But Irene urgently shouted. The car is still moving. You'll get hurt. I die either way whether I die jumping out of the car or from George Holton shooting me. Don't worry. 
I heard this morning that my brother was still not home. He is dealing with business in Paris. The people who asked to meet you are my parents. Really? You mean that, right? Yes. Yu Jeha smiled wickedly after hearing Irene's confirmation. Her parents didn't know his face, so it didn't matter. Right. I just need to avoid that damn brother of hers. Just her damn brother. Yu Jeha gulped as he started to speak. My name is Leonardo Rothschild starting today. It is not James Young, Ellison Lee, David, or Yu Jeha. Got it? How many damn aliases do you have? Number one. You should stop having those thoughts and just go beg for forgiveness. Maybe he'll forgive you for the eighty billion dollars. Yu Jeha was shocked at his superior's warning. I, it's fine. I'm totally good as long as I avoid George Holton. Why would I reveal my own sins? Sai, that's going to get you punished in the future. It happened once the car stopped and they got out of the car. Irene, who got out of the car seemed shocked after seeing something. Uh, uh. What's wrong? Irene tilted her head in confusion after seeing a Porsche in the lot. Huh. My brother's car is here. That's weird, is my brother home? W, what did you say? Yu Jeha who had been trying to avoid a tiger turned pale after hearing that. Ah. Why the hell is George Holton here? Why else? He's here to FCK you up. You damn bastard, how nice of you to crawl back here. A handsome man who looked almost identical to Irene was in front of them. This was Irene's older brother, the 32 years old eldest son of the Holton family who treasured Irene quite a bit. He had bought that counterfeit art piece from Yu Jeha last time for a large sum to give it to Irene as a gift. However, you damn bastard, you scam me on a present for my dear sister. And then you fake your own death. Tang Tang. They heard some gunshots. The bullets brushed past Yu Jeha's face and created holes in the wall. It was a threat of sorts to say that he wanted to do the same to Yu Jeha's head. Yu Jeha flattened himself against the floor and started to cry. Egu, Egu, I'm sorry. I did something terrible, please forgive me this once, Hyung Nim. However, who is your Hyung Nim? You damn scammer bastard. Tang 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 Tang. Ah. However, Ju Hian was leisurely getting a cup of tea poured for him regardless of whether his subordinate died or not. They needed to start talking about business now, but he needed to take care of this terrible subordinate's past issues first. Yu Jeha cried as he was begging for forgiveness. Hyung Nim, please don't do this. Your house is getting destroyed. Please calm down. I'll destroy my house and then your head. Ah. T, that's not what I meant. There was only one person left for him to rely on. Captain Nim. Please save me. Your lovely subordinate is about to die. Then die. Wait. You damn captain. Gunshots echoed through the mansion again. Ju Hian who emptied his cup of tea looked toward George Holton and started to speak at that moment. Chapter, 71. Ju Hian who finished his tea started to speak to George Holton. I think that's enough. George Holton's angry gaze then headed toward Ju Hian. Shut up. Third parties can stay out of this. It was none other than my younger sister's birthday present that he ruined. Ju Hian started to smile. This is my first time seeing him in person, but he's beyond what I imagined as well. He looked as if he could be a rugby player, but his personality was so fiery that he wondered if George really was Irene's brother. He also has a serious sister complex. George Holton who always proclaimed to others that he carried the twenty years old Irene on his back and raised her himself was so angry that his anger could probably reach the sky. However, Ju Hian did not back down. No matter what you say, that bastard is my subordinate. As his boss, I can't sit back and watch you torment him anymore. See, Captain Nim. Yu Jeha seemed full of admiration after hearing that. He was thinking that even a terrible human like that has a soft spot for his subordinates, but Ju Hian said something unexpected. If you're going to do it, hire someone to throw him into the Pacific Ocean. Don't you think it is rude to have a guest wait any longer? 
Hey, what did you say? Never mind, I'm at fault for trusting you in the first place. This truly seemed to be unexpected as George Holton started to laugh as well. The Pacific Ocean. Didn't you just say you were his boss? Yes. But I'm trying to make you a proposal since I'm getting annoyed waiting any longer. A proposal? That bastard is one of the people who helped remove your younger sister's curse. Isn't $80 billion cheap as a reward for removing your sister's curse? George Holton scoffed and approached Juhian. Now that I think about it, Irene did tell me that. So you bastards removed Irene's curse. I hope you can be thankful if you know that. However, George Holton unexpectedly pointed the gun at Juhian now. Removed her curse. Shut the hell up. George had heard about Irene's situation from a maid. However, he was extremely angry at the fact that Irene was now using artifacts. It made sense since the Holton family considered artifacts to be the devil. How dare you make my sister put her hand on such mysterious things. The subordinate is a scammer and I guess the boss is a scammer too. Do you understand? Get the FCK out of here if you don't want a bullet in your head. I will remove the artifact stuck to my sister. Irene jumped up after hearing that. Bro. If you keep talking like that to Mr. Juhian, I'm going to take it as you never want to see me ever again. Mr. Juhian saved me. George became anxious after hearing that. He never expected Irene to respond like this. However, that only lasted a moment as he started to grind his teeth and shout. Irene. You don't understand because you're still young. Don't hang around the devils who use artifacts. Juhi inside. It's annoying to convince him, should I just beat him up to start? Juhi and had no plans on returning like this. Why? The entire family had to become his slave number three no, his precious sponsor. These bastards are perfect for the business I'm thinking of creating. That wasn't the only thing. I need someone at the level of the Holtons to get rid of Pandora. Juhian had been planning a bloody hit list against Pandora. He was planning on using the Holtons to get rid of all those eyesores who would continue to get in his way. Of course, it was fine for him to destroy Pandora on his own, but he was still not strong enough and had too many restrictions to do that right now. That was why they were perfect. But their reaction is a bit odd. George Holton had an unnaturally large amount of malice for artifacts. This was at the level of hatred. Of course, it was fine that a Catholic family like theirs would consider artifacts to be the devil. There were many religions that did not look kindly upon artifacts. However, he didn't think they would be such stubborn people. Juhian who thought something was weird said the following. Looks like I won't get anywhere talking to you about it. Please get lost as I must speak to your parents. George Holton who had flinched for a bit started to shake. You arrogant bastard. Do you really think I would introduce my parents to you bastards who aren't even our guests? However, Juhian would not lose a battle of words. Does the eldest son of the Holton family not have a brain? We don't need your introduction. We came here because your parents invited us in the first place. You punk seriously. I already told you. My parents have no desire to meet with you. Juhian seemed to have noticed something as he calmly stood up. In that case, I guess I have no choice but to go find them myself. George Holton became anxious and suddenly shouted after seeing Juhian's reaction. Alex! Hurry up and kick them out! The butler quickly called someone and numerous guards quickly showed up and roughly grabbed Juhian. I'm sorry but you'll have to come with us. However ugh! The guards who had tried to use their strength to drag them out started to fall one by one after being punched in the chin by Juhian. Juhian then suddenly started to move. That bastard. Juhian who seemed to have caught onto something started to run around opening every door to the rooms inside the mansion. It was because he couldn't understand it. Honestly speaking, George Holton's reaction was weird. He's hiding something. It was also weird that her parents who had been the ones to invite them were not appearing. Juhian's footsteps became even faster. Bang! George Holton, Irene, and even Ujeha who were shocked by this followed behind him, but Juhian's movement was so fast that they could not keep up with him. 
That bastard, he really. Tens of housekeepers and butlers followed him in shock as well, but Ju Hian was too fast. Not here. Not here either. He would open doors at the speed of lightning, check inside, and move on until he suddenly stopped. Ju Hian smelled a familiar scent when he got deeper into the mansion. This is. This nose piercing rotten smell. It was not the smell of a corpse. However, this stench of skin rotting and this ominous aura is the staff shouted in shock as Ju Hian got closer to the problematic door. Hey! Get away from that room. We're really going to call the cops. See what happens if you take a single step into that room. George Holton, who finally managed to catch up, charged toward Ju Hian. I told you to get lost. It was quite threatening as George Holton's physique was quite good, potentially from playing rugby. He then punched out but it was for naught as Ju Hian punched George Holton in the stomach and he fell down. George Holton twitched on the ground like a caterpillar as he coughed. George Holton glared at Ju Hian but Ju Hian just calmly walked toward the door as if he just found it annoying. I will not go easy on you if you annoy me any more than this even if you are my client's family member. What did you say? The thick door was instantly opened. Slam! As Ju Hian expected, there was a middle-aged woman laying on the bed. The problem was the woman's condition. That is. A terrible stench the woman's entire body had turned purple and her skin was rotting, as if a zombie was laying there. He walked into the next room to see a middle-aged man in the same condition. The two of them were most likely Irene's parents. He then heard Irene scream. Mother. Father. George Holton flinched after hearing Irene cry. It seemed as if he had been hiding this situation from Irene. And their parents who were in this condition had called Irene and Ju Hian home, and George Holton had rushed back to prevent them from meeting. In such a situation, it made sense that George Holton would be angry toward Ju Hian. I told you to get the FCK out. Take your artifact and get lost. However, Ju Hian was looking at the patients with a cold gaze. Are you crazy? Why did you neglect them until they got to this point? Neglect? Who the hell are you saying neglected them? Yu Jeha who finally showed up screamed at that moment. He then gasped as if he was looking at a zombie before quickly running over to his boss and asked. What, what is that? That? What is that zombie-like thing? Holy crap! Ju Hian clicked his tongue. What are they? This is called the Tomb Syndrome. Tomb Syndrome? That was indeed the case. Tomb Syndrome was the worst incurable illness that the world had ever seen that appeared with the artifacts. From psychological symptoms such as soul swap, hikikomori, impulse control disorder, and self-harm, to acute bleeding, coma, pneumonia, organ failure, and other rare symptoms one-third of the entire world's population had died because of this illness while the remaining two-thirds were in danger of dying. This was the reason Ju Hian had become Chairman Kwan's slave anyway, the Holton couple was suffering from that illness. However, something was weird. Why did this illness already start? Based on their condition, they were at the late stage of the illness. What was going on? This was something he had not expected either. That was why it was a bit complicated. At this rate, they would need to mourn them before he could work together with the Holtons. There was a setback to his plan. George Holton who had been wary of outsiders because he was afraid of this information getting out started to huff. The reason my parents ended up like this is because of artifact users like you who suddenly showed up to the house. That is why get lost while I'm still speaking nicely if you're trying to scam us again. Ju Hian realized something new at that moment. Now that I think about it, I remember seeing an article that said that this couple had passed away. Ju Hian finally realized something he had been curious about this whole time. It was regarding Irene's past. Now I understand why Irene worked with the monarch of war in the past. It was obvious the monarch of war threatened her. Don't you want to save your parents? I'll give you a high-grade healing artifact that I am monopolizing so cooperate. Well, something like that. In simple terms, the monarch of war had her weakness similar to how Chairman Quan had Ju Hian's. Based on their condition, it would not be possible to cure them with regular healing artifacts. 
Juhian chuckled as George Holton shook with anger and tried to drag Juhian out. Should I heal them for you? W, what? However, George Holton who blanked out for a moment started to scoff. Do you think I wouldn't have tried anything? I called many artifact users. They were all confident but nobody was able to heal them. They just ate my money and ran. Artifact users are all scammers. Scammers have rankings as well. Don't treat me the same as those frauds. It makes me feel dirty. W, what? I can actually cure them. In fact, I just need one day. That was the truth. Zhu Hian had a SS grade healing artifact, Qin Shi Huang's Herb of Eternal Youth. Furthermore, it was a precious artifact that ranked among the best healing artifacts. Zhu Hian, who knew that was the case, started to smile widely. Fine, I'll heal them with my artifact. They are my client's family members, after all. However, there's something I would like to propose after that. Zhu Hian started to smile. He wasn't going to turn a blind eye since they were Irene's family members and he felt that he was a bad person having this thought while looking at sick patients, but I figured out a way to definitely get the Holtons within my grasp. It was also a way to tame this rough George Holton at the same time. Furthermore, it would not be a shallow relationship but a very tight and friendly relationship. That was why Juhian warned George Holton. Let me tell you something. They won't last even a week like this. Lo and behold, George Holton seemed to have been shocked as he froze up. George, who had been overbearing, was looking at Ju Hian with shaking eyes. That was why Ju Hian smiled as if he was training a tiger. Well then, what's your response? Chapter, 72 Well then, what's your response? George Holton was seriously shaken up by Ju Hian's question. It seemed as if Ju Hian was looking right through him. It was an obvious reaction as he would be tempted even by a devil if they offered to save his parents. Thanks to that, George Holton subconsciously blurted out. Please save them. However, George Holton then gasped and closed his mouth. It was because he realized that this was not right just as he was about to fall for Juhian's trap. He had seen many scammers approach the Holton family. This bastard. Is he planning on making us owe him a debt and then take what he wants from us? That was why he could not agree to it even though this person was offering to heal his parents. It was because Ju Hian's goal was too obvious. There's no point to even talk to you. I will not get your help, you bastard. Bro. Irene was looking at him as if he was out of his mind, but George Holton's mind was set. Artifacts are the devil. What day had it been? A guest had visited the Holton couple. Those people who were said to be passing merchants had shown them some mysterious artifacts. However, the couple who had found the artifact to be amazing became sick after touching that artifact. That was when the couple regretted being curious about the artifacts. They had seriously warned their children as well. You must never get involved with artifacts. That was the reason the Holton family rejected Pandora and artifacts. It was also the reason he was so adamantly repulsed by Ju Hian's group. You got that? Artifacts are all devils. That is why I am going to remove that devil of an artifact from Irene as well. Don't do anything funny and get lost. Ju Hian scoffed at that comment. This bastard's reaction was understandable, but how can the eldest son of the Holton family be so stupid? What? Penicillin was just a harmful mold at first. Fire was a dangerous disaster to humans at first as well. But what happened? It changed based on how humans used them. Do you understand? What? Ju Hian then approached Irene's mother. He smelled a terrible stench that smelled like a rotting corpse as he got closer. This was the typical symptoms of a late-stage patient. He was certain the staff and the doctors all probably wanted to vomit as they treated them. They probably never even thought about touching them. However, Ju Hian did not even frown in this potential vomit-inducing situation and very respectfully asked. Madam. You probably can't hear me well because of the illness, but I would like to heal your illness with an artifact. Will you please allow me to do that? Yu Jeha was completely shocked at that gentleman-like tone. Wait, that guy can act this normal. 
He had imagined Zhu Hian telling them to shut the hell up and do as he said or leave the mansion saying do as you please and die. However, Irene's mother moved her mouth while Yu Jiha stood there in shock and Zhu Hian leaned his ear close before nodding his head. He then started to speak to George Holton with an, I told you so, kind of expression. See. She said please help her if it is possible. George Holton thought he was bluffing and walked up to his mother. However, his mother had already fallen unconscious. George Holton who now had no way of confirming his mother's words started to grumble. There's no way my mother would say that. Be honest. What the hell did you do to her with an artifact? Irene urgently shouted toward George at that moment. Bro. Just do as Mr. Juhian says for now. Nothing bad will happen if you do as Mr. Juhian says. You can trust him. But George Holton became extremely angry. Irene. Stay out of this if you don't know anything. Damn it, this is all because of those damn peddlers who showed them the artifact. Why the hell did mother and father let those bastards in? Her brother who was extremely upset said something he should never have said. Irene. You understand. We can't do that even if it means our parents will pass away. If we trust an artifact user we know nothing about again. Ju Hian's gaze instantly turned cold. It all happened in an instant. Pow! Ju Hian's kick landed right on George Holton's face. Ugh! George's head was shaking from this serious pain. However, it didn't end there. An even greater shock came after that. George Holton grabbed his stomach and curled over from the second impact and Ju Hian's elbow ruthlessly landed on George Holton's spine. It felt as if an axe had fallen on his back. Had he gotten annoyed at George Holton's immaturity or was he tired of trying to convince him? Either way, Ju Hian ruthlessly beat George Holton to a pulp. Thanks to that, George Holton's firm muscles felt as if they were turning into tofu. Soft tofu at that. Yu Jeha was thinking, Egu, I knew his terrible personality will win out. He then covered his eyes. How many times must he have hit him? He beat George down until no part was left uninjured and only stopped kicking once George Holton apologized and said he didn't mean to say that. Then he said the following to George Holton. Did you age like shit? Ugh. I don't care what the hell you do. But don't you know that your stupid thoughts are going to cause something that cannot be reversed? The staff quickly ran over and checked the bloody George Holton out. The old butler was shaking in anger and tried to call someone. I will call the cops right away. However, Ju Hian didn't care if they were angry. That was obvious. It was because he realized something while looking at the couple's condition. Are you an idiot? Based on the situation, an artifact user purposely made your parents sick. They didn't get sick just because they touched an artifact. Let's say you don't know that to be the case. However, you should be investigating any suspicious people and even selling your soul to the devil if you had to do so to save your parents. Why the hell are you turning us into your enemies? Ugh. Do you think I wouldn't have investigated? Shut up. Try again. Let me tell you one more time. The people responsible for making them ill are 100% the bastards who came with the artifact. Go look for them again if you have time to act like an idiot here. The butler could not listen anymore and shouted that Ju Hian was speaking bullshit. Please don't listen to that scammer. According to this bastard, then someone who has been the master's close friend for 30 years is the criminal. How dare he say that to someone who is like an uncle to the two of you. George shouted angrily at that point. What did you say? I thought you said they were passing merchants. The butler realized what he had done and lowered his head as he responded. That, the master requested that we keep our mouths shut about it. Ju Hian started to scoff that it was a total shit show. What the hell? Even if the master told you to stay quiet, you really stayed quiet when it was related to the master's life? Shut your mouth. I'll call the cops right away to get these bastards. The butler was angry. However, George Holton wiped the blood off his mouth and stopped him. You shut the hell up. I will punish you if you say anything else. Why, young Master Nim? 
George Holton who seemed to be thinking about something glared at Juhian suspiciously before starting to shout. Fine then. Heal my parents if you can since you are so confident that you can do it. But I will throw both of you into the middle of the Pacific Ocean if you fail. Young Master Nim. Juhian started to sneer in response. Then you will jump into the Pacific Ocean if I succeed? Humph, sure. Absolutely. I'll warn you now, but I'm someone who does what I say I will do. George Holton sneered at him. You said you only need a day, right? Then why don't you do it right now? Juhian clicked his tongue as if George was an idiot. Are you stupid? Even a supercomputer needs time to boot up. You think I can just use it at will? I'll be back in less than a week. You damn shithead. You investigate the criminal while I'm gone. Humph, fine. Do it if you can. I'll even give you all of our family's wealth if you succeed. I told you, you shouldn't make those kinds of statements. Why do you always have to argue? He had not expected Juhian to so ruthlessly beat the Holton family's eldest son up like that. It was refreshing to see, but that would be quite the worldly news if it ever got out. Of course, Irene told him it was fine to beat him up even more. She seemed to have been quite shocked by George Holton's words. However, Ujeha asked an unrelated question. But the reason the Holton couple ended up like that. Is it really that friend of theirs who brought the artifact with him? I'm certain. Tomb syndrome usually takes a long time to make a person sick. It would normally take around 10 years to get to that stage. That is why they must have used a disease-type artifact or something to make them sick on purpose. Of course, it looked as if George Holton had been investigating the wrong people because he had been told it was done by passing merchants. It might be possible that Irene's parents were really threatened by them. It was still quite weird that the butler was hiding that fact. The criminals might have gotten the parents sick and forced the parents to stay quiet about it. They probably used some cliché line like how they would not leave the kids alone if the parents told them anything. But was there someone like that in Pandora? He had not paid much attention, but there might have been. Anyway, the herb of eternal youth is first priority. They were currently in Manhattan. Ujeha found it odd that Juhian was going into the subway. It was because this place was unrelated to the herb of eternal youth at all. We seem to be tight on time, is it really okay, however, Juhian just walked down the stairs following the down sign. They then smelled the stench of trash befitting the infamous New York subway. Ujeha started to frown as he asked. Ugh, this stench, but Captain Nim, where are we going? Where else? To upgrade the herb of eternal youth. That was indeed the case. Honestly speaking, there was a reason he couldn't heal the Holton couple's illnesses right now. The herb of eternal youth was currently just a stamina enhancer as it had not awakened yet. He needed another artifact to awaken it into a true healing artifact. It was Su Fu's artifact. Su Fu was the person who went to find the herb of eternal youth after being ordered by Qin Shi Huang. He had supposedly left to find this herb with thousands of virgin boys and girls. Then you're saying Su Fu's artifact is here. You're quite sharp. However, the direction he was walking in after coming down to the platform was odd. He seemed interested in a chair at the corner of the platform. Specifically, the homeless person curled up on it. The homeless person had a hat on his face and a dirty blanket around him. He seemed to have been here a long time. Ugh, the smell of sweat and booze, that was why Yu Jeha looked confused as he had no idea what Ju Hien was doing. Ju Hien seemed to have come here as if he knew this homeless person was here. However he doesn't look like he would know anything about artifacts. It wasn't as if he was here to rob the person. However, Ju Hien did something that made Yu Jeha gasp. Boom! He suddenly kicked the homeless man off the chair. Yu Jeha shouted after seeing that. H, hold on. Are you crazy? Do you not know how scary the homeless can be? Juhian chuckled and kicked the old man as if telling Jeha to watch. Hey, are you enjoying this homeless life that is not suited for you? No, Captain Nim. If you provoke him like that. However, Yu Jeha gasped after seeing the homeless man's face as he got up. Huh. You are. 
Chapter, 73 Oh, old man! That was indeed the case. The homeless man was none other than Edward. It was the same middleman who commissioned Juhian to swipe the map-type artifact and ended up falling for Juhian's scheme and selling a fake artifact. Crazy, old man Edward, why are you here? Actually, Edward's current appearance was the most shocking. Edward was quite rich as he was a well-off weapons merchant. He always wore an expensive and fancy white suit and he owned so much real estate that Ujeha didn't know how much he actually owned, but the ones he knew about were already worth close to $100 million. But why was that old man sitting here as a beggar? However, he recognized who they were and immediately grabbed Juhian by the collar. Hey, you damn bastard. Because of you, I, I had to suffer. The angry Edward then started to cry. It must have been quite difficult. The person who made him this way might have felt a bit sorry for it, or maybe he found it funny, as he started to laugh. Of course, he had planned on putting Edward in a predicament to train him, but this is beyond what I expected. I guess Kira must have bothered you quite a bit for you to end up like this. Does this look like she just bothered me? Huh? Edward started to swear looking as if he was going to throw the bottle in his hand. FCK you motherfucking bastard. Because of you because of you. I was ruined because of the item you sold me. Kira ordered the CIA to do this to me. Juhian started to laugh as if that was expected. I guess Kira pointed her blade at you. That's right, you bastard. She got on my case for all the illegal things she had been closing her eyes about until now. All my wealth and artifacts were confiscated, and I'm still being chased. I'm on the Interpol's wanted list and the FBI bastards are chasing me as well. Do you know what I'm going through? Egu, looks like that's quite terrible. Well, it's still your fault. It's true that you illegally sold weapons. Your network is what kept you alive until now. What did you say? Who do you think made me this way? Damn it, my plan to work with the US has gone down the drain now. I thought I could finally get a sponsor to start a new business but it's all ruined. Juhian decided it was the right time after seeing his anger and threw the bait. Then should I give you a way to live? Edward scoffed at that question. Fool me once maybe but you really think you can fool me twice. Why would I work with you again knowing it'll just lead to my ending up a bloody mess? Juhian coolly turned around after hearing Edward say that he would have blasted Juhian's head off if he had a gun on him. Then do as you please. Let's see, I know I have a CIA agent's number somewhere. Edward grabbed Juhian's pants leg at that moment. Egu. I'm sorry. What do you need me to do? This old man was really quick to change his attitude. However, Edward clenched his eyes shut as if he was still angry as he said that. He was upset that he was reduced to someone who had to act like this. How did he know I was here? It was funny that the future monarch of wealth ended up like this, but Juhian got down to business. It's simple. I just need some information. Information. Virgin boys and girls, it's an artifact that gathers young boys and girls. Do you know about it? Edward's expression quickly changed. Juhian who noticed that like a hawk started to smile. I guess something does come to mind. This bastard knows about Su Fu's artifact. That was the truth. Chairman Quan who originally had the Herb of Eternal Youth had said that Edward gave him Su Fu's artifact in the past. Where is that artifact? However, Edward feigned ignorance. An artifact of virgin boys and girls. What are you talking about? I don't know what you are talking about. Juhian scoffed as if he found it ridiculous. Where is that CIA phone number? Kira, it's Kira. I sold it to that motherfucking woman. Damn it. Juhian was shocked after hearing that. The list of artifacts Vivian told him about did not include Su Fu's artifact. Something is weird. There's no way I wouldn't have realized Su Fu's artifact was there. Juhian started to frown as he responded. Don't lie to me. That woman should not have that artifact on her. Don't trust me if you don't want to. Maybe she sold it to someone else. Do you know who she sold it to? How would I know? You idiot. 
Edward feigned ignorance but Ju Hien could tell the truth. This bastard, he definitely knows. He had been close to this old man while working for Chairman Quan, so how would he not be able to read this old fart's expressions? I guess it's about time that the whip stops working. Ju Hien whose goal was to train Edward to use him for his business started to pour out the treats. I'll let you make so much money you won't need to worry about the damn US if you help me. Ju Hien smiled in satisfaction after seeing Edward's gaze change. I have a great medicine. Great medicine. Yes, it is a medicine that is one of a kind in the world. I'm going to have large quantities of it from here on. You know what I mean, right? Ju Hien was smiling. He could continue to regrow the herb of eternal youth and sell it. Its effects would not compare to any other medicine on the market. Continuing to grow and selling the herb of eternal youth will become a great source of income. Of course, he was not planning on using the vaccine to threaten people like the monopolizer bastards of the past. Honestly speaking, this was a method to prevent power from gathering to the monopolizers, a foundational piece to prevent the same future as the past. The ones he grew for vaccination would be sold at a price that anybody could easily purchase while the ones he grew as luxury goods would make him a ton of money. Then those people won't be harmed either. Ju Hien started to think about his family. However, Edward gulped as he had that thought. Is this a scam? Or can I trust him? He was thorough as he was not a veteran who lasted this long in this playing field for a long time. However, he soon shook his head. He was the one who had smelled money on Ju Hien and approached him in the first place. This bastard is definitely someone who is going to do something big in the future. That wasn't the only thing. He didn't know whether it would be beneficial or harmful, but either way, it would still be better than his current situation. It sounds like you have a healing artifact, but you are certain about its efficiency, right? Of course. Just boiling it down and drinking it would be enough to make it the greatest sexual enhancer. It could even make an old man like you have the stamina of a twenty-year-old. Edward's gaze had changed and he seemed to be quite focused. Really? Is that possible? Why? I guess you need it too. Ahem. The smiling Juhian started to smile as if he was a talented trainer. That's not all. Refining that artifact would allow us to create various medicines that would let us sit on cushions of money on royalty alone. You really have something like that? Yes, but there is an artifact I need to awaken it. That's what I'm looking for. I guess it is the virgin boys and girls artifact you mentioned earlier. Edward debated for a moment before responding this way. I know where Kira is using that artifact. Where is it? Africa. Africa? Ju Hien was shocked to hear an unexpected location. Why would the US be involved over there? Edward, who decided to latch on to Ju Hien for now, coolly started to explain. I think Kira is using that to do something in an African tomb. However. However. The suspicious part is that she seemed to be doing this on her own without the US president knowing about it. The most suspicious part is that she is not using the TSOF in anything related to that tomb. Ju Hien who was sharp and realized what Edward was saying started to smile. Basically. She's doing something that would be terrible if the world found out about it. Exactly that. Of course, they had no idea what kind of illegal thing she was doing with Su Fu's artifact that would gather young boys and girls. Ju Hien calmly smiled. Kira was someone who kept getting in his way but he had no way to drag her down because of her societal position. However, he had a good feeling about this. He smelled something as sweet as honey thinking this was an easy way to send one of the four emperors spiraling down. I can get the monarch of war out of the game in advance if this goes well. Ju Hien's smile looked quite evil. In the country of Ghana on the continent of Africa. Ju Hien who flew here right away looked toward a shop 50M in front of him. That shop was unexpectedly a casino. Of course, this was not somewhere with good public order, so this casino was probably shady as well. However, there was a reason they were looking at this place. The bastards using Su Fu's artifact are supposedly here. He didn't know the reason, but these were the bastards with whom Kira secretly left the artifact behind. Ju Hien started to move as he spoke to the people who came with him. 
the two of you stay out here for now. It won't be pretty in there. Ah. Next to him were Irene and a female guard protecting her. She had let Juhi and borrow her private plane and came with him because she wanted to somehow help him even a little bit to get Su Fu's artifact. Irene started to speak to Juhian who was about to walk into a dangerous place. Um, Mr. Juhian. Please be careful. Juhian then chuckled. Maybe he found her admirable for trying to do her best even while feeling upset and concerned about her parents' condition, but Juhian nonchalantly caressed her head. Please stay hidden. Irene instantly felt her heart starting to beat wildly, but she didn't know if Juhian realized that or not as Juhian and Yujeha walked into the loud casino. They saw roulette, blackjack and many other typical casino games. The area wasn't very wide and the inside was shabby as it was in a countryside neighborhood. Juhian was looking for someone in there. After searching around for a while those bastards must be the ones who have Su Fu's artifact. It was a group of about 20 people. There were both black and white men and the smell of artifacts was pouring out of these bastards playing poker in the corner. They definitely don't look like good people. They were even firing their guns at their opponents and beating them to a pulp. It was quite the atmosphere that suited this lawless area. Ha! Huh. Hand over your entire fortune since you lost. Take this bastard's wallet and then all his organs. Yu Jeha who had been ready to negotiate started to shake. Crazy, we're trying to negotiate with those scary bastards. Captain Nim, do you think it will be easy to negotiate with them? He was concerned even though he brought a lot of money as Juhian ordered. It happened at that moment. Juhian suddenly walked over to them without any fear. Yu Jeha was shocked. Hole. Captain Nim. It happened as the thugs were about to put their hands on the bloodied victim's wallet. Ah. The black man trying to steal the wallet started to scream. Juhian had suddenly twisted his finger and broke it as he tried to take the wallet. The others shouted in shock after seeing their friend's finger being broken. What the, who the hell is this bastard? Juhian just nonchalantly walked over to them and started to speak. I'm here for one reason. What? Hand over the artifact. Juhian shamelessly chuckled. It was obvious he had no plans on negotiating from the beginning. Chapter, 74 Hand over the artifact. A message popped up in front of Juhian as soon as he said that. You have received the title of Timoral Extortionist. Your violent artifact destroyer, cruel artifact intimidator, and immoral extortionist at titles have combined together to create a hidden passive skill, diabolical charisma. The skill will always be active. Your significantly high dominance has created a synergistic effect. However, the artifacts will have the worst first impression of you and remember you as a rare worthless scoundrel. However, artifacts affiliated with evil will fervently praise you. There are probably no other artifact users as terrible as you in the world. This crow bastard. Juhian scoffed only for a moment as Yu Jeha quietly whispered. Um, Captain Nim. I thought you were going to negotiate. I changed my mind. I'm just going to take it by force. He didn't seem to like the people with whom he was to negotiate. The thug scoffed after hearing Juhian's shameless words. Steal our artifact. Yes, the artifact that gathers young children. Hand it over. Look at this crazy bastard. It happened as they tried to grab Juhian. They heard some dull POWs before somethings that looked like toys started to fall onto the stone floor. It was actually teeth. Ah! My tooth! The men grabbed their faces as they rolled on the ground. Juhian just scoffed at them. Why do idiots like them never listen? It would have been so much easier if you just gave it to me. Would you have done that? You damn extortionist king! Yu Jeha sighed while thinking like that but didn't scold him. Actually, forget scolding Juhian the captain Nim said to hand it over. Hey bastards! Do you not understand what he is saying? He helped threaten the thugs. It was at that moment. Hey you, do you really want that artifact? They heard an unfamiliar voice coming from the poker table. There was a young white woman sitting there. She was wearing a tank top and camouflage pants. 
She was a great beauty like Kira, but Ju Hian's expression turned odd after seeing her. Why? She was someone Ju Hian remembered. Mary Wilson. He was certain. She was an army surgeon who was not at the monarch level but was quite active in the artifact world working for Kira. She was quite a talented artifact user. It really must be connected to Kira since this woman is here. Ju Hian smiled as if things were working out, but Mary Wilson ogled the two men's bodies before starting to smile. Why don't we make a bet? I can give you guys the artifact if you win. Hey, Mary. The others grumbled after hearing her offer, but Mary Wilson smiled as if she didn't care. Why not? We're bored. Plus, it's obvious I will win no matter what that bastard does. She seemed to have a trick up her sleeve as she was overflowing with confidence, but Ju Hian saw the huge sum of money that Mary Wilson had won before smiling greedily. Fine. I'm free until tomorrow morning. However. However. If I win, I get the artifact and all of your entire fortunes. Is this punk crazy? Fine. But if I win, both of your healthy organs will be ours. There are a lot of people asking for it around here. Sure. I can't tell whether you are brave or stupid. The thug started to laugh. However, Yu Jeha alone was thinking that Ju Hian was a devil. It was because he already realized what Ju Hian was thinking. Yu Jeha looked at his watch and clicked his tongue. TSK, it won't even take 10 minutes. What he thought actually came true. Royal straight flush. Mary Wilson dropped her cards after seeing the cards Ju Hian revealed. It made sense as the situation became quite troublesome for her. T, this makes no sense. How did I lose? Her peers were also looking at her in disbelief. She then peeked toward the European coin next to her. It's definitely face up. But why? The goddess of luck was supposed to descend and give her the greatest of luck as long as this coin was face up. But for some reason, her hands were shit and Ju Hian's cards were the highest grade hands. Ju Hian started to laugh. How foolish. Did you think you would win no matter what as long as you had that coin? They became anxious after realizing Ju Hian knew about the coin. He knows about the coin. You, how did you? How did I know? A lucky coin blessed by a goddess of luck C-grade, general-grade consumable artifact he had seen that item so much that he got tired of it at one point in a casino. This coin was a coin that was thrown into a fountain that turned into an artifact. How many coins are thrown into fountains around the world for luck? Even if only a portion of them became artifacts, there were quite a lot of them and casinos around the world were full of bastards raising their lucks with this item. There were times people stole the coins from others because both of them having the coins would even out their lucks. But it doesn't matter. Ju Hian laughed while looking at the message in front of him. The goddess of destitution who makes you feel terrible just looking at her has descended. The aura of destitution is stretching out to a radius of 500m. Everybody except your group has been cursed with terrible luck for them and their families. Continuing like this will make the opponent's genetics itself hold the misfortune attribute. Stopping this now is highly recommended. A C-grade goddess of luck like that had no chance of doing anything in front of the SS-grade goddess of destitution who was similar to a predator. It was a one-sided massacre. Ju Hian who had texted Irene to make this happen was smiling wickedly. Good. She's getting better at handling the artifact. I guess she's slowly getting used to it. Ju Hian was trying to make Irene use her artifact little by little to develop her proficiency. The thugs were just used for that purpose. It was as Yu Jeha had expected. Of course, it was not that Ju Hian became lucky. These bastards just became extremely unlucky that all the good hands ended up with his captain. Wow, making them suffer the same way they made others suffer is quite fun. On the other hand, Mary Wilson was sweating. This situation was not normal. However, Ju Hian viciously glared regardless of whether Mary Wilson was shocked or not. I won. So hand over your entire fortune. Wait, this is. Mary Wilson tried to grab the coin and stealthily run away. However, there was no way Ju Hian would not notice that. Puke. Ah. 
a dagger stabbed down on Mary Wilson's hand that was trying to grab the coin artifact. Ju Hian pulled the dagger out and asked if she wanted her hand chopped off as he smiled viciously. You said you would hand it all over. Ah. And spill the beans on the business the U.S. General Kira Clark is running here. I don't know anything about that. Ju Hian slammed Mary Wilson on the poker table as soon as she said that. He then threatened her with a knife as he started to speak. I already know you are connected to Kira. I suggest you speak now while I'm still being nice. A scared Mary Wilson started to speak as the blade was about to stab her. She felt like she would really die at this rate. Okay, okay, so stop. There's a tomb in the forest 10 kilometers north of here. A rare specialty item is generated there. The General Nim is gathering that item. Ju Hian's knife stopped as if he had never planned to use it on her in the first place. A tomb? That's right. It looks like a regular stone mountain on the outside. You must be looking for Su Fu's artifact if you are looking for an artifact that gathers young children, right? It's inside the tomb. Go there and take it or do whatever you want. Ju Hian scoffed at her. Why did she put Su Fu's artifact in such a place? I told you, a special item is generated in the tomb. But only children are able to bring it out, so the artifact. Ju Hian started to smirk as if he realized what was going on. So that's how it is. Mary urgently shouted after seeing that Ju Hian seemed to accept it. We're good now that I told you the information, right? So, let me go. I must inform General Kiranim of this now that it's become like this. However, Ju Hian activated an artifact. Some suspicious powder started to gather behind him. It was none other than the zombie powder. Ju Hian's eyes then sparkled as he smiled wickedly. Let you go. Do you think I am crazy enough to let eyewitnesses go? They all turned pale after hearing that. Screams soon echoed through the casino. Wow, how cruel. So cruel. At this point, I'm starting to feel bad for the bad guys. Yu Jaiha stared at the 007-style money briefcase as they exited the casino. Inside the bag were money that those bastards scammed in the casino as well as the expensive items they owned. There was a total of about 70 million won. He didn't know why, but Ju Hian had gathered everything. Well, I'm sure there's a reason for it since he doesn't usually care much for money. I thought you were going to the bank tomorrow morning. You said we needed cash before going to the tomb. No, we don't need to go anymore. We still have the money we were planning to negotiate with and we have enough with this stuff. The casino was now full of patients who had become zombies, but Ju Hian walked out without caring about them at all. It was now time to loot the tomb that Su Fu's artifact was supposedly in. However, Ju Hian's expression suddenly turned odd as he walked. Of course, there was a reason for it. You have received the title of robber underneath the clear sky. It is recommended that you change your profession to the wicked thief. Would you like to change occupations? It was because such unbelievable messages had popped up. This is definitely that damn crow bastard's doing. He then started to smile viciously. Was it provoking him on purpose to come find it? I was going to slowly look for it, but I can't let this crow bastard just be. Why is he randomly talking about a crow? Yu Jaiha looked at him oddly before asking a question. But what is that specialty item you talked about earlier? It seemed to be related to Su Fu's artifact. It's simple. Looks like that bitch Kira is running a plantation without the world knowing about it. AP, plantation. She's using forced labor and not paying them a dime. That was indeed the case. There was a tomb related to something edible here in Africa. That damn Kira. She probably realized she could make a lot of money off it and is monopolizing the tomb. Ju Hian soon added on. What I am certain about is that the food item coming out of there will become something that changes the history of the world. Is it because it tastes delicious? Or does it give a lot of benefits for eating it or something? Who knows? I don't know because I've never tried to eat it. What he was certain about was that people claimed to see a dragon ascending to the heavens. Now that I think about it, one of those specialty items first came from the US. It must be from this tomb. 
he might be able to swallow up this specialty food item as well. Anyway, it's not far from here. Let's find Irene and immediately head toward the two. Juhian started to look around. It happened at that moment. S, something bad has happened. He heard a voice behind him. Irene's female guard was standing behind him. She was breathing heavily as if she had been running around. I, I don't see the young lady. What did you say? A shocked Yu Jeha looked toward Juhian with a thought on his mind. Captain Nim, you asked Irene to use the artifact of destitution's powers, right? Juhian put a hand on his forehead. Did her risk activate again? It was quite possible that her risk of greed activated again. It's bad if her greed is being activated elsewhere. Ju Hien, Yu Jeha, and the guard decided to split up to find her. Thankfully, Ju Hien managed to find her after searching for a short period of time. The problem was where he ended up finding her. Chapter, 75 The problem was where he ended up finding her. Why did she have to be somewhere like this? Ju Hien was looking at something in shock. Honestly speaking, it wasn't difficult for Ju Hien to find Irene. The Hand of Midas gave off a very strong aura because it was a SS-grade artifact. Ju Hien who was quite sensitive to artifact auras could easily find her. However why a motel? He was certain. This was a motel. It didn't look like the motels in developed countries, but he was sure. Ju Hien pressed his temples after getting a headache. He had wondered if her risk had activated, but did that sort of greed come out? Ju Hien had an ominous feeling and urgently walked into the building. A black woman welcomed Ju Hien as soon as he entered the dusky but clean building. Are you alone? Ju Hien asked back in British English. Did a blonde beauty come here? Ah, she did. She came with quite the infamous thug in this area. Egu. The black woman chuckled as if she was amused by Ju Hien's response before handing him a key. Are you that pretty lady's boyfriend? She's in room 304. Ju Hien took the key as if he had no other choice and walked up the stairs. It seemed that after growing up in an extremely strict and conservative family, Irene seemed to have quite the interest in men. The way she kept hugging him was also an example to prove that was the case. Anyways, it would be a bit complicated if she had seduced a random guy because of her risk. Ju Hien quickly opened the door to room 304 as it was possible that a weird guy might attach himself to her and demand shares of the artifact. Bang! And inside the room ah! Ah! Right there, ah! That feels so good! A black man and a white woman were intertwined doing some lewd acts. It's not Irene and forget being pretty, this woman couldn't even compare to the bottom of Irene's foot. Ju Hien checked inside before clicking his tongue and walking back out. The man and woman in the room were shaking wondering what had happened, but Ju Hien didn't care. Ju Hien then focused and started to detect the monarch of destitution's artifact. He thought that this probably would have been the best method from the start, but he quickly pushed that thought away as he felt the artifact's aura. This way. I hope there's no guy in there. Ju Hien soon opened the door to room 405. It wasn't hard to open the door. It wasn't an electronic lock, so he just had to break the door. Boom. However, Ju Hien scoffed after rushing into the room. Yes, Irene was inside. However, she was just sleeping on the bed tightly hugging Ju Hien's bag. She also had a random artifact with her that he had no idea where she could have gotten it. She truly is the woman with the artifact of wealth. She had brought over something that could make her money. Ju Hien laughed out loud and then started to shake Irene. Hey. Irene twitched and started to speak. Hey Meister, I told you the answer is no even if you ask like that. I won't go with you. Irene was drunk. She was extremely drunk. Ju Hien started to get a headache. I guess the risk of greed this time was for alcohol. Based on her brother's personality, he probably never let Irene drink so this desire she was usually suppressing might have come out. She probably came to the motel after drinking because she was sleepy. I guess I should praise her for getting a room on her own. Ju Hien continued to shake Irene who grumbled in a way she probably would never do before turning around. 
Meister Juhian told me not to follow random people. So, I'm going to sweep Mr. Policeman, Mr. Pervert, bye-bye I will make both of you go bankrupt if you keep bothering me. What is this woman saying? Juhian scoffed before poking Irene and asking a question. What are you doing here? And why are you hugging my bag? Irene's eyes opened wide after hearing Ju Hian's voice. Ha! Huh. She seemed to have realized that Ju Hian was the person talking to her. Ah, it's Mr. Ju Hian. Irene then smiled brightly and jumped up toward him. Ju Hian couldn't help but be shocked. It was because Irene hugged him and then kissed him. She first kissed him on the cheek so he thought she was simply greeting him, but her soft lips had slowly landed on his lips. She smelled a bit like alcohol, but the delicious scent that only a woman could give off filled his nose. Irene, who was pushing her lips against his, shyly pushed her tongue in as well. Juhian flinched in shock for a moment, but Irene whose risk had activated did not easily let him go. A quiet but quite sloppy noise soon echoed inside the room. Irene smiled with satisfaction after a while. All done. It had happened in an instant. Of course, Ju Hian who had been attacked just scoffed in shock. It felt really good, but this woman, she really, however, Irene soon slumped over in Ju Hian's arms and fell asleep. He heard her quietly mumble thank you or something, but he couldn't really hear it. She was probably extremely thankful that Ju Hian cared for her and her parents. My goodness! Ju Hian just pushed all of this aside as it was her risk's fault before taking out his phone. Now that he found Irene, he needed to call Irene's guard who must be frantically searching for her. I'll let Irene sleep here. But as Ju Hian tried to call the guard with his phone. Ugh. Something Ju Hian did not expect happened. The sleeping Irene suddenly reached her hand and pulled Ju Hian to her. Ju Hian lost his balance and fell over to end up lying on the bed. He had dropped his phone as well. TSK. Ju Hian tried to pick his phone back up but Irene who was tightly hugging him as she slept was stronger than he expected. Irene was now sleeping with her head pushed up against Ju Hian's chest. He could smell a bit of alcohol, perfume or the scent of a woman as he felt her soft skin and her chests pushing up against him. Thanks to that, his healthy 23 years old brain was saying, look at this. It's a woman, a woman. It was extremely excited. Damn it. I was going to go loot a casino to cool my head off. But what could he do? This was restitution for using the artifact of destitution. Something bad has happened. General Kira Nim. Kira found it odd to see the woman on the screen. That damn curse that turned her into a baby had finally ended and Kira was getting ready to capture Juhian. But she got a call from Gunna at that moment. You are Mary Wilson who is taking care of things in Africa, right? I am honored that you remember who I am. But Mary Wilson looked a bit odd as she saluted her. Was there a battle? You seem to be injured. Ah, uh, to be honest with you, I was attacked by a weird powder artifact I was able to return to normal thanks to a voodoo priest in this area but the others are still in a zombie state zombie? Weird powder artifact. Ah, uh, is it maybe the zombie powder that Chairman Kwan had before? I thought Seo Juhian stole that artifact from him, so why is that in Africa? Mary Wilson started to explain what happened in Africa as if to answer her question. It was the story about the two weird Asian men who had come to the casino. Kira instantly looked like a vicious ghost after hearing the story. Why? It was because she immediately recognized the man Mary Wilson described. That damn moldy bread-like bastard. It was obvious after hearing the story. It was that bastard, C.O. Juhian. The artifact he used in the casino was probably the same one he used in the airport. Um, those bastards might infiltrate your tomb, General Nim. Will it be okay? If the information about what is going on inside is leaked or if they are trying to take your artifact don't worry about it. You've seen inside the tomb as well. They can't even reach that part without meeting the special conditions. Furthermore, I control that tomb so the situation is completely different than in Turkey. Ah, uh, yes ma'am. In fact, Kira focused on something else. It was regarding the artifact Ju Hian was looking for. Why is that bastard looking for Su Fu's artifact? 
Su Fu had received virgin boys and girls, gold and silver, and even soldiers to go find the miraculous medicine, but he had not managed to return. Rumors say that he became a Taoist immortal, he ended his life at Jijudo or became a king somewhere, but in the end, he received all of those things but never returned with what he promised. Therefore, Su Fu's artifact was something that made a lot of promises but never fulfilled them. It could seem like a desirable artifact based on its promises, but the artifact itself was not very useful. It was because the risk was total shit. So, why would he want such an artifact? There must be a reason for it. The sharp Kira was quickly able to come up with a hypothesis. Is it maybe the herb of eternal youth? There was the information from Edward in the past that the almond tree chairman Quan lost out on seemed to be a healing artifact for some reason. Furthermore, the person who won the bidding for the almond tree was the Holton girl. That wasn't the only thing. They were also unable to contact the Holton couple for some reason. A healing artifact and the Holton couple who cannot be contacted. Kira got up as if she thought about something entertaining. She was thinking that she could find Irene Holton's weakness and use her and the entire Holton family for her benefit. Miss Irene. I was worried that something happened to you. Damn it, do you know how scared we were because we couldn't call either of you all night? Irene's guard and Yu Jeha were both saying things to Juhian and Irene. However, the reason the two of them were angry were a bit different. You spent the night together, did any satisfying things happen? The guard became angry at Yu Jeha's implied ludity. How dare you say such terrible things? The Holton family will sue you. But please tell me nothing happened. Irene became anxious and told the guard not to get angry as Juhian snorted. I'm not interested in being an animal who would jump on a drunk woman who cannot control herself. That made Irene sad while the guard was huffing that this was defamation of her character. However, Yu Jeha, as a man, had to seriously think about this. Wasn't it weird? A female client was drunk so he got her a place to sleep. Then, they were together all night but nothing happened. It was fine that Ju Hian was saying that. It could totally be true. The fact that this scammer is the one saying that makes it lose all credibility. It happened as all three of them were having different thoughts. Hey, baggage carriers. Shut up, we're almost there. Ju Hian who was driving the rental jeep was looking somewhere with a pair of binoculars. The road wasn't paved so the jeep was shaking quite a bit, and it was still far away, but it was definitely located in the lush African grasslands. It's a tomb. It looked as if it was naturally made at first glance, but it was a large stone mountain. However, it was definitely a tomb based on the tomglyphs and the aura coming out of it. An urgent message popped up as they got closer to the tomb. Warning, you have entered a tomb appearance area where only young children may enter. You will suffer a terrible risk if you ignore this warning. Furthermore, this tomb has already been conquered by the artifact of war. The artifact in this tomb already has an owner. Juhian chuckled as he read that. I guess that bitch Kira has already claimed it. It seemed as if she did not close the tomb even after gaining possession of the artifact. Usually, the owner orders the tomb to close after gaining the artifact as the tomb itself became useless and just remained as trash. But the fact that she didn't close it that meant she was doing something in secret inside. Su Fu's artifact as well as the food type artifact growing inside this tomb should both be inside. Another message popped up soon. Entering a possessed tomb is considered trespassing. Warning. This is not a regular tomb entrance. Why would I care about any of that when I am a tomb raider? Juhian pushed down on the accelerator. Chapter, 76. Juhian pushed down on the accelerator. Virum. This tomb was one where the entrance was completely visible. However, Ju Hian had no plans on entering through the entrance. Who was crazy enough to go through the main entrance that was bound to be full of traps? It was only normal for a tomb raider to create an entrance that doesn't exist to stealthily infiltrate a location. And lo and behold! Ju Hian who was pushing down on the accelerator reached his hand out toward Yu Jeha who was sitting next to him. Hey number one! Hand any of them to me. That made Yu Jeha, one of the temporary baggage carriers, turn pale. See, Captain Nim. No way, 
right? You already know it. Why are you freaking out like that? Yu Jeha sniffled after seeing Ju Hian's wicked smile and handed him a toothpaste. He could anticipate what was going to happen next, but what could he do? He could only kneel when his captain told him to kneel. Although it looked like a regular toothpaste on the outside, this was an artifact. And thanks to Ju Hian slamming on the accelerator, the tomb was right in front of them now. The guard in the back seat became anxious as she thought they were going to crash, but Ju Hian just chuckled and channeled a large amount of dominance into the toothpaste. Ju Hian then flung the toothpaste out the window. The toothpaste that flew backwards due to kinetic energy started to scream. Egu, you human bastard, I'm not a cigarette butt. However, the toothpaste that almost instantly disappeared while screaming crashed into the stone mountain and caused a large explosion. Bang! It truly was a large explosion. Juhian's tomb excavation skill and the impact from the artifact's self-destruction had fused together to create a hole in the tomb. That was how the artifact that helped get rid of bad breath disappeared as a pile of ashes. Ju Hian, who had quickly reversed as he threw the artifact, turned the steering wheel and headed toward the hole. The tomb was quite large, so it was no problem to enter in with the jeep. Boom! A large cave appeared once they entered, and warning messages started to pop up one after another. Warning! There is a trap created by the owner of the artifact of War 500M in front of you. Ju Hian sneered after seeing that. I wasn't planning on going that way, you idiot. Following that path, it will take 10 hours to reach the lowest underground level where the artifact is located. Like I said, I'm not using that path. Usually, a tomb like this has a side path right around. Ju Hian looked around and smiled as if he found something. What he found was a cliff that only a crazy person would approach. Ju Hian boldly drove off the cliff. The tomb was most likely an underground type. The jeep fell headfirst as if it was being swallowed by the large black hole. It was a thrilling drive of death from there. Ah! The car thankfully landed on a slope, but it was so steep that the car felt as if it would flip over at any moment. It would have crashed into some vicious jagged stones and caused a large accident quite a few times if it wasn't for Ju Hian's talented driving techniques. The guard who was shielding Irene in the back seat teared up as if she was scared that she was going to die. She had come with them because Ju Hian said he needed a lot of baggage carriers, but this path did not seem normal at all. E, excuse me. I'm sorry to ask this kind of question, but. What is it? Everybody else was tightly grabbing on something as if they were worried for their lives, but Ju Hian was the only one who was calm. The guard held back her tears and asked. This does not seem like a proper road. A message popped up as if it was agreeing with the guard. Warning. This is not a proper entrance. There are no roads here. The message window seemed to be protesting. It was as if it was saying, I didn't give you the tomb excavation skill to do something like this. However, Ju Hian just scoffed at it. A proper road? Who cares about that? Everywhere is a path if you force your way through it. W, what did you say? Yu Jeha shouted as if he was asking why the guard was freaking out after hearing her shriek in shock. Did you just realize this was not a path? Looks like you're quite the slow one. Honestly speaking, subordinate number one had already figured out Ju Hian's style in Midas's tomb. I'll let you know that our captain Nim is always like this. Excuse me. Ju Hian reached his hand out as if he found Jeha to be praiseworthy. Hey number one. Give me one more artifact while you're at it. Yu Jeha picked an artifact in his bag that he had been restoring and handed it over. Ju Hian took the artifact and made it self-destruct as he used the tomb excavation skill. Baba bang. They heard another large explosion. Who knew what the exploding degrade artifacts had done to deserve this, but at least they were very effective. They were able to break through an obstacle and reach their destination. Huff huff. How long must they have driven down for? They sighed in relief after the jeep came to a stop. They could see light in the distance, but they didn't have the time to pay attention to that right now. W, we stopped. Everybody other than Ju Hian was just happy that they were still alive. 
It was normal that they were out of their minds because they took a few minutes to get somewhere that would normally take ten hours. But Ju Hian didn't care about how the rest of them were feeling as he got off the jeep. A message popped up at that moment. The current location is an already conquered tomb so worldly items can be used as well. Ju Hian took out his cell phone after seeing that message. The message seemed to be true as an item from the modern world was working properly even though they were inside a tomb. The place they landed in was quite wide. And I guess I was right to bring baggage carriers. Ju Hian looked at the site in front of him and smiled with satisfaction. There was a large tea plantation that was as wide as multiple soccer fields put together in front of him. There were creatures that were glowing similar to fireflies floating around the tea plantation. The combination of the two made it oddly seem beautiful. I guess the specialty item was a type of tea. There were thousands of types of tea here. Just taking a small seedling of each one would be quite the load. But there was something even more shocking. There really are kids here. There seems to be thousands of them. Yu Jeha who got off behind Ju Hian looked around as if he was shocked. The African children all seemed to be under 15 years of age, and they just continued to pick tea leaves even though some unfamiliar adults had shown up. It seems as if they are all hypnotized. The humans are being controlled by Su Fu's artifact. They are gathering tea leaves at the artifact's order. The messages continued. These tea leaves have the power of the ox-headed human. These tea leaves have the power to revive the dead and have a flavor that you cannot forget after trying it once. Ju Hian chuckled as he read those messages. It said an ox-headed human, which was a human with an ox's head and a human body. Ju Hian who was thinking after seeing the tomb glyphs here lightly chuckled. I have a vague idea about whose tomb this is. That was indeed the case. This tomb held the artifact of Shinnong, the man who was called the father of Chinese medicine, the Taoist god known as a god of agriculture and medicine. He was said to be a legendary king with an ox's head. Learning about the antidote properties of tea by chewing on it and drinking tea as a beverage were both said to be Shinnong's ideas as well, but that was not important right now. He desired this artifact as well but there was something more important. We will first split up and look for Su Fu's artifact. I taught you how to detect auras, right? Yes sir. It will probably take a while because it is so wide. The group split up and Ju Hian started to look around. Based on the aura he was feeling, it should be hidden somewhere within this tea plantation. It happened as Ju Hian held his phone up as he looked around. Ju Hian kicked in reflex after seeing shadows violently charging toward him. The attackers were unexpectedly the farming children. Pow! The children who had been trying to bite Ju Hian as if they were zombies coughed up blood and were rolling on the floor. The artifact might have ordered them to attack anyone who entered the tea plantation. He then heard some urgent screams Kaya. Ugh, these crazy bastards. His subordinates were getting attacked as well. The children bit off the skin on Yu Jeha's arm with their animalistic teeth. Blood splattered as a chunk of his flesh was ripped off. Then they aimed for his neck. Tang, tang. Ah. He took a small pistol out and fired around the children. The children either ran away in shock or fell to the ground. Some of the more defiant children glared at Ju Hian who viciously glared back and growled. Get lost if you don't want to die. I'll blow all of your f***ing heads off. His gaze looked serious as if he had no problem making it so these children could never walk again. They must have instinctively realized their enemy was extremely evil as the children shook in fear and ran away. Ju Hian lowered the gun and walked over to Irene who was on her own. Are you okay? Ah, uh, yes. I'm okay, but... Irene was worried about the children who had fainted while foaming at the mouth. The children who had tried to attack her were suppressed by the power of destitution and fainted after contracting a rare disease before they could even attack her. Ju Hian started to smile. As expected of the monarch of destitution. I guess I didn't need to worry. As it was a parasitic type artifact, it would automatically activate if it felt its master being in danger. Yu Jeha approached Ju Hian at that moment. It looks like they will attack if we even get close to the tea plantation. Should we be the bait so you can look for it, Captain Nim? 
Ju Hien sneered while looking at Yu Jeha's bleeding arm. It is praiseworthy that you are pretending to be tough, but you're going to die if you don't stop that bleeding. Also, I don't need bait. It'll slowly reveal itself. It'll reveal itself. Ju Hien chuckled. Su Fu's artifact is the bastard controlling the children. It has hypnotized these children and is considering them to be its property. Won't it react if we steal its property? When you say steal its property, you don't mean. Ju Hien detected the aura of an artifact and became alert as soon as he said that. I attacked the children. It's about time it charged out because I touched its property. Su Fu's artifact was a possession type artifact. You needed to either kill the owner or make the artifact betray its owner to take a possession type artifact. Those were the only two methods. As for the zombie powder he stole from Yun Shi Wu, he had lowered Yun Shi Wu's dominance so low that he was able to make the artifact betray him. Anyway, both Su Fu's artifact and Shen Nong's artifact should be Kira's possession type artifact. Well, I did come with a potential method of making it betray Kira, but he needed to test it out to see if it would work, but he needed the bastard to come out to even try it. As expected, that bastard came out in a little bit. You motherfucking human bastards, who dares to touch my stuff? Su Fu's artifact that had been hiding among the tea leaves appeared in anger. However, Ju Hien then smirked as if he had been waiting for this. You're finally here, you bastard. Chapter 77. You're finally here, you bastard. The tomb started to shake as if the artifact was angry. The angry artifact has created an aura wall around the plantation. You have been trapped. Your body will burn and you will die if you try to break through the wall. That was how the bastard had appeared. However, Su Fu's artifact that had been hiding in the tea plantation had an unexpected appearance. Ju Hien couldn't help but be shocked. A worm? That was the case. The thing that was screaming in protest toward him right now was none other than a worm. He had wondered why it had taken so long to get here, but had it dug through the ground and crawled all the way here. The small worm that came out of the dirt was squirming as it strongly protested. I'm going to make you pay for the damages, you bastard. Hey human bastard, are you listening to me? I need to at least be able to see you to even think about listening. It would be difficult to realize it was an artifact at first glance. It was because it looked like a regular worm. Ju Hien would have probably not noticed and accidentally stepped on it if it was not giving off an artifact's aura or mumbling in protest. The artifact continued to scream in anger. Listen to me. Those human slaves are my precious properties. I earned them through a contract. Do you know any of that you useless tall? Ah so damn loud. Puk. Ju Hien squished the worm with his foot as if he was annoyed. There was no way an artifact would die because he squished it like that, but the artifact screamed as it was being ruthlessly squished by Ju Hien's shoe. Yu Jeha who had been trying to detect aura around him to locate the Yu Jeha turned his head. Ha! Huh. Captain Nim, what are you doing? I'm teaching a lesson. I'm teaching him not to run his mouth because it's so damn loud. Ha! Huh. Did the artifact appear? Ju Hien lifted his foot and showed what was underneath it rather than responding. There was a dying worm underneath his shoe. Human bastard, I will make you pay for this however, the group who discovered the worm were shocked and asked if this was Su Fu's artifact. They had expected artifacts to be in the shape of items I heard the old man say there were artifacts that took the shape of living organisms, is this one of them? Of course, this was Ju Hien's first time seeing Su Fu's artifact as well. Why? Su Fu's artifact is a parasitic artifact. However, it was a unique parasite that stuck to an artifact instead of a person. It preferred to stick to another artifact and have a symbiotic relationship. It must be latched onto Shen Nong's artifact this time to help it gather as many tea leaves as possible. Shinong's artifact wanted to gather tea leaves to spread to the humans and needed manpower to gather them which Su Fu's artifact was helping it do. The reason they were only gathering children was because the artifacts knew something. They knew messing with little children was a better way to harm humans. Artifacts were those kind of cruel bastards. It's my first time seeing it in person, but I've heard about how to lure this bastard. That was why Ju Hien ordered Yu Jeha to bring his bag. 
Bring all the money we brought. Yu Jiehe's eyes turned wide at Ju Hian's comment. Ha! Huh. The money we stole, or do you mean the money we legally brought as well? Ju Hian nodded his head, and Yu Jiehe went to the jeep to get the bag. Now that he thought about it, Ju Hian had said they definitely needed cash or expensive items before coming into this tomb. But was that related to coercing Su Fu's artifact? Irene must have been curious about that as she continued to look at the squirming worm but asked Ju Hian a question. Mr. Ju Hian, what do you plan on doing with the money? What else would I do? Ju Hian squished the worm again and started to smile. I'm buying you. So, artifact, tell me. How much will it take? How much will it take? Irene and the guard looked at him in shock. The thing in front of them was not human. It was an artifact. But he was telling an artifact to name a price as he was going to buy it. Is this person crazy? The guard had that thought but Ju Hian was serious. This was the proper way to handle Su Fu's artifact. This bastard was originally a possession type artifact that extorted its user. It requires payment from humans to make a contract and use it. Money, jewels, slaves, anything was fine. Anything that could be considered property was fine. It was a hippo that just ate up money over and over. That was Su Fu's artifact's risk. Furthermore, it asked for more things every time you used it. It gave its user quite the headache. The fact that Kira was using this bastard meant that she had paid it as well. Of course, Ju Hian had no idea how much that bitch Kira used to get him to work, but he didn't think she would have used that much money. Chairman Kwan said he ended up using a total of 10 billion won. He didn't think Kira would have spent more than that. That was obvious. Kira was a government employee and not a wealthy person. There was bound to be a limit to how much money she could spend on artifacts. The amount that the US used to purchase artifacts averaged around a billion to tens of billion won. That was why he didn't think the money she was using to deal with the risk would go above that. She would have probably given up on using the artifact if it cost more than that. Furthermore, he didn't think it would require a lot of money to gather young children. Anyway, the method to steal this bastard was simple because it was such an artifact. It will betray her if I offer more money than Kira. That was why this bastard was a fickle bastard who required constant watching. Of course, Kira would not have left it alone like this if she knew that was the case. She let her guard down because it is a possession type artifact. That was why Juhian smirked as he squished the artifact some more. Okay. Speak. How much will it cost? The artifact ground its teeth. I have an important mission. Did you really think I would be swayed by money, human? It was protesting in that alien language earlier but it seemed to have connected with the tomb as he could clearly hear it now. Juhian started to speak. I have the medicine you are looking for. It will be more beneficial for you to come over while I'm being nice. You really think I would believe that? Juhian scoffed after hearing that. So that's how you want to play this. Yu Jaiha grunted as he dragged the bags of money from the jeep. Captain Nim. I brought them. Good. Ju Hian took a bag and casually opened the bag and threw the money in the air. The dollars that were in the 007 style bag spread out like pollen. There was approximately two billion dollars in there. The artifact that smelled the scent of money flinched. However, the artifact scoffed as if that was not enough. That's not enough money. You fool. Ju Hian smiled in response. I'm sure it's not enough. Yu Jaiha opened the other bags and excitedly threw the money at the worm after getting Ju Hian's signal. The money being thrown was worth 30 billion won, much higher than the 10 billion won Chairman Quan said he ended up using. Ju Hian wickedly smiled. This should be enough. However, something unexpected happened. Still not enough, human. Ju Hian's eyes opened wide as if this was completely unexpected. What? 30 billion won is not enough. Ju Hian became anxious after seeing that this amount that was much higher than the amount in the past was not enough. He then started to scoff. Kira, that bitch must have had a ton of money taken from here. But Ju Hian wasn't going to let it end here. 
He was quite thorough and had brought more things just in case something like this happened. Ju Hian flicked his finger and told Yu Jeha to hand them over. Yu Jeha handed Ju Hian a bag that he threw toward the worm. Inside the bag were accessories with diamonds on it, gold rings, gold necklaces, brooches, watches, and all sorts of expensive items all of these items would total to billions of one. Furthermore, it didn't end there. He took a document out of his pocket. Here, this is the deed to the Holton family's land. This land is two hectares wide. The guard freaked out and looked toward Irene after seeing that document. She was asking why that document was in this bastard's hand. Irene just smiled instead of responding. She seemed to have let Ju Hien borrow one of the Holton family's smaller lands at his request. Actually, the more accurate statement would be that she stealthily swiped a document from her father's room. The guard foamed at the mouth after hearing that. My goodness, stealing. Young miss. Your brother will faint if he finds out. It should be fine since it is to save our parents. That's true, but. Ju Hien was smiling at that moment. This should be much higher than what that bitch gave it. His thoughts must be correct as the worm started to shake. T, that much seems like it is enough to go with you, but. But? You see Ju Hien started to frown. What's the problem? I have the money and like I said, I also have the medicine you are looking for. That it's about 100 million short. Ju Hien started to grind his teeth. Damn it. About 100 million short. Kira, that stupid idiot. This bastard stole quite the money from here. He didn't know if the future changed or something, but how had she been swindled so bad by this artifact? However, this was not the time to talk shit about Kira. It would be easy to get 100 million if he exited the tomb. But they were currently stuck here. 100 million, 100 million. He wanted to just destroy it and make you Jeha restore it, but he didn't know if Jeha could restore a living organism type artifact. If this wasn't a possession type artifact that already had a contract, I would just Ju Hian looked around at the others. Do any of you have anything worth about 100 million? They all had awkward expressions. There was no way they were going to bring expensive things with them into a tomb. He gathered everything they had on them but it didn't seem to be enough. About 60 million one more, Yu Jeha then asked a question. Why don't you ask Irene to try to make some gold? That's impossible. She can't make gold yet. TSK, then what about using some artifacts? Maybe a pearl will come out of an artifact like this if you use it properly. Yu Jeha took out Venus's clam they stole from Vivian, but Ju Hian clicked his tongue. Hey idiot. This artifact is used to make foam, not pearls. However, Ju Hian who said that questioned his eyes for a moment. Something suddenly fell out of Yu Jeha's hand. It was none other than a pearl. It was definitely a pearl. The worm shouted as soon as the pearl fell from Yu Jeha's hand. Just 50 million one left. Yu Jeha looked at the pearl in shock. Wait, this small pearl is worth 10 million won. Lucky. I guess there was a pearl among the artifacts. How lucky. However, Ju Hian smirked while looking at the laughing Yu Jeha. No. You made that. Excuse me. What did you say? I made it. How? Good job. Number one. Hurry up and channel more dominance into that artifact. X, excuse me. No, like I said, how can I make a pearl? I'll explain later so hurry. Something shocking happened as soon as the confused Ujeha channeled some dominance into Venus's clam. Venus's clam opened and closed before it started to pour out a large number of pearls. Ju Hian instantly swept them up and threw them to the worm, Su Fu's artifact. All right, become mine now, artifact. I will follow you. The worm's body flashed before the weird text on its body disappeared. The worm then quickly flew over to Ju Hian. It was its way of showing that it had changed owners and was willing to follow Ju Hian. However, Ju Hian took a small bottle out of his pocket and ruthlessly imprisoned the worm inside it. The artifact that had instantly become trapped in the bottle screamed but Ju Hian who had gotten Su Fu's artifact smiled as he shouted. 
All right, now that the aura wall is gone, pick the tea leaves. You just need to get one seedling of each type. The three others quickly started to move as soon as he said that. At this moment, the African children started to cry or look confused as if Su Fu's artifact changing owners had released them from their mind control. However, he didn't have the time to pay attention to that. Boom! The ceiling crumbled and rocks started to fall. Captain Nim. Mr. Ju Hian. Ju Hian saw that and immediately activated an artifact. Chapter 78. Ju Hian immediately activated an artifact as rocks started to fall. Boom! It was Warang's sword. The police baton that came out of his pocket instantly turned into a sword and slashed the falling rocks into pieces. Boom, boom. Ju Hian landed back on the ground and shouted toward the worm he captured inside the glass bottle. This is your first order. Make those children gather the tea leaves. It was so that he could save time, but the worm shouted from inside the glass bottle. What, you need to first give me some riches. What? I already gave you some. That was the contract fee to sign a contract. The labor fee is separate. He really is a money-stealing hippo. Ju Hian debated ripping it apart and boiling it but suddenly had a thought. He then had a slight smile as he threw more of the pearls Yu Jeha created into the air. All right, work. That was 70 million one more. The worm started to dance while looking at this rain of pearls. Egu, it's raining money. I will do as you command, master. The pearls soon shined and disappeared before the worm that absorbed the riches burped and shouted. All right humans, what are you doing? Hurry up and gather the tea leaves. The children who had been sitting and crying started to quickly gather seedlings. They were much faster and skilled than when the other three people were doing it. Yu Jeha was wowed while looking at their shocking skill but he suddenly realized an issue. Captain Nim. This is good and all, but how are we going to get out? Do we have to go back the way we came? He was asking this because he knew very well how they had gotten here. However, Ju Hian just sneered at him. Are you crazy? Why would we go back up through that ten-hour distance? There was a better way than that stupid method. Lo and behold, Ju Hian started to laugh while looking at the worm. All right, you should know how to get out of here. Right, artifact. However, the artifact became anxious. B, but you have to destroy the tomb to get out of here. That means I'll have to betray Shinnong it seemed to have become friendly with Shinnong as it was leeching off it. It didn't want to fight against Shinnong's artifact that would definitely not let the intruders leave however, Juhian smiled like the devil and shook some more pearls. I'll give you three more of these. Furthermore, the pearls he was holding this time were very large. Please just leave it to me. Master. Something amazing started to happen at the same time. The children suddenly ran toward a warehouse, grabbed something, and headed toward the wall. The children were actually holding dynamites. Kira and the US soldiers who conquered this tomb must have left them here. The children seemed to know exactly which spot connected to the exit as they skillfully placed the dynamites and detonated them. A byway to the exit was finally revealed. Of course, the worm seemed to not be thinking about his betrayal anymore as he was just excited while watching the tomb being destroyed. It might innocently be thinking that it was great that this new master of his was extremely generous. But it happened at that moment. Kagegang. The owner of the tomb started to run wild as it probably realized the situation after seeing the byway being opened. You arrogant humans, whose belongings do you think you are trying to run away with? Shinnong's artifact was one of Kira's possession type artifacts. The artifact that noticed Ju Hian and the other intruders would not just let him be. The ground started to crack and the jeep they came in was gobbled up into the ground. That wasn't the only thing. The tea leaves fluttered in the wind and started to release an odd powder. Mr. Ju Hian, this. Ju Hian urgently covered Irene's mouth. Don't breathe it in. It's poison. Anlung Ph. Number 1. Follow those children outside. What about you, Captain Nim? Do you even need to ask? I need to take one more bastard with me. One more bastard. Captain Nim, why, you're not. 
Ju Hian wickedly smiled. There was no way a thief would leave a nice item behind, right? As expected, he strongly slammed down a flint he stole from the CIA. The first embers for mankind belonging to the Homo erectus degrade, antique grade, consumable artifact remaining uses 140200 something amazing then started to happen. Bang! A fire started as soon as he struck the artifact and it started to rage. The burning flame instantly spread to the tea plantation. Artifacts would be fine even if they were hit by a nuclear weapon, but it was a different story when they were attacked by another artifact. The tens of thousands of Pion YT plantation instantly started to burn. The guards' jaws dropped in shock. T, the T leaves. Isn't that all money? Is it okay to do this? Ju Hian just snorted. These things didn't fit into his burglar sack. He already gathered the seedlings to propagate. The only thing left was to erase their tracks and make sure two of the same things did not exist in the world. I'm sorry. General Nim. I'm going to have to monopolize the tea leaves. It was at that moment. Ah, uh, it's hot, it's hot. Shinnong's artifact that had been hiding in the tea plantation was screaming as if it was in pain. Shinnong's artifact had been a tea tree as well. It was a plant type artifact like the herb of eternal youth. Shinnong's tea tree that knows the taste of heaven SS grade, divine grade, possession type artifact as it was in the shape of a tree, it seemed to be in pain even after being attacked by a degrade artifact's fire. As it was an artifact focused on producing food, it was useful but lacked any defensive capabilities. It happened as Ju Hian was about to quickly snatch Shinnong. Captain Nim. Watch out. The ground Ju Hian was standing on cracked as if a large earthquake was happening. TSK. Captain Nim. A shocked Yu Jeha and Irene urgently reached their arms out. However, Ju Hian and Shinnong's artifact instantly fell underground as the ground cracked. This was the result of the artifact's anger, as if it was trying to make him die with it. The rest of the group was shocked. Mr. Ju Hian. However, Ju Hian was no longer visible after disappearing into the dark underground. FCK. Captain Nim. Captain Nim. Yu Jeha was swearing as he struck the blocked wall with a shovel. Yu Jeha and Irene had tried to climb down the hole once Ju Hian fell. However, a mysterious transparent wall appeared and made it so that they could not chase after Ju Hian as if it was rejecting them. It was Shinnong's aura wall. FCK. The tomb continued to attack after that. And currently they who had no choice but to exit the tomb to avoid the attacks were grinding their teeth while looking at the completely shut stone mountain. Ju Hian was completely imprisoned inside now. It was because of an artifact's ploy. The entrance they had created had long been closed as well. That was why they were standing there thinking, who cares if we brought all these tea leaves out with us. The most important person was trapped inside the tomb. Yu Jeha started to get angry at the situation. Ah, our Captain Nim is going to die like this. Is there really no way inside? The guard then asked as if she found it odd that he was worried. But can't that person just destroy the tomb and exit kind of like how we entered? Of course, Ju Hian had some odd skills. He could just make artifacts explode to create a path out like they had done earlier. However, Yu Jeha got angry as if to tell her to shut the hell up if she didn't know anything. Will you shut the hell up? That's only possible if he has artifacts with him. He can't make it all the way out based on the amount he has on him. I have most of the artifacts. Yu Jeha was carrying the majority of the heavy consumable artifacts. It was because he had to restore them. Yu Jeha was lamenting as if he did something wrong. Ah, I should have fallen down with him. Or, I should have at least thrown him the bag of artifacts. Although he frequently grumbled on the outside, Yu Jeha actually liked Ju Hian. Although he was a terrible person who bossed people around too much, Ju Hian had been the first person to show him a dream. Even if all of it was a bluff, he had been thinking that he found someone worth trusting for the first time in a long while. Ow, that's why I'm going to go inside no matter what I have to do. Irene, help me. I won't be able to sleep out of guilt if the Captain Nim dies like this. Okay. 
Irene and Ujeha had come together for the same purpose and were about to try something with an artifact. Captain Nim, I'm coming to save Y. It happened at that moment. Mommy. Irene, Ujeha, and the guard all covered their ears after hearing an extremely loud explosion. It sounded as if a cannon was going off. W, what the? What the hell was that? Something shocking happened at the same time. The stone mountain that reminded him of the Australian Uluru started to crumble. They started to move back in shock. The stone mountain split open and an extremely bright light shot up into the air. A significant amount of dust and wind spread out from the shock. Ah! The stone mountain was swept up by the light and turned into ashes. They could only see a large pit when they opened their eyes a few minutes later. Ujeha who had fallen to the ground and blanked out got up and ran toward the pit with Irene. The pit that was now where the stone mountain had been was as deep as a sinkhole. They shouted as if they found something. Lo and behold, something was climbing up from deep down. He was grumbling as he climbed up. Damn it, why the hell did a damn tree have to resist so much? The person who was slowly climbing up while holding onto a rope was none other than Juhian. Captain Naim. Mr. Juhian. Both of them started to sniffle in relief that Juhian was alive. Of course, Juhian just looked at them like they were weird. As for the rope artifact that was wrapped around Juhian and helping him up, it was twitching while saying, Master, Master, praise me when we get up there, praise me. Ujeha soon shouted happily toward the climbing Juhian. I'm sorry, I was next to you, I should have done something. No, it's not your fault. There are plenty of accidents inside tombs. Yes sir. But Captain Nim. What happened? That explosion just now was no joke just how. Juhian whose clothes were a mess leisurely pointed below him. Juhian was pulling up something that looked like a corpse. That was none other than Shinnong's artifact that only had its root left. Of course, the root was still quite large to the point it was much taller than Juhian. Ujeha looked at it and stiffened up with an ominous feeling. See, Captain Nim. There's no way that is. Juhian laughed out loud while looking at the root that was being dragged. I got annoyed and just destroyed this bastard. It was now burned to the point where it was impossible to tell whether it was the root of a tea tree or an alien life form. This person, he really. He had left Su Fu's artifact alone because he needed it, but he seemed to have gotten rid of Shenang's artifact in anger. He was curious as to how Juhian had destroyed it, but it was obvious he did something terrible to the artifact. Anyway, the tomb had disappeared because the artifact in charge was destroyed. Juhian who was completely scorched thanks to that was pulling the large root up as if he was pulling a shark or a whale up. It was quite large, so it was difficult for Juhian to carry. Ah, this bastard's really being annoying. Anyway, number one. I know it's going to be a bit difficult, but is it possible for you to restore plant-type artifacts too? The muscles in Ujeha's face started to twitch. Ah ha ah, yes sir. It should be possible. Of course it is. Juhian was looking at him with a gaze that seemed to be saying he would kill him if he said no. Now all that is left is to awaken the herb of eternal youth. Irene's face brightened after hearing Juhian comment. Then my parents. Yes, we just have to meet up with the farmers in New York now. Of course, Juhian would need to personally fuse the herb of eternal youth with Su Fu's artifact and awaken it once they got there. I should only need a day or so to awaken it. There were about four days left. They should have plenty of time to return to the Holton couple before it is too late. Juhian received an unexpected urgent call once he arrived at the New York airport. Farmer leader it was a call from Oh Sung Wu. An urgent voice started to speak as soon as he picked up. Hiu, Hyung Nim. May I ask where you are? New York John F. Kennedy Airport. I should be at the meeting spot in a few hours, why? We are currently in a restroom of a hamburger joint in New York City. We are being chased. U.S. soldiers are chasing us. They seem to be after this almond tree. Juhian scoffed as if he found it ridiculous. These bastards. It was obvious Kira caught onto the scent of the herb of eternal youth. 
The Oh Sung Woo group was shaking on the other side of the call. What do we do? They look like they're going to kill us if they catch us. Shut up, keep running away and listen carefully. Yes, Hyung Nim. Ju Hian started to smile. Now that he had the artifacts he needed, it was time to checkmate the annoying general. Chapter, 79 Kira Clark He was luckily able to kill her while she was in a weakened state, but she was an extremely strong and difficult woman. It was obvious that she would end up becoming that same headache as one of the four emperors if he let her be. So I need to eliminate someone like her early on if I am able to do so. Ju Hian started to smile. That wasn't the only thing. One of those four emperor's positions is mine. He would also steal one of those future positions. However, those bastards seem to be properly making their move now. They were aiming for the O oh Sung Wu group to steal the herb of eternal youth in the middle. How dare they aim for someone else's things? They deserve punishment. It sounded like a pot calling the kettle black, but Ju Hian first calmed the O oh Sung Wu group down. Anyway, I got it. Do as I said and keep hiding for now. I'll be there soon. P, please hurry. Hyung Nim. I got it. Yu Jae-ha looked at Ju Hian once he hung up the call. They had actually gotten on a cab as soon as he picked up Oh Sung Woo's call. Yu Jae-ha who was in the front seat quickly asked Ju Hian a question. What did they say, are the crazy bastards up to no good again? Ju Hian started to frown. It looks like Kira somehow found out about the herb of eternal youth. She seems to be chasing the farmers right now. Irene and Yu Jae-ha became shocked after hearing that. Wait, I get that she could find out about the herb of eternal youth's existence because of Chairman Kwan. But how the hell is she chasing the farmers right now? You destroyed all of Kira's map type artifacts. How the hell can she track them? How else? It must be the Pandora system. Pandora system? Yes, Pandora has a special artifact that can be called the brains of Pandora. Not only did it maintain all artifacts brought over to Pandora, it was a divine-grade artifact that could detect artifacts with strong auras. This brain-type artifact would end up becoming Pandora's central system that maintained artifact users, tombs, and their ranks in the future. I don't know which great historical figure's artifact it is nor what kind of divine-grade artifact it is. However, what he knew was that this was an artifact that even he could not easily handle. He was certain Kira was using that right now. But she would have needed to donate a ton of money to Pandora to use it, so that woman must be feeling quite frantic. Anyway, the farmers are low-grade users so they can't hide the artifact's aura. That's why they are being easily tracked. The Herb of Eternal Youth was a divine-grade artifact after all. It must be giving off a lot of aura right now, making it easy for the artifact that controls Pandora's system to track. Well, the airport is less than 30 minutes away from where the farmers are right now. We should be able to get there soon. But Yu Jae-ha looked at his watch and started to frown after hearing that. But those 30 minutes already passed a long time ago. That was indeed the case. They had gotten on the cab about 50 minutes ago. But forget entering the city, the cab wasn't even near the city. Yu Jae-ha boiled up in anger and started to argue with the driver in English. Damn it, mister. You said we would be there in 20 minutes. Why the hell are we not even in the city after 50 minutes? The hairy cab driver started to grumble as if he had a lot to say as well. What the hell can I do about traffic? Then how much longer do you think it will take? Who knows? There's bad traffic like this from time to time. But what can you do about it, you guys are just unlucky. It shouldn't take more than an hour for it to die down. What, one hour? Ju Hian seemed to be annoyed now as well as he finally said something. Hey number one. Hand over an artifact. I'll create a path. You cannot commit artifact bomb terrorism near the city. Then you create a path. Ju Hian sighed. Oh well then. In this case, I have to use that method. It was at that moment. Bang. They heard a loud crash not too far away. Ju Hian's eyes opened wide like a shocked rabbit at this sudden occurrence and he looked out the window. He saw smoke rising from not too far away. 
There were engines busting and signs falling down, all sorts of accidents starting to happen. Ah. A five-car pile up. Ah, damn it. My car. Ah. Who fell asleep behind the wheel? Juhian turned pale while watching what was going on. Is this perhaps, as expected, a weird message popped up at that moment. Warning. The artifact is showing a strong reaction according to the user's emotional state. The artifact's aura is violently seeping out. And along with that message bang. 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 The nearby area was turning into pandemonium. Ah. What's wrong with the traffic light? Hey. You crazy bastard. What the hell are you doing at a red light? What? The light was green. What are you talking about? The whole traffic light disappeared here. Ah. I still have so many payments left on this car. Egu. A 12 car pile up. No. It's a 30 car pile up. Holy shit. Although nobody seemed to be getting hurt, this was quite chaotic. People were screaming everywhere and they continued to hear cars crashing and exploding. Bang. Bang. The cab driver became anxious and started to swear. FCK. What the hell is going on? However, Yu Jaha and Ju Hian were only looking at a single person. They were looking at Irene. However, Irene was deep in thought and her hand was shaking as if she didn't know what was going on. She must have been getting anxious because she had finally found a way to save her parents but they might end up getting the herb of eternal youth stolen. Ju Hian and Yu Jaha awkwardly looked at her. She truly is the goddess of disaster, it was better now because she was dominating her artifact now, but he could not forget about something. Irene was the goddess of destruction who had instilled fear even in the monopolizers in the past. Once they heard someone in the cab next to them scream, how the hell is a cab fare 30 million one? Are you crazy? Ju Hian decided he needed to stop this and tightly clenched Irene's hand. He did not want to end up paying millions of one for cab fare. Hey. Irene looked toward Ju Hian in shock. Save your power. Excuse me. Ju Hian pointed outside instead of responding to the confused Irene. Irene almost fainted after looking outside. She seemed to have forgotten about the world while being deeply synchronized with the artifact. My goodness, did I again. We should call the cops right away. Ju Hian stopped Irene who was quickly reaching for her phone. Please stop. Every cop who picks up the call from you right now will be ruined. That made Irene's face turn pale. The cab driver rudely interrupted at that moment. Wow, shit, there are accidents now too so we can't move at all. I'm sorry but it doesn't look like you'll be getting home until tomorrow. Do you want to play poker with me tonight? Irene looked ready to cry. But Ju Hian was chuckling at her. Ah, don't be upset. You don't need cops to traffic control. The cab driver exploded in laughter as if he couldn't believe what Ju Hian just said. Then are you guys going to do traffic control? You're so crazy, you're going to deal with all of this. Ha ha ha. I'm really going to do it. Ha ha ha, sure, sure, go ahead. However, unlike the driver, Yu Jaha had clenched his eyes closed. Hey mister. This person will really do it if you provoke him like that. As expected, Ju Hian smiled and started to wave a train ticket. A lonely god's invitation SS grade, divine grade, consumable artifact it was the artifact he had taken from Chairman Quan in the past. It was the Kamikakushi mysterious disappearance. Damn it, when is Hyung Nim going to get here? I'm about to go crazy. On the other hand, the Oh Sum Wu group were sweating while looking around. It was because they were busy running away from the crazy US soldiers. Why are the damn Yankee bastards doing this to us? Shu. Oh Sung Wu quickly covered his brother's mouth and went into the public restroom. The TSOF who had been chasing the Oh Sung Wu group soon arrived and were grumbling outside the restroom. Damn it, those eel-like bastards. They couldn't have gone far. Find them. We can find them easily because they have a strong artifact on them. What is the Pandora HQ saying? Yes sir. 
They said it is within 50 m of this place. Good. Find them. They then started to run again. The Oh Sum Wu group slowly came out of the restroom once they disappeared. They sighed in relief, but the people who were about to go into the restroom flinched. It made sense because the Oh Sum Wu group had come out of the women's restroom. Although it might be easy to wonder why they were acting so perverted, there was a reason for that. The nuns are men. That was indeed the case. They had looted a nearby monastery to disguise themselves as nuns to avoid the TSOF. They had disguised as cab drivers, homeless men, Chinese tourists, and they even hid in sewers, under a bridge, and even a restroom ceiling to hide and escape. This was only possible because they had years of experience being chased by loan sharks. They ran and they ran some more. They started to grind their teeth after barely managing to catch their breaths. Damn it, why do those shitheads keep saying money money bullshit even after we tell them we aren't selling it? They pulled their eyes back and called me a damn monkey. Honestly speaking, the soldiers had continued to ask them how much they would sell it for all the way from the airport. They did not understand all of the English because they weren't very smart, but they did understand one thing. They could tell those punks were looking down on them quite a bit. They were acting all gentle but the way they sneered at them while saying take the money and get lost was quite frustrating. Ow, at least Ju Hian doesn't sneer at people like that. Maybe that was the reason the Oh Sung Wu group continued to follow Ju Hian. It was true, Ju Hian did not hold back any praise for the Oh Sung Wu group who were working hard to grow the herb of eternal youth and treated them well. This was the case even though other people would think what they were doing, weeding, fanning and singing lullabies to the plant, were stupid. There was more. Ju Hian did not sneer at them even when they made mistakes while calculating money and showed their stupidity. He cared more about their positive traits than their negative traits and always did a good job helping them keep their pride. That is why I want to meet his expectations after all that he has given us. That was why they were grinding their teeth at the punks who were trying to take Ju Hian's stuff. But those crazy bastards are they trying to show off that they've never been to Asia? Why do they think Asians are just greedy for money? Money, 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 they keep rattling on like a broken record even after we said no. Anyway, let's run to somewhere else before those idiots find us. Yes, let's go somewhere safe and wait for Hyung Nim. Let them eat shit. They covered their faces with the veils on their nun outfits and slowly tried to start walking away. Freeze. They heard a stern voice behind them. The shocked farmers group raised their hands on reflex and turned their heads. Had the TSOF bastards already found them? However, they turned their heads to see the New York police who had come out after receiving a call. Freeze. We got a call that you were pretending to be women and hiding in the women's restroom. You are under arrest for installing hidden cameras. Hand over everything you have. Is that black bag you have holding a camera? The Oh Sung Wu group gasped after hearing that. Wait, now what? No. No no. That's not what we were doing at all. Misunderstanding. Nonsense. Ah, it's the truth. Egu, Ju Hee and Hyung Nim. It happened as the cops were putting handcuffs on the Oh Sung Wu group. Found them. The Oh Sung Wu group gulped and turned their heads after hearing the voice. They heard someone's familiar voice not too far away. Chapter, 80 They heard someone's familiar voice not too far away. Hey! Farmers! That punk is! The person speaking was none other than Yu Jeha. And as they were about to be happy about seeing him. It's the Asian monkeys with the artifact. They heard another voice in the opposite direction. This time, it was the TSOF that they had been running away from. The soldiers they thought had gone away had found the Oh Sung Wu group. Get them. Damn it. There were about 30 of them. They were quickly running toward the Oh Sung Wu group thinking they finally got them. They couldn't run away because the cops were pointing their guns at them. Ah, this is driving me nuts. They were slowly getting closer, 100 meters, 50 meters, and then 10 meters. As they were about to have the artifact stolen and be wrongfully arrested for being perverts. They disappeared. The soldiers who were trying to grab the Oh Sung Wu group and the cops instantly disappeared. 
they were swept up by an artifact's light as if they were kidnapped by a god. Huff huff. The soldiers and the cops who had been trying to grab the Oh Sun Wu group became confused as their surroundings suddenly changed. It couldn't be helped as they had just been in the middle of New York City. But they had opened their eyes to find themselves on a grassy plain. It was a wide plain where they could clearly see the horizon. W, what happened? Of course, that wasn't the only thing that was weird. Honk. Honk honk. The vast plain that should be quiet was oddly noisy. It sounded like the hundreds of cars that filled New York City. The mysterious plane was quite noisy with hundreds of people chatting away. Where is this? We were on top of the road. Why are we suddenly on a grassy plain? Of course, they were not the only ones who were confused. The horses and goats that had been grazing on the plain were confused as well as they saw a pile of cars on this vast plain. Furthermore, the animals were looking at the newly appeared U.S. soldiers and cops with a, what the heck, some more weird things have appeared. Expression. Then they started to sniff them. The U.S. soldiers and the cops became even more flustered but the people who had gotten here at least ten or so minutes before them were starting to get angry. Ow. I'm going crazy. Is this California? FCK. Where the hell is this? Where was this place? This was a vast plain in Mongolia. The Oh Sun Wu group blankly stood there after their chasers disappeared. The people coming for them had suddenly been swept up by a light and disappeared. Just what? They heard a familiar voice as they stood there in shock. Good job staying hidden. Ju Hian had found the Oh Sun Wu group. He was leisurely walking over with Irene. Hyung Nim. They looked deeply moved as soon as they saw Ju Hian. They were about to cry in joy at the fact that they could finally complete their mission. They had almost died multiple times getting rid of those damn Yankee bastards. Thank you for coming. Please take it. Thanks. They handed the herb of eternal youth that was in a mini pot inside the bag to Ju Hian. The herb of eternal youth started to cry as soon as Ju Hian got it, but Ju Hian didn't care. The Oh Sung Wu group then looked around to look for the disappeared soldiers in confusion. But Hyung Nim, where the hell did they go? Ju Hian chuckled. Where did they go? Ju Hian slowly looked at the mobile news on his phone. 400 people mysteriously disappeared in New York City. Is it a god playing a prank or is it an artifact? Reports of distress coming from Mongolia. Ju Hian laughed out loud after seeing that. Looks like they are in Mongolia right now. M, Mongolia? Just how? Ju Hian waved a train ticket after hearing that question. The Oh Sun Wu group screamed after they realized that was the a lonely god's invitation he took from Chairman Quan. That is that Kamakakushi mysterious disappearance or whatever. Isn't that the thing the damn TKBM chairman tried to use on us? You used that? Yes. The train ticket Ju Hian had, the a lonely god's invitation was a warp-type Japanese artifact that forced people into a different world. It was able to warp things in front of the person, regardless of number, size, or material, to another place. They just ended up warping and scathed because he had Irene use her artifact. From America to Asia while driving a car in New York City or while uselessly aiming for the herb of eternal youth he was planning on letting the civilians come back soon, but as for those bastards who had been aiming for the herb of eternal youth let them keep sending distress signals. Ju Hian started to chuckle. He had Irene use it to train her but the results were magnificent. Of course, the user could send subjects to space or even unknown spatial pockets if they were willing to take the risk, but that wasn't important right now. Anyway, we are heading to the Holton residence now. However, Ju Hian called someone before they started to move. He needed a talented knight to move in order to checkmate the general. On their way to the Holton residence Ju Hian was starting the herb of eternal youth's awakening process inside the limousine. He was trying to upgrade this sexual enhancer to a healing artifact. He picked up the herb of eternal youth that the Oh Sung Wu group was carefully holding as soon as he started. The herb of eternal youth started to scream as he handled it roughly and pulled it up by the branches as if he was pulling a rabbit up by its ears. I hate him, I hate him, I hate this human. Go away, go away. 
The herb of eternal youth really hated Juhian as if he was a heinous kidnapper. In some ways, it also looked like a rebellious daughter pushing away her father. Return me to my servants, return them to me. It must have not liked Juhian's violent dominance. This artifact was one that someone with high affinity called affinity but really more of someone's level of being a pushover, could handle. The herb of eternal youth cried to protest but it couldn't run away as it was contracted to Juhian. Juhian viciously smiled knowing that was the case. Egu, this little cutie sure can cry so loud. It makes me want to pull off all of its leaves. The Oh Sung Woo group, aka the babysitters, started to sweat and plead with Juhian. Egu, Hyung Nim. That child will cry again if you handle it like that. It's a sensitive child so the leaves will go bad. Humph. A few leaves going bad won't damage its efficacy. Juhian then ripped the herb of eternal youth violently out of the pot. The Oh Sung Woo group gasped while the herb of eternal youth launched a scream. You bloodless, tearless pervert. The herb of eternal youth was crying frantically as if it had become naked. The herb of eternal youth's roots were moving like tentacles. It tried to attack Juhian with them, but sadly, they were too short. They could not reach Juhian. Juhian then took a glass bottle out of his pocket. Su Fu's artifact, the greedy worm was inside it. The Oh Sung Wu group's eyes opened wide at what they saw. What are you going to do with that worm? Fuse them together. Juhian then moved the herb of eternal youth into a different big pot. He then threw the worm toward the roots before instantly covering the pot with dirt. The two artifacts that were forced to stay together were screaming for different reasons. What is this filthy thing? Oh, I finally found you. My beloved. The herb of eternal youth looked scared seeing something foreign coming into its house while the worm seemed to be crying in joy. However, it didn't end there. Now I need to force the herb of eternal youth to awaken. Juhian channeled a large amount of dominance into both artifacts. A bright light flashed. Bang! The herb of eternal youth then started to change appearance. The baby almond tree that used to fit in a mini pot was changing to a shrub like tree. Its appearance. Look, look. There's a different fruit where the almond flowers used to be. The shrub had red fruits that resembled a Korean Cornell dogwood fruit or a magnolia berry. He finally had the true herb of eternal youth in his hand. Juhian smiled while looking at it. Yes, this is it. Juhian roughly pulled a batch of fruits off. The herb of eternal youth screamed as if someone had pulled its hair out and the worm was being scared of its new house, but Juhian didn't care. The important thing was that squeezing the juice out of this and feeding it to the Holton couple would heal them. Now we just have to get to your parents. Yes. Irene was very happy. It was at that moment. It happened as she excitedly walked into her house. B, brother. George Holton was unconscious inside the house. Not only that, he was a bloody mess. A pale Irene and the driver ran toward George Holton. Brother. Young master. George Holton was barely breathing with a giant hole in his stomach. Juhian started to frown while looking at George's condition. Juhian had seen enough corpses inside tombs to know how he was. His life was in danger. That wasn't the only thing. An artifact did this. Juhian urgently slapped George Holton's cheek. Hey, can you hear me? George Holton grabbed Juhian's arm with as much strength as he could muster. My mother and father they were sucked into a weird pict. He then heard a scream coming from the other room. Young miss. This is bad. The master and the madam have disappeared. The servant who went to check on the Holton couple had screamed. However, there was no need to ask who did this. Someone called the house at that moment. However, they didn't answer the phone so it went to voicemail and the voice echoed in the room. Why aren't you picking up? I know you're there. Kira was the one who was calling. I have the Holton couple. I taught that guy who should be on the ground a lesson because he tried to attack me when he's not even an artifact user. Irene Holton. I will return the hostages if you swear to follow us. Personally call me on this number if you will follow us. 
I will tell you and only you the location. The one-sided call then ended. Ow, that crazy bitch. The Oh Sun Wu group and Yu Jeha shouted in anger while Ju Hian scoffed and got up from the floor. Feed George Holton some of the herb of eternal youth. H, Hyung Nim, what about you? Are you going to rescue the two of them? No, it'll be settled without needing to do that. Ju Hian looked at his phone as if he was checking something. Um, mm, something is odd. The night that I asked to land the checkmate should be showing some results by now. Ju Hian who was checking something on his phone started to smile. There was urgent news regarding Kira popping up on his phone. Chapter, 81 There was urgent news regarding Kira popping up on his phone. Shocking video report, mind-controlling African children with an artifact. Successive testimonies. Ghanaian President Samuel, modern-day slavery, disappointed in U.S. Removing Ghana from Pandora. Black extremist group, we can see the U.S.'s true mindset through this. The articles popping up were related to the Ghanaian tomb that Ju Hian had looted. That was the tomb where Ju Hian had taken Su Fu's artifact and Shen Nong's artifact. The news about how a general of the U.S. TSOF had controlled black African children for her benefit was spreading internationally. Of course, while most of the children were black based on the nature of where they were, but they had not all been black. However, all of the broadcasts were very biased. That wasn't the only thing. The U.S.'s Lieutenant General Kira has been determined to be the mastermind behind the kidnapping and forced labor of these Ghanaian children. The U.S.'s Ministry of Foreign Affairs has scheduled an urgent press conference to state the following, we have no relations to her whatsoever. General Kira was being named the prime suspect in this matter. It was to the point that the U.S. Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Pentagon which should have close relationships with her were conducting urgent press conferences. Her actions were enough to fill the front page and it was even more of an issue because of the recent artifact and tomb-related terrorist incident. Furthermore, she was controlling humans. It wouldn't be weird for World War II to start if something like that was truly possible in the modern world. It didn't help that it had to do with the sensitive topic of racism. Nobody wants someone who oppresses black people as a general. A movement to fire Lt. Gen. Kira is underway. A black organization and the KK have clashed. Thousands were injured due to artifacts being used. The entire U.S. is tense right now. If the articles popping up in Korea were like this, it wouldn't be wrong to say it was quite chaotic throughout the world. That was why the U.S.'s decision was simple. U.S. President James has an emergency meeting with his chief executives. The Pentagon claims, we will not summon Kira Clark as we cannot bring someone who controls humans near us. Will Kira Clark's expulsion be determined? Ju Hian laughed after seeing what came next. Someone was calling Ju Hian. There was no need to question who was calling. C.O. Ju Hian. Is this your doing? She must have seen the news as Kira's breathing was heavy as he listened to her on speakerphone. It seemed that she decided the only person who could have done this was Ju Hian who had destroyed her tomb. However, Ju Hian calmly laughed at Kira who was huffing. Oh, Miss General who may be expelled in the near future. How does it feel to have become a celebrity? You bastard, what the hell did you do? What did I do? I just let the world know about what you were doing. What's wrong? That was true. Ju Hian had formulated this plan after seeing the African children being forced to work in the tomb. It was his plan to demote Kira to a spot where she did not have any influence in society. General Nim. It's your fault for neglecting that tomb because it was already conquered. Of course, he doubted anybody else could run around as they pleased in there as he had done. Anyway, he was able to use modern items in that tomb so Ju Hian had taken a video on his phone and sent it to Edward. Edward has ties to the major media networks. He had to use a lot of money for this but that much didn't matter. A magnificent issue had been created using Ju Hian's video, the testimonies from the surviving children, the US soldiers' weapons and the confessions from the subdued mercenaries. There was no way the media would pass up on something that would be a hot topic like this. The issue was now too big for the government to protect her simply because she had a divine grade artifact. That was why Ju Hian started to laugh. Idiot. 
why would you foolishly touch on the sore subject of racism that is like a ticking time bomb in the US? That was why Juhian had focused on that aspect and Kira was grinding her teeth. FCK. Of course, she could feel that this was unfair. She knew that people could go into the tomb, but the Pentagon was playing dumb even though she had done it for the benefit of the US. But there was a critical component that put her in this position. Did you send old man Edward on purpose? Did you only realize that now? That critical component was Edward. Juhian had given Edward Mary Antoinette's artifact so that he could be certain that they could send Kira off. It was the artifact that could create malicious rumors and give it wings to spread far and wide as long as the target was in front of the person. Old man Edward had gone to look for Kira saying that he was tired of running and wanted to sell her information about Juhian before suddenly disappearing as soon as he used the artifact. In the end, the artifact's effects along with Juhian's masterpiece put quite the attention on Kira. Kira who had now become a celebrity started to shout. Don't think you won. You really think I would be destroyed by something like this? But it doesn't seem like you'll be able to stand it much longer. Life is like that, you can lose everything because of something trivial. That's why you shouldn't have done something the media would love. The monarch of war Kira had taken artifacts from Africans and Asians alike in the past in the name of war of the races after all. Whether it is now or later, you were fated to be punished for your actions. However, Kira started to shout in anger at Juhian's shameless comments. Shut up. Don't forget that the Holton couple are in my hands. Bring the herb of eternal youth over right now. Then I will forgive you about this. Juhian started to laugh. This woman seemed to be planning on taking the herb of eternal youth to the US to avoid being expelled. Her thought process was commendable, however get lost. I have no reason to listen to you. What did you say? I do not lie. I will kill the Holton couple right now if you don't do as I say. It was quite the threat. However, Juhian was smiling for some reason. Okay then. I don't care whether you kill them or not. I'm really going to kill them. Did you hear me? Take the Holton couple out of the painting and kill them. Irene was seriously shocked at what she heard but Juhian held her hand and told her it was okay. He was right. T, the Holton couple are not here. They are not within the painting we kidnapped them in. What? They became flustered while Juhian leisurely laughed. Egu, the couple isn't there. I guess you can't kill them then. Co Juhian. Is this your doing too, you bastard? Yes. I won't tell you how I did it though. It's business secrets. He heard Kira starting to swear but Juhian didn't care and hung up. Click. An anxious Irene urgently grabbed Juhian as soon as the call ended. What's going on? What about my father and mother? It's nothing much. Those idiots just wasted their time. George Holton took a deep breath and started to speak. I definitely saw my mother and father being sucked into their painting. Who the hell were they then? Juhian chuckled. Who were they you ask? What? Copies? You hid my real parents in advance? George Holton shouted in a limousine that was driving through New York City. He had been close to death but swallowed the extremely bitter herb of eternal youth to narrowly escape death. Both George Holton and Irene were gasping in shock. Then you are saying I was nursing fakes this whole time? And this scammer was the one who created the fakes of my parents? George Holton's eyes were open wide as he glared at Ujeha. Ujeha who had happily sold him a counterfeit painting in the past flinched but Juhian nonchalantly smiled. Yes. Why don't you praise him? My little subordinate here can create counterfeits of anything by using an artifact. Art, artifacts, items, anything with a material form can be copied. It's probably too much to copy something that is alive, but it's no big deal to make a copy that pretends to be human. Just consider it as creating a protein doll that is extremely similar to the real thing. It's good enough to even trick artifacts. That was the case. Juhian had worried that someone might aim for the Holton couple. Why? It was because he could not get the fact that Kira had Irene's weakness in the past out of his mind. 
Kira had the personality to kidnap the couple to use Irene for her benefit if things went awry. That was why Juhian had given Ujeha an order before they left for Africa for the what-ifs. The fakes lasted a long time since he did not create fake artifacts this time. Now then, his copying skill is what kept your parents safe, so let's stop being petty and don't be angry that he sold you a fake painting. You'll forgive him, right? Ugh. Ujeha seemed to be full of admiration at this and whispered to Juhian. Captain Nim, don't you think I'd be great at scamming if I scammed people with fake artifacts? Then I can swipe those artifacts for you too, no? Juhian chuckled at Jeha who was starting to open his eyes as the monarch of fraud. Of course, Juhian would welcome his subordinate growing to a monarch grade user. Anyway, your real parents are safe in a penthouse I bought in New York. We put them there before we left for Africa. George Holton's jaw dropped after hearing that statement. How the hell did you take the two of them out of the house? Getting out of a house like that is nothing when I've even escaped from a burning hotel in Macau. It was at that moment. As they were moving in a limousine to heal the Holton couple an urgent message popped up. A suspicious painting is threatening you. Ju Hien who realized something at the same time urgently shouted. Stop the car now. The car came to a sudden stop at his shouting and Ju Hien told people to quickly jump out. Hurry up and get out of the car. Yu Jae-ha kicked the shocked people out of the car even though he didn't know what was going on because Ju Hien had never been wrong yet. The moment they jumped out of the car the large limousine was surprisingly sucked away. It was sucked toward the roof of a five-story building. Kira and the TSOF who were holding a large canvas painting were standing there. The car had been sucked into that canvas. George Holton recognized the painting right away. That's the painting my parents were sucked into. Ujeha, who saw the canvas, became shocked. Ha! Huh. Over there. That's Van Gogh's famous tree roots, isn't it? I heard that went missing in a museum a few months ago. Juhian smirked. It was obvious. It was a case of a real item turning into an artifact similar to his code of Hammurabi. The woman who brought that painting was grinding her teeth. Now that things are like this, I'm going to capture all of you with this to prove my innocence. Juhian scoffed as if she was ridiculous. Innocence my ass. What bullshit is this when all of it was true? Please get out of the way because we are busy. Shut the hell up. Kira tried to activate Van Gogh's painting again. However, it was at that moment. Bang! There was a loud bang and the canvas had split in two as if telling her to get lost. A shocked Kira looked at the artifact while Juhian turned his head. He saw Irene who was extremely angry. The artifact of destitution is responding to the change in the user's emotion. The artifact is going berserk. The artifact of destitution is trying to destroy the artifact of war. Irene started to grind her teeth confirming the message. She had clearly recognized Kira as the enemy. It would be weird if she did not hate Kira. She had aimed for Irene's parents, harmed her brother, and was now attacking Juhian and them. You're going to have to meet your end here. Juhian laughed as he watched her. Hey General, it looks like there's a new person to take you on in my place. What? Kira tried to pursue Juhian but she was stopped by Irene's power while her subordinates coughed up blood and fainted. Juhian did not miss that opening and summoned the rope to tie George Holton. Anmung Ph. What is this, untie me? Let me go. Shut up and you come with me. Hey. George Holton was being messed with by the rope as he was dragged. The rope just seemed to like Ju Hien as it was saying, Master, where do you need me to go? Where should I go? As it followed behind him. It seemed excited that its master might praise it this time. On the other hand, Kira who was being stopped by Irene was grinding her teeth as she shouted. Co Ju Hien. Get your ass here right now. I'm a busy man. I understand how you feel but stop looking for me, you obsessed woman. They quickly started to move. Chapter, 82 The rope pulled George Holton with immense strength. However, this eldest son of a noble family could not help but scream at this treatment that he could have never even imagined. 
How could there be nobody to mess with him to the point that a damn rope was treating him like this? Hey, let me go. Why, you weird rope thing? George Holton tried his best to rip the rope but this only made the rope annoyed and made it tighten its hold on George Holton. Huh. You're going to play with me. You're going to play with me. It was tightening quite a bit as if it had been going easy until now. It sulked and let George go when Juhian told it to stop because it looked as if George Holton was going to die. Damn it, why are all artifacts like this? It can't be helped. All artifacts have the basic foundation of tormenting humans. George was huffing but didn't care about that. What was important right now was not talking about artifacts but his sister. Hold on. You left Irene back there. Why did you drag me away? At least one person from the Holton family needs to see their parents being healed. I need to make sure you can't make any excuses about what happened. George Holton became anxious at that statement and started to speak. But you saw that general. Her opponent is not normal. Why are you freaking out like that? Your sister isn't normal either. What did you say? George Holton who was concerned about his sister shouted in anger but Ju Hien smiled without any malice. It was true that she was not normal. There were only a few monarchs who could take on the monarch of war. Stop worrying for no reason. Do you know who taught her? I didn't teach her so terribly that she'll lose to a woman like that. The entire city started to shake as soon as he said that and Juhian smiled while looking at the messages that popped up. The artifact of war is attacking the city. The goddess of destruction is dragging humans into the battle and starting to destroy buildings. That was Kira's doing. Irene, who had been trained quite thoroughly by Juhian had forced Kira to take out her artifact of war. Oh my, I remember she hated to use the artifact of war because of the risk. Irene must have been doing even better than he imagined. Juhian and George Holton then arrived at a 105th floor penthouse as he thought that. The Holton couple was inside as Juhian mentioned. Mother. Father. However, the room was filled with the stench of rotting corpses and the couple were groaning in pain. Juhian quickly checked the couple's condition before starting to frown. They're really at their limits now. What? N, no. Hurry up with that fruit. Juhian took some of the herb of eternal youth fruits out of the glass bottle before George even finished shouting. He then ruthlessly squeezed them as if he was squeezing a lemon. Crack. He would normally turn it into medicine first, but there was no time to do that. Juhian quickly dripped the juice into the couple's mouths. Something amazing then started to happen. The couple's bodies started to glow before the rotten areas covering the couple's bodies slowly started to disappear. Their skin was returning to normal as if they were returning to how they were prior to being sick. George Holton's jaws dropped after seeing what happened. T. The injuries. Juhian laughed thinking this was it. The herb of eternal youth was a healing artifact that returned the body to a past condition. That was how it healed any issues. I just need to repeat this. Juhian continued to squeeze more juice into the couple's mouths. He had to do that numerous times. The oddities around their body finally disappeared and the couple lifted their heavy eyelids. The couple had finally been fully cured. How what happened to us? George Holton was in awe after seeing his parents looking normal. Father. Mother. George Holton, their eldest son, started to cry profusely in a way most men their size would never do while the confused couple started to console their son. However, the situation did not permit this emotional reunion. Boom! There was another large rumbling and Juhian got a call. Irene was calling him. Mr. Juhian. Juhian laughed to tell her to relax after hearing her desperate voice. Your parents are safe now. Ju Hien heard some crying and instantly cut her off and sternly added on. Save the emotions for later since Kira is still there. It is not the time to lose focus. Ah, uh, yes sir. I'm sorry. Irene urgently responded. Um, you see, the general suddenly disappeared. Do you think she ran away? Ju Hien started to frown. He was certain that she had not escaped. The mighty monarch of war would never suddenly run away while attacking. 
there was a message saying the following as well. The artifact of destitution and the artifact of war are nearby. If the artifact was nearby but Kira escaped Ju Hien debated for a moment before his eyes opened wide. Wait, hold on. Ju Hien started to smile after realizing something. Yes, her risk must have happened. She was using the artifact of war quite a lot because of Irene and the risk must have come much earlier than expected. She must have turned into something weird right now. That was why it looked as if she had disappeared or run away. Ju Hien who realized that laughed viciously like a hunter and responded. Don't worry. I'll be there soon. Ju Hien hung up the phone and quickly ran out of the hotel. This was an amazing opportunity. It is our win if her risk activated. That meant that he didn't need to work his ass off to take her on as he did in the past. Ju Hien quickly walked through the chaotic city. He heard Irene's voice once he walked to a part of the city that was in ruins. Mr. Ju Hien. It seemed as if Irene's risk had not arrived yet. You said that Kira did not run away. She just changed into something because her risk activated. He was certain Kira was somewhere in this wide city. He could feel a faint aura of an artifact that other people could not feel once he started to focus. It was at that moment. The mastery of the spy skill has reached its max level. The spy skill has risen to be rank. Kira's aura became even clearer as the rank rose, but she's hiding her aura quite thoroughly. Even the mighty Juhian could not clearly locate her yet. Damn it, it's almost checkmate. Where is it? Where was she hiding? It would be easier to search if he knew at least the area she was in. As Ju Hien was grinding his teeth Captain Nim. He turned his head to see Yu Jeha running toward him with a bright smile. But Ju Hien could not help but scoff as the item Yu Jeha was holding was unexpected. Actually, he had no choice but to laugh. What the hell, that's Kira's artifact. When the hell did you grab that? I swiped it since the TSOF bastards had fainted. I'm restoring it because it pained me to see the historic Van Gogh painting being destroyed, but. It didn't matter. The important thing was that this punk was holding Kira's item. I can track her with this. Ju Hien did something that made Yu Jeha almost faint while Jeha was talking. He had ruthlessly ripped a part of the canvas that Yu Jeha was restoring. Rip. Yu Jeha who had been busy restoring it screamed while the artifact screamed as well. Egu. My body. Egu. What are you doing? I was in the middle of restoring it. Does anything change because there is one more part to restore? What did you say, you bastard? Ju Hien took a notebook out of his pocket without any regards for whether Yu Jeha was foaming at the mouth. To be more specific, this was Zheng He's map type artifact. Ju Hien then put a portion of the canvas he ripped onto the notebook. Zheng He's artifact then tracked Kira down and showed her location on the map. Ju Hien's eyes opened wide while looking at the location visible on the notebook. Huh. Kira was unexpected around his current location. She's within 20 m of me. That woman was that close to him. However, he could not see anywhere a person might be hiding no matter how many times he looked. It was because he was standing at an open intersection. There was debris from broken buildings, but searched thoroughly. She's right around here. Excuse me. She's still around here. The others looked around in shock. However, they could not see Kira at all no matter how hard they searched. What the hell did she turn into? The fact that he could not see anything meant that she had turned small or did not look human. At that moment Kira was hiding within the debris and grinding her teeth in anger. It was fine that the Mother of King artifact of destitution forced her to use an artifact she didn't want to use. But maybe because she used so much strength that a portion of New York City was blown up, but the artifact's risk had come extremely quickly. That wasn't the only thing. This is driving me crazy. Kira could not see anything and had to crawl with her whole body as her arms and legs seemed to be bound as well. Actually, it might be more accurate to describe it as she was going crazy because it felt as if she was flipping over every so often rather than crawling. Damn it, why did it have to? Yes. Kira had turned into a white grub right now. 
Furthermore, she was so close that Ju Hian would find her if he took a few steps. She was at least relieved that she could somehow still hear, probably thanks to the artifact, even though she was a tiny grub. That was why she was rolling her body as best as she could in the opposite direction of Ju Hian's voice. She didn't want to stay in place and have him find her because of the aura of her artifact. This is really driving me crazy. She wanted to avoid getting caught by them because she had no idea when she would return to normal. But at that moment a black shadow appeared over Kira who was struggling to run away as quickly as she could. It was not Juhian. However, it was the rope artifact that had followed Juhian here and was searching this area. The rope was staring at the short and chubby grub, no, Kira. Was it thinking that this short but still long and white thing was similar to it? Or maybe it realized that this thing was actually human. And lo and behold. The rope artifact instantly swept Kira off the ground and was dancing. Master, I found it. I found it. The rope bound the grub and lifted it high into the air. Juhian's gaze naturally moved over to the rope artifact that was moving up and down as if it was asking him to look over there. On the other hand, Kira felt like she wanted to die. This motherfucking artifact. Let go of me. Let me go. She was done for if she was caught here. Kira who had instantly been swept up by this artifact and was being spun in the air wanted to throw up. However, the rope artifact didn't care and excitedly called for Juhian. Master, over here, over here. Please quickly look here. Juhian soon became interested in the rope that was causing a ruckus. Juhian's eyes opened wide after realizing that the rope was holding something. That is. He was certain. That was Kira. This artifact that specialized in tormenting humans must have found it easier to locate Kira. He couldn't feel it when he was blindly looking, but he could clearly feel Kira's aura now that his attention was focused on something. Juhian quickly started to move and the anxious Kira tried to escape from the rope. She was done for if she was caught by Juhian in this state. I need to escape. However, she was still a grub no matter how hard she tried to flail. She was a grub that was used in medicine or as food. Damn it! The rope artifact might or might not know what Kira was thinking, but it was saying, Human, where are you going? Where are you going? And mischievously holding on to Kira. Kira truly was going crazy now. Please let go of me. Then the worst situation started to happen. Oh, who might this be? Juhian picked Kira up and was laughing viciously. Chapter, 83 Kira felt as if she was going to go crazy. It was still acceptable that she turned into a damn grub because of the artifact's risk. But why did she have to get caught by Juhian while looking like this? Damn it, I'm scared. She wouldn't be able to say anything if she turned into a medicinal ingredient like this. As for Juhian, he was smiling wickedly as if he was going to boil her and eat her. Hey General Nim, I never expected to see you looking like this. Yujeha and Irene were shocked after hearing that while Kira became frantic. It was all because of this motherfucking rope. I need to get away from this bastard. However, the rope that found Kira was swaying side to side as if it was looking forward to something. Will you praise me now? Are you going to praise me? It moved to Juhian's right and then to his left, back and forth. And the moment Juhian looked away from the rope for a moment Kira did everything she could to activate her powers. Making a divine grade artifact go berserk was gambling with her life, but it would still be better than being captured by this bastard. All of you can die. But the moment Kira tried to activate the artifact's powers. Juhian took out something unexpected from his pocket. It was a bottle of soju. He then twisted the cap open before throwing Kira into the bottle. Splash! Kira who was instantly submerged in soju started to scream. But nobody could hear her as she was a bug. Guzzle, guzzle. Kira who was submerged in soju couldn't help but swallow the alcohol. Yujeha and Irene couldn't help but blankly watch what Juhian did. See, Captain Nim. He seemed to have brought that to deal with Kira. That seemed to be the case as a message window popped up in front of Juhian's eyes. The tyrannical goddess of war is starting to feel good because of the alcohol. 
The goddess of war's tyrannical power is becoming weaker. Zhu Hian started to smile after seeing those messages. Yes. All artifacts had their natural enemies. Her Sekhmet's artifact had one as well. Sekhmet was the goddess of massacre who was sent by R.A., the greatest of the Egyptian gods, to destroy mortals who conspired against him. According to the myths, she liked alcohol too much and got drunk after drinking all the beer in the world and led to humanity being saved. As this was an artifact that was born from such a myth, Sekhmet's artifact was weak against alcohol. Juhian had used that fact in the past to kill Kira as well. She got knocked out by beer so there's no way she could stand soju. The Oh Sun Wu group had bought this when he told them to go buy some alcohol, but it seemed pretty effective. There was more. Ju Hian who had placed Kira inside the soju bottle violently started to shake the bottle. The person inside was screaming. Ah! Kira who now felt as if she was suddenly placed in a laundry machine ended up drinking a lot more soju. Hiccup! Hiccup! Ju Hian looked at the dying Kira inside the soju bottle and started to laugh viciously. All right, be a good girl and turn into Grub Ju. Hiccup! And that was how the infamous goddess of war ended up falling unconscious. Your parents and your brother will be here soon. At the Holton residence Ju Hian's group and Irene were waiting for the Holton couple and George Holton here. The Holton couple who were saved by the herb of eternal youth were at a large hospital getting a checkup at George Holton's insistence. Of course, the doctors were just gasping in shock. My brother seemed to be fine as well. Irene seemed to be very happy thanks to Juhian. Juhian smiled in satisfaction as well. It was nice seeing a beauty like her smiling so happily, but a greater joy was waiting for him after this. It was as if sweet honey was waiting for him after enduring so long. He was looking forward to the reward he would get as a result of this long-term project. The Holton family is on my side now. However, there was someone who was going crazy. Terrible terrorist Kira who destroyed New York City. Kira did not appear at her hearing. U.S. decision made to expel Lt. Gen. Kira Clark and put her on the most wanted fugitives list wait, a terrorist. Someone on the most wanted fugitives list. Kira who Ju Hian had toyed with for the past few days in the Holton family's annex was going crazy. She could handle being toyed with by being thrown into a pile of grubs, being placed on a drying rack to be used as a medicinal ingredient, and even almost ending up as food for the Holton family's pets. But expelled and a terrorist? Kira wanted to complain to the president that she was innocent but she was a bug right now. Damn it! Co Ju Hian. Kira cursed Ju Hian while inside the soju bottle. She slammed into the sides of the soju bottle trying everything she could to escape. They say that even grubs are talented when it comes to rolling. But grubs are talented in rolling was some bullshit. Ah! The soju bottle started to roll around again. Poo poo! She heard someone sneer at that moment. What is this woman doing now? Ju Hian was speaking as if he found her to be stupid. The rope artifact had picked up the soju bottle and brought it over to Ju Hian. Ju Hian placed the soju bottle next to him again and looked at the rope. The rope had not returned to its bracelet form for some reason and continued to roam around Ju Hian. It had actually been doing this for a few days. He didn't scold it for not returning to a bracelet as it had been useful, but he had no idea why it wasn't changing back. What's up with this thing? The rope just continued to tilt side to side as if it was waiting for something. Master, are you not going to praise me? Are you really not? Ju Hian who had no way of knowing what it was thinking seemed to be checking the time. It's about time they showed up. The rope became upset. It happened at that moment. Hand over General Kiran Im. We are going to arrest the kidnappers. The TSOF had charged into the Holton residence. The TSOF who barged in through the main door seemed to have tracked Kira's artifact down as they continued to search every room. The Holton servants became anxious seeing the soldiers suddenly barge in, but Ju Hian was welcoming them with open arms he had been waiting for these bastards on purpose. You need to take care of the worker ants too when taking care of the queen ant in order to prevent any future trouble. Ju Hian liked being thorough with his business. That was why Ju Hian looked out before urgently shouting. 
Number 1. Yes sir. Everything is ready. But it was at that moment. The bastards are in here. Get them. The TSOF seemed to be experienced in this type of thing as they looked comfortable entering the house. There's more than I expected. But as Ju Hien became a bit wary and took out Warang's sword ah. What the hell is this thing? The rope started to flail. The rope artifact that had been roaming around Ju Hien bound them up as if asking where the hell they thought they were coming. The rope seemed frustrated for some reason. Humans. Get lost. I'm angry. I'm angry. Boom. Ju Hien looked at the rope that had almost instantly taken care of the soldiers who had come in and started to laugh. Good job. You're quite useful. The rope froze in place after hearing that and looked toward Ju Hien. The rope looked at him as if it could not believe what happened before it started to shake in joy. I finally got praised, I got praised. The rope who heard that single praise went berserk in joy. I'm going to hear more of it, more of it. Ah. Save me. This rope bastard. Ah. My bones. My legs. Ah. My underwear. Of course, the TSOF bastards were the victims of its berserk state. Hand over General Kira. We already know she's here. We will arrest the Holton family and all of you for unlawful imprisonment. Kira's personal brigade had all come to the Holton residence. They had received orders to get Kira's artifact back, but honestly speaking, they just wanted their superior back. We will definitely save you. General Nim. We can't let her get expelled like this. They wanted to save Kira and clear her of these false charges even if it meant they would be severely disciplined. Didn't I tell you to hand over the General Nim right now? Yu Jeha who was looking down at them from the top of the staircase whispered to Ju Hian. Captain Nim, what are you planning on doing now? Have you heard of Franz Kafka's The Metamorphosis? Ju Hian threw the soju bottle at them instead of responding. Clang! They were shocked. Ju Hian threw the soju bottle out of nowhere so they wondered if he was attacking them, but there was a struggling bug inside. The bug seemed extremely drunk and out of it. However, she was filled with emotion at the sound of her subordinates' familiar voices. My subordinates. My praiseworthy subordinates came to save me. She crawled to her as best as she could to respond to their loyalty. However Tang Tang. She was suddenly bombarded by bullets. The TSOF that had shot the bullets shouted in anger. Didn't I tell you to hand over the general? Are you mocking us? Your general name is right there. Yu Jeha felt bad for her. As for Kira who was attacked by her subordinates, she coughed while covered in injuries. These stupid idiots. Of course, it was her fault for only telling her close confidants about the risk. It's fine, I just need one of them to notice my artifact's aura. There was one subordinate among them who knew about the risk. She just had to go to that one. Kira crawled toward her subordinates with that thought on her mind. However, the soldiers continued to fire at the bug. We don't need a bug like this. Hurry up and hand over the general. It's me. You damn idiots. Kira ended up a bloodied mess at her subordinate's hands but her subordinate still had not realized it was her. Juhian chuckled while looking at the message that appeared above her. The artifact of war's risk is currently activated transformation will be maintained for 1 minute 48 seconds it was now only about a minute before that woman returned to normal. Juhian picked up a S-grade artifact and started to laugh. Your role is done. Transformation will be maintained for 30 seconds I'll return your general name to you since you're asking so desperately. Just wait 30 seconds. What? Juhian wickedly smiled and started to count. Are you messing with us? Fire at that bastard. A bright light soon flashed. Chapter, 84 A bright light soon flashed. Kira's appearance changed with the light and so did the Tsov's expressions. The TSOF fell into shock as soon as the light flashed. How could they not when there was a shocking sight in front of them that could have never expected? K, K. There was a person lying down where the bug had been. Her long black hair was messy and her naked body was covered in blood. 
That was definitely. Lieutenant General Kieran Im. Yes, it was her. The subject they had excitedly shot at was none other than Kira. The naked Kira was coughing up blood as she glared at her subordinates. You idiots. Lieutenant General Nim. Her subordinates turned pale. They were going, damn. Wondering what they had just done. However, the extremely angry Kira shouted toward her stupid subordinates. You morons who can't even recognize their superior. T, that's not it. Shut the hell up. You'll all be executed. However, Kira had to turn around after hearing someone laugh. What a nice view, General Nim. Ju Hien was laughing from on top of the stairs. Kira who had ended up naked because the transformation was reversed had a stunning body. That wasn't the only thing. The owner's dominance is shaking due to receiving serious injuries. The artifact of war is unable to utilize its powers. Ju Hien smiled in satisfaction while looking at that while Kira was grinding her teeth in anger. C.O. Ju Hien, you son of a bitch. But she was definitely at the monarch grade for a reason as Kira's overwhelming dominance was threatening Ju Hien. However, Ju Hien violently laughed. I want to enjoy this view for a little longer but I have no business with any of you anymore. A strong aura burst out as soon as he said that. Yu Jaiha had activated Van Gogh's incomplete art type artifact in his hand. Vincent Van Gogh's incomplete painting. S grade. Legendary hero grade. Consumable artifact remaining uses 710 Vincent Van Gogh was originally an artist who always finished his paintings, but had not finished Tree Roots that was said to be his last work before his death. While it was questionable whether Van Gogh committed suicide or was murdered, this painting that was revived as an artifact sucked anything and everything in so that it could complete itself. And that artifact was activated right now. Boom. Ah. You bastard. The painting vigorously sucked the TSOF in. The worker ants that came to protect the queen ant were all sucked into the painting. A new picture then appeared on top of the tree roots painting. The TSOF who had come to rescue Kira had turned into characters in Van Gogh's painting. Ju Hien started to laugh after seeing that the artifact was properly activated. It's your turn next. But Kira was sneering even after her subordinates were sucked in. How foolish. We were the ones who were using that artifact before. Do you really think I won't know how to get out of it even if I am sucked I? Shut up and get inside. Kira started to scream as she was sucked into the painting. She also appeared on the canvas in her naked form. Ju Hien quickly looked toward Yu Jaiha as soon as they were all sucked in. As Kira mentioned, it wasn't over after he put them inside the painting. Number 1. Activate it. Please leave it to me. Yu Jaiha took out an artifact he's had since the beginning. It looked like a regular oil painting brush at a glance. However, Paint automatically appeared at the tip of the brush once he activated the artifact and he started to draw on top of Van Gogh's painting. He was using his best imitation of Van Gogh's style to add a tentacle monster to it. He must watch quite a lot of you know what as the red tentacle monster looked quite realistic. Something amazing started to happen at the same time. Flash. Ah. They could hear screams coming from the painting. The appearance of the people on the painting soon changed. The TSOF and Kira who had been standing there now looked to be in pain after being captured by the tentacle monster. They were actually being tortured by the monster inside the painting. Ah! Let go of me! Let me go! I'm Lung Ph. I'm going to kill you first as soon as I get out. Ju Hien was wowed as he looked at the painting. You drew really well. They must be in serious pain. Yu Jaiha's mouth almost ripped from joy after being praised that way. Hee hee, you know I love to draw. Should I bind them even tighter? Yes, I leave it to you. The rope that was roaming around Ju Hien seemed to be jealous after hearing Ju Hien praise Jaiha. I know how to bind them really well too. I know how to bind them really well too. It seemed as if the rope was considering the tentacles inside Yu Jaiha's painting to be its rivals. However, Ju Hien didn't care whether the rope was jealous and started to speak to the TSOF soldiers in pain inside the painting. Okay. 
spill some information about that soft's military intelligence. Then I will let you out of the painting. Of course, there were loud objections coming from the painting. You think we'll listen to you? Get lost. I'm going to kill you. You pervert. How dare you sexually assault the general like this? Hey number one. Yes sir. Yu Jaha calmly started to add to the painting. He started to add sticky fluids to the tentacles he drew earlier. The responses were explosive. Ah. What the hell, it's slippery. I I feel. Sob. Okay. I got it. Stoop. I have something on me. I'll give it to you. A, ah. Save me. Kira started to grind her teeth at her subordinate's shouts. You idiots. How dare you fall for the enemy's threat. However, the people who just wanted to get out of this situation were willing to do anything. A new object appeared on the painting at that moment. One of the TSOF members must have dropped it as a black object that looked like a USB appeared on the painting. Ju Hian put his hand on the object and channeled his dominance. The roughly drawn USB then popped out of the painting and turned real. He was certain this probably had the Tsof's list of artifacts and their personnel information. Ju Hian quickly brought a laptop over and connected the USB to confirm the contents. But Ju Hian started to frown. TSK, there's a password. Number one. Make them give the password. Did you hear him? He said to give the password. Yu Jaha drew a torture with a rope, whip, and feather as soon as he said that. He heard some more desperate screams as soon as the torture appeared. Egu. Stop it, you bastard. Ah, ah ha ha ha. T, the password is. Kira started to swear as her subordinates who could not handle the pain were about to blurt out the password. Are you bastards really trying to sell the US out? M M M P H. The password is Vaini, Vidi, Vici. I came, I saw, I conquered. Ju Hian plugged in a password and started to smile. All done. The soldiers inside the painting desperately pleaded to Ju Hian after hearing that. Then please let us out. Please. Yu Jaha peeked toward Ju Hian to ask what he was going to do. He needed a decision on whether to remove the things he had added. Should I let them out? Ju Hian started to laugh. Are you crazy? Ju Hian took the painting and headed down to the first floor without any regrets. He then did something shocking. He threw the painting into the fireplace without any hesitation. Ju Hian was planning on getting rid of those bastards and the artifact from this world. This artifact was the type that would make everything inside it disappear with it once it was destroyed. Kira's artifact is strong but is useless because of the terrible risk. There were many other artifacts with similar effects. The painting that was thrown into the fireplace instantly started to burn from the fire that was created by an artifact. Ah! Ah! Save me! The soldiers inside the burning painting were screaming. Kira was screaming as well. She was crying in pain while still angrily shouting. Seo Juhian, you bastard! You won't get away with this! But Ju Hian just started to smile. Goodbye, one of the four emperors. I will make sure to take your place. The painting soon disappeared without a trace. Kira and the TSOF were gone as well. Lieutenant General Kira Clark is missing, unable to determine whether she is still alive. Members of Kira's personal TSOF team are all missing as well, will the US Tomb Exploration Team, the TSOF, be disbanded? Sof's artifact information disappeared overnight. Ju Hian was chuckling while looking at those articles. He managed to take care of the U.S. excavation team that had been strong from the beginning at once. They might have disappeared forever with the painting or were currently stuck roaming a world from which they could never return. They might be able to return to this world in a couple thousand years if they were lucky. The important thing is that an obstacle is out of the way. That was enough for Ju Hian. Furthermore, he had received a great title after sending Kira away. You have received the title of the person who got a goddess drunk. Your fit with artifacts focused on destruction has increased. Your dominance has increased. 
your dominance will temporarily increase whenever you face a goddess-type artifact. You are now able to manufacture artifacts to take on goddesses. Your detection of high-grade artifacts has increased. Juhi and then heard a man scream. The person screaming was none other than George Holton. Do I really need to do this? Yes he did. They were currently in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Now that things were resolved, they were currently vacationing on top of one of the Holton family's luxury cruise ships. George Holton only had rash guards on while shaking at the bow of the ship. It was so that he could face his punishment. However, George Holton shouted while shaking. Hey, damn it, even I will die if I fall into the Pacific Ocean. However, Ju Hien who was leisurely relaxing on a sunbed after receiving the Holton family support started to smile. What's wrong? You were the one who said you would jump into the Pacific Ocean if I successfully saved your parents. Did you forget about that? I know I said that, but... A man keeps his word. Damn it. Oh and hand over your entire fortune as well. Ah. You said you would hand it over. Ow. George Holton shouted while looking at this bastard who looked so calm while trying to extort him of his fortune. George, who had realized that Irene was interested in Juhian was already shaking in anger because of that. FCK. Father, mother, this bastard might be your savior but he is an extremely dangerous bastard. This bastard will take your wealth and your daughter. Ujeha who could not stand it any longer was biting a piece of expensive meat as he walked toward George Holton. You have so much to say. Please stop talking and just jump in. He then pushed George off the bow. However at that moment. Damn it, you come with me. You scammer. George Holton and Ujeha dived and screamed together. The rope artifact soon pulled them back up while Irene and the Holton couple walked over laughing in their swimming suits. The couple who had returned to health thanks to the herb of eternal youth were extremely thankful to Juhian. Mr. Juhian, everybody in our family had our lives saved thanks to you. And it wasn't just their lives the herb of eternal youth had many effects. Irene's father was extremely happy that he was quite lively at night again. The Holton couple liked Juhian quite a bit. Of course, it was possible this was the case because he had saved their lives. Please let us know if you need anything. We will do everything we can to support you. Ju Hien was relieved that they were safe but also smiling at the benefits of this expedition. I can easily do the herb of eternal youth and tea businesses now. He just needed to leave the business side to Edward while he continued to loot tombs. It was at that moment. I guess you are enjoying yourself. Someone started to speak to Ju Hien. Chapter 85 He heard the voice from around the bow of the ship. Ju Hien started to frown after hearing the voice. He couldn't help but recognize this voice. That bastard is, as Ju Hien expected, there was a crow the size of an adult's head at the bow. The crow was extremely relaxed as if it was in its own place. But the problem was boom. Ah. The haughty and overbearing aura coming from the crow was quite strong. He's at a different level. Even Ujeha and Irene who had the talents to be monarchs were finding it hard to breathe. In fact, they were all sweating and shaking. M. Mr. Juhian. Captain Nim. Shut up. Don't get afraid of an artifact. Is that how I taught you? But they couldn't help but be scared. However, Juhian who was the only one that remained calm in this situation was even scarier. The humans were not the only ones to be afraid. It seemed to be an evil divine grade artifact for a reason as the artifacts they possessed were extremely scared as well. Even the rope that was hanging around Juhian was struggling as it wrapped around Juhian's waist. But its ferocious true nature as an artifact seemed to remain, or maybe because it felt a need to protect its master, it was growling at the crow. It happened at that moment. Get rid of that crazy crow bastard. Get rid of that traitorous bastard. The artifacts could not hide their murderous intents anymore. Most of them were Ujeha and Irene's artifacts. That wasn't the only reaction. Some people's eyes rolled over and they were aiming for the crow as strong divine grade artifacts had a tendency to make people feel both awe and greed. That's mine. Move. Hold on. Don't go near it. 
However, as they ignored Ujeha and Irene's shouts and ran toward it. That human is the one I have business with. Do not get in the way, unrelated humans. The crow's devil-like red eyes flashed. That was all it did but the waves suddenly became rough and the ship tilted to the side. Ah! Ah! The people held on to the ship while the artifacts foamed at the mouth as their bodies started to be destroyed. Irene had to suppress the artifact of destitution that wanted to run wild. Ju Hien sternly responded as people screamed at this sudden hurricane-like disaster. Stop now. Or you will never be able to see me again. The crow seemed to lightly smile at that comment. But the wave started to calm down a bit. Ju Hien started to smile while looking at it. Please don't be scared. That thing is just a stalker. S. Stalker. It's a perverted guy that pops up every time I'm about to forget about him. Ah, uh, maybe it's a perverted girl. The crow scoffed in disbelief as it observed Ju Hien. You are still the same. The crow started to speak once everyone else other than Ju Hien went inside the ship. The crow was as overbearing as it had been the first time they met. Human, I've been watching your actions. But it looks like you want to be a thief instead of a tomb raider. Ju Hien scoffed while still remaining wary of the crow. Look at this punk. Did you come here to say such useless crap? I'm out of here if that's all you want to say. The crow started to speak again as if to stop him as Ju Hien turned around without any hesitation. I came to see your face but also because I have something to tell you. Ju Hien started to smirk after hearing that. Punk. You should have acted like that from the beginning. I'll listen. What is it? There will be artifacts aiming for you. Artifacts don't choose specific people to aim for like that. Why me? Because you are different from normal people. Oh. Ju Hien scoffed but it was the truth. Artifacts try to trick humans. But forget listening when an artifact tries to make you a suggestion, you're someone who would just tell it to stay in its lane and destroy it. You also have the skills to do that. In simple terms, he was a thorn in their eyes. Ju Hien was excitedly making the artifacts work to do his bidding while most people were pampering artifacts. There are leaders among the artifacts. They are the ones who imprisoned me. They will truly hate someone like you who ignores the authority of the artifacts. The crow continued to speak. So, be careful. The artifacts' movement seemed serious lately. Tombs that go beyond your expectations will start to appear in the world. Tombs. Yes. It'll be good for you to train the tomb raiding skill properly. You must do it. Is that why you keep provoking me with those messages? The crow laughed instead of responding to that. Ju Hien scoffed at the fact that there will be artifacts aiming for him. Tombs or whatever shit they want to do, let them try all they want. How dare damn tools act so ridiculous. The crow seemed satisfied. It seemed to like Ju Hien who was not swayed by damn artifacts. Maybe that was the reason. I picked up something on the way here. I'll give it to you since I don't need it. You picked up something. Did you bring something shiny for me? It'll help you out. Ju Hien wanted to ask something else but the crow disappeared after saying that. Some large spears fell in front of him at the same time. You have received. It was larger than a child and seemed to weigh at least 100 kilograms. However, Ju Hien looked confused as he looked at it. It was because gourds. The things in front of him looked like gourds from the Humbu and Nalbu story. However, Ju Hien laughed with joy after seeing the three large gourds in front of him. Humbu and Nalbu's gourds that a crow brought over instead of a swallow s grade, consumable artifact remaining uses 11 it truly were the gourds from the Humbu and Nalbu story. These treasure chests were so precious that even the auctions sold them at extremely high costs. The ones in his memory were B grade and lower in rank, but these were S grade. Ju Hien was curious to know what amazing stuff would come out of it. But he couldn't help but worry. This is an extremely great artifact but it is a random box of both wealth and disaster. The chances were 50-50. Hongbu's gourd would give unbelievable wealth while Nalbu's gourd would give unimaginable disasters. That was why Ju Hien was happy but concerned. 
He could safely sell it for a lot of money but it seemed like a waste to do that while he didn't want to make others do it either. What should I do? Do I crack these open? Do I not? He could just leave it to Irene if she could use her power of wealth. But at that moment Ujeha, Irene, and George Holton who came out after the crow's aura disappeared dropped their jaws in shock. My goodness, what are those things? What are they? The crow dropped some precious gourds as it left. Not a swallow. It happened as Juhian laughed at that comment. Irene, who was shocked by the size of the gourds, asked her brother for help. Bro, please move those to Mr. Juhian's penthouse. What? Why should I? George pouted but he submitted to Irene's gaze and said that he would do it. However, Juhian waved him away saying it was unnecessary. No. I don't need your help. W, what? Are you going to make that rope move it? The rope's eyes seemed to sparkle after hearing its name but both Juhian and Ujeha started to laugh with their hands over their stomachs. There's no need to use the rope for such a thing. Then how? Hey number one. Yes sir. Ujeha soon took a postcard out of his notebook. Then something shocking happened once he channeled a small amount of dominance into it. Ha! Huh. That! A familiar painting appeared in front of Ujeha. Vincent van Gogh's incomplete painting S grade, legendary hero grade, consumable artifact remaining uses for 75500 it was van Gogh's incomplete painting they thought was burnt away after sucking in Kira's group. They couldn't help but be shocked. Didn't you say that you burned that thing? Yes. It did burn completely. Well, the fake one did. George Holton's jaw dropped after hearing that statement. What? It was a fake. Juhian smiled disgustingly at that question. Do you really think I'm crazy enough to use the real thing to get rid of them? I'm not crazy enough to waste a S-grade artifact like that. Ho! Oh. It was true. The artifact they had used against Kira was a fake that Ujeha had cleverly made. It was just a lesser version that was either A-grade or B-grade. That is why normally we would not have been able to suck Kira in with a fake. Kira's dominance was quite high. However, her dominance was shaken because the TSOF bastards had shot her and they were able to take care of Kira with the fake. They had earned this useful inventory just as Ujeha was complaining that it was hard to carry all the consumable artifacts around. Okay, I put them all away. But the rope artifact that wanted to be praised started to berate the S-grade painting artifact once Van Gogh's artifact was used to store the gourds. Why did you steal my job? Why did you steal my job? It seemed to have forgotten that it was just a C-grade artifact. It was at that moment. Oh, Mr. Juhian, this came for you, but... The bikini-clad Irene handed him an international party invitation. It was a large party sponsored by the different governments of the world. I looked into it and global corporations, countries, and excavation teams are all gathering together. They said they're gathering artifact users to entertain us, but... But? Chairman Kwan was the person who sent this invitation. Yu Jaiha gasped. Why is that old man sending you an invitation? It's a VIP invite at that. But Ju Hien just laughed. Look at this old man trying to use his head. It wasn't written on it but he was certain this was a party being sponsored by Pandora. It's because they ate so much shit trying to forcibly grab artifact users. That was the only reason they were now using such a carrot type of method. As for why he had received an invitation. It was obvious. Chairman Kwan was saying they should be allies instead of enemies. So, will you go? It is a VVIP invite. Tell him to get lost. Of course, it was a great opportunity. He could hire some people he met at this thing, but most importantly, the monopolizers of the past, the monarch-grade individuals might show themselves. It's a great chance to go check up on the future hindrances, but I can understand getting an invitation but something feels iffy about the fact that he sent a VVIP invitation. It feels unlucky. Ju Hien was going to ignore it because it seemed like he was being openly invited to a trap. Hmm. Ju Hien who was about to rip the invitation couldn't help but become wide-eyed. The reason was simple. 
what the hell, why is this punk here? He was looking at the schedule of events written on the invitation. The problem was that a familiar name of a person who used to be on his excavation team was on there. He was an extremely important person in the future. Unbelievable, is it someone with the same name? Captain Nim. What's wrong? Ju Hian thought for a moment before smiling wickedly instead of responding. Hey number one, get ready to go. Excuse me. I changed my mind. We are going to the party. What? Really? Yes. We can't turn down their generous offer for us to eat some fancy food. Of course, the person who invited them might end up telling them to leave you made sure to send the invitation to CEO Juhian in Chairman Kwan's name, right? Yes, young Master Nim. The young man smiled in satisfaction at that response. But really, Kira that stupid woman. Why did she have to be taken out by such a weird little kid? I worked hard to get her up to that position. Austin Rockefeller. He was a person from the Rockefeller family that ended up making one of the future four emperors. He, the son of one of the wealthiest petroleum industry families in the world and someone who had a divine grade artifact, was talking shit about Kira and Juhian. It was understandable as he was the one who had let that woman borrow Van Gogh's painting artifact. I let her borrow it because she said she was aiming for the Holton family, but that moron. Not only did she lose someone else's artifact, she couldn't even finish the Holton family in the process. What the hell was Chairman Kwan doing? Why can't he get rid of such bastards? I gave him a VVIP invitation this time so tell Chairman Kwan to take care of things properly this time. Austin Rockefeller's secretary looked upset at his annoyed expression. We worked so hard to get the Holton couple sick but it was all for nothing. The Russian secretary who said that was surprisingly someone Juhian had run into before. She was George Holton's servant, the same one who had massaged Juhian on the Holton plane. We even planted you as a spy to George Holton to see what was going on in the Holton family. This was the truth. One of the perpetrators who had gotten the Holton couple sick through the artifact was Austin Rockefeller. The reason for it was simple. I can't let the Pandora System artifact choose the Holton family. The Pandora System artifact was the core artifact that was supporting Pandora. That artifact was selecting wealthy families who would help grow the future monarchs. Basically, it was choosing families to support it. It was telling them to create talented artifact users who would go on to be called the monopolizers in the future. However we are enough to sponsor the artifact users. They had to gobble up all the artifacts that the Pandora system artifact provided them. Anyway, it was my mistake. My apologies, sir. In the end, CEO Juhian managed to save the Holton family. It's fine. Nostradamus prophesied the Holton family will be chosen as a supporting family as well so I was giving it a go wait, what happened to the necklace artifact I gave you? The secretary then touched her neck and became anxious. That I don't know if it was stolen but I lost it. I think it disappeared when I was on the Holton family's private plane. Austin was extremely shocked. Just who could have done it? I made sure to hide the artifacts aura thoroughly as well. Just who could have done it? Ow. Ah, I'm sorry. Someone had run into Rockefeller who was standing at the entrance before walking past him. Rockefeller turned around to see what kind of crazy bastard this was to see Juhian who was wearing a fancy suit lightly wave his hand before entering the party hall. Austin Rockefeller quietly cursed. Stupid bitch, he should be looking where he's walking. Indeed, this was the international party hall sponsored by Pandora and Rockefeller was here at the Pandora party as one of the sponsors. This is the VVIP Caucasian only section. Why is a mongoloid over here? He was about to call the guards when the secretary stopped him in shock. Please wait, young Master Nim. That person just now was CEO Juhian. That person is the one who destroyed Pandora, revived the Holtons, and got rid of Kira. Austin was completely shocked. Maybe it was because Juhian had not been around for very long or because he didn't have any clear pictures of him, but he had not recognized him. Why are you only telling me that now? He quickly ran into the party hall. Chapter, 86 Ha! Huh. Look who it is, our director CEO Juhian whom I could never repay for his grace and the goddess of the Holton family. 
Pandora's International Party Hall. Edward, who was wearing a white suit, started to laugh out loud as soon as he saw Ju Hian there. He was most likely the person who benefited most from Kira's disappearance. The CIA had loosened their chase once Kira disappeared. Honestly speaking, Kira had become quite the wanted fugitive in the US. The white supremacists were talking about supporting Kira, but the US probably wanted to take care of this quickly as they were being scrutinized by the rest of the world. This was the result of that situation. The US will take proper responsibility for the artifact-related issues. Order given to disband the TSOF. Edward's situation was one that Kira had asked the president's help for as well, so the CIA dropped the issue. The US president had given orders to drop everything related to Kira. Of course, the Holton family played a big role in things going so smoothly like that. There were many people connected to the Holtons who were part of the US political system. Thanks to that, Edward who did not have to be a homeless person anymore couldn't help but be happy. This is all thanks to you. Juhian chuckled while looking at Edward who was flattering him without any malice. I can't let you continue to be on the run when you have a business to run. Juhian smiled brightly but Yu Jeha was shaking as if he was scared of Juhian. Why? It was because he was able to tell something due to the fact that he had been by Juhian's side. Although it seemed as if Edward was swept up in Kira's scheme and Juhian had saved him, but was that really the case? Old man you've been fooled by the Captain Im's act Yu Jeha held back tears at the appearance of a new slave they were the ones who had created a fake artifact and put Edward in this trap in the first place. And everything had worked out. Gaining the Holtons, getting rid of the TSOF who was in their way, and Edward's loyalty. Ju Hian who had plotted this whole thing and gotten rid of Kira for these three things laughed like the devil as if things had gone according to plan. There's nobody who can sell artifacts better than Edward can. Ju Hian who now had Edward in his hands had made a business contract written that way but read as a backdoor contract through the code of Hammurabi to create a company. This company would be created with the Holton family's significant investment in Edward's business skills. It was starting as a medical company with the herb of eternal youth as the foundation, but ultimately, it would become a global corporation that would take care of all artifact distribution. The distribution of artifacts is extremely important in the era of artifacts. It was not just an issue of money. Artifacts were useful tools but also a method of dominance. Artifacts would become competitive goods for numerous companies and even influence medicines and daily necessities. The monopolizers had completely controlled the artifact market and did as they pleased in the past. He was trying to be a major player in the market early on because he did not want to see that happen again. So put your talents to use, monarch of wealth. I'll make sure to throw you a bone every so often if you do a good job. Ju Hian's name was listed as part of the executive team, but he was leaving most of the business aspects to Edward. Everything had a right man and the right place for it. And as Ju Hian who now had the future monarch of destitution, monarch of fraud, and monarch of wealth in his hands was licking his lips our director Nim truly gets a lot of attention. Of course. He caused a ruckus in the Caucasian section earlier. He had confidently gone to the VVIP section but Ju Hian had made them eat shit when they tried to give him a corner seat instead of his original seat. He brought up regulation after regulation and claimed he would sue them, which made the hosts raise their hands and feet in defeat. Edward started to laugh after hearing the story. But even without that, the director Nim catches a lot of attention. He's handsome. Ho, oh, only the Captain Nim. What about me? I'm pretty good looking too. What? You're so buried nobody can see you. You look like a squid in comparison, a squid. What did you say? It was true. The women in dresses were all interested in Ju Hian while the men were jealous of the fact that he was with Irene. Irene, who had no idea about any of this, was looking at Ju Hian. He was over 180 centimeters tall in height, had a muscular body, a face that caught your attention, and an adult-like feel and experience that was rare for someone in their early twenties. Ju Hian had enough things going for him to catch the attention of the women in the party hall. Maybe that was the reason. The artifact of destitution is responding to its master's subconscious change in emotion. Hmm. A message had suddenly popped up. And at that moment. Oh no. My dress. 
Kaya. My stocking. No major accidents happened, but there were many small incidents such as spilling wine on an expensive dress and the like. Everybody else just thought they were minor accidents but Juhian knew the truth. The artifact of destitution had subconsciously been activated. Of course, Juhian didn't care whether dresses, bags, or stockings were ripped nearby, but he tilted his head as he found it to be a bit odd. Why? It was at that moment. You must be the CEO Juhian who said he was going to sue the hosts. The person making the remarks approached Juhian. Juhian turned his head after hearing the sudden voice. A handsome young man was standing there. My name is Austin Rockefeller. You're CEO Juhian who went up against TKBM's chairman and Kira, right? Nice to meet you. I came to apologize for our host's rudeness. We didn't recognize who you were. Austin reached his hand out in a friendly manner but he was boiling on the inside. We lost a woman who could become a monarch among monarchs because of you. He was talking about Kira, one of the future four emperors. He had secretly made a deal with the US to push Kira. Well, it's fine, I just need to create a new candidate. He laughed as he touched his artifact. Juhian was also quite skilled if he managed to defeat Chairman Quan and Kira but for a monarch, he wasn't sure. Who would be crazy enough to sponsor and grow a lunatic like this? As a strong artifact user, he was feeling a sense of rivalry with Juhian. I'll let him be my driver if he's useful. He should be honored. On the other hand, other people were starting to whisper at Austin Rockefeller's appearance. Ah, uh, I know that person. He's handsome and an extreme golden spoon. I've seen him on TV. He even had that hit movie this time. He also has a bestseller album and book. My goodness, I never thought I'd see him in person. People recognized Austin Rockefeller too much. Even Edward and Ujeha who were next to Juhian recognized him. Wow, I really like the book he wrote. The people then started to become interested in Juhian who was talking to Austin. But who is Austin chatting with? He extended his hand first. Yu Jeha who was next to Juhian was getting excited as well. Wow, I'm so jealous you get to shake hands with him. Captain Nim. Please get me a signature. Mr. Jeha, one for me too. Juhian shook his head at them once Irene joined in as well. Who is this punk? Excuse me. Captain Nim, you really don't know who this is? Not at all. Austin seemed extremely embarrassed at that. Juhian really did not seem to know about him. Well, sure, that's fine. You might not recognize me because you've never seen me in person before. Austin smiled and took out a fountain pen. It was an artifact. The effects were simple. This artifact made the other person respect him and become his fan. Rockefeller then smiled in an evil way. You guys can become my prisoners first. There were already quite a lot of economic, political and law enforcement connections that came to him because of this. Furthermore, the artifact users of Pandora were his fans as well. He peeked toward Irene and Ujeha. You asked for a signature right? Your name is? You're going to give me one? It's Ujeha. Yes, here you G. But it was at that moment. Rip. Ujeha ripped the signature he received. Austin's fans who were watching gasped in shock. Kaya. Is he crazy? What the hell is he doing? Even Edward who was in line to get a signature gasped in astonishment. Jeha, do you know how much that is worth? Even people in Pandora can't easily get his signature. It's a free pass ticket. Are you crazy? But you Jeha who had ripped the paper was completely pale. No. No. I didn't rip. He urgently turned toward Juhian. And as expected. This person. Juhian was leisurely typing something on his phone. Well, it looked like a phone but this was just Shakespeare's pen that was camouflaged. Stupid idiot Ujeha26 who can't come to his senses will rip the other fan's signatures as well. Ah. Ujeha soon started to rip all of Austin's signatures like a crazy person. Although he was a monarch-level artifact user in the future, he was just a pushover to Juhian right now who only had high affinity. 
Damn it, whatever, if you came for a signature just get our Captain Nim's signature, you bastards. Austin looked toward Juhian in shock. However, Juhian just scoffed and walked over to Austin. And then crack. Kaya. Juhian broke Austin's fountain pen without any hesitation. The people gasped. I, is he crazy? I remember seeing that fountain pen in a magazine it said it was worth close to a billion dollars. Austin's eyes opened wide as he glared at Juhian. However, Juhian threw the fountain pen that was crying in pain and viciously started to smile. I will kill you if you try to do anything funny with an artifact. This bastard. Juhian must have realized the effects of the signatures created with this fountain pen. The people in the crowd started to whisper. What? It's an artifact. I didn't feel an artifact's aura at all. Even Edward seemed shocked. Of course, Juhian didn't feel the artifact's aura right away either. However Saab. You picked the wrong opponent. Our Captain Nim is an artifact maniac who would focus on an artifact even when there are big boobs in front of his face. Even Juhian did not manage to feel the aura but it could be called his intuition. He felt that the weight was maybe 0,001 g off. And Austin just happened to meet a cruel person who would destroy someone else's item for that trivial reason. Juhian started to smile as if he got him. He didn't know who Austin was, but the name Rockefeller was enough. He's that slacker from the Rockefeller family who created the artificial four emperors and monarch grade users. He seemed to be right as he could smell a divine grade artifact on him right now. However, this made him question something. Something is weird. I don't remember his face at all. Honestly speaking, Juhian was familiar with most of the people here. There were some bitter enemies among the monarch grade users who made him want to grind his teeth, some people he was happy to see, and even women he had slept with in the past. But Austin Rockefeller? I don't remember that snooty Rockefeller family having a male artifact user. There was a female artifact user he was slightly familiar with but he just wondered what was going on for a moment before moving on. The future could have changed. The important thing was the artifact this bastard had on him. If it is the Rockefeller family who could create monarch grade users, they might have that buff type artifact that could increase dominance or fit. There was a reason the Rockefeller family's excavation team had a lot of high grade excavation teams they had created a few of the monarchs as well. It was no coincidence that they had created the monarch of war who was one of the four emperors. Come at me. I'll teach you how to properly use an artifact until 2 p.m. to help me digest. What? Juhian disgustingly smiled while looking at Austin who was in disbelief. I'll take care of him before he turns those unqualified bastards into monarch grade users again. Well, he didn't even know if this bastard had the important Rockefeller's family artifact on him. As Juhian was about to take out an artifact you're doing something amazing by supporting an orphanage. Huh, it is nothing. Ha. Huh. Juhian's face stiffened after hearing a loud voice. He could hear it from nearby even though people were chatting loudly around him. Hold on. This voice is. Juhian urgently turned around. He was right. I enjoyed your briefing, Mr. Richard. It was very memorable. Not at all. It was nothing compared to yours, Mr. Miller. And we've met before, right? Chairman Kwan and Jean Richard were there. Yu Jeha, who followed Ju Hian's gaze and saw the two of them, started to frown. It was an obvious reaction since Yu Jeha probably hated those two so much he wanted to kill them. Why are those sons of bitches here? But it made sense the two of them were here. Chairman Kwan had been discharged from the hospital so the fact that two well-recognized artifact users like them would be here. The problem was the person they were chatting with. Thank you for the exaggerated compliment I'm honored that you look so favorably at it. The German person shaking hands with Chairman Kwan was Julian Miller. He had not seen the name wrong on the schedule on the invitation. 1530 philanthropic organization focused on saving people from being harmed by artifacts, briefing, Julian Miller it really was this bastard. Ju Hian had come here because of this guy. If he was Chairman Kwan's right-hand man, this bastard who had Juga Kongming's artifact was Chairman Kwan's left-hand man. 
Zhu Hian had played a big role in helping to raise Chairman Quan to the position of being one of the four emperors, but this bastard had played a big role as well. Of course, he had not been interested in what this bastard had been up to at this point, but it'd be a major headache if that iron wall ended up with another monarch grade user. He was one of the few people that Zhu Hian rated highly. It was just that their personalities were like fire and ice. Zhu Hian became anxious after seeing them chatting. I need to prevent them from getting friendly with each other. Chairman Quan would end up with wings that would be difficult for even him to take down if this bastard ended up working with Chairman Quan. Zhu Hian had a rare stiff expression as he tried to walk toward them. Hey, where are you going after saying some bullshit about how you'll show me how to use artifacts? Austin, who had been provoked, was blocking Zhu Hian's way. Either that, or he was trying to prevent Zhu Hian from interrupting Chairman Quan as he chatted with Yulian. I know you have a bad relationship with Chairman Quan. I don't know what you are thinking, but... Zhu Hian who was annoyed quickly called Hu Jeha over. Hurry up and block this guy. I'm definitely tempted by this bastard's artifact, but the priority was obvious when comparing it with Yulian Miller. He was that important of a person. Yu Jeha became anxious after hearing the order. Wait, how am I supposed to stop a celebrity like this on my own even if you tell me to stop him? I don't care how you do it. Excuse me. I'm saying it's not that easy. Please leave it to me. Austin scoffed after seeing Irene, the monarch of destitution stepping in. He had already heard about this woman's weird abilities. Using your destitution ability here will be bad for you. But if you still want to fight it out, I'll happily be your op. Kaya. There's a molester here. The Holton family guards urgently ran over and grabbed Austin. Hold on, let go of me. Austin became anxious but the smiling Juhian ignored him and turned around. Hey! You son of a bitch, where are you going? Get lost! You molester! I don't have time to deal with the likes of you right now. What did you say? C.O. Juhian. Juhian's footsteps quickened. Chapter, 87 Juhian's footsteps quickened. Yulian Miller. He had dirty blonde hair that was closer to brown and blue eyes. This face that seemed extremely stiff as if he wouldn't be flexible at all meant it was definitely him. If he was called an expert excavator who specialized in excavating tombs, this bastard was an expert strategist who could see through every tomb, artifact, and artifact user's information and weaknesses. That was why this bastard's strategies plus Juhian's ability to perfectly carry out those strategies allowed them to sweep artifacts away as the greatest tomb raiding team. And that bastard was at the Monarch Grade 2. The expert grade artifacts users were called the candidates for monarchs based on the ranking system of monarch grade rulers, expert grade high grade, talent grade middle grade, novice grade low grade. This punk was also someone who could have easily become a monarch grade user if he did not get his weakness found out by the monopolizers. He would have been one of the highest grade monarchs at that. Flashes soon started to blast from where those bastards were standing. This is the scene of TKBM hiring their third talented individual. Please look this way so we can get a picture of the two of you together. It seemed that this punk had already decided to join the TKBM excavation team. It was not weird since a lot of people at this Pandora gathering had chosen to join excavation teams but Juhian started to frown. That stupid motherfucking idiot. Why did he have to pick that old man of all people? Of course it was understandable. TKBM had a pretty good image and Yulian Miller was a poor graduate student at a German university who volunteered with non-profit organizations. How highly would he consider a large corporation sponsorship? That was why Juhian urgently started to run. He was only about 3M away from them. Juhian started to hide himself as he got closer to make sure they wouldn't notice him. The reporters were busy interviewing them. Mr. Miller, We've heard you are doing a lot of things to use artifacts to help the needy. We heard that TKBM would give serious financial support for this matter. That is correct. The chairman Nim promises to use the artifacts Mr. Miller procures to help society. The reporters gasped in response but Juhian clicked his tongue. Why does a smart idiot like him get hooked by helping the needy? It was true. Yulian Miller was a man of justice among artifact users and cared a lot about people. 
That was the reason he and Ju Hian fought quite often like this. Ju Hian, I heard that you killed people again during this excavation. I didn't kill any civilians. Isn't that good enough? No. You killed more people than you told me you did. I told you so many times to be more careful. Hey. There are always incidents and accidents in tombs so I would have died if I didn't do that. That's not the only thing. The fraud incident with England not too long ago. You used Jeha to do that, right? I told you not to do such shady things. We were in the middle of discussions with England. I just used a base deal because they took so long. What's the issue? It's ours anyway. We would have gotten it without doing such shady things if we discussed with them. You just made our relationship with them terrible. We'll never see them again anyway. You inflexible bastard. Ju Hian. You're the one who always goes overboard. Well, it was similar to that. They worked together because they knew that each other was talented, but they really did not mesh well together. That is why I will not work together with you this time. He already had data on tombs, artifacts, and artifact users. That was why he didn't necessarily need Zhuge Kongming's artifact. But things will become complicated if his abilities end up with Chairman Quan. That was why he would cause a hindrance here even if he wasn't planning on dragging Yulian in as an ally. It was a shameless thought process of thinking that other people should not have something he won't have a familiar young man who was standing next to Chairman Quan started to speak. The Chairman Nim is a trustworthy person. We also have Professor Richard here who is working with us as a restorer. He is extremely talented. Restorers are really rare so our conditions should be better than any other excavation team. Ju Hian laughed out loud after seeing that young man. The person talking was none other than Yun Shi Wu. This son-in-law of Chairman Quan was the same idiot who had his zombie powder stolen by him and had to parade around naked through Las Vegas. I guess he managed to get rid of the zombie powder. It didn't matter. It was because Yun Shi Wu then said the following. Ah, right. Didn't the chairman him promise to donate one bill and one to the orphanage foundation as a gift for signing the contract? Professor Richard, how about you donate a painting to the foundation as a sign of friendship? Oh, that's not a bad idea. The reporters listening started to laugh. A painting donation sounds amazing. A painting from the current master of the arts, Professor Jean Richard is extremely precious. Furthermore, he sold all his paintings already so he should only have that one painting left. But will it be okay since you don't have any paintings left? You should get back to painting, Professor. Uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Yes. I sure do. Pastisher Richard started to frown for some odd reason, but the clueless reporters quickly interjected as if they thought they found a hit piece. One Professor Richard, when are you planning on painting your next piece? We can talk about my paintings later. Your manager was worried that you were making slow progress on your paintings unlike in the past, did something happen? That like I said, we are currently in the middle of a discussion. Ju Hian scoffed at Richard who seemed to be in a complicated situation. That was the limits of a pastisher. He was able to easily paint up what he stole from Yu Jeha to get the title of a master, but a pastisher could never surpass the original. A copycat could never evolve. He was scrutinized because he could only draw paintings in his exact copycat style and could not show anything more. It was even worse because Yu Jeha's painting style was not just based on technique. Richard quickly thought of an excuse and smiled bitterly. As you know, I've been busy with Pandora lately. I haven't had time to paint. I will start again as soon as Pandora is settled. It was at that moment. How funny. You can draw like that. They turned their heads in shock after hearing a familiar voice. The three people all gasped for different reasons while looking at the people standing there. That bastard is. Ju Hian, Yu Jeha, and Edward were standing there. Chairman Quan and Yun Shi Wu who saw Ju Hian started to frown as if they had seen a ghost. That was obvious. It wouldn't be weird for extremely proud people like them to get twisted in a knot after thinking about how much Ju Hian beat them down. C.O. Ju Hian, you. 
Yun Shi Wu was foaming at the mouth at the fact that Zhu Hian appeared while Chairman Quan's perfect poker face was shaken as well. Zhu Hian was chuckling internally while looking at their reactions. However, Yu Lian, who may or may not know what they were thinking, asked a question. What do you mean he can't paint it? What else? Jean Richard's painting is actually someone else's masterpiece or a pastiche. Zhu Hian threw the first card. Everyone gathered around looked shocked. However, they then started to laugh. Well, there's been such lies since earlier. The professor's style of painting had changed so much. Be careful, you'll be sued if you speak such nonsense. A reporter was asking a weird question earlier too. But it was all dismissed because there was no proof. Richard started to laugh as well. Right, it only changed because I went through a slump but I keep getting ragged on by such stupid rumors it never stops. Then why don't you create an even better next painting to get rid of the rumors? Richard started to frown after hearing this unexpected voice. It was because the person who said it was Ujeha, the original artist. T, this bastard. Ujeha started to provoke him even more after seeing his expression change. What's wrong? You used an artifact to steal my painting but you can't paint anymore. You Jeha, this bastard, he really. That made people start to whisper. The reporters were getting curious, wondering what was going on. Whether you Jeha was speaking nonsense or not, plagiarism being discussed would cause quite the stir. Furthermore, it involved an artifact. R, write an article for now. Using an artifact to steal a painting, what does he mean? This is our first time hearing about this. Professor Richard, isn't your artifact said to be an art-type healing artifact? Please tell us more details. Richard instantly got angry. What the hell are you recording? Do you all want to get sued? How can you not even tell apart the words of a grandstander? Richard glared at Ujeha as if he wanted to kill him. Ujeha. You can't say such things about your instructor because you don't like me. Hmm. Richard's arrogant gaze was the same as always. He was trying to make Ujeha who had no abilities or backing to shut up. However, the Ujeha now was completely different than the Ujeha back then. Shut up. Instructor. What bullshit. I even have proof that you stole my painting. Let's meet in the courtroom if you want to fight. What, he's telling the truth. Write it down for now. Richard's hands were shaking at this unexpected development. He never expected that coward Ujeha to come at him like this. You, I must have a deep conversation with your parents. I will tell them you are trying to screw your instructor over. It was a threat of sorts. However, Ujeha continued without caring about it. Sorry, Gramps. My parents will be hard to find because they are on an all-expenses paid vacation thanks to the Holton family. He then started to speak to Yulian. Ah, uh, right, hey bro. Investigate the people you are planning on signing a contract with thoroughly. Who knows? They might swipe your artifacts away while claiming to help the needy. Don't end up a victim like me. Yulian Miller seemed shocked by this. How could he not be shocked when some random people showed up and talked crap about your business partner when they were talking business? However, any normal person would start to question things in such a situation. Richard shouted as Yulian's expression started to change. You really? Don't bother me. I will sue you for defamation if you continue this nonsense. Ju Hien was the one to laugh this time. Do it if you want. But before that. Ju Hien soon grabbed Chairman Quan's arm. Oh Chairman Nim. I hope that you didn't use the artifact of conquest on that person. Chairman Quan looked toward Ju Hian anxiously. However, Yu Lian glared at Chairman Quan before looking at Ju Hian. The artifact of conquest? Yes. Chairman Quan Tae Jun is a bastard who uses the artifact of conquest. It has a clever way of controlling someone's mind. You bastard, what are you? Did you suddenly have a desire to sign a contract with him? Think hard about it. You might have been influenced by that as well. Although he was saying that, it was completely a lie. His goal was to just cause a disturbance. Ju Hian started to smile at the same time. 
Good, even an innocent fool like him should be suspicious at this point. Yulian Miller seemed to feel that way as he asked Chairman Kwan a question. Is it true that you controlled someone's mind? There is no way that is true. It is nonsense. Yulian looked at Juhian. Is there any proof that you are not lying? You can slash my neck off if either the plagiarism or the mind control is determined to be a lie. Richard started to grind his teeth as if he was going crazy. He had realized long ago that Yulian had Juga Kongming's artifact and they were easily tricking this clueless student who did not know much about society yet but what the hell. That was why he urgently called out to a familiar face to ask for help. Edward. Can't you verify that the Chairman Nim's artifact doesn't have such abilities? Please tell them. However, Edward pouted and said the following. Chapter, 88. I don't know. Richard and Chairman Kwan questioned their hearing after hearing that. Wait, what did you say? I said, I don't know. Richard and Chairman Kwan were wondering why this guy was acting like this. Edward was their close business partner after all. He should know what they want right now. Why is this idiot acting so capricious? Richard started to grind his teeth and responded, not knowing that Edward had gone over to Juhian's side. Edward, I'm going to pretend that our partnership never existed if you act this way. Edward loudly scoffed as if he found the situation ridiculous. What? Partnership? What are these idiots saying? Edward. Humph. Who was it that ignored my calls when I asked for help because I had to live as a homeless person with Kira chasing me? Edward had pouty duck lips as if he was extremely upset. These bastards talk about being brothers when they need something but shut their doors when someone is in need. Get lost. I'm not going to work with people like you. Compared to that, this young man helped me out in my difficult times so that I could recover. Chairman Kwan and Richard's hands were shaking as Edward laughed and looked at Juhian. Edward. This isn't a place for an illegal arms dealer and a little kid to act up. Humph. This isn't a place for a stupid phone salesman like you to act up. You evil bastards. What? You guys are failing so hard because you are treating future businessmen who might overtake you in the future. What? Businessmen? What's wrong? Did you think you're the only one with a company? Richard and Chairman Kwan looked flustered after hearing Edward's comment. It was understandable as Edward was an illegal arms dealer who had broken the law many times. But what? Are you joking? A puny broker like you calls yourself a businessman? And this little kid? Juhian chuckled and sneered at them as they looked at him in shock. Have you heard about Grave Corporation? They soon started to frown. They had heard about it. They had heard about the crazy people who were absorbing technically talented companies in each specialty by offering them extremely great conditions. There were many companies that wanted to be contacted or partner with it because the conditions were so good. This damn company was absorbing buyers who had a tight hold on each market and infiltrating each market at a scary pace. There was a quiet but already well-known rumor that although nobody knew what the company was trying to do, this company was pushing the name of Grave Corporation. But why was he mentioning that now? So you are behind that crazy company? Juhian started to laugh as if to provoke him. I guess I might as well purchase TKBM in the near future. This arrogant bastard. It seemed as if this bastard was partnering with Edward to start a business and cause a lot of issues. However, they were still just an illegal arms dealer and a kid with no backing. There was no way they could do anything. Ho, oh, I don't know what the hell the two of you are planning but do you really think ITLL be hard for me to trample on you? I dare you to try then. You'll just be the fools trying to trample the Holton family. W. What? The Holton family are the investors for Grave Corporation. They're paying close attention to it so don't get crushed trying to fight them. They couldn't hold up their poker faces any longer. It was because they knew about the Holton family's wealth. Actually, it was not just their wealth. They knew that the Holtons had a vast amount of economic influence and societal connections. Damn it. Why the hell did it have to be them? Edward started to laugh out loud. Honestly speaking, Juhian just wanted to create a small business item using the herb of eternal youth. 
He asked for the Holton's help regarding the labor force, research team, and distribution networks he thought would be difficult to breach. But those areas did not seem to be easy for the Holtons as well as they thought about it for a while and answered this way. Ah, whatever. Let's just buy some companies and put them to work. Also. A small business is fine but you are our benefactor. We will gift it to you as a token of our thanks. The Holtons then easily prepared a strong foundation for the artifact-related business Juhian wanted. That was the story behind Grave Corporation that had suddenly and fiercely appeared in the world. Ju Hien was realistically the owner with the most shares of the company. Edward was just hired as the public representative. Edward started to laugh as he asked a question. TKBM is trying to run a tomb-related business too, right? Let's see how well you can do. Of course, I don't know how well you two will run that business without my network. You traitor. They started to grind their teeth. They never expected Edward to act like this. It was at that moment. So you are saying it is true that the Holtons have started investing in tomb-related issues. This is big. Even people who were extremely anti-artifacts have changed their minds. The reporters were writing this down as it was a great story. It was because people in the world were currently fighting over whether artifact-related businesses would be profitable or not. It was only normal that having large corporations and extremely wealthy families getting involved would focus their attention on it. Their involvements changed the level of money involved. The reporters were almost spitting as they started to rip apart Chairman Kwan and Richard. Then Chairman Nim. Professor. Are the plagiarism and mind control issues true then? Mind control ability is an extremely serious ability as we recently saw with the Lieutenant General Kira situation. If it is true, it'll be difficult for you to avoid criticism as well. Chairman Kwan shouted in an annoyed voice. Like I said, it's not true. Richard seemed to have given up as he smiled and approached Julian. It's a bit noisy here so let's keep talking somewhere else. Yes. There is too much interference. However, Julian cut them off. There's no need. Richard and Chairman Kwan turned their heads toward him in shock after he cut them off without any hesitation. The reason for all the interference is not because of the location but the two of you it seems. Julian turned around without any hesitation. Let's pretend this discussion never happened. W. What? Richard and Chairman Kwan were the only ones shocked by his reaction. Hey, are you trusting what those bastards are saying right now? You're more easily influenced than we expected. You're the one who will lose out if we end our discussion like this. Yun Shi Wu shouted as well. Even if it was only a verbal contract, this is still a breach of contract. Julian didn't even snort at that threat. Feel free to sue me if you wish. I just have no desire to sign a contract with you any longer. Wait. We'll give you even better contract conditions. I do not need it. Ho! Oh. Juhian started to laugh thinking that this odd iron wall was still the same inflexible person who didn't care for threats or flattery. But it happened at that moment. Julian who seemed to be walking away from them peeked toward Juhian. Honestly speaking, Julian was quite curious about Juhian who had suddenly appeared. Whether it was the plagiarism incident or the mind control thing the fact that he could be so confident about that might mean that he had an analysis type artifact like his own. Either that, or he was a shameless scammer. He didn't know which it was, but either way Seo Juhian they said his name was Seo Juhian, right? He had an extremely high level of dominance. The other thing he was certain about was that this guy seemed a bit different than most artifact users. He's being protected by an extremely heinous artifact. It's shaped like a crow. He could see it clearly because of Zhuge Kongming's artifact. That was why he became curious about Ju Hien. What's your name? Ju Hien lightly scoffed at him. Figure that out on your own. It made him wonder what was wrong with this person. But Ju Hien walked over to Julian and whispered the following. You have a younger sibling, right? Julian almost jumped in shock. Ju Hien smiled at that reaction. Should I tell you where she is? Zhu Hien had no plans on working together with Zhuge Kongming. Their personalities didn't mesh for numerous reasons. 
however, he didn't want this punk working for anybody else either. Ju Hian would need to get rid of him if he ended up working for the enemy. That is why the best thing would be for him to hand the artifact over to me. I know you are looking for your younger sister. I'll tell you where she is. In return, hand over Zhuge Kongming's artifact to me. Zhu Hian was smiling. He knew that his sister was Zhuge Kongming's weakness. He had started using artifacts to find his younger sister and that was the reason he had ended up under Chairman Quan in the past as well. He also knew that Julian was a very good and reliable older brother who would even give up his artifact for his younger sister. Of course, he was not planning on saying he would find his younger sister for him and put him to use as Chairman Quan had done. He was planning on doing a proper business transaction. All right, so bite. However he heard an unexpected sigh. Thanks for the offer but it is already useless. I don't know how you learned about that, but I already found my sister. And. Julian let out a deep sigh. My sister died in front of me a month ago. Ju Hian started to frown. Finding his sister is one thing but she's already dead. Was it really your sister? It really was my sister. But thank you for thinking of her. Julian then walked away from Ju Hian. Ju Hian started to think once he was gone. Why? Julian was supposed to be baited by Chairman Quan into working for him because he couldn't find his sister right now. But his sister was dead. Dead my ass. I found her working as a celebrity and brought her to you myself. That happened about ten years from now. That was why his sister should have been alive until at least ten years later. What the hell happened? Perhaps it seemed as if he would need to dig deeper into this issue. However, it was at that moment. You seem to have a terrible hobby of getting in people's way. Chairman Quan who barely managed to get away from the rapid-fire questions of the reporters was grinding his teeth at Ju Hian. How dare you defame someone like that? Ju Hian started to laugh. What's wrong? I didn't say anything false. Old man. Chairman Quan seemed to be extremely angry as he channeled a large amount of dominance. Boom. The artifact of conquest had been activated. Nicely said. Then why don't we give it a go? Let's see if you can get out of my dominance. A bleak aura filled the closed party hall and the gazes of the people inside started to change. They then all started to glare at Ju Hian, Yu Jeha, and Edward. The conqueror's dominance is out. One moment please. TKBM Chairman Nim. I must take care of that bastard myself. Austin Rockefeller had unexpectedly appeared. Ju Hian scoffed while looking at him. What the hell? They let you go. You molester. It's obvious since I am not a molester. You motherfucking. Ju Hian thought he didn't need to pay any attention to this fool. As Ju Hian calmly tried to use an artifact to escape warning. A strong aura that can split the world is threatening you. Austin Rockefeller was grinding his teeth as he took out a book. You bastard. You'll have to participate in my missionary activity too. The Avesta of Zoroastrianism Sacred Text, SS Grade, Divine Grade, Possession Artifact Zoroastrianism was said to be the base for Christianity, Buddhism, and Islam. In simple terms, it was a religion-type artifact. And that artifact released a strong aura. Ju Hian's eyes sparkled as he looked at it. Why? Something is weird. The monarch of evangelism is supposed to have that. The four emperors among the fifteen monarchs who stood above all artifact users. One of them was the monarch of evangelism. That was the artifact belonging to the Islamic man of the four emperors who was famous as a religious sect leader. So why did he have this artifact? Chapter, 89 Did the monarch of evangelism steal it from this bastard? No, that wasn't it. The monarch of evangelism was someone who had received an artifact right from the beginning similar to Chairman Quan. He did not steal it from anyone nor have it stolen. Then did the future change a bit? Ju Hian shamelessly smiled. Now it made sense. This was why he didn't remember an ability user at Austin's level. Did a bastard like this who wasn't in his memories appear because the future changed? It was possible since he returned to the past and caused a shitshow, no no, slowly changed the future. 
It was obvious that the future would change if the past changed. Zhu Hian had seen some precursors of that being the case already. I'm already checking the news and the stock market frequently. The bigger things were going as Zhu Hian remembered but there were quite a lot of things that were changing as well. But he was not very scared. It's not like I got Chairman Quan to the top in the past because I could see the future. The only issue with the future changing was that he might suddenly run into an unexpected danger. That was especially true because Zhu Hian was aiming for a higher spot than in the past. Irene and Edward are fine because they had artifacts from the beginning. As for Yu Jeha, he just needed to get him Leonardo da Vinci's artifact that he used in the past. Zhu Hian had those thoughts before looking at Austin Rockefeller in front of him. But your artifact is first. Damn, for it to be the Avesta of Zoroastrianism sacred text. Zhu Hian started to laugh. He didn't expect such an opportunity to come to him with the future changing. He felt extremely lucky. There were only fifteen monopolizers, the monarch grade majesties in the entire world. The four emperors were the ones among the majesties with the most artifacts and strongest power. Kira, the monarch of war Quan Tejun, the monarch of conquest the third was a crazy lunatic and the final one was the monarch of evangelism who used to have the Avesta of Zoroastrianism in front of him right now. This is an extremely useful artifact. Why? Do you know the power of religion and its believers? The monarch of evangelism had used the fact that he was an Islamic believer to get over one, five billion Islamic believers to be his congregation. Basically, all artifacts those people found were delivered to the monarch of evangelism. He was overgeared thanks to this large number of people. His troops would overwhelm the enemies with an overbearing amount of supplies. There's another reason he ended up one of the four emperors. There was more. Supplies are critical to gain artifacts. Excavations required significant manpower. You needed to enter with a large number of artifacts to clear the tests of the tombs that people could never know before entering and the monopolizers couldn't even go into the tombs because they cherished their lives so much. Of course, he had swept a tomb on his own. That was why he wouldn't do a shitty thing like gathering people and throwing them into a tomb, but there were a lot of things he could do with a higher headcount. For example I can use that for viral marketing word of mouth marketing, larger numbers are advantageous. Zhu Hian was thinking about using this holy religious leader's artifact for something like marketing, but he was a shameless person. Alright, so hand it over. That thing. Austin Rockefeller scoffed after seeing Zhu Hian who was wearing a nice suit pound his fists together. He's a wicked thief. Shut up. Are you going to hand it over or not? Zhu Hian smiled and the rope that had jumped out after smelling the scent of battle threatened Austin from behind Zhu Hian as well. Roar, my master said hand it over. He said hand it over. It seemed to want to look scary as it was squirming like an anaconda. Unfortunately, it was just a rope no matter how hard it tried. However, it was at that moment. You want me to hand this over? You really think I would do that, you dumbass? The women around them started to charge at Zhu Hian as soon as Austin scoffed. Ugh. The women in dresses hung on to Zhu Hian's arms and legs as they growled at him. What are you doing to Austin? That's our idol. We won't let you harm him. It was not just one or two people, the numerous people inside the party hall were baring their teeth at Zhu Hian. The party hall couldn't help but turn into pandemonium almost instantly. Zhu Hian whose arms and legs were being held down by the women started to frown. Hypnosis. No, it was not hypnosis. However, Zhu Hian had seen this crazed look somewhere before. Yes, it was at an idol concert hall. That was it. The numerous people inside the party hall all started to praise Austin. There was a higher number of women but even the men were praising Austin. They then started to steal artifacts from the artifact users inside the party hall. Even Chairman Quan, Richard, and other monarch grade and expert grade users were affected by this. A message window popped up as Zhu Hian wondered what it could be. The Avesta owner's fame and popularity have made people become fanatical and become his believers. The Avesta owner's religious leader abilities are rising. The religious leader's shouts will increase the religious fanatic's powers by 10%. 
they are starting to steal artifacts from the non-believers. Juhian scoffed as the women slowly became stronger. He was thinking it was unfamiliar as it was being activated differently than he remembered. This bastard was using this holy sacred text like this. As mentioned, he had so easily turned the people in the party hall into his religious fanatics. Austin seemed to be some crappy bestseller novel, famous singer, actor, or whatever. As Ju Hian shook his head in disbelief and was about to push the women away ah. Uh, what are you trying to do to our precious writer Nim? Yu Jaiha was almost crying as he jumped on Ju Hian's back. Ju Hian looked at him in shock but Yu Jaiha became angry as if he was a soldier who had gone crazy while looking at a girl group. You bastard. Rockefeller writer Nim needs to write the sequel to the clandestine housekeeper. Don't touch him. You damn artifact file. The veins on Ju Hian's head started to pop out. This stupid moron. Pow! Ju Hian's steel-like fists ruthlessly punched Yu Jaiha's face. His wide movements made the women hanging on him fall off as Ju Hian continued to punch the day's Jaiha with his fists of punishment. You, ugh. Yu Jaiha was clutching his stomach and groaning at the unbearable pain but he seemed to have snapped out of it unlike the others. Ugh ugh my writer Nim. Are you still out of it? Do I need to give you some more mental training? And no, I'm good sir. And what did you say? Artifact file? Wait, that's true and, no, I mean, Captain Nim. I've committed a terrible sin. That was how it was. Rockefeller was a prominent figure in the literary, music, and film world whether that was thanks to using an artifact or through his own abilities. And that was just part of his evangelism to use the Avesta. He was raising people's awareness of him to create fans and turning those fans into believers. All those who become his fan would end up his prisoners. Rather than calling it mind control, it was using the believers' burning devotion, faith, and affection to make them only do the religious leader's biddings. It relied purely on fanship and had nothing to do with dominance, which was why even the monarch grade users were easily swayed. But even if that was the case how dare my subordinate praise someone else. It did not feel good. That was why Ju Hian looked at Austin and took out a scary sword thinking he was going to not think about mental training this time. I've made up my mind. I will let you feel the terror of losing your neck. Austin Rockefeller scoffed in disbelief. A bastard without a divine grade artifact is going to do that to me. Is a dog bark. But as he was saying that Austin got the chills looking at the sword pointed at him. Ju Hian who had been 20 m away had instantly appeared in front of him. Ju Hian was looking at him with a frightening gaze as he held the sword at Austin's neck. T, this bastard. And at that moment Ju Hian smiled viciously as the sharp sword shined in the air. Gasp. The sword that shot up from the bottom then slashed Austin's neck. Ah. Austin had clearly felt it. He felt the terrible sensation of the sword cutting through his skin and breaking his neck bones. He had clearly seen it as well. He had seen his body fall to the ground while spurting blood. Austin screamed at the terrible sight of his neck separating from his body. However, at that moment he snapped out of it. Was it an illusion? He opened his eyes to see Ju Hian standing at a distance smiling with Warang's sword across his shoulder. Warang's sword was the artifact of warriors who blazed past death on the battlefield and could cause the enemy to see an illusion of their death if the sword's abilities were used at a high level. However, that wasn't important to Austin right now. The thing in one of his hands is. My Avesta. It was the book artifact that had been in his hand. That bastard. Austin tried to jump up but ended up vomiting after feeling nauseous. The other party's dominance has been severely shaken. Ju Hian laughed out loud after seeing that. Thanks for the Avesta. However this artifact cannot be used as it is a possession type artifact that still has an owner. You must lower the opponent's dominance even more. Ju Hian looked toward Austin at this unexpected situation. It made sense as most humans would not be able to maintain their clarity after experiencing their death. The fear of death was the scariest thing for humans. It was obvious that dominance that was called mental fortitude would be strongly shaken. Then his contract with the possession type artifact should have been released. His mental fortitude is quite strong. 
Ju Hian was not a thoughtless fool who would shed blood in front of so many people. That was why he was trying to take it using a different method, but Austin Rockefeller soon wiped his mouth and channeled his dominance. Return. Aves. It was possible to summon possession type artifacts. That was why he was trying to call back the item Ju Hian took, but at that moment. He didn't know when it appeared, but the rope was choking Rockefeller's neck. Don't bother my master. Don't bother him. Rockefeller couldn't help but foam at the mouth and cough as it choked his neck like an anaconda. Ah. This rope bastard. Ugh. The reaction came quickly as he started to lack oxygen in his brain. The opponent's dominance is falling. The opponent's dominance is falling to A grade. The opponent's dominance has fallen to B grade. The opponent's contract with the Avesta is about to be released. Ju Hian's expression brightened after seeing that. Chapter, 90. The opponent's dominance has fallen to B grade. The opponent's contract with the Avesta is about to be released. Ju Hian's expression brightened after seeing that. Even if Rockefeller's dominance was high, he was still human. There was no way his mental fortitude would remain when he was on the brink of death. And at that moment the Avesta has betrayed its master. The opponent's contract with the Avesta has been released. The Avesta moved away from its master as the dominance fell. Ju Hian did not miss that opening and channeled his dominance into the old sacred text. Boom! The reaction was quite intense. What do you want, you worthless human? Boom! Boom! The Avesta went on the defensive as soon as the foreign dominance was channeled inside it. It was starting to release a strong aura without being dominated by Ju Hian's dominance. But Ju Hian laughed while looking at it. Why? This bastard wouldn't react this way if his dominance was weak. There was no way an expert would be thoroughly defending against a mere puppy. That meant it means my dominance has risen to a point where I can handle divine grade artifacts to a degree. Ju Hian peeked at his abilities. Artifact dominance, s the manifestation of a hero artifact affinity, e minus do not want to even approach it was not enough to be at the 4 emperor grade level ss, but he would be able to deal with divine grade artifacts based on the battle of will. It was much better than when he first returned to the past. He was only at the a great conqueror level when he first returned. His dominance seemed to have fallen because of his death and the shock of betrayal when he first returned, but he had gained back some of his original dominance. There was a benefit to exploiting the artifacts. It would normally not be possible to raise it like this in such a short amount of time. Ju Hian was an expert grade artifact user who mainly used S grade artifacts prior to returning to the past. Of course, he was able to handle divine grade artifacts to a degree. There were just no divine grade artifacts to form a partnership. It happened at that moment. Ugh, this damn low-grade artifact. Austin who was being choked by the rope clenched his feet and started to resist. How dare this thing! He couldn't believe what was happening. This rope that was choking him felt like a low-grade artifact. It was also a consumable artifact that anybody could use. I just need to dominate and pull something like this off. Austin tried to channel strong dominance into the rope to dominate it. The reaction was quick. The rope that felt Austin's strong dominance twitched. It choked Austin's neck for a moment before it started to act wild like a rat that had ingested poison. Normally, consumable artifacts did not care about the user. It was typical for its master to change based on the user. Alright, so hurry up and let go. Furthermore, the rope was a low-rank C-grade artifact. There was no way it could resist Austin's dominance that could even control divine-grade artifacts. The rope felt as if it was being whipped by the strong dominance and slowly started to lose strength. Austin started to smile. Good. Just like that. Austin gasped for air and gave the rope an order as soon as he was starting to be released. Alright, you damn rope son of a bitch. Go choke that bastard. However at that moment. That hurt. That hurt. Ugh. The rope that had been releasing became angry and started to choke Austin again. The rope seemed to be extremely upset. Austin's dominance must have felt terribly dirty for the rope. I'm angry. Super angry. 
you'll pay for that. It was really strong this time. Austin couldn't breathe again but more importantly, he couldn't believe what was going on. What the hell? What was up with this shitty situation? How could a damn consumable artifact reject a user? But he had no time to think. This hurts. As Austin whose airway was blocked was flailing for air young master. The rope artifact quickly ran away as someone called for Austin. Austin returned to his senses to see his secretary Vera next to him. Are you okay sir? She had a vicious ornamental silver knife in her hand. It was an A-grade artifact. She must have wanted to rip the rope apart with this knife. Austin was feeling the sequelae of being suffocated as he asked. Hugh Huff. W, what about that damn rope? Vera looked forward instead of responding. Ju Hian who had swiped the rope away was standing there. The rope was wrapping around Ju Hian's body and whining. Master, I'm in pain. I'm in pain. Vera must have cut it a bit with the knife. Ju Hian who was holding the rope was frowning. He had noticed the secretary appearing and called back the rope with almost perfect timing. The rope would have been instantly destroyed if he left it to be attacked. How dare you try to destroy an artifact? Yu Jeha started to pout next to him. Says the guy who destroys artifacts almost daily. Shut up. It was fine for him to do that. But others couldn't destroy them. He couldn't allow that to happen. By the way. Ju Hian scoffed while looking at Vera who was standing next to Austin. I remember you were George Holton's servant. It definitely was that woman. It was that Russian woman who had given Ju Hian a massage on the Holton's private plane. But you were the Rockefeller spy. Ah yes, how is that disgusting dimwit doing? Ju Hian laughed out loud at Vera's sneer. It was quite interesting. How can it not be when the Holton couple became ill at someone's deliberate action? That was why Ju Hian and George were trying to find the culprit. But there was a Rockefeller spy. Then wasn't it a simple story? Was it you guys who got the Holton couple sick too? Vera flinched at his voice that had instantly become cold. However, Vera quickly snapped out of it and snorted. I'll tell you in advance since it will be revealed eventually, but all we did was introduce them to an artifact merchant. Those idiots must have touched artifacts without thinking and gotten sick. Vera was sneering as if she had no intentions of hiding it, but at that moment will you look at that? I guess these shitheads really did get them sick on purpose. Vera started to shake in fear at Juhian's heinous dominance. W, what is this? She was scared. It wasn't that Juhian was ever a nice person, but he was much more vicious right now. However, that was an obvious reaction. Juhian had been a victim of tomb syndrome as well. That had been the reason for his pain and for his life of slavery under Chairman Kwan. It was no wonder he would not look kindly on people who spread it on purpose. And a person's dominance was the materialization of the person's charisma or overbearing nature. It was the type of pressure one would feel in front of charismatic leaders, past sovereigns, experts in different fields with strong persistence, and even tyrants who committed terrible deeds throughout history. He's at a completely different level. His dominance seemed to be at the monarch grade. As Vera whose legs became weak fell on her but well, it doesn't matter. It's not my job to get rid of you guys. The heinous dominance disappeared as if it had never been there. Ju Hian nonchalantly threw the sacred text to his luggage boy, Yu Jeha. It wasn't important right now even if it was true that these bastards were the ones who messed with the Holton couple. Number 1. Put that away for now. We're ditching this joint before some weird bastards get involved. The hyenas aiming for Ju Hian's sacred text started to appear as expected. That bastard took that weird sacred text, right? Yes, I saw him take it. It looks like a possession type artifact and not a consumable artifact, right? Yeah. There were at least 40 of them who had been suppressed by the believers earlier but were free now. He saw some familiar monarch grade and expert grade people. Even Chairman Kwan was there. Ju Hian chuckled at that reaction. Honestly speaking, a possession-type artifact that had lost its master was quite precious. Possession-type artifacts were rare items compared to consumable artifacts that could be stolen and also had limited uses. 
It's normal that the artifact users would try to steal it. People soon charged toward Ujeha who was holding the artifact. It is a masterless artifact. Steal it. Take it away. Get it now. Austin was grinding his teeth as he sat on the ground. How dare they act this way with my artifact? He started to growl toward people involved with Pandora who were trying to take the artifact. Hey, you morons. I'm cutting off all of my support for Pandora if you even touch my artifact. His words made Chairman Kwan and Richard who were trying to steal the artifact flinch. Austin quickly shouted as the people all stopped for a moment. Vera. Proceed with the original plan. Do it now. Ah, uh, yes sir. Austin seemed to have been plotting something in this party hall. It was time to put it into action. But as Vera tried to activate the artifact they had secretly installed inside the party hall Vera's eyes opened wide in shock. Austin became angry and shouted again. Vera. N, no. The artifact is not activating. I know I hid it between the planters. That was their plan. Austin and Vera knew that there would be a lot of prey at this party. They had installed an illusion-type artifact in advance and were trying to activate it. They had been planning on stealing artifacts from the invited guests while they were under an illusion. She had hidden the plant-shaped artifact among the plants in the party hall. So why? At that moment ah. This was yours. She heard someone's nonchalant voice. Ujeha was the one who said that. He seemed to have sucked up all the people charging at him with Van Gogh's painting. Ujeha nonchalantly showed her the Sansevieria plant. Egu, I'm sorry. I thought someone threw it away. He was planning on running to Juhian and asking for praise and a bonus for finding an artifact. Ujeha started to chuckle. Well, I'm going to take it since I found it, pretty sis. I only have so many chances to get a bonus. Of course, Vera who heard that could only foam at the mouth. T, then what about that one over there? Ah, that's a fake. W, what? A fake? It was at that moment. Austin who saw something started to shout. Vera. That's not the problem. Look at the painting in his hand. They started to curse at them for a different reason. It was understandable. That's definitely the thing you lent to General Kira, young master. Why the hell do they have that Van Gogh painting? Had it not been burnt? It's fine. Steal that first. However steal it my ass. Goodbye you stupid idiots. Yu Jaeha gave a FCKU as Ju Hien started to laugh. Ju Hien had purposely made Yu Jaeha catch everyone's attention while he drew an image on the ground. He was using his escape artifact, the ink belonging to an artist on Paris's Montmartre Hill. The image flashed and the superior and the subordinate completely disappeared. 300 of the 400 artifact users who were invited to Pandora's meeting have received minor injuries, 80 have received serious injuries and there are some who are missing. A fight that started with one artifact user stealing a sacred text artifact became bigger and civic groups have started to criticize Pandora for being an organization that fosters fights. Pandora, the responsible party claims to be nonplussed at the situation and Ju Hien, who had returned to his New York penthouse, was laughing while watching the news. They deserve it. Anyway, this is the greatest gain from this Pandora meeting. Ju Hien threw something on the desk. That was the Avesta sacred text. Wow, all that ruckus happened because of this thing, right? What kind of artifact is it? The news didn't say anything about it. What is it? Basically, it is an artifact that turns you into a religious leader. A religious leader? It is a religion type artifact. Ju Hien was smiling. The Avesta was originally supposed to belong to the monarch of evangelism. But it had ended up in Rockefeller's hands as the future changed and now it was in his hands. That meant that the four emperors have inevitably been changed. He had sent the monarch of war, one of the four emperors off already, and he would hinder Chairman Quan from getting there. The future was continuously changing as the monarch of evangelism didn't have the artifact to become the monarch of evangelism anymore. I wonder which bastards will end up as the candidates now. 
The Oh Sung Woo group who had become quite connected with the community now were worried about Ju Hian. Um, will you be okay? Based on rumors, this incident made not just Chairman Kwan and Rockefeller, but other people are starting to focus on you as well, Hyung Nim. Ju Hian smiled after hearing that. There were definitely others beside Chairman Kwan and Rockefeller who were monopolizers in the past and could be monarchs in the future. There were some colossus who weren't at the party, but this was a great chance. It's a greeting of sorts. He was sending a greeting in advance to all the bastards he would meet from now on. Now that the four emperors were changed, he would end up fighting with them for the positions that would influence the world. Of course, he would end up taking one of those spots. As he was having that shameless thought ah, Captain Nim. What do we do about that one? Yu Jeha who had been stuck in the room restoring artifacts was huffing as he walked out. Ju Hian started to frown. What is it? What's the issue? No, you see, the rope. Ju Hian walked into the room. He could see the rope moving around in front of him. Ha, huh, but the rope's condition. Chapter, 91 Ha, huh, but the rope's condition. The rope inside the room was huffing as if it was extremely angry. But it didn't seem to have been restored. Rope from heaven C grade, general grade, consumable artifact remaining use is 2100 100 how could it be when its durability was a mess like this? However, the rope was moving around extremely energetically even with its durability so low. Forget being weak, it had bound and bit. Yu Jeha who put his hand on its body. It was causing all sorts of messes. And because of that please do something about this thing. I can't restore it because it won't stand still. Yu Jeha who was grinding his teeth clenched the rope. The rope then started to flail like a captured snake and screamed in anger. Don't touch my body. Don't touch it. The rope that was being held down by Yu Jeha landed a strong punch to Jeha's cheek. Pow! Yu Jeha ended up screaming and falling on his butt. Why that damn thing? Yu Jeha was whining and asking why it was acting this way to someone who was trying to restore it and Ju Hian called the rope back. Come here. The rope that was growling toward Yu Jeha instantly wrapped around Ju Hian's arm. Maybe it was because of the incident with Rockefeller, but it didn't seem to want to be touched by anyone other than Ju Hian. It is a very unique situation. This was very weird. Artifacts hated humans and there were no artifacts that were friendly to humans. It is guaranteed to be the devil's ploy if they seem nice. That was the reason Ju Hian did not open his heart to artifacts. Even possession type artifacts created a contracted relationship based on both sides benefiting from the deal. The other reason would be if the person's affinity was extremely high. Either way, you couldn't expect the image of a loyal dog and its master from an artifact. You'd be better off expecting that from a cockroach. But here was an artifact that listened to him well. But this punk should have been restored by number one many times already. Why was it suddenly rejecting being restored? Ju Hian thought for a moment before asking with a serious expression. Did you sexually harass it or something? Does that make any sense? Does it? Then why? Ju Hian had that thought for a moment before tilting his head in confusion. For some reason, the aura he felt coming from the rope seemed a bit odd. Now he was certain. The rope's aura was different than usual. A message popped up as if to answer his question. The rope that has achieved its goal is scheming to change. Goal, go against dominance for master the rope's body is starting to change. The rope's body flashed as soon as he saw that message. Oh Sung Woo ran over in shock after seeing the bright light from outside. W, what is going on? Hyung Nim. Hey, Restorer. What the hell did you do? What? I didn't do anything. Another bright light that was so bright they couldn't open their eyes flashed once Yu Jeha started to shout as well. Ah. My eyes. The bright light continued for a few seconds. And after a while the painful light slowly disappeared. Ju Hian saw an unfamiliar sight once he opened his closed eyes. The rope that had been moving looked different now. The typical dirt-colored and old rope had changed to a silver rope. Versatile silver rope from heaven B grade, rare grade, possession artifact, fatigue level, 
0% the rope has changed into a possession type artifact. The artifact specialties have increased. The rope that had been a consumable artifact had changed to a possession type artifact. Juhian couldn't help but question his eyes after seeing that. Artifacts are capable of upgrading? No. Juhian had never heard about that. An artifact's rank could change. Furthermore, it could go from consumable to possession type. Why would the numerous artifact users not have done it if it was possible? They would have upgraded all the low-grade artifacts. Not only that if upgrading was possible, Juhian would have upgraded the C-grade healing type artifact he got from Chairman Quan to a SS-grade divine-grade artifact. That was why Juhian who learned something new became serious. Is it something rare like tolerance? Or maybe nobody knew the methods behind upgrading artifacts. Juhian suddenly got the chills. Had it said it upgraded because it achieved its goal. It was at that moment. It is a masterless artifact. Therefore, you are able to initiate a contra no, it has already initiated a contract on its own. The versatile silver rope from Heaven's Master, Human Co Juhi and this little punk. It initiated a contract on its own. However, the rope that had turned into a possession type artifact rubbed its body on Juhian as if it was happy. Juhian was also happy as it would be less annoying to use it now. Another message then appeared. A risk will activate after using the artifact as it is now a possession type artifact. The versatile rope artifact's risk is a strong desire to praise. Juhian scoffed after seeing that message. Would you look at that? He was shocked but it was fine. It wasn't much for being a risk. In fact, it was nothing compared to the risks for other possession type artifacts he used a lot such as the Code of Hammurabi and the Herb of Eternal Youth. And possession type artifacts that had low chances of being stolen were things all artifact users wanted. Another message popped up. You have received the title of artifact trainer and your fit with all artifacts has increased. You are now able to draw out 90% of an artifact's abilities. Juhian was amazed after seeing those messages. An increase in fit is extremely good. Fit talent was one of three ways to use artifacts. It was similar to how Yujeha's fit with art type artifacts were high. People can at max draw out 70% of an artifact's abilities. Monarch grade users could draw out 90%, but they could never get past 100%. However, people with high fit could not only draw out an artifact's abilities more efficiently, they could also discover new abilities as well. In simple terms, they were able to draw out an artifact's hidden abilities at times. One example of this would be how Yujeha was able to create pearls with the Venus's clam artifact. But his fit was not limited to a specific type like Yujeha's archetype artifacts but for all artifacts. This is not bad. Furthermore, it was an issue of talent so it wasn't something that could be raised with effort. That was why Juhian smiled while looking at this unexpectedly useful rope artifact. I can put it in my list of first-rate artifacts now. All artifact users would gather as many artifacts as possible and determine their abilities to create their set of first-rate artifacts. He also felt like he should thank the Rockefeller family who ended up helping the rope meet its goal. They're helping me a lot even though they said I don't deserve to be sponsored. However, the disappointing thing was the rope's grade. Its abilities are nice but B grade is still pretty low. It was better than C grade but it was rare to go up against expert grade or monarch grade users with a rare grade artifact. I'll run into them once the higher ranking tombs start to come out, there was still one of the four emperors he needed to be wary of from China. But the high ranking majesties right underneath the four emperors were dangerous as well. Yu Jeha was one of the difficult majesties to handle but those other bastards were pretty versed in battle. It could be called, named buff. As artifacts were created based on existences in human memory, the artifacts of individuals who are famous worldwide would give buffs to its users, but what about this rope? That was why Juhian seriously asked the question. Hey number one. Yes sir. Are you able to fortify artifacts? Yu Jeha was shocked. Are you trying to make me work as a blacksmith too now? Well, that was true. But based on this artifact, I should be able to upgrade other artifacts too, he just didn't know how to do it. It happened at that moment. 
artifacts can grow stronger. A message popped up as if it was giving Juhian a hint. Artifacts cannot be developed. That is why there is a need to quickly monopolize the high-grade artifacts. Low-grade artifacts are trash even if they have useful abilities. Pandora was having an emergency meeting. It was because the core artifact Pandora's system had given them new information after the gathering of artifact users. There had been a total of 521 tombs in the world until now. Most were medium or small tombs with most artifacts being B-grade or lower. Seven large tombs that are different from the others will start to appear. Different? Yes sir. They seem to be different from other tombs in both size and cruelty. The tomb appearances will be close to 9,373 kilometers in size. They showed a map so that it was easier to explain. The 9,373 kilometers was about the size of South Korea. Pandora members who saw that dropped their jaws in shock. Then are you saying an entire state in the US could end up being affected by a tomb appearance? The tombs until now had only been the size of a village at most. But what? The tomb appearance area is the size of a small country. Of course, there was the great tomb appearance that affected the entire world a few months ago, but. It was better than back then but this was serious even if you considered the great tomb appearance to be an outlier. However, the researchers were saying that wasn't the important thing. According to the prophet Nostradamus, we must clear those seven tombs even if they are dangerous. What? Why? He said that the people who conquer those tombs will change the world. The people's gazes changed after hearing that. It was because they knew what that symbolized. Are you saying extremely precious artifacts are going to come out? That is possible. The Pandora members and soldiers started to whisper. Pandora must excavate those tombs first. That's right, we have to do it before the Russian or Chinese excavation teams get there. The civilians might try their luck and try to go in as well that would be bad. However, the people reporting shook their heads. No. There are others we need to be wary of as well. What? They started a slideshow instead of responding. It showed the people who attended the party. This is the record of the dangerous users that the Pandora system artifact detected at the party. It ranks the top 50 people. Danger ranking a base, number of artifacts, artifacts abilities, overall assessment of tomb exploration ability talent for conquest, Quan Te Jun 58 Yo number of artifacts in possession, 21 talent for strategy, Julian Miller 25 Yo number of artifacts in possession, 19 talent for destitution, Irene Holton 20 Yo number of artifacts in possession. 1 Talent for Seduction, Elena Mecca Number of Artifacts in Possession, 14 Talent for the Arts, Austin Rockefeller 28 Yo Number of Artifacts in Possession. 20 Talent for Hunting, Alicia Ruiz 25 Yo Number of Artifacts in Possession, 18 Talent for Wealth, Edward 62 Yo Number of Artifacts in Possession, 17 Talent for Stocks, Lu Guanghui 35 Yo Number of Artifacts in Possession, 9 Talent for Restoration. Jean Richard 59 Yo Number of Artifacts in Possession, 6 Talent for Fraud. Yu Jeha 24 Yo Number of Artifacts in Possession, 5 Talent for Chemistry. Murata Shinichi 42 Yo Number of Artifacts in Possession, 3 Talent for Gluttony. The Pandora members were shocked looking at this list. The people who were or had been a part of Pandora made sense. But there were so many people who had rejected joining Pandora or of civilian origins. These people will become the central figures in tomb exploration from here on. They were also the future experts and majesties. However, these people who had no way of knowing that started to grind their teeth in competition. It was an obvious reaction. They had been upset lately because all artifacts they found were either D-grade or C-grade. At least 10 people die even in a tomb with a D-grade artifact. They were not superhumans even when using artifacts. The traps and tests killed a lot of people. Of these people, the ones who are not part of Pandora are the biggest issues. They are all people who can conquer tombs. Then there are high chances that these bastards will conquer the seven tombs. They started to whisper to each other and suggested that they quickly start forming excavation teams we must hurry. Hurry up and look for new members. Let our nations work together. The researchers who were presenting urgently shouted. P, please wait a moment. 
We are not done yet. What, what is it? Well, these people are problems, but. What? They peeked around before continuing to speak. There was someone we did not put on there because the value was overwhelming there is actually someone hidden above that first place person. That person is the one the Pandora system artifact warned us the most about. It said he was so dangerous he could excavate tombs on his own. People who heard that started to scoff. Are you crazy? How can anybody excavate a tomb on their own? Who the hell is it? The real first place person's name soon popped up on the screen. Talent for plunder, CO Juhian 22 Yo number of artifacts in possession, 50 chapter, 92. Talent for plunder, CO Juhian 22 Yo number of artifacts in possession, 50 Pandora members who saw that were astonished. His talent for plunder was one thing, but the number of artifacts in possession. My goodness, 50. Furthermore, please look at the detailed data. That number is the amount he has on him. This was an unbelievable amount. It wasn't as if Pandora had been sitting around sucking their thumbs all this time they had quickly started to move from the moments artifacts first appeared. Chairman Kwan who had 21 artifacts was proof of one of the people who had started to move early on. Furthermore, Chairman Kwan only moved in cooperation with Pandora, which meant that he had not collected all 21 on his own. However, 50 artifacts alone. Who the FCK is this bastard? The Pandora members were shocked. The detailed data didn't show anything that said Juhian was a talented excavator no matter how many times they looked. That is why this data makes no sense. We need to deploy thousands of Pandora soldiers to maybe come back with ten of them. Did he maybe form an excavation team with the Holtons? Are you joking? Excavation teams have a few hundred people at minimum. General Kira would have crushed them if she noticed such a large movement. Ah, if his talent is in plunder, maybe he stole them from others. That made Pandora's members sulk even more. They were afraid that they might end up getting their artifacts stolen. A, anyway, please keep the information about the seven tombs a secret from the press. We cannot allow anybody else to take them. Pandora and its partner nations must take them all. We can't let the others on this list find out, but we must absolutely make sure this CO Juhian doesn't get any information about it at all. They nodded their heads. However, their cautious actions would end up being useless. Why? There are sudden tombs that have appeared throughout the world. Thankfully, they are small tombs but a total of 1,690 tombs have appeared what the hell. That's the precursor to the seven great tombs. It was because the person they were worried about had already realized what was going on. Juhian looked at the map that popped up on the news and started to squint. Is it time for those things to slowly pop up? However, Irene tilted her head in confusion at Juhian who was smiling while watching the news. Mr. Juhian. They were currently in the New York penthouse. She was currently being taught by Juhian. Yu Jeha who was also getting taught about artifact usage with Irene asked a question. What do you mean by seven great tombs? Captain Nim, is something weird coming out again? Ju Hien pointed to the map on the news instead of responding. The locations of the tombs were visible on there and they were connected like a round ring. That's called the Ring of Tomb. Ring of Tomb? It seemed to be similar to how they called the earthquake region in the west the Ring of Fire. And the large tombs would appear in the locations within the ring that had the strongest aura. There would end up being a total of seven of these tombs. That was one of the reasons they were called the seven great tombs, but the artifacts inside played a role as well. It was because the seven great tombs had characteristics of the Bible's seven deadly sins avarice, pride, envy, wrath, sloth, gluttony, lust. Basically, seven large tombs will appear in the future. Each of them will have an artifact corresponding to a deadly sin. The order is random. But based on the type, they can be extremely precious tombs that could change the world. Most of the people who conquered those tombs ended up solidifying their positions as majesties. That was the strength of these artifacts. Well, they originally showed up a few years later. The events of the future were being pulled forward a couple years in advance. Maybe it was the risk for his return. It was as if it was slowly tightening its grasp on him. 
but Ju Hian just found it ridiculous. He might need to rush the preparations, but it was more advantageous for him if the future events occurred earlier. It's obvious there are less competitors now than in a few years. It was as if it was trying to help him. Furthermore, the seven great tombs were special to Ju Hian. One of these tombs was where the past Ju Hian earned the archaeologist's artifact and became an excavator. I remember it was the Tomb of Avarice. It had been greed for historical knowledge. That was the reasoning behind how that possession type artifact came to be. However, Ju Hian got a headache thinking about the past. There was a simple reason for it. Everything was great about that artifact except the retarded risk. That archaeologist's artifact's risk was related to written text addiction, viewing addiction, knowledge gathering addiction, basically, it made him addicted to research. It was normal for people to be extremely tired after barely making it out alive from a tomb. But this damn artifact wouldn't even let him sleep, forcing him to go to libraries, museums, and art galleries throughout the world to shove historical and artistic knowledge into his brain. Not only that there was a time when the risk struck him while he was about to do the deed with a woman he liked in France. He could not forget that terrible memory of how he suddenly ran toward the Louvre telling her, I suddenly want to see the Mona Lisa for a moment. That woman probably looked at him as if he was crazy as well. Forget being my partner artifact, I wanted to destroy that shit during those times. The tomb raiding team members laughed at him so much about that. Especially this bastard Ujeha. Ju Hian started to grind his teeth thinking about that. Maybe that was the reason. Ju Hian said the following to Yu Jeha who was in front of him. Number 1. Finish restoring all artifacts by the end of the day. Yu Jeha foamed at the mouth hearing that completely unbelievable order. Excuse me? What do you mean? You said you'll give me a week because I've suffered a lot lately. Who cares? I'll kill you if you can't do it. Get it done. Damn it. He was half joking, but Yu Jeha, who suddenly had to pull an all nighter, started to sniffle. Anyway, Ju Hian had such shitty risk in the past, but it didn't matter now. He had this Tomb Raider skill he got from the crow instead of the archaeologist's artifact. Either way, the Tomb of Avarice was the most difficult of the seven tombs to clear and had not been conquered for many years. That was why Ju Hian ended up gaining that artifact late in the game at 27 years old when he put his life on the line and went inside. But the seven great tombs, wait a minute then, is the archaeologist's artifact coming out in the tomb of Avarice again? Would the artifacts in the other tombs be the same as well even though they were random? As Ju Hian was thinking about that those don't seem to be regular sized tombs. Hyung Nim, will you be able to go in there alone? Oh Sung Wu, the farmer who now had to take care of the herb of eternal youth and grow tea leaves, had asked the question. Ju Hian started to laugh as if that helped him realize something. Right, it's a waste of time thinking about the Tomb of Avarice right now. Forget the Tomb of Avarice it might be difficult to even clear the rest of the seven great tombs as well. They were very particular. The chances of survival are too low on my own. They were level 4, disaster grade tombs. He would need at least one guide member and one or more battle members. He needed people to support him when he was busy. He needed people who could be like his fingers. Yu Jeha was a necessary member because he was a precious restorer but he was like a eunuch when it came to battles. His skills were far from tomb excavation. It might seem funny that he was looking for a few people when others took hundreds of people to excavate tombs, but that was enough for Ju Hian. If it was his subordinates, but I have no idea what any of them were doing at this time. He had met them in his late twenties. That was why it was a bit disappointing. All those punks who died with him in that final tomb there were none as skilled as them in this world. It's disappointing but oh well. He couldn't miss out on the seven great tombs even if he wanted to go find them. That was why Ju Hian left the Oh Sun Wu group to find those people for him while he looked through his artifacts. It was so that he could do some image training. If I use the seven great tombs of the past to run some simulations, he currently had fifty artifacts. It was thanks to going into small tombs nearby every night to excavate them. Well, small tombs were mainly a part of people's houses, so, honestly speaking, he had broken into some houses but it didn't matter. I got rid of their tomb appearance for them. 
Of course, he ended up doing some vandalism and also swiped the items that had turned into the artifacts, but none of that mattered. They would have ended up with tomb syndrome if I left them there. The shameless Juhian scratched his cheek while looking at the artifacts. These artifacts would be useful in the current world, but damn it, most of them are B or C grade so they won't be useful in the seven great tombs. But he was certain that they would be of great assistance in the seven great tombs if he could raise their ranks. He could estimate that much based on the ropes level up. That was why he was disappointed. Damn it, there are some artifacts that look like I could use them properly if I could at least raise them to A grade. Unfortunately, it didn't seem easy to upgrade them. He had received the following message. In order to upgrade an artifact, it must meet a specific value. Antique grade D grade dash general grade C grade commence general action general grade C grade dash rare grade B grade commence rare action rare grade B grade dash treasure grade antique grade must possess enough value to be considered a treasure treasure grade A grade dash. Legendary hero grade S grade the master must be approved as a hero who made an impact in the world legendary hero grade S grade divine grade SS grade either the artifact or the master must become deified. Based on these criteria, the rope artifact was able to upgrade because it did something rare for an artifact. But enough value to be considered a treasure, that was not easy. Furthermore, it needed to become deified among humans to enter the divine grade. Juhian started to think. It'd be one thing if this was the world of the past with idolatry and polytheism. It was impossible for a human to be deified in modern society. Even people who receive the Nobel Prize or the geniuses who impact the world would probably reach their limit at the legendary hero grade. Divine grade divine grade. Other grades were fine too, but he was obviously greedy for the divine grade. The greedy Juhian could not take his eyes away from the divine grade description. He then had a thought. Hmm, if I become deified, wouldn't that mean that the artifacts in my possession would reach the treasure grade? He had not tried it out but it seemed likely based on the descriptions. For example, the birthplaces of heroes were considered rare sites or treasures. They had to consider artifacts belonging to a deified individual as treasures. Then the seven great tombs would be doable as well. It was at that moment. A message popped up as if it was reading Juhian's dark mind. It is possible based on the artifact's characteristics but based on the current average human abilities, it will be extremely difficult to raise it to the S-grade legendary hero grade and difficult to even raise it to the A-grade treasure grade level. Furthermore, based on the user's current abilities, B-grade seems to be the maximum. It is recommended you just use the artifacts in your possession well. Oh, would you look at this? Juhian scoffed thinking that this thing was mocking him. But it was understandable. It's not easy to reach the treasure grade, hero grade, or divine grade. But Ju Hian wasn't the type to give up so easily on something so useful. To become deified there should be a way even without being Jesus or Sakyamuni. It was at that moment. Something mysterious is happening in Kyoto, Japan. Women are disappearing from different areas. The number of women who have disappeared is currently surpassing 200 police have determined that a cult is responsible for this incident the investigation Juhian peaked at the news after hearing the CNN news anchor's loud voice. A cult or religious leader. Juhian then started to smile. He had realized an easy way to become deified in the modern world. Becoming deified? It's not that hard. The message bastard said that a modern human could not become deified. That was true. The people who were deified by humans were legendary figures from ancient times. That was why there was no way for someone to be treated as a god in human minds right now. It was obvious. However, there was still a way. He couldn't become Confucius, Mencius, Jesus, or Buddha, but that wasn't important. Right. It's fine as long as some people think of me as a god. In simple terms, religious fanatics. A religious leader. Fans. Crazed fans. There was an extremely effective way to deify himself at least temporarily even if it wasn't permanent. It was a kind of a trick. There was a loophole based on the message. Yes, this bastard didn't say what kind of deification it needed to be. It just had to be something similar to being worshipped. That was why Juhian wickedly smiled. 
then I can definitely upgrade them. I can get them to the divine grade. Well, he would give it a go whether it worked or not. Both Rockefeller and the monarch of evangelism had used this to create religious fanatics after all. This was probably one of the many ways to become stronger. Ju Hian who had become crazy with that thought immediately grabbed the Avesta sacred text. Of course, he had not contracted the Avesta yet. But Ju Hian decided to use the artifact of evangelism to raise the ranks of his artifacts. All right, respond. Avesta. It'll be easier to take on the seven great tombs if I can activate you. The tomb glyphs that were the symbol of a contract appeared once he channeled his dominance. These texts would end up somewhere on his body. However, the text quickly disappeared. That wasn't the only reaction. The Avesta went back to sleep as if it never started to shine in the first place. This dog-like bastard. What was going on? The fact that it started the contract process must mean that his dominance wasn't low. Then why? A message popped up at that moment. You do not meet the requirements to use the corresponding artifact. Evangelism type artifacts require the user's fame of popularity as a base. You need at least 10 people who have fallen for you. Juhian clicked his tongue. Now that he thought about it, possession type artifacts were picky about their masters. I guess there really is a condition. Every artifact was different, but they required things like high virtue, talented artistic abilities, good math skills or things like that. It wanted someone with the qualifications to use it. The code of Hammurabi was easy to contract though. But that was because the eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth concept fit Juhian's personality very well. Anyway, Juhian now understood why Rockefeller was a writer, musician, and actor. That was the minimum requirement to use the Monarch of Evangelism's artifact. The user could probably use more of its abilities based on their popularity and number of people worshipping them. It was killing two birds with one stone since getting to use the Avesta meant that he could raise the ranks of his artifacts and get new abilities. But ten people ten people, who could he turn into his fans? He wasn't a celebrity so how could he suddenly make ten people fall for him? He looked at Irene, Ujeha and the Oh Sung Woo group in front of him. That was five people to start. I can't think of a way to get Irene to fall for me. He had never seen such a type of person before. As for the men. Wasn't it more difficult to get other men to become his fan? However, he gasped after looking at Ujeha. Now that he thought about it, he was Rockefeller's fan to the point that he fell for the hypnosis as well. He said he read that novel called The Clandestine Housekeeper, it seemed to be a 19 erotic novel. Juhian started to laugh. Then I can just write one too. Juhian opened the word window on his laptop and started to write. As for the results of his spirited endeavor chapter, 93. Good, here's a masterpiece that will make its mark on history. Juhian who was done with most of the writing smiled in satisfaction. He was thinking this was a pretty decent erotic novel. Something like this should make Rockefeller look like a chump and make people fall for me. Ju Hian, who had that thought, quickly printed the text. Once he had the five or so pages of A4 paper, he called his subordinates who were working hard over. Hey guys. Yes. Come read this novel I wrote. They were shocked. What did you say sir? A N, novel. The thing he had been writing since earlier was a novel. They gasped after receiving the manuscript in confusion. How could they not? The slutty secretary, master, I am your slave at this clearly seemed like a title that needed a 19 tag next to it. They looked toward Juhian with disbelief. Unbelievable. The captain Nim wrote this. It made no sense. C.O. Juhian was an artifact file who would pick an artifact over a sexy beauty without any hesitation. But that person wrote what kind of novel? A 19 novel? Did this thing even have adult scenes? Ujeha asked with an extremely questioning gaze. Um, Captain Nim. What is it? Does this have those scenes that we are thinking about? The O Sung Wu group focused on Ujeha's question as well. Ju Hian just triumphantly laughed as if there was no need to ask such a question. Yes, it does have those scenes you guys are thinking about. 
do I need to add some category tags for you to believe me? However, his subordinates became scared of him for a different reason at that reaction. Just what the hell did he write? He didn't write a novel where the MC is an artifact, did he? As their minds all became chaotic M. Irene, who was left alone, spoke up. Juhian didn't give her a manuscript for some reason, but Irene was very curious about the story. It was because Juhian had written it. She became curious about anything Juhian did, whether that was writing a novel, painting a picture, or scamming someone. That was why Irene slowly approached Yu Jeha and Oh Sung Woo. Um, can't I read it with you? What is the title? However, the men's reactions were quite intense as soon as she got close to them. Damn it, please stay over there. Um, Miss Irene, this isn't for you. They suddenly felt like they had diarrhea as soon as they ran away from her, but it was fine. The Captain M at least knows something since he wrote about a secretary. The excited men started to read the novel once the pain disappeared. Juhian smiled with satisfaction while looking at these perverted bastards. Things were going according to plan based on their reactions. I am fully aware of all of your preferences. Juhian had been extremely upset that Yujeha had been brainwashed because he was Rockefeller's fan. Why the hell did it have to be him and not some other author? He felt that way even more after reading Rockefeller's book to see how amazing it was. Rockefeller's novel did not meet Juhian's expectations and it kept dragging on. That was why Juhian was confident in his work. I will show you the difference in class. A few minutes later his subordinates seemed to be done reading as they flipped the papers over. Juhian started to smile. You guys are already done. Yes sir, we read it all. And your thoughts? Yu Jeha smiled brightly at that question. It's really the best. It's the best erotic novel I've ever read. Yu Jeha, who once dreamt about being an author as well wanted to compliment Ju Hien so much that he almost started clapping. It was an obvious reaction. It takes skills to write a terrible novel like this. That was the truth. Ju Hien's writing? Yes, it was good. He knew about a lot of things and he must have researched on how to write as his writing skills were superb but that was all. He sold off all suspense to Andromeda and it wasn't funny at all. Furthermore, an erotic novel was trying to educate people. How does that make any sense? Imagine turning on an adult video ready to please yourself and instead of the scenes you want to come up, it starts talking about politics or some other random thing. It felt as if he was listening to a lecture on men and women's purity for 100 minutes. You'd turn into a saint after reading the first line. What was the intentions of an erotic novel? Why did people want to read these novels? Would it have been different if he had not called it an erotic novel? The problem would be even worse if that was the case. No suspense or clear progression and the ambiguous conversations. This made that novel about an invisible reptile seem charming. One that wasn't the only reaction. I'm um, Hyun Nim. Um, there's a part one can't get past because there's a word I don't understand. What word don't you get? Um, what does numriol mean? Two, it means that it's extremely cold. What about Chi Sung? Giving it your best. And Giwi? That means reluctant, but those are all things that come up in the first line of the novel. Are you saying you're still stuck on the first line? They started to cry instead of responding. Damn it, you damn restorer. How the hell did you finish this? Come on Hyung Nim, that bastard is an Ivy League graduate. Of course he can read it. Yu Jeha scoffed in response. He couldn't understand over half of it either. Anyway, there was a reason this could be considered a candidate for one of the ten worst books in the world. How could he have such stellar writing skills but write a novel that seems to have come from an alien world? This truly was a talent of its own. Yu Jeha couldn't hold back anymore and decided to bite the bullet. Captain Nim, you really haven't read an erotic novel before have you? Wait, have you ever watched porn before? I have, but why? Then why the hell is the secretary we are waiting for not there and you just talk about damn artifacts? Are you fishing? Ju Hien looked confused. She's there. She's the Tomb Raider's secretary. Shut up. 
There's just one line about her. She's not even human. Damn it, the rope could probably write something better if I gave it a pen. Juhian seemed completely shocked after hearing that. He wouldn't usually be affected by something someone said, but comparing him to an artifact was like giving him poison. Juhian turned serious as Yu Jeha expected he would. Most comparisons would be fine but he thought a damn artifact would write better than a human. It was that bad. However, the rope who heard its name grabbed a pen and started to move. Master. Should I try writing one? Should I try writing one? Juhian looked at the rope and started to grind his teeth. Then what do I need to write to gain fans? I looked into it and apparently something like this was popular with high school girls in the past. High school girls. Juhian became interested but soon ended up receiving multiple shocks. It was because the novel that was said to be popular was like this. You're the first to kiss my lips, how are you going to take responsibility for it? So Un Yo, the strongest student, rubbed his lips as he became angry. Why the hell? It wasn't my fault at all, tired face, but it's best to beg in such a situation. I'm sorry. Ah that damn mother fucking class rep. Wait no, I mean, I'm sorry. Ju Hien received quite the culture shock and just said one thing. I'm done with novels. This was not a territory he could replicate. It's an extremely profound world. So, hell just forget about novels. Let's just go explore some tombs. Ju Hien gave up on becoming an author. Of course, he could always write the famous novels from the future to become popular. But Ju Hien was someone who believed the original owners deserved that fame. His subordinates were relieved at Ju Hien's decision but Ju Hien started to think. Hmm, then how would I gain followers? Yu Jeha smiled bitterly while watching him think. I know you're trying to figure out a way. It's disappointing, how about just giving up on upgrading the artifact's rankings? Politicians and entertainment companies would not struggle so much if it was so easy to gain a massive following. But at that moment the bizarre incident in Kyoto where only women are disappearing is still continuing. This incident is suspected to be related to the nearby cult. The base of this cult is extremely mysterious as anybody who tries to enter are all murdered by the female believers. Furthermore, there is a large tomb inside this cult's territory that is currently being investigated to see if there are any relations to the missing women incident. Juhian's subordinates and Irene all had some to say about this. Wow, the leader of that cult is suspicious. Maybe that damn leader bastard is kidnapping the women. It could be the tomb as well. Juhian chuckled. He had not paid any attention to this missing women incident because he wasn't interested. But Juhian knew the culprit behind this incident. That's definitely the harem artifact's doing. It was obvious even if he didn't know the details. That cult leader used the harem artifact to kidnap women. He just ignored it because he wasn't interested right now. Even if I get it, it's just an artifact I'd sell at a high price to a pervert. Juhian explained and then men were extremely envious. Wow, a harem artifact. There's only a sausage fest here. Yu Jeha flinched at that comment and raised his hand as if he wanted to ask a question. Captain Nim. I am going to ask a serious question. Does our tomb raiding team have a ban on women? No. What's with the sudden question? Yu Jeha's face lit up and his eyes started to sparkly. We're at the age when we'd be longing for women. Please pick some female team members and let us have some chances at some intra-team relationship. Ju Hien started to laugh. I guess you have a ton of time on your hands if you can say such nonsense. Fine. I'll give you some more work. N, no. It's not like that. Shut up. Damn it. This wasn't what I wanted. Yu Jeha sniffled and Ju Hien turned toward Irene and smiled. What nonsense when you get to study with a beautiful lady every day. Well, Irene, she. Yu Jeha was about to say something before he stopped himself. Although this artifact file wasn't interested, anybody could tell that Irene was quite interested in Ju Hien. I'm so jealous. Ju Hien chuckled at that comment. Well, don't worry. There's at least two women I'm looking for. 
Ju Hian's tomb raiding team had two female members in the past. But those two would probably not be interested in these guys at all. But Irene immediately started to become curious about the two women Ju Hian was talking about. Actually, becoming concerned would be more accurate. Ah, uh, then that means that this sausage fest is going to continue for a while. Ju Hian just started to laugh at Yu Jeha's comment. No. I'll let you see plenty of women. E, excuse me. Yu Jeha questioned his ears at that moment. What did you just say? That. Ha. Huh. I will use them to create my fans. X, excuse me. I thought you said you weren't going to write anymore. Ju Hian smiled wickedly while they looked anxious. Why should I work hard to create fans myself? W, what? I just need to steal the fans someone else has gathered. W, what did you say? Their jaws dropped. What was he thinking? Um, are you talking about swiping those women who are gathered together in that cult? It's perfect. I'm concerned about the large tomb that appeared in that cult's territory as well. It might be one of the seven great tombs. They became anxious. Are you sure you are interested in the tomb? Ju Hian then got up regardless of what they had to say. It seemed as if he was planning on adding the title of Monarch of Harem to his list. Chapter, 94 May 7, in Kyoto's Arashima. Luggage boy Yu Jeha who had taken a day-long flight from New York to Japan was huffing. Ah, it's so hot. It's not even summer yet. However, Ju Hian who was looking around like a land speculator clicked his tongue. That's why I told you to come with me to the gym. Develop your stamina. You're so weak even though you don't look like it. Yu Jeha started to grumble. Gur, what the hell? Captain Nim, you're not holding anything. I'm in charge of baggage. But why the hell do I have to carry your stuff too? You brought it upon yourself. So who told you to make a bet like that for no reason? D, damn it. I didn't know I would loan no weight, you said a Jim. Who was the one that went there and ended up getting ruthlessly beaten? You go to a ring to get hit, not to dance. As Yu Jeha thought that there was no way to defeat Ju Hian in a battle of words charge. They heard the Japanese police shouting from a distance. Yu Jeha looked around in shock. They seemed to be charging toward the dense bamboo forest nearby. The news said that this bamboo forest was where the cult's base was located. Yu Jeha, who knew that was the case, started to ask urgently. Do you think they came to arrest the cult leader? You know, as the perpetrator for the missing women incident. Yu Jeha was mentioning the disappearances but Ju Hian started to frown for a different reason. My artifact is in danger. You stay here, I'll go take a look. Excuse me? Ah, uh, wait. That's a restricted area. But Ju Hian didn't care whether Yu Jeha was shocked or not and walked into the bamboo forest alone. The nearby area was restricted with special forces and police barricading the area, but who cares? It was fine as long as he didn't get caught. In addition that harem artifact is mine. He wouldn't let anybody else touch it. Ju Hian's gaze turned cold as he had that thought. And then Ugh. Wait, what? Ugh. Pow. Ju Hian knocked everybody in his way unconscious as he almost instantly made it deep into the forest. There were no issues as he had not seen anything special around here when he looked earlier. It was only the Japanese police and special forces who had been randomly attacked almost instantly shouting out in anger. R. Reporting in. Some weird bastard suddenly showed up and is attacking R. Shut up. Nobody can touch my harem artifact. However, the people who were lying on the ground were upset. What do you mean by artifact? We are just here after receiving a missing persons report. Well, okay then. Ju Hian beat them down anyway as they were getting in his way and continued to move. Ju Hian saw an odd sight when he made it to the shrine at the center. Japan must have asked for help as Pandora soldiers were standing there with the Japanese police. They seemed to have called the experts as this incident seemed to be related to tombs. Ju Hian quickly hid behind one of the shrine's pillars. They were grinding their teeth. We must make it inside the shrine today. 
we must go in and confirm whether the missing people are in there. Damn it, I heard a congressman's daughter was kidnapped too, what the hell is going on? How can they all disappear after going on a school trip? Their hands were shaking. All women in Kyoto, including the students who disappeared after coming here for their school trip, the residents, tourists, celebrities, film crews, seem to have been kidnapped. Well, should the culprit at least be praised for not taking elementary students? Anyway, I guess it became this big of a mess because a congressman's daughter disappeared. He expected that the religious leader here had King Weija's artifact as he was famous for his 300 palace women or the artifact of Venice's Giovanni Giacomo Casanova. Yes, it could be that famous Casanova's artifact. There were many artifacts for leading the masses, but that might be one of the few artifacts to be this effective with women. The Pandora soldiers and the armed Japanese police started to forcibly break through at that moment. Get through. Tang tang tang. However ah. Uh, ah. Uh, the numerous armed men trying to plow through fell over in pain. They had not just fallen down. They didn't look injured but all of the men were dead. The people still alive stepped back in shock. FCK. Again. They're all dead again. Motherfucker, this is why we can't get inside. Isn't this because of an artifact? No. I don't feel any aura. Ju Hien who was hiding between bamboos at a distance started to scrunch his eyes to observe them. I did not feel any aura of an artifact being used. That was why even Ju Hien was shocked right now. This meant that the person was extremely skilled. Who the hell could it be? An Asian woman appeared in front of the chaotic soldiers as if to answer his question. The woman was wearing a black rider's jacket and short hot pants, and although he couldn't see her face clearly, she had a sexy body. The soldiers were about to become bewitched by her skinny and sleek legs before snapping out of it and starting to shout. Fire. There's no need to go easy. She's the religious leader's informant. The woman started to frown as if she found them to be ridiculous. I warned you so many times not to come. Ju Hien was shocked by what he heard. Korean. She was not Japanese. That was why Ju Hien became shocked after focusing his gaze on her face once more. Lee Siole. It was only natural that he was shocked. She had been one of his subordinates like Yu Jeha, one of the members of his tomb raiding team. She was also an extremely beautiful girl. As for her personality well, it wasn't like there were any gentle people on his tomb raiding team. This punk, I've been wondering what she was up to during this time. Similar to how it had been with Julian, Ju Hien was happy to see her even though that feeling was not visible on his face at all. Ju Hien and Lee Siole had been quite close in the past. But for her to be working under a cult leader, all the men screamed and fell down before they could even gasp in shock. She had not done anything. It seemed as if the soldiers had been injured and fallen by something invisible. That invisible thing appeared behind her once all the men were out. It looked like a goblin. Ju Hien thought he knew the identity of this goblin. Gil Dao. This was the name for the goblin who was subordinate to King Jinji of Silla's son, Bai Hyung who was said to control ghosts. That punk had Gildal's artifact during this time. Ju Hien now felt like he could understand why the soldiers suddenly died. To be more accurate, they had their souls stolen by that goblin. That was how soul-type artifacts worked. Her supreme ability to handle soul-type artifacts that got her the name Ultimate Necromancer was still praiseworthy. TSK, soul-type artifacts are annoying to handle. Lee Seol A was his loyal subordinate, but that was in his past life. She was an enemy right now. Furthermore, even Ju Hien could not deal with a soul-type artifact. Even monarch-grade artifact users could not deal with their soul being sucked out. All humans were equal in the face of death. That was why the conclusion was simple. Let's retreat for now. But as Ju Hien calmly tried to use an artifact to escape the aura of the large tomb surrounding this shrine is hindering your artifact usage. Unauthorized individuals are not allowed to use artifacts. TSK it seemed as if this central region he was in right now was being influenced by the tomb. He was certain that one of the seven great tombs was located here. And these great tombs were called great tombs for a reason. 
They were high-grade difficulty tombs where artifacts did not work. But how could these cult bastards use their artifacts? Had they paid tribute to the great tomb? It was at that moment. Did you think I wouldn't notice if you hid like a damn rat? Li Siole noticed Ju Hien and turned her head. Ju Hien scoffed after having his location discovered. My goodness, I taught them but my subordinates are all so reliable. She then started to call for backup. Intruder. Come here and capture the intruder. Hand the intruder over to the leader. Female believers ran out at Li Siole's calling. However, Ju Hien started to smirk and used his specialty toward these energetic women. And that was Kaya. Taking hostages. He picked one of the believers who was close to him and took her as hostage. Something like this was like taking candy from a baby for the monarch of crime. T, that bastard. The women became anxious but Ju Hien put a small dagger up by the woman's neck and addressed Li Siole. All right, here is one of your leader's precious believers. Get rid of that ridiculous artifact and step aside if you don't want to see her get hurt. Gildo's artifact was an A-grade soul-type artifact. Its natural enemy, an exorcism-type artifact was required to fight against it, but Ju Hien didn't have such an artifact on him. That was why this was his only way to get out of this unexpected situation. All right, move. Li Siole looked at Ju Hien in disbelief. This shameless thief. However, Ju Hien snorted and dragged the hostage with him as he escaped into the shrine. Gildo's artifact seemed to be a summoning type. It had a short range to materialize and harm the enemy. It could not move far away from its master. Ju Hien recalled the battle just now and scrunched his eyes. I would say the range is about 3M. He could work around that. The experienced Ju Hien leisurely dragged the hostage and hid in a room with nobody around. Boom. He then pointed the dagger at the hostage and started to speak. All right, tell me where the hidden exit is while I am asking nicely. He then seemed to have remembered something and changed his question. No, never mind. Tell me where the leader's room is located. They would become warier and it would be harder for him to come back in if he left right now. He might as well take care of business since he was in here already. The hostage who seemed to be a high schooler started to shake in fear. At the same time, the inside of the shrine was a mess. A man has infiltrated the shrine. The leader might be in danger. Hurry up and catch him. The believers who were under the harem artifact's hypnosis were worried about the leader as they asked Lee Siole a question. Boss, do you think it'll be okay? What if the believer taken hostage sells information about the leader? Lee Siole who was the only one in this cult who was not hypnotized started to smile. There are no believers here who would betray the leader. I guess that is true, ma'am. That was indeed true. The believers didn't know about the harem artifact but the leader's harem artifact was strong as it was a S-grade artifact. It cast a strong hypnosis that would not easily be broken. These believers would even kill themselves to protect the leader. The believers' loyalty was amazing even if they were being threatened with a knife. That was why Ju Hien who took a hostage would be wasting his time. What an idiot. Li Siole smiled wickedly while looking forward to what would happen. I'll make him regret walking in here with his own two feet. At the same time, Ju Hien who was asking the hostage about the leader was still pointing his dagger. However, the hostage was not easily opening her mouth. Ju Hien sighed while looking at her. I guess it's not easy because of the harem artifact's hypnosis. He had expected this but it seemed he had no choice but to do a frontal breakthrough. But at that moment something unexpected happened. Um, ah. Uh. The girl who was speaking Japanese started to speak as if she knew Ju Hien. Are you perhaps Ju Hien Nim? Ha. Huh. And then something shocking happened. The opponent's emotion is becoming intense. Thanks to that, the harem artifact's hypnosis has been broken. You have surpassed the harem artifact user. Ju Hien questioned his eyes while looking at those messages. That's crazy. The harem's hypnosis has been broken. But why did that happen all of a sudden? This was something Ju Hien could not understand at all. Ju Hien who was rarely this flustered started to become wary. What the, 
Who the hell are you? Her face was neat and clean without any makeup. Ju Hien was the type to remember even the faces of people he just walked past. But he could not recall this woman's face no matter how hard he tried. However, the woman started to smile even brighter after hearing Ju Hien's voice. It's me. It's Sasaki, you know, the girl who had Prince Shotoku's future diary. Don't you remember me? Ju Hien gasped in shock. What? Who is who? Chapter, 95 you're Sasaki. Juhian looked at Sasaki in shock. Sasaki Yuka. This seemed to be the thug middle school student he had met right after he returned to the past. She had been Japan's future diary artifact user and he had gone to Japan to personally take care of her because he was tired of her getting in his way I remember she was a fanatic for Sosuke or whatever that idol's name was. This was the idiot who could not use the future diary properly because she couldn't read kanji. But she looked completely different now. Maybe that was the reason, but Ju Hien who had great memory couldn't help but frown. Don't lie to me. There's no way I don't remember a person's face. Who are you? However, Sasaki received quite the shock at Ju Hien's serious question and started to sniffle. Sob, you're so mean. I just I just used less makeup. This truly was the before and after world of makeup. Of course, the after was Jaira makeup so her face right now looked much better. Her base was actually cute. Anyway, that was not important right now. He didn't know how she snapped out of the hypnosis, but that was beneficial for Ju Hien. He could now use No, get her to help him. Ju Hien started to smile sharply as he waved the dagger. You know how I am after dealing with me once before, right? Lead me to the leader's room while I am asking nicely. Sasaki sighed in response. She was thinking that Ju Hien was still the same. But Sasaki was still thankful to Ju Hien. Why? Because she would have suddenly died in a few years if she continued to use the future diary. She had been so shocked when she found out about it. In that aspect, Ju Hien was her savior. The government let Sasaki return to being a civilian once the future diary disappeared because they had not told her any big secrets. Sasaki soon sighed. I understand. But there's just one thing before that. Ju Hien who was checking for people outside looked at his watch. You have 30 seconds. Ah, yes sir. Um, when you destroyed the future diary in the past. Did you do it to save me by any chance? Was it because you knew that I would die if I continued to use the future diary? Ju Hien laughed at the words that were shooting so quickly out of her mouth that she could have choked. It was because what Sasaki said was so funny. What? Save her. They said people are free to misunderstand. Look at this kid speaking nonsense. Sasaki, who had been hoping that was the case, became upset. She had expected this, but still Ju Hien looked at his watch as he continued to speak. I got rid of the future diary because it was in my way and you luckily got to live thanks to that. Got it? Sasaki's shoulders slumped at Ju Hien's harsh words. Ju Hien truly was a bloodless tearless demon king like before. Then are you going to really try to shut me up for good once I tell you where the leader's room is? Shut you up. Why would I do that? Huh? Do you think I'm some kind of homicidal maniac or something? Enough. I don't need you once I know where the leader's room is. Chase after Sosuke or something, do whatever you want. Alright, 30 seconds is up. Tell me where the leader's room is now. Ju Hien had said that because he had no interest whatsoever, but Sasaki flinched. Those words sounded oddly gentle in her ears. Huh. Wait a minute. Doesn't that mean that he's going to let me go? And he's telling me to live happily wherever I go. That was why the young Sasaki's heart was beating faster even as she had these delusional thoughts. Yes, Juhi and Appa might be the demon king but he might actually be a good demon king. Did that have an influence? A message popped up for Juhi and. You have met a portion of the basic requirements to use the evangelism type artifact. Requirements, fame, zero, popularity, minus 10 unsatisfactory, base 50 requirement. A minimum of 10 people have fallen for you 410 he couldn't help but be shocked while looking at that message. 
Why did this happen all of a sudden? What had he said to cause this? Ju Hian seriously debated for a moment before deciding that there was no need to think hard about it as the person was Sasaki. Wasn't it good enough that he got another fan? But it was still weird. Why do I already have four fans? Who were the other three fans? His novel was a failure so it was probably not Yu Jeha or Oh Sun Wu. However, this traitor believer Sasaki started to tell him the information he wanted. Um, Ju Hian Nim. I know you asked to know where the leader's room is, but it is dangerous to go there. What? Why? Sasaki started to explain. Simon, the American who was using Casanova's artifact to create a harem here in Kyoto, Japan, was laughing out loud. Women truly are the best. Simon was actually a former TSOF soldier. He had left the TSOF before they were destroyed by Juhian but he was still an artifact user who had worked for Kira in the past. However, he was thinking that both Kira and the TSOF were morons. How could he not feel that way? Why should we offer the artifacts we struggled to excavate to the government? The person who had the artifact was the owner. That was why Simon who had come to Kyoto had been spending his time with a ton of women while waiting for one of the seven great tombs. I need to conquer the great tomb that is going to appear here. Simon knew that one of the seven great tombs would appear in this area. It would be weird if he didn't know. He had heard the prophecy about one of the seven great tombs appearing here from the China-Russia cooperation. I'll have the power to step on that damn Pandora as long as I have the artifact inside the tomb. Then he could earn points with the Chinese or Russian sides and be scouted by them. He was not interested in the US-European collaboration that resulted in Pandora. In fact, he preferred China and Russia that had rejected the offer to join Pandora and partnered with each other. The CR alliance will be the new star. He was planning on joining up with the former Soviet Union. And this harem plan was to help make that happen. Well, 80% of it was for ulterior motives regarding the women, but he had the necromancy artifact along with Casanova's artifact. He could use necromancy to make the souls of past warriors possess the bodies of his believers. This would allow him to create his own army to conquer the tomb. The only downside to the artifact was that the souls could only possess women's bodies, but it was fine. He gathered believers with Casanova's artifact and then they became the soldiers who would conquer the seven great tombs. I have around two zero zero believers. This should be plenty but King Ouija was said to have three zero zero palace women so I should have at least three zero zero if I'm a man. It was a completely wrong thought process, but Simon started to laugh. Oh, necromancy. Ju Hian who had heard this unexpected story from Sasaki found it entertaining. I was thinking it was weird that Lee Siole was here as the leader's subordinate. But the leader was using that type of artifact too. He seemed to be causing all sorts of mischief using souls. Sasaki nodded her head and continued to speak. That is why the two zero zero believers will not leave you alone if you try to approach the leader. The believers who have been possessed are no longer regular women. They are extremely strong. How could they not be? The souls the leader used necromancy to possess their bodies were bound to be strong soldiers from the past. There might even be some Spartans among the mix. It'll depend on the grade of the necromancy artifact but it was probably S grade at max. Necromancy was the act of calling forth a human soul. There was no way it could be a divine-grade artifact. Anyway, if the enemy's artifact was S-grade and he summoned the souls of some Sorabis, Juhian had no chance of success. One he would probably be killed before he could even get to the leader. Although he had more training than the regular civilian, there was no way he could compare to the heroes of the past. No, even if they were terrible fighters, I can't handle two zero zero of them. It would be hard even if it was two zero zero regular women. Ju Hian had messed with soldiers and escaped from them in the past, but how could he take on two zero zero people on his own? Yeah, I wouldn't be human if I could take them all out alone. Ju Hian calmly assessed the situation before coolly accepting the facts. But there was still a way. The only way to handle soul-type artifacts was with their natural enemy, exorcism-type artifacts, or with other soul-type artifacts. But he had no thoughts about finding an exorcism-type artifact right now. 
why should he when he already had a strong soul type artifact? I just need to use souls as well if that's what my opponent is using. E, excuse me. Sasaki's eyes opened wide. But Juhian didn't care and looked outside. There's someone I need to call before that. Juhian started to smile. Even if the leader had a necromancy artifact, he was still just human. Excuse me. You want Anubis's artifact? That god of death's artifact? Yu Jeha became shocked after hearing Juhian's request. His ass had been on fire waiting for Juhian outside the bamboo forest. He was so shocked when Juhian suddenly came out of a small dog hole in the forest. And then, without saying anything else, he wanted what? You seem to be okay, are you sure you're not injured, Captain Nim? I'm good. So hand it over. Yu Jeha sighed and opened his inventory, no, his postcard shaped Van Gogh's painting. It only took a moment to take out Anubis's artifact. Here you go. By the way, who is this? Yu Jeha chuckled while looking at Sasaki who was next to Juhian. Juhian had not been the only one to come out of the dog hole. Sasaki, who had guided him to this dog hole, was with him. But the way she was looking at Juhian with a look of bliss she seems like someone who would have been hypnotized by the harem artifact so, why is she looking at the captain in like that? Who the heck is this girl? Who is she? Ah. Someone I tried to kill in the past. Excuse me. Sasaki urgently shouted as Yujeha blankly stood there. There are people coming. She was right as there were believers with Lee Siole at the center running toward Juhian. Over there. We found him. Release the hostage. Sasaki who saw them quickly pulled the two men. This way. Sasaki showed her experience of having been a believer as she used complicated paths to get away from the people. She climbed over the fence of the shrine and entered a narrow path before guiding the two of them to somewhere without people. The place they arrived at was a small abandoned hut in the bamboo forest. Sasaki, who was looking around started, to speak. They shouldn't be able to get here for a while. Good job. I guess you are useful. Are, really? Was I useful? Sort of. The rope artifact that was in the shape of a bracelet seemed to flinch at Juhian praising someone, but Juhian didn't pay any attention. He then smiled after receiving Anubis's artifact from Ujeha. It looked like a cross, but it was an ank as the top was round. This was one of the trio of Egyptian thug artifacts Juhian had checkmated when he got wrapped up in the Great Tomb appearance along with Chairman Quan Taejun. However, Ujeha who handed it to him seemed extremely anxious. There was a simple reason for it. Captain Nim, you told me not to even restore it because it was difficult to do. I haven't touched it at all. It's in shambles and extremely close to being destroyed. That was the truth. Juhian had given Yujeha an order. He said that it was fine to restore all artifacts but to never restore the Egyptian trio. That was why Yujeha was thinking that Juhian would just keep the Egyptian artifacts shoved in the corner of the storage. But he wanted it now. Should I restore it now if you're going to use it? I can at least fix it up a bit. No. There's no need to do that. It'll actually be more of a headache if you restore it. Excuse me. Juhian started to laugh. Of course it'll be a headache. This bastard is one of the heinous artifacts that caused the great tomb appearance. It was staying calm right now because it was on the brink of destruction, but he had no idea how these rabid dogs would run wild if he restored them. These fools had already caused the great tomb appearance and tried to get rid of humans because they didn't want humans to touch them. He had used a plan to deal with them back then but this bastard is an artifact even the four emperors would have trouble handling. He had dealt with Anubis in the past, but it would not submit easily. Even among the divine grades, they had their hierarchy. The more famous gods were stronger than the nameless gods. An artifact's recognition was a type of buff. The more people remembered the identity of the artifact, the more buffs it received. But it is still just an item. Juhian started to smile as he channeled his dominance. The ink shined brightly before a dying black jackal appeared. Anubis that seemed to be part of the canine family was the size of a large dog or a wolf. 
And as Ju Hian expected, Anubis's artifact started to growl as soon as it saw Ju Hian. You motherfucking human. How dare you do this to me? It looked ready to rip Ju Hian's neck off right now, but it could not do it as it had no strength. But it couldn't just sit there and do nothing. The noble predator used the last of its strength to charge toward Ju Hian. I'll kill you this time. Human. However ugh. It was ruthlessly kicked by Ju Hian. Ju Hian stepped on the weakened Anubis and smiled as if he found it ridiculous. You must be real brave to dare to attack your master. W, what did you say? Damn dogs that don't listen need to be trained first. Ju Hian then called forth the rope artifact and tightly pulled on it. And then. The rope wrapped around Anubis's neck as if it read Ju Hian's intentions. It even looked like a dog with a collar on. Anubis that had instantly turned into a dog started to shake in shame. You, human bastard. And you, you low-grade artifact. Let go of me. How dare you put your hand on me. Anubis tried to get out of the rope but the rope became excited and started to choke Anubis's neck some more. He said let's train. He said let's train. It didn't seem to be able to even handle a low-grade artifact because it was so weak right now. Anubis foamed at the mouth before it screamed. Human. What the hell are you trying to make me do? Who knows? First. Juhian smiled wickedly and reached his hand out as if he was training a puppy. Hand. Chapter, 96. Hand. Anubis's mind became chaotic as it watched the human smiling calmly and holding out his hand. What? Hand. Did this human really just ask him to give him its hand? How dare he treat a divine grade artifact like a damn dog? However, Ju Hian started to smile. Ju Hian liked Egyptian mythologies and even liked Anubis as a god, but the thing in front of him was just a damn tool that wanted to harm humans. A proper education is the answer for idiots who don't know their place. Even if this shit was a divine grade artifact, it was still a jackal, which was part of the canine family, making it a little doggy. Its body and face was like a vicious wolf, but this was a doggy. That was why he shouted again. Hand. After continuously being treated like a dog, Anubis's golden eyes flashed. You dare to act up without knowing your place. As Anubis viciously glared and tried to charge in again. Uff. It ended up foaming at the mouth again after being choked by the rope. Juhian chuckled as he watched. Looks like you're the one who doesn't know his place. You bastard ugh. The rope was showing no mercy to Anubis who was trying to hurt its master. He said hand. Hand. The rope who became a living dog leash was doing its best to annoy Anubis. Whether it forgot that it was going up against a divine grade artifact or if it was overflowing with courage was up for debate. However, the results were quite effective. Ek, ek. It might be a different story if it was at full power, but Anubis really felt like it was going to die right now. It also could not understand the rope at all. How did this make any sense? Hey you, rope. Ugh. Shouldn't an artifact take its fellow artifact's side? So, why? However, the rope got angry as if it didn't care. Hurry up and hand. Hand. Anubis was giving off a venomous aura as if it won't leave this rope alone if it got its powers back, but for now, it was just a doggy being choked. This bastard. In the end, Anubis gave up. Damn it. Even he did not want to suffocate, no, receive more damage and end up destroyed. Anubis was huffing as it put its paw on Juhian's hand. Of course, it was not submitting without resistance. I'm just playing along for a moment. As Anubis put its paw on Juhian's hand with disgust, Juhian chuckled as if he had been waiting for this. Good. Other hand. Anubis was grinding its teeth but still put the other paw up as well. Good, sit. Anubis plopped down as if it was annoyed. However, Juhian started to frown. Who told you to lay down? Sit down properly. Anubis wanted to swear up a storm but did as it was ordered for now. Anubis was feeling extreme indignity but thought that things were going according to plan. Good. 
Now that I did as he said, I need to find a chance to kill this human. However, Anubis was too innocent. Good. Looks like you're smart enough to go through the other training properly. A branch flew in the air as soon as Juhian said that. And then fetch. Anubis started to shake after hearing his shout. Hey human. Watch it. However, the rope was not going to just sit still. He said fetch. He said fetch. The excited rope started to fly in the direction of the branch. Anubis who was being dragged by this leash felt as if it was going to die. This bastard. The rope's eyes. Sparkled as it fetched the branch and returned it to Juhian. Master, I brought it. I brought it. Of course, Juhian who took the branch clicked his tongue. Hey, who told you to fetch? The rope realized it made a mistake but Juhian just brushed it aside and threw it again. And as the rope was about to run off again out of instinct. Damn it, I'm going to die like this. Anubis kicked off the ground as it expected to be dragged again. It ran out at the speed of light. Finally, the large black dog that had muscular legs jumped up and caught the branch in the air. Ujeha and Sasaki were amazed by its nimble movements. Wow! Nice catch! Large dogs really did look cool catching things in the air. Of course, Anubis who landed on the ground with the branch in its mouth was huffing and grumbling. Damn it, that motherfucking human. However, it had no choice if it wanted to survive. Its pride as an artifact was being cut down following Juhian's orders, but it was still okay. It hasn't been cut enough for me to be dominated by a human yet. Honestly speaking, artifacts like Anubis that had strong wills required their pride to be cut down in order to be dominated. That seemed to be why Juhian had chosen to do this dog training, but Anubis viciously bared its fangs. Bring it on. I will not submit. Anubis was one of the artifacts with the strongest will power, its loyalty toward its master RA was high, and it could maintain its calm to make calculated judgments. It was not an artifact that would easily be defeated by a human. It would keep its pride no matter what he made it to do. However, Anubis suddenly saw the world flip over. Juhian had pushed Anubis over with his foot. Juhian smiled wickedly as if he wanted to see how long Anubis could last. All right then, show me your belly and act cute. Anubis looked at Juhian as if it was shocked. Sit. Hand, fetch. Those were bearable. But what? He wanted to see it show its belly and act cute. An animal showing its belly was showing complete submission. Furthermore, acting cute in such a position was an extremely shameful act. But that was what he wanted to see. But Juhian just chuckled. Hurry up. Don't you want to be restored? I'll restore you all you want if you do this. Anubis was tearing up but laid down after hearing that. How did I end up showing my belly to a human and acting cute? It felt as if its pride as a divine grade artifact was crumbling, but it had no choice. It needed to survive in order to rescue Osiris and Set who ended up in similar positions and recover Ra's power from that thief, the mother of King Crow, as well. I can't give up on life like this. A message popped up in front of Juhian at the same time. The ferocious Anubis's pride has been cut by more than 50%. You can now contract with it. You have already satisfied the requirements to use it. You will be able to use the artifact right away after the contract is completed. Requirement, strong conviction, cold judgment, near-death experience Juhian then laughed as if he had been waiting for this. A tattoo of light appeared on Anubis's body along with the laughter. That tattoo moved on to Juhian's arm and Tumblev spelling out Juhian's name appeared on Anubis' body as well. He had successfully contracted Anubis. However, Anubis, who had chosen to submit to Juhian in order to survive, glared at Juhian. All right, human. I did everything you wanted me to do. Now restore me. Did you not call me out so you can use me? Juhian called you Jeha over as that was indeed the reason. Restore it. Ah, yes sir. Anubis's body started to shake in joy. I can finally be restored. It was worth dealing with the shame and indignity. However, Juhian would not let this artifact bastard cry tears of joy without doing anything. 
Ah, uh, right. Don't fully restore it and only restore it to the point it won't die. Ha. Huh. Ju Hian chuckled. What's with that expression? What is it? Did you think I would restore your powers to full strength? W, what? Hey doggy. You are my slave from now on. I am going to make you work and restore you each time only enough so that you won't die. So, I suggest you be good and listen to my orders. Anubis started to cry. It felt as if it had been scammed for some reason. That is the leader's room. Sasaki, who had been guiding them while avoiding other people, pointed to a building. This shrine building seemed as large as a gymnasium, and this seemed to be the leader's area. The leader usually does not come out of there. They just had to barge in if he didn't come out. But the moment Yu Jeha tried to take a step. I knew you would come here. Li Siole and the believers suddenly appeared as if they knew Ju Hian would come here. They were in front of them, to their sides, and even behind them. There seemed to be at least a couple hundred of them. Li Siole, who was thoroughly guarding the entrance, called Gildal out to threaten Ju Hian. Looks like you've gathered some more people but I will not let you go if you take even one step forward. Yu Jeha, who saw Li Siole for the first time, dropped his jaw as he shouted in admiration. Jackpot, she's a total babe. Maybe she was his type. However, Ju Hian scoffed at him. It was touching to see the members of his old tomb raiding team meeting each again, but don't fall for her. She'll take your soul. What? Li Siole started to frown while looking at Sasaki. She could not understand how Sasaki got out of the leader's hypnosis. It shouldn't be easy to get out of Casanova's artifact's hypnosis. Had this man broken it? Li Siole's mind became chaotic while looking at Ju Hian. She was working together with the leader because it was beneficial to both sides, but she was one of the people who would be placed in a complicated situation if the leader's hypnosis was broken. Ju Hian tried to threaten the women at that moment. Step aside if you don't want to get hurt. I have and I do have business with all of you, but step aside for now. He would normally have no business with them, but it was different now. On the other hand, Li Siole who was thinking things over bit down on her lips. The important thing was to take care of these bastards before they could get to the leader. Protecting the leader is my way to survive. But at that moment why is it so loud? The door to the leader's area that they didn't expect to open suddenly slammed open. The man who usually never came out walked out. Yes, it was the leader. Li Siole was shocked that he chose to reveal himself. However, Simon laughed with scorn while looking at Li Siole who allowed the intruders to get here. You let them get all the way here. You're so useless. No, this. Shut up. I'll let the Chinese government know that you are useless. I'm sure they'll kick you right now. Li Siole glared at the leader but Simon just scoffed and looked toward Ju Hian. Are you the one who came into my holy harem with dirty feet? He sneered at Ju Hian while looking at him up and down. He was just thinking this was another useless guy. Maybe he felt that he was a superior man compared to this punk. I apologize for greeting you with such useless fools. I'll take care of you myself. He then activated Casanova's artifact. The two zero zero believers who had been spread out all started to gather together. Their numbers were so large that just looking at them made a person feel pressure. But there was more. All right. Possess their bodies. Come, two zero zero soldiers. He used the necromancy artifact to have the souls of past soldiers possess the bodies of the believers. The believers' bodies flashed before the weak believers turned into strong warriors. Their bodies had not changed but their gazes were different. This was clearly because of the possession. Simon started to laugh. Here are two zero zero famous soldiers of the past. You guys are just ants in front of my army. He snickered while telling them to take it as an honor. I will give you special treatment and let you die in a woman's arms, you damn punk. However two zero zero possessed soldiers. Juhian scoffed as if that was nothing. Then we have two zero zero immortal soldiers. The ground split open as soon as he said that. Simon and the believers were shocked. An earthquake? No, 
It was not an earthquake. Boom. The ground was shaking so loudly as if the world was coming to an end. Magma was flowing through the cracked ground as mummies started to crawl up. These were the strong Egyptian warriors who had protected the pharaoh. These valiant warriors who were called out of the afterlife gave off overbearing auras. But they weren't the only things to appear. Skeleton warriors and ghost warriors that seemed to be summoned from the depths of hell were showing off their auras as well. Based on their armors, there seemed to be Romans, Spartans, Europeans, Chinese soldiers from all different eras. There were also some generals on horses along with the soldiers. He had used Anubis to open the gate of the dead, not just the Egyptians but for all different cultures. Simon started to shake in fear while looking at their overbearing appearances. This was not at the level of his necromancy. This was not something humans could do. Ju Hien, who summoned the dead as if he was telling these human-type possessions to get lost, started to laugh. Listen carefully. You need to at least bring out something like this if you want to run your mouth. Got it? Chapter, 97 It was hard to believe even while looking at it with his own eyes. Simon blanked out after seeing the dead that his necromancy could not compare to being summoned while Ujeha and Sasaki plopped down on the ground in shock. W, what is this? He expected that Juhian would use Anubis, but what the hell? He's at a different level. This was not a dream no matter how many times he looked. The mummies that crawled out from the ground had Egyptian helmets, necklaces, bracelets, and other accessories while the blue swords and maces looked as if they could ruthlessly destroy these possessed believers. Not only that wow, what the hell, Genghis Khan's cavalry's here too. Then are the cavalry from Goguryeo here. Ujeha could tell them all apart because he had studied different cultures and their clothing for art. That was why he could tell the identities of the ghost soldiers quickly, but he probably would have been able to tell even without that information because most of them were extremely famous ones. The overwhelming number of dead soldiers that could easily stomp on the two, zero zero possessed soldiers threatened Simon. F, FCK, this crazy bastard. That was why Simon subconsciously fell to the ground. Even without the numbers advantage, these soldiers were all people who made significant marks, whether good or bad, on history. It'd be weird if he didn't get scared. Ju Hien who had summoned the soldiers smiled wickedly. A man should make people fall for him with his actions rather than his words. In fact, everybody here was mesmerized by Ju Hien right now. Simon who became anxious started to shout to his believers. What the hell are you doing? Get rid of them, take care of them now. Li Seo Lei who had blankly been staring scoffed. This crazy bastard seemed to have lost his mind. Who is going to take care of whom with just two, zero, zero people? Even if they were possessed, these believers were all still human. Does he really think they could take down those zombie soldiers? She must have been right as the possessed believers did not dare to move because of the enemy's overbearing aura. There were some interesting situations as well. General Nim one of the spirits possessing a believer seemed to have been a subordinate of one of the generals Juhian called forth as the believer knelt down and shouted like this. I dare not go against you, General Nim. Please kill me. Simon was flabbergasted. Are you crazy? Hurry up and follow orders. However the number of kneeling believers started to increase. Juhian leisurely motioned with his hand and the Egyptian mummy soldiers attacked Simon. The mummy soldiers seemed to turn into ashes and disappear before instantly appearing in front of Simon and pointing a sword at his neck. Clang! The mummy's heinous appearance looked so scary even the toughest of men would pee a bit in fear. However, Juhian was not even flinching while standing among the two, zero zero corpses as he calmly started to seduce. The women. I will make you all happy. Get rid of your shitty master. He's the type to ditch you and run away first when things get though. I, is that bastard crazy? Simon could not hold it in and shouted to his believers. What the hell are you doing? It's your job to protect your master. Although the believers usually would have responded to him, they did not move. Simon became confused. Hey! Why aren't you moving? Get to work. You damn slaves! Get rid of them! 
However, Simon gasped in shock while looking at his believers who were slowly starting to peek at Juhian. And, no way, right? Had he lost them to this bastard? Juhian who confirmed this was the case started to speak as if Simon was ridiculous. You should know the difference in class between you and me. What? Juhian pulled a sword out with a loathing expression as he walked over to Simon. And you are not qualified to even say the word, slave. You make your subordinates attack even when you know the difference in quality. You don't get it. Being a master means that you take responsibility for your slave's safety and quality of life in exchange for taking away their autonomy and freedom. You are the worst kind of trash, using your subordinates as shields. Yu Jaiha chuckled at that statement. Now that he thought about it, his slave contract had mentioned something similar as well. It said that he would have to work his ass off but that Juhian would guarantee his safety through all kinds of danger. A message popped up in front of Juhian. The hypnotized people are starting to become interested in you. What? Slaves are just slaves. Such thoughts. Hey. You guys. I'll buy you everything you like. Clothes, bags, you just name it. Just hurry up and take care of this bastard. You stupid idiot. The opponent's charm is starting to fail. The harem's focus has changed. Two zero zero believers are now in your hands. You have completed the Avesta sacred text's requirements for usage by taking away the leader's popularity and believers. Juhian saw the messages and started to laugh out loud as Simon was self-destructing and the believers turned around from Juhian. This situation was to be expected. Casanova's artifact really was a harem artifact. It would allow anybody to easily create a harem. However, it had a critical weakness in return for allowing the user to easily hypnotize people. If there was a more charming person next to the user, the focus of the harem would change. I was planning on using a different method if I needed to do so, but I guess I don't need to do that. And because of that Ju Hian who had gained two zero zero women nonchalantly said the following. Ah, uh, I really, really want the artifacts on him. The possessed women's eyes turned scary as they charged at Simon and started to rummage through his pockets. They were both consumable artifacts so it wouldn't be hard to take them away. Hand it over. Hand over your artifacts. You're not going to hand it over. That esteemed sir said to hand it over. Simon tried to remove the necromancy but he could only scream as he was pushed down by the strong women. You, ugh. His expensive clothes were ruthlessly ripped, he was punched, kicked, and ended up a giant mess. Where did you hide it? I'm going to take it. Move. Simon almost instantly lost both the harem artifact and the necromancy artifact. Everything had happened in the blink of an eye. This was driving Simon crazy. What the hell are you doing? What were they doing? They're just moving from a junk car to a Mercedes. The harem was destroyed. Simon who had been using the women as his weapons had lost his trusted weapons. There was only one result for Simon who was now empty-handed. All right then, my first order. Juhian waved Casanova's artifact while smiling. Stomp on that bastard. Ah. Save me. Splash. Simon was ruthlessly bound and thrown into the ocean by the two zero zero women. Save me. Save me. However, the women who had been in his harem turned around without even looking at Simon. And then later, inside one of Kyoto's fanciest hotels W, who is that person? Is he a celebrity? I guess he must be famous. Yu Jaiha, who was eating with Ju Hian, was laughing. It was fine that they threw Simon into the ocean. It was also good that they picked the best looking hotel nearby, but Ju Hian Nayim. Please show us your face. Where are you going without US? We got rooms here too. This is crazy, 200 zero zero women. The hotel lobby in the area around the restaurant were full of the 200 zero zero women who were here to see Ju Hian. It was funny because people who didn't know what was happening would think that they were fans who were here to greet a celebrity. There are high school students, college students, tourists, married women there's a whole array of them. The women were going, Juhi and Nim, Juhi and Nim. Their eyes were sparkling with desire as well. Furthermore, 
Ju Hian who was wearing stylish sunglasses was tall and handsome. He would do well to dress better but it made sense why people might think these were fans here to see a celebrity. And I'm the manager. Damn it. Yu Jiehua's hands were shaking while holding the desserts he was talking to Ju Hian. Damn it. I'm so jealous. I can't live any longer because I'm so jealous. Captain Nim. Please let me use the harem artifact too. Yu Jiehua sniffled thinking that things were unfair. Ju Hian just snorted and told him to hand over the dessert. Yu Jiehua put the plate down and started to pout. What are you going to do with those people now? You're putting the hotel employee in an awkward situation. We can't take them all home with us. Ju Hian obviously knew that was the case as well. Furthermore, he had already achieved his goal, so Ju Hian waved at the women waiting for him outside as if he wanted nothing to do with them. All right, you guys can go away now. I don't need to see you all anymore. The women screamed in response. They seemed to want to stay with Ju Hian. However, Ju Hian had no plans on keeping these women with him. I mean, a harem is great. But there was no way he could realistically have two zero zero people with him. Especially since the entire world was loudly talking about this kidnapping incident right now. That is why all of you should go back home and live your lives. Gather back when I call for you. I have nothing else I need from you guys. The women seemed disappointed to hear that, but they started to disperse. The clueless people watching thought that they were very reasonable fans. They watched what was happening with their jaws dropped. Yu Jiehua soon asked as if he was okay. What a pity to disband them. The harem artifact is a short distance artifact. The effects would disappear once they move away. But Ju Hian just shook the Avesta sacred text artifact. It doesn't matter. I have this. Ju Hian who had completed a contract with the sacred text at some point was satisfied. I filled up all two zero zero believers at once. He had successfully contracted the Avesta after meeting the requirements. That meant that his artifacts should rank up as well. There were some that had actually risen in rank already as if he was being given a reward. Three artifacts have moved from D grade to C grade. The Smelly Brothers Sweet Potato D grade has become the Sweet Potato Bomb C grade. He didn't know how useful it would be for this Sweet Potato to rank up, but this was an amazing sign. And most importantly Shakespeare's Pen A grade has ranked up to Teenage Shakespeare's Pen S grade. He didn't know why it had to be Shakespeare's pen of all things, but anyway, there was one that had risen to a high rank. This can be useful in the seven great tombs. He didn't know whether it was because he had a low number of believers or because their belief was weak but he couldn't do anything about the fact that none of them had become divine grade artifacts. Now I just need to get the believers to be crazy about me. I also need to increase the number of believers. Then he could turn any artifact into a divine grade artifact. Level up. Level up. And with these numbers, he could even use an artifact like the Valkyrie artifact that would allow him to create a strong army of women. Just thinking about that made Ju Hian smile wickedly. Yu Jiehua gasped after seeing that smile. I'm sorry to disturb you while you are enjoying yourself, sir, but even if you keep them together with the sacred text, the believers will leave if you don't continue to provide them with faith. Can someone as busy as you do something like that? Captain Nim. More importantly, how could this greatest thief under heaven give any kind of faith to people? But Ju Hian seemed relaxed. It's fine since I'm not going to do it myself. Excuse me. Sasaki said she'll try to do that. She said something about handling my image making and evangelism. Anyway, I said give it a go since she said she'll help deify me. Whether it was celebrities or politicians, the person who won the image battle was always at an advantage. Even in the past, there were plenty of people who used all sorts of means to get out of trouble. Ju Hian also planned on not caring about the methods or means. You never know. This might end up being a wild card in the future. I plan on leaving it alone and see what happens. Sasaki used to be the president of an idol's fan club and an obsessed fan, so she should be talented in evangelism. Or at least gathering fans. But you Jeha just sighed. It just looks like you are enjoying the harem ug. 
but it was funny since he never expected the girl from the future diary issue to end up being useful like this. Either way, it was fine as long as the results were good and he could use the Avesta properly. It was perfect to go up against the other Monarch grade users who would fight with their connections. If all ends failed, he'll just go into an Olympic stadium and use the harem artifact or something. But at that moment the rope that was in the shape of a bracelet on Juhian's wrist seemed to be expecting something. There was a simple reason for it. The rope artifact's risk is approaching. You suddenly have a desire to praise. Juhian flinched as the rope artifact's risk struck for the first time. If the rope had eyes, it would be sparkling brightly in anticipation. Praise, he's going to praise me. However hello sir, this is a gift we give to our VIP guests for staying with us. They must have thought Ju Hien was a celebrity as a hotel employee brought over a fancy plate of food. It looked extremely beautiful with expensive caviar and other things on it. Ju Hien was wowed and started to speak. Oh wow, this is extremely beautiful. Such color and decoration, I can clearly see the chef's great sense. It is also very delicious. I've never tasted something like this before. This hotel truly is in a class of its own to have such an amazing chef. Please let the chef know we'll enjoy this very much. Yu Jaeha almost spit up the dessert he was eating at this amazing praise that would usually never come from Ju Hien while the employee was filled with joy. And you have satisfied the risk. The risk was satisfied while the rope who saw this was in shock. The rope realized that it did subconsciously put a risk on Ju Hien so that he had to praise. However, it never stated who or what Ju Hien had to praise. The rope who realized this shocking and disappointing truth started to cry. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Once the employee bowed almost 90 degrees and disappeared, Yu Jaeha looked toward Ju Hien wondering if he was sick. See, Captain Nim. Um. Shut up. I'm not crazy. It's a risk. It was at that moment. Ju Hien who was eating the caviar with a stoic expression as if he had never said any compliments looked to the side and started to smile. Why don't you hurry up and get out here? How long are you going to peek at me while hiding? Ju Hien ruthlessly dragged someone out as soon as he said that. There was a familiar person there. Chapter, 98. There was a familiar person there. What the? She is. Yu Jaeha was the first to respond. The person Ju Hien had dragged out was Li Siole. Holy crap, what the hell? People were shocked but Ju Hien who had thrown her onto a table was laughing. I was wondering why this punk wasn't showing up. However, the woman who was thrown by Ju Hien was squirming like a worm and dying in pain. Her back had landed on some sauce containers. You, ugh, you really. He seemed to have thrown her on top of them on purpose. However, Yu Jaeha was shocked. Where the hell did she come from? Does she have an invisibility artifact or something? Good job. You know about the goblin's hook, right? The black rabbit ear's headband sliding off Lee Cola's head must be that hood. Yu Jaeha was extremely envious after seeing that. Wow, jackpot. It'd be perfect for peeping. Can I take it away? What the hell are you trying to peep on? Are you really asking because you don't know, sir? Yu Jaeha was being serious. It was at that moment. W, what happened sir? Are you okay? The commotion had been quite loud that the shocked employee and chefs ran over. Just what happened here? Ju Hien calmly took off his sunglasses and started to smile. Ah, it's nothing much so please leave it alone. I just have a stalker fan obsessed with me. The people around them started to whisper while Lee Siole who had instantly turned into an obsessed stalker fan was shaking in anger. This damn bastard, how dare he turn me into a stalker fan. Lee Siole soon opened her eyes wide and tried to stab Ju Hien while he wasn't paying attention. However ugh. Forget stabbing him, she ended up screaming and falling down. She had thought that Ju Hien had a lot of openings but he had easily twisted her arm and slammed her down under him. MMPH. You'll be in serious pain if you don't behave. But for some reason, Li Siole urgently shouted while being suppressed by Ju Hien. F, fine, hurry up and get off me. 
Her face was extremely red as she grumbled. It was to be expected. Ju Hien was pressing down on her lower body of all places, making her feel very weird and embarrassed. But that wasn't the only reason. As a national special agent, she was confident that she could take down a strong young man. How could she be suppressed so easily? But Ju Hien just looked at the embarrassed girl and slyly smiled. I'm going to make this punk my subordinate again. It was a waste to give this punk to someone else. Lee Siole was one of the team members who would be on Ju Hien's side until the end even if the entire world turned on him. She was a talented fighter and was a loyal secretary and advisor. However, Ju Hien sounded cold on the outside even though he was happy to see her on the inside. Did you come all this way to get revenge for the leader? Li Siole started to grind her teeth. I told this jackass to get off me. Who would get revenge for such a bastard? Enough, just get off me first. A flustered Li Siole was huffing underneath him, but Ju Hien who was roughly pushing her down didn't even pretend to listen. I thought they had some special relationship because she was working for him. That did not seem to be the case. She seemed to have chased him because he took the leader's artifact. That must be the case as Gildal. Li Siole called out the goblin under her command. The red goblin that appeared in the air viciously aimed for Ju Hien's neck. To be more specific, it was aiming for the small necklace around Ju Hien's neck. This necklace was Anubis's ankh. But at that moment flash. Ju Hien's necklace reacted to Gildal's hand and suddenly flashed. Gildal then disappeared while screaming, making Li Siolas' triumphant expression look stupid. Li Siolas' jaw dropped while looking at Gildal disappear like that. However, Ju Hien just lightly scoffed as if he had expected this. I like that you have guts but what were you trying to steal with that A-grade artifact? She was starting to get anxious. No. It's not that artifact. Gildal had not disappeared because of Anubis's ankh. The other necklace Ju Hien was wearing along with Anubis's ankh was the reason. Ju Hien was acting calm but he found this situation to be odd as well. Something is weird. Why did this thing react? The artifact that reacted was the necklace Ju Hien had stolen from the Masus on the Holton Plain. This is the one that Rockefeller's secretary had on her. Even Ju Hien didn't know what it was and it was almost destroyed, but he had swiped it because it kept catching his attention. He decided it was an useless degrade trash after investigating it, but he had kept it because he didn't want to throw it away for some reason. But this artifact just took care of an A-grade soul-type artifact that is hard to handle. I guess this isn't just trash after all. Ju Hien who had that thought started to smile while looking at Li Siole. I'll take Li Siole with me and look into it later. He took out the harem cologne. This should make it so that he could even take a trained martial artist like Li Siole with him. How do I use this thing? Honestly speaking, Ju Hien didn't know how to use it as he had never used it before. But a message suddenly popped up as if the crow was responding to his question. You just need to channel a lot of your dominance and spray it on the person. Ju Hien chuckled and immediately sprayed the cologne. I guess this punk is useful at times like this. Ch. Even the tough Lee Colas mind was getting tipsy as if she was drunk on an odd pheromone. Yu Ba. The harem artifact that she was experiencing for the first time as she was working together with the religious leader was extremely strong. It must have been very strong as Lee Cola tightly hugged Ju Hien and rubbed her face on his chest. Ju Hien who saw this smiled mischievously as if it worked. Good. Now I just need to take her to my room and figure out who she is work, P, please accept my love. Something weird had happened. Am I think I've fallen for how strong you were to not even submit to a stalker. Esteemed guest, my heart thumped when you gave me such glorious compliments. The male hotel employees and chefs were sticking to Ju Hien. Some of their hands were moving to some shocking places. Ju Hien couldn't help but look at the harem cologne bottle and gasp in shock. That's crazy. Wasn't this limited to the opposite gender? Ahahaha. Ah. I'm laughing so hard I'm going to die. Yu Jaiha was rolling on the floor while clutching his stomach. He couldn't help it because of the awkward situation happening outside right now. Please show us your face. 
I've given all of my purity to you. Juhi and Nim. I'll follow you to the ends of the earth, sir. Huni. Ujeha thought he would laugh to his death. Ujeha had returned to his senses quickly as he was a monarch grade candidate, but the problem was with the hotel employees who had almost zero dominance. Huh, you're super popular, Captain Nim. I'm so jealous. I'm going to stick them on you if you don't shut the hell up right now. I've committed a grave sin, sir. I ran my mouth without knowing my place, sir. Ujeha lowered his head begging for forgiveness. It was an extremely funny situation, but he realized his current situation after seeing Juhian's murderous aura that looked ready to kill him at any moment. Slave number one knew that it was best to shut up and sit still in this situation. Juhian couldn't help but grind his teeth right now. This motherfucking crow. The message he got seemed to have been the crow pulling a prank on him and teaching him an improper way of using it. That was why these random men in addition to Lee Cola got caught up in the artifact's abilities. It was a completely different result than what he knew of the artifact. Casanova's artifact was restricted to the opposite gender based on my memories. That was why he was certain it was that stalker crow's doing. Maybe it was jealous that Juhian was going to use the harem artifact or maybe it wanted to see the always calm Juhian flustered, but there was no way of knowing which it was. That was why Juhian sternly gave an order to Li Siole. Tell me how to use this artifact properly. You should know since you saw the leader using it. But Li Siole wasn't the type to tell him what he wanted to know. Then you're just going to use it on me again. Are you crazy? Thankfully she had just fallen asleep because it was not used properly, but Li Siole was grinding her teeth. I hugged this damn thug-like bastard. She was just lucky that her dominance was high and she snapped out of it quickly as Ujeha had done. It won't work even if you tried to use that and make me talk. I'll just fall asleep. Juhian snorted and walked toward her. How innocent. Who knows what will happen while you are sleeping. What? Li Siole became nervous and flinched as Juhian quickly walked toward her. H, hold on MMPH. However, Juhian just tightly grabbed her small face instead of doing anything weird. Tell me who you are working for. I know both you and the leader have an organization behind you. It was because the fact that they were there meant that they knew there would be a tomb appearance there. I need to get rid of the annoying hyenas. That was why he needed to know who was behind her. It didn't seem to be Pandora, but the fact that they knew about the seven great tombs meant that they were strong enemies. He needed to at least grab their tail. Li Siole who had been resisting Juhian's question snorted back. There's no way I'd answer that question. I've already sent your information up the chain. They'll look into and probably send down an assassination order. Yu Jeha toyed with her from the side. Does she have balls of steel or something to warn us about an assassination? But the woman who had shared false information on purpose was arrogant. Idiots. I said they'll look into it but the Chinese assassins are already in this hotel. That was why she just needed to use the opening when they were attacked to swipe Anubis's artifact. Alright, hurry up and get here. Boom. Everybody became shocked after hearing something big fall down. Huh. What is this NOI? Shu. Juhian ordered him to stop talking. A small groan started to come out of the empty room. That groan slowly became louder. Over there. This made Li Siole and Ujeha anxious for different reasons while Juhian slammed open the door to the room with the noise. Then they could clearly hear the screams now that it wasn't muffled by the door. Ache. Something funny was happening inside. Ah, that hurts, that hurts so let me go. The person was speaking in Chinese. A bellboy was about to die after being bitten in the butt by a black wolf. This black wolf was Anubis. You damn trash of a human, how dare you disturb my sweet slumber. Ah. Someone stop this dog. Anubis seemed to get angry after being called a dog and bit down even harder. Who do you think you are calling a dog? Shut your mouth right now. You terrible thing. The desperate scream became even louder. Juhian smirked toward Li Siole who seemed to be frozen for some reason. 
Is he that assassin who was supposed to come kill us? Li Siole just fake laughed with a stoic expression. W, what bullshit is that? He's just a bellboy. She tried not to show any emotion but her face was pale. She didn't know why he was being bitten by a dog, but this person was her teammate. The bellboy who noticed Li Siole started to shout again. That's right. What do you mean by assassin? I just came to change a light bulb when this crazy dog dash. I told you not to call me a dog. Ah. Anyway, I feel wronged. Please stop this thing. Yu Jaiha who saw that urgently added on. Ah, he's going to lose all the meat on his ass like that. Hey. Stop it. Hey. Damn it, we haven't even given him his rabies shots. Anubis who was angry knocked the bellboy over and something fell out of his pockets. Both the bellboy and Lee Siole became anxious once they saw it. It was a picture of Ju Hian and Yu Jaiha that was taken at Simon's shrine. The problem was that the other believers' faces were erased but the two of their faces were circled. Anybody would be able to tell that this was a suspicious picture. Oh my, would you look at this? Ju Hian picked the picture and waved it around as he continued to speak. Why would a bellboy have our picture? T, that. Looks like you need to receive proper compensation for the rights to your photo, sir. Ju Hian gave Anubis an order. Hey Blackie. Don't just bite his ass, bite the front too. Woof. Chapter, 99. Hey Blackie. Don't just bite his ass, bite the front too. Woof. Anubis seriously debated after hearing Ju Hian's order. Should he listen to a damn human's orders or not? However, he didn't have to think long. Ah. Anubis opened its large mouth toward the bellboy's little son. It wasn't that he was doing it because Ju Hian ordered him to do so. He just found this human who disturbed his sweet slumber to be rude. Yu Jaiha who saw that gasped and pulled the savage Anubis back. Egu, bad boy. No. You can't bite there. Do you really want to do that when you're a male too? Yu Jaiha was pulling with everything he had. Captain Nim. Please stop him. Why should I? What did you say sir? Yu Jaiha ended up being dragged by the close to 70 kilograms Anubis. Of course, Anubis was trying to bite the bellboy even as he dragged Jaiha with him. That wasn't the only thing do not grab me with your dirty human hands. Eek, don't bite me. Anubis viciously growled at Yu Jaiha who was holding on to him as well. Yu Jaiha was huffing as he started to shake the picture once the rope bound the bellboy. Alright, now spill it. Who the hell are you guys? Why do you have a picture of us? Like I said, I just picked this up. Even if they came with a justification such as for excavating a tomb it was a way for them to infiltrate the country and gather information. China had even protested Korea installing the THAAD missiles in the past. The artifacts and tombs had even caused a second Cold War in the future. They hired talented artifact users to excavate tombs and quarreled with each other. Well, a war between countries for benefits is none of my business. Ju Hian saw both Pandora and the CR Alliance in the same light for using artifacts to rip the world off. Anyway, he had wondered who Li Siole was working for, but it seemed as if she was a lackey for China. But Ju Hian who learned of this fact quietly clicked his tongue. Of all places, why did it have to be China? I don't like China because it reminds me of that lunatic. The four emperors of the past were Kira of the US faction, Ali of the Middle East faction, and Quan Taejun of the Guerrilla faction. As for the last person it was the monarch of gluttony of the Chinese faction. She was the most difficult to handle, the strongest and worst enemy of all artifact users. Ju Hian had almost died because of that worst predator as well. But in the end, Ju Hian was the final victor. How? For some reason, she had committed suicide in front of him. That extremely strong woman even though the situation had not called for it anyway, Chairman Quan who was in second place rose to her emperor position after that. Of course, it was still shocking as he thought about it. That was why he treated her as a lunatic and didn't want to get involved with China if he didn't need to do so. But it shouldn't matter in the present time. That lunatic shouldn't be connected to China yet. 
it wouldn't be bad to take the initiative first. Ju Hian who came to that conclusion walked over to Li Xiu Lei and started to speak. Looks like you were aiming for Anubis's artifact to tackle the seven great tombs. Ju Hian continued to speak. Your superior must have told you about the seven great tombs, right? Hand that information over. Li Xiu Lei flinched but did not lose her calm. He wants me to hand over information about the tomb. There was no way that was going to happen. She needed a strong artifact such as the one from the seven great tombs to get away from China. She would not give up on this tomb so easily. And then she bit down on the rope that was binding her. Li Siole had figured out the rope's weakness while being bound for almost twelve hours. Chomp! The rope suddenly started to flail in shock as if it was bitten on a sensitive spot. Li Siole quickly attacked Ujeha as soon as the rope loosened. Hand over my artifacts. Li Siole who could even take down soldiers kicked Ujeha in the ribs. Pow! Ugh! Ujeha curled over in pain as Li Siole gathered her artifact and sneered at him. You're so weak. This woman. Li Siole then instantly ran over to the terrace. Gildo's artifact would be able to easily handle landing from 15 stories up. I'll reassess the situation after running away. But the moment Li Siole artistically jumped off the terrace. Why did you bite a weird spot? Why did you bite it? Kaya. Li Siole was caught by the rope, making her jump useless. The sniffling rope had grabbed Li Siole's foot as she jumped. It then started to tie her up in a peculiar manner. It had held itself back and tied her up like a mummy in the past, but the rope wasn't going to go easy on her anymore. I'm going to punish you, punish you. Hey! Let go of me! Kaya! It tied Li Siole's arms, legs, and all sorts of other places as it liked, hung her upside down, and started to dig through her clothes. The rope squirmed in through Li Siole's boobs, and even slid into her hot pants and rummaged inside her underwear. Wait, over there dash. Li Siole became flustered at the rope that was squirming around her body like a snake and screamed. Ah, uh, hold on, where the hell do you think you're going? Kaya. The fact that her black bra was visible for a moment might have been her eyes playing a trick on her. But then the rope that had been harassing Li Siole for a while unexpectedly moved over to Ju Hian and handed him something. It was a small memory chip the size of a section of a finger. She was hiding this. She was hiding this. Ju Hian had not found anything when he searched her body earlier, so she must have been hiding it deep inside her body. A woman's body had many places to hide something like this. But the rope that handed him the chip was huffing as it moved its body side to side like an angry snake. It seemed to be extremely angry after having its weak spot bitten. Ju Hian patted the rope without thinking much about it. Good job. The huffing rope was extremely shocked. It wondered if it was hearing things at this unexpected praise. But the rope started to jump up and down in joy as if it had never been angry after realizing it actually happened. I was praised. I was praised. Of course, Anubis was shaking its head at the rope's reaction. Li Siole who was sexually harassed by the rope, failed to escape, and had the information about the seven great tombs stolen was grinding her teeth. The information popped up once Ju Hian plugged the memory chip into his laptop. There was a password on it, but it didn't matter. Blackie, go find out the password. Anubis started to frown as soon as he heard the order. Human, you seem to have the wrong idea. I, I am not your dog you don't have to do it if you don't want to be restored. Aren't you in pain after using your powers at the shrine? Anubis started to grind his teeth in humiliation. Do not threaten me. You will die from the risk before I die, you bastard. I know exactly what your risk is. I won't die from such a thing. So stop the nonsense and do as I said. Anubis was shaking in anger as he bit the bellboy's front parts. What the hell are you doing? He said to tell him the password. Ache. No. Stoop. It's going to fall off. In the end, Ju Hian who was informed of the password through peaceful means inputted the password as Yu Jeha groaned and walked over. 
Ugh, Captain Nim. Is it opening? Shut up. I'll give you some money so go get checked out at a hospital. Juhian looked through the vast information on the memory chip. It had simple files about tombs and locations of artifacts. They seemed to have hacked Pandora as well as they even had the top 50 people of concern that Pandora determined through the party. Juhian was very satisfied. I got something quite useful. Juhian then started to look for information on the seven great tombs. The seven great tombs were disaster grade tombs under the large tomb category, but most importantly, they were random tombs. He needed to know if the tomb was the same as the ones he remembered. I might end up dying if I don't check this out. Juhian was also concerned about what the crow had told him on the Holton ship. There are leaders among the artifacts. They are the ones who imprisoned me. They will truly hate someone like you who ignores the authority of the artifacts. So, be careful. Tombs that go beyond your expectations will start to appear in the world. Tombs. Yes. It'll be good for you to train the tomb rating skill properly. Is that why you keep provoking me with those messages? The seven great tombs were most likely part of those tombs that went beyond his imaginations. However, Juhian started to smile. Maybe it was because a thief's natural instincts became oddly excited after hearing about a dangerous tomb or because he accepted this dumb challenge from the artifact bastards. Either way, he finally opened a file containing information on the great tomb that was to open in Kyoto. Ah, this is driving me nuts. Richard looked toward Chairman Kwan who was angrily hanging up the phone. Did something happen? You remember how we sent an excavation team to Kyoto for one of the seven great tombs? Of course. I remember you paid special attention to that. Did they all perish inside? No. They couldn't even go inside. Chairman Kwan started to grind his teeth. They all perished without even making it inside. Excuse me. Richard's jaw dropped in disbelief. There was a reason Chairman Kwan was able to procure a lot of artifacts. His excavation team was extremely talented. However, something like that has never happened before. How could they perish at the entrance? It's not just our excavation team. Austin Rockefeller, Julian, and other excavation teams who had noticed something was up had headed for the entrance with large numbers of people. But nobody could get through the entrance. I plan on going there myself but it seems like there's something annoying inside the tomb. Yes, it would definitely be annoying. At least for them, that is. Chapter, 100 Wow, Captain Nim. That is indeed annoying. They were on an observation deck where they could see all of Kyoto. Ujeha's jaw was dropped as he looked out at the city. Wow, that's crazy. Is this Japan or Italy? It was a legitimate question. Approximately three days after Juhian stole the tomb information from Li Siole one of the seven great tombs appeared in Kyoto. They were observing just outside the tomb appearance area, but the city itself had turned into a mess. There were buildings in a style of architecture that did not match the Japanese shooting up. They seemed to be ancient Roman art style. They were very fancy. Hellenistic golden decorations, extremely technical round galleries and baths, frescoes that would make people gasp, and even extremely posh Roman Empire streets Kagigam. These buildings were shooting up through the streets and in between buildings, destroying the city as they rose. It was as if they were trying to get rid of this Japanese area and forcibly fill it with the radiant Roman civilization. Of course, Pandora had sent an urgent alarm about the tomb a long time ago. There is chaos in Kyoto, Japan after the appearance of a tomb. Pandora believes the tomb appearance is ranging 1,027 kilometers in area and has already overtaken Kyoto. Pandora has given a level 3 evacuation grade alarm and both Pandora soldiers and Japanese JSDF are quickly. Of course, this emergency notice was not the only thing on the news. Archaeologists have determined that the tomb's architecture that has appeared in Kyoto belongs to the ancient Roman Empire and Italy is strongly claiming the tomb as theirs in response. However, Greece is claiming that this is actually Greek architecture and also fighting for the rights Juhian started to laugh after hearing the news coming out of his phone. Based on the size of this thing, the artifact is at least an S-grade artifact. 
That was why it was normal for the entire world to want to take it for themselves, which resulted in numerous hyenas gathering in Kyoto. And one of those hyenas were what the hell, did you all come here to try to get into the tomb as well? The person who approached Ju Hien while saying that was TKBM's Li Jin A. This was the lawyer who ended up giving him a strip show after coming to scout him in the past. Yun Shi Wu was with her as well. Chairman Quan must have sent them after hearing about one of the seven great tombs opening. However, Yun Shi Wu looked ready to kill as soon as he saw Ju Hien and Yu Jeha. I got you bastards now. I remember how you got in our way at Pandora's party last time. Zhuge Kongming is ignoring all of our calls because of you. How are you going to compensate us for our losses? However, unlike these two grumbling people, Ju Hien just scoffed. Who are you guys again? What did you say? Yu Jeha, who recognized Yun Shi Wu, started to laugh as well. Hey hey, you shouldn't lie like that. Why is that our fault? Isn't it because you guys are useless? You really want to start. They heard a stern voice at that moment. Department Head Nim, Deputy Li Nim. I understand how you two must feel but this is not the time to fight. You. An unfamiliar man walked up next to Yun Shir Wu. I apologize for these two's rudeness. Our department head Nim has been dealing with a lot of issues lately. The man bowed to apologize and handed a TKBM excavation team business card. Yang Chen Yang Chen who could be considered one of the chief executives of TKBM's excavation team was looking at Zhu Hien with a cleverly sparkling gaze. CO Zhu Hien, the hidden first place that Pandora warned us about. Chairman Quan and Yun Shi Wu who had been defeated by Zhu Hien wanted nothing more than to kill him, but he was different. He recognized Zhu Hien's abilities. This bastard is someone who will make it big. We need to take a step back no matter what. This was why Yang Chen smiled as if he was a nice person. We have no desire to be enemies with you, Mr. Zhu Hien. It seems that our department head Nim caused you some trouble in the past as well, please feel free to contact me at this number if there's ever anything bothering you. My name is Yang Chen. However, just as he said that ho. They heard a scoff before something that made all of them gasp happened. Rip. Zhu Hien had ruthlessly ripped up the business card Yang Chen handed him. He did it right in front of his face. Yang Chen, the woman, and Yun Shi Wu all became shocked as the excavation team business card was ripped. He was clearly offending them. This was not something Zhu Hien would normally do. See, Captain Nim. However, Zhu Hien threw the ripped pieces of the business card into the air. I'm warning you. If you show that mother of king face of yours ever again, you will be the first to die in a tomb. They became anxious at Zhu Hien's hostility, but Zhu Hien had been glaring ever since he noticed this bastard. It was an obvious reaction. This damn Judas-like bastard. There was no way Zhu Hien would not know this person's face. Yang Chen was a part of his excavation team and the person who put them in the tomb that led to their deaths. Yang Chen was a talented person, and he was like a brother to the other tomb raiding team members even though he was the last to join the team. However, this bastard turned on them and helped Chairman Quan get rid of them. That was why Zhu Hian could never forget the face of the bastard who brought the Crow's tomb mission to them. Zhu Hian. You and the rest of the tomb raiding team members will be free if you take care of this job. I can't go with you this time because I'm injured, but it shouldn't be a difficult tomb for you based on my investigation. Fine, just tell the chairman to keep his promise. Okay. Ah, uh, use this if it becomes dangerous. It's an escape type artifact. Make sure to use it if you end up in trouble. Okay. Oh, and leave the punks who aren't part of the tomb raiding team behind this time. They'll just hold you back if you take them with you. Who knows? They are actually quite helpful inside the tombs. Ju Hien. This is an important job. I know you enjoy developing people to their full potential, but there's no time. Sure, whatever. He should have realized it at that point. He should have realized that it was all a ploy to get rid of them from the world completely. Ju Hien's tomb raiding team was the best but also the one that Chairman Quan feared the most. He promised Yang Chen a spot as a director for taking care of them. All the information this bastard gave me was fake. 
and the artifact he had given Juhian claiming it was an escape type was a self-restraint artifact. Thanks to that, his precious subordinates were killed without being able to resist. The crow's tomb was an evil divine grade tomb, but the reason they couldn't even resist was because of this bastard. However I should actually thank him for that. The corners of Juhian's lips went up viciously. Why? It was because he ended up being unable to resist because of that self-restraint artifact that he fell into the spot where he met the crow. I met the crow and got a chance at a new life thanks to you, Yang Chen. Revenge wasn't his life goal, but he wasn't going to forgive this opportunistic bastard. He would take care of this bastard the same way he would take care of Chairman Quan in the future. He would do it after gathering all of the tomb raiding team members who unfairly died in that tomb. But he needed to take a monarch position first to do that. Anyway, I warned you. I can see you trying to suck up so get lost. It wasn't hard to pretend to be friendly with this bastard, but Juhian was not nice enough to calmly shake hands with someone who stabbed his back. I also don't want to give him any unnecessary leeway. Maybe that was the reason. Yang Chen was trying not to show it, but his expression as he stood there with shaking fists was quite entertaining to watch. Yun Shi Wu was telling him, See, I told you that you can't talk to this bastard. He continued to grumble to Yang Chen. But Zhu Hian just coolly called Yu Jiehao over. Ignore them and come. We're going into the tomb. Yes sir. Li Jin watched Yu Jiehao follow behind Zhu Hian before shouting in confusion. You're not trying to go in there with just the two of you, are you? What if I am? Li Jinae seemed shocked and sneered at Zhu Hian after hearing his response. It's useless even if you try to run wild here. Can't you see that all sorts of excavation teams are stuck at the entrance? That was the truth. The entrance to this first of the seven great tombs had already appeared. The entrance was a large dirt wall that looked like a fortress that had appeared in the bamboo forest where the cult had been. Most of the excavation teams headed there as their experiences told them that was the entrance but the results were terrible. All of them ended up like this as soon as they entered the area. Who cares about a tomb? Sleeping is winning. Ah, let's just forget about excavating. Just drop it all. You need to pass this trial with your mental fortitude to the corp soldiers. I don't need them. I just need your body. W, what? My body. Anubis had an ominous feeling as a strong amount of dominance was channeled inside him. And then there was the sudden scream of a dog and an unexplainable explosion in Kyoto. Bang! Yun Shi Wu who was observing the entrance from a distant observation deck gasped in shock. The entrance seemed to have been destroyed by a strong energy as there was a hole in the door. See, crazy. The entrance was destroyed. Excuse me. Just how? TKBM members were not the only ones who were shocked. The excavation teams from different countries who had all come here and even the top 10 individuals Pandora had warned about were all shocked. All the excavation teams quickly stood up at that moment. Damn it, that's not the important thing right now. That means that someone entered the tomb right now. Hurry up and get inside the tomb. The artifact. Damn it, it'll take at least 20 minutes to get there. They started to become frantic. However, Ju Hian who had used his tomb exploration written that way but called tomb destruction by Ju Hian in combination with Anubis's self-destruction to enter the tomb was laughing. He would need to be crazy to go along and complete an artifact's condition. You just need to make a door if there is none and break through it if there is one. Of course, Anubis who had turned into an ankh was dying. Human. I will definitely kill you no matter what it takes. Ju Hian didn't care as he woke Yu Jiehao who was being dragged by the rope and started to speak. Number 1, wake up. The trial is gone now. Fix this doggy up and restore the artifacts I tell you to restore as much as possible. I'll need to use them for the artifact here. Yu Jiehao urgently jumped up and asked. Excuse me. The artifact here? Captain Nim, do you know which artifact is in this tomb by chance? Of course he did. He was able to tell after looking at the result of a tomb appearance from the observation deck. Which artifact is it? Which artifact is it? A famous Roman emperor you would know a lot about. Chapter, 
101. A Roman emperor even I know a lot about. Yes. Zhu Hien was running deep into the tomb without any hesitation. Boom boom. The inside looked like an overbearing and magnificent temple, similar to the Italian pantheon if a comparison had to be made. However, it gave off the feel of a gloomy old castle because there were no lights of any kind. Yu Jiehua's eyes sparkled as he followed behind Zhu Hien. Then is it Caesar, Augustus, or maybe someone like Constantine? Ah, Julius Caesar wasn't an emperor. Anyway. Zhu Hien sneered at him. I know what you are looking forward to, but unfortunately, it isn't someone like that. Don't have such high hopes. Ha. Huh. Then who is it? I thought you said it's a Roman emperor even I know a lot about. Domus Aurea Golden House. That should be enough of a hint for you, right? No, I can't tell at all. Domus or Domus Aurea? Yu Jeha was recalling information about Western art history when his eyes suddenly opened wide as if he thought of something. Ah, uh, maybe. But the moment Yu Jeha tried to keep talking. Boom. They heard something fall before the inside of the temple suddenly caught fire. Crackle. The fire was burning even taller than them. The fire started to spread rapidly and block their way. Yu Jeha who saw this started to tear up as if it was as he expected. Is the owner of this tomb really Emperor Nero? The bastard who burned down Rome? You know quite a lot about him. Damn it, Nero is that tyrant. If it was this strong at F rank, how destructive would it be once it leveled up? Zhu Hien who was crazed by that thought started to smile while looking at the idiots. The upset members of the excavation teams opened their eyes in anger. Fuck. It's a petty trick, it's not that dangerous. Go. Egu, come on over. Zhu Hien snickered and continued to use the skill. Bang bang bang. The tomb ruthlessly started to crumble while message after message popped up in front of Zhu Hien. The mastery of the F rank tomb destruction skill has increased. The tomb destruction skill's mastery level has increased. The tomb destruction skill has risen to E rank. The tomb destruction skill has risen to D rank. The tomb destruction skill has risen to C rank. Thanks to this, the excavation teams could only struggle through these disasters inside the tomb. Ah! Save me! Damn it, run! Bang bang! Zhu Hien was only satisfied once the 20 Piang area was completely destroyed. Wow, how effective! It'll be useful in the future. Of course, Yu Jeha was just standing there with his jaw dropped. Zhu Hien looked at Yu Jeha as if he was wondering why Jeha was blankly standing there like that. The Roman Emperor is waiting for us, hurry up. Damn it, it's fine if he doesn't wait for us. They reached a large amphitheater as they got rid of the enemies and quickly moved farther in. The golden amphitheater was extremely luxurious and filled with sculptures and fresco paintings that would make any art history student gasp in admiration, but Yu Jeha could not admire those things. How could he? Ow, it's so hot. The amphitheater was a sea of fire. They could not take a single step inside. But Nero's artifact was definitely here based on the presence of its aura. That was why Yu Jeha started to shout. Is this where we have to complete the artifacts test? Apparently. I thought it was surviving being burned at the stake. Just then they heard a gloomy voice coming from the tomb. Observe this emperor's art. And praise it. Worship it. Scream in joy. Give this emperor the greatest stimulation. Emperor Nero was said to neglect his political duties and just sought out thrills until he eventually set fire to Rome and persecuted the Christians. This emperor loved art so much that it has been said that he would have been happier to be born as an artist. He spent time performing on stage and writing literary works. But I heard that he sucked. That was why he showered people who praised him with gold in admiration. Anyway, he seemed to still be obsessed with that as watching this bastard's performance in this giant oven seemed to be the conditions for clearing this tomb. You'd have to be crazy to burn to death. How many people must have died here in the past trying to clear the mission? That was why Zhu Hien quickly launched a challenge. 
Ju Hian quickly took out and put on a round pair of glasses that looked like Harry Potter's glasses. It was Homer's artifact he had taken from Chairman Quan artifacts in the past. I know you're a Homer fanatic. Nero was a Roman emperor but was obsessed with Greek literature. Was that the reason? Homer had written the famous Greek epic poems, the Odyssey and the Iliad Battle of Troy. He should be able to bait Nero with Homer's artifact, especially since even Alexander the Great was said to have carried a copy of the Iliad with him. An artifact's trial is meaningless. The tomb will be cleared as long as you can make the artifact submit. As he activated Homer's artifact's abilities human. Such petty tricks will not work. The fire had stolen Juhian's artifact in the blink of an eye. The tyrant inside the fire started to laugh as if he knew what Juhian was planning on doing. Ha! Don't try to be sly. This emperor loves Homer but it is just a human bastard's artifact. Wait, you're a human bastard's artifact too, you punk. However, it just kept laughing out loud as if it had become a god. A lowly human using that artifact still cannot wow this emperor. It must be one of the seven great tombs for a reason as this bastard seemed to have no intentions of easily submitting. Even the large fire this bastard started to bring forth was beyond all expectations. Damn it, this damn artifact. Captain Nim. Ujeha quickly tried to use Van Gogh's painting but the fire that seemed to be alive stole Ujeha's painting artifact as well. That wasn't all. Ugh. Juhian was submerged in the fire. The burning heat that was starting to stick to his body and burning away his skin that was made of protein and water. The fire was extremely hot. It would be difficult for even Juhian to withstand this inhumane fire. That was why Juhian quickly started to move his hands. I need to use an artifact to deal with this. However, the bastard ruthlessly destroyed Juhian's artifacts. The crazy bastard then started to shout, as if telling Juhian to give his body into the pain. All of that is useless. Human, just enjoy the pain. Enjoy the stimulation. There's only one way out of this tomb. You must survive this fire. Die, human. I guess the seven great tombs really aren't easy to deal with. As Juhian and Ujeha were in pain huh? Hold on. It must have finally taken a good look at them as the bastard who was excitedly torturing Juhian and Ujeha suddenly had a change in reaction. Oh, my goodness, look who it is. He then instantly got rid of the fire and started to say something weird. And that was aren't you writer Seo Juhian who wrote The Slutty Secretary? Both Ujeha and Juhian's expressions turned odd after hearing that. How could they not? T. The Slutty Secretary? Is he talking about Captain M's terrible novel? But the bastard shouted as if he was happy to welcome them. Oh. I've been waiting for you. The hot topic of the artifact world and the person who could be considered as my sole rival. The best-selling author. Wait, what the hell is he talking about? How does this bastard know about that novel? Chapter, 102. How does this bastard know about that novel? The slutty secretary was the terrible novel Juhian had written while talking about gathering fans or what not. It had excellent writing but was terribly boring, the parts a person would want from an erotic novel and never came out, and the suspense was shit weight, that's not important right now. Juhian's novel was thrown away. So how could this artifact bastard know about a novel that never made it out into the world? What the hell has happened without our knowledge? Juhian looked serious as he asked a question. Number 1. Did you do something behind my back? Did you spread the manuscript to the artifacts? Does that even make any sense? Wait, can artifacts even read novels? Nero's artifact just laughed at the two confused humans. Nice to meet you like this. C.O. Juhian, the rising comet of the artifact world. The lights of the amphitheater that had been off and setting the gloomy mood suddenly started to light up. Tang Tang. They could clearly see the dome-shaped golden amphitheater in front of them. The lights. The pillars supporting the amphitheater were extremely fancy and the decorations all around them looked as if taking even one of them would make them extremely wealthy. This amphitheater was part of Domus Aurea Golden House. This radiant building was lighting up once again thanks to the artifact's abilities. 
But there was more. Seo Ju Hien. I will give you special treatment and allow you to meet with this emperor. The laughing bastard revealed himself as if he was happy to see Ju Hien. It was shocking as artifacts usually did not reveal themselves in a tomb. But the more shocking fact was that the bastard that appeared in front of them was not in the shape of an object. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. What appeared in front of them was a man dressed in Roman clothing, yes, it was an artifact in the shape of a human. Did that have an influence? Yu Jaiha who never expected there to be an artifact that took human form shouted in shock. Wait a minute, there are human-shaped artifacts. There was a simple reason Yu Jaiha was shocked. If there are human-shaped artifacts, then there could be a total babe there might be artifacts that look like women. And if Ju Hien got one of those artifacts, he would naturally have to restore them he would need to touch their bodies to restore them which meant that that would be legal skinship. The corners of Yu Jaiha's lips were slowly twitching but Ju Hien not only destroyed his subordinate's dreams, he crushed it into pieces. Stop your wild imagination. There are no human-shaped artifacts. Yu Jaiha became extremely angry. Damn it, then what about this bastard whose body doesn't match his face? His face is a DiCaprio but his body is that of a fat pig. What else would it be? That's an artifact transforming itself. Anubis was an ank but moved around in the shape of a dog. It was a similar concept. High-grade artifacts at S-grade or higher can transform to communicate with humans. It would be hard to move around as an object. Of course, they still could only transform into things that were related to their identity. Anyway, the emperor who showed himself was being covered in radiant lights as he complimented Ju Hien. Co Ju Hien, you are very famous in the artifact world. The slutty secretary that appeared like a comet has taken over the artifact world. Everybody is in love with that amazing piece of work. Everybody is going wild wondering when the next one will be out. Even this emperor can't forget how moved I was after reading your novel. It was completely different from the lowly works created by the other human bastards. What the hell is he saying? Yu Jaiha's expression was quite entertaining to look at right now. He had read that novel as well but which part was it that moved you? The bastard gasped at Yu Jaiha's question before getting angry. Are you saying you weren't moved at all while reading that masterpiece? Your eyes must be rotten. And, no wait, I'm just asking which part one need to read in order to. Superb writing skills, amazing descriptions. Careful choice of words. Subject matter that provides deep wisdom. Most importantly, this Eric No, complete satisfaction from feeling like he was able to read the minds of artifacts. Anyway, the slutty secretary was the best. It is unbelievable that a lowly human was able to write such a masterpiece. But to be unable to realize its value, your eyes are worse than those of animals. Do you know how quickly the number of obsessed fans of Seo Ju Hien are growing right now? Yu Jaiha started to clap. Congratulations. He's a crazed fan. Looks like you'll be deified soon enough, sir. Shut up. I don't want to be fanboyed by a damn artifact. Honestly speaking, the fact that artifacts thought highly of a human was amazing, but Ju Hien clicked his tongue. Ju Hien just felt as if ghosts or aliens were worshipping him. The only thing he was certain about was that somehow, the novel that he wrote had permeated through the artifact world. Humans cannot interfere in the matters of the artifact world, so it must have been an artifact that spread his novel. But which one was it? Of the fifty artifacts in his possession, the ones who would do something like that were Anubis? No, is it this bastard's doing? Ju Hien was looking at the rope around his wrist. The rope that was in the shape of a bracelet right now seemed to be happy to have Ju Hien looking at it as it squirmed with joy. I don't know for sure, but I'll need to look into it once I get out of here. He had been shocked for a moment, but this was actually a big chance. Why? It's a great win that the annoying fires are gone. Ju Hien quickly looked around. He could see the glasses, Homer's artifact that Nero had thrown earlier, about 100 meters away. Get that first. But there was no way Nero would let Ju Hien do as he pleased. But at that moment I found it. It's the artifact. The other excavation teams who had been delayed because of Ju Hien arrived at the amphitheater. 
It must have become easier once Nero got rid of his fires. Artifact, hurry up and become ours. We made it here so give us the test. It was normal to clear the tomb's trial to get the artifact and leave however, the fat mister shouted with an annoyed expression as if these were unwanted guests. I have no interest in junk like you guys. Get lost. A terrible fire violently burst out as soon as he said that. This emperor is only interested in Seo Juhian. Get lost. Ah. It's hot. Save me. Nero then turned toward Juhian with an anticipating gaze. Now then, Seo Juhian. You and this emperor will now huh? But Juhian welcomed Nero with an unexpected appearance. Juhian had quickly put on Homer's glasses while Nero was dealing with these thorns in his eyes. You are mine as long as I put in the time. Homer's artifact was something that could make someone else the main character of an epic poem and impact the target's life as an omnipotent writer. It normally doesn't work on artifacts but it will work on this Homer fanboy. But he wasn't done just yet. Teenage Shakespeare's pen S grade, legendary hero grade, consumable artifact he also had Shakespeare's pen that had evolved thanks to the Avesta. There was no way he wouldn't be able to make this bastard submit with these two artifacts. But Nero looked disappointed after seeing Juhian's appearance. C.O. Juhian, you are a talented and famous writer. You are able to write masterpieces without borrowing the power of such artifacts. He then said something that shocked Juhian. Why don't you just have a literary battle with me? Let's battle to see who is more popular. What? A literary battle? Is that thing crazy? But the snickering Ujeha was truly wowed. Wow, jackpot. Have you become the representative for humanity? Can I look forward to your victory? But Ju Hien didn't even listen to such useless words. Are you crazy? Who would go along with a damn artifact's request? Especially in a place like this? What would I get in return for doing that? But Nero seemed upset after hearing Ju Hien's comment. This emperor is personally challenging you. Hurry up and be happy. Shut up. I'm not happy at all. Who the hell would listen to an artifact? I have time anyway. I just need to slowly make it submit and then get out. It was at that moment. The aura of a strong artifact of strategy is getting closer. It is a strong artifact that can detect the weaknesses of tombs and artifacts. It was a message that someone was coming to bother him. However, that message made Juhian frown unlike normal. He was certain. The artifact the message was warning him about was an artifact Juhian knew very well. Zhuge Kong Ming Julian. Of all people. He was clear about how skilled his former tomb raiding team member was, as well as how much of a headache he could be. He was worlds apart from those other dumb excavation teams he was pretty much like a hacker since he could see through all artifact and artifact users' abilities and weaknesses. TSK, I thought they said he withdrew. He seemed to have changed his mind after hearing that the entrance was breached and came back. Thanks to that, Juhian was starting to feel rushed. It'll get complicated if that bastard comes here right now. Julian would be able to quickly figure out his and Nero's weaknesses and might end up stealing the artifact first. The analysis type artifact is slowly getting closer. Damn it. Julian's footsteps were getting closer. Based on the noise, 100m, 80m damn it, I haven't made this thing submit yet. What could he do? Send the rope to get in Julian's way. He didn't have much time. But Nero, who had no idea about Juhian's current mindset, nonchalantly shouted. Co Juhian. Compete with this emperor. Hurry up. Juhian started to laugh as if he figured something out. Ah, I'm an idiot. There was a way to take this artifact with him without making him submit. This was Juhian's answer. Alright. Fine, I'll battle you like you want. I'll play with you. Oh, really? However. Juhian put a condition. Only if you come with me. Nero instantly started to frown. What did you say? That is not possible. Did you think this emperor would not notice that this is your plot to drag me out of here? Juhian just shamelessly responded as if he had no fear at all. Really? 
then, do whatever you want. Kill me with your fancy fire if you don't like it. Captain Nim. But Ju Hien just started to smirk with the spirit of a gambler who was going all in on a terrible hand. This bastard got rid of the fire on his own accord. He won't kill me that easily. Of course, he would have to deal with the annoying situation of fighting against Julian for the artifact if this didn't work. Ju Hien shamelessly continued to speak as if he was a scammer selling some miracle drug. Think hard about it. I am unable to display my true abilities here. A talented artist like you should know the importance of the environment. Ju Hien then nervously looked at Nero, although it was not visible on his face. Nero was just glaring at Ju Hien without any changes to its expression. Ju Hien clicked his tongue as he watched. TSK, I guess it won't work. Nero's body flashed at that moment. The human body disappeared and a laurel wreath shaped artifact appeared. Understood. Make sure to keep your promise. Maybe it was seduced by Ju Hien calling it an artist. Either that, or maybe Nero realized it didn't matter since it didn't submit to Ju Hien and agreed. Clang. The laurel wreath fell to the ground and Ju Hien shouted with joy internally. Good. He heard a familiar voice right behind him at that moment. Co Ju Hien. It was Julian as he had expected. Julian soon saw Nero's artifact. That is. Julian urgently stretched his arm out but Ju Hien grabbed the laurel wreath first. Tap. It was extremely close. Ju Hien started to laugh while looking at him. Scary bastard, he made it all the way here without any injuries. He truly deserved to be one of the monarch grade candidates. Julian started to frown while looking at the laurel wreath in Ju Hien's hand. You. That. Julian approached Ju Hien looking as if he wanted to take it away, but Ju Hien agilely dodged him. You idiot, the bus has already passed by. Let everyone know that this artifact is already mine. Ju Hien smiled provokingly before quickly activating an artifact. The two of them almost instantly disappeared. Chapter, 103 Ju Hien and Yu Jeha disappeared with a flash of light. They had left the tomb with Nero's artifact. The tomb lost power and started to crumble once its master had left. Was that the reason? Julian, the artifact user ranked third on Pandora's warning list, became anxious as an earthquake happened. There was a simple reason for it. Wait, he swiped the artifact without even clearing the tomb. This was an abnormal tomb clearance. No, this couldn't even be called clearing it at all. It made sense an exit did not appear as the tomb wasn't cleared. Damn it. It truly meant that Ju Hien just swiped the artifact and escaped. Julian who had instantly gotten stuck after coming into the tomb for no reason got a headache. I need to hurry up and get out. However, Julian could not ignore the numerous people who had fainted on the ground. I have no choice. He took out a wine bottle. Golden Horned King and Silver Horned King's Purple Gold Red Gourd Gourd Shaped Bottle SS Grade, Divine Grade Alright suck them in without hurting them. This was an artifact from the journey to the west that Ju Hien would be extremely greedy for if he saw it. Of course, it could not go against Julian's dominance and save the people without any complaints. Shoo! Sure. It had sucked up all of the unconscious people. Julian then used Juga Kongming's artifact to find a path and escape. But he couldn't help but click his tongue at the fact that Ju Hien got away. Co Ju Hien, I came here because I was concerned, but honestly speaking, Julian was planning on withdrawing from here. However the way he blasted his way through the entrance when nobody else could that man is stronger than I thought. Julian was subconsciously chasing after Ju Hien. As someone with the ability to analyze artifact users, his eyes could clearly see it. He could see the level of the artifact users. If a number system was to be used, the average artifact users would get 40 to 50 points, while the people he saw in Pandora would average in the mid to late 80. But Ju Hien was over 90 points. There was no way he could not be concerned. He had never seen someone record that high of a level. Well, it's not like there weren't anybody who was close to 90, but the reason he had planned on working with Chairman Kwan was because he thought there would be a good amount of give and take since Chairman Kwan's points were much higher than average, at 91. 
Even if it was only a small difference, Zhu Hian was stronger than Chairman Quan. It was understandable that it caught his interest. It was similar to how the athletes in the Olympic world ranking would pay attention to their talented rivals. That wasn't the only thing there was also the thing about how he seemed to know a lot about my sister and how he tried to stop me from working for Chairman Quan. There were many reasons that man caught his attention. Most importantly, that crow's protection is concerning. The aura of the crow surrounding Zhu Hian was not normal. It felt like an evil god, a predator who preyed on its fellow artifacts. Its nature was clearly different from the other artifacts. And it was the scent of the predatory artifact I smelled on my sister's corpse. Could Zhu Hian be related to his sister's death? But at that moment Ugh, aren't you that famous strategist? The members of the other excavation teams, who were brought out of the wine bottle after he came out of the tomb, recognized him. However, they found it odd that Julian had saved them. Why would you save us who are your rivals? And you should have known how to clear this tomb, so why did you withdraw earlier? Why else? Julian was able to tell what this tomb's trial would be even without going in thanks to Zhuge Kongming's artifact. He naturally knew how to clear it as well. That method was so loathsome that he was planning on withdrawing. What? Even the Arabs couldn't get it. C.O. Juhian took it. Austin Rockefeller who heard the situation from his secretary was going nuts. That bastard. Austin had quite a bit of hate for Juhian after being choked by that damn rope and losing both the artifact of evangelism and Van Gogh's painting to Juhian. That was why he had coordinated with the radical Arab terrorists for this excavation. The usually rational Austin started to shout into his phone. That's different from what we discussed. And why the hell did they have to lose it to him? I even told them how to clear the tomb, those retards. It wasn't enough that they lost one of the seven great tombs artifacts to Seo Juhian, what else happened? And then they were rescued by the Zhuge Kongming or whatever bastard. What the hell did they do right to come out of that tomb alive? They should have just died inside. Those chumps weren't worth the money. That Ali or whatever. I'm sure that man didn't send good people. It was a total scam of a deal. He was extremely angry. And although Austin didn't know this, the person he made a deal with this time was unfortunately the religious leader who would become the monarch of evangelism in the future. He was the Avesta of Sacred Texts' original owner. Ju Hian had that artifact now, but he was a strong artifact user who had become one of the four emperors. That person was stealthily building his forces in the desert. You got that? Deliver this message to him properly. Tell him that I will tell the US about the existence of his organization if he scams us like this again. Tell him to take care of Seo Juhian and bring back the artifact they lost today if he doesn't want that to happen. He then ended the call. He had a headache for many different reasons. He was already busy enough gathering artifacts to create a talented artifact user as his eldest sister had ordered. But the Holtons are suddenly provoking us for no reason. He started to grind his teeth. We had to spend a ton of money on Nostradamus to tell us how to clear this tomb too. That was the case. Austin Rockefeller had gone to the future monarch of fate who was a part of Pandora. He had learned the method of clearing the sloth tomb from the seer who uses Nostradamus's artifact. He said the tomb could be cleared if you made 100 humans blow themselves up. That was why Austin had given bomb artifacts to the excavation team members he hired this time. He was planning on making them blow themselves up. Of course, he kept the information about the bomb artifacts a secret as they would never agree to do such a thing. Nostradamus was correct about how to clear the tomb. Julian's Zhuge Kongming's artifact analyzed that was the way to clear the tomb as well. Of course, it only had about a 70% chance of success. That was why Austin who had spent a ton of money for this was grinding his teeth. C.O. Juhian that bastard, he destroyed the entrance and then swiped the artifact away as well. That's not all sir. According to the surviving excavation team members, C.O. Juhian was not harmed at all. His former Russian secretary had run away after the party because she was afraid of Juhian. Austin started to sneer after hearing his new secretary's comment. He probably gave Nostradamus a ton of money as well. He cleared it by making 100 people blow up. But the secretary shook her head. 
No, only two people went inside. But they were still able to easily take the artifact without any harm. Rockefeller questioned his ears. What? Only two people. And they took it easily. Yes sir. They ignored the trial. That seems to be the case. He was completely flabbergasted. Are you joking? Tomb excavation teams consist of at least 20 to 30 people at minimum. And how could he take it without even clearing the trial? He seems to have used a special skill we are not aware of, but all the other excavation teams seem to be shocked as well. Rockefeller didn't care about the other excavation teams, but he started to lose it. What the hell did Nostradamus say? That bastard didn't tell Seo Juhian a different way of clearing the tomb, did he? And, no sir. That sir seems to be shocked as well. He became tired. Ah, whatever. What was the artifact in the tomb? That is the most important thing. Austin bit down on his lips as if he was extremely antsy. Nostradamus said an extremely great historical figure would come out of there. The artifacts based on more famous people would be more useful. That was why both he and the rest of the world were curious as to who it was. So, who was it? The secretary became flustered. Um, it does seem to be a great historical figure from Rome but nobody knows who it is. Austin exploded. How the hell can they go inside the tomb but not even figure that out? That was the most important thing. What if it is someone like Julius Caesar or Constantine? We need to know that to decide whether to give up on it, negotiate for it, or steal it. Nostradamus was able to prophesize how to clear the tomb but could not figure out the identity of the artifact. That is why Pandora is trying their best to contact Seo Juhian to figure out the identity of the artifact after learning that he took it, but Probably Pandora as well as the leaders of different countries and people like Chairman Kwan were all desperately trying to contact Juhian right now. This artifact had come out from one of the seven great tombs and they were all focused on the fact that it was a great historical figure. I'm sure it is not a normal artifact. I must get it. Tell them to use the Pandora system artifact to quickly locate the next tomb. We can't let him take the next one too. What about you, young master? I will try to contact Seo Juhian. I'll see if he is willing to sell the artifact. The secretary nodded her head and left but Austin was still grinding his teeth as if he felt humiliated. Damn it. Do I really have to contact him first? As expected, the Roman buildings all over Kyoto have disappeared once the tomb has disappeared. Pandora believes that the tomb has been cleared but the location of the artifact is currently unknown Juhian who had arrived in a Kyoto hotel was laughing while watching the news on TV. He was certain everybody would be running around wondering what the hell happened. The way he cleared the tomb with a petty trick was something nobody else knew about. It's already too late even if you guys want to figure it out, you bastards. Juhian was sitting on the chair with a mischievous expression. Should I mess with them using a different method next time? Well, he was calling it messing with them, but it would be a great disaster for the people on the receiving end. But honestly speaking, right now that was not what Juhian found to be the most important. That was why Juhian called out the rope and waved a pile of papers in front of it. This was none other than the slutty secretary. Okay. Explain what happened. Yes. The thing Juhian was most curious about right now was how this had spread to the artifacts. He was curious as to what kind of network the artifacts had, but most importantly, Juhian wanted to know the culprit. It's definitely one of my artifacts. Of his fifty artifacts, the rope was the only potential suspect on his mind. That was why Juhian started to frown toward the rope. Okay, tell me. Why did this spread among the artifacts? I also want to know how artifacts are able to share text with each other. Did you do it? That wasn't the only issue. Nero had told him something else. He said that the slutty secretary was only available for purchase. That meant that someone had spread the manuscript without his consent and was getting all the benefits from it. How could he not be angry? But the rope just seemed to like Juhian who had just come out of the shower as it rubbed its body on Juhian's leg and tried to act cute. Master, let's play. Let's play. Violent dominance shot out from Juhian at that moment. Boom. 
The shocked rope seemed to be saying something in fear. Of course, Ju Hien could not understand the rope that was still only a B-grade artifact. But Anubis who was lying on the ground sighed after hearing what the rope was saying. Ha ha, so crazy. It must have understood the rope as they were both artifacts. Ju Hien, who realized this, asked Anubis a question. What is it saying? Humph, I have no reason to tell you let's see, where is a good place to test out the self-destruct. Damn it, it said it just praised its master. That you wrote the thing. That it was well written. That it was very entertaining. Oh. That's why it spread the manuscript to all the artifacts. The rope quickly said something else. No, I only showed it to master's artifacts. Only showed it to them. Is what it said. What? My artifacts. We all sat in one room and read it together. We didn't spread it. Is what it said. Hmm. So that's how it was. Ju Hien had a pretty good idea about what happened. It seemed that on the day his novel was written his artifacts had gathered around and read the manuscript together. They were like children reading a comic book together. Ju Hien's artifacts were usually gathered together in Yu Jeha's restoration room, so the rope probably took the manuscript there. Anyway, Ju Hien nodded his head and threw something to Anubis. Thanks for the translation. Hey doggy. Here's a reward. The thing that he threw to Anubis was a dog bone that Yu Jeha had bought. Anubis exploded as if he felt humiliated, but Ju Hien who threw the bone felt that this situation was odd. Why? All the rope did was show it off to my artifacts. He could overlook showing it to his artifacts as they were all his. But that meant that the culprit that spread the novel to the entire artifact community was still out there. Who was it that dared to illegally distribute his work? It was at that moment. All right, I've made billions now. The reaction to the novel is great. Wow, it's so easy to make money. Ju Hien's eyes opened wide. He was hearing the suspicious voices of artifacts coming from Yu Jeha's restoration room. Chapter, 104 Ju Hien's eyes opened wide. He was hearing the suspicious voices of artifacts coming from Yu Jeha's restoration room. It was not just one artifact. There were quite a few of them chatting inside the room. Most of them were mumbling like the rope where he could not understand, but there were some voices that were clear as Anubis's voice. This is how you make money while lying down. Ju Hien's face turned vicious after hearing that familiar voice. That bastard. Ju Hien started to walk toward the restoration room. However, the excited voices inside continued to chat away even as Ju Hien got closer. The voices were very loud. The decibel was usually low even though they usually chatted, but something must have happened inside to get them excited. Wow, even Raphael and that bastard Robin Hood are sponsoring. Confucius sent more money. We're rich. We're number one right now. See, I told you we'd make money in our sleep if you listened to me. But at that moment. Bang. What the hell are you guys doing? Ju Hien charged into the room with a vicious blizzard around him. The inside of the room that had been full of cheers had turned into pandemonium. It made sense as Ju Hien's dominance, as he charged into the room, went beyond a level any of them could ever imagine. Boom! The chaotic dominance was vicious and rough enough to destroy every artifact inside the room. Because of that, the artifacts that had been gathered together on the bed started to run away in shock. Most of them were tool types such as ink, fountain pen, or knife so they flailed around before falling off the bed while the ones who were capable of transforming ran away to hide inside trash cans or the closet. Yu Jeha who was munching on a chicken leg and enjoying a break ran over in shock. See, Captain Nim. Did something happen? Did something happen? It looks like these shitheads gather together and pull some bullshit whenever you're not here. Excuse me. But the only thing left inside the room was Ujeha's regular art tools. Ujeha's restoration artifact must have been an accomplice with the others as it had gone into hiding long ago. However, Ju Hien viciously started to speak to the artifacts. So, you shitheads use my novel for your benefit? He heard some mumbling as soon as he said that. What the hell, how did he find out? 
I don't know, just feign ignorance. There's no way a human would know anything. Humans can't understand us anyway. The veins on Ju Hian's neck started to show as his dominance exploded. Get your asses out now while I'm speaking nicely. Mommy, I'm going to die like this. The scared artifacts quickly gathered to the center of the room. It was shameful to listen to a human, but Ju Hian's dominance was transcending anything they could ever dream of. Yu Jeha was so amazed that he stopped eating after seeing the artifacts quickly gather together with movements that could usually only be seen in the military. He was always getting beaten up by the artifacts but apparently they were capable of acting like this too. But Ju Hian looked like a scary ghost as he started to speak to the numerous artifacts. Who is responsible for this? Which of you shithead started all of this? The artifacts all peeked toward a direction as if they all agreed on it in advance. But they were looking at artifacts Ju Hian would have never expected, the Gold Axe Silver Axe. Ju Hian was shocked. Gold Axe Silver Axe. Those twin bastards. However, the two artifacts were shocked and quickly looked elsewhere as if to say they were not responsible. The bastard among the artifacts who was trying to run away was caught. And as expected why, yes. It was me. So what? What about it? It was Su Fu's artifact, the high-grade artifact used to awaken the herb of eternal youth. Ju Hian started to frown at the bastard who was acting as if he had been wronged. You damn worm, how dare you act like you did nothing wrong. Ugh, ugh. The worm was ruthlessly stepped on by Ju Hian. Furthermore, hey worm. Why are you in Japan? You should be with the herb of eternal youth the farmers are growing. This was the situation. He had already fused Su Fu's artifact inside the herb of eternal youth's pot. This bastard needed to stick to the herb of eternal youth and do his job for the herb of eternal youth to continue bearing fruit. But the worm that should be in the New York penthouse with the farmers was in Japan, doing what? The worm screamed from under Ju Hian's foot as if he had a lot to say as well. Why else? You damn human bastard. You make me work but don't pay me at all. I'm not running away because you are my partner, but this is exploitation, you bastard. What bullshit are you talking about? We're giving you the precious pearls that number one is making. They should have been giving them to you in bulk once a week. Shut up. You scammer. The worm got angry for some reason. Those pearls are all fake. Don't think I don't know that, you bastard. Juhi and peeked toward you Jeha after hearing that. Were you found out? It was an annoyed gaze. Yu Jeha who understood the meaning behind his gaze smiled bitterly. Of course I was found out. Those pearls disappear after a while. This was the situation. Yu Jeha who had high fit with art type artifacts was able to draw out the Venus's artifacts hidden ability, pearl creation. However, Yu Jeha's base disposition was in scamming so everything that was created like that disappeared after a while. They were all fake goods. That was why he had expected it to not last very long when he promised to pay the worm with the pearls. But Ju Hian clicked his tongue, as if to why he got caught so quickly. He would have had a lot of money if Jeha managed to drag it out a little longer. The worm was huffing. Anyway, I had to do this to make money since you don't pay me, you bastard. Pay me. Shut up. And hand over all the money you made. I refuse, you bastard. It's my money. Oh. Looks like all of you need to be exploded together as a group to return to your senses. The other artifacts gasped and looked toward the worm after Ju Hian said he would hold them all responsible. The worm tried to ignore them, but the other artifacts shouted at the worm in fear. Just hand it over. Hand it over. Tell him you were wrong. The worm sniffled and started to glow. You cheap and terrible devil-like bastard. Something amazing started to happen at the same time. Ah! An exorbitant amount of gold, silver, jewels, and items that seemed as if they would have significant historical value started to pour out. The artifacts around the world seemed to have sent over their master's goods. H, holy crap, what is all this? The money had dollars, yens, pounds, and other currencies while the items were enough to start a museum of his own. 
All of this seemed to be worth over hundred billion won. Juhian clicked his tongue in shock. How much did these shitheads take from the other artifacts? Wow, shit, the whole room is filled. Yu Jeha gasped while Juhian started to smirk. I thought things useless to humans would come out since he was charging the artifacts. But would you look at this? Not only that there were many items Juhian had never seen before. Weird powders, liquids, ores, and even food that artifacts would probably enjoy. They were all unique things that could not be found on earth. Were they maybe ingredients for tombs? Do these bastards create tombs using manual labor? It didn't matter. Anyway, it should be interesting to sell these things. Something among the things Juhian had never seen before caught his eyes. Hmm. It was a small orb that seemed to have tomb glyphs on it. It was giving off a strong aura and seemed to be quite precious. What is this? All of the artifacts unexpectedly flinched. They seemed scared that an important secret of the artifacts would be revealed to a human. Why did that bastard have to get that thing? That should have been hard to find so how did this bastard? D, don't touch it. It is something very important for artifacts. Ju Hien, who naturally did not miss the change in atmosphere, smiled wickedly. Oh ho. Really? What is it? A few minutes later there was a bloodied worm squirming on the ground. The artifacts nearby were going, self-destruct. Self-destruct. What a cruel human bastard. They were shaking in fear. Ju Hien who turned the worm this way calmly asked again. So, you're saying that this orb-like lump of aura is an artifact's core? Why, yes sir. That is the truth. No wonder I felt the aura of an artifact on it. Yes. The orb was an artifact's core. It was similar to an artifact's soul. It was the thing that gave it life. The worm was squirming as it revealed one of the artifact's secrets. You are able to take it out of any destroyed artifact's body, sir. But that one seems to only be a C-grade soul Juhian was amazed. Was it because it was in the shape of a lump of aura instead of a tool? Even he could not tell it was C-grade by looking at it. Mm, -hmm, either way, I guess there are cores inside artifacts. This was quite precious information. He should be able to take the core out and use it for his benefit. At that moment he heard Yu Jeha start to scream. Ah, what the hell? Captain Nim. What is it? You're getting flooded with love calls. You're getting mail from Pandora and numerous countries. Juhian scoffed at him. I know. I'm getting a ton of calls every day. They're probably trying to get their hands on the artifact from one of the seven great tombs. It's obvious they're trying to at least get information about the artifact since they don't know what it is. Ah uh, now that you mention it, it felt like some people were keeping an eye on our place as well, what are you planning on doing? It'll be difficult to contract with Nero like this. He still needed to do that literary battle or whatever to make Nero submit and contract with him. Well, a promise with a stupid item I could just ignore it and sell it off, but Ju Hien was concerned about the message he saw when he gained Nero. You have earned one of the Seven Majesties' keys. That was what the message Windows had said. But Ju Hien had been confused after seeing that. The fact that there were seven of them must mean that they were talking about the seven great tombs, and the keys were probably the artifacts from these seven great tombs. But Majesty? Artifacts have royalty too. Well, it didn't matter. The only thing he was certain about was that Nero would call out artifacts he's connected with while running wild in this literary battle or whatever. He was an emperor who loved to boast, so he'd call out his servant artifacts or whatever. I can swipe all of those as well. But the dangers of having it stolen would increase with so many eyes on him. But it's not my style to hide around him, it is annoying so I do need to get these hyenas away from me. Yu Jeha smiled wickedly after hearing that. Captain Nim, I have a pretty good idea. I'll beat you up if you say some bullshit again. Ah come on, it's for real this time. It'll be a kill two birds with one stone type where you can make a lot of money and take care of the hyenas at the same time. Oh. Okay, then tell me about it. Yu Jeha then started to smile like a scammer Juhian had seen in the past. Let's sell a fake to them. 
Juhian snorted. Sounds interesting, but your fakes disappear after a day. There's no way they would fall for. No. That's only if I copy the abilities as well. Copying just the appearance will make it last a long time. Copy just the appearance. Then what about the contents? Ujeha smirked and started to shake the orb around. Ujeha who had learned about the artifact orb's abilities had used his head. We copy just the outer shell of this laurel wreath and throw this core inside to create a fake artifact from the seven great tombs that won't disappear. They might know what it looks like because of the people who saw it, but they won't know what's inside. Juhian could contract with the real Nero's artifact while the others were all distracted by the fake. Then I can quickly aim for the next of the seven great tombs as well. Juhian started to chuckle at his subordinate who was showing that he was growing. How fitting of the future monarch of fraud. However, Juhian was the boss of that scammer. Fine. Then let's keep all of the artifact users who gather for it imprisoned inside an artifact. Then it should be easier to loot the next tomb without anyone bothering me, right? The sharp Jeha quickly started to run his mouth. Wow, this sir is trying to imprison perfectly fine people. Anyway, please give me a ton of incentives if it succeeds. Juhian quickly started to write a post in the artifact forum that had been created since Pandora's party. The message was simple. I am selling the artifact I gained from Kyoto's tomb. These scammers shamelessly added on as well. Ah, this artifact seems to be Julius Caesar's artifact. The bidding will start from 500 Now let's see how many people bite the bait.